Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 228 The second mother spoke quickly in a crisp and clear voice. She could not help but laugh as she spoke but, in the end, it was the high-spirited second elder Luo who had laughed so hard that the roof shook and rustled, the one family's five elements. Not only that, the moment that person broke their meridians, the element they cultivated in was immediately revealed. The person who had cultivated with water poison turned blue, the person who cultivated with wood poison turned green. Wen Leong did not dare to laugh along with them. He then hastily looked at first grandfather, so, second grandfather, and the other's cultivation base. After the elites of the Wen family had broken their meridians, even though their lives were salvaged by the old demon Rabbit Bulu, their art of poison's cultivation base was considered useless from then on. Perhaps when Bushuo would be fine with that, as long as his mouth was still there everything was well. However, for the arrogant and unyielding elites like second grandfather and third grandfather, life without a cultivation base would be sadder than death. Chang Li answered Wen Liang's question from the side, Bu Lu had used his life vitality to help them protect their internal organs and to disperse the strong poison. I will then help them reforge their meridians after the strong poison has been completely dispersed off. She then rubbed her palms together in anticipation and her eyes were filled excitement as if it was a fun opportunity to forge someone else's meridians once again. Wen Leong was initially relieved when heard that his martial ancestral grandmother would use her skills to help but judging from her expression. He felt that this matter was slightly undependable as he gazed into first uncle's eyes with concern. The four master cultivators of Wen family had risked their lives to attempt to perform the magic art but, as a result, they had all been defeated. First grandfather then gave the idea up as he summoned Wen 9 and Wen 13. Together with the elites from the Miao and Luo families, they followed Grand Master Tuasia's final testament and launched the secret technique of fusing the three arts into one, managing to accomplish with success on two occasions. Little Chi Maojio's birth year spell was cultivated into the poison cultivator's body to protect the cultivator's so called heart soul. The spell's bug itself was also tainted with exceedingly strong poison power. Under the refinement of the corpse dance, they drew in Yin power which was then returned to the bodies of the Miao clansmen so their witchcraft power would increase exponentially. Similarly, Mumu had used the corpse control spell to control the half-dead one nine and one thirteen. Between herself and the two silly uncles as well as Adan, the Yin power and the birth year spell continuously melted and exchanged with one another. Finally, Mumu too enjoyed the great benefit. After the three arts have been fused into one, not only has the two silly uncles' art of poison improved profoundly, little Chi Maojo's power of witchcraft spell and Mumu's art of corpse too achieved vast improvements simultaneously. If they were placed in the cultivation world now, they would be considered as outstanding elites. First grandfather finally spoke and he declared in a manner which was filled with admiration, Grand Master's cultivation method is to combine the three powers of Yang's poison. Yin's corpse energy, and the power of witchcraft spell until each person would have a balance of three powers in their body. We might never understand the principle behind it despite our extensive studies but, at long last, the cultivation method is now firmly in our grasp. As for the one, Miao, Luo family's disciples, they would only need to understand that one plus one was equal to two. As for why it was equal to two, it would be best if they could understand it but it would not be absolutely necessary for them to master their craft. After the three arts have been fused into one, the disciples who had participated in the process have made astonishing progress in their cultivation power. They would cultivate on their own in the future and their accomplishment would be unlimited, one could tell just by looking at their three grand masters from two thousand years ago. However, it was still the disciples of the art of poison who had received the greatest advantage, the process of remolding their meridians was almost equal to being reborn. The art of witchcraft and the art of corpses' disciples had turned out slightly weaker by comparison. Even though there were only four good hands from the one, Miao, and the Luo families who had achieved success, there were still two silly men amongst them. Still, once they had clarified their Grand Master's divine art of cultivation, it was not difficult for them to imagine that in the next decade or decades, the three families' disciples would flourish for generations. With the combination of three and three, they could then take a look at the five blessings or they could ask the world sect, 
no one would dare to bully them anymore. Wen Leung exhaled a long breath and released his worry. However, before he could speak, First Grandfather had burst into laughter and stood up. He then pulled Wen Leung along and walked out, there's still one more great matter Gongye's family from Mount Pan are not just good at eating, their workmanship in refining weapons is amazing too. Wen Leung felt elated. The Ningjiao had been divided into two portions its blood. Flesh and internal organs had been passed to the Wen family to be used to refine poison while its skin and bones were given to the Gongye family from Mount Pan to be used to refine weapons. From first grandfather's words, old man Gongye's side should have achieved some good results. The large group in the big house followed first elder one and entered the village. There was a bronze furnace around four to five stories high on the open space behind the village. Its brass-colored walls were engraved with a densely dotted ancient script which appeared simple and unsophisticated while a red-colored fiery glow reflected from within the mouth of the furnace. There were dozens of bellows the size of tents which surrounded the bottom part of the furnace. There was also a crystal-clear water channel which encircled the furnace. Logs from an unknown type of tree with an unusual scent had been piled up into a small hill near the furnace. Wei Mo was standing next to the furnace but he paid absolutely no regard to his surroundings. He held a little stone tablet in his hand as he drew and wrote honestly he did not even realize that Wen Leong was there. Old man Gongye was pondering on something with his head lowered when he realized that a large group of people has approached him. His face was filled with impatience but after he saw Wen Leong, his expression suddenly turned elated. The joy on his face was like a young student who had just scored a hundred marks in his exam. The old man laughed as he tugged Wen Leong, the only thing missing was you. Soon after that, he roared loudly at his disciples, young lads, increase the furnace's fire. Wen Leong was startled by Gongye's appearance the initially healthy and vigorous old man has become withered and shriveled. His face was grey and hideous while his gaze was dimmed and murky as if he had just recovered from a big illness. Over a hundred burly men from the Gongye family had been sitting around but the moment they heard their family elders' command, they responded in unison. They each took off their shirts, revealing their brass-colored upper body. The rock-like muscles between their shoulders, arms, chests, and abdomens rolled in a rigid yet strong manner. In a short moment, gigantic flames a few meters high soared out from the gigantic furnace abruptly. It looked like a greedy giant snake which shook its head and wagged its tail as it soared straight up, attempting to taste the moon that had just risen to the corner of the sky. The rest of the Gongya disciples too bustled about as they placed the unknown logs into the furnace chamber without ceasing. When Liang's hearing was exceptional, he could distinctively hear those sweet-smelling logs give out the sound of joyous laughter the moment they entered the giant furnace. That sound was also accompanied by the howling of the wind. Within the crackling sound of fire, the noises made Wen Leong feel a numbness all over his scalp. Waves upon waves of heat roared and spread out of the furnace, making the air shimmer. It was unknown when the air had secretly condensed into a transparent yet misty weed which entangled onto the gigantic furnace. The flames were burning stronger and more vigorously now, turning from red to yellow and finally into a dazzling silvery white. The brass-colored furnace, on the other hand, has turned completely red as if it would erupt into a river of molten bronze at any time. Countless ancient scripts were struggling in agony until all of a sudden, a blaring sound of a clank echoed from within the furnace. Each strong man who had been pumping the bellows were shaken until they spat out a mouthful of blood in unison. Old man Gongye straightened his back as the lifelessness in his mannerism vanished. He shouted along with that blasting sound in the furnace chamber, forge the blade. The strong men immediately reacted as if they had just heard God's will. Their gaze appeared enticed yet determined as their movements at the bellows turned from coordinated and strong into wild and crazy. Wen Leong has never witnessed the process of iron forging in the past. He stood in front of the furnace as he stared in bewilderment. You've got me, on the other hand, was ululating profusely from his chest as its entire body stiffened in excitement. Another blasting sound echoed from within the furnace chamber once again. Unlike the blasting sound earlier which had sounded loud and tyrannical, this one sounded a lot heavier and thicker. The men who had been pumping the bellows shouted as they spat out mouthfuls of blood which splashed onto their chests and arms ferociously. Old man Gongye raised his head and roared into the sky once again, forge the armor. 
everyone's expression turned savage and terrifying. It was as if the furnace had turned into a devil which absorbed a human spirit and soul and the Gomia disciples were a flock of wild ducks which remained unrepentant to the end. It was until the third forceful and sonorous blasting sound that old man Gomia's voice abruptly turned sharp. He roared in a hoarse and exhausted voice, gain the soul. As he said that, he gestured for Wen Leong to move forward. When Leong blinked his eyes, he was dumbstruck and he asked softly, go where? Before his voice could die away, a tremendous thrust of irresistible force pushed him into the furnace in one go. Gand Master Chong Li giggled, scoop some good stuff out of the furnace. The young lad who knows nothing. Even though he knows very well that Chong Li would never harm him, when Leong was still startled and frightened out of his wits. He had heard the story of the knife-forging master who used his body to nourish the knife until he had leaped into the furnace but he had never heard of tossing regular people into a furnace. The enchanting and fiery fire snake was still swaying strenuously as if it was trying to struggle free from the furnace chamber with great efforts so it could fly into the sky. When Wen Leong was tossed into the furnace, that fiery snake had erupted into a million sparks with a loud and vigorous bang. Following that, a voice which could not be distinguished if it was an agonizing howl or a cheerful yell was heard before it soon disappeared without a trace. When Leon could feel as his telegnosis ability, vision, and hearing were all burned into nothingness in a flash by the high temperature which could melt even the heavens and the earth. His entire body was filled to the brim with the poison power of life and death yet there was no way he could struggle or twist his body even once. He had dived headfirst into the furnace chamber and the heavy warmth had wrapped itself around his entire body in a moment. The piercing brightness vanished abruptly. The Wen family village which had been illuminated by a glow as bright as the sun regained its prior silence and darkness in the blink of an eye. Everyone was feeling rather parched too, all they could hear was the thudding sound of their own heartbeats in their ears. Wen 9 and Wen 13's expression were solemn and sorrowful. They raised their noses and tried to sniff strenuously but they could not smell the scent of barbecued meat at all. It was unknown whether the both of them would cry their hearts out or run to the kitchen to pick up cumin and chili instead if they had smelt barbecued meat. The furnace was being used to refine the Ning Jiao's skin and bones. The Ning Jiao's skin was used to make armor while the Ning Jiao's bone was refined into a blade. Because when Leong does not possess any primordial spiritual power, he would not have been able to refine his own treasured weapon like the other cultivators. However, the Ning Jiao was no ordinary creature and the Gongya family's art of weapon crafting was even more of a master skill. Old man Gongya had racked his brains before he finally thought of a spell known as the magic of one heart which connected the treasured weapon to its master. Inside the furnace, the essence of the Ning Jiao's bones which was called the Ning Jiao's sting was being nourished by Wen Leong. It would protect its master Wen Leong from being burned by the furnace's fire. At the same time, Wen Leong's art of poison circulated in his body and was refined together with the Ning Jiao's bones and skin. As he pulled through the final fire of true reflection which refined the spirit, the task would then be accomplished with success. First grandfather had heard old man Gongya explain this process earlier but he still felt uneasy in his heart. First elder Luo suddenly laughed and said to his brother, I wonder if old man Gongya had learned this skill from reading Journey to the West. Chang Li giggled as she shook her head, the magic art of refining the person together with the weapon has existed in the past. All is well as long as the smelting level is well controlled. The strong men who were pumping the bellows now looked dull and tired. They then stopped pumping as they looked at their family's leader anxiously. Old man Gongya, who was usually confident, now seemed slightly distracted to everyone's surprise. He peered at Chang Li hesitantly and she nodded. Her charming chin moved under the moonlight in an enchanting manner as she laughed and said, I will protect the magic spell. I will save the young lad if he cannot endure any more so be at ease and cast the spell. It was only then that old man Gongya nodded in determination. He turned around and roared loudly at his disciples, continue. A loud, muffled bang sounded and the fire within the furnace burned vigorously and enchantingly once again. Over a hundred men of the Gonya family howled as they exerted the last ounce of strength in their bones, risking their lives as they pumped the bellows. It only took several seconds yet it felt longer than a lifetime for First Elder One. 
Finally, with a thunderous noise amidst scorching hot flames which were bursting with explosive sounds, a great fissure appeared on the furnace. When old man Jianji realized that the furnace has exploded, not only was he not surprised, he cheered with a passionate cry instead. His shout caused every single one of the Gongya disciples to act like monkeys which had been splashed with hot water as they yelled and scattered. With a wave of Chang Li's hand, the exuberant demonic power condensed into a formless yet well-proportioned air partition which blocked everyone behind it. At the same time, the magic spell was activated. It was accompanied by the sound of a wild explosion which echoed within the furnace's chamber. Finally, the piercing molten stream splashed and splattered everywhere as when Leong stamped through the exploded furnace chamber into. His face was ashen as he jumped out. A raging fire was burning around him yet when Leong's form was shaky and unsteady. Chang Li was overjoyed as she stretched out her hand and tore second elder Luo's long robe off him before she tossed it to Wen Leong, put on some clothes. Old man Gongya, who has been left with half a life, shrieked, you're not allowed to wear clothes. As he said that, he immediately jumped in front of Wen Leong like an old monkey. His eyes glimmered as he sized the boy up and down continuously. Wen Leong attempted to put the robes on several times but it was pulled away by the old man every time. Finally, he managed to turn the long robe into a skirt somehow and wrapped it around his waist. Everyone gathered forward and they looked at Wen Leong before looking at the shattered furnace and the countless bonfires around it. First uncle Wen Tuanhai could not stand it anymore and he asked with a sonorous and forceful voice, where is the treasured weapon? There was nothing in Wen Leong's hands and his body was completely naked. On the contrary, you've got me, which had been curled on his chest had turned into an even more exuberantly red color after the refinement of the raging flames. Its color was so vibrant it was spellbinding. Suddenly, old man Gongye hugged Wen Leong as he cried out repeatedly. They could not tell whether he was crying or laughing. He looked like a madman and his entire face was covered with mucus and tears. Wen Leong was the proudest work of art in old man Gongye's entire lifetime. Wen Leong was feeling slightly calmer now. With the help of his grandfathers, he managed to free himself from old man Gongye. He was slightly bewildered as he explained to the rest of them, the Ning Jiao's skin has been turned into armor, the Ning Jiao's bones have been turned into a blade these weapons are all refined into my body. As he was saying that, he inhaled a deep breath and, under the incredulous gaze of the crowd, a layer of mottled black and white colored thin armor wrapped around his entire body suddenly, revealing only his head and face. The group of people looked at one another, it was unknown who was the first one who laughed out loud but everyone followed soon after. When Wen Leong had revealed his skin armor, he looked very similar to a diver who was not wearing a helmet. Wen Leong was aware that he does not possess a remarkable image and he scratched his head as he laughed. Chang Li pursed her lips as she stretched out a finger and pressed it gently to his chest. Her gentle press appeared soft and fragile but Wen Leong could feel a tremendous force capable of overturning a mountain and upsetting the sea rushing towards him. He could not help but retreat between the surging of the poison of life and death as he looked at Chang Li in confusion. The corners of Chang Li's eyes and the area between her brows were flashing with joy, young lad, that touch of mine earlier is almost equal to one of Patu's full force punch. Wen Leong exclaimed in understanding. He was then suddenly knocked out by enormous happiness. His actual power was now almost on par with Patu's but Chang Li's one strike earlier had been equal to striking ferociously towards the vital part of his chest when he was caught off guard. Wen Leong speculated that without this skin armor which protected his body, he would certainly be severely injured with his bones and muscles crushed in one go. After a few seconds, Wen Leong finally regained his sense of self and he beamed with joy as he pleaded his grand master, please try again with a stronger force. Chang Li shot him a look as if she was looking at a fool. She then gave a forced laugh as she shook her head, since when did you turn slightly more intelligent? Your skin armor will help you to bear the force of 70 to 80 percent of Patu's hit now. That is its limit, no matter how strong that force is, when you get hit, the amount that your skin armor can block will never change. When Leong was suddenly enlightened, the skin armor was just a skin armor so the force that it could block was a constant value. The Rainbow's leader who had kept quiet all along suddenly sighed in deep admiration, so, when a cultivator whose supernatural power is slightly weaker hits him, 
he should not feel anything at all, right? Chang Li was in a fine mood now and she was kinder towards them. She laughed as she nodded, that's right. That hit would not be considered a tickle or even a scratch. She paused for a moment before she asked Wen Leong, is it comfortable for you to wear this? Can you take it off? I don't feel like I'm wearing anything at all. Wen Leong laughed joyously. Following that, his body twisted like a swimming fish and the skin armor fell limply onto the ground like a thin snake slew. It did not look like anything was special about it. After almost everyone had passed the skin around and tested it by tugging and probing at the skin, when Leong shimmied back into it and the armor fused into his skin once again and faded into his body. It was very easy and free for him to hide, reveal and remove the Ning Jiao's skin armor. Chang Li laughed and waved her hand, interrupting Wen Leong's joy as she said, try out the Ning Jiao's sting now. Wen Leong responded in kind as he turned his wrist over and brandished a lethal knife which no one had ever seen from an unknown place. The knife's blade was long and narrow. It was of the usual length similar to Qin Shui's Tang knife. However, the blade was curved in a malevolent manner which made one uneasy to look at it for a prolonged period of time. Instead of a regular blade sonorous hum, it hissed like a poisonous snake when it was waved around. Everyone on the scene, including Chang Li, felt the pores on their bodies tighten the moment the lethal knife appeared. They felt only one sensation in their heart, that knife there was a snake. Wen Tuanhai was slightly surprised at the shape of this lethal weapon. He narrowed his eyes as he asked old man Gongya, I thought that the Ning Jiao's sting was supposed to be a sting. How did it turn into this? Old man Gongya's face was filled with pride, the sting had been in the form of a bone, now that it has been refined into a weapon with a soul, it was transformed into the form of a weapon and that is its appearance now. Before the Ning Jiao sting had taken form, even old man Gongya did not know how it would appear after the refinement. However, but based on the look of the Ning Jiao sting right now, it was genuinely in a snake's form as its namesake. Chang Li chuckled as she urged Wen Leong, charge at me with it. Wen Leong answered delightfully in response. His body swayed once as he backtracked to an area about a stone's throw away. He then inhaled a deep breath. The moment the poison of life and death in his body started to circulate, the lethal knife in his hand also immediately echoed back and vibrated gently with an audible snake's hiss. After receiving Chan Li's signal, the snake knife in Wen Liang's hand soared up high into the air. The wicked noise of a snake's hiss suddenly vanished into thin air while everyone on the scene simultaneously yelled out in fright. Hundreds of ghastly pale bones have appeared out of thin air. As Wen Leong wielded his snake knife, the bones then shot out into the sky. It was only then that the crowd discovered that the pile of entangled white bones was actually the skeleton of a large snake, it was the Ning Jiao bone snake. With a ghastly and savage roar, the bone snake shot towards Chang Li with lightning fast speed. Chang Li crossed her hands in front of her chest with a smile on her face. She remained unmoved as the Ning Jiao bone snake circled around her repeatedly in the cold wind. However, it was unable to surge past the formless barrier around her. It was at this point that Wen Leong laughed gently and his body abruptly disappeared without a trace. Chang Li's expression then changed slightly as she raised a hand and flicked rapidly before her body. A crisp, clanking sound echoed continuously and only Qin Zhui could see with great effort that Wen Leong was reverberating between the Ning Jiao sting and the bone snake as they attacked Chang Li simultaneously. Still, no matter how hard they tried, they could not break through Chang Li's fair-skinned and fine little hand. Each of Chang Li's fingers firmly flicked on a seven-inch spot on the Ning Jiao sting. Finally, after countless clanking sounds, Wen Leong yelled as he somersaulted to the ground. The bone snake which was like a silver dragon in midair too vanished. Wen Leong turned over and jumped up. He then looked at Chang Li eagerly, awaiting her comments. Chang Li's eyes were shimmering and filled with joyous radiance as she nodded at Wen Leong with certainty, the Ning Jiao's sting is the soul of Ning Jiao's bones. That is why when the Ning Jiao's sting is wielded, the bone snake could be summoned for ambush and reinforcement. She then paused for a moment as she calculated slowly, the Ning Jiao's bones are capable of resisting Patu's wild attacks. If we include you and the Ning Jiao's sting, that would be equal to three Patu's. 
before her voice could die away, two thuds were heard simultaneously. Wen Leong and Qin Zhui had sat on the ground in unison. However, while Wen Leong's face was filled with wild joy, Qin Zhui's was filled with a head full of worries. Chang Li put on a slightly stern countenance and pulled Wen Leong up in one go. She then pointed at old man Gongya who looked so excited that he was about to pass out as she said to Wen Leong, you should worship him on your knees. Salute that man with respect as the lineage of Gongya from Mount Pan is your great benefactor. Wen Leong did not say a word as he immediately walked in front of old man Gongya and saluted him on his knees earnestly. Old man Gongya, on the other hand, was acting like a child. He suddenly hugged Wen Leong and burst into loud sobs. However, he had not even sobbed twice before his eyes rolled back. He had suppressed himself so much such that he forcefully fainted. Chang Li was startled as well as she hastily jumped over and passed a strand of life vitality into the old man's body. She then shook her head at the crowd, there's no need to save him, his heart fire is burning fiercely still. He will become better once he has rested for a while. After that, she turned to face Wen Leong once again, the Ning Jiao's body is from the primal chaos of the prehistoric times. Its toxicity is similar to yours too, this was why you could have fused with it in the Gongya family's fire of soul refinement. These two treasures here do not only serve as your armor and weapon but have also become a part of your body. She paused halfway and made sure that Wen Leong understood her. Only then did Chang Li continue to speak, it's not only that, these two treasures have been grown in your body so the weapon will be moistened by the poison of life and death at all times. If you were to cultivate your power diligently, their powers will be enhanced as well. From today onwards, this one knife and armor will be treasures which will remain with you for the rest of your life. Wen Liang's mouth opened wide but it took him a while before he could exhale a heavy breath. He repeated her words out of disbelief, if I was to cultivate my power diligently, the powers of the Ning Jiao's sting and the Ning Jiao's armor would be enhanced as well. Chang Li nodded her head in a steadfast manner, her voice was so crisp that it made one feel uneasy, that's not bad at all. Old man Gongya regained consciousness at this moment. He opened his eyes and looked to the left and to the right. When he saw Wen Leong, he suddenly recalled the earlier incident and burst into loud sobs once again. By refining the weapon into one's soul and channeling the spirit to one's will, the Ning Jiao's attributes and Wen Liang's poison of life and death was a match made in heaven. They were the best match in the world and that fulfilled old man Gongye's masterpiece in his art of weapon crafting. In the future, even if there were others like Wen Leong who appeared in the world, they would not be able to find something as compatible as the Ning Jiao from anywhere else. This old man has successfully managed to refine such treasured weapons once in his entire lifetime. Even if he was to die now, he would die fully satisfied. Chapter 229 when Leong had received two precious treasures at once, causing his actual power to immediately double. Other than himself, the other two Wen family elders and first uncle were smiling so much that they could not close their mouths. In a rare occurrence, first elder Wen ran over to express his gratitude, I really should have given more of the Ning Jiao's skin to you back then. However, old man Gongya unexpectedly shook his head, I don't have that piece of the Ning Jiao's skin anymore, I had used it to be refined into Wen Liang's armor. I was afraid that splitting the skin would ruin this treasure's power. In the beginning, the two families had agreed that the Ning Jiao skin and bones would be given to the Gongya family to be refined into weapons. After the task was completed, the Gongya family would be gifted with a piece of the Ning Jiao skin as compensation but no one expected that old man Gongya would give up his compensation in order to seek for perfection in the weapon's power. To the Mount Pan's disciples, the act of weapon refinement was the true path of cultivation. To achieve perfection, they had been willing to sacrifice that small piece of skin. The Wen family members felt moved. Only first grandfather was slightly hesitant as he was afraid that old man Gongye would ask for other forms of compensation. He had secretly made the decision now that if the Gongye family was to ask for other items as compensation. He would not give in to their request and stick to the statement that it was the other party who had chosen to give up their compensation in the first place. As expected, after old man Gongye has rested for a while, he then spoke to the Wen family members, there's no need to be concerned about whether to compensate us or not. 
if all of you truly wants to extend your gratitude for these boys' efforts. He then pointed at his family's disciples who were all completely exhausted, then please show us the other precious treasure so that this old father can take a look. At this statement, every single one of the one family's disciples was clearly confused. They did not understand what old man Gonye's intention was. First grandfather had immediately thought of his, buried treasure bed. His eyes glimmered as they rolled around and he cautiously probed, what kind of treasure is that? There's nothing valuable in my family. Old man Gonya knows that first grandfather was a money grubber so he replied fiercely, I'm not hankering after your family's treasures. I only want to see that particular magical item so that I can understand and learn about the technique which refined it. First elder Wen drew his sparse brows together as he probed once again, only one look. When old man Gonya nodded angrily, first elder Wen stomped his feet abruptly and pulled old man Gonya along to his big house. This time, he had only allowed a few people including fourth grandfather, first uncle, Wen Leong and Chang Li to enter the house. The rest were all blocked outside the door without exception. First elder Wen started to take out boxes of all sizes from under his bed. These were the most valuable and rare treasures that the Wen family has accumulated over the past 2000 years. Amongst them was also the extraordinary treasures previously gifted by the One Word Palace's subordinates. The entire house was soon filled with the brilliance of pearls and jewels. Everyone's faces were glowing and Chang Li was cheerful as she took a closer look and held them in her hands. She was like a young maiden who had fallen into the candy pile, blooming with endless joy from the bottom of her heart. First Elder Wen's heart was almost in his throat and he was deeply regretting his decision. He felt that he should not have displayed his store of treasures before Grand Master Chang Li's eyes. Fourth Grandfather, however, suddenly exclaimed as he picked up a piece of rare purple poison jade. He then gave first grandfather an evil glare, I've lost this for over forty years, seems like it was you who found it, huh? First grandfather's expression changed abruptly and he rubbed his palms together as he laughed shyly, I had just just picked it up, yester. Fourth grandfather huffed as he directly stuffed that piece of purple jade into his chest pocket. Soon after, his gaze shifted to a tiny black snake which had died for an unknown amount of years yet its body was still plump and shiny, this I remember when I was young, this was third brother's favorite. First grandfather hastily closed the box and he shook his head strenuously, no, no. Those are two different items. This is not the third brother's. The glare that he shot towards old man Gonya once again was almost blazing with rage. Old man Gonya, on the other hand, frowned as he looked at all the treasures. He showed signs of displeasure as he said, I told you that I was only looking, right? Why was it necessary to be such a cheapskate? I'm only looking, it won't even cost you a chunk of money grubber's flesh from your body. First grandfather exclaimed in understanding. There was no lack of high-grade treasured weapons and divine swords hidden under his bed. These had been sent by the sex affiliated with the One Word Palace as wedding gifts. However, though each of these items was highly valuable and first grandfather had hidden them away like they were precious antiques, these were apparently not what old man Gonya had been asking about. Old man Gonya thought that first elder one was intentionally hiding that precious item from him so he had not wasted any time and used his contemptuous look to taunt first elder one. Not only was first grandfather not furious, on the contrary, an excited radiance started glowing on his old face. He pulled old man Gonya along as he asked softly, so, what you were saying is that. In the one family village, there is still a remarkable treasure. Old man Gonya looked at him suspiciously. First grandfather was beaming with joy and his tone of speaking sounded generous and hospitable, quickly, tell me what that is. You'll have to help me look for this item. Once we find it, I will lend it to you so that you can have a long look. The Gonya family's art of weapon crafting was not merely the act of a blacksmith in a forge. Instead, it was a genuine magical art. Each time before they fired up the furnace, they would pray to their god first then they would pray to the precious treasures. Needless to say, the process of praying to their god was straightforward but the process of praying to the precious treasures was a very important step. The person who was refining the weapon would first need to channel his magic skill and think of a way to achieve a tacit understanding akin to a sympathetic response between the person and the precious treasure. 
The precious treasures have no spiritual intelligence but they all contain some form of spiritual vitality. The person who was refining the weapon would need to feel the treasure's spiritual attribution during the process of praying to it. It was only after that could he could fire up the furnace and refine the weapon. Old man Gonya was not exempt to this in the one family village this time. However, as he was praying to the treasure, other than receiving the Ning Jiao's reaction, he had also managed to capture another strand of spiritual vitality which had come from another precious treasure that had already taken form. Therefore, he was under the impression that there was some other utmost precious treasure which was stored in the one family village. This type of item which was capable of dispersing spiritual vitality during the process of praying to the treasure was absolutely not some common item. This was why old man Gonya had proposed the idea to take a look at this item. According to Gonya's thinking, this item was certainly some treasured weapon which had belonged to a predeceased sword immortal with exceedingly high powers. He had not been trying to hanker after the treasured weapon's effect, he had only wanted to look at the technique used to refine this treasure. First Elder Wen frowned as he pondered for a long while. He could not think of any other precious items which still existed in the Wen family. Fourth Elder Wen was too lazy to even think as he rolled his poisonous snake-like eyes and asked Gongya, can you locate it yourself? Gongya shook his head and first grandfather inquired closely once again, what if I was to place this item before you? Old man Gongya nodded this time and he spoke proudly, no matter which treasured weapon it is, as long as I can take a look at it, I would be able to judge the smelting level based on the traces of refinement. Following that, I can tell whether this was actually a precious weapon which had been thoroughly refined and tempered or if it was just a scrap item smelted from the fire of an earth pit. He then brandished an ancient sword which glimmered with awe-inspiring murderous intent from a convenient box, this one here is of pretty good quality but it can only be considered as an antique, not some top-grade item. When Leong remembered this ancient sword, it had been gifted to them when the one-word palace's lesser subordinate sex had come to congratulate him on a joyous occasion. The sword was named Night Crusher and, according to the person who had gifted the sword, it had belonged to a sword immortal from 3,000 years ago. Even though he does not know if it was a real or fake sword, it was true that the sword's blade gleamed with an awe-inspiring and sharp mannerism. He never would have expected that Gomye would deem this sword worthless. First grandfather pondered for a while before he spoke to Wentuanhai, I want you to go and search through the precious items which were hidden by the kids. Don't care if it is useful or useless, search through them and find me that item. As long as it is an uncertain item, whether it is a pair of chopsticks or a urinal, bring it to the big house and get the old immortal Gonya to look at it. First uncle was at a loss whether to cry or to laugh as he answered, perhaps it's not even an item which belongs to our family, perhaps it's an item which belongs to the Luo family, the Miao family or even Ji Fei or Shui Jing. First grandfather did not hesitate as he waved his hand impatiently and spoke, carry out the task at once. After you've made certain that the item is not in our family, we shall then have to scheme on the others too. The old man looked toward Chang Li smilingly as he said that. Chang Li smiled like a little cunning fox. She lowered her voice as she spoke to first grandfather mysteriously, if it's from the Luo family or the Miao family. I will not interfere but if it's with the Rainbow Brothers, Ji Fei or Shui Jing, then I will certainly help you take possession of it. First grandfather was immediately head over heels for this grand master's temperament who would take such good care of her juniors. Following that, the village was in a chaotic mess as each family turned out every drawer and box. They sent many big boxes filled with messy stuff continuously into the village head's house under the confused gaze of the outside guests. Fourth grandfather had almost dozed off while first grandfather's expression was becoming more and more bored as well. In the end, even old man Gonya was too lazy to go through the boxes as he used the corners of his eyes to look before huffing, take that away. They bustled about for two full hours. Along with the final one Butsao's disciple who was left baffled with a large cardboard box in his arms, everyone exhaled a long breath collectively. Wen Tuanhai smiled grimly as he shrugged and was about to speak when first grandfather suddenly recalled something. He suddenly glared at Wen Tuanhai, you brat, where is the precious treasure from your house? Why have you not brought it here yet? Wen Tuanhai exclaimed before he sniggered and spoke, I forgot, I forgot. He then fled like a breath of vapor back to his house. 
The first uncle was once the head of the county so he has more items in his house than anybody else. There was no lack of fine items amongst them and the brilliance of pearls and jewels glowed from several large boxes filled to the brim with these items even though these boxes were still no match to first grandfather's hidden treasures under his bed. It was enough for Wen Leong to observe for a long while. First grandfather was beaming with joy as he grabbed a handful of precious treasures to take a look. He then peered at Wen Tuanhai smilingly after a while. First uncle, however, felt uneasy and terrified of the first grandfather's gaze instead. Wen Tuanhai had many items he was turning over the items one by one from the boxes into the big house's floor when, you've got me, suddenly oilated cheerfully. It jumped out from Wen Leong's chest and tunneled into one of the boxes swiftly, refusing to come out no matter how much Wen Leong had called for it. Wen Leong does not know what the bug had discovered but he rolled up his sleeves and attempted to fish out the bug out from the box. However, just as he was about to do so, his first uncle and first grandfather both shouted anxiously, be careful of the porcelain. By the time Wen Leong had retracted his arm, he was holding on to a dragonfly-shaped red-colored little sword with two tiny words engraved on the hilt which spelled out, Firetail. You've Got Me was pouncing onto the sword's blade with its body. It rolled back and forth on the sword as it squeaked occasionally. Wen Leong thought that the sword looked rather familiar. He was trying to recall where he had seen it with great effort when first uncle Wen Tuanhai reminded him as he laughed from the side, it was that year when you had first returned from the Red Leaves Forest. The four grandfathers had brought some people along to Mount Amaze Jianyan Peak. A group of Taoist priests from the Sun Dynasty Palace had come to the mountain to cause trouble. Wen Leong was suddenly enlightened. He had just remembered that senior disciple Yu Lingzi, who had led the troop from the Sun Dynasty Palace, was the master of this little sword named Firetail. Back then, after Wen Leong had severely injured Yu Lingzi, You've Got Me had once pounced on this small sword to feed on its fire elemental power. Judging by the situation, You've Got Me and Firetail could be considered as old flames. I kept this sword as it had injured me and could be considered as some sort of memorabilia. First uncle chuckled but before he could finish his sentence, old man Gonya, who had been standing to the side with glimmering eyes suddenly jumped up. He disregarded, you've got me, as he stretched out his hand and grabbed the flying sword. He then raised the sword to his eye level as he examined it closely. If it had not been for when Leyang's perfectly timed shout, you've got me, would certainly filled old man Gonya's face with stings. Even a foolish person could tell that Gongye has discovered the precious treasure he was looking for. Everyone in the house dared not make a sound as they held their breath meticulously, afraid that they would disturb Gongye's concentration. It was only until after a long while that the old man finally spoke with a dry voice, this sword here what is what is its origin. When Leong hastily described the events which had taken place back then. He spoke about Yu Lingzi who had come from the Sun Dynasty Palace and old man Gongye's expression became more and more amazed as he listened. At the same time, he shook his head continuously and muttered to himself, it's impossible, it's impossible at this point, first elder Wen suddenly cleared his throat before he interrupted Wen Leong, that is incorrect. Before being owned by Yu Lingzi, this sword had another owner. The divine monk Shan Duan had once told us about its origin. The Sun Dynasty Palace's Yu Lingzi had, by chance, saved the life of Wei Mo's martial uncle from Heaven Teller sect in the past. To repay his debt of gratitude, that old man with miraculous foresight had instructed Yu Lingzi to search for this fire elemental sword in a volcano at the Changbai Mountains. Wen Leong inhaled a cool breath. During his trance, he had figured out that Wei Mo's martial uncle can speak about the heavenly mysteries. Any sword that he professes as a good one was certainly more than just good. Chang Li burned with eagerness as she seized Fire Tail from the old man Gongye's hands uncourteously. She then examined the sword attentively but after a long while, she pursed her lips and spoke in a slightly annoyed tone, I can't see anything different about it. As she said that, she stretched out her other hand and pinched the tip of the sword continuously. She seems to be attempting to pry open the small sword to take a closer look. The two old men Gonya and first grandfather almost jumped up simultaneously as they squalled, don't do that. Chang Li was startled and she hastily tossed the small sword onto the ground. She then stood with her hands clasped behind her back as she protruded her tongue mischievously. 
First grandfather's expression agonized as he hastily picked Firetail up from the ground. He treated it as if it was his lung instead of a small sword which Chang Li had just tossed to the ground. The first uncle laughed grimly as he shook his head, I had felt a searing hot pain when the sword injured me. However it had not seemed to be that powerful after all. Old man Gongye huffed as he asked the first uncle, do you know about guns? For example, different types of guns such as handguns and machine guns? First uncle and Wen Leung nodded in unison though they had not understood his question. Old man Gongye then continued, once you fire a gun, it shoots to kill. However, if you were to throw the handgun at a person and attempt to crush them, then it will not be f***ing useful at all. The moment Gongye finished speaking, he realized that everybody else was filled with puzzlement. He then heaved a long sigh and took Firetail from First Grandfather's hands. He used his finger to feel around the sword's blade cautiously as his voice trembled like he was almost in tears, all of you do you know that this sword here bears utterly no trace of being forged or refined at all. The small sword has a whole body in other than the two ancient scripts, it had not been carved out artificially. When Tuanhai rolled his eyes as he laughed in slight disbelief, so this sword here had not been refined with water and fire or forged with bronze and iron. Could it be that it had grown out by itself? Old man Gongye was so excited that he was almost in tears. He pursed his lips and nodded strenuously when Guo Huan suddenly spoke up from within the jade knife, could it be that this is? The sword's resolve. Guo Huan was halfway through his sentence when Chang Li too suddenly recalled something. Both of them had then shouted in unison. Wen Leong laughed dryly and he wanted to inquire what it was but he was afraid that he would provoke the old man and the old demons in rage. Guo Huan heaved a heavy sigh. He looked like he had suddenly recalled something else as he exclaimed, no wonder, continuously. He then explained to Wen Leong, the sword's resolve is not related to weapon refinement but it is an ancient cultivation art. After a profound cultivator has cultivated into a split body, he does not transform the split body into a human form but instead turned it into his flying sword. As time passes, the split body would slowly transform into the form of a sword. The flying sword would receive its soul while the split body would receive the form. Not only would their master's sympathetic response be increased by several times, the sword is also capable of turning hostile and attack the enemy on its own. This split body which was grown in the sword's body is known as the sword's resolve. Not only is it not refined, it is cultivated by the cultivator's effort day after day. Chang Li nodded as she added from the side. The real difference between cultivating the split body into the human form or into a sword's resolve is that the former will be reborn such that the split body can help the god-level cultivator in human form to resist the enemy, carry out tasks and cultivate. Cultivating the split body into a sword's resolve is equal to adding a set of souls into the treasured weapon until the flying sword is turned into the cultivator's own split body. This way, the split body would not be able to help the god-level cultivator to cultivate or carry out tasks but it could be used to help increase the power of his flying sword and help the god-level cultivator to kill the enemy quicker. This time, when Leong had understood the explanation much quicker. He understood that the real difference in cultivating the split body into the human form or a sword's resolve was that the former would be reborn so that the split body could help the cultivator in the human form. It would be capable of doing many things but it would be slightly weak at defeating the enemy. When the latter was turned into a weapon, the split body would be fused into the cultivator's own treasured weapon to improve his supernatural power, making the act of killing the enemy easier. Chang Li made sure that when Leong understood this crucial point before she nodded and continued, if the god-level cultivator was to die. Whether his split body was in the human form or as a sword's resolve, they would both be severely injured as well. However, the split body in human form was capable of cultivating his power to heal the injuries by himself but the sword's resolve was incapable of doing that. Once the sword bearer was dead, the sword's resolve would seal itself off while simultaneously be stripped out of the flying sword. If one could break the seal and dissolve the soul's power in the sword's resolve, then one could own that flying sword which had been used by that cultivator while they were alive. Moreover, this flying sword's power was unrelated to the person who had dissolved the soul's power. As she said that, Chang Li frowned before she rephrased her sentence, let me put it this way. 
Dissolving the sword's resolve is equal to one requesting for that cultivator's soul to come out and guide that flying sword which had belonged to him in life. Even if it was an ordinary person who had dissolved the sword's resolve, they would then be capable of using that extremely powerful flying sword. Guo Huan was afraid that Wen Leong was confused so he treated it like a debate and immediately spoke up once Chang Li had finished speaking. The cultivator who had managed to cultivate the sword's resolve naturally had a remarkable flying sword. It would at least be no weaker than this old father's yin's error and yang's mistake. Even before my human body had been destroyed, let alone meeting that god-level cultivator who had created this sword's resolve, I would have just given that person a wide berth and not provoked them. Though the sword's bearer was already dead, their flying sword still existed. The sword's resolve had sealed itself and stripped away from the flying sword. The person who manages to break the seal of the sword's resolve and dissolve its soul's power would become the flying sword's new master. Even though the sword's resolve was a precious treasure which may be encountered by luck and not by searching, not everyone could wield it as the seal was of course not that easily broken. If one manages to refine the sword's resolve soul power, one would gain a divine sword. However, if one failed to refine it, the sword's resolve would not be very useful at all. At most, it could be considered as a flying sword of average quality. Yulingzi had not known much about the treasured weapon in the beginning so he had refined Fire Tail into his own flying sword, labeling him as a third-grade cultivator. First grandfather's eyeballs were bloodshot as he seized Fire Tail back from old man Gonya's hands insistently. You've got me ululated anxiously as it lay on Fire Tail. Its body was too tiny and it had placed its entire body on the sword's blade but it could not participate in the act of seizing it. It slammed its tail in an exceedingly anxious manner and first grandfather coughed once before he flicked elegantly at the blade. As a consequence, You've Got Me was flicked away. You've Got Me was a telepathic bug and its body immediately curled into a ball from being treated unjustly. It did not acknowledge the money-grubbing old man but it somersaulted through midair and dropped into Wen Liang's palm. It then rubbed its head against its master's hand sorrowfully. Wen Liang chuckled as he stretched out a finger and caressed the bug's plump body, I can't avenge this enmity for you. It was unknown how long this sword's resolve had drifted around in the world. It has lost its sharp energy and even an experienced and knowledgeable demon like Chang Li could not tell its true features. Only old man Gonya, who was an expert in refining weapons, could determine its true form through the absence of refinement traces on its body. First grandfather cradled Fire Tail in his arms and beamed with joy as he asked the rest, how does one break the seal and refine the soul's power in the sword's resolve? Chang Li looked into Gonya's and they both shook their heads in unison. They had only heard of refining the sword's resolve but none of them knew how to perform it specifically. Guo Huan, on the other hand, laughed wildly from the jade knife. It almost seems like he had been waiting for First Grandfather to inquire about it earlier, First Brother Wen, there's no need for you to think about refining this sword's resolve. It already has an owner. Moreover, I'm aware of where the sword's resolve's divine sword is. When Leong inquired closely out of convenience, where is it? Unexpectedly, Guo Huan exclaimed before he cursed, I've lived several thousand years just to meet such a foolish man. Following that, he paused for a moment before he asked in a baffling manner, Don't you agree? The crowd was still puzzled when another voice which sounded kind and warm echoed from the jade knife. That voice spoke with a smile, The person who has a good soul is indomitable and fears nothing on earth. He is not foolish, not foolish, not foolish. Chang Li, who was the first to react to the situation, giggled and cheered with a crisp voice, the Taoist priest San Wei is awake. The Taoist priest San Wei too chuckled, I'm awake, I'm awake. I have been in this great dream for the past millennium but I'm awake now. First grandfather stomped his feet impatiently on the side. He could not understand how the conversation had gone from fire tale to the topic of sleep. Guo Huan, however, laughed before he refocused the topic of discussion again, San Wei, please hold on, I need to wake this foolish child to reality first. He then paused for a little while before he continued with a sonorous and forceful tone, young lad, the divine sword which is linked to this sword's resolve was first seen on the Chilean mountains. It had then wandered to Shanghai and is now on the snowy tip of the Jeladaindong peak. When Leung squalled as he jumped up, the molten metal fire bell. 
Guo Huan's tone of speaking was beyond all doubt, that is correct. Otherwise, how could there be such a divine sword with a sharp fiery element and boundless power which is willing to save your life repeatedly in the world? The giant pangolin put too had once informed Wen Leong that the molten metal fire bell was not meant to be used by a human. At most, it could only be used to threaten others but there was no remnant primordial spirit left behind by its previous master in that sword. Wen Leong's heart was thumping ferociously and his mind turned blank. He stuttered as he asked, So, what you're saying is that I'm the master of this sword's resolve? Bullshit! Guo Huan immediately scolded, Use your empty head to think about this, who was the one who had summoned the giant sword each time and who was the one who echoed each other and had been unwilling to part with the giant sword. When Liang's mouth fell open as he lifted, You've got me, in his palm. You've got me, wriggled its body and probed twice. It then suddenly leaped and jumped into Wen Liang's mouth where it ululated proudly and spun around several times. Chang Li's gaze roamed like water ripples as she looked at first uncle, back then, when Wen Leong had struck down, fire tail, how had it all happened? Wen Tuanhai did not dare to hesitate as he recalled that memory attentively. He muttered, Wen Leong had used the faulty punch to strike, fire tail, as he said that, he stretched out his right hand, gesturing as all five of his fingers oscillated wildly, causing, fire tail, to turn into a drunken sword. Wen Leung then beat Yu Lingzi until he was severely injured. Fire tail, had made a sorrowful hum then dropped to the ground. The bug had pounced forward and after that, I retrieved the flying sword. Finally. Chang Li coughed as she rolled her eyes mischievously at the first uncle, there's no need to talk about what had happened after that. Following that, she tilted her head and looked at Wen Leong who was bustling about as he attempted to dislodge the bug from his mouth. She sized him up and down before she finally sighed, what kind of luck is this? Upon saying that, she paused for a while. When she felt that she had not vented the full expression of her emotions, she added a shocking, FCK. Chapter, 230. Even though she does not understand the situation completely, Chang Li confirmed that Wen Leong had severely injured Yu Lingzi back then. She could then make a wild guess on why the molten metal fire bell could be summoned by You've Got Me. Chang Li's eyes were irresistibly bright as she laughed joyously, his faulty punch is capable of breaking all sorts of magic spells. Wen Leong had used the faulty punch to counterattack Yu Lingzi's flying sword back then. The faulty punch had wiped away the primordial spirit which possessed fire tail and slightly loosened the seal on the sword's resolve. This caused it to reveal a bit of its fire elemental soul's power. You've Got Me was the king of telepathic bugs, the moment it saw that there was a power of the same element which was beneficial to it, it had immediately pounced over to absorb that power. After Chang Li had finished listening to the story, she realized that when Leong still appeared puzzled and she suddenly recalled something. She hastily shook her head and laughed, don't ask how, you've got me, could dissolve the soul's power of the sword's resolve, I don't know that as well. To outsiders, even after the seal was broken, they would not know how to refine the soul's power in it. To you've got me, however, absorbing a similar elemental power for its own use was an innate ability. It worked on the same principle of how a top-ranked master cultivator could never cultivate the skill of photosynthesis. Guo Huan had already figured out how, you've got me, can control the, molten metal fire bell, but had lagged by half a second so Chang Li had seized the opportunity to speak first. Guo Huan felt extremely annoyed for a large portion of his dialogue has been usurped by someone else. The best he could do was to add this, the fiery color of the sword's resolve is still as exuberant as before so the seal should still be there. The bug had only managed to absorb a small portion of its soul's power previously for if it was completely depleted, the sword's resolve would then be turned into stone dust. Wen Liang's cultivation power was still shallow back then so his faulty punch was unable to break the sword's resolve seal. This was why it had only leaked a bit of soul's power which was then absorbed by, you've got me. Guo Huan sniggered and sounded like he was muttering to himself but in fact, he was speaking to them, now that you've finally understood the situation. We can understand why, you've got me, had only been able to summon the molten metal fire bell, sometimes. It was because it had absorbed too little of that soul's power. Wen Leung nodded at first but shook his head soon after. Guo Huan's statement had sounded plausible at first but he still felt that something was not right. 
First Elder Wen and First Uncle were beaming with joy at this point. They urged Wen Leung repeatedly to immediately use the faulty punch to crack the seal so that You've Got Me could absorb all the soul's power. This means that whoever dares to provoke Wen Leung hereafter, they would first need to suffer You've Got Me's sword. Chang Li noticed that Wen Leung was hesitating and she mistakenly thought that he was virtuous and sincere which was why he could not bear to destroy the sword's resolve. She chuckled as she consoled him, the human form split body can think and move. Once it enters society, it would be tainted with humanity so it is straightforwardly a living human being. The sword's resolve, however, is different. Even though it is a split body as well, it is the soul of the giant sword and it is only innately capable of absorbing the spiritual primordial energy of the heavens and earth in order to strengthen the flying sword. It's no different from the carrot that you frequently eat. Don't think that refining a sword's resolve is equal to killing a person. Wen Leong had not really thought of this yet but after hearing Grand Master Chang Li's words, he felt a greater resolution in his heart. He then laughed as he nodded and placed You've Got Me on his shoulder. He lifted the dragonfly-shaped fire tail, inhaled a deep breath, and suddenly struck it with his other hand. His five fingers oscillated swiftly like wheels as the crisp clinking and clanking sound soon merged into one. The noise made everyone feel uneasy but You've Got Me understood its master's intention. It had straightened and stiffened its plump body and raised its head as it stood on Wen Liang's shoulder. It was unknown whether the bug was excited or aroused as its tiny head quivering gently. Chang Li, on the other hand, shook her head, the bug is on your body and it may not necessarily be able to bear the countercharge of the seal. She then picked, you've got me up in her palm. The bug immediately lay down and rolled around like it was trying to flatter everyone's big boss. The small sword, fire tail, had started to tremble rapidly following Wen Liang's faulty punch. Countless stripes of flame rippled on its blade. The flames were burning more and more vigorously and enchantingly while the sword's blade was so red it appeared as if it was about to spurt out blood at any time. The sword's resolve, which initially felt cool in Wen Liang's hand, began to turn hot until he felt as if he was holding a tiny sun which burned fiercely in his hand. The poison of life and death was surging wildly in his body as it tried to resist the heat which was about to invade his body with all its might. Moments later, when Liang's body shook once and the Ning Jiao's armor which had been hidden in his body appeared automatically without being summoned in order to protect its master. The giant bone snake which was formed from the Ning Jiao's bones too leaped into the air furiously and circled around the small sword continuously. It revealed a mouth full of sharp fangs as it attempted to retaliate against the sword's resolve. Chang Li's expression grew stern as she raised her hand and scattered her demonic primordial energy to protect the three family elders and first uncle Wen Tuanhai. After that, under first grandfather's request, she then purposely diverted a streak of demonic primordial energy to cover the buried treasure bed. The temperature in the house increased suddenly and Wen Liang's entire body burst into roaring flames with a muffled bang. The Ning Jiao's skin armor had immediately spread out and wrapped itself around Wen Leong from his head to his toes. It tried strenuously to form a shield between the roaring flames and its master. At the same time, Wen Leong's right hand continued to move as he used the faulty punch to knock madly onto the fire tail. The initially clear, clanking sound has turned into the loud noise of forceful thuds like the god-inviting bell of Peak Palace. Under the strong knocking of the golden-armored warrior, the bell had tolled through the entire heavens. The stalemate between Wen Leong and Fire Tail went on for almost an hour before the loud, sonorous thuds suddenly turned hoarse. Wen Leong immediately felt his body get lighter as the scorchingly hot flames which had almost seared into his bone marrow had vanished abruptly. The sword's resolve too no longer felt hot or cold to the touch. It glowed a bright red and the little sword suddenly became crushingly heavy. Wen Liang's wrist shook strongly and even his tremendous strength was unable to lift the small sword now. The colossal quake felt like the collapse of Mount Tai. The sword's resolve dropped onto the ground while almost simultaneously, You Got Me cheered as it shot towards the sword in a dazzling fire arc. It then lay firmly on the sword's blade and refused to loosen its grip. Wen Liang understood that the mission has been successfully accomplished at long last. His body was suddenly exhausted and he raised his head as he fell to the ground. 
Chang Li's face was filled with reluctance and she shut her eyes tightly just as the back of Wen Liang's head was about to crash onto the tiled floor. Wen Tuanhai stomped his feet, why won't you give him a hand? Chang Li rolled her huge eyes at him, what if he tore my sleeve again? Upon saying that, she suddenly shrieked and stretched a jade-like palm towards the first grandfather who was clearly confused, 73,000. Wen Liang had only just stood up when he heard Chang Li talk about that past event. He was so shocked that he almost fell back onto the ground again. First grandfather has yet to find out about the sleeve incident at the Miao Stockade village so the gaze which he shot Chang Li was filled with puzzlement, what do you mean by 73,000? Chang Li was surprisingly patient as she tirelessly explained the relationship between Chanel, 73,000, sleeve and Wen Leong. As she was speaking, she had continued to hold her palm against first elder Wen's eyes persistently. First grandfather could hardly stand it anymore. He then looked at Chang Li for a while before he looked at Wen Leong for another while. His expression gradually turned from astonishment to anger and after he confirmed that the unit value of 73,000 was in Chinese Yuan, his furious expression turned into outrage. After Chang Li had finished recounting that matter, she made an expression which was even more outraged than first grandfather's by a million times as she pouted her red lips, you'll still need to return me the money. After she said that, she forced a smile in consideration, just make sure that the money is prepared before I leave, you need not rush it at this moment. She was not in a hurry for the money to be returned. She has already learned that, the monk may run away but the temple remains after traveling in the world for the past few years. First grandfather pointed at Wen Leong shakily. He did not speak for a long while and the wrinkles on his old face were pulled tightly together. Wen Tuanhai was at a loss whether to laugh or to cry for though first elder Wen was good in everything, the older he got the more money-grubbing he became. Wen Tuanhai hastily stretched his body from the side and he made up a topic of conversation to help rescue his precious first nephew, I've been bustling about for a day and I'm so fatigued. The sky has already. Ha! Huh. He was halfway through his sentence when first uncle looked out the window which was still dark in surprise. Several things have happened since when Liang's return to the Nine Peaks Mountain. He had reported to his superiors about his highland trip he had entered the furnace to refine his treasured weapons the entire village was mobilized to look for the unknown precious treasure and finally, he had broken the sword's resolve seal. More than ten hours have already passed without his notice. Even so, winter's daybreak usually comes later and it should be daytime by now. He checked his watch which showed that it was already past nine o'clock in the morning. However, the sky outside had remained as dark as night. The people in the house were slightly astonished. Even Chang Li was baffled and blinked in confusion as she joined the others to head out of the house. Those who were outside the house had noticed that the sky was unusually dark earlier but they had thought that it was some unknown astronomical phenomenon. Not one of them had dared to disturb first grandfather and Chang Li. Wen Leong unsure of what to do as he raised his head and looked at the sky. There were no stars or moon in the sky nor was there a morning glow or the red sun either. The sky above Nine Peaks Mountains looked like it was being covered by a thick and heavy black cloth. After Wen Leong had looked at the pitch black sky for a prolonged period, he felt dizzy as if his entire body was being sucked into the darkness, causing him to stagger. Something was floating gently in the depths of the mountain. Wen Leong narrowed his vision and was only managed to discern after great effort a puff of dark inky black cloud which looked like a piece of floating cotton. It appeared soft and weak but in reality, it was slowly gaining mass and was cruising speedily from the depths of the mountain towards the Wen family village. Wen Leong was puzzled as Chang Li, Guo Huan, and San Wei in the Jade Knife all exclaimed in astonishment simultaneously. Soon after that, Guo Huan laughed grimly, Chang Li, is this your judgment day? Chang Li pursed her lips as she shook her head, how could it be that soon? It must be coming for one of you. Guo Huan's voice sounded even more determined, it's certainly not one of us. Many people, including experienced and knowledgeable cultivators such as Ji Fei, Shui Jing, Gongye, the Rainbow Brothers and others, have gathered in the village but they could not figure out what the black-colored cloud was. They pointed at it as they discussed softly amongst themselves with an astonished expression on their faces. Wen Leung listened to the three top demon immortals who were acting rather courteously as they deferred to one another. Baffled, he asked Chang Li, 
What is that? Is it a treasured weapon or a cultivator's supernatural power? Chang Li laughed gently but her fine, porcelain-like face was filled with solemnness and her voice was cold, it's divine punishment. Wen Leung exclaimed in dismay. The first thing which had come to his mind was that the nine-headed snake had escaped Black and White Island and the initiator of evil, Chang Li, was about to be struck by divine punishment. He still remembers the divine punishment which had fallen on Ah Dan in the past. It had come without warning during that occasion as the initially bright sky was suddenly condensed into a puff of burning clouds. Soon after that, the heavens thunder then struck repeatedly. However, the sky then was bright whereas the sky now was pitch black without a sense of liveliness. San Wei's primordial soul spoke up at this point. His voice was thick, heavy, and a little hoarse with an unspeakable pleasantness, I sense that this is related to me. Guo Huan yelled all of a sudden, you motherfucker. How could you still incur divine punishment? Guo Huan and San Wei were like locusts on the same rope, they have both lingered in the jade knife with their last breath. If this was really a divine punishment, the jade knife would be destroyed so Guo Huan would also have his soul scattered. It was natural for him to feel angry from embarrassment. Chang Li frowned once again, San Wei, if the divine punishment is meant for you then it's yours. However, what do you mean when you said it's related to you? The cloud was floating closer and closer now, when Leon could even see it churning clearly. It looks just like a drop of ink which had been dripped into clear water. San Wei's tone of speaking, on the other hand, was unworried and it even sounded like he was smiling, that human body was called San Wei, that is not my name. This old monk's monastic name is Jin Zhao. Upon saying that, he did not wait for the others to feel astonished or interject as he inhaled a deep breath and suddenly chanted, Namo Amitba. He chanted the Buddhist hymn loudly and clearly until the murky sky suddenly shook once. The sounds of bells echoed indistinctively from afar, accompanying this incantation in a merciful yet wispy manner. There was no wind but the sound floated in the sky, echoing from afar with ceasing. When Leong was not a fool, he had harbored a suspicion earlier but he had not had the opportunity to ask about that. When he heard the remnant souls stirring Buddhist him, he asked with a solemn expression, Back then, has this great master ever revealed your true identity to a demon rabbit? Over a thousand years ago, the demon monk San Duan's master had not managed to escape the divine punishment. His dharma body was pulverized by the nine heavens divine thunder while his primordial spirit was severely injured. Out of the remaining two portions, one had been nourished in a ghost's flesh mushroom in the land of evil spirits by San Duan and that portion was finally devoured by Ah Dan. The second portion of his primordial soul was nowhere to be found at all. The demon monk San Duan had sacrificed his entire lifetime's cultivation base in Buddhism magic art and knowledge to save his master's life. Wen Leong still feels that the monk San Duan who had transformed into the weeping Buddha was the genuine demon monk but he was actually an indomitable demon who had died without regrets. Over a thousand years ago, the evil soul which had possessed San Wei was finally caught by Hanba and Painting Town. The evil soul had been trapped in the zombie Hanba's body while the remaining human body without a soul was then tossed into a mountain creek. A few centuries later, the Taoist priest San Wei had unexpectedly returned to society. An unknown primordial soul which had lost its memory had gained control of that soulless human body but due to the constant torment of conflict between the malevolent energy accumulated in the human body by the evil soul and the righteous energy of the second soul. This caused San Wei to plan and kill fifth brother Hanba. As a result, he was still killed when he got caught in Changli and Hanba's plan. This was the remnant soul which now resided in the jade knife along with Guo Huan. The timeline fits and the matter's development was accurate as well. The eminent monk's accumulation of karmic power for over thousands of years had turned into a merciful energy which could not be erased even after his body had been crushed. This was why Xiang Lu's evil soul's malevolent energy was not able to subdue him. If it was not for the eminent monk who had been empowered by Buddhism's wisdom, how could he had cultivated the skill of combining his spirit, energy, and soul in a short few thousand years? As expected, Jin Zhao seems to remember something as he answered softly, the great mercy temples below. Chang Li suddenly laughed loudly, Monk, so it is you. You had saved my disciple once so I shall help you cross this divine punishment. 
she then pulled the jade knife from Wen Liang's neck. Without waiting for Jin Zhao's response, Guo Hua also laughed strenuously, this punishment is too immense. If I'm still in my prime, perhaps I can join hands with you to cross it. Chang Li shrugged and her expression was indifferent, I will try to resist as much as I can, the rest will depend on you. At this point, the old monk Ji Fei pulled the fat monk Shui Jing along as they gathered forward with ashen faces. They did not dare to ask Chang Li directly but they looked at Wen Liang, is it truly the divine punishment? Is someone crossing the divine punishment? Wen Liang nodded with a solemn expression but before he could say anything else, Ji Fei and Shui Jing abruptly screeched in agony together as they ran away. Soon after that, a divine radiance expanded on the Nine Peaks Mountain as the crowd of rogue cultivators from the Gongya family, the Rainbow Brothers. As well as Wei Emo each launched their supernatural power and exerted the cultivation power of their entire lifetime, shouting loudly as they ran towards the foot of the Nine Peaks Mountain. Guo Huan did not know whether he should laugh or cry as he cursed, these useless young lads, the divine punishment is unrelated to you. As long as you don't get in the way then you would be affected. Chang Li was more straightforward and her piercing voice echoed like countless knives which struck each other in a manner filled with murderous intent. Other than the one, Miao, and Luo families, does anyone else want to take one more step to show me? Every cultivator reacted as if they had just been hit by an immobility spell and they all stood rigidly on the same spot. Each of them had a sorrowful expression as they thought, she's far too unreasonable. Chang Li has been acting unreasonably before that word has even existed in the world. To regular cultivators, the divine punishment was only something they have ever heard in legends. They do not wish to see it and dared not see it. Even though Tua Xie's disciples have declared that this was a one-to-one -one killing punishment. The principle was similar to knowing that there was a sniper aiming at the person next to them but they would wish that they could run away as far as possible. Chang Li's face was still as rosy and cute as before. She stretched out a slim finger as she swept past the group of cultivators, witness me as I help this monk cross the divine punishment. No one is allowed to leave. Upon saying that, she looked with a smile at her relatives including the first grandfather, the Luo family, and the Qing Miao clansmen, if any of you are afraid, please descend the mountain. I'll call you to come home after the divine punishment has concluded. Though some of the members from the three families appeared stricken, they shook their heads. They would never leave while their grand master still remained on the mountain. The cultivator's expression became even more furious. Those who could leave did not wish to leave, those who wished to leave could not leave ever since when Leong, Changli, and the others had entered the mortal world in succession, something ghastly has always occurred in the one family village. The monk Jin Zhao spoke dully at this point and his tone of speaking does not sound too courteous towards Changli, thank you to the demon cat, this punishment is related to me yet it is not mine as well. Upon saying that, he paused for a moment before his kindly tone of speaking suddenly turned into a drunk man's shrewishness, I've become exceedingly furious the moment I saw that divine punishment. This monk has performed pious deeds for the past millennium but, in the end, I'm rewarded with a divine punishment. You, the demon cat, on the other hand. The monk Jin Zhao was halfway through his rant when he suddenly laughed, have constantly created trouble. I can't tell how many people's lives have been harmed and killed by you yet you're living a flourishing life now. Heh, a sleeve of yours can even cost 73,000. As Ji Zhao spoke, his tone of speaking changed three times from dull to furious and finally to wild laughter. However, those on the scene did not realize that the monk was turning crazy from exhaustion. Even as the monk laughed, the crowd also laughed along with him too. Chang Li ignored what he said, my temperament will remain the same whether I live for a day or ten thousand years. If you were to use your everlasting cultivation in exchange for even a second's worth of my hypocrisy, I would not agree to do that too. Monk, do you understand me now? All of you are cultivating for the heavens, for the divine, for the Buddha and the High Lord. When you achieve mastery in your cultivation, you become someone else. In my point of view, whether this form of cultivation ends up achieving mastery or is destroyed by divine punishment, the difference is as thin as a hair's width. You are furious when you saw the divine punishment because you are still unwilling to submit. You become someone else for a thousand years but in the end, 
you still could not avoid ending your life as a scattered soul so naturally, you would be unwilling to submit. Chan Li started laughing wildly. The moment she laughed, the rest of the cultivators did not dare to laugh anymore. It seems that the monk Jin Zhao has forgotten that the divine punishment was close at hand as he refuted Chan Li's words without showing any signs of weakness, I cannot make any comments about being Sanwei for a thousand years. As for my time before that, I have been focused on doing good in the world. I cultivate in peace and I'm at peace when all living things are peaceful, I'm in turmoil when all living things are suffering. Chang Li did not even need to consider as she pursed her lips and shot back, if you truly are at peace, why was it necessary for you to feel angry the moment you saw the divine punishment? Do you think that you're only at peace because you've performed some good deeds? Ha! Huh. Foolish monk! You feel at peace because you've performed the deeds that the Buddha has tasked you to do so no matter how you've put it into words, you're still attempting to cultivate yourself into the Buddha. You are still attempting to cultivate yourself into someone else and this peace that you're feeling is false. As the two of them were having a good time in their debate and conversation, when Leon was busy digesting the monk Jin Zhao's first sentence, the divine punishment is related to him but it was not his. He finally understood something at this moment as he reached for Grand Master Chang Li's hand which was holding the jade knife and grabbed her wrist. Chang Li's gaze abruptly turned fierce as she looked at Wen Leong in a ghastly manner, this sleeve here is not cheap too. Wen Leong could not care about any 73,000 sleeves at this moment as he asked the jade knife without consulting anyone, so, who is this divine punishment actually for? Is it? The divine monk Jin Zhao's voice sounded strong and vigorous as he was debating about the fundamentals of cultivation earlier. There was no longer any anger in his voice, on the contrary, he sounded rather joyous as he chuckled upon hearing Wen Liang's question, naturally, it is the divine punishment for the other portion of my primordial soul. I had awakened the moment I entered this mountain and I constantly felt a sense of familiarity close by. So, when I saw that divine punishment, I understood that it was the other portion of my primordial soul which is about to cross the divine punishment to be reincarnated soon. Chang Li and Guo Hua were simultaneously startled as they muttered in unison, so, it's Ah Dan who would be crossing the divine punishment instead? Over a thousand years ago, the monk Ji Zhao's primordial spirit had been split into two portions. One portion had become the remnant soul in the jade knife while the other portion had turned into Ah Dan's first blossoming of spiritual intelligence. The monk Jin Zhao exclaimed in surprise, he did not know whether he should laugh or cry as he asked, that portion of my soul. Is called Ah Dan. Isn't that name a little too childish? When Leong had finally understood as well that this divine punishment was meant for Ah Dan. Ah Dan had been reincarnated from a zombie baby into a living person when he was struck by the divine punishment. During the first time, the divine punishment had been absorbed by the Thunder Heart Jade. However, the old demon Rabbit Bulu had declared back then that the second divine punishment would likely arrive within three years' time and its power would be much stronger than the first. If that was so, the divine punishment has arrived and Ah Dan was about to be resurrected now. Wen Leong did not know that Ah Dan initially still had some time before he could be fully resurrected. However, due to the presence of the monk Jin Zhao's primordial soul on Nine Peaks Mountain, Ah Dan had received a great influence from it. The little zombie's mood at this time was also fluctuating intensely like the remnant souls as it resided in the Jade Knife. His heart meridians were almost connected and he was about to be resurrected into a living human being but the ruthless and tyrannical divine punishment was also about to arrive at any moment. Wen Leong could not help but grit his teeth. He looked at the crowd from the Luo family as he asked anxiously, Where is Adan? And where is Mumu? Before his voice could die away, a short and plump little figure appeared on the edge of Wen Leong's telegnosis ability. He was staggering as he ran towards the direction of the village with a terrified expression. That dark cloud was floating at a height of around two kilometers above Ah Dan's head and consistently followed him around. The zombie baby had gone into the mountain to play since yesterday morning. After the monk Jin Zhao's other primordial soul portion had appeared in the nearby area, even though that had made Ah Dan feel agitated and uneasy, he was still a half-alive baby right now. He did not understand what was going on and it was not until the divine punishment had appeared and followed him around did he start running towards the direction of the one family village. 
Even though the little fatty was shuffling with difficulty and looked as if he was about to fall at any time, he was moving quite swiftly. He had lost his felt cap and sunglasses somewhere along the way and his plump hands firmly covered his bald head. His face was contorted as if he was about to cry but because he was too busy running, he did not have the time to cry yet. Chapter 231 Mumu was aware that the divine punishment was meant for Ah Dan and she became so anxious that her face turned ashen. She no longer cared about breaking the taboo of not seeing Wen Leong before their marriage as she leaped out of the house agilely. She resembled a nervous sparrow as she dashed towards the depths of the mountain to locate Ah Dan. Wen Leong could not bear to see her put herself at risk and his body swayed once as he blocked her. However, before he could speak, Chang Li moved past them in a flash and spoke in a low voice, I'm going to save the little fatty, all of you stay back. Wen Leong heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. Earlier, Guo Huan had informed him that even Chang Li would be unable to resist this divine punishment. He would never allow Mumu to take such a risk and at the same time, he could not stay behind in the village and complacently wait for news. He then patted Mumu's slightly trembling shoulders and repeated Chang Li's statement to her, I'm going to save the little fatty, you stay back. Soon after that, his figure flashed past as he sped towards Adan. Another lightning-fast figure dashed out diagonally and followed closely behind Wen Leong. That figure shouted, I'm coming with you. Wen Leong smiled gently as he heard this. The ugly youth Qin Zhui's expression was bold and heroic yet his voice had sounded a little shaky, I will try to withstand as much as I can but don't count on me to risk my life. Qin Zhui was a martial arts fanatic, sometimes he would act so foolish that he was incisive but he was genuinely a good friend. Mumu immediately chased after them while a few other figures also plunged ahead at the same time. Little Chi Maojiu, Wen Nine, and Wen Thirteen were attempting to follow them when first grandfather abruptly roared, Stop! These children who don't know their own limitations won't be helpful even if you were to tag along. Your presence will not help the situation, on the contrary, you'll only be troubling them more. The old man's voice sounded stern and fierce but his gaze was filled with heartfelt affection. The newer disciples of Tuo Xie stopped moving and Mumu grit her teeth as she hesitated for a moment before she finally broke out in bitter sobs. Nineteen appeared in a flash and embraced Mumu as she consoled her in a gentle voice. Within the entire Wen family village, the Rainbow Brothers, Nineteen, Mumu, Chi Maojiu as well as the two silly uncles could all be considered as master cultivators in the cultivation world. However, only Chang Li, Wen Leong, and Qin Zhui were able to withstand the second divine punishment for Ah Dan's sake. Truthfully speaking, even when Leong and Qin Zhui were incapable of offering much help to the situation. By the time when Leong had rushed to Ah Dan's location, Chang Li was holding Ah Dan in her arms and smiling as she pinched his plump cheeks. When she noticed that when Leong had arrived, she was the least surprised as she laughed, if this divine punishment was meant for me, I will die without a doubt. She then paused for a moment before she continued and her statement was almost the same as what Qin Zhui had said, I will try my best but the rest will still depend on this little fatty's creation. You ought to understand that I will never risk my life for him. Ah Dan seems to understand Chang Li's words as his plump body twisted here and there. He struggled free from Chang Li's embrace and squatted on the ground as he patted Wen Liang's feet with a sorrowful expression. The zombie baby has always greeted everyone this way without fail. Wen Leong did not know whether to cry or to laugh as he patted Ah Dan's bald head which only just reached past his knees. He then turned around and asked Chang Li, is there anything else that we should prepare? When Bulu had helped Ah Dan to cross the first divine punishment back then, he had conjured a Buddha's like great formation. Chang Li shook her head unexpectedly. The only target of this divine punishment is Ah Dan, it is utterly useless to conjure a protective circle. We can only launch our supernatural powers to withstand a portion of the divine punishment's power before the lightning strikes him. The rest is up to him. She was halfway through her explanation when the monk Jin Zhao suddenly spoke up from the jade knife, the second portion of my primordial soul. Has been swallowed by this zombie baby here. His voice sounded baffled but his tone of speaking was filled with rage. The monk Jin Zhao had sensed that the other portion of his primordial soul was about to receive the divine punishment. However, before he saw Ah Dan, 
he thought that the other portion of his primordial soul was in a similar situation and had possessed a soulless human body. He was astonished and had wondered how the other primordial soul portion had cultivated to a level which incurred the divine punishment so soon but he never expected a zombie baby to have swallowed that primordial soul. This had opened up Adan's spiritual intelligence when he was resurrected from death which was why he had drawn in the divine punishment. To Jean Zhao, Adan could not be considered as the other part of him. In fact, Adan should be considered as a great enemy who had killed the other him. How could he not feel angry? He had an exceedingly high level of cultivation during his lifetime. And had spent a thousand years accumulating good deeds yet in the end, he had been pulverized by the divine punishment into nothingness. Two portions of his soul had survived by sheer luck but he had been tormented for the past thousand years while the other portion of his soul had been wasted to help the zombie baby. The moment Guo Huan realized that Jin Zhou was burning with rage, he immediately threatened with a cold voice, Hey, monk! Don't you start getting the wrong ideas here. This jade knife is mine and I'm only lending it to you for you to rest here. If you attempt to launch the break the demon body spell, this old father will take your life. The monk Jin Zhou was a remnant soul. After he had launched his supernatural power in the crystal or cave to deal with Tian Yin, his soul's power had become even weaker. Now, based on the level of power in his primordial spirit, he could not even fart much less cast any more spells. Guo Huan, however, was afraid that Jin Zhou would risk everything and use the jade knife as a weapon to attack the others. Guo Huan would be at risk of being destroyed if Jin Zhou had done that. The monk Jin Zhou's voice shook gently and sounded like he was suppressing his rage as he asked in a low and hoarse voice, who amongst all of you can tell me, how had this happened? When Leong peeked at Chang Li but she acted like this was none of her business as she stood aside with her arms crossed. She raised her charming head slightly and she looked up at the sky before she laughed, there is still enough time to burn a joss stick. Since we are idling here and doing nothing, Wen Leong will tell you. Wen Leong nodded before he told the story that the demon monk San Duan had explained to them before he died. Wen Leong focused on the encounters that he, Mumu, and the others in the Qing Miao's land of evil spirits had experienced and relayed the matter from beginning to the end. The monk Jin Zhao was surprised that San Duan had used the evil spirit to grow the soul and that San Duan had turned a huge and great temple into a shady hole which was used to suppress the vitality energy in the land of evil spirits. This revelation caused Jin Zhao to exclaim in astonishment. When Leon could not bear to continue any more and wanted to stop at that point yet the monk Jin Zhao was unexpectedly persistent as he urged Wen Leong to continue the story. Wen Leong then told him how the demon monk had transformed himself into the weeping Buddha and created trouble on the Nine Peaks Mountain. There was a deadly stillness between the heavens and the earth as the sound of sobs echoed from time to time in the jade knife. No one expected that the monk Jin Zhao would cry like a child. After a long while, it was difficult to tell if his tone of speaking was filled with hate, love, rage or heartache as he enunciated each word clearly, this evil disciple. He was such a stubborn child. Chang Li too sighed as she shook her head and was about to say something but, in the end, she pointed to the sky and spat out two words dully, it's here. When Leong and Qin Zhui had just looked up into the sky when that puff of black-colored cloud which had been floating above Ah Dan's head suddenly moved like a jellyfish which had been stimulated. The cloud expanded several times suddenly and spread all the way to the edge of the sky in a flash. In no time at all, the lightly floating black cloud had fused entirely into the boundlessly black velvety sky. It was then completely silent for one second. It was not the oppressed silence before the apocalypse but it was the utmost silence of emptiness after everything had been destroyed. It was a dead silence in which all sounds of breathing, blood flow, and heartbeats were absent. Within that deadly stretch of silence, the boundless darkness in the sky abruptly erupted into a sonic boom. It sounded ruthless and tyrannical as it suddenly shrank into the size of a bowl and was rather similar to Guo Huan's treasured weapon, Yang's mistake. After the darkness had shrunk, the sky above showed some light but rather than illuminating everything, the light had cast a dull grey color on their surroundings instead. All these had happened in a blink of an eye, when Leong did not even have the time to react to the situation when that small puff of darkness erupted into countless fragments. 
A streak of golden radiance, like a wicked newborn dragon which was about to destroy the world, appeared in the darkness ferociously. There was even the hoarse sound of a dragon's roar which rippled from within before this radiance it surged towards Adan. Chang Li groaned and her body swayed swiftly. Even with her cultivation base as the top demon immortal, she did not dare to directly face that golden-colored divine thunder on Adan's behalf. That divine thunder was not vast but it was so forceful that it made one feel nauseated, she could only launch her supernatural powers desperately from the side as she tried her best to weaken the thunder's power. It was at this moment that when Leong and Qin Zhui understood that they were not qualified enough to help A Dan to pass through this punishment. When the thunder's power had appeared, the terrifying pressure had firmly shackled them in place. No matter how hard they struggled, these two young master cultivators could not even budge an inch. The cloud dispersed and wrapped itself around the rippling black-colored sky. After the golden-colored thunder had taken form, it had broken out of the cocoon with alacrity. However, once the divine thunder had appeared, everything seemed to slow down once again. As the divine thunder struck towards Adan from the sky, its speed was quite average. If it had not been for Chang Li who was rippling with terrifying supernatural powers as she blasted the divine thunder continuously as fast as lightning. Forming a sharp contrast to that streak of slowly approaching divine punishment, when Leong would have thought that time was being extended. Chang Li, who could cause profuse bleeding just by moving her arms and legs in the past. Almost seemed like a dragonfly who was trying to shake a jade pillar as she attacked in a graceful and swift manner but was also turning ashen in the midst of her weakness. Ah Dan too was pinned in place, his gaze was frightened as he looked at the divine thunder which was approaching closer and closer from the sky. Somehow, the zombie baby had lain on his back and positioned his body in the pose of making a snow angel to greet the divine punishment. The divine thunder of the divine punishment finally descended onto the top of Adan's head yet it did not directly crash into the little fatty's body. Instead, it was more like a snake which was enjoying its prey's breath as it lingered three feet away from Adan's body. The divine thunder slowly twisted and wriggled its body and when Leong could even hear this wicked creature's cooing laughter. The divine thunder was waiting for Adan's heart meridians to be connected, waiting for the moment when his little heart would start to beat. Chang Li heaved a sigh dully as she stopped her futile attacks. Her originally healthy and glowing face was now ashen. She was exhausted and the divine thunder was too close to Ah Dan now. Even if she was to grit her teeth and attack, this streak of divine thunder would lose its job then. She had blasted countless strikes of supernatural powers at the divine thunder ever since it had appeared. Each strike was enough to crush a cultivator of Wan Liang's level into pieces yet it had been futile in the face of the golden-colored divine thunder. Ah Dan's second divine punishment had appeared in a more incisive manner than they had expected. Ah Dan had a grimace on his small face and his eyes were filled with fear. He struggled desperately to run towards Wan Liang and when his repeated attempts to struggle free had failed, he then pursed his lips and wailed loudly. Wen Leong felt pity swell in his heart but his body remained as rigid as before. Even if he could make a sound now, he would curse the heavens. The sound of Adan's cry and his crystal clear tears told everyone that the zombie baby had become a living being. The divine thunder was like a startled snake as it displayed its fangs all of a sudden. It then constricted before it shot downwards immediately at lightning speed towards Adan mercilessly. When Leong cried out in heartfelt sorrow before he shut his eyes and could not bear to watch any more when he suddenly heard a series of laughter in his ears which sounded cheerful, crisp yet resolute. A pale green-colored shadow which was even swifter than the divine thunder struggled free from the jade knife and dove headfirst into Ah Dan's chest. Soon after that, a pure golden-colored radiance bloomed out of Ah Dan's body with a bang. The godly appearance of a Buddha as large as a mountain had taken form in the blink of an eye within the golden light. Nevertheless, the divine thunder was utterly unhindered as it tore apart the golden giant Buddha into pieces like a ferocious knife. Soon after that, a loud sound which could rouse the heavens was heard as the Buddha's light and the divine thunder both vanished at the same time. The sky then brightened in a flash, the winter's sun which was warm and full hung on the edge of the sky. When Leong felt his body become lighter but he has yet to realize what had happened and the divine punishment ended. 
However, the sound that made him wish he could rejoice with wild excitement and cry loudly was Ah Dan's childish and resentful cry which was echoing in his ears. Ah Dan's face was covered with mucus and tears as he cried fiercely. A pale, golden-colored Buddhist prayer bead was rolling around on Ah Dan's chest as his little tummy heaved. Chang Li sighed and her body was swaying ever so slightly as she picked up the Buddhist prayer bead. She held it in her palm as she frowned and asked softly, why did you do that? He is him and you are you, the act of him crossing the divine punishment and growing into an adult hereafter are all his own matter which are unrelated to you. When Leon realized that Ah Dan was safe and sound. He then stretched out his hands and held the little fatty in his arms before he walked to Chang Li's side. Wen Leong observed the Buddhist prayer bead in her palm attentively and he discovered in slight astonishment that there was an indistinct face reflected on the surface of the Buddhist prayer bead. Guo Huan saw that Wen Leong gathered over and his rigid voice too carried a slight grievance as he informed Wen Leong softly, that's the monk Jin Zhao. The monk Jin Zhao's voice remained as heavy and deep as before but he now sounded like he was very far away, so far away that he could be blown away by the wind at any time, that time, it was me who had opened the door to let him in. How could I just stand by and watched as he leaves once again? This way, what difference was there if I had never opened the door in the beginning? His words were baffling but when Leong felt that these words sounded unusually familiar as if he had heard them before in the past. He could not recall why they sounded familiar and he shot his gaze at Chang Li out of habit. Chang Li pursed her lips before she softly said to him, it's from the movie, Lion, the professional. Even though he knows that the timing was inappropriate, when Leong could not help but laugh out loud. He looked at Chang Li then at the Buddhist prayer bead, it turns out old demons enjoyed watching movies too. The monk Jin Zhao laughed as well, when I was the Taoist priest San Wei, I had the opportunity to watch some movies too. In any case, I had been referring to the meaning behind the dialogue. He then paused for a moment before he refocused the topic of discussion once again, actually I was not only saving the boy's life, I was also saving myself. Over a thousand years ago, I had not managed to cross the divine punishment successfully. I was supposed to be reincarnated into the next world and continue my cultivation in the next life but because of failing to cross over, I had ended up possessing the evil sycophant's human body. Even though I had managed to survive for another thousand years, I had lost the opportunity to be reincarnated once again too. I could only wait for the karmic power which I had accumulated during my time as a Buddhist monk to be exhausted. Only then would my soul be scattered and dispersed, it would happen sooner or later I guess. He had not managed to cross the divine punishment successfully back then. He was supposed to be reincarnated into his next life and he would have brought along the karmic power and blessed deeds which he had accumulated in his past life. He would certainly have become an eminent monk in his next life. When this process was repeated many times, sooner or later, there would come a day when he could hopefully ascend to the Devaloka of the Western Pure Land but due to this strange mishap, he had ended up stranded in his current state. His power of primordial spirit was also the karmic power which had been accumulated from back then. After he had regained his memories, the monk still had one ultimate question. He wondered why he had been left with so little karmic power. By right, he had fought the evil soul's evil energy for a thousand years so not only should his karmic power be depleted, it should have grown instead. After he had discovered the demon monk San Duan's heaven's defying actions, only then was he suddenly enlightened. His favorite disciple had tried to save him but had harmed him as a result. The process of growing evil spirits and planting a soul for a thousand years had exhausted his karmic power rapidly. Now, he was left with almost nothing. Even if he could find a new human body, he would not be able to live for a long period of time. By then, when his soul was truly about to be scattered and dispersed, he would completely disappear from this world. The monk Jin Zhao had lost all hopes of being reincarnated into the next life and continuing his cultivation. He had been a little furious initially but he was still an eminent monk who had achieved mastery. Just as Adan was about to be blasted by the divine thunder, Jin Zhao was also enlightened to the fact that Adan was alive because of him. Though he was not the one who had come back to the land of the living. Was this not another form of his reincarnation? He had used the next few years or the next decade of his feeble life to bet on this reincarnation process that belonged to him. 
he was willing to accept the reality whether he had won or lost that bet. As he was risking his remnant soul to withstand the divine punishment, he already knows that he would naturally re-enter the reincarnation process while the remaining karmic power from his past life has accumulated into Ah Dan's body. When the monk Jin Zhao finished his tale, he laughed softly, this boy here is the reincarnation of my next life. Otherwise, just by depending on the power of my remnant soul, he could not have survived the divine punishment. The power of Adan's second divine punishment shocking, Chang Li had exhausted all her powers yet she had been barely able to shake it even a little. The divine thunder was also aimed more accurately this time, it only recognized Adan so it would not strike anyone else to death before it had dispersed. The monk Jin Zhao had been capable of using his remnant soul to disperse the divine punishment due to only one reason, Ah Dan, and he was of the same soul. However, while he was the person of this life, Ah Dan was his next incarnation. To the divine punishment, it had struck this person to death so it would naturally have vanished after that. When Leung exhaled gently, he was filled with questions but he did not know what to say now. The monk Jin Zhao's voice was growing softer and softer as the radiance on the Buddhist prayer bead too became dimmer and dimmer. It seems that he would not last much longer, I have regained all of my memories, if all of you still have any more questions, make the best use of my time. When Leung understands that the monk does not have much time left. There was no need for him to delay so he asked directly, how did the jade talisman which had been left behind by the Grand Master end up in your hands? The monk Jin Zhao understood Wen Liang's question but there was an uncertainty in his tone of speaking, that jade talisman had belonged to your grand master. Ha after I had possessed San Wei's body, I then spent days and nights fighting the evil soul's evil energy until I was extremely familiar with Xiang Lu's breath. I can't remember the exact moment but a few centuries ago, someone had suddenly come to investigate in secret at Iangshan Mountain. Even though he had tried very hard to suppress himself, I could still distinguish that the soul within that human body was Xiang Lu. He he, that very same person was Tian Yin whom we met in the ore cave I had chased after him for a long distance back then but he still managed to escape in the end. However, I managed to seize this jade talisman from him during our fierce battle. I was aware that this item was important to Xiang Lu but I did not know its purpose and I knew even less of its origins. When Leung had found out from Lu Zheng that Tian Yin had once visited the Iangshan mountain in order to locate his evil soul's brother a few centuries ago. As a result, he was then hunted by San Wei. Unexpectedly, that was how San Wei had obtained the Jade Talisman. After that, when Painting Town had spent days and nights monitoring the Ayang sect, Painting Town had not realized the peculiarity of this Jade Talisman back then. It was only when they found out that Sanwei frequently studied this item that they realized this was an important item and they subsequently hired unrelated master cultivators to attack the Ayang sect to seize this jade talisman. Finally, it then passed through many hands before it landed in Wen Liang's grasp. Chang Li continued to inquire closely, if the matter of Hanba and Xiang Lu was very important to you, when you had gone to Shanghai to deal with Hanba, why did your other three split bodies not follow you? The Taoist priest San Wei's final cultivation base was already perfected, he was no less inferior than Chang Li and Hanba and needless to say, his three split bodies actual power was not too shabby either. However, San Wei had chosen to handle the important matter himself and had not brought along his three powerful helpers. The One Word Palace Jin Zhao began to speak faster though his voice was still as calm as before, the evil soul had once left a clue behind in the Ayang sect. When it was acting as San Wei, he had started to pay careful attention to every single movement of the One Word Palace since 2000 years ago. I did not manage to find out the specific reason why but in the recent 1000 years, I had not discovered any mysterious or unusual incidents from the One Word Palace. However, the One Word Palace is closely related to Xiang Lu, I'm certain of this. Otherwise, why had that evil soul acted so cautiously? I had sent the first to participate in the five blessings gathering on Nine Peaks Mountain because the One Word Palace had decided to suddenly marry their young maiden to the One family in a baffling manner. I was afraid that when I was dealing with Hanba and the evil soul, the One Word Palace would ruin my important matter, that was why I had then sent the second and a third to each kept a close watch on First Elder Xia and Second Elder Ma. The monk Jin Zhao's voice was already so soft that he could almost not be heard anymore. 
When that final golden light on the Buddhist prayer bead was extinguished, the divine monk had left behind a voice which was unclear if it was a sigh, a laugh, or only a withered whisper. At this point, even Ah Dan was feeling tired of crying. He had been sitting in one Leyang's embrace as he sobbed and the area around his eyes and lips were blushing enchantingly. He was trying to stretch out his plump hand desperately and his mouth babbled as he tried to reach that Buddhist prayer bead which had already lost its shine in Chang Li's palm. Chang Li laughed as she reached over to Wen Leong and picked Ah Dan up from his embrace. She then cradled Ah Dan and stuffed the Buddhist prayer bead into his little plump hand. Ah Dan behaved as if he was relieved by the weight on his hand. He heaved a long sigh and, following that, he wriggled his buttocks strenuously as he stretched out his hand and pointed at the direction of the Wen family village. His mouth was still babbling all the while. Little Ah Dan, who was supposed to die without a doubt and would not even leave ashes behind, has turned into a delicate baby at this point. His tiny little body emitted a sweet-smelling warmth in Chang Li's embrace and in his widely opened eyes, his pupils were glimmering like black onyx. He was greedily looking at this world which had suddenly become colorful. Chang Li was elated, she pouted her lips and was about to kiss the little fatty's cheek. Ah Dan, however, immediately held his palm to her lips as his body arched away with a determined expression. He utterly refused to be kissed by Chang Li. When Leong was startled and he hastily snatched Ah Dan out of Chang Li's grasp, was afraid that she would react in rage if that happens, Ah Dan's crossing of the divine punishment earlier would have been all in vain. Guo Huan burst out in laughter but he was still a little puzzled, he's alive now but why isn't he talking yet? Of course, a newborn baby would not know how to speak, when Leong was surprised at how Guo Huan could ask such a foolish question when Chang Li too chimed in. To his surprise, that's true, he ought to be able to talk the moment he had been resurrected. When Leong was stunned before he was finally enlightened. These old demons could speak the moment they took the form of a human so they had assumed that humans too were born knowing how to speak it was not easy for Wen Leong to know the answer to a question which they did not know and that was why Wen Leong was determined not to tell them the answer. Chapter, 232 The monk Jin Zhao had averted the divine punishment with his remnant soul. Wen Leong smiled as he looked at the now living Ah Dan and the playful look on his face. The toddler could not stay still even for a minute. No matter how Wen Leong thought about it, for the monk Jin Zhao, five words were enough to describe his sacrifice, it was a worthy death. Qin Zhui did not look at Ah Dan. He was rooted on the spot, frowning as he looked at the ground in a daze. When Wen Leong went over and patted his shoulder, he acted as if he had just woken up from a dream and muttered, the one word palace has ties with Xiang Lu. He then looked at the others with a complicated gaze, what relationship do they have? Is 19th day on the Nine Peaks Mountain also because of Xiang Lu? Chang Li smiled and shrugged, you can put it that way. However, when 19 had wanted to marry Wen Leong before this, the Wen family did not have any ties with Xiang Lu. Wen Leong frowned in confusion. Ah Dan exclaimed and seemed to think that the expression on Wen Leong's face looked cool. The little toddler tried hard to furrow his brows as well and frowned along with Wen Leong. If a random person were to walk past, they would probably think that the older one misses his wife while the little one misses his mother. Back then, Wen Leong had foiled the Jingpa demon lady's evil plan at the Miao Stockade village. When they had returned to the Wen village, the One Word Palace was already busy making arrangements to marry Nineteen to him. When the Five Blessings had made a scene on Nine Peaks Mountain, Nineteen had broken her silver spear and was heavily wounded when she tried to save someone. She had stayed on in the Wen family village ever since. However, the Wen family had known nothing about Xiang Lu back then. They only found out about Xiang Lu and the Wicked Soul after they accidentally rescued a Heaven's Cone Nail at the gold-consuming lair and battled Hanba at the City God Temple. After that, Wen Leong and a few others then journeyed to the highland snow-covered peaks and discovered Tian Yin and the True Soul. They had finally been able to piece together the entire series of events regarding Xiang Lu now. Back then, when the One Word Palace had wanted to give their daughter in marriage, Wen Leong did not even know how to write the word Xiang Lu, let alone defeat this monster. If the One Word Palace really has ties with Xiang Lu and they had given their daughter in marriage to plant a spy to deter Wen Leong from fighting the nine-headed monster, they must have been fortune-tellers. 
The one word palace had given their daughter in marriage but they had not foreseen that you will treat the monster as an enemy. Chang Li could not stand seeing Wen Liyan frown, even more so now when he has a copycat held to his chest. She quickly analyzed the situation for him, maybe it's because they had known about some things beforehand, like like, the important person who is significant to the destiny of the righteous and evil path of the cultivation world. Wen Liyang's eyes lit up. He lifted his head quickly and Ah Dan lifted his head jubilantly as well. Since the Jilong sect knows that Wei Mo's martial uncle was hiding on the Nine Peaks Mountain, the One Word Palace naturally had a way of finding out about this matter as well, maybe even before Jilong sect had received this information. Back then, before the Qing Niao had ascended the mountain to cause a mess, the smaller factions attached to the One Word Palace had begun to send betrothal gifts to the One family. The matter was not too complicated especially now that they know the One Word Palace had ties with Xiang Lu. Xiang Lu had wanted to look for the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog, so the One Word Palace would not keep themselves out of the affair. However, they were like the Rainbow Brothers and had not had the chance to make their move yet. Wen Leong smiled and shook his head. He found it increasingly difficult to differentiate between the cultivation world and the world of spies. Chang Li did not have the demeanor of an elder as she giggled and bumped Wen Leong with her shoulder, what do you think about that girl, 19? Do you still want to marry her? If you ask me, you should grab every chance you get. Before Wen Leong would interject, Qin Zhui wailed and waved his fists, don't you dare. Ah Dan sat in Wen Liyang's embrace and convulsed with laughter. He seems to like Qin Zhui's angry face very much. Wen Liyang hastily waved at Qin Zhui, asking him to stop his assumptions. He then thought of something as the gloominess on his face was swept away, the monk Jin Zhao had it wrong. Even if the one word palace had ties with Xiang Lu, it's the tie of an enemy. Otherwise, Tian Yin would have attacked the Nine Peaks Mountain long ago. Though the One Word Palace has ties with Xiang Lu, they might be his ally or enemy. Wen Leong had assumed that the One Word Palace was against the Wen family but then he pondered upon whether the One Word Palace was Xiang Lu's lackey. She thinks that they would have leaked the information about Wei Mo's martial uncle hiding at the Nine Peaks Mountain to Tian Yin already. Following this train of thought, the One Word Palace was seeking the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and the Dog, for the same reason as them, to defeat Xiang Lu. When he thought of first brother Xia's gallantry and 19's favor of saving Mu Mu's life, this judgment made Wen Liang's heart feel extremely comforted and he smiled. Chang Li exclaimed in utter surprise, she was not used to Wen Liang's sudden burst of intelligence. Qin Zhui's initially gloomy expression also lightened up quickly. He laughed and said, let's come clean to 19 then, we share a hatred for a common enemy and we could fight Xiang Lu together. Chang Li giggled and nodded. Suddenly, she leaned forward and tapped Qin Zhui's head with her fist. Qin Zhui did not even have the chance to be puzzled as he fainted with a straightaway. Ah Dan cheered immediately and chuckled heartlessly. Wen Leong too exclaimed in surprise. He was about to speak when Guo Huan opened his mouth from within the jade knife, whether the one word palace is a friend or a foe, will only be making wild guesses no matter how well based out inferences are. What's scary isn't how powerful the enemy is but the foolish young lad had wanted to treat the enemy as a friend. If that's the case, he'll die without a burial place. After he finished, Guo Huan paused before he continued, Silly boy, you regard the one word palace as your friend but there's a huge flaw. It's no longer a secret that you want to defeat Xiang Lu so why hasn't the one word palace formed an alliance with you yet? Your powers have improved so much. In force, you have Great Mercy Temple and Changli at your back in abilities, you are not inferior to the demon rabbit Bulu even before you had gone to the highlands. Changli added from the side, the enemy's enemy might not necessarily be a friend. Wen Leong knitted his brows and said nothing. Changli pondered for a while before she suddenly smiled until her eyes turned into crescent moons, I become badly injured after helping Ah Dan pass the punishment and need to leave to recuperate. You've also exhausted your strength and can't move but the person in the Red Leaves Forest is important. The sooner we know about the secret of the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and the Dog, the sooner we can defeat Xiang Lu. That's why. 
Wen Leong understood then that Chang Li wants to test one word palace. He nodded with slight hesitation. Guo Huan laughed, there's no need to worry about them being suspicious. If it's really for these three objects, anyone would have done the same. While you're at it, you can even probe the thoughts of the Rainbow Brothers. Chang Li's eyes were filled with excitement, she has finally found something more fun than chasing a debt. She then stretched out a hand and pressed it to Qin Zhui's forehead. After a brief moment, Qin Zhui's colors turned grayish-white and he now looked 99% dead. At the same time, she looked at Wen Leon and smiled, don't worry, he'll wake up after three days and I guarantee that he'll be in super high spirits. However, before he awakes, 19 and the other's cultivation base means that no matter how much they check his condition, they will think that Qin Zhui had been hit by thunder magic and his primordial spirit has been damaged. As she said this, Chang Li was walking towards the depths of the jungle, there's no need to look for me. Whether it's the village or the red leaves forest, I'll appear if anything's wrong. Her voice then faded as her gentle and graceful figure vanished at the edge of their sight. When Leong tore his clothes. The power of poison within his body flowed and his face flushed the color of blood. He dragged Qin Zhui behind him as he carried A Dan and slowly made his way, step by step, towards the village. Soon after, he was found by the disciples who had come out to fetch him. A huge group, under the orders of Grand Elder Wen, came hurriedly and escorted them back to the Wen family village. A Dan seems to be dazed when he saw so many people in such a short span of time. These people looked familiar but he could not remember how they had met before. His gaze shifted as he scanned every face in the crowd but he was stunned when he saw Mumu. Bean-sized tears immediately dropped down his face and his mouth caved in as he cried out. He no longer wished to stay within Wen Liang's embrace as he extended his arms persistently at Mumu. Mumu's eyes were red and there were tears in her eyes. She hugged A Dan close and would not let him go. Everyone sighed in relief when they saw that A Dan was fine. Wen Leung stuttered as he relayed everything which had happened but he left out the monk Jin Zhao's final words. He also modified the story slightly, making it sound as if they had tried to block the divine punishment as they disregarded their own lives. In the end, Chang Li had been exhausted and badly wounded so she must immediately find a place to recover her demonic primordial energy. Qin Zhui and Wen Leung too were heavily injured. Wen Leong panted as he told this lie. It was indistinguishable whether it was because he was too badly wounded or he felt guilty about lying. As Mu Mu hugged A Dan and looked at Wen Leong deeply through tear-filled eyes, his face reddened even more. Nineteen's expression, as she looked at Qin Zhui, was extremely like Mu Mu's. Wen Leong does not know how to use telepathy so he had no way of telling the few elders the truth. He then simply decided not to tell them. After all, it would not cause too much trouble other than making them feel worried. After Adan and Mumu were done with their reunion, Adan then stubbornly jumped down onto the ground. He ran to Qin Zhui's side next to the stretcher and knocked on his head before winking and grinning at everyone. They were all puzzled and when Liang's heart dropped. Luckily, Mumu yelled and pulled the plump little guy away. You've got me was still fighting the sword's resolve inside the village head's big house. It had no time to properly greet Wen Leong. After resting for half a day, Wen Leong had recovered somewhat. He seemed unwilling to wait any longer and after persistent requests, he finally met with all the good hands of the family and headed for the Red Leaves Forest. What made him surprised and confused was that Nineteen has utterly no intention of following them to the Red Leaves Forest. The entire group entered the mountain while she had stayed behind in the village. Before they parted, she even smiled happily and she told them to take care. Guo Huan grunted softly within the jade knife, maybe the men of the One Word Palace have already entered the mountain. Even if the little girl's not going, it doesn't mean anything. Just keep your act up. Wen Leong was quite successful in his acting and leaned on a palanquin throughout the entire journey. Ji Fei and Shui Jing had been initially compelled to carry their master out of obligation but then Wen 9 and Wen 13 threw a fit and wanted to carry the palanquin no matter what. Only one of the Rainbow Brothers was needed to break Waymo's martial uncle's magic disguise spell but all seven of them had come along. The Rainbow's leader chuckled and explained to Wen Leong, don't worry, this matter is related to Xiang Lu. 
Even if you truly find those three treasures, I wouldn't want them even if you were to give them to me as a gift. All seven of us have come along because we were worried in case anything were to happen. Us brothers could use this opportunity to thank the favors of all the mutton we had from the one family. And eggs. Wen Leong had no way of distinguishing truth and lies as he diverted the topic with a smile. He then asked strenuously, the true soul has shown himself and you guys have also seen Tian Yin's abilities. Maybe someday, the nine-headed monster will break the prohibitions and return to the mortal world. What would the world sect do then? The rainbow's leader answered with a solemn expression, the righteous and the evil paths will then unite and finish off Xiang Lu above anything else. The other six brothers all broke into laughter. The rainbow's leader scratched the back of his head and could not help but laugh as well, let me be honest with you, let's not talk about Xiang Lu's true body yet, even his true soul or the wicked soul. Which one of them can we even go against? While all hell breaks loose, we would settle our debts with the mountain sect stars first before anything else. Then, even if we die, at least it's after we have got our revenge. When Leon smiled bitterly and said no more but Guo Huan laughed, as I thought, these world sect stars are more to my liking. The rainbow's leader shook his head helplessly, we're not stupid, we know our own limitations. The Great Mercy Temple is administered by a great demon and is also closely related to Changli as well as the One Family so we won't fight them just yet. As for the Jilong sect, Ayang sect, Kunlun sect, and One Word Palace, he he. We don't even need the Rainbow Brothers, the four heavenly sects are more than sufficient to defeat them now. The Rainbow Brothers do not know that the Kunlun sect has the ability to compete with the enlightened Tian Shu sword formation, nor do they know that the supreme leader of the Ayang sect was Sanwei's split body. Except for the Great Mercy Temple, they had assumed that the abilities of everyone else in the Five Blessings were only average. Hence, they had made these wild claims. When Leung smiled as he heard that, the grudge between the righteous and the evil paths are no business of ours but be careful that you guys don't break your heads. When Leung could not be bothered by the matters of the Jilong and the Ayang sects. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng was very friendly with him but with the world sect's abilities, if they truly wanted to fight the Kunlun sect which only has 73 remaining members, they would lose. Wen Leong was not too worried about Lu Zheng at all. The old grudge which had accumulated for thousands of years could not be settled in any other way and he had no way of meddling in this either. However, if the Great Mercy Temple or Lu Zheng were to fall into the hands of the world sect, he would definitely not sit idly by as the Rainbow Brothers harmed them. The elites of the Miao Stockade village and the Luo family had also accompanied them to the Red Leaves Forest. Since Mu Mu has seen Wen Leon, she decided to no longer hide from him. However, she was too shy to be too intimate with him in front of everyone else. She had followed behind the two Luo family elders as she glanced occasionally at the severely incapacitated person on the palanquin. Each time their eyes met, a delighted gleam would erupt within Mumu's eyes and she would then lower her blushing face. When Leon felt happy and tickled, Miss Luo Wangfu, who has always been spicy, had a cute and shy side to her personality after all. The entire journey was uneventful. Only Ah Dan, who was bored, had run beside the palanquin and pulled on Wen Liang's pants. He wanted him to come down and walk. When he saw that he could not pull Wen Liang down, he then tugged on Mumu as he looked at the palanquin with eager eyes. He gesticulated and informed his guardian that he wanted to have a ride as well. Out of consideration to a few elders and a group of ordinary death trademark disciples, it took them two days of walking in the mountain before they finally arrived at the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. The two Luo family elders looked at each other in surprise before they smiled cynically, I've always heard that the place of birth, life, sickness, and death was a forest of red leaf trees which will not wither throughout the seasons. It was a beautiful scene like flames that reached the heavens. However, I didn't think that the Wen family had needed to brag about this. Wen Leong was also dumbstruck as he stared at the nearby forest. He could hardly believe his eyes, the once blazing and enchanting patch of red leaves had now turned grayish white like the skin of a toad's belly. The scene was lifeless and extremely ugly. The forest was covered in corpses. The corpses were not rotten but the skin exposed to the air was the same color as the leaves. 
Grand Elder Wen ignored them and looked at Wen Leung. He spoke in a low tone which was loud enough for everyone to hear, on the tenth day of the fourth month, take the little girl Luo Wangfu as your bride here. On the eleventh day, send her back. They had first set the date of the tenth day of the fourth month as their wedding day but when Leong had been held up inside the jade talisman for two months and they had missed the lucky time. Grand Elder Wen had set the next day to the same time the following year. Now, the spring festival was upon them and their second wedding was only three months away. Grand Elder Luo burned with rage. He pointed at Grand Elder Wen and scolded, Boolsht. I'm not giving her in marriage anymore. Grand Elder Wen sneered, not marrying. You've accepted the betrothal presence, she has to go through with the marriage even if you don't want to. You have the face to call mushrooms, wood ears, and broken bamboo baskets as betrothal presents. Grand Elder Luo was stamping with rage when the betrothal presents were mentioned. Luo Wangfu's small face was flushed red with shame and anger. Wen Leon would have loved to find a crack in the ground and bury himself in it. The others did not interrupt, especially the second mother and little Chi Maojiu. They almost looked on with a smile as they witnessed the two elders quarrel. Fourth elder Wen walked behind his older brother with his hands folded behind his back, he looked ready to strike at any time. He decided to fight with this old enemy of his before the place of birth, life, sickness, and death over anything else. First uncle smiled bitterly and stood in front of Wen Leung. He pointed at the dilapidated and ugly forest as he talked business, when fourth elder Wen had planted the Ning Jiao's poison, the forest was still red in color. Back then, the antidote which we had concocted was also working. Then, fourth elder Wen had thought of the other two elders' wounds and returned to the village. He only found out later that the leaves had turned into their current color without warning. The poison of the prohibition spell has also changed, our antidotes are useless now. The people outside can't get in while the people inside can't get out either. One of the fat rainbow brothers moved closer and pointed at the corpses in the forest. His expression was sorrowful, those were all our subordinates. They had been poisoned when they entered the forest and they died on the spot. Even those with profound cultivation bases could not withstand such a malicious poison. After he finished, he paused for a while before he continued, at that time, some of the brothers had lost their temper and hit the forest directly with their magic weapons. However, whether it was the blade's aura, divine glow, magic weapons, or magic powers, they were all corroded immediately once those magic weapons touched the trees. When Leon listened as he spread his telegnosis ability far and wide. He could sense that around the place of birth, life, sickness, and death, other than this group of people, not even an ant could be found. It was also silent within the forest. He was too familiar with the people from the place of birth, life, sickness, and death who were only different from zombies because they still needed to breathe. It was as if nothing under the skies could shock them. The only ones with any signs of life were the two men brought up by wild beasts and Wen Xiaoyi. Wen Leong was delighted to sense Wen Xiaoyi, who was sitting at the entrance as she cleaned her blunderbuss. The Rainbow Brothers looked at his expression and exclaimed in surprise, Your telegnosis ability can penetrate into the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. Wen Leong nodded and asked rhetorically, You guys can't. The fat men nodded in unison. To put it bluntly, the current forest was extremely similar to the gold consuming lair which Wen Leong had been to before. They could not accommodate the telegnosis abilities of cultivators but the latter had the thick force of metal element whereas the forest was enshrouded in poison. However, not only was Wen Liang's telegnosis ability work unaffected inside the forest, it was also clearer than usual. Wen Liang took some light steps as he tottered towards the forest. He felt the poison which enshrouded the surroundings while, at the same time, he secretly urged the poison of life and death to flow swiftly in his body. In an instant, the surroundings quieted down. The two elders who were sparring with curses also shut their mouths in unison. Their eyes bulged as they looked at Wen Leong. After a while, Wen Leong turned and shook his head at the two elders, this poison can't harm me but I can't absorb it either. Fourth elder Wen nodded drilly, he had a hunch in his heart. If Wen Leong could absorb the Ning Jiao's poison, they would not have needed to wait for Gu Xiaojun to dispatch vehicles to send the Ning Jiao's corpse back to the village. 
when Leon would have absorbed the poison when he killed the Ning Jiao at Painting Town. Though the Ning Jiao's poison was strong, after when Leon's poisonous bones had been remolded, his body would only absorb the purest poison from the five elements or the purest Yin corpse poison. Although the Ning Jiao's poison was similar to the poison of life and death, they were not entirely the same. Even the slightest difference would cause both poisons to be incompatible. Moreover, when Leyang's poison of life and death was much more powerful than the Ning Jiao's. Grand Elder Wen sighed, he no longer has the energy to quarrel with Grand Elder Luo, if you can't do it, we can only ask Grand Master Changli to help destroy the prohibition spell. Wen Leong was immune to poison so he could enter and leave this land of poison with ease. However, he could not bring anyone into it nor could he bring anyone out of it. Destroying the prohibition spell means destroying the entire forest to the root. Wen Leong was at a loss. He had first met Wen Xiaoyi here a few years ago and was acknowledged as You've Got Me's master before he was hit by the Yin Qi's poison and the hundred poisons of the Wen family. He had also made his first kill here, experienced great dangers, and tasted the sweetest chocolate under the heavens. Each time he thought of this fiery red enchantment, he could not help but laugh foolishly. He naturally has deep feelings about the Red Leaves Forest. The edge of Fourth Elder Wen's lips twitched in a barely noticeable manner. He made an extremely low and muffled grunt from the depths of his throat as he gazed at the forest in sadness. Grand Elder Luo raised his brows with glee. He wanted to say something when he was pulled back by his brother. At this moment, if he was to provoke Fourth Elder Wen even more, both elders from the two families would really break out into a fight. Wen Leong smiled bitterly and raised his arm before he lightly punched the nearest grey-leafed camphor tree. The straight tree shook slightly but the leaves did not shudder. After this one punch, Wen Leong grunted in puzzlement. The melancholic whitish color had no luster to it. The Ning Jiao sting, which was cultivated within Wen Leong's body, had appeared without warning and stabbed into the tree with a thwack. Grand Elder Wen thought that Wen Leong had summoned the fierce, snake-shaped blade on purpose. He smiled and diverted the topic in an attempt to distract Fourth Elder Wen, how was this sword refined it can't even penetrate a tree? The old man had not finished speaking when his voice was drowned out by loud bangs. A bone snake had suddenly leaped up and extended its body. It then plunged headlong into the forest with a high-spirited howl. The entire grey-leafed forest shuddered. As the leaves rubbed against each other, they released loud, stifling banging noises which resounded under the heavens. After a while, First Uncle was the first to react. He pointed at Wen Leong and laughed bitterly, You're a little too fast, aren't you? Wen Leong was stunned. He then realized that First Uncle and Grand Elder Wen both thought that he wanted to destroy the forest. He hastily smiled bitterly and shook his head, It wasn't me who had summoned them. He then paused and added, I'm badly wounded so how could I have any energy to destroy the forest? The Ning Jiao spike had turned manic when it felt the Ning Jiao's strange poison. It had appeared on its own without being summoned by Wen Leong. What surprised the entire Wen family most was, as the bone snake circled the forest and rubbed against the trees, the grayish-white color of the forest quickly faded away and a faint but flourishing red color began to sprout silently. Chapter 233 the moment when Leong had come into contact with the prohibition spell of the place of birth, life, sickness, and death, the Ning Jiao sting which had been cultivated within his body had appeared of its own accord. It had then summoned the bone snake which had then rushed into the forest and absorbed the prohibition spell's poison its heart's content. The people outside the forest were very shocked while the disciples inside the place of birth, life, sickness, and death were even more shocked. When Xiaoyi waved her blunderbuss mightily as she quickly ran towards the edge of the forest while she was escorted by a few people from the death trademark. She shouted a question in a crisp voice, who's there? A dozen people on the outside shouted in unison, Wen Leong. When Xiaoyi exclaimed in surprise before she turned around and ran back into the house. Her face was blushing tenderly. Wen Leong's face flushed red as well, he never expected his own family members to be so united during this one occasion. As they witnessed the forest's lifeless grayish-white color gradually recover to its originally flourishing fiery red, the happiest of them all was, of course, Grand Elder One. 
His wrinkled face was filled with smiles as he walked up to Wen Leong and asked, What's the matter? Wen Leong did not say anything while Guo Huan laughed and replied, This Ning Jiao has turned into a spirit. Only demons which have turned into spirits could retain their nature within their bones after their flesh and soul have dispersed. This was how the Ning Jiao had manifested itself as the bone snake as it pounced out to absorb its own poison within the forest. Guo Huan explained this in simple terms to the others. He then added as if he had not given his full view, it's not a beast, it's an evil spirit which has refined its demonic primordial energy and obtained divine wisdom. Guo Huan laughed happily as if it was nobody's business. However, Wen Leong and Grand Elder Wen both said in unison, wrong. Of course, Wen Leong dared not steal Fourth Elder Wen's limelight so he immediately took a step back as he smiled and extended a hand to implore his grandfather to speak first. Fourth Elder Wen narrowed his eyes slightly, us old men had mixed eleven types of poison into the Ning Jiao's flesh and blood. That was through nine types of finely refined herbal formulas before we could finally break its poison down. We then planted it into the Red Leaves Forest's prohibition spell. Although it was the Ning Jiao's poison in name, its toxicity has been changed. Fourth Elder Wen's meaning was clear the nature of the poison within the prohibition spell has already changed drastically and it was now a totally different thing compared to before. It was clearly not the Ning Jiao's strange poison anymore but if that was the case, why was the bone snake absorbing it? Guo Huan kept quiet as Wen Leong was hit with a sudden realization. He now understood why the Red Leaves Forest had turned into the Grey Leaves Forest, the poison of life and death can assimilate other poisons. Fourth Elder Wen was immediately stunned. He did not need to wait for Wen Leong to finish what he was saying before he grunted. Fourth Elder Wen's expression was slightly depressed and helpless. He finally understood the reason why the prohibition spell's poison had silently changed. The Ning Jiao's poison was extremely similar to Wen Leong's poison of life and death. The poison of life and death could assimilate other toxins so, naturally, the Ning Jiao's poison would also have this ability though at a much slower rate. Back then, the Wen family elders had joined forces as they used a dozen toxins and refined formulas. Eventually, they managed to crack the Ning Jiao's poison and turned it into a poison which the Wen family could use on the place of birth, life, sickness and death's prohibition spell. However, after some time, the Ning Jiao's poison had gradually assimilated the other poisons. It then returned to its original toxicity after merging with them. That was why the prohibition spell's antidote no longer worked and their own people could not enter nor leave the Red Leaves Forest. However, the bone snake enjoyed this bitter situation as if it was malt sugar as it immediately speared and absorbed the poison. Guo Huan did not understand the art of poison so he put on a show and laughed. He then asked Fourth Elder Wen timidly, Have you understood the situation? Fourth Elder Wen nodded honestly. Wen Leong picked this moment to speak up on something which he felt was not right, Painting Town has been helping Hanba to kill demons and extract their demonic primordial energy. If this Ning Jiao was an evil spirit, it should have been killed by Leong Tian ages ago. The Ning Jiao had been summoned by Leong Tian using witchcraft to defeat the enemy. The relationship between those two was like when Leong and you've got me, a master and his pet. However, Leong Tian was not as close to the Ning Jiao by comparison. Guo Hua sighed secretly, he could at least explain this, firstly, maybe Leong Tian and the Ning Jiao had been on friendly terms and he couldn't bring himself to kill it. Secondly, the Ning Jiao contained the poison of life and death as well as the power of yin and yang within its body. A monster like this is rarely seen. Its demonic primordial energy had been covered up by the poison and could hardly be noticed. Maybe Hanba and the Leong family didn't even know that it had already cultivated itself into a demon. Guo Huan's voice has barely faded away when a young voice sounded from far away and replied him, it's all blind guesses. This was a monster which had cultivated poison, its demonic primordial energy is poisonous primordial energy. Not only could it not be refined, even if you had obtained a demonic primordial energy such as this, you could even kill the wicked soul with poison. A petite figure had accompanied the voice as it swiftly barged into Wen Leong's telegnosis ability. As soon as they heard that voice, its owner has also appeared before them. A little girl, who looked to be about five to six years of age was standing before them. 
She carried a black cloth bundle on her back while a longevity lock weighing half a kilogram hung from her neck, glistening gold under the sunlight. The little girl had red lips and white teeth. Her little face was so delicate that it made the others want to pinch it to see if they could pinch some water out of it. The little girl's long hair was especially striking as it fell straight down like a waterfall to her ankles. Only her garment looked slightly unsuitable for her. Her big, padded jacket was clean but the sleeves almost reached her little calves. The front and rear flaps of the padded jacket had been pulled down, barely revealing her quilted shoes. Otherwise, she would not have been able to walk at all. When Wen Leung was testing out the prohibition spell, Ah Dan had seized the opportunity to occupy the palanquin. Ah Dan, who was seated on the palanquin, cried out in surprise and joy as he leaped down and ran towards the little girl who had suddenly appeared. After a moment's hesitation, he plucked the silver necklace around his neck with great effort and shook it in his left hand. He then tiptoed and pointed vigorously at her longevity lock. The Rainbow Brothers signaled each other and moved slightly. They formed a formation without anyone noticing and inconspicuously surrounded the girl. The little girl was half a head taller than Adan. She was stunned at first but after she understood what he had meant, she pushed him aside. Mumu's body flashed past and she held Adan tightly. She then spat out a statement with some humorous anger, you're not stupid. Adan was still waving his necklace forcefully. He looked upset. This little girl was even more glittering and translucent than the Hua family youths, she looked like a doll which had been sculpted from ice. Though her appearance may be strange, it had not made anyone feel nervous. Wen Leon was uncertain whether he should ask in a sharp voice or inquire softly. He decided to keep up his sick act and asked feebly, Who are you? The little girl looked to be not much older than Ah Dan but her voice was clear and she was eloquent. She was nothing like the silly young boy who could only make babbling sounds, Daddy had sent me to ask you, did something happen on Xiang Lu's part? Although Wen Leong understood a decent amount about the cultivation world and knows that he should not judge a book by its cover when it comes to cultivators. He was still extremely surprised at this little girl who had moved like the wind and knew about the Ning Jiao as well as Xiang Lu. Guo Huan seems to have felt something as well as he asked with interest, what's your name? Who's your dad? Daddy is Hanba. Daddy is known as the fifth brother. I'm Xiao Wu. The little girl's voice was not loud and her tone was young and light. Nevertheless, the words she said were like a heavenly thunder which shocked everyone to their core. Who would have guessed that fifth brother Hanba had a daughter named Xiaowu? Everyone was dumbstruck and they looked at each other for a long while. The seven rainbow brothers, Grand Elder One, the two Luo family elders, Qing Miao's second mother, Ji Fei, Shui Jing, and first uncle Wen Tuanhai almost asked in unison. Who's your mom then? The little girl had made a dexterous entrance, but when she was faced with this bunch of unreliable people, her childish nature appeared instantly. Her features crumpled into a ball on her small face as she bit her lip and answered resentfully, I don't have a mommy, only daddy. Ah Dan had broken free of Mumu's embrace again without anyone noticing. He then stood in front of Xiaowu, radiating unhappiness and outrage as he held the silver necklace out and looked on. He resembled Neza right at this moment. Xiaowu felt aggrieved for a while before she continued, Daddy had been recuperating initially. The wicked soul which he was cultivating had suddenly started behaving restlessly recently. The old man is worried that something bad has happened on the black and white island so he had sent me to find you guys to see if you needed any help. Hanba had worked together with Chanli to trick someone else. Though they had completely eradicated their archenemy, San Wei, Hanba was also badly wounded. He had returned to the corpse forming land to heal his wounds. Before he left, he had said that he would approximately need a hundred and ten years worth of effort before he could completely heal himself. However, recently, the wicked soul within his body has been stirred up wildly. Hanba was worried that Xiang Lu has broken free from the black and white island. Fifth brother Hanba could have be of any help himself so he had sent the little girl in his stead. The little girl Xiaowu had stated her origins clearly and the grievance on her small face was even more apparent now, today was daddy's birthday but I can't even be by his side. As she said this, she removed the bundle on her back and tossed it to Wen Leong spitefully, this is a demon figurine, daddy's token. 
Xiaowu spoke with reason and with the demon figurine which only Guo Huan knows how to make, her identity was unquestionable. However, not one of them could wrap their minds around the idea that Hanba has a daughter. If Xiaowu was a toddler corpse like Adan was before, she would definitely not be so exquisite and bright nor would she be able to talk if she was a girl adopted from the world. Even if she had started her cultivation in the womb, she would not possess such amazing techniques. She had been able to fly into Wen Liang's telegnosis ability and stand in front of the place of birth, life, sickness, and death in the time it took for her to complete a sentence. As for why fifth brother Hanba had never mentioned his daughter Xiaowu before, it was not difficult to understand. These people from the Tuasya sect had rarely come into contact with the fifth brother. Knowing the fifth brother's character, he would also be reticent to talk about such matters with them. Guo Huan chuckled within the jade knife. When Xiaowu had appeared, he had already guessed what was happening. Have you fellows heard that there were some strange plants growing within the major corpse hiding lands such as the Ten Thousand Corpses Tomb, the Thousand Heads Pit, and the Hundred Bones Cave? The Taoist monk Ji Fei nodded from the side, legend has it that these plants have been formed by the foulness of the dead. They're like venomous snakes, the more brilliant the colors, the more dangerous they are. The foulness of the dead are things of extreme mean, how could they bear beautiful flowers? Mumu has returned Adan into her embrace and did not allow him to make a mess anymore. She smiled and shook her head, these flowers are called the young grass. After a person dies, their primordial yang energy will be utterly dispersed. If it was on a vast plain then naturally that would be fine but if the land was special, the primordial yang can't disperse quickly so they would condense and bear these flowers. They're not the fruits of foulness and they won't harm people, on the contrary, they could even save people. When Leung nodded, he remembered seeing such a record inside the birth trademark. Sometimes, within a mass of graves and tombs, magnificent flowers which do not wither with the seasons could occasionally be found. These flowers have amazing detoxifying properties but they would wither the moment they were plucked. Guo Huan laughed and praised, as expected, Mumu knows more. These plants are formed by the yang energy. Think about it, if plants could grow within a thousand-man pit, why couldn't it bear a little girl? The Taoist monk Ji Fei was hit with a sudden realization. Fifth brother Hanba had been badly wounded and had returned to his old lair to recuperate. His corpse forming land would naturally be different. In other people's imaginations, it would be a land covered by white bones. If they were to compare the thousand man pit to Hanba's corpse forming land, it was like the difference between an ashtray and Emperor Qin's mausoleum. It would not be surprising even if a little girl could be formed from that place. The Rainbow's leader was the head of the world sect so his knowledge was naturally better than Ji Fei and Shui Jing's. He frowned as he heard Guo Huan's words, when a person dies, not only will they release primordial yang energy, foulness will also be released. They would be utterly negated before they spilled out of the inner and outer coffins. I've also heard of the yang grass before but these objects are too rare, only one or two yang grass will be formed when a thousand people have died peacefully on a yang gathering land. It's already hard to ask for two drops of water, how could they gather and form a great lake? It was unsure whether it was Adan's tireless disturbance or because a huge group of people were discussing her origins in front of her, Xiaowu's expression has turned gloomy. She pouted and asked them, the initiator of evil will have no descendants, have you heard of these eight words before? The others were puzzled and only Guo Huan laughed, so that's how it is. I get it now. I was wondering how such a coincidence could exist under the heavens. A thousand years ago, the figurines used by nobility during their funerals were not clay figurines of warriors and horses but had been made out of real human beings who were then buried with the high nobles. That was why Confucius had cursed the person who had invented this wicked act to have no descendants. Guo Huan continued to explain to Wen Leong, at first, making figurines out of living human beings was regarded as a magic art. The foulness released by the dead would be fully absorbed by the figurine. After some time, when the magic art has taken shape, the corpse figurine would then turn into a figurine warrior which guarded the grave although it has no magic powers, it has incredible strength. Their bodies were tough and they know no pain nor do they fear death. It was not difficult to handle one or two of them but when it was a number so great that they covered the heavens and earth, even the gods would avoid them. 
At this moment, the rainbow's leader's face lit up with sudden realization, the foulness of the dead were sucked away by the figurine and the primordial yang energy could also not be dispersed within the sealed figurine pit. In the end it had given birth to Xiaowu. The other rainbow brothers looked at each other before they huddled together and muttered amongst themselves, what are the vilest methods that we have in our practice? Stealing souls to refine streamers, with a moon streamer, break the helpless bridge. Invoke a ghoul with a blood pool, let the blood pool sparkle for a hundred years, five ghouls kill men softly. Hide the corpse to forge swords, conceive mischief, break bones to gain a zombie it's uncountable. The rainbow's fat men all said a few sentences before keeping their mouths shut in the end. They all looked dejected. The rainbow's leader smiled bitterly and shook his head as he said to Wen Leong, these methods of ours, when compared to the ancient people who made figurines, all look like child's play. Guo Huan snorted, you guys are not bad already. All of these magic arts could easily take a hundred or a thousand lives. After he had finished speaking, he ignored the rainbow brothers and changed into a milder tone as he asked Xiaowu, if you're a child born from a figurine pit, why do you call Hanbu your dad? From what I can see, that old zombie has some good fortune in him to have adopted such an intelligent child. He then added to complete his own views, it's even his birthday today, a zombie, celebrating his birthday. The little girl Xiaowu giggled. She puffed her chest out and said proudly, it's true that I was born from a figurine pit but the figurine pit had been dug by my daddy and he had made all the figurines inside. In the end, the one who had brought me back to life was also that old man. If he's not my daddy, then who is? During those ancient times, Tuo Xie and his brothers had very different personalities. Big brother Lu Luo and little brother Tuo Xie had some semblance of being erudite persons while second brother Mi Su who was steeped in the art of corpses had always envied the riches of this world. Fifth brother Hamba too had inherited his master's will so it was in his nature to love gold and silver. The three strange men had cultivated on their own after they had accomplished their own methods of practice. Second brother Mi Su had helped the high nobles to refine living figurines. Not only was he able to improve his cultivation base, he does not have to run around by himself to find someone to kill and he could have all the money and women he wanted. He could hit many birds with just one stone so he had been happy to do it. It was precisely because Mi Su knew how to use his art flexibly that he eventually figured out a way of killing demons to extract their demonic primordial energy. Cultivate a demon figurine within a corpse and finally sealed the wicked soul within Hanba's body and completed Grand Master Tuasye's request. It was a turbulent time for the Western Han Dynasty 2000 years ago. To obtain longevity, the nobles had secretly continued the art of making live figurines which had been abandoned for hundreds of years. It was a golden opportunity for Grand Master Misu to show his capabilities. At that time, fifth brother Hanba had not obtained his spiritual intelligence yet, he was only a thousand-year-old zombie king who only knew how to respond to his master's commands. Basically, his job had been to deal with all the heavy manual labor. There was an especially crucial step, a small hole must be bored between the corpse figurine's brows to let the primordial yang energy escape. This step must be carried out by the zombie king Hanba to have an effect. Fifth brother Hanba had slept for a thousand years after he started to cultivate demonic primordial energy. His whereabouts was the largest figurine pit which Misu had left behind. After he had woken up, he noticed with surprise that the primordial yang energy within the figurine pit had condensed silently without anyone noticing and formed the shape of a human. Another few hundred years passed before it finally condensed into the little girl Xiaowu. However, at that moment, Xiaowu only had yang energy. Although she was alive, she could only sleep and not wake. She was completely opposite to a zombie, the little girl had a consciousness. She had dreams but she could never wake up while the latter could move but had no instincts or consciousness. The corpse's energy within the demon figurine was greatly detrimental to the wicked soul but it was a golden remedy for Xiaowu to mediate her yin and yang energies. Hanba used a few demon figurines which had been tainted with corpse's energy. Under the nourishment of demonic primordial energy in corpse's energy, the little girl Xiaowu's yin and yang finally complemented each other, causing her primordial soul to condense and awaken. Xiaowu had been born from the condensation of yang energy so she was already alive. 
After she had been awakened by the corpse figurines, she would not incur a divine punishment as Adan had. After she had woken up, she had naturally taken fifth brother Hanba as her father. After the little girl Xiaowu had woken up, she had gone around to play. However, since her life had been condensed from primordial young energy, she had the playfulness of a child but not the foulness of a zombie. She made no mischief and only studied under Lei Feng thus her name was not widely known at this point in time, Hanba had returned to the figurine pit to tend to his wounds and Xiaowu had also returned at the same time. She was then dispatched by the fifth brother to the Nine Peaks Mountain. After Xiaowu had finished speaking, she patted her padded jacket with utmost satisfaction, this is also a gift from daddy. The Rainbow Brothers were dumbstruck as they listened. They were stunned for a moment as they all looked at Wen Leong and the group of Tuasia disciples before bowing with cupped fists. They muttered endlessly as they smiled, we're impressed, we're impressed. We had thought that we were the evil ones but we now know that compared to the ancestors of your family, we're not even little lambs. Guo Huan laughed, lambs eat grass and wolves eat lambs, that's how it always has been. It was you guys who had wanted to differentiate between good and evil no matter what. What about the wolf? Should they be categorized into good wolves and bad wolves? The rainbow's leader was not a good person himself but he could not hold himself back and retorted, wolves do not kill wolves. To the wolf, every wolf under the heavens are good wolves. Men are different, they kill their own kind. He had not finished speaking when Guo Huan cut him short rigidly, nonsense. Do you think that the likes of you can be considered the same as Misu and Tuasye? It's the survival of the fittest in the world. Before Misu, what difference did you have with wolves, lambs, grasses, and ants? To the ants, you're a god but isn't Misu a god in your eyes as well? If a god wants to kill you, it's enough for you to complain a little, there's no need to be resentful. The rainbow's leader naturally could not accept Guo Huan's demonic words. He grinned with rage and cursed, M.M. You had also been killed by Misu so it also counts that a god had wanted to kill you. Haven't you been complaining all these years? Guo Huan was filled with rage. He immediately started to calculate if he would be done for if he was to cast the demon body-breaking spell once more. Wen Leon quickly stepped in and interrupted their quarrel. The bone snake was still slithering amongst the branches and was absorbing the Ning Jiao's poison continuously. The grayish-white leaves had turned red in layers and gave the onlookers an unspeakable comfort just looking at them. By the looks of things, in no time at all, the poison in the prohibition spell should be completely drained. Relief was written all over Fourth Elder Wen's old face. At least the prohibition spell of the place of birth, life, sickness, and death does not need to be destroyed while in his custody. Wen Tuanhai was not as moved as the old man as he secretly pondered whether they should have broken the Ning Jiao's poison after all. In the end, Wen Leon was the one who had reaped all the benefits. Guo Huan uttered something about beating up the Rainbow Brothers after he finds his split body in contempt before he finally ignored them. He continued to ask the little girl Xiaowu, do you know about the Ning Jiao? Xiaowu nodded. She pouted again out of habit as if the Ning Jiao was nothing special, this snake was originally a demon. After it was exorcised by Daddy in Painting Town, they discovered that they could not refine its demonic primordial energy so they had let it go. The snake got its life back and would occasionally lend Painting Town a helping hand. Otherwise, the snake wouldn't be this obedient just because of those few toads, it even went and helped Painting Town fight. With the Ning Jiao's abilities, it could eat a toad of any size of its liking. Leon Tian's art of witchcraft was already dwindling with his own abilities, if he had wanted to direct such a powerful demon around, it would have been slightly beyond his powers. Wen Leon nodded in sudden realization. He then returned the topic to when Xiaowu had first appeared, you had said that demonic primordial energy is poisonous primordial energy. How do you explain this? These poisonous beasts had refined their power of poison into demonic primordial energy. They had then used that to refine their primordial spirit and obtain spiritual intelligence. However, the Ning Jiao's poison has some special properties Yin and Yang energies had intertwined to form chaos and the primordial spirit which had been refined could not be separated from it. It was one with the poison of Yin and Yang within its body. 
Its poison was its demonic primordial energy while its demonic primordial energy was its poison. It could not be separated nor could it be refined. Wen Liang's expression was strange and he could not help but mutter, why did it have to refine its power of poison into life vitality? The Ning Jiao's poison was extremely potent and its characteristics were also similar to his poison of life and death. If the Ning Jiao was the second most venomous being in the world, only Wen Liang would dare to call himself the first. With such a powerful and domineering power of poison, it was much more powerful than a cultivator's life vitality. It was apparent from the Red Leaves Forest's prohibition spell that the members of the world sect had lost many lives but they had still been unable to pass through the forest. The life vitality which cultivators had gone through so much pain to refine was as fragile as a soap bubble when faced with the Ning Jiao's poison. However, the Ning Jiao had refined part of its power of poison into life vitality. It was like it had refined a handgun into a knife. No matter how one looked at it, it was not even a particularly good knife, more like a kitchen knife. Guo Huan understood his thoughts and scolded Wen Liang rigidly, Stupid young lad, do you think that the Ning Jiao has your good fortune? It was a beast so if it wanted to obtain spiritual intelligence and transcend into a demon, there was no other way than refining its own demonic primordial energy. Otherwise, even if its power of poison could destroy the world, it was only still a beast in the end. It would be the same as ordinary zombies with only its instincts but not spiritual intelligence. Mankind was the soul of the universe. The road to heaven's cultivation for a human was much smoother than that of a beast's. When Leong had been born with spiritual intelligence. The power of poison within his body was, in essence, his life vitality. The other cultivators had absorbed the spiritual primordial energy of heaven and earth before refining it into their own life vitality whereas when Leong had strengthened his body and heightened his powers by absorbing poison. However, the Ning Jiao could only refine its power of poison into life vitality first before it could refine it into its primordial spirit and obtain its spiritual intelligence before it could advance in its cultivation. Only then could it turn into a demon. Whether it was the peerless great demons like Chang Li or Guo Huan or ordinary demons like Patu, Bu Lu, and Shan Duan. On the first stage where they had cultivated their form, they had lost a great amount of strength before they could obtain their spiritual intelligence. Hence, in normal circumstances, when an evil demon turned into an evil spirit, not only would its powers not increase compared to before, it would greatly decrease instead. Wen Liang nodded but only comprehended half of what had been said. He at least understood that he could not compare himself to a demon's standards. After some time, amidst a long joyful howl and the fluttering of shaking leaves, the forest outside the place of birth, life, sickness, and death was completely restored its enchanting crimson look. Every bit of the Ning Jiao's poison has been completely absorbed by the bone snake. The bone snake was also no longer just a skeleton, it was now enshrouded in a layer of substantial grey mist. In a casual glance, it looked almost like the former Ning Jiao in life. However, the snake knife, Ning Jiao's sting, had not changed much. Its only change was the mottled black and white spots which had appeared on the blade. It rang cheerfully with the bone snake before it returned to Wen Liang's body. Even a person who knows nothing about cultivation understood that Wen Liang had gained the benefits again this time. The huge, strange demon Ning Jiao, from its blood, flesh, poison to its bones and sting, even its skin, scales, and armor had been turned into Wen Liang's magic weapon. The good hands of the death trademark who had followed them then entered the forest to test things out. The people outside the Wen family understood that this was a crucial land for the Wen family so nobody else had dared to barge in uninvited. Grand Elder Wen was frank and he waved at the others, come in. Fourth Elder Wen added coldly, after you enter, listen to my orders. Those who wander will die for nothing. The little girl Xiaowu furrowed her brows. She raised her chin and asked them, what is this place? Your ancestral grave. She was a little demon who had been brought to life from the land of corpses so she was more sensitive towards corpses than Ah Dan ever was. After the barrier of the Ning Jiao's poison had disappeared, she immediately noticed that there were many corpses which had been dead for a long time inside the forest. Grand Elder Wen snorted, you can put it that way. The ancestors of the Wen family were well accomplished in the art of poison and their bodies do not rot or decay. 
If they were buried, not even a blade of grass could grow in the perimeter of a few kilometers. The corpses of these when family ancestors had been kept inside the life trademark. At normal times, they were suppressed by medicinal herbs to prevent the poison from dispersing. The little girl exclaimed and smiled, no wonder there are so many bodies under the ground. She had not finished speaking when fourth elder Wen suddenly squalled. He gave an order impolitely to the others, stop. Other than the Wen family members, no one is to enter. His voice has barely faded away when everyone Butsao disciple rushed into the forest. Wen Leong no longer played his wounded act anymore as he carried the little girl Xiaowu and followed closely behind his two grandfathers. It was true that countless corpses of their ancestors had been kept in the place of birth, life, sickness, and death but none of them had ever been buried underground. Chapter 234 Grand Elder Wen was indeed a man of great experience. When he saw that the almost dead Wen Leong had suddenly recovered his full strength, he was only slightly stunned before he asked, was it to test 19? Grand Master Chongli had not gone away to recuperate. Wen Leong nodded hastily to his inquiry. The group passed through the forest and arrived at the place of birth, life, sickness, and death in the blink of an eye. A few capable and experienced death trademark disciples immediately came over to welcome them. These men were the elites of the death trademark and had been left behind in the Red Leaves Forest by Fourth Elder Wen. They were in charge of supervising and controlling the people of the other trademarks and to prevent Wei Mo's martial uncle from escaping. The Wen family were extremely secretive in their investigation concerning the cultivator who was hiding within the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. Other than these trusted death trademark good hands, nobody within the place of birth, life, sickness, and death knew about that matter. The death trademark's leader, who was standing guard within the place of birth, life, sickness, and death, nodded slightly at the group. His gesture meant that every disciple of the place of birth, life, sickness, and death was present and no one had escaped. Fourth Elder Wen's voice was cold and stern, nobody moves until I tell them to. The old man then glanced at Wen Leong. Wen Leong hastily nodded. His telegnosis ability was able to firmly cover the entire area of the Red Leaves Forest which was not that large to begin with. Unless Wei Mo's martial uncle who was hiding within the place of birth, life, sickness, and death had abilities like Chang Li or the Cone Nail, he could not escape from the Red Leaves Forest without Wen Leong noticing. At this moment, if anyone was to make any suspicious movements, there was no need for the Rainbow Brothers to confirm it, it would definitely be from that obscure cultivator. Wen Leong put the little girl down and asked her in a gentle voice, where are the corpses? The ones buried underground. Before Xiao Wu could reply him, the death trademark disciples who had been in charge of sealing the wooden houses in the place of birth, life, sickness, and death suddenly yelled in surprise. Fourth Elder Wen ruled with an iron hand and the death trademark's good hands were well trained. Other than Wen Buzwa who loves his mouth more than his life, the other disciples would not even bat an eyelid even if they were to see their own eyeballs fall on the ground. However, those screams were now filled with terror. At least half of the corpses inside the life trademark had leaped up. There were fake corpses inside the life trademark. Although the movements of the zombies were rigid, they were much faster than an ordinary person. They immediately swarmed like bees out of the wooden house. Wen Leung's body flashed as he went forward to meet them but the moment his fist was about to land on the zombies, he suddenly squalled. He then somersaulted and returned to the group before he asked with fright and anger, what's the meaning of this? The zombies which had leaped out of the life trademark, whether it was their appearance, body figure, or their attire, it clearly showed the others that they were all ancestors from the Wen family. Even if Wen Leung had eaten the gallbladder of a leopard, he dared not attack his own ancestors. The people of the Wen family were surprised and angered. They gritted their teeth until they made grinding noises but they dared not act rashly as they were worried about profaning their ancestors. Only the little girl Xiaowu sneered. Her body swayed and she pounced without hesitation like an agile young leopard towards the zombies who were running towards the Wen family disciples. Grand Elder Wen and Fourth Elder Wen turned pale with fear. They then growled in unison, no. Wen Leong did not need to be ordered as he leaped again. He intercepted the little girl Xiaowu in mid-air and the duo dropped to the ground at the same time. 
when Leong had a shocked expression. He staggered back several steps before he managed to regain his balance. He had guessed that Xiaowu has unique skills or else Hanba would not have sent her to the Nine Peaks Mountain but he never expected this little girl to be this powerful. In that short space of time, the two of them had exchanged dozens of blows. When Leon, who had not used the Ning Jiao's sting and the Ning Jiao's armor but had relied solely on the faulty punch, could not gain the upper hand. When Leon had landed shakily but Xiao Wu also fared no better. A pretty red color like dripping blood flashed across her snow-white delicate face. She bit her lip and managed to regain her footing. Although her voice was young, it was domineering as she bellowed sharply, you ungrateful wretch, again. She then flipped her long hair and ignored the zombies as she gritted her teeth and pounced towards Wen Leong. Even if their ancestors have truly been turned into zombies, the Wen Butsao disciples could not allow anyone else to lay their hands on them. Wen Leong was of the same thought. With a muffled grunt, he summoned the Ning Jiao's armor to protect himself. He did not show any weakness as he met the little girl Xiaowu in combat. Just as the two were about to clash, a light laughter which was pleasing to the ear suddenly rang out. Chang Li, who was covered in fragrance, had appeared in the place of birth, life, sickness, and death from out of the blue. Her movements were as fast as lightning as she ran in a circle around the zombies and sealed all of them within it. She then pulled the two people who were about to brawl apart. Her palms were like white jade as one of them pressed the little girl's head while the other pushed Wen Liang's chest as she laughed, don't fight yet, don't fight yet. Please explain everything first. When the group of Wen Butsao disciples saw that Grand Master Chang Li had appeared and that the zombies were temporarily under control, they could not help but sigh in relief. Xiao Wu struggled a few times but she could not get past Chang Li's palm. She then stopped resentfully and spoke spitefully to Wen Liang, indiscriminate fellow. These aren't zombies at all. They aren't even dead men. I was born in a corpse pit, can they deceive me? Wen Leung exclaimed in understanding but Chang Li was slightly confused. A cute question mark was pressed between her brows. She squatted down and asked Xiao Wu with a smile, what do you mean? Xiao Wu had only wanted to help but she was then wrongly stopped by Wen Leung. She had wanted to attack him out of rage. Now that Chang Li was willing to hear her case and that she was also as beautiful as a fairy, Xiao Wu felt an indescribable friendliness and love when she looked at her. The resentment quickly surged up into her little face and a few unconcealable sobs were heard in her tone as she said, He's done me wrong. These things aren't fake corpses, nor are they zombies. When she saw that Xiao Wu's eyes were red, Chang Li's own eyes also reddened. She nodded strongly and glared at Wen Leong. Wen Leong quickly hid behind Grand Elder Wen. Xiao Wu, upon obtaining Chang Li's support, also increased her volume, they'll know if they had allowed me to kill one. These dirty things are under the art of corpse, that's why they've become what they are now. The expressions of the two when elders changed. They were afraid that Chang Li would agree to Xiao Wu's request. It was not that they did not believe Xiao Wu's words but they dared not gamble with the bodies of their ancestors. The way they saw it, although the ancestors' fake corpses were frightening, it does not seem to be anything serious. They would continue to tend to the dead which were lying down on the ground while the fake corpses could run around the world and they would not mind, they just could not let anyone harm them. As expected, Chang Li did not even look at the expressions of the Wen family elders. She nodded gracefully and said to Xiao Wu with a smile, then you go and try but if you're wrong, I'll have to tear you apart and offer you up as a memorial for the dead of the Wen family. Even Hanba can't protect you then. Chang Li's tone was mild and gentle. To the casual listener, it sounded like a big sister who was trying to persuade a little child to eat an apple. Xiao Wu was startled and jumped a little, her reaction was somewhat delayed. She now understands that Chang Li was not some goddess who had come down to earth, she was at most a demon lady or a flying immortal. Xiao Wu gritted her teeth as she nodded. She then quickly flew towards the nearest zombie. Her dexterous fingers were like a chisel as they poked between the zombie's brows, sinking in until her fingers could not be seen at all. The zombie howled suddenly, its body shuddered and almost convulsed into a ball. 
After a brief moment, a puff of black smoke dispersed and left only a bone and the remains of a talisman which had lost its effect on the ground. Chang Li exclaimed in surprise. With her cultivation base, ordinary magic spells could not escape from her telegnosis ability. However, a magic trick like this which turned a bone into a corpse was so dishonest that she had not been able to notice it beforehand. Also, although this kind of magic was peculiar, it has no practical use in combat. Even for the likes of Ji Fei and Shui Jing, when faced with these zombies, they could kill many of them with a single strike of their magic powers. Xiao Wu finally proved her good intentions. She pouted her little red lips and mumbled as she pointed at the other zombies that were trapped by Chang Li, these zombies are all like that. They're all made from human bones, they're not their ancestors at all. The faces of the two Wen family elders who were present were so cold that they almost froze over. First uncle Wen Tuanhai was no better. He braced his fists until his knuckles cracked as he asked with rage, where are the ancestors' bodies then? The bodies which had been kept within the life trademark had all turned into bones. Therefore, where had the undecayed bodies of their ancestors gone? Xiao Wu pointed at an empty patch of land at the place of birth, life, sickness, and death's edge. Fourth Elder Wen growled as he brought some men and rushed to the site. They started to dig around carefully. After a short moment, a hysterical and sorrowful wail rose from Fourth Elder Wen's mouth. The expressions of all the Wen Butsao disciples including Wen Leon also changed instantly. The corpses buried in the ground were rigid and ice cold but the Wen family disciples could easily recognize them as their ancestors based on their attire. The corpse pit had been surrounded with magic talismans to seal the poison within the corpses of the Wen Butsao's ancestors. The bodies had been switched into an art of devilry refined by bones while the real bodies had been buried underground ground. Needless to say, the faces of the Wen Butsao had been rubbed in the dirt this time. Fourth Elder Wen's eyes were bloodshot as his whole body shuddered. Grand Elder Wen had been his brother for a lifetime so he immediately knew what his youngest brother wanted to do. He shouted fiercely and mercilessly hit Fourth Elder Wen on the head. If you want to apologize to the ancestors, you should find the culprit first. After you have butchered that shoal, second brother, third brother and I would give you your due beating, you little starved. As the master of the place of birth, life, sickness, and death, Fourth Elder Wen was arrogant and aloof. Before this, it would not have occurred even in his wildest dreams that half of the ancestors' bodies in the life trademark would be switched by someone else. He felt so dejected that he was about to explode. He stared at Grand Elder Wen with bloodshot eyes as his mouth made chattering sounds, gnashing his own teeth until they shattered. The teeth fragments broke his skin and flesh. A thin strip of magenta-colored blood trickled in a crooked pattern down the edge of Fourth Elder Wen's lips. There was a soft noise of a swinging hinge and Wen Xiaoyi ran over quickly. She pulled on Fourth Elder Wen's hand and her big eyes were full to the brim with tears. She saw that Fourth Elder Wen was torn by grief so she had no time to bother about the rule of not being able to see Wen Leung. Grand Elder Wen did not reprimand her either. Instead, he smiled at the young lady. The Wen family have a lot of rules but each generation of elders understood that the biggest rule amongst the Wen Butsao was the mutual affection within the family. In the eyes of the Wen Butsao, there were no worlds, there were no other people, nor was there any right or wrong there was only affinity to their own family. At this moment, the door hinge creaked again. An old man poked his head out timidly as bewilderment and terror flickered within his murky eyes. A death trademark's elite yelled, Wen Shulin, return. He was cut short by Fourth Elder Wen's sharp voice, silence. Almost at the same time, Grand Elder Wen's gaze also turned sharp. Like a malicious knife, it mercilessly stabbed into the old face beside the wooden door as he asked in a low voice, It was you? Wen Leon could not help but exchange a glance with Wen Xiaoyi. The eyes of the young couple were flickering with bewilderment. Within the place of birth, life, sickness, and death, other than Fourth Elder Wen, Wen Xiaoyi and the two men who had been brought up by wild beasts, the only other person that Wen Leong had some impression of was this old man. He was the one who had given Wen Xiaoyi the blunderbuss and was the one who had fainted out of shock when he had seen the fake corpses of the eight ancestral generations. It was Wen Shulin of the life trademark. 
The fake zombies have come from the morgues of the life trademark but the eight ancestral generations had been real. When Shulin's voice does not sound like a cultivator's. Instead, his voice was very weak. It was unknown whether it was because of his advanced age or if it was out of fear, his hoarse voice shook endlessly as he said. I, I haven't profaned the ancestors of your family I've just asked them to change their place, rest rest in peace underground. Fourth Elder Wen did not wait for him to finish before he suddenly yelled, under your f***ing ground. He was like an angry dried bat as he howled shrilly and pounced forward. Grand Elder Wen also leaped and followed behind his younger brother. If it had not been for Shui Jing's mountain-searching spell which had unintentionally discovered the hidden obscure cultivator or the person in the place of birth, life, sickness, and death who had changed the setting of the Wen village thirty years ago. The elders of the Wen family would never have thought that Wen Shu Lin, who looked as if he would die at any moment, was the sought-after obscure cultivator from the heaven-telling sect. As the other party was an obscure cultivator, Wen Leong was worried that fourth elder Wen would suffer a loss so he prepared to rush forward. However, Chang Li unexpectedly stopped him. She shook her head and said in a low voice, Don't worry, he has no life vitality. Wen Leong knitted his brows. Even Wei Emo knows how to cultivate qi, he also had a nimble body and sturdy bones but Wen Shu Lin does not even have an ounce of cultivation base. At this time, Fourth Elder Wen has pounced forth like a strong wind as he raised his fist and punched firmly on Wen Shulin's face. If it had not been for Grand Elder Wen who reminded him just in time not to kill Wen Shulin, Fourth Elder Wen would not have reduced the strength of his punch to half and would have shattered Wen Shulin's head in one hit. Just as Chang Li had said, Wen Shulin could not evade that attack. Fourth Elder Wen's punch landed squarely on him and he squalled as he somersaulted into the house. The two Wen family elders also rushed into the house after him. A series of thumping sounds soon mingled into a mess. At first, they could hear someone begging for mercy but after that, there was only yelling. In the end, only Grand Elder Wen's voice was heard as he said, Poison him, poison him, just don't kill him. Suddenly, a great sound which was loud enough to shake the heavens came from Wen Shulin's mouth. The entire Red Leaves forest then quieted down. Wen Xiaoyi had hidden behind Wen Leong all this while. She poked her head out from behind him and carefully scrutinized Wen Shulin's rickety wooden house. After a brief moment, Grand Elder Wen's voice rang out again, I'll give him the antidote now, we'll continue after he wakes up. They heard Wen Shulin sigh as he slowly woke up. Fourth Elder Wen then snorted and there were sounds of him administering the poison. Wen Shulin then squalled again before he fainted which was soon followed by the sound of Grand Elder Wen detoxifying him using the bamboo needles. These sounds were repeated in that order over and over again. The Wen family disciples outside the house were utterly quiet, nobody dared to speak. The little girl Xiaowu had initially listened with interest but she decided to cover her ears soon after. She frowned as she sat on the side and did not dare to listen to this any longer. The three old men had tussled for almost four hours before Grand Elder Wen and Fourth Elder Wen towed Wen Shu Lin out with satisfied looks on their faces. Fourth Elder Wen's expression was much better but Wen Shu Lin's complexion was uglier than death. Chang Li looked at Wen Shu Lin with interest, you're the martial uncle of Wei Mo from Heaven Telling Sect. You can predict everything, even the world situation. Wen Shu Lin only has half his life left. He managed a nod, that's right. I'm from the heaven-telling sect. Chang Li was still all smiles when she suddenly flashed beside Wen Shu Lin. She then reached out and mercilessly plucked Wen Shu Lin's nose. Wen Shu Lin's body jumped suddenly and he squalled like a pig being butchered. Wen Xiaoyi also tossed her blunderbuss casually on the ground and said with contempt, an object given by a person who has profaned the ancestors' bodies, I don't want it. She then stomped on it twice with her foot before Wen Leong hastily pulled her away. He had clearly seen with his telegnosis ability just now that Wen Xiaoyi's blunderbuss was filled with thunder's heart sand. It was one thing to not want the blunderbuss but it was another thing if the blunderbuss had misfired. Chang Li's expression was slightly gloomy, I thought you've disguised yourself. Your nose is real. She threw the nose in her hand away as she said that. She then stretched out two spring onion-like fingers and slightly furrowed her brows, as if she was thinking whether she should go for the eyes or the mouth. 
When Xu Lin finally understood that a single hair from this beautiful lady in front of him was a thousand times more merciless than the fierce-looking master of the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. He pressed a hand against his nose and his body shuddered as he tried to defend himself weakly, I do not dare to profane the bodies of the one ancestors. I took a bath and burned incense for prayers each time before I moved them. There was a certain gloominess in Chang Li's expression as if when Xu Lin does not understand her at all, I'm not a blind person, of course I can see that those corpses were all protected by magic. Chang Li was halfway through her sentence when she suddenly changed her tone. She summoned a sharpness which covered the heavens out of nowhere and said, word by word, in a low voice, I'm blaming you because you clearly knew that you were a bane and there would be no tranquility wherever you are. However, before you hid within Red Leaves Forest, you had leaked the information to others. Every single life the one family had lost at the hands of the Sun Dynasty Palace are on your head. You're lucky, not many people know that you're hiding on the Nine Peaks Mountain. If Xiang Lu was to discover that you're on Nine Peaks Mountain, do you think that there would still be anyone left alive here? Wen Leong was initially uncomfortable with Chang Li's violent methods but after he heard her words, he also narrowed his eyes slightly. However, Wen Leong was surprised when Grand Elder Wen lifted his arm and stopped Chang Li, although he was the initiator of evil, an unintended fault does not warrant his death. Besides, the Sun Dynasty Palace is done for and the grudges of those disciples have already made you have mercy. Chang Li frowned as she glanced at Grand Elder Wen. She then curled her lips, why are all his descendant disciples like this, why is there a need to be so particular about these matters? She then paused for a moment before her tone regained its usual playfulness, I was trying to see if he had disguised himself by tearing off his nose she looked at Wen Shu Lin, are you truly Wei Mo's martial uncle? Wen Shu Lin was nodding when he noticed that Chang Li's bright eyes had locked onto his ears. He was intelligent enough and he made no more silly mistakes as he hastily squalled, this is a magic art, the nose is still my nose, only its shape has been changed. Even if you were to tear my entire face off, it wouldn't be of any use. Everyone present was well versed with the cultivation world, even when Leong understood that Wen Shu Lin was an important person to their cause. The fewer people know of him the better. Although the seven fat men were outside the forest, it would be best if they did not know too much as well. Now that when Shu Lin was in front of their eyes, there must be some other way to examine him. It was at this moment that Wen Tuanhai suddenly laughed, the way I see it, this Wen Shu Lin is a fake. Wei Mo's martial uncle was said to be able to predict the world situations. If that's true, how could he not foresee that such a great calamity was upon him? Moreover, this cultivator is no better than an ordinary person. That's right, he had not foreseen that misfortune would befall his nose. Chang Li was all smiles. She tilted her head as she scrutinized Wen Shulin's facial features, hurry, you better do a telling now. Otherwise, I wonder if your next unlucky facial feature is your left eye or your right ear. Wen Shulin hastily pled innocence in a loud voice, telling the world situation isn't what you guys think. He then paused without even thinking of covering his nose this time. He was so anxious that he only rubbed his palms together. He was worried that his ear would suffer if he did not explain himself clearly, for example, if you want me to foretell what Zhang Sanjia would eat today, you must bring me to Zhang Sanjia's kitchen first. Even if I was to go to his kitchen, I might not be able to tell what's for dinner, I might only be able to tell what place this kitchen was a hundred years ago, how many people had died here or when this kitchen will collapse. Wen Leong and Chang Li exchanged a strange look. Wen Leong then asked Wen Shu Lin probingly, you mean that you can't foretell anything that you want to foretell but you can only start telling with what you have in front of you? Also, you can't say for sure beforehand what you would be able to tell from it. Wen Shu Lin saw that he had understood and heaved a relieved sigh. He wiped the abundant blood on his face as he said, if I'm in the kitchen, the things I can tell would mostly be connected to the kitchen. However, as for the directions of the things I'll be able to foretell, I don't know that myself. When Leon shook his head, your martial nephew Wei Mo had helped me by foretelling the route to exit the mountain while we were at the mountainside. It's like setting a question first before guessing the answer. Guo Huan also chimed in, they even found me while they were at it. Could it be that your cultivation base is inferior to Wei Mo's? When Shu Lin frowned in confusion. 
He first asked about the process of how Wen Leong had dug through the mountain with Wei Mo's help. His face then showed a disdainful expression and he wanted to snort but he suddenly realized that his nose had disappeared and he could not snort, that's him being lucky. He wanted to foretell the way out of the mountainside but he foretold the other that the other god it was obvious that he had made some deviations. Also, you dug your way out but how do you know that it's the shortest route? You can go back and measure it. If that's the shortest route, I'll cut my head off to serve as your toilet bowl. As he said this, when Shulin's temper as an obscure cultivator rose up again, with Wei Mo's abilities, what can he foretell? I can tell without you telling me he must have set a clear goal first before he started his calculations on what he wants to foretell. If the world situations could be calculated like that then something must be wrong. Nothing can deceive the heaven-telling sect. If he could calculate that, then he's a living god. Chang Li was bored of all this listening and waved an arm in front of Wen Shu Lin to cut him short. Wen Shu Lin was so frightened that he fell to the ground. Chang Li was amused by him and chuckled, enough of this nonsense. First, you do a telling for me. If it's accurate, you can then keep your ear. Chapter, 235 Wen Shu Lin did not talk nonsense either. He got back on his feet and measured the distance between him and Chan Li's face with his hands. He then scrutinized her gaze and his face slowly filled with concentration. Finally, he scribbled some equations on the ground and muttered to himself for some time. After a long while, he heaved a sigh and confidently said, Pickle jar. Unexpectedly, Chan Li glared at him, You have to do a telling for even this. Everyone under the heavens knows that. Foretell something that only I know. When Shulin's face was full of sorrow as he muttered softly, I don't even know what I'll be able to foretell beforehand. Although he had said this, he dared not stay idle as he started calculating again. This time, he got the results of the ancient cave the third time was Chilian Mountain's exquisite ice. The fourth, the fifth until when it was indiscernible whether it was the ninth or the tenth time, when Shulin carefully said two numbers, 130,088. Chang Li, who was covering her mouth as she yawned, was suddenly stunned. She cheered as she nodded, not bad. That's more like it. She then waved her wrist in front of Wen Leong. A beautiful golden bracelet shone brightly on her wrist under the mottled sunlight in the red leaves forest, dazzling Wen Leong's eyes. Grand Elder Wen was astounded, a bracelet? Just this little bit of gold is that expensive? Chang Li made a, you don't know anything and I am too lazy to explain it to you, face. She then reached out and plucked the jade knife from Wen Liang's chest. She waved it in front of Wen Shu Lin as she challenged, this time, calculate about this. Wen Shu Lin did not take too much time before he said confidently, Mount Hua. Guo Huan did not understand what was happening when Chang Li nodded with a smile, that's right, this old demon's immortal's cave is on Mount Hua. Wen Tuanhai frowned from the side as he pointed at Wen Shulin and scolded, Stop being deliberately mystifying. If you had derived that Guo Huan's immortal's cave is on Mount Hua, then just say so. You only said two words, Mount Hua, do you truly take yourself as a blind teller who cherishes every word as if it was gold? Wen Shulin had no nose but that did not stop him from making an expression as if he had suffered the utmost outrage, that's how I calculate. If I'm calculating about the jade knife, then the thing which I can tell will definitely be connected to the jade knife somehow. However, as for what that connection is, I don't know myself. From the jade knife's measurements and the lengths of the few cracks, I only managed to derive two words, Mount Hua. I don't even know what connections there were between Mount Hua and the jade knife. Chang Li stretched as she ignored Guo Huan's surprised exclamations. She then pointed at the corpses which had been buried under the ground by Wen Shu Lin as she returned to the topic, first, tell us what happened here. Wen Shu Lin hastily nodded but he ended up mumbling for a long while without being able to speak a full sentence. Fourth Elder Wen sneered from the side and crossed his arms with a gaze which was even more venomous than a poisonous snake's. He stared at him coldly as he said, say what you must, Grand Elder had said that your sin does not warrant death. Wen Leung finally understood why Grand Elder Wen had acted out of character. Grand Elder Wen knows that Wen Leung was looking at him. He turned and gave him a smile that was too profound to be understood. 
The laugh lines on the edges of his lips were somewhat sinister. When Shu Lin finally managed to calm himself down, you guys have also witnessed just now that I can tell the world situation but I don't know what the context of the telling will be in. After all these years in the Red Leaves Forest, I had not derived anything useful. I must have some measures for my own protection. As he was saying this, he pointed at the magic spell which had been broken by Xiaowu, it was the piece of bone that was lying on the ground. When he had wandered during his youth, he had derived an unnamed mountain cave on a big mountain once. It was unknown if it had been left behind by an obscure cultivator a thousand or ten thousand years ago. In the cave were some bones inscribed with an ancient script. These were all refined objects and once some life vitality was added to it, the talisman seal scripts would activate, transforming the inscribed bones into corpses which listened to the spellcaster's commands. When Shu Lin also knows the art of disguise which was how he had come up with this rotten idea. His contingency plan was, if the one family was to find out that he was an imposter one day, he would activate these fake zombies and put on a show of moving corpses. The Wen family disciples would naturally not dare to fight the bodies of their ancestors. When the time comes, he could escape with his life under the protection of these bone puppets. Wen Leon was amused and enraged. Only obscure cultivators who do not know about the world's affairs would conjure up such a stupid idea. Although the Wen family were not cultivators, their art of poison was unpredictable. If they wanted to kill a person with poison amongst a bunch of other people, even a random death trademarks disciple could do it, let alone experienced people such as the Wen elders. Chang Li frowned, you're a cultivator so you must have some cultivation skills, correct? Wen Shu Lin nodded, that's true, I had self-protection life vitality before this. Otherwise, how could I have secretly switched that many dead men from the life trademark? All the bodies of the ancestors. At that time, I had brought those bone talismans into the Red Leaves Forest and secretly switched the bodies all for this moment. I wanted to disperse all the accumulated life vitality I had cultivated over all these years and after I have dispersed my life vitality, I'm no different from a normal person. He smiled helplessly as he said this, just look at me now. If I still had my skills, I wouldn't have to carry out so many unnecessary actions. Even the elites of this world won't be able to stop me that easily. Before Chang Li could reply, the little girl Xiaowu has also huddled close to them. Her clear eyes were filled with questions, why did you disperse your life vitality? Whether it was cultivators from the mountain sect, world sect, obscure cultivators, or the rogue cultivators, all were universally afraid that they had too little life vitality. They cultivated their life and still felt that time was not enough. They would never have behaved like when Shu Lin who had dissipated his life vitality for no reason. Moreover, he had also chosen to hide in such a dangerous location such as the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. When Shu Lin shook his head at the little girl and smiled bitterly, I cultivate in heaven telling, it's different from your art of heaven's cultivation. For the so-called onlookers, I had wanted to calculate about the world so naturally, I would have to wander in the world. Besides those cultivation skills, what was important was also to follow heaven's path and be in harmony with nature. The stronger the force of my life vitality was, the greater it affects my calculations. I had reached that conclusion a few dozen years ago which was why I had prepared such an escape route secretly. After that, I then dissipated the life vitality I had cultivated. He had transformed the bones which had been cast with an art of devilry by someone else into zombie-like monsters. He then used his art of disguise to make the monsters look like the bodies of the one ancestors. Finally, he used Taoist magic and sealed the real ancestors' bodies before burying them in a pit he had dug. Before when Shu Lin completely dissipated his life vitality, he had seized the opportunity when Fourth Elder Wen left the Red Leaves Forest to accomplish all those things. For dozens of years, he had deceived everyone and nobody had ever noticed the switch. Wen Tuanhai spoke again with a frown, if you're an imposter, where's the real Wen Shu Lin? As he said this, a maliciousness seeped out between his brows, did you kill that old man? The fake Wen Shu Lin was astonished and he hastily shook his head, I've never killed anyone. The real Wen Shu Lin had died more than thirty years ago. I first met him on the Nine Peaks Mountain, he had lost his footing and fell from a cliff. When I reached him, he was barely breathing and was beyond help. Before he died, 
I asked his name and background. I then cast the art of disguise and changed into his appearance. I also took the antidote for the prohibition spell. After I had buried him, I acted like I was heavily wounded and lay on the ground. After the fake one Shulin had finished speaking, he paused for a moment before he smiled with embarrassment at first uncle, you had entered the Red Leaves Forest to cultivate more than thirty years ago. At that time I was already Wen Shulin. When fourth elder Wen heard this, he lowered his head and thought about it deeply before he nodded slowly, sometimes. The men of the life trademark will enter the mountain to harvest some cold corpse herb which can subdue Yin and block Yang energies. There was this one time when Wen Shu Lin had almost fallen to his death when he was outside but was later rescued by the death trademark. The fake Wen Shu Lin quickly chimed in, not almost, he did die. The moment he stopped breathing, I immediately took his place. At that time, I still had some life vitality to protect myself so it was not too difficult to fool a few men from the death trademark. Whether Wen Shulin's words were true or false, the scheming elders would be the judges. Wen Leong, however, has been frowning all this while as he pondered intently about this old man's method of practice which was rumored to be able to tell everything under the heavens. The method of practice of the heaven-telling sect does have its own unique points. It would not be an overkill to describe it as unimaginable. However, this strange art was also not as mysterious as Wei Mo had made it out to be. Firstly, one could not calculate everything nor could one set the question first before finding out the result. One could only calculate based on their surroundings and the objects that they have if one was in Tianjin City, one could definitely not calculate how many unmarried women there were in Baiyun Mountain Airport. Secondly, the teller doing the calculations does not know what kind of things they would be able to calculate. Even if they had gone to the actual site of Guangzhou Baiyun Mountain Airport, the results of their calculation might not necessarily be the number of unmarried women. Maybe, even after half a day's worth of calculations, they could only calculate three words, pot, roast, beef, dot. Thirdly, nobody knows what kind of connection there was between the object calculated and the results. Even if they had managed to derive the words, pot, roast, beef, at Baiyun Mountain Airport, it could have been the staff's meal for that day. Or that a cow had been hit by a large truck which was transporting rocks when Baiyun Mountain Airport had been under construction and that cow was then subsequently made into pot roast beef. The point was, pot roast beef definitely has some connection to the Baiyun Mountain Airport but nobody could really tell what that actual connection was. Wei Mo had only known how to derive big numbers back then, he completely did not understand the calculation for small matters. Naturally, he believed in what he desired and he thought that he could derive the minute matters of the world situation as long as he could find the right way. He had even exaggerated his martial uncle into a living god. Wen Shulin had dabbled in this field for many years now so he knows it better than anyone else that the art in which he had cultivated was at most, a self-entertaining pastime. This was why he had dispersed all his life vitality and tried hard to extract himself from the world and nature with the hopes that his accuracy could be improved. He had then made all those actions to prepare his escape. The fake corpses would lie in the life trademark and not move at normal times. When the moment was ripe, they would obey when Shulin's commands and turn into moving corpses to cover his escape. However, when Shulin himself never expected that when he was exposed. The ones who had come for him were not only the people of the one family but there was the addition of the little girl Xiaowu who had appeared from out of nowhere and seen through the act of the moving corpses in one glance. When he saw that the entire Wen family was torn with grief, he understood that he would be found out sooner or later. Instead of waiting for his death, he had chosen to give himself up so that he might be treated with more mercy. The only thing was, it was unknown whether the words of leniency to those who confess could be found in the Wen family's interrogation room on the Nine Peaks Mountain. When Xu Lin had been living in fear all these years. He had done his calculations within the Red Leaves Forest but the results he had obtained had been either useless or befuddling even to him. In the end, there was only one useful information which was that Wei Mo would also come to the Nine Peaks Mountain one day. Hence, when Shu Lin had seized the opportunity when the Wen family village had undergone a huge renovation thirty years ago and secretly altered the Wen family's setup so that Wei Mo could never be able to calculate anything here. Although Wen Shu Lin had hidden deep within the Red Leaves Forest, he was still an obscure cultivator who was ignorant of how the world worked. 
His thoughts were always on what he desired so he had secretly changed the one family's setup but also revealed himself in the process. As for the fact that the one family had discovered his tracks and was contemplating on how to capture him, he had no way of calculating that and had completely no idea. Half a year ago, when Wen Leong had said that he was going to hold a wedding reception, he had salivated for a few days. When he heard that it had been cancelled, the old man had even felt upset about it. Wen Shulin no longer has a nose so it was strenuous for him to talk. However, in order to get on their good sides, he still tried hard with all his might. After he finished telling them about his method of practice and all his actions in the Wen family during the past few decades, he then sat on the ground and panted with his shriveled mouth. He smiled bitterly at the others as he said, I had hidden in Red Leaves Forest to look for peace. I've never thought of harming anyone nor did I dare to harm the place of birth, life, sickness, and death in any way. He had not finished speaking when Fourth Elder Wen's eyes reddened again. The fake corpses were still squalling and moving about inside the circle drawn by Chongli as if they were dancing in a masquerade. The ancestors' bodies which had originally laid inside the wooden house, safe from wind and rain, had been thrown into a pit in the ground but, nevertheless, when Xu Lin still had a resentful expression on his face. After this, the people from the life trademark moved the bodies of their ancestors back into the wooden house. After the fake zombies had been taken care of, Fourth Elder Wen then sent a few men to tell the people outside that all was well. He also invited the heads of the Miao and the Luo families in. Shortly after, noisy footsteps sounded as the two Luo family elders, Mumu, Ah Dan, Qing Miao's second mother, and little Qi Maojiu walked into the place of birth, life, sickness, and death under the escort of the Wen family disciples. The Wen family's golden remedy had some magical effects. Wen Shulin's nose was no longer throbbing with pain. If he was willing, he could even blow blood bubbles out of the holes. When everyone was present, Grand Elder Wen looked at Wen Shulin again and asked in a low voice, What do the big flat cake, broken gong, and the dog mean? Wen Shulin was temporarily stunned as he heard this before he scratched loudly on his head. His expression was hesitant as if he does not know where he should start his story from. Chang Li reminded him with a smile, start from the beginning, it's okay if you're slow, just make sure that you tell it all. Wen Shulin nodded hastily. He recalled his memories with a pained expression and relayed the events as they had happened. Wen Shulin was one of the heaven-telling sex disciples who had the best natural endowments. It was precisely because of his rather good natural endowments that he saw his abilities were completely useless in trying to derive the big numbers. He would have to spend a few decades to derive big events before he could even manage to get a result. If his technique was to be applied to the world, even a heaven-shocking and earth-shaking world war would have long ended before he finished his calculations. Hence, he only wanted to calculate the small numbers of the world's affairs. In the end, he had quarreled with his martial brother the supreme leader and left Mount Amei in a fit of rage. He then entered the world and dabbled in the so-called calculation of small numbers. With his skills, if he wanted to make a living, the best career option was to become a fortune teller. However, he had almost starved to death during the first few years. Ha only understood later on that fortune-telling and calculations were two very different things. If it was a job, then he needed some packaging as well. He also acted like a true fortune-teller where he cherished every word as if they were gold. He set a rule for himself to never say more than three words. No matter how much he was paid, he would only say three words in the end. As for the subsequent matters after the three words, it was up to the client to interpret them. The others listened intently and waited for him to carry on. However, Chang Li interrupted him with a smile, three words each time. What if you had a two-word or four-word result? When Xu Lin chuckled, adding or subtracting a word or two is always easy. If my result was roasted chicken, I would tell my client that it was roasted fragrant chicken. If my result was red clothes young lady, I would tell them that it was red clothes girl. No matter who comes to me to do a telling, they cannot tell me what to calculate about. I'll simply measure their height or the size of their heads and say whatever I calculated before sending them on their way. When he had tweaked his ears and scratched his cheek in embarrassment as he calculated all sorts of results for his clients, he could not even earn enough for two steamed buns. 
However, when he changed his marketing strategy to, when the golden mouth opens, only three words ring, his booth soon bustled with customers. He had turned from a trickster who was wandering the streets into a living god that everyone respected. In addition to that, he does have the skills. Maybe the three-word readings had left people puzzled but when it came true, everything just clicked into place naturally and he gradually made a name for himself. Some people even gave him a nickname as the three-word immortal. The three-word immortal had continued to cultivate as he went into society. His cultivation base had not improved but he lived a comfortable life. Everything was fine until that fateful day around 70 or 80 years ago when a bright-looking, extremely handsome middle-aged man had suddenly approached him. He smiled peacefully as he handed him a large sum of money in his own left arm. When Xu Lin was already an exceptional fortune teller by then. If the person gave him their left hand he would want to touch their face, if the person moved their face closer he would ask about the time of their birth. The point was that he would reject whatever which had been offered because he could calculate anything. This middle-aged man fared the same, after he had thrown his left arm back, when Xu Lin then measured the length of his right arm. He then began to calculate. After a while, he got the result which was, two fighting men. The original result was, two tigers fighting each other. To stay true to his nickname, the three-word immortal, he had slightly reworded the result. He had not understood what this result had meant and he did not think much of it as he wrote it on a piece of paper before tossing it to the other person and called it a day. The other person's eyes lit up after he saw the slip of paper. He then chuckled, I hadn't believed you at first. If you could really calculate everything under the heavens, you would have cut and run when you found out that I was coming. However, seeing these three words, you do have some skills there. After he said this, he paused and smiled in a leisurely manner, you're also a cultivator, aren't you? When Xu Lin had not been alarmed as he had met some cultivators in the outside world. His cultivation base was slightly shallow and he could not conceal his life vitality from those with bright eyes. However, nobody would find trouble with him so he had chuckled and nodded. He then returned the money to the middle-aged man like a hoodlum, since we're both cultivators, I can't accept this money. I've only wanted to cultivate when I entered society. If I could help a friend in need then that's for the best. The middle-aged man heard the word friend and his expression turned strange. He continued after a brief moment, please do another telling for me. Let's see what else you can tell. He waved his arm as he said that and with a muffled bang, the entire bundle of money had been ground into a fine powder within his palm. After that, he took out a bagua board that was of an intense purple color, so much so that it made people's eyes hurt just by looking at it, if you do a good telling, this will be your reward. When Xu Lin could not take his eyes off the purple bagua. This kind of bagua was the utmost treasure of letter divination formula amongst the five arts of the Tao family and would help his predictions a great deal. Without a second word, he picked up the hand of the middle-aged man. He then carefully noted the positions of the joints and measured the distance between his facial features before he started to calculate in earnest for his client. As he said this, a strange expression appeared on Wen Shulin's face. It was a mix of fright and an awkwardness as he does not know whether to laugh or to cry. He smiled bitterly, with this telling, I finally understood what it means when they say that it's less fortunate to help others and more fortunate to do bad. He does not have to reword or repackage his results this time, it was three direct words, nine-headed snake. Chong Li broke into a heartless laughter from the side as a playful light flickered on her delicate face. She was so beautiful that it lifted their hearts up before mercilessly throwing them down the next second, this person must have been Tian Yin. The result of your first telling was, two men fighting, that was the two primordial spirits which were fighting within his body. You would not understand what it was but Tian Yin himself understood it best. Of course he would want you to do another telling. Poor Wen Shu Lin, when he had got the result of, nine-headed snake, he still had not figured out what kind of person was in front of him. He secretly wondered if this was the cultivator's nickname or the name of a magic weapon. Tian Yin's expression had turned even stranger. He looked at Wen Shu Lin who was hugging the purple bagua and was unwilling to part with it. He was stunned for a while before he finally broke out into laughter, you now know that I'm Xiang Lu but why aren't you running away yet? Wen Shu Lin thought that the words Xiang Lu sounded somewhat familiar. 
When he finally figured it out and squalled, Tian Yin already had his hand around his neck as he pulled him along. Tian Yin had not given him too much trouble, he only interrogated him about his calculations. When Xu Lin dared not keep anything from him and he explained his method of practice entirely to him. After Tian Yin listened to it, he smiled bitterly and rubbed his brows, although it's not much. But it's not completely useless. Tian Yin then brought him far away to Mingxia Mountain and Crescent Moon Spring. He only opened his mouth when they had reached their destination as he pointed at the brilliant water of the Crescent Moon Spring in the wilderness and said, Calculate. When Xu Lin had not understood his meaning so he asked with a shudder, Calculate what? Tian Yin always had a smile on his face. He does not have even an ounce of Xiang Lu's true soul's foulness in his appearance. He looked to have the air of an erudite person in everyone's eyes as he said, Calculate any way you want and anything you can. I'll come back for you after a year. If you want to live happily, you will show me all the results of your calculations. If there's something that I want, naturally, you won't have to die. When Xu Lin was utterly dumbstruck, he had never heard of a question like this before. Tian Yin did not explain further as he turned around and left. The little girl Xiaowu did not know who Xiang Lu or Tian Yin was as she listened along from the side. Her big eyes were pitch black and would occasionally glow exuberantly. She asked curiously, the bad guy left so why didn't you run? When Xu Lin dared not underestimate this little girl. He now understood that everyone around him was ancestors who could have him killed irrespective of their size. He hastily replied in a polite manner, I did not dare to run. He said that he had set up prohibition spells in 30 km radius. I would have died without a doubt if I ever escaped out of that circle. Nobody knows if Tian Yin had spoken the truth. After all, with his abilities, it was not too difficult for him to set up a prohibition spell to keep Wen Shu Lin in a such a large area. Wen Shu Lin dared not neglect this task. In the consequent year, he had even disregarded his meals and gone without sleep. He calculated about anything that he could grab from around the crescent moon spring. The results he got were of a wide variety. They contained verbs, nouns, adverbs, adjectives, and onomatopoeias. He had not understood the significance of the majority of his results. After a year, Tian Yin returned as he said he would. He looked at the results which Wen Shu Lin had obtained which numbered almost a thousand and knitted his brows with slight gloominess, this many. Wen Shu Lin cursed silently within his heart. With the premise of, calculate any way you want and anything you can, he was only worried that he had not calculated enough. If he does not obtain the result that Tian Yin wishes for, his old life would be done for. In the end, Tian Yin had thought that there were too many results. Thankfully, Tian Yin was somewhat satisfied. He carefully collected these results and put them into his pocket but he had not let him go. Instead, he then brought him somewhere else. This time, they had gone to the Shirwan mountain of Guangxi. It was the same as last time, Tian Yin wanted Wen Shu Lin to continue his calculations and he does not care about the what and how. This time, he had given him a time limit of five years. After all, the Shirwan mountain was far bigger than Crescent Moon Spring. As he looked at the unending immense mountains with their sharp peaks and cold cliffs, Wen Shu Lin even thought of dying. Chapter 236 during those past five years, when Xu Lin had run around Shirwan Mountain and done nothing other than his calculations. However, due to the sheer size of the mountain, it was impossible for him to calculate every inch of it so he had randomly calculated as he pleased. He would occasionally pick up a piece of rock or he would calculate the little fishes in the mountain stream. Sometimes, he would measure the length of the mountain cave. Five years later, Tian Yin had reappeared once again to collect the over 2,000 results which had been calculated by Wen Shu Lin. Tian Yin's face abruptly broke into a smile, you are quite honest. I had checked on you 34 times but other than that one occasion when you had scolded me, you had been engrossed in your calculations most of the time. I can see that the items which you have calculated are all included in the result you have given me. Very well done. I was afraid that you might have written something at random to trick me, but you didn't. Wen Shu Lin thought that his service was finally at an end but he was afraid that Tian Yin would kill him to prevent him from divulging his secrets. 
He was pondering whether he should plead for mercy but Tian Yin had then brought him to the Changbai Mountains beyond the Great Wall of China. Wen Shulin was then continuously brought by Tian Yin to all sorts of locations for three decades. He calculated diligently and continuously at each location for one to two years, with the longest being five years. The locations where Wen Shu Lin conducted his calculations were either deep in great mountains, in deserted islands overseas, or even on the snowy peak of the highland. He had unintentionally calculated that the small sword fire tail was located when he was in Changbai Mountains but Tian Yin was utterly uninterested. He only laughed gently as he said, if you like that, then you should turn around and retrieve it. There were a few occasions when he had accidentally provoked some local cultivators as he was performing his calculations. However, each time he was threatened, Tian Yin would descend from the sky. To Wen Shu Lin, those cultivators had possessed profound magic arts but they could not even hold their own against Tian Yin's little finger before they were reduced to ashes. Later on, in order to ease Wen Shu Lin's task so that he would not become involved in any more conflicts with the other cultivators, Tian Yin had taught him a magic spell which could help Wen Shu Lin conceal his life vitality. At the same time, the spell also helped him to disguise his appearance. It was at that moment that Wen Leong understood that Wen Shu Lin's art of disguise had originated from Tian Yin. It makes sense now why Tian Yin possesses the magic spell which could break the art of disguise spell which he had then passed to the Rainbow Brothers. Wen Shu Lin's disguise spell had been inherited from Xiang Lu's host, though it could not be considered profound, it was very useful. Wen Shu Lin had dispersed his life vitality after that so that he had become virtually undetectable even to top demon immortals like Chang Li or Zhui Zi. However, one should not underestimate the fat monk Shui Jing's cultivation method or supernatural power as his art of spirit searching was truly remarkable and was able to forcefully discover Wen Shulin's whereabouts. Whether it was the mountain sect or the world sect, rogue cultivators or obscure cultivators, whichever sect's cultivation method had been inherited for the past millenniums. These cultivation methods could produce miraculous effects in certain situations so no sect or cultivator should be underestimated. At this moment, Chang Li frowned as she interrupted Wen Shu Lin, you have dispersed your life vitality so how can you still cast the magic disguise spell? Wen Shu Lin explained respectfully, this magic spell has a rather marvelous feature. It will exert one's life vitality when you first cast it but once it has taken form, it no longer needs one's life vitality force. After I dispersed my life vitality, my appearance after the disguise spell will never change but once I changed back to my previous appearance, there would be no way for me to change back to Wen Shu Lin. Fourth Elder Wen had kept quiet all along but he now seems to have calmed down from his rage as he suddenly spoke. You have already revealed yourself and decided that you will no longer hide anymore so why have you not removed the magic disguise spell yet? Unexpectedly, when Shu Lin sighed and pleaded towards Fourth Elder Wen, I've worn this mask for so long that I believe that I am Wen Shu Lin. Though I know for certain that the mask is useless now but I still don't dare to remove it. Fourth Elder Wen shook his head but he no longer speculated on such a trivial matter as he waved his hand and signaled Wen Shu Lin to continue his story. Wen Shu Lin realized that Tian Yin would frequently return to keep a close watch on him so he dared not procrastinate during the calculation process. He recorded all sort of results honestly and when the time came, he submitted all of it to Tian Yin. What took place between Wen Shu Lin and Tian Yin during those three decades were essentially the same and could be simplified into one word calculate. A slightly more complicated conclusion could be summarized in five words to calculate everywhere and anywhere. Chang Li lost her patience as she listened to Wen Shulin's long-winded chatter. She then waved her hand and interrupted him, how many places had he brought you to all these years? What were all the locations? Wen Shulin stretched out a finger and began to count one by one, Mingxia Mountains Crescent Moon Spring, West Mountains Mount Hua, Middle Mountains Hang Mountain. Star Reef which is located 450 kilometers in the South China Sea, Lao Mountain at the East China Sea, the snowy plains of the western regions, Changbai Mountains beyond the Great Wall, Shirwan Mountain at Guangxi. And, also Chilian Mountains. Upon saying that, when Xu Lin verified his explanation attentively once again before he nodded strenuously, there were nine places in total, I'm certain that I've not missed any out. As when Xu Lin looked at the crowd's slightly suspicious gaze, it almost seems like he was taking credit for his achievements. 
He hastily puffed up his chest, I had not understood it well in the beginning but I was able to figure it out later that Xian Lu knew that my magic art was incapable of directly predicting the things that he wished for. That was why he had brought me to all these places so that I could calculate whatever that needed to be calculated. It was much better for Wen Shu Lin to have left it at that, the moment he began to explain things in detail, he only made Wen Liang even more confused. Wen Shu Lin sniggered and kept the crowd guessing for another second before he continued, I will give you an example millenniums later. When all of Tuasie's disciples have ascended into the heavens as flying immortals and other than the three family sites, there were no other clues as to our existence in this world. If someone were to research the origins of the Tuasie sect, how could they even begin the investigation? Wen Shu Lin then looked at Wen Leong with a smile. A moment later, Grand Master Chang Li soundlessly pushed her face in front of Wen Shu Lin's face and asked Doli, Who are you directing that question to? Wen Shu Lin was almost startled to death. He sat up straight hastily and said, Naturally, the researcher would go to the Nine Peaks Mountain first and calculate all the chaos and darkness until they come up with the result of all the big and trivial matters. They will then go to Crow Ridge and the Miao Stockade Village and calculate there as well before they finally make a comparison of all the results from their calculations. They then select any similar results and weigh in my explanation ends here do you understand me? Wen Leong felt that his thoughts were in a mess. He could barely understand Wen Shulin's explanation through great effort on his part. He spoke as he pondered, these nine places were connected because of some matter which was closely related to Xiang Lu. Tian Yin wished to investigate this matter but he could not figure out a good way which was why he had used the foolish method of bringing you to do your calculations in these nine places. He then sifted through the results to look for similarities and compared how these similar results relate to the matter that he was investigating. Everyone there exhaled a long breath after listening to Wen Liang's convoluted explanation. However, four of them had not bothered to even listen to Wen Liang's explanation. Xiaowu and Ah Dan chuckled maniacally as they watched everyone's expression fill with puzzlement. Ah Dan would still occasionally wave the silver necklace in his hand persistently at Xiaowu. Mu Mu and Wen Xiaoyi's eyes had remained unwaveringly on Wen Liang during his explanation. To them, Wen Liang's words were like the most pleasant music. As for what he was saying, none of them had paid any attention to that. Wen Shu Lin had spent those three decades calculating in those nine places. It was when he had arrived at the final location, Lao Mountain at the East China Sea, that he was met by a setback. Back then, Tian Yin had arranged to meet up with him every three years. However, three years had passed but Tian Yin had not shown up as he had promised. Wen Leung nodded when he heard this. He guessed that the true soul had been suppressing Tian Yin's primordial spirit at that time which was the reason why Tian Yin had not been able to rush over them. At that time, Wen Shu Lin was very clear on Tian Yin's thoughts. During the past decades, Tian Yin had never made things difficult for him and other than asking him to calculate by force, they had gotten along pretty well with one another. Wen Shu Lin had started to shift his intention to flatter Tian Yin in order to live. He calculated non-stop all the time and he dared not procrastinate for even a moment. When it looks like he had some extra time on his hands this time, he arranged the results of his previous calculations and highlighted matters which were similar, identical or related from his thousands and millions of recordings. At this point, Chang Li, Guo Huan and the Wan, Miao and Luo family elders all sneered in unison. Wen Shu Lin raised his head and looked at them in slight confusion. First uncle Wen Tuanhai spoke coldly, if you had remained unaware of the situation and calculated in a confused manner all the while, your chances of survival would have been higher instead. You wanted to act on your own imagined cleverness if you truly discovered the pattern and found the identical result, Xiang Lu would certainly kill you to prevent his secrets from being divulged. You really are foolish first uncle when Tuanhai was halfway through his scolding when he suddenly shut his mouth. Everything he had said was true but when Shu Lin was sitting in front of him in perfect condition right now, not murdered by Tian Yin. However, there was still a layer of cold sweat on Wen Shu Lin's forehead. He hastily nodded and agreed repeatedly that it had been a narrow escape. First uncle Wen Tuanhai then felt happier with Wen Shu Lin's current attitude. During that time when Tian Yin had been absent longer than expected, Wen Shu Lin had become seriously ill in the sense of his cultivation base. 
He was an unorthodox obscure cultivator and though his body was stronger and healthier than an ordinary person's, he was not immune to all diseases. He had been saved by the Sun Dynasty Palace's Yulingzi who had coincidentally traveled to the same place. To repay his debt of gratitude, he told Yulingzi about the whereabouts of that small sword fire tail which he had discovered earlier. In the beginning, Yulingzi had not believed him so when Shu Lin calculated a bunch of three-character classics based on Yulingzi's destiny numbers. After a few of those predictions had come true later on, Yulingzi immediately worshipped him like a god and had rushed back hastily. When Shu Lin had begun to verify his results back then while also continuing his calculations based on these results. He was so focused that he entered into a state of forgetting self and forgetting all until he had accidentally muttered the words, Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and Dog three days later. Yu Lingzi had not understood what that could mean but he remembered it firmly in his mind. Back then, Yu Lingzi was still a handsome youth who had achieved small success in his cultivation base. He was also when Shulin's savior and the old man could not bear to hurt Yu Lingzi so he used the excuse of, God's design must not be divulged to mortal ears in order to threaten Yu Lingzi and to prevent him from revealing it to others. After that when Shu Lin could not stand Yu Lingzi's constant pestering and he had revealed his selected hideout to Yu Lingzi the Nine Peaks Mountain. This course of events after that had been ascertained by the small demon rabbit Bulu a few months ago. He had reported them back to Tuo Xie's disciples. At this point, when Shu Lin did not wait for any further inquiry as he answered in a self-conscious manner. When I was at the Crescent Moon Spring and Shirwan Mountain, I had not understood Xiang Lu's purpose and I only figured that out later on. Naturally, I had thought of a way out for myself. When I was doing my calculations, I had added in my own mathematical theories. Though the results were also a mess, as I was calculating on the snowy plains of western regions, Mount Hua and Chilian Mountains, I had successfully calculated the location and name of Nine Peaks Mountain. Heh, I could not tell if it was faded but since I had calculated the whereabouts which were related to me, I should then go there naturally whether I was dead, alive, or decapitated or noseless. I had accepted my fate. Tian Yin had been delayed for more than a year. When he finally arrived on Mount Hua, when Xu Lin immediately presented the results of his work to Tian Yin like he was presenting a treasure. Tian Yin chuckled and not only did he not kill Wen Xu Lin, on the contrary, Wen Xu Lin was offered compensation instead. Wen Xu Lin was a sensible person so he had wished to be able to live in seclusion on a remote mountain and nothing else back then. Surprisingly, Tian Yin had released Wen Xu Lin just like that and he had never bothered Wen Xu Lin ever since. Chang Li nodded gently, we shall not discuss the purpose of Tian Yin's investigation yet, the method which he had adopted was troublesome to the utmost extent, no wonder he had let Wen Shu Lin live. At this point, Chang Li suddenly revealed a mischievous expression and shut her mouth, refusing to say anything else. Ever since that incident, Wen Shu Lin no longer dared to walk the mortal world but lived in seclusion on the Nine Peaks Mountain according to the homeward journey he had calculated for himself. The following decade was spent watching the Red Leaves Forest until the real when Shu Lin had died, which was when he managed to infiltrate into the place. When Shu Lin had helped Xiang Lu's true soul to calculate at nine places and had finally arrived at the three words of the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and Dog. He had not come up with the same three results from every location but these results had overlapped more than the others. Still, the most puzzling thing to him was that there were only these three items here. Almost all the nine places had been spread all over the east while the three items in the result were incomprehensible. When Xu Lin seems to be generally done with his story and Chang Li sighed softly out of disappointment. When they heard her gentle sigh, the others could not help but lower their heads, unable to witness her disappointment which had secretly slid to the ground from her face. They had initially hoped that when Xu Lin could give them a clearer answer but, judging from the situation now, these three items were so vague that they still could not see what they meant. The only certainty they had were the nine places. Before they had found Wen Xu Lin, Chang Li and Wen Leong had secretly hoped to ask this living immortal from the heaven-telling sect to calculate Tuo Xie's whereabouts. However, based on the situation now, that was would be a fool's mission. Guo Huan attempted to stay energized and analyzed the situation to them, there is still something off about the timing. 
When Shu Lin and Tian Yin had parted ways at least fifty years ago but Tian Yin had only instructed the world sect to look for those items ten years ago. What had Tian Yin been up to during that forty-year gap? Guo Huan then pondered for a while before he continued to emphasize his question, I can only think of one reason upon careful consideration why Tian Yin had not killed this old lad. He must have something else for Wen Shu Lin to calculate but he could not bring Wen Shu Lin with him this time. Moreover, he had left Wen Shu Lin alone for forty years. Chang Li did not wait for Guo Huan to finish talking as she interrupted impatiently, Tian Yin only comes out occasionally and he spends most days hiding on the Black and White Island. You've been to that place before, for someone like Wen Shu Lin who now lacks a cultivation base, he would not be able to enter that place at all. Chang Li then frowned and shook her head gently, even if he could not bring Wen Shu Lin along, it would not be that difficult for Tian Yin to place a prohibition spell on Wen Shu Lin. There was no point for him to allow Wen Shu Lin to hide first and then to look for him forty years later. Wen Shu Lin realized that the others were filled with puzzlement and he hastily spoke up to explain in meticulous detail the situation when he and Tian Yin had parted ways back then. Ultimately, Wen Shu Lin made a steadfast conclusion in the end, Tian Yin had not seemed to be injured or in a rush back then. He had chatted and laughed like an immortal before he let me go. Guo Huan huffed stiffly, even if he had been severely injured then, could you tell just by looking at him? It was Chang Li who then waved her hand in a very straightforward manner and interrupted their collective contemplation. After careful consideration, the only scenario I can think of is that Xiang Lu's true soul had bumped into an enemy back then. After battling with the enemy, it had drawn in Tian Yin's primordial spirit's countercharge. Wen Leong, along with Mumu, Wen Xiaoyi, and Na Dan, all inhaled a cold breath together. Wen Leong was slightly astonished, other than the few of us, who else would be capable of pulling Tian Yin's leg? Chang Li shook her head impatiently, how do I know who else could have been there? The world is an enormous place, it would not be inconceivable for a few top master cultivators to be hidden away somewhere. We won't be able to come up with a result just by making wild guesses about this matter so why bother to waste our effort? The rest of them nodded. Wen Shu Lin, however, attempted to flatter himself as he asked probingly, therefore, this grand old lady's intention is that you still want me to calculate again. Chang Li rolled her beautiful eyes and directed her piercing gaze at Wen Shu Lin's ears as she asked with a smile, Can you calculate that? Wen Shu Lin finally understood that he was inviting trouble to himself. His face was filled with fear as he retreated several steps, It is not that easy to calculate I will need to need to capture Xiang Lu first before I can start my calculations. If it had not been for Wen Leong who had managed to grab onto Chang Li's wrist in time, Wen Shulin's ears would certainly be gone by now. Chang Li raised her arm and looked at the gold bangle which glinted between Wen Leong's fingers. She then arched her left eyebrow and made a savage expression, you will need to compensate me if you were to ruin that. The gaze that she directed at Wen Leong was filled with threat but anyone could tell that not only was her mischievous and kind mannerism in this situation harmless, on the contrary, her demeanor was warmer than the sun. Wen Leon could still recall that fateful number of 138,800, as he hastily let go of his hold on her wrist. After everyone had a good laugh and was more relaxed, Wen Xiaoyi, who had stayed quiet until now, spoke up softly. There is one other matter which still requires careful consideration if Xian Lu had kept Wen Shulin alive, what else would he want Wen Shulin to calculate for him? Could it be some other matter or he was to continue calculating on the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog? Before Wen Xiaoyi's voice could fade away, Chang Li exclaimed in surprise. She then pulled Wen Xiaoyi into an embrace as she laughed, this little girl is still the smartest one here. Upon saying that, her other hand pulled Mumu along as well and she asked them earnestly, so, who amongst the both of you will be the first and the second hereafter? Wen Xiaoyi and Mumu were both stunned at first but they soon reacted to Chang Li's irrelevant question. Both of their charming faces blushed as red as apples immediately and they stomped their feet and did not know how to answer the question. They grumbled in their heart, wondering how this grand master of theirs could just say whatever she pleases and besides, what kind of baseless question was that? The two elders of the Luo family and fourth elder when gazed at one another threateningly no one was willing to let their own girl be at a disadvantage. First uncle Wen Tuanhai hastily mediated the situation. 
He rubbed his palms together as he sniggered, we are all relatives here so there's no separation between first and second, they are both first, first. Chang Li looked at Wen Xiaoyi before she looked at Mumu again and heaved a sigh of defeat, I noticed that Wen Xiaoyi was smarter earlier and I had wanted to choose her as the first but now that I've taken another look at Mumu. She's not that bad too she hesitated for a moment before she finally spoke sulkily, I shall not interfere anymore. Wen Leong really wanted to put on a long face as he said to her, Grandmother, no one had asked you to interfere on this matter, right? The three ladies each have their own charm. When they were gathered together, other than the second mother, everyone else would pale in comparison. Chang Li had her arms around the two beautiful girls as her hands counted the facts out for them with a smile on her face. The nine demon executing heaven's cone nails on the black and white island consists of chaos, sun, moon, star, metal, wood, stinky water, fire, and earth. After she had counted all the heaven's cone nails, she then counted the nine places that when Shu Lin had been brought to back then, the gold-consuming nest at Qilian Mountain, the wood spirit of Mount Hua as she was talking about this. Chang Li suddenly exclaimed in surprise and turned to look at the jade knife, Guo Huan, you are the mountain elf, how had you ended up cultivating the wood spirit of Mount Hua? Guo Huan huffed, when I was cultivating, where else in the world would be filled with exuberant earth elemental energy? What's more, I'm the embodiment of the rock genus so my cultivation would get almost the same effect at any place where there are earth and soil. Chang Li nodded and continued, Heavenly water of the snowy peak, the vigorous fire of Changbai, the earth assembly of the middle mountain. These five places were once the locations of the utmost five elements. As for the rest of the other places. Guo Huan continued Chang Li's topic of conversation directly. The Lao Mountain on East China Sea faces the sun and one can watch the sunrise from their crescent moon spring at Mingsha Mountain reflects the moon at Night Star Reef which is located 450 kilometers in the South China Sea was said to be a star chart. As for the Shirwan Mountain, it was a boundless stretch of wicked earth during the primitive ages. It had been punished continuously by the heavens until millions of years after the yin and yang energies of the world had been fixed, the divine punishment had broken its chaos in the end. After Tian Yin had captured Wen Shu Lin, based on the corresponding elements of the Nine Heavens Cone Nails, he had then traveled to the Nine Corresponding Places one by one. Wen Leong laughed grimly, so, judging by the situation, Xiang Lu's intention is to still remove the Nine Heavens Cone Nails. If the secret of, the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and Dog, was meant to be the method to break the rest of the Eight Heavens Cone Nails, then it was no longer a significant issue for the lineage of Tua Xia anymore. The matter of Xiang Lu's true body struggling free from the rest of the Cone Nails was bound to happen sooner or later. Even if the Wen family had managed to prevent Xiang Lu from acquiring the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and Dog, they were only buying some time before the Great Disaster happened. The reason why Wen Leong had searched for the Big Flat Cake, broken gong, and dog, so diligently was because he was still hoping to discover the secret technique which was capable of suppressing Xiang Lu. When Xiaoyi shook her head unexpectedly, if you were to attempt to shatter a bowl, would you still be circling around the area of the oven which was used to bake the bowl? Upon saying that, when Xiaoyi felt that her words sounded rather harsh to be spoken to her lover so she hastily smiled at Wen Leong. Mumu may appear to resemble a little red chili pepper and was even given the nickname of Fierce Tigress years ago. However, though she appeared fierce and unreasonable in her outlook, in reality, she was not very different from Wen Xiaoyi who was ignorant of worldly affairs. Ever since she had broken the rule of not seeing Wen Leong before their wedding, her mind had been occupied all along. She does not know what she was thinking in her intelligent mind and she could not even catch up to the other's train of thought so she had stood next to Wen Xiaoyi piteously. Ever since they first met in the ancient cave on Zhanyan Peak, when Xiaoyi was skilled in supporting and cheering for Changli when she was telling her stories. This was why Changli favors Wen Xiaoyi more but when Mumu heard Changli mention that Wen Xiaoyi was the smarter one and took the gold bangle from her wrist and stuffed it into Wen Xiaoyi's hand, she had almost cried enviously. Changli could not bear to see that so she pointed at first grandfather, you, prepare $138,800 for Mumu. Pass it to her when we are back in the village later. First Elder Wen shivered as he shot a heavy glare at Wen Leon. 
When Leung now realized that Chang Li's most incisive ability was not her cultivation method but her ability to distract others. The crowd had yet to figure out Xiang Lu's intention and each person was more anxious than the other. Finally, the cause was still determined to be this grand master of theirs. However, their grand master was not anxious, instead, she was trying to extort her grandchildren's money. Chang Li's laugh was so pleasant that Xiao Wu could not help but laugh along with her. Ah Dan's mouth too hastily cracked into a smile as he chuckled maniacally. Chapter 237 First Uncle Wen Tuanhai massaged his forehead to relax his brows which had almost furrowed into one. He then refocused the topic of conversation once again, what was Xiang Lu trying to calculate from those nine places? A perturbed expression then appeared on his face, could it be that the old demon had been looking for a method to make the heavens cone nail so he could pin the nail on himself again? When Xiaoyi pondered as she spoke, what I meant was what was Xiang Lu planning when he had asked Wen Shulin to calculate for him? It's too difficult for us to make wild guesses here so what I meant was why don't we let Wen Shulin continue the story? Chang Li did not divert the topic of conversation this time but she waved her hand as a signal for everybody to stop speaking. She then she looked at Wen Xiaoyi and said, please continue. Wen Xiaoyi smiled spuriously as she peered at Chang Li, causing her to pull a long face as she complained, don't smile. Wen Xiaoyi, on the other hand, could not help but giggle out loud but she hastily recovered herself soon after. She then continued to speak in a crisp voice, there could only be two possible reasons why Xiang Lu had allowed Wen Shulin to live. Either he needs Wen Shulin to calculate other matters or he wants him to continue his calculation on the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog. We will never figure out what else he was supposed to calculate so there's no need for us to think too much about that. In my opinion, we ought to continue the calculation according to the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog. By the time we get a result, we would naturally know what the nine-headed monster is up to. Chang Li narrowed her eyes slightly. A sense of seductive charm was unintentionally revealed in her long and narrow gaze, continue the calculations according to the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog? But how? When Xiaoyi's eyes were glimmering too but she could never conceal that sense of mischievous cunning in her expression. Each time they arrived at a location, Xiang Lu had made Wen Shu Lin run everywhere and make his calculations everywhere on the Great Mountain. The results from those calculations were mostly useless because Xiang Lu had not located the right place. If the metal elemental heaven's cone nail was truly related to the Chilean mountains, then they would only need to go straight to the gold consuming lair, why was it necessary for them to run all over the entire Chilean mountains instead? Wen Leong was shocked by this revelation and he ignored Chang Li's injunction as he could not help but interrupt, there was also the snowy peak, they could have just calculated in the ore cave where the heavenly water spirit was at. Wen Shu Lin muttered to himself uncertainly, there is an ore cave on the snowy peak. Following that, he pulled a long face as he looked at Wen Leong. It was unknown whether he was complaining or showing off as he said, I had run all over on the Tangula Mountains for four damn years back then. Xiang Lu had been pinned to the Black and White Island for an unknown amount of years. The land and seas have greatly transformed from when he had been wreaking havoc in the past. Therefore, he could only bring Wen Shu Lin to the approximate location to do his calculations. Also, Tian Yin's primordial spirit at that time frequently countercharged onto Xiang Lu's true soul. As the enlightened Tian Shu and Tian Hua were guarding the Black and White Island then, Xiang Lu's true soul did not have sufficient power or time so there was utterly no way he could find the specific locations of the utmost disposition lands between the Great Mountains and the Deep Seas. He was even unable to locate the gold-consuming lair even when he was on Chilian Mountain. On the contrary, Wen Liang's group has an advantage over Xiang Lu, at least they have accurately pinpointed two elementally charged places. One was the gold-consuming lair which had once been the land of metal element, the other was the ice river or cave which could condense the heavenly water spirit. Without a doubt, if Wen Shu Lin had been directly brought to the snowy peaks or cave or the gold-consuming lair at Chilian Mountain to do his calculations, the result would certainly be much more precise than his previous ones. Chang Li was standing with her arms wrapped around her great-grandson's two future wives as she laughed so hard that she resembled a fox which had just stolen an old hen. 
When Xiaoyi was laughing as well and looked like the fox pup who had followed the fox and managed to acquire two eggs. Mumu was laughing too but she was laughing foolishly on her own. When Leong was feeling rather puzzled, when Xiaoyi was very smart but the little girl was not smart in her insights, she was smart in her thoughts. She has a near-perfect photographic memory and she could memorize a lot of poison recipes as well as the ancient record in the birth trademark. However, the act of finding their family's superiority from a pile of messy information and to distinguish the advantage and disadvantage of the enemy and themselves had not seemed like something that she could have handled. When Xiaoyi's joyous glance rippled along with her smile. Suddenly, she turned around and pecked the slightly dejected Mumu's cheek with a smacking sound. Mumu had been startled at first but she soon looked at Wen Xiaoyi and laughed together. Mumu could understand it from a theoretical standpoint. After all, when Wen Leong was still a regular person back then, he had first come to the Red Leaves Forest. Wen Xiaoyi had taken care of him during that stormy night and even helped Wen Leong to resist the enemy. Following that, she had stayed by his side and guarded him without fail for the next 100 days. Their young love was still a bit more profound than Mumu and Wen Leong's encounters after all. Mumu had never harbored this thought in her heart nor challenged Wen Xiaoyi on anything but when she saw the attention Wen Xiaoyi was getting while she was just like a silly girl standing here. She could not help but feel slightly depressed in her heart. Still, under the little girl's persistent kiss, Mumu suddenly felt much more optimistic. Wen Shu Lin, on the other hand, was in a difficult position. He rubbed his palms together as he stood awkwardly for a long while before he finally agreed to go with them to those locations to do his calculations there once again. When Leon was at a loss whether to cry or to laugh, he shook his head but he did not speak anymore. When Xu Lin was only an obscure calculation cultivator, he was even less witty than his martial nephew Weimo. He felt unwillingness in his heart when he learned that he was about to engage in more laborious dirty work. However, he also failed to consider that if it was not for this laborious dirty work which was waiting to be carried out by him, his life would no longer be guaranteed anymore. Otherwise, whether it was Chang Li or the Wen family elders who were still incensed over the issue of Wen Shulin's desecration of their ancestors' remains, the reasons were enough for them to kill him twenty times over. He was also related to issues pertaining to the Sun Dynasty Palace, the Jilong Sect, the Rainbow Brothers World Sect. At this stage, he had truly caused a lot of trouble to the Wen family. Even though he has yet to understand what the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog represents in real life, the new hope that came after all hope had been lost was always inspiring. Wen Leong was pondering if he should first bring Wen Shulin to the snowy peak or the Chilian mountains when Chang Li suddenly spoke, go to Mount Hua first. Manage Guo Huan's issue first. Guo Huan, who was in the Jade Knife, suddenly laughed foolishly to everyone's surprise. Wen Leong frowned as if he had just recalled something and he pondered for a moment before he continued, Mount Hua is one of the nine locations where the wood spirit can be found. The ending cave there the monkey Qian Ren had once cultivated there too. The more he talked about it the happier he became until he had to refrain himself from beaming with joy, if we can get Qin Zhui to locate Qian Ren and point us to the right direction. The certainty of our success in calculating the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog will become higher. This way, out of the nine places, we would already have pinpointed three accurately. Chang Li's expression was a little lazy and she looked as if she was fatigued as she spoke carelessly, it would be best if he is willing to help us. There was finally a turning point in this event and everyone was feeling rather delighted. Fourth Elder Wen took the Death Trademark's disciples to the Red Leaves Forest to replenish the strong poison in the Prohibition spells. He led the people from the Life Trademark to handle the first ancestor's remains with care. At the same time, the others brought Wen Shulin along and left the place of birth, life, sickness, and death. After they had rejoined those who had been waiting outside the Red Leaves Forest, they then returned to the Wen family village together. Wen Xiaoyi had left the workshop beside Chang Li and followed alongside Wen Leong in high spirits all the way. She had brought Mumu along as well. Wen Xiaoyi chortled and gestured as she spoke, telling them the story of what she had done during this period of time to Wen Leong. Wen Leong chuckled as he listened and would chime in occasionally and ask about things. Finally, he patted the little girl's forehead as he laughed, I've not seen you in a while, 
your knowledge has improved so much, you are much smarter than I am now. When Xiaoyi coughed before she tiptoed and whispered in Wen Liang's ears, Grand Master Changli was the one who taught me that, she made me say all that. Changli, who had been walking nearby, exclaimed and giggled, you heartless and ungrateful little girl, how could you betray me so soon? Upon saying that, she smiled and looked at Mumu who was clearly confused, I'll help you next time. The group chatted and laughed as they walked towards the Wen family village. Chang Li's gaze, however, constantly shifted from each of the Rainbow Brothers and she stared at the seven fat men so much that they were terrified. Still, they feigned their calmness desperately as they followed the group back to the village in an honest manner. The seven brothers were so nervous that they were all soaked in the cold sweat of fear despite the cold weather. As the Rainbow Brothers panicked in their hearts, Ji Fei and Xue Jing were feeling uneasy as well. Both of them have a better understanding of the whole situation. They had witnessed Wen Leung as he brought the old man out of the Red Leaves Forest and concluded that there was some progress to the situation. Though they were curious about it, it took them a long while to work up the courage to ask. Finally, they could not refrain themselves anymore and they ran in front of Wen Leung, rubbing their palms eagerly as they tried to find out more information about the situation. Wen Leong looked at his two precious disciples and he was at a loss whether to cry or to laugh as he emphasized, this is a critically dangerous matter. The person who had been exerting so much laborious effort to search for the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog, was more than just the world sect. Ji Fei and Shui Jing have yet to find out the course of Wen Leong's snowy peak trip so they asked in unison upon listening to Wen Leong's response, who's that person? When Leong was about to speak when Chang Li laughed and chimed in, that person is Xiang Lu. Ji Fei and Shui Jing were both startled together, the nine-headed monster has escaped. When Leong shook his head gently. After he received Chang Li's nod as a signal of approval, he roughly explained the situation of how the three sword immortals of Black and White Island had been killed. Xiang Lu's true soul then possessed Tian Yin and extracted the three persons' cultivation powers. These two rogue cultivator monks have been wandering in the society for decades and they were not fools. They immediately understood the critical danger of this situation. Amongst the world's top demon immortals, Chang Li and Hanba were very closely connected to the origin of Grand Master Tuasya so they were basically like a family. Amongst the forces in the cultivation world, the Great Mercy Temple, the Kunlun sect with vastly enhanced actual power and the three Wen, Miao and Luo families have also coexisted together. The younger generation of top master cultivators was now being led by Wen Leong, the little supreme leader Lu Zheng, and Qin Zhui. The relationship between these three was perplexing and complicated. However, there was no doubt that once Wen Leong gives out a signal, Lu Zheng and Qin Zhui would certainly help him with all they have. The top demon immortals the forces in the sex the outstanding youths these forces have become inexplicably twisted into a rope without their realization. However, Ji Fei and Shui Jing were unaware that the divine beast Ice Cone Nail and the leader of the Buddhist followers in the Tibetan highland Ranyong already have a profound friendship with one Leong and the others. Finally, there was the addition of the wood elemental god monkey, known as Qian Ren, who had been sealed in the dog-headed eagle and was also Qin Zhui's support. When these forces converge, who else in the world would be capable of resisting them? However, even with such a powerful alliance, when they were faced with Tian Yin who was possessed by Xiang Lu's true soul, they could only retreat without a fight. Both Ji Fei and Shui Jing could not help but look rather dejected, their group was filled with a large assembly of talented people. Each of them could be catastrophic weapons in their own right while their mortal enemy was only a solitary man with no support. Somehow, he had still managed to gain the upper hand. Both Ji Fei and Shui Jing also picked up the smell of danger that was pinning down at the top of their heads together. When Wen Leong had found the heaven telling sex obscure cultivator, this was equivalent to receiving a key to the treasure chest. However, the item within the chest was something that Xian Lu was determined to acquire, and once he had acquired it, he would start the end of the world that no one dares to imagine. Even though they do not understand what the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog, was, Xiang Lu would never allow anyone else to covet the thing he was after. Especially since they were also his enemy. After they had found the obscure cultivator from the heaven-telling sect, 
they had then devised a plan while they were at the Red Leaves Forest earlier. From now on, when Leong and the others' movements have become top secret. Ji Fei had not expected the situation to become so critical beforehand. He drew in several cold breaths as he hastily shook his head and said, I don't want to know anymore, I don't want to know anymore. It's safer for me not to know about this matter. The Rainbow's first brother could not hold himself back anymore as he stopped walking and declared to Changli, this grand old lady need not worry about that matter which had taken place in the one family village. The Rainbow Brothers would never reveal even a half a sentence to any outsiders. Xiang Lu is the vilest monster in the world and though we are doing our best to survive, we would never want to be associated with his evil deeds. Chang Li's expression was rather troubled, well, my main concern was not whether you would find Xiang Lu on your own accord. I'm more concerned about what I should do if Xiang Lu were to find all of you and whether a few person's lives are more important than the lives of the others. Her gaze swept past each and every one of the Rainbow Brothers as she said that before finally settling on Ji Fei and Shui Jing. The two monks were so terrified until their legs became so limp that they were almost unable to stand anymore. The old monk Ji Fei clenched his teeth as he stayed upright with great effort. He then shouted in a righteous and awe-inspiring manner, If Xiang Lu were to find us, we will risk our lives and fight him. The fat monk Shui Jing had initially wanted to compliment the old monk but he had only nodded once before he felt disheartened. To fight Xiang Lu. One would attract the wrath of the gods just by thinking about this idea. Chang Li still feigned indecision and Wen Leong could not help but laugh. When they had discussed this matter in the forest earlier, he was aware that Chang Li had come up with an idea. He chuckled as he waved his hand at Ji Fei and Shui Jing, if you would like to know, then I will tell you the course of events in this matter before inviting the Grand Master to. Before he could finish his sentence, the sound of agonized cries abruptly echoed around him Ji Fei, Shui Jing, and the Rainbow Brothers were filled with sadness as they held each other's hands. When Nine and When Thirteen too have somehow joined in the lamentation. At first glance, they almost looked like they were the Chinese national football team who were bidding their farewells to the swimming association. Chang Li was fully satisfied at long last. She laughed so hard the flowers and branches around her shook and sobbed hysterically as she spoke, I will erase all of your memories now if you chose not listen to the story. If all of you are willing, you can also listen to the story before I erase your memories. The result would still be the same anyhow. They were all sensible people and understood why it was important not to let the information of the one family finding the heaven-telling sex obscure cultivator be leaked to any outsiders. If that happens, Xiang Lu would be immediately drawn in and create boundless great troubles for the one family. Ever since the Rainbow Brothers found out that Chang Li has assumed command in the one family and the matter had become related to Xiang Lu, they were aware that they have stepped into the gates of hell. They then placed all their hopes into Wen Liang's virtuous and sincere heart and, as expected, Wen Liang had not disappointed them. If they had counted on Chang Li's own temperament, she would have plucked the heads off the Rainbow Brothers directly. The fat monk Shui Jing was still a little worried as he asked Chang Li cautiously. Sealing our memories Chang Li did not wait for him to finish speaking as she shook her head impatiently, Tian Yin cultivates the orthodox magical arts of a profound sect. He is also equipped with the three brother disciples life vitality force. He would be able to break the seal if I only sealed your memories so I've chosen to erase your memories entirely. The demon sect is an expert in charming the soul so it is not a difficult task to erase just a portion of one's memories. If Shan Duan or Bu Lu were here, there would be no need for me to do so at all. Upon saying that, she then paused for a moment before laughing, don't worry, I won't erase everything and you won't turn into an idiot. I will only erase everything that you remember after you found out that the Wei Mo's martial uncle was hiding in the one family. The fat monk Shui Jing's face was filled with surprised joy as if he had just escaped a great danger. His face also showed some admiration for the top demon's magical art. He nodded and was about to say something when the old monk Ji Fei could not hold back anymore. He blurted out hastily as he tugged at Wen Liang's arm, tell us quick from the beginning to the end, what has actually happened. His expression was filled with the mannerism of a ghost who had died from eating too much. 
Wen Leung chuckled and he then described the entire matter of how Wen Shulin had helped Xiang Lu to calculate at all the nine places, the course of how he had hidden in the Red Leaves Forest. And how they now plan to continue pursuing the calculations in order to fulfill their wish to become ghosts that have died from eating too much. In Chang Li's perception, it was not a difficult matter to launch the demon magic to erase their memories. The exertion of her demonic primordial energy and the time to cast the spell was related only to her cultivation base. The amount of their memories she would erase has no bearing on those factors so she allowed them to know about the situation beforehand. This could be considered as her better treatment for her captives. It did not take long before when Leong finished talking about the situation. He did not even try to hide their plan to visit Mount Hua immediately before heading to the Chilean Mountains and the Ore Cave on the Snowy Peak. Chang Li waited patiently until he shut his mouth before she immediately started casting the magic spell joyously. It took almost half an hour to cast the magic spell. After the nine of them woke up, their faces appeared dull and it was apparent that they did not understand how they had ended up there. When Leung coughed once and chuckled before he tried to ask them something in probing when the fat monk Shui Jing's gaze suddenly shone with immortal radiance. He then grabbed Wen Leung as he laughed aloud in a low muffled voice, this little Ong's giver possesses a clear and marvelous physique with an immortal radiance on the outside while absorbing vital essences on the inside. Quick, give me a kowtow and formally acknowledge me as your master. He was beaming with joy as he said that. Chang Li exclaimed as she giggled, oops I may have accidentally erased too much. The old monk Ji Fei, however, was still relatively normal. He could remember that when Leong was his master because he had lost a bet and his final memory was of his journey to Mount Pan of Tianjin Municipality to look for the Gongya family's assistance in forging weapons. Even though he could not recall how he has ended up in the mountain suddenly, he still grabbed onto the fat monk and asked aloud in puzzlement, Bald monkey, could it be that you've turned crazy? Are you thinking of bullying the master and betraying the ancestors? The fat monk Shui Jing was at first startled but he squalled loudly soon after, Monk Ji Fei, I'm the one who had discovered this young successor first. The others tested the Rainbow Brothers and they could only remember things which had taken place before the fierce battle of the Five Blessings on the Nine Peaks Mountain. They all felt shocked and suspicious when they had woken up and were now giggling and pretending to be fools once again. When Leong and Chang Li discussed the matter at length and they appeared certain as they pointed out that the Big Flat Cake, Broken Gong, and Dog seems to be related to Xiang Lu. As expected, the Rainbow Brothers stood and gazed at one another in surprise before they began to vent about how they missed their home. They subsequently enjoyed another meal of stir-fried eggs after returning to the one family village before they left the Nine Peaks Mountain. Even though Wen Shulin's supernatural power was not as impressive as Wei Mo had boasted, Wen Leong had still managed to find him at long last. The relief Wen Leong felt was almost as if a sting had been removed from his chest. To him, this could still be considered as a satisfactory ending with great effort. Now, the only loose end was if 19 of One Word Palace would react unpredictably and seize the opportunity to raid the Red Leaves Forest, which would render Chang Li and Wen Liang's efforts in vain. Chang Li gave a forced laugh as she shook her head, we have forgotten about another thing here. 19 is probably not only here for the sole purpose of locating Wen Shu Lin. When Leon was filled with puzzlement and he shook his head in confusion, what have we forgotten? The One Word Palace had proposed the marriage first and Third Brother Wei had died on Mount Amei later. Upon saying that, Chang Li glared at Wen Leong in a bold and confident manner, I'm a senior here so my memory is naturally not that good. You, on the contrary, are still young, how could you forget such crucial matter? The matter related to the One Word Palace's marriage proposal felt like it had happened a long, long time ago. It almost feels like it had happened in his previous lifetime. Wen Leong was feeling a little puzzled at first but after he pondered the matter thoroughly he was suddenly enlightened. Third Brother Wei and Wei Mo had made an agreement to meet on Mount Amei beforehand. His purpose had been to find out the whereabouts of the Wei Mo's martial uncle yet he had unexpectedly bumped into the top good hands of the world sect. They had then perished together after a violent battle. However, before Third Brother Wei visited Mount Amei, Mahashue had already come over to propose the marriage. 
This signified that when they had proposed the marriage, the one word palace was still looking for the whereabouts of Wei Mo's martial uncle and had utterly no idea that he was hiding in the one family's territory. Otherwise, third brother Wei would not have needed to meet Wei Mo on Mount Amei. When Leong scratched the back of his head in distress and he hesitated as he spoke, so, had the one word palace truly taken fancy to me? Chang Li exclaimed indifferently before she burst into laughter. Ever since the Five Blessings Great Battle on the Nine Peaks Mountain, Nineteen had remained at the one family village while the one word palace handled their matters in low profile manner. It was a chaotic mess in the cultivation world now with the complete loss of all outstanding cultivators from the Ayang sect and the Jilong sect. The Kunlun sect have also relocated their sect's headquarters while painting towns Leong Wen's whereabouts were also unknown. The world sect had seized the opportunity to create trouble and whether it was the small sects or the rogue cultivators, everyone was in danger. The Great Mercy Temple had remained firm and unmoved with the demon rabbits holding the line but the one word palace had almost vanished into thin air. Noon had heard any information about them at all. If it had not been for the reason of finding the heaven-telling sex obscure cultivator. When Leon could not understand why Nineteen had persistently stayed in the one family and refused to leave during the violent battle with the weeping Buddha back then, the one word palace had spared no efforts in helping them. Nineteen had even almost sacrificed herself in order to save them. The Wen family acknowledged their human kindness and as long as Nineteen stays in the Wen family village in an honest manner, the Wen family would provide good food, good drink, and good treatment. The Wen family had the old demon rabbit who had assumed personal command beforehand so even the Rainbow Brothers had not dared to act recklessly, needless to say about Nineteen as well. However, the old demon rabbit has returned to the Great Mercy Temple but there was now an addition of two more good hands in the one family which were 1-9 and 1-13. They could still manage the situation with ease should 19 behave unusually. Moreover, little Chi Maojio and Mumu were also residing in the Nine Peaks Mountain temporarily. Since they had just broken the secret technique of fusing the three arts into one earlier, they still had plenty of cultivation methods insights to exchange. It had taken them four days to complete the journey from the one family village to the Red Leaves Forest and back. Qin Zhui had safely awoken on the third day after he had passed out but he then left the Nine Peaks Mountain in a hurry not long before Wen Liang's return. Wen Liang exclaimed in disappointment as Qin Zhui had left without bidding farewell. It now looks like that the prospect of locating the land of Wood Spirit in the Mount Hua trip was entirely hopeless. Chang Li was not bothered at all. To her, this trip to Mount Hua was mainly to return Guo Huan's soul to his split body. If they do not succeed in locating the land of Wood Spirit, there was still the ore cave on the snowy peak and even the gold consuming lair at the Chilean Mountains for them to calculate at. When Shulin's identity was special, he was the key but also the fuse that was directly connected to the gunpowder barrel called Xiang Lu. They had discussed during their journey that from now on until they have solved the riddle of the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog, when Xu Lin would never leave Chang Li's side even for an inch. Therefore, even if Xiang Lu truly comes for a kill, Chang Li could escape with Wen Xu Lin. As for Wen Leon, he was naturally on the same path as Chang Li so he would first save Guo Huan before he would calculate the elemental lands of the world. Mu Mu and Wen Xiaoyi were instructed to stay back on the Nine Peaks Mountain by their respective family elders and were not allowed to join Wen Liang's adventure. Even though the two young girls had been unwilling, they understood that they would bring more trouble if they followed Wen Leong so they stayed behind in the end. Xiao Wu had been sent by fifth brother Hanba as reinforcement so she was determined to follow Wen Leong. In her little heart, her assistance was equal to helping them to fight Xiao Wu was inherently gifted with exuberant demonic power, her actual power was no less inferior to Wen Leong before he had refined his treasured weapons. Even though her power was no good in the face of Xiang Lu, having such a little fighter by their side was not a burden to them. The Rainbow Brothers, as expected, descended the mountain on the same night after dinner. Their memories have been erased and they forgot about everything else which had happened later. Now that they found out that the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog was being sought after by Xiang Lu, how would they dare to be associated with those items anymore? They then hastily left the Nine Peaks Mountain and led the world sect to rise in arms earnestly. Chapter, 238 
Before they left the Wen family village, Chang Li took a few days to use her strong and vigorous demonic primordial energy and help Second Elder Wen, Third Elder Wen, as well as the Bushuo and Buzwa siblings to remold their meridians. The decades worth of laborious cultivation of these four Wen families' good hands could be considered wasted but now that they have received Chang Li's demonic primordial energy. Their combat capabilities had not deteriorated at all but were instead enhanced. They still possessed the physique of a regular person but after their meridians had been remolded, it was natural that they would not have attained the peak level of cultivation like Qin Zhui. However, they could use the demonic primordial energy's meridians to drive the faulty punch so their actual power was no less inferior than the ordinary master cultivators in the Five Blessings. Chang Li also left behind a cultivation method to the four of them that was certainly futile if they wanted to use the cultivation to ascend into the heavens as an immortal. After all, even Chang Li was still a small demon. However, if they were to continue their cultivation according to this method, they could cultivate a few supernatural powers and could very possibly become admirable in the cultivation world. Right now, in the Wen family village, the two silly uncles Wen Nine and Wen Thirteenth's combined power of attack was almost on par with the small demon rabbit Shan Duan's power. Mumu and little Chi Maojiu's actual power was a grade higher than third brother Wei from the One Word Palace and Mahashue's lineage. The remaining four which was comprised of Second Elder Wen, Third Elder Wen, Wen Bushuo, and Wen Buzhuo were no less inferior to master cultivators of Qin Yao and San Tong's level. They could easily deal with ordinary enemies but they were also coordinating their efforts with the Great Mercy Temple that was also located in the same Shu state. Essentially, as long as Xiang Lu does not make an appearance personally, no one else would be capable of being a real threat to them anymore. It had taken you've got me around 10 days to successfully conquer the sword's resolve, Fire Tail. Its initially fiery red body was now so vivid that it looked like the bug would catch fire at any moment. It also appeared to be fatter than before. You've Got Me was now filled with an awe-inspiring manner, when it shook its head and wagged its tail, a layer of fiery halo would ripple in the air. However, despite how much effort the bug had exerted, the giant sword molten metal fire bell which had been left on the highland snowy peak earlier had not responded to its summons. When Leon frowned in slight puzzlement as he asked Guo Huan, is the sword too far away? Guo Huan cursed uncourteously, bullshed. He was about to continue his scolding when Chang Li abruptly arrived out of nowhere. She then glared at the jade knife as she enunciated her words clearly, only the family elders and I have the right to scold Wen Leong. Guo Huan laughed angrily and Wen Leong too laughed before he hastily refocused the topic of conversation. These two old demons too could not figure out why you've got me, could not summon the giant sword even though it had absorbed the soul power from the sword's resolve. They debated for a long while and the only explanation they could come up with was that the power of the sword's resolve was too pure and strong so you've got me, still needed more time to digest it. There was nothing else left to prepare. Chang Li, Wen Leong, Xiao Wu, Wen Shu Lin as well as the Jade Knife Guo Huan then left the Wen family village and departed for Mount Hua once again. Before they descended the mountain. First Elder Wen advised and reminded them over and over again that Wen Leong must certainly rush back to the village before the fourth lunar month for the second wedding date was still on the tenth day of the fourth lunar month. Any delays meant that it would not be an auspicious day anymore. Chang Li gritted her teeth and swore by the heavens that she would never hold Wen Leong up, no matter what. This small group of people, other than Wen Shu Lin, were all elites. Even if they were to really bump into Tian Yin, it was highly possible that they could manage to escape. Chang Li, especially, does not need to worry about Tian Yin at all. She smiled as she explained it to Wen Leong during the journey, when I had crushed the heaven's cone nail in the past, the three of them, Tian Yin, Tian Shu, and Tian Hua had joined hands and they were still not on par with me. If it had not been for Guo Huan who had created trouble there, how could I ever allow your Grand Master to attack? Guo Huan exclaimed in outrage, it was feeling quite affronted. Wen Leong laughed as he nodded. He understood Chang Li's explanation as the cultivation base of the Three Sword Immortals on the Black and White Island was on the same gradation as Chang Li's. Even for the giant pangolin who was ranked closely behind them right now, when he was compared to the Sword Immortals and Chang Li's grade of cultivation, it was akin to the difference between some little white mice and humans. 
However, judging from the humans, a strong and burly man who was fighting against three skinny and weak ordinary person would not necessarily lose. The difference between Chang Li and the three sword immortals Tian Shu, Tian Hua, and Tian Yin was equal to the strongly burly man and the skinny and weak ordinary persons. Chang Li continued to laugh as she spoke, if I were to go up against Tian Yin right now, my actual power is not the problem, the most troublesome part is the true soul which has possessed Tian Yin. He will have the ability to possess others as well and there's no way we can refine him right now. Wen Leong continued to nod. He was still slightly confused when Guo Huan, who had pondered on that and understood the situation, chuckled and spoke, the troublesome part is that the true soul is unwilling to leave Tian Yin's Dharma body as well. Xiang Lu's true soul had refined for 2000 years before he could completely occupy that Dharma body with the ultimate cultivation base. To Xiang Lu, the biggest disadvantage of Tian Yin's Dharma body is that he can never destroy the prohibition spells on the Black and White Island. Even so, unless it was his last resort, the true soul would never possess another person. It is meaningless for him to possess a person with poor cultivation power while if he were to possess someone with strong cultivation powers, the top master cultivators like Chang Li. Zhui Zi or Hanba or myself, whose primordial spirit is vigorous and firm to the greatest extent, it would be an easy process for the true soul to possess the body. However, in order to exercise complete control of the entire body, it would at least take him a thousand and eight hundred years time. Chang Li chuckled as she nodded, that's right. In simpler words, it is the situation where both sides are unwell now. We dare not attack Tian Yin as hard as we can and the true soul is even more unwilling to spend another thousand years to occupy a new body once again. Therefore, if we were to truly meet that bugger on our journey, we need not worry too much. We shall be able to escape as he would not be daring enough to push us too far. Otherwise, it will not be beneficial for the two parties when both sides suffer losses. We would only need to careful not to fall into his schemes. It was not a difficult theory to understand. It was only the fact that Xiang Lu's presence gave too much psychological stress to Wen Leong and he had unknowingly placed Xiang Lu as an almost undefeatable foe in his mind. In simpler words, Wen Leong was still willing to risk his life but the attitude he had in his heart was to only do his best and leave the rest to God's will. Chang Li seemed to recall something once again and she beamed with joy as she spoke to the Jade Knife, if only I could lure Tian Yin to the Or Caves 13 shall not pass prohibition spell then all will be well. We can kill two birds with one stone. That body of his is much better than your split body by a hundred folds. When Leong too laughed along with her though this idea of hers would only stay in her imagination, there was almost no possibility that it could be realized. Even if they managed to capture Tian Yin, the true soul could still spontaneously explode his own Dharma body then seek another person to possess. When faced with the matter of life and death, no matter how unwilling the true soul was, he would still abandon and destroy Tian Yin's body without hesitation. Xiao Wu did not understand the conversation and had been engrossed in chewing the chewing gum that Wen Leong had just bought for her. When the chewing gum lost its flavor, she swallowed it before she put a new piece into her mouth. After when Xu Lin had lost his nose, he looked much younger than before. He listened to the group's discussion and revealed a mouthful of black and yellow teeth as he reminded them cautiously. As you are bringing me along this time, I'm afraid that Xiang Lu will fight all of you violently the moment he sees all of you. Guo Hua would see the light of the day once again soon so he was in a good mood as he laughed and continued when Shulin's topic of conversation, Xiang Lu doesn't know that you are with us now and no one aside from us knows about our whereabouts. The trip to Mount Hua is more about looking for my split body so there ought to be not too much danger in that. Wen Leung scoffed at that, ever since he had cultivated Wen Lotzi's domineering cultivation method, he had left the mountain on many occasions to handle other matters. More than half of his missions had seemed harmless in the beginning he was either being protected and escorted by other master cultivators or the enemy's actual power had seemed to be pretty ordinary at first. However, every one of those missions had turned out to become life and death situations. When Leon could not help but touch his head when he recalled those moments, he was amazed that his head had been tough enough to survive all those incidents. This was especially true during his last trip to the snowy peak, the surviving warriors of the small town, the Chilean immortal sect, the heavenly walker lama, 
the monstrous monkey until even Xian Lu's true soul had appeared in the end. Wen Leon could still feel a lingering fear when he thought about the past now and he could not really comprehend how he had managed to survive those ordeals. Just as he was talking about the Snowy Peaks trip, Wen Leon suddenly recalled the matter of Zhui Zi's memories being sealed. He frowned as he asked Chang Li, if the cultivators from the demon sect are capable of tampering with other people's memories, can you help Zhui Zi to break the seal on her memories? Chang Li shook her head in determination, I can't be bothered, let her figure that out by herself until she is troubled and bored to death. Wen Leon was astonished and his mouth was agape as he did not know what else to say. After a while, he asked shyly, if you are able to help then it's best to help a little in Wen Liang's perception, Chang Li and Zhui Zi were really enemies but the person who had always suffered the loss was Zhui Zi. Guo Huan laughed in the jade knife, Zhui Zi's primordial soul had been stripped away in her past life by someone and refined into the ice cone nail. That person had used the art of soul, which was a magical art, to strip her primordial spirit and seal her memories. While this demonic lady here is an expert in charming the soul and is also inherently good at tampering with others' memories, it's an entirely different matter when it comes to the art of soul. He then paused for a moment, in Zhui Zi's attempt to recover her past memories. She can either depend on the power of the heavenly water spirit to break through the seal herself or to locate the person who had cast the spell to solve her problem. Chang Li would be completely of no help to her even though he does not understand the principles amongst these magic arts. It did not stop Wen Leong from understanding that for the matter of recovering Zhui Zi's memories, the demon sex art of charm was completely helpless in this situation. He then laughed and spoke to Chang Li who was still gritting her teeth in rage beside him, it's not that you can't be bothered, it's something that you can't bother instead. Chang Li pursed her mischievous lips and made an expression to show her disdain, whether this can be bothered or not, I can't be bothered. Upon saying that, she pondered for a moment before she emphasized, this is the issue of my attitude. Wen Leong laughed. Since Chang Li would be of no help to Zhui Zi, he was too lazy to be concerned whether this was an issue of attitude or capability. With the speed of modern transportation vehicles, Wen Leong's group had not expended too much time to travel from Sichuan to Mount Hua. When they arrived, Wen Leong called the Wen family to inform them that they had arrived safely. He then carried the noseless man on his back as he exerted his strength and ran behind Chang Li. He swept into the huge mountain like the wind and while Xiao Wu could actually catch up to Wen Liang's speed by herself, the little girl was playing the scoundrel and refused to run by herself so she had jumped into Wen Liang's arms. Mount Hua was different from the vast and extensiveness of the Tangula Mountains, the indivisible perfection of Mount Amei, and the desolated and unsophisticated Chilean Mountains. Mount Hua looked down on the entire world with its dangerously steep terrains whether it was a lone mountain peak or a stretch of rolling and connected hills, there was the inherent sense of sharpness everywhere. When seen from afar, one could feel that those mountain peaks would really pierce into one's eyes. As when Leon was dashing wildly through the mountains, he suddenly felt like he was dancing on the cutting edge of a sword. The three families of the one, Miao, and Luo made their homes on great mountains and while these mountains were also sharply defined, they lacked a sense of grace which was present in Mount Hua. The Nine Peaks Mountains, the Seven Maidens Mountain, and Crow Ridge resembled poignant short knives while Mount Hua was akin to a piercing cold longsword which had once existed in the hands of a rare nobleman. It was the Heaven Sword that executed demons. Ever since they have entered Mount Hua, Guo Huan has become even more anxious. He no longer cared if someone interrupted his conversation as he talked continuously all the way. He was especially hung up about how he had crushed the heaven's cone nail with Chang Li and repeated that story countless times. Wen Leong smiled manically along the way and Chang Li too showed some rare patience. Not only did she complain about her annoyance with Guo Huan, she would occasionally laugh and chime into his conversation as well. The few of them dashed through the mountain for more than a half a day before Chang Li suddenly interrupted Guo Huan's conversation, Hey, mountain ghost, let me ask you this. If you were to regain your Dharma body, will you be seeking revenge on me? Guo Huan immediately answered, Of course I won't. Chang Li did not speak but she used her huge eyes to give the jade knife an evil glare. After a while, Guo Huan sniggered, The split body's magical power won't be adequate so I would need to recuperate for a while. 
Though I had been able to fight Tian Shu and Tian Hua from the past with effort and the addition of the Yin's error and Yang's mistake. I'm still far from being able to deal with you if I still want to seek my revenge, perhaps I will discuss it later when the day that I can finally defeat you arrives. Chang Li suddenly stopped walking and she spoke with a stern expression, I am helping you to find your Dharma body and return your soul. The reason I'm doing this is because you have helped his disciples and disciples disciples time and again if your soul was returned to your split body this time. I only want you to promise me that whether it was the great enmity of stealing your treasured weapon, breaking your cultivation base, or shattering your Dharma body, I want you to hold only me accountable on all these. Guo Huan abruptly laughed loudly, his stiff voice shook everyone's ears until their eardrums were buzzing, Demon Cat, that wishful thinking of yours is impressive. Even if I were to throw all the great enmity onto you, when I come to get my revenge, that when young lad and those from the Luo family, the Miao clansmen, and everyone else will jump out and risk their lives to fight me. Wen Leong laughed as he nodded, though he did not speak. Guo Huan continued to laugh, I understand your intention, our debt of gratitude and revenge is a hideous mess. I'm too lazy to think about it. If the fancy takes me one day and I come to take my revenge on you, I will never make things difficult for those little brats so you need not worry about that. Chong Li laughed and the smile lines around her lips wiped away the huge mountain's sword-like sharpness. She then pointed at a stretch of rolling hills that was neither too large nor too high, we're here. That stretch of grave mounds is the prohibition spell that you had laid down back in those days. Guo Huan was suddenly furious but before he could speak, Chang Li continued to laugh, congratulations to this old demon. This stretch of prohibition spells magic power still exists. It seems that your split body should still be in the immortal's cave. As she was saying that, she stretched out her delicate arms and wrapped them around Wen Liang's waist, young lad, no matter what we may meet later, you are not allowed to cultivate your power to resist. I want you to leave everything to me you ought to just close your eyes. Xiao Wu looked to the left then to the right before she crawled onto Chang Li's back in a great bustle. She then wrapped her arms firmly around the demon cat's neck, having chosen another form of transportation with an even higher safety margin. Soon after, she shut her eyes tightly. When Leon could only feel the grip on his waist tighten as a soft but irresistible force abruptly swept him off his feet. A stream of bitterly cold mountain wind followed Chongli and surged towards the rolling hills in front of them. Before they entered the protective circle of prohibition spell, when Leon could not tell that there was anything anomalous about the location. His water-like telegnosis ability was spread out and he could notice as the bald branches rustled and shook. In a nest that was exposed between the branches, two large magpies were squeezing and rubbing together intimately while a few ants on the tree bark were crawling about in boredom. However, following Chang Li's entrance, the sky and land changed its appearance suddenly. Wen Leon could not tell if this was an illusion or a magic spell but he could only feel as the sky and earth spun around. The nearby hills were turned into raging wild beasts and within their thundering roars, the beasts pounced towards himself. At the same time, the magnificent and peculiar mountains from afar too seemed to have come to life. They were like arrogant giants as they turned around one after another and used its contemptuous gaze to look at the trespassers. Wen Leong did not doubt at all that if these violent beast-like hills could not harm them, those huge mountains which have turned into giants would immediately swing their gigantic fists and pound them into a stretch of muddy flesh. Chang Li's movements were extremely swift and the sharp air hissed beside her and Wen Leong's bodies. Countless sharp weapons which were so fast that Wen Leong could not even discern their shapes howled and appeared swiftly like the sharp claws of divine dragons. These weapons tore the hills that were attacking them into pieces. Guo Huan exclaimed in astonishment and asked Chang Li, Do you plan to fight your way in forcefully? Chang Li launched her supernatural power to break the prohibition spell as she answered, I'm bringing along a group of burdensome brats so I can't just run my way there. But the situation here time is so much better than the previous one without the disturbance of the yin's error and yang's mistake. Back then she was halfway through her speech when she suddenly shouted. Her hand shook once as a layer of black-colored knives surged and appeared in layers akin to giant trees that densely surrounded Chongli, Wen Leong and the rest. Soon after that, a sound that was loud enough to rouse the heavens echoed as the highest mountain peak nearby crashed into Chongli's supernatural power. 
The surge lasted for a long time before it gradually receded. Guo Huan laughed in a heartless manner, the power of the prohibition spell that I had laid down back in those days can still be considered rather remarkable. He had episodic amnesia and could remember some of the events which had taken place in the past clearly but he could not remember the course of events which involved his immortal's cave no matter how hard he tried. Chang Li, on the other hand, suddenly exclaimed in surprise and spoke to Wen Leong as she giggled, we are out of our minds. As she was saying that, she stretched out her hand and plucked the jade knife from below his neck. Wen Leong soon discovered in astonishment that Chang Li had retracted her supernatural power. One of her hands was waving the jade knife while her other hand was wrapped around himself as she ran in quick strides towards the depths of the prohibition spell. The hills were stacked up and the thundering sound was still echoing. Guo Huan had broken out in curses from being startled. Even the pitch of his voice had changed, sounding very bitter and forlorn. However, the moment the overbearing power of the prohibition spell blasted onto the jade knife, it would disperse off quietly after a shake like a violent beast which had seen its master's whip. Chang Li cheered, the prohibition spell that you had laid down recognizes your primordial spirit upon saying that, she then complimented her effort, a trial of chance, effective as expected. The moment Guo Huan heard that, he broke out into curses even more. He watched helplessly as the mountain peaks crashed towards his direction. Even though the prohibition spell would lose its power in a flash just as it was about to come into contact with him, it was still all very upsetting to Guo Huan. Chang Li ignored Guo Huan's squalls as she raised the jade knife high in the air and pulled Wen Leong along, walking through the prohibition spell easily. Wen Leong felt his entire body lighten up as the deadly scene which had covered the sky and land earlier suddenly subsided. In its place was a proud and bold liveliness which enveloped everyone's body all at once. Though they had only seen bare winter trees outside, the vision before their eyes was filled with boundless fresh greenery. Wen Shulin, who was lying on Wen Liang's back, back could not help but gasp softly and he trembled as he muttered to himself, this is the immortal's cave. Wen Liang too peered at Chang Li with a gaze that was filled with uncertainty. The scene before his eyes was luxuriant and green, it was unlike the immortal's cave of a demon but was apparently a large stretch of boundless forest. Chang Li too had not expected this and was stunned for a moment. However, she soon reacted to the situation and laughed crisply, we're at the right place but no one has visited this place in over 2000 years so it's overgrown with vegetation. Upon saying that, she grabbed Wen Leong, you will understand more as we take a walk. Wen Liang's telegnosis ability was spread out in all directions. As he followed Chang Li and walked to the deep end, he soon discovered in surprise that this place had initially been an enormous palace which was so majestic that words could not do it justice. This was but an immortal's cave that was as vast as the heavens and earth but it had been overgrown with a lush and boundless forest. The immortal's cave finally appeared at the edge of his telegnosis ability and immediately made Wen Leung stare in bewilderment. It was a vast and magnificent palace which has been enlarged by a million folds with a softly glimmering dome which was wider than the sky. A few white clouds floated beneath the dome and the palace was supported not by stone pillars, instead, its support was mountain peaks with the corners and edges polished off. This was not a place for humans to live in. If one were to toss a football field into this area, it would only take up the space of half a tile. If a 30 meters long blue whale weighing 200 tons were to enter the palace, it would instantly become an ant and it would not even be the kind of large ant with wings. Wen Leon witnessed everything before his eyes in surprise and made a clicking sound in his throat. He finally spat out a mouthful of air heavily after a long while, this immortal's cave is it really in Mount Hua? The place here was truly too enormous, he felt as if he was having a nightmare as a child, dreaming that he was continuously growing smaller while everything in his surroundings was growing wildly. Xiaowu's telegnosis ability has seen the palace hidden underneath the forest as well, her voice quivered as she continued the topic of conversation. This is impossible, even if you were to stuff the entire Mount Hua into this place, it would not even fill up half the space. Wen Leong inhaled the cold air as he nodded earnestly. Guo Huan's immortal's cave was not only enormous to its greatest extent, it was also magnificent to its greatest extent. It was richly ornamented with carved beams and painted rafters while simple and unsophisticated ancient scripts covered the area beneath their feet to the edge of their sight. 
Chang Li was aware that these people had not experienced life before and she laughed as she explained, this stretch of sky and land has been sealed by demonic power since back then. You can't see or touch it from the outside but it does not mean that it is non-existent. Before the mountain ghost had met with the accident, his actual power was still passable. Upon saying that, she stretched out her hand and knocked onto the jade knife, Guo Huan, after you have seen the light of the day once again, please help me to build an immortal's cave too. Mountain ghosts and rock demons like you have some means of managing earth and wood. When Le Young's expression was filled with uncertainty, the immortal's cave that is sealed by demonic power is capable of growing vegetation. Chang Li laughed as she answered, the wood element dominates reproduction and penetrates every nook and corner, it's tenacious albeit without steel. This is also the land of the wood spirit so it isn't considered rare scene for grass and trees to break through and push into the immortal's cave since his prohibition spell has sealed the palace from the outside world. This springtime in this place would last throughout the year. I will be surprised if it does not become a large forest. Guo Huan was also shocked by his own immortal's cave he had the impression that he had been a great demon which had walked alone in the past like a snow-cloaked man who would come and go like the wind. He did not expect that he was rather corrupted as well. He was suddenly jolted awake by Chang Li's words and sniggered foolishly as he hastily responded hesitantly, this is truly my immortal's cave. However, Chang Li did not wait for him to finish talking as she directly spoke and continued the topic of conversation, you need not ponder too much first, we shall look around before we discuss any further. Upon saying that, she passed Xiaowu back to Wen Leong and instructed him, stay in the same spot and wait for me. Soon after that, her body swayed once and she disappeared from the edge of his sight at lightning fast speed. This immortal's cave was too enormous and it was also covered in thick vegetation and plants. Chang Li had complained that Wen Leong was too slow but she was also afraid that Guo Huan's split body would still retain some remnant memories and it would cause harm. This was why she had refused to allow Wen Leong to take part in the search for the split body. Based on the detection of Wen Liang's telegnosis ability, he could not estimate the size of the palace at all. Chang Li had taken the jade knife with her and was gone for a long while before they returned. Wen Shu Lin was bored from waiting so he had run here and touched there before starting his calculations. He even laughed as he told Wen Liang, there's an advantage to revealing my identity, at least I need not cover up secretively when I want to calculate. His technique was far more advanced than Wei Mo's, he had brought along a notepad and a ballpoint pen with him while Wei Mo had just upgraded from using a charcoal strip to chalk. It was only until two days later that Chang Li returned with an expression of uncertainty between her brows. Wen Leong immediately welcomed her but Chang Li shook her head at him, the split body isn't here. Wen Leong exclaimed in surprise and did not know what to say. Xiao Wu was behaving like a small adult as she frowned together with Chang Li, could it be that the split body had left? Chang Li shook her head, the mountain ghost has pledged in all sincerity that even though his split body had been fully refined, its primordial spirit had been shattered. It would be just like a fetus made from flesh, not knowing how to walk, move, or think. Wen Leong was still unwilling to give up as he pointed towards the depth of the immortal's cave, have you searched everywhere? Chang Li nodded, I did not leave behind an inch of area unsearched. Large stretches of vines and branches had pushed into the mountain walls in the depths of the palace and covered a large surface area, I had swept past the entire area inch by inch but there was nothing there. Guo Huan, who had not spoken all along, suddenly heaved a sigh. His voice was dull as he laughed, we can't figure that out so forget about it, we can still go the ore cave on the snowy peak when all else fails. Chang Li pondered for a moment before she heaved a sigh gently at last, then I shall help you to look for a good body. Following that, she frowned as she pondered for a moment before she asked probingly, what do you think of the giant pangolin? Wen Leung exclaimed as Zhui Zi had given the same idea to Guo Huan back then. Chang Li's eyes brightened once again and she became joyous all at once, she then raised the jade knife and asked, on a young mountain, there is still one more split body left behind by the Taoist priest San Wei. That body is not very different from your split body. Wen Leong was startled once again. San Wei was an honest and upright person and he did not commit any major sins, if he was captured and destroyed, it did not make any sense. Even Guo Hua gave a forced laugh, 
the monk and I had spent some time together in the Jade Knife, he was considered a friend to me anyhow we shall keep him as a backup plan first. Chapter, 239 Around the same time when Wen Leong had left the family village and rushed towards Mount Hua, both Ji Fei and Shui Jing too left the Nine Peaks Mountain. Ever since both of them have acknowledged Wen Leong as their master, they have treated the Nine Peaks Mountain as their holiday home. They would wander around the outside world and return when they were tired to rest there for a while. They would then leave again when they grew bored of the mountain so no one paid any attention to their movements. The old monk Ji Fei had not said a single word during the journey as he pulled the fat monk along and hurried forward with a lowered head. Finally, when they were at a distance from the great mountain, the old monk Ji Fei stopped walking and asked his junior mysteriously, Fat monk, is it true that you can't remember anything at all? The fat monk Shui Jing was dazed as he rubbed his fair-skinned hand on his head strenuously. His face was filled with helplessness as he said, the last thing I remember was was that we were discussing on how to deceive that red-shirt girl into giving us her lantern and stone tablet. The old monk sniggered as he then dragged the fat monk to a desolated spot that he had found. He then filled in the fat monk's missing memories in detail to the fat monk. Even the memories which were supposed to be erased by Chang Li concerning the big flat cake, broken gong. And dog, that was imperative to Xiang Lu that when Xu Lin was the obscure cultivator and also the fact that when Liang's group were rushing to Mount Hua, all these were relayed by him back to the fat monk. Ji Fei also talked about their experience with the demon cat, the chaos in the Great Mercy Temple, the adventure in Painting Town, as well as the fierce battle of the Yang sex master cultivators on the highway. These encounters startled the fat monk and it took him a long while before he could recover from his surprise. He glared at the old monk and asked, why had the demon cat's magical art failed to erase your memories? The old monk Ji Fei revealed an expression that was too profound to be understood and his intentionally lowered voice sounded very despicable, fat monk, do you still remember what my cultivation method is? It's the, a thousand miles of rivers reflects the moon in a cloudless sky with a clear mind and spirit cleansing art of sword. After the fat monk had finished speaking, he felt that there was still more to say and added. My cultivation method is the musical divine lotus sect suit of armor ancient Bhagwa Buddhist hymn the supreme spirits crossing over Anatara Samyaksambodhi supernatural power. The old monk Ji Fei nodded, that's correct. Other than your actual power and supernatural power, your cultivation method is tightly pinned to those three words Anatara Samyaksambodhi. Once it has been launched, there is no cultivator who is capable of escaping your art of spirit searching. The old monk then suddenly laughed in an immortal-like manner, however, my cultivation method is pinned onto the words of clear mind and spirit cleansing. Shui Jing was slow-witted and could not fully comprehend the old monk's intention so he nodded as he answered conveniently, your cultivation method is clear mind and spirit cleansing, yet you could still behave this way. If you had cultivated another cultivation method instead, I wonder how chaotic you would have become. The old monk exclaimed indifferently and he waved his hand, interrupting the fat monk, don't talk nonsense here. The clear mind and spirit cleansing method is to cultivate in the primordial spirit silence that cannot be distracted by outside forces. As long as this old monk does not allow it, the demon cat or even a Taoist immortal with the highest attainment could never erase my memories. Both Ji Fei and Shui Jing's supernatural power may be at an average level, each of them had their own special abilities. No one could hide from the fat monk's spirit searching while the old monk's primordial spirit silence had fooled even the demon cat. She was completely unaware that the old monk still retained his memories. The old monk showed off for a while before he continued, Fat monk, I guess you've forgotten about that important matter by now too. The fat monk Shui Jing shook his head impatiently, I had lost all my memories from these recent years, if you wish to tell me then do so, don't keep me guessing anymore. The old monk burst out into laughter, in the past, Painting Town was the number one well-known family amongst the rogue cultivators. However Liang Shoujin had died in the gold-consuming lair, Liang Tian had died in Shanghai and Liang Wen's whereabouts are still unknown. When the tree falls, the monkeys will scatter, the entire Painting Town's members have deserted the family as it fell, leaving only two or three small characters behind. Before he could finish his sentence, the fat monk abruptly widened his eyes, are you hoping to steal something or rob someone? 
I can't remember anything about recent incidents but I do remember that Painting Town had always offered us financial assistance in the past so don't you be getting the wrong idea here. The old monk was stunned and he laughed, infuriated, you confused FCK, what nonsense are you talking about here? The matter that I am referring to is the matter that we've been discussing all along earlier. The old monk then inhaled a deep breath and his voice turned stern and solemn. However, there was a joyous smile in his eyes which had remained unwavering throughout, the cultivation world is rolling on with full force while painting town is now feeble and weak. The battle between the righteous and evil forces are growing even more treacherous with time. As the rogue cultivators in the world are like a leaderless group now, everyone is feeling insecure. That large building is about to collapse and even though Ji Fei and Shui Jing are the loners, for the benefit of our fellow sect members, we shall go beyond our abilities to resist. The fat monk Shui Jing's open mouth was so wide that one could stuff a chicken egg perfectly into it, what do you mean? I will organize a rogue cultivators meeting with the intention of asking them to choose us as the leaders of the rogue cultivators in place of painting town. You've even finished making the invitation cards for the rogue cultivators meeting. The old monk then took out a formal looking invitation card from his chest pocket, on the third day of the second lunar month, don't linger by. Please come to the foothill of Mount Tai, we welcome the wandering rogue immortals the old monk recited a few phrases before he continued to remind the fat monk. I felt that your wording in the invitation had not been written in a dependable manner back then. Otherwise, I would have sent out the invitations earlier. The fat monk Shui Jing's brows were all the way at the top of his head. He jumped up with a scraping sound and though he lowered his voice with all his might, he could not suppress the terror in his tone of speaking, you must be crazy. I must have followed you and became crazy together with you back then. The old monk Ji Fei was startled by Shui Jing too but he did not hesitate to raise his palm and slap the fat monk's bald head ferociously, speak sensibly. The fat monk Shui Jing rattled his words off as quickly as a machine gun, we will become the leaders of the rogue cultivators. Just the two of us. The best result we can get is that no one turns up, the mediocre result is that quite a few of them will turn up. However, the consequence is that the people in the world would laugh their teeth off at us while the worst possibility is that we would be directly shredded to bits by giant bull and red grand ant. Do you think that gang of rogue cultivators will listen to us? The old monk Ji Fei burst out into laughter. His expression had been relaxed all along as he completely disregarded the fat monk's concerns, I won't blame you for your fears, you have lost your memories which is why you don't know how much resources we now own. Listen to me properly as I tell you slowly. Soon after that, the old monk raised a fingertip, back then, on Mount Amei, a group of rogue cultivators had been taken captive and it was us who had followed Chang Li to fight the Great Mercy Temple and rescue the group. We have gained a new level of prestige but we also managed to earn their favor too. This is the first resource. The fat monk Shui Jing nodded, although the rogue cultivators were usually arrogant and unyielding, they could clearly distinguish between kindness and hatred. With such friendly feelings placed before them, the group would at least attend the meeting after they had received the invitation cards. During the fierce battle of the Wicked Witch in the Miao Stockade village, the both of us had contributed to the success of rescuing little Chi Maojo. It had been quite a remarkable act so the Qin Miao clan would certainly repay their debt of gratitude. They can be depended on to help us maintain an appearance. Little Chi Maojo has an extraordinary cultivation method now, he has inherited 10% of Grand Master Tuasye's witchcraft power. He had achieved vast improvements in his cultivation power after the three arts had been fused into one. If he were to display his skills then give a speech on behalf of us, what do you think the rogue cultivators would say? This is the second resource. The fat monk frowned, Chi Maojo's ability is naturally remarkable but the disciples of Miao Bujiao aren't very well known. I'm afraid that the group might remain unconvinced. Ji Fei pursed his lip, be calm. We have famous people on our side too. We have saved the lives of the big and small demon rabbits on Mount Ame. After that, you had then saved the small demon rabbit's life on our journey from Shanghai to Sichuan. When the five blessings were fighting fiercely on the Nine Peaks Mountain, the two demon rabbits had revealed their methods. Everyone in the world had witnessed that and if the Great Mercy Temple will assume personal command for us during the meeting, what are you still afraid of? 
An excited glow had appeared involuntarily on the fat monk Shui Jing's face. The old monk Ji Fei, on the other hand, refused to stop as he continued to speak, the most crucial and the most important resource is that the righteous and the evil path will start fighting again soon. The rogue cultivators can only hope that they can defend themselves but a moment of carelessness is enough to pull them into the vortex and churn them into pieces. However, who are the both of us? They must depend on the Nine Peaks Mountain, Tua Xie's disciples, Wen Leong, the demon cat Chang Li and the zombie Hanba. Also, there's now the addition of the terrifying Zhui Zi as well. Whether they are from the righteous path of the Five Blessings or the Rainbow Brothers leading the four heavenly sects of the evil path, no one would dare to disobey the Wen family. We will issue a call to action and let whoever choose to follow us. By that time, other than the divine punishment, no one would dare to make things difficult for them anymore. The old monk paused for a moment after he had finished speaking. He then shook his head as if he still had more to say, it's a waste that the Rainbow Brothers' memories have been erased and they adamantly refused to reveal their true identity. Otherwise, there would be a chance during the meeting for both the righteous and the evil path to follow us. If that was the case, we shall become even more honorable then. The fat monk Shui Jing's face was filled with an excitement which he could no longer suppress. He grabbed Ji Fei's wrist and his voice was filled with agitation, so, what you are saying is that in our current lifetime this time, we can truly become the overlords of the rogue cultivators in the world. There would be no number one well-known rogue cultivator family in the world from now on there would only be the number one rogue cultivator and number two rogue cultivator in the in the world. The fat monk's demand was not exceptionally high, he was already fully satisfied if he could become the number two rogue cultivator in the word. Ji Fei pried open the fat monk's grip strenuously, his wrist was now marked with bruises. He then bared his teeth fiercely as he answered, to be addressed as the number one in the world is the greatest taboo. We will never call ourselves the number one men even after we become the overlords of the rogue cultivators because someone who may hate that term will then oppose us we probably won't be able to get the great mercy temple to our side anyhow so we shall be known as the great virtues. There will be no ranking and we shall become all conquering in the world. The fat monk was now standing face to face with the old monk. Their gazes were filled with encouragement and anticipation as they looked at one another for a moment before raising their heads and burst into laughter abruptly. Becoming the leaders of rogue cultivators would indeed be a glory to their ancestors. In their perspective, the battle between Tua Xie's disciples and Xian Lu was no different from the battle of immortals and the Buddha. This was why Ji Fei and Shui Jing had completely disregarded Xian Lu in their hearts. When they had been on the Nine Peaks Mountain in the past, they had been completely engrossed in their plan to earn the name of the rogue cultivator's leader. They had wished to be like Leon Wen back then because he had traveled everywhere and was respected by everyone in the world. However, after the trip to the Red Leaves Forest, Chang Li had unexpectedly erased their memories and almost ruined this top priority task which had been placed before the two monks. Fortunately, the old monk Ji Fei had used his special ability to protect his primordial spirit and retain his memories so he could then remind the fat monk. The two monks did not procrastinate anymore and began to plan the rogue cultivators meeting in detail once again. The old monk ground his teeth for a long while as he read the invitation card written by the fat monk but he could no longer think of any better words. However, his eyes had suddenly brightened in the end, there's no need to make alterations to the words but let's change the location from Mount Tai to Mount Hua. When Leon, Chang Li and the rest have all gone to Mount Hua together. We have lost our memories so they should consider our presence there as a lucky coincidence. The fat monk immediately reacted to the situation and he hastily nodded as he laughed, wonderful. When Le Yang's disciples would become the leaders of the rogue cultivators in the world. Chang Li will certainly be very excited. Initially, Ji Fei and Shui Jing would never dare to deliver an invitation card into Chang Li's hands but now that they had lost their memories. If Chang Li could be present on the occasion at the right time, she would definitely offer her help to them. They had entered the Immortal's Cave in high spirits but left in despondency. Chang Li and Guo Huan both appeared rather dejected. When Xu Lin, who had been busy with his calculations, hastily stood up and gathered forward when he realized that Chang Li had returned. Xiao Wu pouted her lips as she asked in a childish voice, Have you finished with your calculations? Can tell us the result now. 
When Xu Lin had calculated continuously for the past two days, only stopping for his meals. He had cried out in surprise softly once and it was apparent that he had found a result but had refused to tell Wen Leon or Xiaowu what it was. He made up his mind that he would take credit for his achievements after Chang Li has returned. Chang Li's expression was unpleasant and Wen Xu Lin dared not keep her guessing. He hastily stepped forward and his tone of speaking was earnest and determined, there's no need for me to mention about the others, those are all useless items I had managed to calculate the result of a dog. Everybody else was shocked and Chang Li grabbed Wen Shu Lin, this dog and that dog, is it the same dog? Wen Shu Lin pulled a long face and shook his head as he answered honestly, I do not know I had only come up with the result of dog. I can't tell the specific meaning behind it and whether it is the same as the dog in the past as well. They all felt disheartened at once. Even though he had managed to calculate the result of a dog, even if he could come up with the results for the big flat cake, broken gong, and dog, within this immortal's cave, they would still be as lost as they had been before. They had not managed to locate the split body and everything else has also turned out to be futile. No one could figure out where the split body had gone and, in the end, it was Chang Li who waved her hand as she interrupted everybody else's boundless guesses. They could discuss things further as they continued to look for a substitute body or they could go to the highland. In any case, they should first leave the Immortals' Cave. Mount Hua and Mount Amei were similar in that these were both the country's key areas for tourism. Thus, the communications network received almost full coverage here but they would not be able to get any signal in the desolated valleys. They would have to head to the higher regions for their cell phones to receive an unhindered connection. The group left Guohuan's immortal cave and had only just crossed a mountain ridge when Wen Liang's cell phone immediately started vibrating. Seven to eight text messages had come surging in together. Wen Liang read the text messages and other than the one text message which was about the transaction of guns and car smuggling, the rest were all from Gu Xiaojun. The messages had all been delivered one and half days ago and the content was almost all the same urgent, call back immediately. Wen Leong was just about to dial his number when old Gu called him first. On the other end of the call, Gu Xiaojun sounded very feeble. Wen Leong was still a master cultivator anyhow so even if he was separated by a phone call, he could still clearly distinguish whether the other party was feigning his feebleness or he had truly injured his life vitality. Judging by the way Gu Xiaojun sounded, he had injured far more than just his life vitality. It would only be under the circumstance of profuse vital energy and blood loss for him to become so feeble. Old Gu did not even allow Wen Leong to ask what happened before he spoke directly and asked, Are you on Mount Hua right now? When Leong was stunned he replied in surprise, How did you know about that? Mobile location-based services. I had monitored that your last call had been made from Mount Hua. This was then confirmed once you had re-entered the network. Old Gu explained strenuously. Following that, he suddenly diverted the topic of conversation and his tone of speaking was filled with solemnness, when you were in Painting Town, you had once promised Tang Tang that you would help me. Do you still stand by your words now? When Old Gu was speaking, it sounded like he was almost exerting all his strength to shout yet he could only manage to shake the air with effort and speak with a pathetically low voice. When Leong did not hesitate at all, tell me how can I help? Gu Xiaojun seemed to exhale a long breath before he informed Wen Leong about the matter from the beginning to the end. Not long ago, a Mount Hua scientific exploration team had disappeared in the huge mountain. Initially, this matter had been completely unrelated to Gu Xiaojun's department but the following events which occurred had attracted Gu Xiaojun's careful attention. The circumstances surrounding the disappearance of a dozen people from the exploration team was very bizarre. They had communicated with the outside world two days before they disappeared. The scientific exploration team had made an important discovery back then and had sounded very excited about it. They had discovered a peculiar object in the depths of the huge mountain but because they were making a call, they had not described the object clearly. Still, they had confirmed that the biology specialists in the team had not been able to identify what this object was. Perhaps because the team members had been overly excited. They forgot to hang up at the end of the call which was how their colleagues who had picked up the call could make judgments on their behavior during the following period of time through their voices. 
No one knows what the scientific exploration team had discovered and they had not given an accurate name to the object as well, only referring to the item as it. Old Gu had guessed that they had discovered a rare plant since they had mentioned digging through the soil to look at this object's roots. Following that, there was a debate which revolved around the plant. The person who was listening into the call had felt rather anxious by them. He had understood that the object they had discovered had unconventional features. However, the voices on the other end of the call sounded chaotic and there had utterly been no way for him to clearly discern what they had been debating about. Perhaps some had wanted to call it a plant while other wanted to call it a rock. Some had even called it a meaty polypore mushroom while a few had said that it was a geological phenomenon. In the end, the entire scientific exploration team members had agreed unanimously to dig out the shallow layer of soil. The surroundings then quieted down as they began to dig. They were experts and spent most of their time dealing with plants and animals aside from the other activities of eating and sleeping. If they had been tossed into the Changbai Mountains to dig for wild mountain ginseng, they would definitely have brought back all the ginsengs with complete and unbroken roots. No matter how they had chosen to excavate this object, it was for certain that they would have absolutely done it in a way which did not harm this newly discovered object. Following that, there had been a series of gasps and a messy array of voices urging to keep digging and keep digging. The surroundings soon quieted down once again as the operation members continued their excavation task. After that, not a sound could be heard from the team and the person who was on the other end of the call then filed a report to the police when he felt they had gone silent for too long. The team's scientific exploration mission had been nothing out of the ordinary. They were there to examine the plants and animals but they were still a professional team after all. Before they had entered the mountain region, they had already reported their route, itinerary, and timetable to the related administrative authorities. This was a huge advantage to the search and rescue attempt of this organization later on. After Mount Hua's local armed police had received the police report, they immediately began to search for the team along the scientific exploration team's route. Along the way, they had continuously discovered traces left behind by the scientific exploration team as they passed through this route. Finally, at a spot known as the Standing Softshell Turtle, in the depths of the huge mountain, they had discovered a campsite. Not a single soul could be found within the campsite, it was as if everything there had stood in the dense forest for decades. Long vines had crawled onto everything everywhere. Tufts of wild grasses were growing out of the field cauldrons and had turned the place into an ant's amusement park. Even a large tree as thick as a bucket had shot its way out of a tent in an askew manner. However, after they had verified the many items which had been branded by serial numbers before the team had entered the mountain, the rescuers discovered in surprise that these tents were the equipment which the scientific research team had reported to the higher authority earlier. This campsite, which looks like it had been overgrown in the forest for decades, had actually been built just a few days ago. Following that, the rescue armed police widened the search area and began to look for survivors within the radius of three kilometers radiating from the campsite. At this point, Old Gu suddenly paused for a moment before he continued, that was the content of their final report. Even though he had been mentally prepared, Wen Leong was still astonished and he could not help but ask, had the search and rescue team disappeared as well? Old Gu huffed strenuously as a confirmation to Wen Leong's question. The scientific research team and the search and rescue team had both disappeared one after another. Anyone would know that this was an important matter and a second team was immediately assembled which had been even bigger and was better equipped with each member selected from well-trained professionals. The officer who had led the team was a second lieutenant and his name was Chu Jiao. Even though his official rank was not that high, he had far more field experience than anybody else. This time, almost a few hundred people had entered the huge mountain in a mighty contingent. They soon discovered the final campsite of the scientific research team but the situation had looked to be even worse than before. The campsite had been completely covered by the already booming plant blanket and there was no way they could see clearly. The second lieutenant team leader had studied the situation in the campsite closely. To everyone's surprise, he had then disobeyed the headquarters command. After he had laid down the perimeter line, he immediately brought his team members and left the huge mountain. During the entire time, when he had incurred censure from his superior, the second lieutenant team leader had only responded with. 
This matter is not something which we are capable of dealing with, I'm determined to report this to the authorities. On the other end of the phone call, Old Goo gave a forced laugh, the second lieutenant officer's judgment was right indeed. Finally, this matter had passed through many layers of authorities before it reached the higher authorities of the Gold Armed Forces Troop. As Gu Xiaojun read through the archived files, he could almost immediately confirm that a wood elemental attack spell had been cast on the scientific research team's campsite which then caused it to turn into an overgrown appearance. Whether it was the scientific research team or the first search and rescue team, they had been unrelated to the cultivator's magic art. The only available clue right now was that the cultivator who had caused all that trouble had cultivated in wood elemental magic art. Old Gu, who had only rested for a few days, had then brought the Fei Fei siblings along as they made their way hurriedly to Mount Hua. Their sole duty was to investigate the conflict between the cultivators and the human world so this type of mission was their inescapable duty. When Leon could not refrain himself from giving a forced laugh, are there only three of you in your department? As long as there's a mission, will it only be assigned to the three of you? Old Gu had spoken for a long while and his voice was so feeble he sounded like a cotton thread which could break at any moment, the world's sect is creating trouble they are in a chaotic mess. When I was on the highland, the rest of my staff had been sent out to attend to the mission. There were only the three of us who were unoccupied since we had just returned. Gu Xiaojun hastily refocused the topic of conversation once again, we arrived on Mount Hua five days ago. After we joined the second lieutenant Chu Jia's team, we then departed for the incident's location in the huge mountain. Second lieutenant Chu Jia had disobeyed his orders and brought his team back not because he was a coward who was afraid of dying but because he had understood that this matter must be handled by professionals. If he had depended only on the strength available on his hands, if the situation were to become too dangerous, everyone would only find their doom there. After Old Gu and the others have arrived, Chu Jia had bravely volunteered to become their guide. To Gu Xiaojun, this mission was no longer directly connected to the search and rescue attempt. Their responsibility was to confirm their own deductions and to try to figure out the clues left behind by the murderer as best as they could. From their point of view, their trip was for an initial investigation so it should not be too dangerous for them. When Leon could almost guess what had happened afterward, his tone of speaking was solemn as he asked Old Gu, did you remember what the enemy looked like? What kind of magic spell did he use to harm you, are you severely injured? Gu Xiaojun has always been mysterious to Wen Leon. Even though this old fellow had emphasized that he does not possess any abilities, his subordinates Xiao Sha and Fei Fei both possess shocking abilities in their own domains. When Leon would never believe that old Gu was just an ordinary old fellow regardless, the enemy who was capable of severely injuring this old fox here would not necessarily be an amateur as well. Old Gu reflected for half a second and when he answered, his breath sounded like spider's web, we had just entered the mountain for less than half a day before I was diagnosed with acute appendicitis and was sent out of the mountain by them. I had only come out from the operation theater right now. Chapter, 240 Chang Li, who had tilted her head to the side to squeeze in an ear and listen to the phone call, giggled. When Leong almost crushed the cell phone in his hand as he hastily shook his head to awaken himself slightly. After old Gu had received the report, he had rushed over with the Fei Fei siblings. Gu Xiaojun, who had just entered the mountain, was then sent to the hospital for appendicitis. Both Fei Fei and Xiao Sha were elite soldiers so even if Gu Xiaojun had backed out halfway, they could still continue to carry out the mission. Perhaps old Gu's absence made them both even more relaxed as they entered the depths of the huge mountain with the lieutenant named Chu Jiao. However, two days ago, they had lost contact with Fei Fei and the others. Old Gu had grown impatient in the hospital and as he gathered his other subordinates to rush over to Mount Hua, he then thought of asking for Wen Liang's help at the same time but Wen Liang's cell phone had been unreachable. Old Gu had adopted technological means to find out that Wen Liang's final phone call had been made from Mount Hua to his surprise. After he had sent the text messages, he had kept track of Wen Liang's cell phone so when Wen Liang reconnected to the network, he had contacted Wen Liang immediately. During the recent trip to the snowy peak, Wen Leong had formed a close friendship with the siblings Fei Fei and Xiao Sha. Since they were well within his reach at this moment, Wen Leong would definitely help them if they were in trouble. He consoled Gu Xiaojun for a while before he hung up. 
When Liang's intent was for the others to join Changli and leave the mountain to search for a substitute body while he looked for the siblings Fei Fei and Xiao Xia on his own. However, Changli disagreed even though Wen Liang's current level of talent and treasured weapons was good enough such that, other than a limited number of top master cultivators, he had no other enemy in the world. Chang Li's main worry was that since this was the wood spirit's Mount Hua, the other party was using the wood elemental magic art. With the support of the magic art, the enemy was akin to an evil fish in the water and she was afraid that Wen Liang, who was more like a little dragon which had never swum in the water before, would suffer a loss. Guo Huan laughed flamboyantly, it won't hold us up even if we looked for those two kids first, we have plenty of time on our hands. However, if we are to save both of them this time, leave everything else but the ability of the girl in detecting someone's lies and the ability of the boy in playing all sorts of tricks they must teach us. Chang Li laughed, that's right. We must learn about these tricks. When Leong was natural elated, with Chang Li and Xiaowu's assistance, as long as Fei Fei and Xiao Xia were still alive, even if they had been captured by Transformers there was still a chance for them to be rescued. His only concern was that Chang Li, who was already capable of turning the world upside down, once she had learned Fei Fei's psychoanalysis and Xiao Xia's folk magic, what would the world be turned into after that? That a standing soft-shell turtle, could not be found on the travel guidebook or a professional map and only the hill people who had lived in the huge mountain for generations knew about that. When Leung carried the noseless man on his back as he dashed as swiftly as the wind through the huge mountains with Chang Li and Xiao Wu alongside him. Even though Guo Huan's immortal's cave and the standing soft-shell turtle were in the depths of the huge mountain, there was quite a distance between these two locations. The bitter cold and desolated winter made Mount Hua even more treacherous and only Chang Li, who was rippling with demonic energy, added a burst of liveliness in the bleak landscape. Just as the afternoon sunlight shone dazzlingly, the small group of people finally arrived at the standing soft-shell turtle. When Leung exclaimed in mild surprise and he could not help but say, this really is the standing soft-shell turtle. A hill-like gigantic rock formation had been stabbed in an askew manner between a few soaring mountains. When seen from afar, it appeared very much like an old soft-shell turtle which was standing upright. The formation looked as if the turtle would tumble with a loud crash at any moment yet it had been standing upright for millennia. Other than when Shulin's hasty compliments, everyone else was silent. Even Xiaowu raised her little fists as her charming little face was filled with vigilance. They were surrounded by bleak mountains in the middle of winter yet the standing soft-shell turtle was luxuriant and green. Countless long vines were entwined around the trees densely and plants were growing in a hideous mess. The only peculiar thing was that not even a single blade of grass had grown outside of the boundary which was covered by the standing soft-shell turtle. Their journey was filled with desolation and only the area beneath the old soft-shell turtle's stomach was lush and green. For a moment, when Leung's eyes even saw those vines as something which was pulling on the slanted rock such that the standing soft-shell turtle did not turn into the crawling soft-shell turtle. This was different from the luxuriant winter pine trees which grow on the far mountains. The stretch of green before their eyes was dazzling and bright until it made one unconsciously inhale a deep breath after looking at it as if one could inhale all this liveliness into their limbs and bones. Chang Li suddenly turned around and made a mischievous funny face at Wen Leung, open your eyes wide and take a look, I shall perform a magic trick for you. Upon saying that, she pulled Wen Leung along and walked in great strides towards the bottom of the standing soft-shell turtle. Soon, they were about to dive headfirst into the densely packed and entwined vines and trees. The vegetation beneath the standing soft-shell turtle had grown in a chaotic mess, there were almost no gaps between the densely arranged plants until even a rabbit would have difficulty squeezing itself between the plants, let alone a human. Wen Leong was still puzzled when the plants before his eyes started shaking even though there was no wing. Soon after that, with a messy rustling sound which resembled a falling tide, the plants suddenly dispersed in all directions in a great panic. They watched their surroundings as all sorts of plants hastily scattered and vanished as if the plants were fleeing. Wen Leong was a little dumbstruck but Guo Huan chuckled as he spoke, this is the wood spirit's Mount Hua. Heh, it has plenty of vital energy. Wen Leong inquired closely on Guo Huan's statement, vitality energy? What vitality energy? Vitality energy? 
more like demonic energy. Chang Li abruptly sneered with murderous intent. The sound of rolling branches and leaves could be heard as all sorts of plants retreated desperately. Wen Leong could not help but think of a phrase, rolling and crawling. It took less than a minute for the vines and the flourishing trees to retract back into the soil and the initially lively standing softshell turtle had turned bleak once again in the blink of an eye. What remained was a stretch of empty ground where not even a weed could be seen. In the area where the slanting slab of gigantic rock connects to the ground, a shabby and ragged campsite had appeared before Wen Leong's eyes. Wen Leong walked forward in quick strides. The campsite had been completely mashed by the dense blanket of plant earlier so he was not able to find any clues and nor could he discover any traces of Fei Fei and Xiao Xiao. He was searching without a purpose when he asked the jade knife, so, was Gu Xiaojuan's guess correct? It is truly a magic art. Guo Huan answered at a leisurely speed, the plants earlier had been muddled with demonic primordial energy. These plants had not grown by themselves nor was it a cultivator's magic art. In fact, they had been dispersed by a demon's magic. He, the wood spirits vine spirits and tree monsters had not been considered rare in the past. He then paused for a moment before he continued, the wood spirits demon magic pays particular attention to set down roots in the earth to ensure a continuous liveliness. Chang Li looked in all directions as if she was looking for something. She then continued Guo Huan's topic of conversation absent-mindedly, the saying of setting down roots in the earth means that when a magic spell is cast, the supernatural power would not be dispersed. Someone had cast a wood spirit's demon magic in the past which was why these plants had been left behind. Guo Huan's effort in searching for his split body had been futile so he was trying to distract himself by explaining the situation. However, he had not expected Chang Li to step in and say a large chunk of his explanation as he was taking a breather. He then hastily continued, the saying of ensuring continuous liveliness means that the demon magic will expand by itself slowly over time. After the disappearance of the first group of people, even though the campsite had been overgrown by vines and trees, it had still remained visible to outsiders. However, after the second group of people had disappeared, the plants and trees had grown wildly and completely covered this place here. Wen Leong pondered attentively on Guo Huan's explanation. After a while, he was suddenly enlightened and he asked in astonishment, Are you saying these plants kill people to serve as their fertilizer? Guo Huan sneered coldly as a confirmation to Wen Leong's question. Wen Leong became impatient, Can we find any clues which have been left behind by the demon? As he was saying that, he gritted his teeth and spread his telegnosis ability as far as he was able to. However, all he could sense was the desolated mountains and hills with no trace of Fei Fei or Xiao Xiao. When Xu Lin was feeling self-conscious. He had crawled down from Wen Liang's back and procured his pen and paper as he hastily started to calculate in an attempt to locate the demon's whereabouts. It was apparent that Guo Huan wanted to speak yet he intentionally feigned an impatient tone as if his willingness to speak was already the greatest honor to Wen Leong. I had just said that the wood spirit's demon magic pays particular attention to set down its roots in the earth to ensure continuous liveliness. Amongst the vine spirits and the tree demons, those with shallow skills will never leave their nest while the majority of those with profound skill clings to their own roots. They would only leave as a last resort. Guo Huan then paused for a moment before he sneered, it's not considered a serious matter for these demons to kill a few humans so, of course, they would not have left yet. By the time we arrive, it would have lost the opportunity to leave. When Xu Lin suddenly squalled and he did not even care about his ballpoint pen as he hastily jumped in front of Wen Leon. Wen Leon was startled and grabbed on to the old man, what did you manage to calculate? When Xu Lin shook his head strenuously, I did not manage to calculate any result. He he said that the demon was nearby so I dared not calculate any more his gaze traveled about as he was speaking and he looked vigilantly at some withered trees at a distance. Guo Huan ignored them and asked Chang Li instead, so, have you found it? Chang Li turned around and nodded towards them, I found it. The thing is it's a little strange. She then stretched out her hand and pointed at a plain looking rock which was about the size of a lighter beneath her feet, this is it. Chang Li waved her hand once and condensed a sparkling flame out of thin air between her fingers. She flicked the flame towards the rock gently which caused it to squawk abruptly. 
the solid rock immediately turned softer than seaweed as it shivered in agony. It only stopped struggling after the flame was extinguished and turned back into the appearance of a rock once again. Xiao Wu exclaimed in astonishment and jumped over. She then stretched out her small hand and tried to pick up the rock. Unexpectedly, the rock remained unmoved in her grasp and seems like it was firmly connected to the ground. Wen Leon was afraid that something bad would happen to Xiao Wu due to her rash actions and was about to take out a chewing gum to bribe her when Chang Li shook her head at him, I'm here, it's fine. Xiao Wu did not manage to pick up the rock and her little face was contorted stubbornly as she exerted more strength into her hand and pulled strenuously at the rock. Wen Leon felt the ground shake once yet the rock still remained as unmoved as before. It was until this moment that Wen Leon truly felt rather amazed, Xiao Wu's strength was not inferior to his and she could even uproot a huge tree easily. However, this piece of rock which was capable of squawking and softening was entirely unmovable as if its roots were connected to the entire mountain. Xiao Wu then exerted the entire force of her demonic power until her little face flushed red but the unremarkable looking rock still lay in the soil coldly. Chang Li, on the other hand, stuck her tongue out and laughed, Hanba's maiden daughter is truly extraordinary, if it had been somebody else, I'm afraid that person would have died ten times over. She then wrapped her arms around the furious and exhausted Xiao Wu and cradled her in her embrace. Soon after that, her hands moved and danced like a swift wind as they tapped with a gentle sound all the way from the top of Xiao Wu's head to her feet. Xiao Wu's face suddenly turned ashen and her fair and clean little hands covered her chest as she looked nauseated. After a long while, she finally bawled and vomited a clear watery liquid along with a dozen bean sprout-like, green-colored seeds which had germinated. The moment these seeds fell onto the ground, they immediately melted into the soil like a ginseng fruit and swiftly vanished without a sound. Guo Huan gasped softly in astonishment and explained without waiting for Wen Liang's question, such an incisive demon. Soon after that, he continued in a low, muffled voice, when Xiao Wu had touched the rock, she had been cast with the other party's demon magic without her notice. If the seeds had not been removed in time, it would not take long before she would have turned into a giant bonsai plant. Xiao Wu was a demon with great power as well. Based on her demonic power alone, she was almost equal to the giant pangolin Patu. If she was placed in the cultivation world, she could still sweep away most of the cultivators. Otherwise, Hanba would not have trusted her to come out alone. A cultivator or a spirit monster would possess a type of self-defense life vitality. Since Xiao Wu had been planted with the seeds without her notice, the enemy's actual power was beyond a doubt at the level of a demon immortal as remarkable as Chang Li and Zhui Zi. Wen Leong pointed at the rock and looked at Xiao Wu. He then looked at Chang Li with a belly full of questions yet he did not know where he should start his questions from. Chang Li's expression was not too solemn as she explained to rest of them softly, this rock is alive. It's this rock here that has been creating trouble. Judging by the power of its demonic primordial energy, it is still a little weaker than me but it is absolutely not something any of you can handle. The rock is very close to the campsite, I think supposedly, someone from the scientific exploration team had discovered it unintentionally. It was not afraid of fire but it hated fire and that person had accidentally dropped a kindling next to it so of course, it would have made a fuss. If Xiao Wu had been unable to handle it, what more to say about the scientific exploration team? When Leong narrowed his eyes, how about Xiao Sha and Fei Fei? Chang Li made the, keep calm and do not worry, gesture. She did not answer Wen Leong's question immediately but she continued to speak, Guo Huan, this object is alive, but I cannot see its demon's heart. In Wen Liang's perception, the demon's heart and demonic primordial energy were all mysterious things. He looked at Wen Shulin in slight puzzlement and Wen Shulin held his notepad eagerly and seemed to be very confident at helping Wen Liang to calculate what exactly was the demon's heart. Oh! Guo Huan, who would not have been bothered even when the mountains fell and the earth split, suddenly squalled and spoke in astonishment, it is the demon fetus. The demon fetus that possesses a demonic power which is only slightly weaker than our level of power. If it grows into a spirit monster, it would be even more incisive than ever. The condensation and refinement of the demon's heart was an important process in the cultivation to become a demon. The spirit monster would absorb and refine the spiritual vitality of the heavens and earth. 
It would gradually refine those into demonic primordial energy before it could finally use the demonic primordial energy to wash its marrow and refine its heart. Only then could it open the path of its spiritual intelligence and turn from an animal or plant into an evil spirit monster. It could be said that the process of refining a demon's heart was the most basic hallmark. The monster would only turn into a spirit once its demon's heart has taken form. Without the demon's heart, no matter how incisive the object was, it would never possess spiritual intelligence and would remain just like a plant or an animal, only acting according to its instincts. Chang Li's smile was rippling with a sense of curiosity as she said, We thought that the ending cave on Mount Hua had been abandoned for millennia. I had not expected that the wood spirit had been planted so deeply until it had even bred such a monster here. When Leon looked at the small rock, this is really a demon. It took Chang Li a while before she understood Wen Liang's question. She then laughed as she corrected him, it's a demon fetus. For it to become a demon which is capable of running and jumping, it's unknown how many more years it would still need to wait to reach that stage. Guo Huan's voice sounded much calmer now but it was still as suspicious as before, the ending cave's excessive wood element has bred a demon. While that is not utterly impossible, it still does not explain how this demon fetus could grow so strong I'm afraid that this object here. Chang Li narrowed her eyes and her sharp demonic charm was distracting, what is the purpose of making wild guesses? We shall dig down along the edge of this rock. Sooner or later, we will see the demon fetus and by then, we shall know the outcome. Hee hee, I've had plenty of experience with this in the past but I've never seen one as incisive as this. Following that, Chang Li spoke to Wen Leong, when I had used my demonic primordial energy to probe this monster earlier, I sensed the lingering breath of living people underneath the soil. There should be some people who are still alive but as to whether these people are Fei Fei and Xiao Xiao, I do not know. She then paused for a moment before she immediately complimented, don't ask me how they are still alive, I don't know that either. Wen Leong, who had been in a surprise trance, understood this much, so, this little rock isn't the demon fetus. Chang Li was too lazy to explain so she stretched out her hand and pointed at the rock, you will naturally understand more when you dig to the bottom of this. Wen Shu Lin, come over here and start digging, be careful not to touch the thing that is connected to the bottom of the rock or your old life would be unsalvageable. Wen Shu Lin was so terrified that he was shaking. He was no better than a regular human now but even if he had not dispersed his life vitality, he was still weaker than Xiao Wu. Since this was something that even she could not handle, how would he dare to touch it? He hastily bowed and gave a forced laugh, Dear Grand Aunt, you have unsurpassed supernatural power, you should be able to uproot this rock easily with a slight exertion of your strength. Please don't make things difficult for this old man. Before he could finish his sentence, Chang Li widened her eyes, I may not necessarily be able to pull it out. Even if I could, I cannot guarantee that this demon fetus will not hurt the people beneath it. Wen Shu Lin was still thinking of negotiating when Wen Leong and Xiao Wu ran to the rock. They then began to cautiously dig away the soil surrounding it. Chang Li was still worried as they did not appear anxious so she chuckled from the side as she reminded them, the first scientific exploration team had unintentionally discovered this object here which was why they had started digging. As a result, they had been planted with seeds by the demon fetus and turned into big and small trees without their notice. Naturally, they had died soundlessly she was halfway through her speech when her graceful body suddenly swayed once and floated next to Wen Leong. Her slender hands had reached out as fast as lightning as she pinched out a seed which was so tiny that it was almost undetectable from the back of Wen Leong's hand. She then squeezed her fingers gently and, with the sound of a squawk, the seed was crushed. Wen Liang's body was covered with cold sweat from the fright. Chang Li, however, was still as indifferent as before, it'll be fine, I will protect all of you. Following that, she continued the topic of conversation from before, the search and rescue team had come after the scientific exploration team had the accident. They were also planted with seeds as they examined the campsite. Ha! The final team leader who had brought his team to rescue the people was slightly more experienced. If not, all of them would have been turned to plants over here. Make sure that your movements are gentle, try not to startle it as Chang Li was saying that, her hands moved as fast as lightning and caught several escaped seeds continuously, protecting both Wen Leong and Xiao Wu. 
Underneath the small rock was a thin horizontal piece of stone with a slightly larger surface area than the lighter. Below that was another slightly bigger stone chip and so forth. When Leong and Xiaowu dug all the way from noon to dusk and created a pit which was a dozen meters deep. All they have excavated was more stone chips which increased in size until the bottom piece was as large as a basketball court. Each stone chip was around two inches thick regardless of their size. There was a trace of unappealing green color within the chips which had looked like moss at first glance. However, upon closer examination, one would realize that the green color was actually a pattern embedded in the stone chips. The large pit was now a dozen meters deep and hundreds of stone chips were revealed to be stacked in a seemingly messy arrangement. The stone chips were tightly connected and resembled a simple and unsophisticated stone tower which exudes a slightly ghastly feeling when seen from afar. When Leon sucked in a breath between his teeth and stopped digging temporarily, is this a wood spirit's demon or an earth element spirit monster? These are all stones. Guo Huan exclaimed before he said, this demon fetus is not a common creature so continue your digging. When you finally reach its roots, you would then know what kind of creature it is. When Leon gave a forced laugh as he continued to dig, how long do I have to keep digging before I arrive at the roots? The stone chips were growing bigger and their digging speed has slowed down considerably. Nevertheless, Chang Li was not impatient at all as she answered smilingly, since it's a wood spirit, you ought to just calculate it based on its growth rings. A stone chip would equate to roughly a year. In order for this demon fetus to take form, it would have required at least a few thousand years worth of time. Xiao Wu raised her head and looked at Wen Leong and her huge eyes were filled with tears. When the sky darkened, Chang Li finally pouted her lips before she reluctantly joined the excavation team. It was only until the moon has risen to the middle of the sky that they finally unearthed a stone chip which was the size of a football field. No one knows how many more stone chips were below that slab but Chang Li could still confirm with confidence that there was a living person's breath at the depth of the earth's core. This demon fetus was only slightly weaker than Chang Li even before its pathway of heaven spirit has been opened. Its layered, stone-like demon's body was like a Tibetan tower which was so deep that it was utterly bottomless. On the second morning, when Leong was close to collapsing when he asked Chang Li, we ought to just choose one direction and dig downwards in a diagonal manner. There isn't a need for us to unearth every layer of stone chips, right? Chang Li was examining her nails bitterly. She disregarded when Leong and the Jade Knife Guo Huan hastily spoke and continued the topic of conversation, this spirit monster is a wood spirit so it mutually complements the earth element. Even though it is still a demon fetus now, it is difficult to ensure that it would not suddenly cast some demon magic to protect itself. If we were to allow it to hide its demon body in the soil, there would be countless troubles by then so it's still more reliable for you to dig out everything entirely. Chang Li nodded strenuously from the side, he has a point there. If the mountain ghost had not spoken I truly would not have thought of that. When Leon coughed, such a virtuous and sincere young lad too could roar so ferociously, when Shu Lin, you have rested for one night. Wake up and start working. When Xu Lin bowed strenuously with a terrified expression. He had just opened his mouth and was about to speak when the entire stone tower abruptly started to shake vigorously. When Leong was filled with awe in his heart and he picked Xiaowu up as he fell back as swiftly as a ghost. The moment his back slammed into the soil, the poison of life and death abruptly circulated under the faulty punch's drive and he carried Xiaowu as he retreated into the depths of the thick soil in the blink of an eye. Chang Li clasped her hands behind her back and arched her back. She then raised her head and sneered, Are you seeking for your death? Soon after, a vast and exuberant pressure suddenly burst out from her delicate body and spread into the deep pit in a flash. The stone tower was about to launch some form of magic to protect itself but it was pinned down by Chang Li's burst of demonic power until it could not even budge. It trembled for a while before it suddenly howled bitterly like an infant. When Leong felt as if he was being stabbed in the ears. The poison of life and death which had been surging and roaring in his body became muddled and with a muffled bang, his Ning Jiao's armor appeared and wrapped itself tightly around him. Xiaowu too used her little hands to cover his ears with an agonized expression. 
Fortunately, the sharp howl only lasted for a few seconds before it was forcefully stopped by the demonic power released by Chang Li's stern shouts. When Leon was ashen as he carried Xiaowu and returned to Chang Li's side. He asked with lingering fear, is the demon demon fetus furious? Chang Li answered through her angrily clenched teeth, why should it be furious? I have yet to get angry despite digging for one whole night. Chapter, 241 Chan Li's cute reply caused Wen Leong to choke. Guo Huan suddenly asked from within the jade knife as Wen Leong went eyed and coughed, from your reckoning, what kind of demon is it? Chang Li pointed rudely at the jade knife, thank goodness I've taken your yin's error and yang's mistake, I'm even more grateful that Mi Su had wanted to take your demonic primordial energy. You're too evil even for a mountain demon. You always ask questions that nobody knows the answers for. Guo Huan was so annoyed that he became amused, I had asked because I don't know anything about it. Chang Li's expression turned angry, we'll know in a minute. It's useless right now even if you had asked a thousand times. Wen Leong did not have the time to cough as he hastily interrupted the quarrel between the two old demons, what's the real matter here? Nobody else had the chance to answer before Xiaowu opened her mouth and spoke in a sweet childish voice. She sprawled beside Wen Leong and said softly, that demon fetus's squall sounded like a cry for help. If that's the case, this demon must have been raised by someone. Xiaowu's voice was sweet and gooey with a touch of childishness. Her tone of speaking made one want to pinch her face. However, Wen Leong was so astounded by what she had said that all 36,000 pores on his body contracted as he asked in shock, what kind of person? His voice has barely faded away when Guo Huan suddenly laughed loudly. He then spoke in an extremely loud voice, see. The Wen young lad is also asking about the same thing. Chang Li was amused and rolled her jet black eyes at Wen Leong with all her might, I only know that it's not me. We'll naturally know who that person is when he or she comes. As soon as she said this, an angry wrinkle suddenly appeared at the edge of her lips as she pressed them together. She then reminded Wen Leong softly, here it comes. Shortly after that, a voice filled with terror sounded from far above them, do you guys have a death wish? Come up, quickly. The moment the voice sounded, a face which was filled with the same amount of terror entered Wen Leong's telegnosis ability. Chang Li nodded lightly. She carried Xiaowu and Wen Shulin as she and Wen Leong leaped up and returned to the surface. The person on the surface was a skinny old man with amiable eyes. However, he has an expression of fright and anger mixed with some worry on his face. He was pacing anxiously and when he saw that they had come up, he immediately sighed. He then stammered and rambled, who are you people? How could you be so brave as to dig here? He was so angry that he stomped his feet as he spoke. Xiaowu had an outraged expression on her face as she said to the old man, Our friends have been swallowed by this monster, we have been digging to rescue them. When the old man saw the Xiaowu, the anger on his face immediately turned into affection. He looked as if he was worried that he would scare the little girl so he tried hard to turn his stern lessons into a muffled grunt. He then sprawled beside the pit carelessly as he looked at the strange rock tower with eyes full of heartbreak. He said without turning around, your friends have been swallowed by it. It would never harm anyone unless it had been provoked. You guys are extremely lucky to still be alive right now. After he said this, he stood up and brushed the dirt from his body, quick, let your life vitality flow and see if there's any harm in your body. It's no ordinary demon so you guys might not even notice if it had planted seeds within your bodies. The old man sighed incessantly and looked as if he wanted to cover the pit up. However, he only reacted after he had turned two circles and squalled at them with exasperation, where's the dirt? Damn it, don't you guys pile the dirt beside the pit when you dig a hole? When Wen Leong and the others had reached the deeper parts of the pit, they had been too lazy to carry the dirt out of the huge pit. They had compressed the soil directly into the sides of the pit by the energy of their magical powers. Wen Leong had just opened his mouth to say something when the ground suddenly shook with a boom. Suddenly, a fat middle-aged man entered the boundaries of his telegnosis ability. Every step this fat man took made the earth shake violently. Before the middle-aged fat man could arrive, his curses have already rolled over from afar, where had these demons come from? 
I'll tear you apart if you've harmed the spirit fetus. The fat man cursed as he ran wildly with all his heart and he arrived at the side of the huge pit in no time. When he saw the exposed rock tower, he immediately let out an extremely angry howl. He raised his fist and wanted to hit someone but the one nearest to him was Chang Li followed by Xiao Wu. When Xu Lin had passed out from shock when he heard the demon fetus's squall and was lying on the ground limply. After a moment's hesitation, the fat man walked around Chang Li and Xiao Wu, leaped, and threw an extremely ferocious punch which crashed towards Wen Liang like a meteor. The fat man's mannerism was extremely fierce but after he leaped up, he held his own attack back as he flipped and dropped down to the side. The fatty rolls on his body jiggled with anger as he scolded, You're a f***ing mortal. I can't hit you, I can't hit them. Ha! Huh. He needed an outlet for his anger so he yelled and ran towards the standing softshell turtle rock. A series of loud thuds were heard as he landed a round of punches on the massive rock. Chips of rock flew about and he panted heavily before he returned to the side of the pit. He then glared at Wen Leon, who are you? Why were you trying to dig out my spirit fetus? Chang Li had kept quiet at the side from the start. Wen Leon then repeated Xiao Wu's words. It was only until now that fat man suddenly realized that a mere mortal could not possibly move the demon fetus's rock tower. He then raised his guard obviously, who amongst you are cultivators? He scanned Wen Leong and the others repeatedly as he asked this. His gaze then stopped on Chang Li. When Chang Li met his eyes, the fat man's face flushed red as he laughed foolishly. The old man seems to be the fat man's elder. He scolded with a regret that his junior had not lived up to his expectations, you have poor judgment. The little girl has a demon's body, she's much stronger than me. With her protection, the others beside her could naturally proceed unhindered. The fat man's eyes were full of incredulity as he sized Xiao Wu up. After a brief moment, he lowered his voice and asked the old man, this little girl is stronger than you. Then he then gulped noisily, we shouldn't cause them any trouble. Wen Liang's suspended heart relaxed somewhat. He has a good impression of the both of them. The old man had reminded them to be careful and not get themselves hurt while the fat man would rather hit rocks than hit women, children or mortals. When he looked at the fat man's strength and movements, he should be around the little demon rabbit Sean Duan's level. As for that frowning old man, judging from the speed at which he had flown into Wen Liang's telegnosis ability, he should be a little less powerful than the old demon rabbit Bulu. The old man could see that Xiao Wu was a powerful demon so he had thought that it was Xiao Wu who protected the others. The old man looked pitiable, if your friends have been swallowed up by the magical fetus, then there's no hope in saving them now. They can only accept the fact that they had been unlucky. It was indiscernible whether the fat man had wanted to back him up or to incite anger as he chimed in with a loud voice, let's not say about you guys. Even if it was the father of the great Luo deity who had encountered the spirit fetus's plot, he would have been completely scared out of his mind. The old man nodded with a frown, even if you had continued to dig, you wouldn't find your friends, you wouldn't even be able to find their remains. Wen Leong shook his head and diverted the topic, who are you guys? What is this demon fetus? What demon fetus? It's clearly a spirit fetus. A million years ago, this place was connected to the netherworld so it had been a common occurrence for ghouls to escape to the mortal realm. Thus, the ancient gods had planted a spirit seed and sealed this place. If you had continued to dig, you would have ended up in the netherworld. Anxiousness was wedged between the old man's brows. He was worried that when Leong and the others would not listen to him and would insist on continuing to dig, the ancestors of my family have been cultivating here obscurely for many generations as they guarded the spirit fetus at the same time. Please, leave quickly. The old man has calmed down. He looked at Xiao Wu with a guarded and fearful expression. As for Chang Li, it seems that her demonic powers were too strong. These two cultivators did not realize that she was the real king of the mountain. Wen Leong did not know whether to laugh or to cry as he exchanged a glance with Chang Li. The old man had spoken as if there really was something like this but his words were too unreliable. Xiao Wu was amused and she laughed. She then shook her little head and said, I don't believe you. It's obviously a demon fetus. 
if I can't rescue my friends, then I'll kill it to have my revenge. The fat man has an extremely short fuse. When he heard Xiaowu's words, the flames of anger which he had suppressed earlier flared up again. He immediately howled angrily without hesitation, You ungrateful doll, how can I let you bring disaster to the world? As he said this, he opened his hand which was like a large fan of cattail leaves and reached out to grab Xiaowu. It was obvious that the fat man had held himself back. Even under these circumstances, he had not balled his fist. Instead, he had only reached forward with an open hand to catch a hold of Xiaowu. Xiaowu imitated Chan Li's moves earlier as she folded her hands behind her back and lifted her chin. She then made a half sneer with a certain childishness before she suddenly released a surge of demonic power. The old man was flustered as he squalled, Don't be rash. His body swayed as he leaped forward in haste. He had wanted to intercept the fat man from the side. Just as the old man was about to stop the fat man, the two of them abruptly let out a ringing roar, borrow art, red lotus, heaven-reaching flames. Clanking howls erupted loudly within the vast mountain range. The spot where Chang Li had been standing had turned into an enchanting sea of fire in the blink of an eye. Flames taller and more imposing than a mountain's peak burned enchantingly like an evil dragon which had broken out of hell as it licked greedily at the sky. At the same time, the demon fetus's rock tower let out a cheerful chuckle. When Leong and Xiaowu had no time to react and they were hit by the great force of the magic power those two men had summoned and were thrown to the side. The old man's howl was like thunder. He chanted an incantation loudly as he made a Dharma Chakra Madra the size of a human's head. He then urged the fires of the blazing inferno incessantly. The fat man's body, which had initially looked slow and slightly clumsy to Wen Leong, flipped dexterously in mid-air like a fat hawk. A fiery chain suddenly materialized in his hand as he flew towards Wen Leong and Xiao Wu. Xiao Wu has long occupied a place in the world but in the face of sheer power, any form of trickery would pale and weaken in comparison. She had now truly experienced what it means that the hearts of men were vicious. She could never hope to see through the powers of these two cultivators with her current cultivation base. The old man and the fat man had echoed each other. They were still loyal just a few moments ago but they had now turned Chang Li's fate uncertain whereas Xiaowu and Wen Liang's lives were hanging by a thread. Xiaowu was enraged to the point of yelling. Her little figure flew through the air as her hands clapped in a strange rhythm and made a series of crisp sounds. She then exhaled and shouted in her childish voice, Mourn. The ground beneath her seemed to boil as it suddenly rolled. Monsters which were so rotten that they had become unidentifiable growled and struggled as they pounced swiftly towards the fat man. The fat man snorted disdainfully. Fierce flames the color of blood rose continuously around him, blocking the wild attacks of the undead monsters. The long fiery chain in his hands pulled tautly and whipped toward Xiaowu's head like a long spear which was spewing molten iron. The blazing temperature superheated the surrounding air, causing everything before Xiaowu's flustered gaze to shimmer like a mirage. Suddenly, the snake knife appeared with an angry howl. When Leong was covered in the Ning Jiao's armor as he waved the Ning Jiao's sting and struck from Xiaowu's side, fiercely parrying the soul-locking and body-snatching fiery chain. As the Ning Jiao sting came into contact with the fiery chain, Wen Leong immediately felt as if a stream of lava which was so hot that it made him think of dying had struck into the blood vessels along his sword hand. It felt like his flesh and blood were about to be incinerated into ashes in an instant. The Ning Jiao's armor on his body even gave off a charred stench. Although Ning Jiao's sting had managed to parry the opponent's magic weapon, Wen Leong still yelled as he fell heavily to the ground. At the same time, the grayish-colored yin and yang poison was like a skin as it enveloped the bone snake. It then leaped out in the form of the Ning Jiao and pounced viciously towards the fat man. The fat man reacted quickly. Once his magic weapon's attack had been parried, his body had instantly retreated like the wind as he evaded Ning Jiao's fatal attack. He then laughed foolishly and scolded, This little bastard has some skills, it's a shame that he has to die young. The fat man then somersaulted in midair. Just as he had adjusted his pose and was about to pounce at Wen Leong a second time, a slender, fair, and delicate arm suddenly materialized out of the air beside him. 
The arm then grabbed the fat man's neck firmly and twisted it lightly. Although the cracking sound was relatively soft, it was extremely clear and it projected straight into everyone's ears. Chong Li tossed the fat man aside and stepped out from thin air. The entire conflict from the moment those two cultivators had begun their sneak attack to Chan Li's abrupt reappearance and the killing of the fat man had happened unimaginably quickly, everything was over in the flick of a finger. When Leong and Xiaowu cheered loudly before they quickly ran to meet their goddess-like grandmaster. The old man was dumbstruck and his body swayed as he hung in midair. The heaven-reaching blazing flames contrasted strongly behind him and were burning with a boundless malevolence. Chang Li patted Xiaowu's head and Wen Liang's shoulder as she chuckled, You've been tricked by them, haven't you? Guo Huan laughed harshly and yelled at the old man, You had the upper hand at first but you then became overconfident. Wen Liang frowned, he did not understand what Guo Huan had meant by the upper hand. Chang Li had her usual nonchalant look on her face. She then giggled and pointed at the old man who was in midair and said to Wen Liang, this old monkey should be around my level but that fat monkey was much stronger than Xiaowu and you. Wen Liang's heart skipped a beat. He had not seen through the old man's cultivation base but he could never have imagined that the old man was a peerless cultivator who was almost on par with Chang Li. The blazing flame behind the old man was malicious and wild but his elderly face was as cold as ice. He did not even glance at the fat man's body which was lying on the ground, what had given it away. Chang Li smiled with slight confusion, what had given it away? There was nothing which had given you away. You had used your magic weapons to mask your life vitalities until I really thought that you too were what you had said you were, honest obscure cultivators. The old man grunted, you haven't won and I haven't lost. Before we fight an all-out battle, can you free this old man from his confusion? Chang Li nodded obediently and replied straightforwardly, sure. If you had attacked me directly and let the fat man deal with those two dolls, I would have retreated. However, you had thought that you were smart and tried to eliminate me first but I didn't fall for your tricks. When you guys had lit the red lotus fire, I had already silently retreated to safety. I didn't think that I would be able to sneak an attack on you so I had ambushed the fat man instead. The old man took a deep breath, I'm asking you, how had you seen through? He had not finished speaking when Chang Li suddenly laughed, I'm not telling you. Her body swayed as countless long, black spikes appeared in midair and flew towards the enemy as fast as lightning. Xiao Wu finally brandished her own magic weapon, it was a morning staff which would let out a ghostly cry and a wolf's howl when she waved it about. Xiao Wu was quite helpless and the morning staff was also quite helpless. Chang Li and the old man have disappeared. The sharp black spikes and the demon flames which resembled a venomous dragon resembled normal magical arts. As they danced and collided, the huge force they generated was enough to tear any slightly lesser cultivators into pieces. When Leong and Xiao Wu each wielded their magic weapons. They wanted to help but dared not move forward. Just as they were feeling anxious, Chang Li's sneering voice suddenly sounded from the sky, there are more enemies. You two dolls, you're on your own. Her voice has barely faded away when dozens of figures leaped like the wind and flew swiftly into the range of Wen Liang's telegnosis ability. Before those figures could arrive in his field of vision, a dense mass of magical powers and magic weapons blanketed the sky as they crashed towards Wen Liang and Xiaowu. These cultivators were the subordinates of the old man and the fat man. Initially, the two chieftains had planned to use trickery and had no intentions of letting their subordinates show themselves. When the fat man had been killed, the subordinates were shocked into action and they had then hastily rushed over to give aid. Xiaowu and Wen Liang did not hesitate as they yelled and rushed towards their opponents. Luckily, although these cultivators were in great numbers, their cultivation bases were much weaker than the fat man so Wen Liang and Xiaowu were able to deal with them on their own. They battled into a mess for some time under the standing softshell turtle. Chang Li looks to be slightly stronger than the old man. She would occasionally withdraw from their battle and kill a cultivator or two but the old man could not take the time to ambush Wen Liang and Xiaowu. In the heat of the battle, the loudest was Guo Huan as he yelled, where had these bastards come from? If they had tossed cultivation bases such as these into the cultivation world, there would have been chaos in the world long ago. 
Although the cultivators in the flurry were not as strong as the fat man, each of them was not inferior to the demon rabbit Shan Duan. There were a few older ones amongst them who were even tougher than the old demon rabbit Bulu. If their abilities had been poorer, how could they have put up such a fight that has caused Wen Leong and Xiao Wu to pour out their grievances incessantly? Guo Huan was also anxious, try to ask that worm of yours to release the flying sword. You've got me, squeaked as it rushed up Wen Leong's shoulder. The sharp barbs on its body stood up but after it had tried summoning for half a day, it then crawled back in shame. Chang Li has the upper hand on the old man but the difference between winning and losing was only six to four when Leong and Xiao Wu were extremely strained as they fought off a dozen cultivators and their odds of winning was only 20%. Maybe even less if it had not been for Ning Jiao's sting and armor, when Leong and Xiao Wu would have been sent running long ago. This group of people who were all easily at the same level as any of the Five Blessings Supreme Leaders Five Blessings fought hard from morning until noon. The giant standing softshell turtle has long since been reduced into unevenly sized rubble scattered on the ground. Just as when Leon was panting heavily and has dedicated most of his energy to protect Xiaowu, an extremely happy cheer suddenly sounded from a distance away. Wen Leong immediately reacted like an excited piglet which had just heard its feeder's call as he leaped suddenly and howled, I'm almost at my limit, come and help, quick. Go and rest. Leave it to me, leave it to me. The pleasant voice replied in an extremely joyful tone. She clearly sounded like she has agreed to Wen Leong's request for help but at the same time, one could sense a hint of reluctance in her tone as if fulfilling Wen Leong's request was a blessing from her. Wen Leong sighed. He then carried Xiao Wu who was still baring her teeth and waving her morning staff as he said with a smile, there's no more need for us to fight. As expected, his voice has barely faded away when crackling sounds suddenly arose from the surrounding air. The fierce-looking rogue cultivators whose hands were contorted into various gestures as they controlled their magic spells and wielded their magic weapons were all suddenly frozen within tall, graceful and sharp icicles. Zhui Zi appeared before Wen Leong with a face full of smiles. She quickly cheered again as she hugged Xiao Wu, Is this your daughter? She's beautiful. Wen Leong quickly snatched Xiao Wu back and told her the truth, it's fifth brother Hanba's daughter, her name is Xiao Wu. Zhui Zi and Hanba had fought fiercely before so Wen Leong was worried that if she knows about Xiao Wu's identity, she would strangle the little girl to death. As expected, Zhui Zi pouted, she doesn't look so beautiful now. Although she had said this, she could not refrain from pinching Xiao Wu's cheek. Xiao Wu was ignorant of the grudge between Zhui Zi and Hanba, all she could tell was that the goddess in front of her eyes was immensely skilled. Xiao Wu beamed as she fished out some gum from her pocket. She gave a piece to Zhui Zi and kept one for herself. Lastly, she hesitated briefly before she passed a piece to Wen Leong as well. Zhui Zi chewed jubilantly on the gum as she lifted her head and looked at the blisteringly fierce fight in the sky. There was a hint of timidity in her face as she said with fear, so powerful. The current Zhui Zi still had her usual pitiable expression, it was only when she faced Wen Leong that she looks the happiest. Wen Leong did not even ask why Zhui Zi had come. He pointed at the sky and said to her, can you help with this mess too? Zhui Zi looked at Wen Leong with silent sadness in her eyes. She was full of resentment as she nodded and looked up towards the sky, if you admit you're wrong, I'll help you. If you call me big sister, I won't hit you once I'm done with this old man. Chang Li's voice was crisp and light. Old God, hit her face. Zhui Zi yelled and looked at Wen Leong as she chuckled. She then shrugged with eyes full of helplessness, she doesn't want my help. Wen Leong was feeling slightly troubled and he looked at Xiao Wu with a bitter smile. Xiao Wu lifted her head, swallowed the gum and took another one out. The old god was even more troubled than Wen Leong. Chang Li had killed the fat man and Zhui Zi had frozen his other subordinates into ice columns with a wave of her hand. The cultivation bases of these two women must be stronger than his. The old man knows very well that though Zhui Zi had not joined Chang Li's fight against him, she would naturally attack him after he had defeated Chang Li. He was in the middle of a fierce battle and he has no extra energy to deal with this great enemy. In fact, he could hardly keep up with Chang Li. Just as the old man was contemplating about running away, a giant shadow suddenly blotted out the sky without warning. 
A strong wind blew as the fire around him was scattered and a stench rushed toward him. That thing had a vicious dog's head which was bigger than a hill and a wingspan which could blot out the sky it was the dog-headed eagle. The old man's mind had been completely occupied on preparing in case Chue Zi attacked him. At the same time, he defended against Chang Li's endless barrage of attacks with all his might. He even managed to set aside some primordial spirit as he prepared to activate his art of escape to run for his life. As a result, he did not have any energy to withstand the thunderous attack of the dog-headed eagle and was mercilessly swatted by the dog-headed eagle's wing. Chang Li then laughed crisply in a cold tone as she ran in a circle around the old man as swiftly as lightning. The sky turned the color of blood. The old man wailed as his arms separated from his body. Like a dying fish, his blood boiled out of him as he flipped all the way and fell heavily to the ground, almost hitting Wen Shu Lin who was still out cold. Just as Wen Liang sighed in relief, he exclaimed in utter surprise. He wondered what special day it was that all the elites under the heavens would have gathered here. As he mulled this over, he could not help but look at Xiao Wu who was still in his arms. Xiao Wu knew what he was thinking about and she shook her head and smiled, Daddy is tending to his wounds, there's no way he could come. Zhui Zi immediately yelled when she saw the dog-headed eagle, Don't you run away. Give me back my stuff. Her body then swayed once as countless icicles formed in the air and shot mercilessly towards the dog-headed eagle. Chapter, 242 The dog-headed eagle flapped its wings strongly and swatted the surging icicles away. The monkey Qian Ren's voice was shocked and angry as he came out from the dog-headed eagle's mouth, Woman, why do you keep troubling me? How long do you plan to do this? I don't kill women so don't force me to break this rule. Zhui Zi replied angrily, you're the one who had stolen my stuff first and foiled my plans. I'll be collecting these two debts today. Wen Leong does not know how to fly but he knows how to jump. He then jumped dozens of meters up into the air and hastily waved his hands as he blocked Zhui Zi and the dog-headed eagle from each other. Don't fight, all of us know each other before he could finish speaking, his body had begun to fall downwards again. Chang Li then chuckled and grabbed his hand. They floated at the side and she looked at the others with a smile. The old man had suffered the dog-headed eagle's attack first before his arms were then torn apart by Chang Li. He was then heavily wounded and his life vitality has been scattered. He had passed out before he even reached the ground. Xiao Wu had then stabbed him with her morning staff. It was obvious that the dog-headed eagle had fought Zhui Zi a few times before and knew how powerful its opponent was. Its giant body floated firmly in midair as the feathers behind its neck ruffled as it faced Zhui Zi coldly. Wen Leon looked at them with astonishment. He did not understand why they had started to fight. Initially, the dog-headed eagle was not part of Wen Liang's family but because of Qin Zhui's relationship to Qian Ren, these two parties should not be enemies. Zhui Zi pointed at the dog-headed eagle contemptuously, this beast had taken the heavenly water spirit, which you had given to the Hua family. Wen Meik had helped the monkey Qian Ren to exterminate the millions of big dung beetles within the Carrion Swamp. When Wen Leong and the group were on their way out of the highlands, Qian Ren had broken through Tour Town's Mandala Seal and was able to see the light of day again. As Qian Ren practiced flying in the highlands, he had unintentionally discovered the spiritual vitality released by the Heavenly Water Spirit and immediately snatched it. There was no way for the obscure cultivators of the Hua family to go against this monster. It was a pity that the utmost treasure of the water element which they had been searching for many generations had reached their hands only to be snatched away before the warmth of their hands could reach it. At that time, Zhui Zi was still on the snowy peak and had been trying to recall some memories of her past life. When she found out that the Hua family's heavenly water spirit had been snatched, she had immediately given chase to the culprit. The two elites had fought all the way from the snowy peak to the highlands but neither had been able to harm the other. The dog-headed eagle could not injure Zhui Zi and Zhui Zi could not reclaim the heavenly water spirit. Dot. As Zhui Zi was explaining the chain of events, Qian Ren interrupted her disdainfully, the heavenly water spirit does not belong to you and that bunch of croaking white-robed men are also not your subordinates. What's it to you if I had taken something of theirs? This utmost treasure of the water element is very important to me. When I had snatched it away, 
I also told the white-robed men that I would repay them in the future. Xian Ren then sneered again, I get what I want. Let's not talk about their compensation, even if I were to wipe them out and take this treasure away, who would be able to stop me? When Leong frowned as he looked unhappily at Qian Ren, that drop of heavenly water spirit, was my payment for the Hua family's firecracker so it won't do that it has been snatched away by you. He then looked at Chang Li with pleading eyes. Chang Li raised her brows as she looked at the dog-headed eagle and asked with a smile, what say you? Qian Ren had found out from an unknown source about the way Wen Leong had obtained the heavenly water spirit. He spoke reasonably, the Hua family are your friends, the silly lad Qin Zhui is also your friend. Everybody is a friend. I need this drop of heavenly water spirit badly so I'm just borrowing it from the Hua family. In the future, you can easily take another drop for the Hua family. I can also give the Hua family some favors to repay this kindness. Initially, it had been a straightforward robbery but with Qian Ren's words, it has now become a three-way debtor's dispute. Wen Leong did not know whether to laugh or to cry. He looked at Chang Li again as if he was seeking her approval. Zhui Zi nodded generously, this monster had not harmed anyone. Wait! Chang Li suddenly interrupted her, the dog-headed eagle is not a good bird, it would be strange if it had seen a treasure and did not snatch it. However, you, Zhui Zi, are no heroine either. The Hua family isn't related to you so why are you helping them? Zhui Zi felt wronged by Chang Li's words. Her slim and fragile frame froze in midair as she looked pitiably at Wen Leong. Wen Leong had initially nodded in agreement but when he saw Zhui Zi's plaintive look, he became slightly dumbstruck. Zhui Zi's expression did not change and her tone was filled with the stubbornness of a girl, I don't care about the Hua family's matters. I haven't even digested the first drop of heavenly water spirit so I have no use for the second drop just yet. The thing I'm trying to get back isn't that drop of water at all. Qian Ren exclaimed as the huge dog's head made a puzzled expression, why have you been chasing me all this while? Zhui Zi looked close to tears but she gritted her teeth and held them back with all her might, the small bowl. The thing that I want isn't that drop of water, it's the small bowl which contains that drop of water. The mountain breeze was piercingly cold, causing the dog-headed eagle's body to sway visibly. Guo Huan suddenly broke into laughter from within the jade knife. Zhui Zi blinked her big eyes and continued, I had stayed on the snowy peak to regain more of my memories and to also wait for the Hua family to refine the heavenly water spirit so I could get my small bowl back. Wen Leung chuckled foolishly as he rubbed his palms and was at a loss for words. Only the dog-headed eagle remained puzzled, if it concerns that small bowl, once I've used that drop of water elemental treasure, I would no longer have any use for it. If you want it I'll naturally return it to you. Zhui Zi pouted as she said, I don't trust you. Guo Huan quickly tried to ease the situation as he laughed and spoke from within the jade knife, let's talk on the ground, let's talk on the ground. After Qian Ren has refined the heavenly water spirit, he'll return the small bowl to Zhui Zi. Besides, we'll be going to the ore cave on the snowy peak again anyways, we can just get another drop of heavenly water spirit for the Hua family. Ha, huh, everybody's happy. Everyone had returned to the ground. Chang Li was looking at Zhui Zi with a half smile on her face. The smile lines at the edges of her lips were full of prettiness and provocation. Zhui Zi's expression was pitiable as she looked at Chang Li fearfully, but her gaze was even more piercing than the icicles which had frozen the cultivators. The dog headed eagle had turned into an onlooker as it stood at one side like a mountain with its head held high. Then, it seems to have thought of something as it turned and looked at Zhui Zi, you also said that I had foiled your good plans, what was it? Zhui Zi's face turned mournful, it was a charm which made the others grit their teeth. She then pointed at the old man who only had half a breath left. She did not conceal her thought one bit as she spoke straightforwardly, initially, I had wanted to wait until he and the cat demon were both injured before I attacked the cat demon. You hit the old man when you had appeared but the cat demon still has most of her strength left. Wen Leong was astonished. Before Chang Li could say anything, he quickly diverted the topic, Qian Ren Sr., who are these people? When Qian Ren had appeared, he had ignored Chang Li and immediately targeted the old man. He obviously had not reacted like Zhui Zi who had attacked with the intention of lending them a hand. 
I had kept myself hidden from the start. These people were giving you trouble so, for Qin Zhui's sake, I won't sit idly by. Besides Qian Ren's tone suddenly turned icy. His anger was unlike what he had directed towards Zhui Zi just now and his icy tone was now filled with a bone-deep hatred, I don't know the old man but I recognized his method of practice. The old man used a fire elemental magic art but it had been different from ordinary flames and San Wei's true fire. The fire art the old man had cultivated was unconventional and was called the Red Lotus True Fire. One of Kong Nuer's best man had cultivated with this method of practice. Wen Leong was slightly stunned. He remembered that the name Kong Nuer belongs to Qian Ren's greatest enemy. Wen Leong looked at the old man with slight surprise before he looked at the dog-headed eagle again. The dog-headed eagle had a surprised smile on his lips, we'll ask him after he wakes up, I also have some questions for him. The old man's life vitality had been shattered and his fate was already determined. If they were to awaken him now forcefully, he might not even last two breaths before he dies. However, if they were to wait for his remnant life vitality to gather and awaken on his own accord, maybe he could live for some time yet. Guo Huan asked Qian Ren with a smile, you had cultivated in the wood elemental magic art while the monkey has a metal elemental body and the dog-headed eagle has a body of blazing fire element. Why do you even need the heavenly water spirit? Qian Ren was a madman, he had put on an act in front of dolls such as Wen Leong and Qin Zhui but his attitude towards Guo Huan was indifferent. He cackled as he stretched out a wing which blotted out the sun and pointed at the demon fetus's rock tower in the large pit, it's all for that. When Leong was delighted, you knew about this demon fetus? Qian Ren nodded before he shook his head, I knew about it but I never expected it to turn into a demon fetus. Before Qian Ren's accident, he had been refining a magic weapon called the Ending Vine. After that, his good friend Kong Nuer had tricked him and caused him to almost lose his life. With low spirits, he had sealed this treasure which had been almost completely refined at the depths of the Ending Cave. Qian Ren's current form is multilayered the dog-headed eagle was his body, flesh armor, and weapon. No magic weapons could do him any harm. However, after he had discovered the heavenly water spirit on the snowy peak, it had reminded him of the ending vine. Utmost water element generates wood element. The ending vine was very near to completion, if it could be nourished by the heavenly water spirit, it could take from even without the urging of any wood elemental magic art. This magic weapon was of no use to Qian Ren but for Qin Zhui, who had just cleansed his marrow, rebuilt his foundations and turned into a wood elemental body, it was a powerful magic weapon. No matter how he put it, Qian Ren had snatched the heavenly water spirit for the sake of the ugly youth Qin Zhui. The dog-headed eagle then stared at Wen Leong, do you understand now? The Hua family is your friend and Qin Zhui is your close acquaintance, how can you be unfair to one party? Naturally, the treasure should first be given to the one who needs it the most. Wen Leong feels that if there ever was a person under the heavens who could reason with Qian Ren, that person would be Wen Buzhua. Wen Leong gave up his attempt to try to reason with Qian Ren as he pointed at the demon fetus's rock tower and diverted the topic, this is that magic weapon of yours. Qian Ren nodded in confirmation to Wen Leong's question. He then recounted his experience roughly. If he had not discovered the heavenly water spirit, Qian Ren would have dallied much longer in the highlands. Although this dog-headed eagle's body has accompanied him for thousands of years, he had been sealed before this and had not been able to even move. Now, when he directed the dog-headed eagle's body, there were still many parts which he has to iron out. After he had snatched the heavenly water spirit, he temporarily abandoned the plan to get used to the body. He then used the communication treasure he had given to Qin Zhui beforehand and asked Qin Zhui to wait for him at Mount Hua's ending cave Zhui Zi then caught up with him and a divine beast of God's will and a primordial monster had fought fiercely. They had chased and fought each other from the snowy peak and it took them a lot of time before they finally reached Mount Hua. Wen Leong only found out now that Qin Zhui has also come to Mount Hua when he had left Wen family village. He then remembered something else as he said, the standing soft-shell turtle, is ending cave. Qian Ren was too lazy to answer Wen Liang's silly question. He was glaring hatefully at Zhui Zi. Zhui Zi pouted and looked as if she had been wronged. It seems that these two have had their fair share of hardships along the way. The dog-headed eagle, naturally, 
has the ability to fly whereas Zhui Zi could only fly by using magic. She had lagged behind because of that which was how the dog-headed eagle managed to arrive a few days before her. When Leong was slightly stunned, I thought that Yu He then paused and smiled halfway through his sentence. After all, the dog-headed eagle had attacked at an extremely apt time. The old man had been distracted by guarding against Zhui Zi's potential sneak attack as he tried hard to block Chang Li's attacks and thought about his escape plan at the same time. It was too much of a coincidence if the dog-headed eagle's attack had been unintentional. However, Zhui Zi had arrived just at the right time too. She had then helped Wen Leong to defeat the bunch of cultivators. After he understood this crucial point, Wen Leong asked Qian Ren hastily, then, do you see Qian Ren knew what Wen Leong wanted to ask as he flapped his large wings to cut him short, don't rush, let me finish. The dog-headed eagle had not been able to shake Zhui Zi off its tail and had wasted a lot of time. When they finally reached Mount Hua, Qin Zhui had already been waiting there for several days. Wen Leong was suddenly delighted and he could not refrain from interrupting, if we were to combine Xiao Sha, Fei Fei, and Qin Zhui. His voice has barely faded away when everyone else except for Xiao Wu yelled, Shut up! Wen Leong smiled shamefacedly. To an outsider, even if one were as strong as Xiao Wu, they could easily have been planted unknowingly with a demon seed by the demon fetus and ultimately turn into a luxuriantly green plant. However, Qin Zhui's marrows had been cleansed, his foundation was rebuilt by wood elemental magic art, and his bones were remolded. Not only would he be able to see through the demon fetus's harmful magic art, the demon seed was also ineffective against him. When the dog-headed eagle had flown here, the Fei Fei siblings and the team leader with the surname Chu had already been possessed by the demon seed and were barely alive while Qin Zhui had been nowhere to be found. Qian Ren had recognized Fei Fei and Xiao Sha. He had helped them for Qin Zhui's sake. As he said this, the dog-headed eagle used its wings to pat its stomach as it chuckled, this dog-headed eagle flesh armor could not conjure any powerful magic so I could only swallow them first before I can think of anything. Fei Fei, Xiao Sha, and team leader Chu were ordinary people so they would not be able to withstand any demonic energy which was too domineering. Qian Ren's wood elemental magic art was restricted by the monkey's metal elemental body. This rescue had not taken too much time, they were extremely lucky and finally regained their life. They were quite weak now and were recuperating inside the dog-headed eagle's stomach. This demon fetus's rock tower was too peculiar. Fei Fei's team had fallen under its trick unknowingly. They had met Qin Zhui as they were about to turn into plants. Qin Zhui's true wood elemental vitality could temporarily restrict the demon seed. Qin Zhui had spent several months with the Fei Fei siblings, they had the time of their lives all the way to Tour Town. With his honest personality, it was only natural that he would try to save them. When he had arrived, he immediately cast his magic spell and helped them to temporarily suppress the demon seed. However, when Qin Zhui had gone to investigate the demon fetus, he had been dragged deep into the ground. When Qian Ren had found out that his beloved disciple has been towed away by the demon fetus, he had not been surprised and, on the contrary, was happy instead. To him, this was a good thing. Qin Zhui has a wood elemental vitality base and could not be harmed by the demon fetus. After he had sunk into the ground and struggled for a little while, Qin Zhui could understand more about the nature of this ending vine. In the future, he could become very proficient with it. The element of wood governs life that ending vine had absorbed the spiritual primordial energy of the heavens and earth throughout the years and had gradually turned into a wood elemental demon fetus. There was nothing strange about this. When Qin Zhui had familiarized himself with the nature of the demon fetus after a few days, Qian Ren would dig through the soil and plant the heavenly water spirit at the demon fetus's root. The water would become the nourishment for the wood to grow. Though the demon fetus would not have a heart, in the end, it would still become an extremely powerful magic weapon, the ending vine. That was why the dog-headed eagle had only stayed at the side and did not dig. Just as he had decided to start digging, when Leong and his group had arrived. The dog-headed eagle then hid its presence and looked on pleasantly as this group of miners who had come from far away helped him to do his job. The dog-headed eagle then placed his head on the ground and opened his mouth. After some time, three men appeared in a flurry. 
Although the expressions of the Fei Fei siblings were not too pretty, their spirits seemed to be all right. There was also another burly man, the team leader Chu. Wen Leong was very happy when he saw that Fei Fei and Xiao Sha were unharmed. He quickly ran over and helped them up. Xiao Sha did not have time to greet him as he immediately took a cell phone out from his pocket. He muttered there was no reception in the dog-headed eagle's stomach, as he called old Gu and gave his report. The dog-headed eagle ignored them but looked at Chang Li with interest, how did you know that the two cultivators were up to their tricks? I had stayed invisible at the side but I didn't sense anything funny before they attacked. Chang Li stretched with a giggle, I didn't notice anything wrong with them as well but I just couldn't trust them. I don't trust them from the bottom of my heart. No matter how great a show they had put up, it was useless. Two thousand years ago, Chang Li had brought calamity upon the world. People with the old man's cultivation base might be rare but she had met countless others who were far more mischievous than the old man. The cat demon was proud by nature so she could not truly like anyone, let alone trust. Without trust, everything was futile. Qian Ren nodded in agreement. He suddenly felt a chill on his dog's face. He lowered his head and saw that Chang Li was looking at him as she giggled, if I had trusted those two cultivators, won't I be dead by now? You had been hiding at the side while watching this comedy the entire time. The dog-headed eagle was stunned and it quickly shook its big head, that won't do, I must save you no matter what. Zhuye Zi continued fearfully from the side, I was afraid that you'd be too late. She then looked at Chang Li and reminded her seriously, the dog-headed eagle had previously mentioned that the two cultivators had not been related to each other. Qian Ren was astonished and hastily reported to Chang Li, Zhuye Zi had asked the old man to hit your face just now. He then snorted. Chang Li smiled beautifully shortly after, the sound of wind erupted as the three peerless demon immortals leaped into the air. They stared each other down as nobody was willing to make the first move. Wen Leong was so anxious that he stomped his feet. He then asked Guo Huan, what should we do, what should we do? His voice has barely faded away when Xiaowu, who was beside him, grabbed his clothes and climbed onto his back with agile movements. She lifted her little face and looked at the sky with delight as her clear eyes were filled with longing, urging them to fight. Before Guo Huan could reply, the old man who had been out cold suddenly shouted in pain. The old monsters in Madeir looked at each other. Only after when Leong had shouted finished the proper business first. Did they put away their fighting stance and busied themselves in unison. The old man managed to open his eyes. He faintly remembered that he had been wounded only after a brief moment. He wanted to jump with all his strength just now when a piercing pain suddenly jolted through his limbs and bones. He was being supported by two people right now. The old man looked at his surroundings. They were inside a dark cave and he asked in a low voice, Who are all of you? Where is this? With his every breath, spasms of pain would shoot through his body which made him wish that he was dead. He knows that he was an arrow at the end of its flight and that he does not have much time left. A small-eyed youth and a girl with a naturally smiley face were standing before him. The old man may be dying but he still has his sight. With a glance, he could tell that the two of them were ordinary people so he could not help but relax. The small-eyed youth smiled happily, my name's he, he Xiao Sha. I had trained in my family's Jianghu art since I was young and this is my older sister. The old man pondered for a while before he nodded, the scumbag he family. The men of Jianghu. The one, Miao, and Luo families had secluded themselves from the world. Throughout these two thousand years, other than the ancestor Wen Latsi who had shown his outstanding achievements, they had secluded themselves for generations. Naturally, they were not the only families with strange arts. There were also the Murongs of Gusu district, the Chinzhou zombie sect, the Jiangnan Thunderclap Castle, the Kanto Thousand Horses Hall, and numerous other families. However, these families were unlike the Wen Butsao who had lived in seclusion. Instead, they had relied on their strange arts and fought for their place in the society, living happily and with contented lives for thousands of years. The low-life he family's martial arts skill were only at a villager's level. Though they were fairly well off and their reputation could not be compared to the nobility, even the evil cults who had claimed countless lives would not want to provoke the he family. 
The arbiters of the He family were skilled in the art of Jianghu and they were unscrupulous in their methods. If one provokes them, they had ways to make one confused whether to laugh or to cry and one would hardly be able to eat or sleep in peace. A bowl of fragrant rice would taste like dog's poop when eaten gongs would suddenly clamor as if a theatrical troupe had just entered the room when one closed their eyes but when they opened their eyes again. There was nobody there upon awakening, one would find another person on one's bed. If that person was a corpse, one would do well to feel thankful indeed. One time, when a high monk had provoked the He family, he had found himself lying on a butcher's chest when he had woken up. Because the He family's methods were unimaginably weird, it gave everyone goosebumps so they had earned the nickname of scumbag. There was a saying that goes take the lay family's thunder pills over the He family's meals. These words have been circulating in society for quite some time now. Xiao Xia was a direct descendant of the He family. He squinted his eyes as he smiled, may I ask how you've come to hear about the He family name old man? Also, how should I address you? As he said this, Xiao Xia flashed his art of Jianghu. Suddenly, chickens flew, dogs leaped, and wolves howled as ghosts cried. There were also booming stepping sounds and giant footprints which appeared out of thin air. The old man has been alive for many years now so he had heard some of the tales of the art of Jianghu. He had remembered the name of the He family when he tried to recall his memories. The old man has an exceptional cultivation base and he also knows that he was dying. Nevertheless, he could not help but felt his hairs stand on end when he saw Xiao Xia's smile. The old man frowned and replied, My name is Wu Dudu. Xiao Xia's eyes slanted as if he found this old man's name interesting. Just as he was about to seize this opportunity to talk nonsense, Fei Fei, who does not know whether to laugh or to cry, pulled him aside. She then spoke seriously to the old man, Old man Wu, what's up with that dog-headed eagle? Old man Wu was stunned, you're not from Jianghu. The people of Jianghu would never know about the dog-headed eagle. Fei Fei nodded, there's no Jianghu anymore. As she said this, she drew something on the ground, we're now this. Old man Wu blinked with puzzlement as he looked at Fei Fei, what do you mean? Chapter, 243 Xiao Xia broke into laughter from the side and patted Fei Fei's shoulder, I think you're mistaken. This old man has never set foot in Jianghu so why should he know your name? He then looked at the old man and said, we're both officers, us siblings. We're specifically in charge of the matters regarding the cultivation world. You have an astounding cultivation base, old man. Your quarrel on that side of the world has nothing to do with us but we must be able to understand one particular case. What's with the dog-headed eagle? If we can't chase it down, we won't be able to explain this to our superiors. Old man Wu nodded, officers, please tell me what happened from the beginning. Xiao Xia did not hesitate as he immediately spoke and gesticulated. The gist was that after the dog-headed eagle had heavily wounded the old man, it had guarded the demon fetus's rock tower and blocked Chongli from rescuing the others. It also seems to have a grudge against Zhui Zi who had just arrived. Zhui Zi and Chongli had not been on good terms to begin with and the three elites had fought each other. Just when it looks like the dog-headed eagle was about to be torn apart by these two beautiful ladies who had joined forces, a peerless sword immortal with the bearings of an erudite person suddenly made his move. He aimed his attack at Chongli and Zhui Zi. Xiao Xia was uncertain as to what the outcome of the fight was but, in the end, some had run away while the others gave chase. Even when Leong and Xiao Wu had chased after them. Fei Fei and Xiao Xia had seized this opportunity to rescue the old man. This bunch of nonsense had been made up by the old demons and the truth and the lie had been blended seamlessly. Qian Ren had stubbornly protected his treasure while Chang Li eagerly wanted to rescue the victims Zhui Zi had traveled more than a thousand kilometers to Mount Hua just to chase after the dog-headed eagle. The sword immortal who had appeared afterward was, of course, Tian Yin. Subjectively and objectively, Tian Yin would regard Chang Li and Zhui Zi as his nemesis so it was only natural for him to take Qian Ren's side. When the old demons had fabricated their story, they did not care whether Wu Duda knew about the backgrounds and relationships of Changli, Zhui Zi, Qian Ren, and Tian Yin. They had based it upon facts and used their relationships as the standard. After they had inserted Tian Yin, who was the crucial element, the lie began to seem all the more plausible. 
Old man Wu had a frown on his face as he listened to Xiao Sha's explanation. The muscles on his face would occasionally twitch from pain. Other than suspicion, the other expression which fell into Fei Fei's eyes was a trace of killing intent which had appeared on the old man's face after Tian Yin had entered the stage. There was also a slight befuddlement in his gaze. Old man Wu asked incredulously after Xiao Sha had finished his explanation, when we had been engaged in our fierce battle, the two of you had been hiding nearby. Xiao Sha nodded with a smile, that's right halfway through his sentence, he suddenly smacked his forehead, how clumsy of me. Old man, please take a look at this. He then fished out a small vial of yellow powder from his pocket and poured it into his palm before rubbing his palms together and applied it to his face. He then crawled on the ground as he continued with a smile, Old man, can you use your telegnosis ability and see if I'm still human? A laugh escaped from Fei Fei's pursed lips, she was amused by Xiao Sha's words. Every bit of old man Wu's life vitality had turned into a bone-scraping steel knife now as it flowed everywhere within his body. If it had not been for his amazing composure, he would have died from the pain long ago. In short, he does not have any telegnosis ability left to determine whether Xiao Sha was telling the truth or not. However, Fei Fei did see that the old man's suspicion had been reduced somewhat. Whether it was Jianghu or the mortal world, there were many unexplainable talents. If it was said that the arbiter of the scumbag he family has the ability to disguise his presence as a tree or a wild boar, the old man would have truly believed it. When Qin Yao had led his disciples to make a scene in one family village some years ago, the death trademark stalking art had also managed to evade the cultivator's telegnosis abilities. Fei Fei continued after Xiao Sha had finished with his display, You must know, old man, that no matter what dynasty or era, there would be officers like us who are in charge of the matters regarding the cultivation world. Wu Dudu nodded silently. The dog-headed eagle which had been sealed under Tour Town's mandala seal on the highlands has escaped. This issue is no small matter Fei Fei spoke the truth, this time, however, we had encountered this monster by chance. We were originally charged to investigate that rock tower which had consumed the Mount Hua scientific exploration team. Xiao Sha continued Fei Fei's conversation, about three days ago, this monster had arrived on Mount Hua. It must have something to do with the demon fetus. Even though the old man's expression looks almost like it had been carved out of stone or cast in iron, he was unable to deceive Fei Fei. When he heard that the dog-headed eagle had arrived here a few days ago, a deep regret had grown wildly within him. He was also slowly becoming more trusting towards Fei Fei and Xiao Sha. Xiao Sha had wanted to say something more but old man Wu cut him short with a shake of his head, the demon fetus is of no importance, it won't bring any harm for a million years so you do well not to worry about it. However, that's not the case with the dog-headed eagle. He has broken through the seal and if we do not act cautiously, I'm afraid that a great calamity would befall us all. Fei Fei's brows knitted together in a barely discernible manner. Old man Wu had spoken earnestly. Old man Wu knows that his time was short so he spared no effort and quickened his speed of speaking, Mount Hua was the old lair of the dog-headed eagle. My line of cultivators had secluded ourselves here for generations so that, in the event that the monster has broken out of its cocoon and returned to its old nest, we could kill it. However he, I already knew that it had escaped its seal but I didn't expect it to come here so soon. Qian Ren had not planned to return to Mount Hua so soon either he had wanted to familiarize himself with his body first. Old man Wu had not guessed wrongly but even if he had Wen Shulin's help, he could never have foreseen that Qian Ren would get his hands on the heavenly water spirit and return to Mount Hua ahead of time. Fei Fei frowned. She then played dumb to the highest level possible, the lady who had tried to dig up the demon fetus was not the dog-headed eagle so why had you guys attacked her? It's better to be safe than sorry. They had come to dig up the demon fetus so, naturally, they are also under suspicion. It's a shame that I did not see through her demon body beforehand. As old man Wu spoke, an extremely deep enmity gradually showed on his face, I only realized that she was the cat demon the moment I had attacked her. She's the cat demon. Old man Wu suddenly sat upright with a whoosh. He bared his teeth and squeezed out eight words, the perpetrator of evil, shall. Have. No. Descendants. The old man had overexerted himself. 
After he had cursed Chongli, he then lost all his strength. His body slanted and he leaned against the wall of the rock cave as he made guttural panting sounds from his throat. Fei Fei asked him about Chang Li again but the old man only shook his head. He was unwilling to talk about this topic anymore. Fei Fei winked at Xiao Sha. Xiao Sha then chuckled and returned the topic to the dog-headed eagle, that dog-headed eagle can rain disaster on the world. I don't think so besides, your reasoning is somewhat off. If you had wanted to prevent the dog-headed eagle from escaping, you should have gone and guarded the seal on the highland. Why are you on Mount Hua instead before any ordinary criminal escapes, we would have fought inside the prison first. We'll only barricade the house after the criminal has escaped. After he had finished, Xiao Sha pondered for a while. He quickly added another question, who's your ancestor? Is he related to King Geezer who had sealed the dog-headed eagle? Wu Didu shook his head strenuously, once the dog-headed eagle had escaped, there were already signs of a great calamity so I can't be wrong. On the highlands, there were a bunch of powerful cultivators who had kept guard on the dog-headed eagle to make sure that it didn't escape. Ha! Huh. It's too bad, it looks like they've failed. The old man then took a few heavy breaths, as for my ancestor, he he, he who secludes himself for the common good would not trouble himself with a reputation. You wouldn't know him even if I told you. Still don't lump us in together with King Geezer. When the Wu family ancestor had turned back the powers of darkness and saved the world, that highland divine person had not even been born yet. Fei Fei and Xiao Sha exchanged a look. She then asked old man Wu, after the dog-headed eagle had escaped the seal, we found the bodies of some cultivators between Tuer and Lesa. Old man Wu declined to comment. He then shook his head and cut Fei Fei short, time is running out, the two of you, Listen to me there are many layers of seals under the dog-headed eagle which suppresses an abominably wicked person. He has now turned the seal into a flesh armor and his cultivation base is already almost perfect. As officers, how would you handle him? Xiao Sha muttered softly, missiles. Old man Wu ignored him and took a deep breath. He then wanted to take something out of his pocket but he remembered that he no longer has any arms right now, as long as the dog-headed eagle is alive, it will return to look for the demon fetus. I have a token in my pocket, go to Mount Hang, to a place called the Great Drum Pit. If you take this token there, someone will receive you there. If you tell them all this, there would naturally be someone who would help you to kill the dog-headed eagle. Xiao Sha took the token from old man Wu's pocket. It was a Dharma Chakra Madra made out of an unknown material. The inscriptions on the Madra were not in the seal scripts but were complicated runes. Fei Fei and Xiao Sha walked out of the cave in a single file. A flurry of movements then occurred before their eyes. Chang Li, Zhui Zi, Wen Leong, Xiao Wu, and Wen Xu Lin all jumped out from different directions as they hastily asked, How did it go? There was a cliff near the cave's entrance. A giant dog's head was peeking out furtively from the bottom of the cliff. When old man Wu had regained his consciousness, they had found a nearby cave and sent the old man with the Fei Fei siblings into it. Old man Wu had been consecutively attacked by the dog-headed eagle and Chang Li during the fierce battle so he was already a goner. He was also a person who had trained his mind since a young age so even if they were to use every form of torture available, it might not have any effect on a dying man. Under the heavens, if it was coercion and Fei Fei, who knows how to read expressions, had claimed that she was second best, nobody would dare to claim to be the best. When Leong and the others put down their work at hand, the three demon immortals had lost all intentions of fighting. Even when Xu Lin finally regained consciousness, they all hid around the cave as they waited to hear the results with an itching heart that was hard to scratch. Xiao Sha pointed at the cave and made an ending hand sign, the old man is dead. Xiao Sha was skilled in the art of Jianghu while Fei Fei knows how to analyze thoughts and read emotions. Even a skilled cultivator would not be able to play dead in front of the duo. Chang Li exclaimed and an unconcealable sorrow rose on her face, I had wanted him to know your identities before he died. A wave of goosebumps rolled across Xiao Sha's forehead, he finally understood that this cat demon was not someone who should be crossed. Fei Fei recounted the happenings inside the cave her memory was astounding and she repeated what the old man had said almost word for word. 
She then nodded confidently, old man Wu had been wary at first but the things which he had said after that should be the truth, especially when he had mentioned the both of you. That hatred could not have been faked. She pointed at Chang Li and the dog-headed eagle as she said this. Chang Li smiled with embarrassment, I have many enemies. I can't recall which family's descendant he would be. Fei Fei looked at Wen Leong and continued, after we had parted at Lhasa, our leader thought that the bunch of unnamed cultivators who had been killed by Xiang Lu were fishy. He even contacted Master Rangyong to confirm it. According to the Tibetan cultivators, no such people had ever existed amongst them. Xiao Sha followed with a nod, this corroborates with old man Wu's words. That group of cultivators must have been from the same group as old man Wu. Old man Wu had stayed behind and guarded Mount Hua whereas that group of people had stayed in the highlands to prevent the dog-headed eagle from escaping the seal. Xian Ren suddenly let out an extremely sorrowful and furious wail, Kong Nuer, good. Very good. Very good. Obviously, Fei Fei has no confidence in Wen Liang's intelligence. She moved closer and explained to him softly, whether it was old man Wu or the cultivators who had died gruesomely on the highlands, they had all been guarding against the dog-headed eagle. However, they were unrelated to King Gizer's subordinates who had set up the Tibetan Buddhism sex Mandala in Tour Town. When Leung nodded as he tried to prove that he was smart, during that time, after Kong Nuer had tricked Qian Ren, he must have kept an eye on him. When the golden monkey had finally been sealed under layers of spells in the Tour Mandala, he had still felt uneasy. He then placed troops on the highlands and Mount Hua the former would guard against the escape of the dog-headed eagle and they were ultimately killed by Tian Yin on their way to Tour Town while the latter had stayed on Mount Hua but was killed by Qian Ren instead. After he had finished, when Leong heaved a long sigh, aren't Kong Nuer's subordinates a tad too powerful? The cultivators who had been killed by Xiang Lu on the highlands could still activate a thunderous attack with their dying will and the power was not inferior to the Great Mercy Temple's rabbit demon. At the same time, Wu Didu on Mount Hua was even more powerful as there were not many who have the ability to fight 111 with Changli. Xiao Sha took the token that was given to him by Wu Dudu before his death out from his pocket. He dangled it as he said, there were other forces which Kong Nuer had left behind. If we bring this to the great drum pit on Mount Hang, we can still gather those forces. By the looks of it, he was confident that he could defeat Qian Ren. A million years ago, Qian Ren had been tricked by Kong Nuer into a condition which was too unbearable to watch. After that, it was unknown whether Kong Nuer was still within the mortal realm. However, he had still left some forces behind to deal with Qian Ren. Qian Ren felt angry and annoyed. He also felt that he could no longer keep this anger down anymore. The feathers on the dog-headed eagle ruffled as he raised his giant head and wanted to wail and vent his anger. Chang Li and Zhui Zi pointed at him almost simultaneously, no howling. That's too noisy. The shrill howl of the dog-headed eagle immediately turned into the squeaking of a toad which had been stepped on by a bull. Qian Ren puffed heavily twice before his breathing returned to normal. He then stared at the Dharma Mudra token in Xiao Sha's hands, these scraps had originally belonged to Kong Nuer. I never thought that they would have been turned into tokens for his subordinates. Very good. Qian Ren had dragged out his last two words like a thin saw that slowly scraped itself from head to toe over a piece of wood, I had initially wanted to look for Kong Nuer, it looks like he had left me some clues. Fei Fei turned to look at the dog-headed eagle, who is this Kong Nuer? Where had he gathered such great forces from? The dog-headed eagle's head was too large so when it turned, the wind would howl through the mountains, before all this, I had only regarded him as an obscure cultivator but now that I think about it. When I had been tricked by him all those years ago, the cultivators under the heavens had coveted the sudden rise of Mount Hua's ending cave however, Kong Nuer's men had been able to sit firmly on the mountain. Not only that, he still had the energy to control the golden monkey in the western regions. When Leong carefully considered the Kong Nuer's forces from back then, the golden monkey was a natural-born alien species even King Geezer, who was regarded as a god which had descended from the heavens by the Tibetan people, had to sacrifice the lives of his guardians when he wanted to seal the golden monkey. God knows how many years ago, Kong Nuer had been able to defend Mount Hua against the cultivators under the heavens as he firmly controlled the golden monkey with some of his strength. 
What worried Wen Leung the most was the deep hatred that Wu Dudu, who had died inside the cave, has towards Chang Li. If Chang Li had only begrudged Wu Dudu's sect 2000 years ago, that would be manageable. However, if Chang Li had unintentionally crossed Kong Nuer's entire force the consequence would not be any less serious than Xian Lu escaping the Black and White Island. What Wen Leung could think of, Chang Li had already thought it through. She took the Dharma Mudra token from Xiao Sha's hand and looked at it closely. Her beautiful face was full of puzzlement. In the end, she could not understand what grudge she had with this Dharma Mudra or Wu Dudu. She decided not to think about it and tossed the token back to Xiao Sha. Xiao Sha had a mischievous idea. His small eyes narrowed into a line as he said loudly to the dog headed eagle, Do you want me to go to Mount Hang in your stead? I can draw the enemy to you. Chang Li and Zhui Zi are here as well, they can help you to fight the enemy. Chang Li and Zhui Zi smiled as they placed their hands behind their backs and said nothing. They only looked at the dog headed eagle with interest. However, the dog headed eagle was clearly startled and shook its head hastily. Then, it seemed to feel that its sternness had diminished somewhat as it coughed I have to help Qin Zhui try out the ending vine these few days so I shouldn't look for trouble. Once we're done with Mount Hua, I'll bring the Dharma Mudra token to Mount Heng's great drum pit myself. Xiao Sha was slightly dejected while Guo Huan broke into laughter within the jade knife, you're just worried that the dog-headed eagle won't die. When the enemy truly comes, I'm not sure who the two immortal ladies would fight for. Chang Li laughed. Suddenly, her body floated and flew backward. Her gaze towards the other two demon immortals was not that polite anymore. Zhui Zi and the dog-headed eagle quickly reacted as well as they readied their stances almost simultaneously. This trio has some unsettled business and although it might not escalate into a fight to the death, they wanted to fight to vent their anger. Wen Leung moved and acted quickly. He immediately followed Chang Li's body as he firmly planted himself between the trio. He then waved his arms frantically but he did not know how to dissuade them. Everyone knows that, with Wen Leung in the middle, this fight would not be easy. The two ladies relaxed their stances resentfully whereas Qian Ren sighed with relief. The thing he feared the most in his life was fighting with women. Zhui Zi had suffered losses by Chang Li's hands in this present life and in her previous life. She gritted her teeth with resentment as she said three soundless words to Chang Li, wait and see. Chang Li did not even notice her. She was staring at the dog-headed eagle as she also mouthed, wait and see, to it. However, the dog-headed eagle said honestly to Zhui Zi, I'll return the small bowl to you after I'm done with the, heavenly water spirit dot. It won't take too long. They had gotten their testimony and were not fighting anymore. All that was left was to work. Qian Ren was also intelligent. He did not ask Chang Li and did not look at Zhui Zi as he spoke earnestly to Wen Leong, while I'm helping Qin Zhui to refine the ending vine. There's this part where I have to gather my focus and utilize my energy to help him subdue the magic weapon. Initially, just myself would have been enough but now, with Kong Nuer's subordinates showing themselves. His voice has barely faded as Xiaowu, who was chewing some gum, interrupted pompously, use a protective spell then. Wen Leung hesitated slightly as Guo Huan chuckled, it's alright even if we stay for a few more days. Partly because we have time on our hands and partly because this demon fetus is an earth elemental statue. Heh, although it should be impossible, I'm still not content with it. Wen Leung was stunned. Guo Huan did not wait for him to ask again as he said, we'll know the truth once we dig deep enough, it's all nonsense no matter how we guess. Zhui Zi hugged her arms and looked at her toes pitiably, I still have to wait for him to return the small bowl to me. The group of cultivators returned to the demon fetus's rock tower in no time. Zhui Zi then released a few cultivators from their icicle prison cell. These cultivators were Wu Dudu's disciples but they had no knowledge of the dog-headed eagle, Kong Nuer, or Chang Li. They had only followed their sect leader's lead and came to fight the enemy. Under Fei Fei's discerning eyes, they naturally had no way of lying but they could not extol any further information out of their mouths. If it were up to Chang Li, Zhui Zi, or Qian Ren, these people would have been killed. Wen Leong, however, did not wish to see blood. In the end, the few demon immortals had listened to him. 
They then relieved these cultivators of their powers and sent them away with team leader Chu's armed police. They were prosecuted on the charges of poaching. Strictly speaking, the cat demon and the dog-headed eagle were protected animals. Qian Ren was indifferent to the fates of these small characters. He was only worried that they would somehow leak the information about this matter before he went to Mount Heng's great drum pit. Wen Liang's method was reliable and he agreed to it although the dog-headed eagle did not understand what they had meant by poaching. Fei Fei and Xiao Sha did not leave either. They stayed on under the notion investigating the demon fetus thoroughly before they could explain this to their superiors. The dog-headed eagle even asked Wen Liang secretly, can we let those two come and help? As he said this, he raised two feathers on his wing and pointed silently at the nearby Changli and Zhui Zi. Before Wen Liang could speak, Guo Huan replied with a laugh, don't push your luck. Only the spiky peak of the rock tower had been revealed and nobody knows how deep it went underground. When they had resumed digging, there were only two workers the dog-headed eagle and Wen Liang. Xiaowu and Changli had gone on strike. Zhui Zi looked at Wen Liang with a heartbroken expression before looking sorrowfully at her own nails instead. In the end, she sighed before picking Xiao Wu up and sat down on one side. Two days later, team leader Chu had brought honest-to-god armed policemen and remanded all of Wu Dudu's subordinates, the cultivators who have had their powers forfeited. It was unknown whether Zhui Zi and Chang Li suddenly had a newfound kindness or they were bored to death as they had eventually jumped into the pit and joined in the digging. The demon fetus felt that danger was approaching and it began to get riled up as it desperately scattered demon seeds. The dog-headed eagle's expression gradually turned from confident to puzzlement. Eventually, he got anxious. This demon fetus's retaliation was too fierce and it completely exceeded his expectations. He was worried that Qin Zhui's primordial base would not be able to withstand it. Everyone dug with all their might and Qian Ren even more so. The dog-headed eagle's body was so big, a flap of its wings would cause a gale to rise. The rock tower seemed to spiral out of the ground as if it was alive. Zhui Zi and Chang Li made full use of their demonic primordial energy. The former summoned a torrent of water which continuously cleared the dirt while the latter summoned demonic spirits and five ghosts to help take the soil away. Wen Liang and Xiao Wu could only look on enviously. The dead monsters summoned by Xiao Wu only knew how to fight and did not know how to dig or engage in archaeological studies. The intelligence of Wen Liang's bone snake was no better than Xiao Wu's summoned corpses. Wen Liang had summoned the bone snake a few times but all it had done was to glare fiercely at the dog-headed eagle and circulate its chi. Chapter, 244 Judging by the size and height of the demon fetus's stone tower, it resembled a huge mountain which had been buried in the soil. If someone were to place the Great Pyramid of Giza next to it, according to Fei Fei's words, it could be described as the ratio between a lizard and a Tyrannosaurus. Each Sni chip could possibly be the last piece but after they had brushed away the soil, a new stone chip would appear once again. The bitter cold and rigidity shattered everyone's longing. It was only until 27 days later that when Leong excavated a gigantic stone chip that he was incapable of using his telegnosis ability to measure its exact surface area. He then felt the ground beneath his feet get lighter and the soil turned loose and soft. At the same time, Qian Ren too squalled in excitement, I can see the bottom now. Follow my order and burst out our powers to clear the soil. Following that, he inhaled a deep breath and shouted all of a sudden, break. Until this point. All Wen Leong could see were only layers upon layers of stone chips from the final stone slab which was the size of an enormous lake beneath his feet all the way up to the stone chip that was about the size of a lighter which protruded from the ground. This could only be considered as a part of the demon fetus while the true demon fetus's root was underneath this last stone slab. The dog-headed eagle's wing spread out abruptly and a tremendous force blasted into the soil beneath the last stone slab with loud banging noises. The loose soil then turned into an agitated vortex under the churning of the tremendous force that squeezed it towards the sides desperately. When Leong understood Qian Ren's order as the poison of life and death in his body circulated. Just as he was about to exert his power to help Qian Ren clear the soil beneath the last stone slab, he felt a pull on his back as Chang Li hauled him next to her. Meanwhile, Zhui Zi had carried Xiao Wu and was standing nearby. 
The both of them spoke in unison, Who do you think you are, asking us to follow your order? Following that, the two witches pouted their lips in unison again. What was most surprising to them was that Qian Ren had not needed to exhaust too much of his energy before the soil beneath the stone tower was cleared away. Only a little bit of surface soil had remained on the demon tower which was utterly incapable of withstanding the hurricane which had been conjured by the dog-headed eagle. The three demon immortals had not expected this to happen. They gasped softly in surprise while the dog-headed eagle, who had exerted too much strength, spun around twice before it managed to steady itself with difficulty. From Wen Liang's point of view, though the demon fetus's stone tower was enormous in size, it was not very different from a carrot. Those two objects grew out from the soil in a similar manner the stone tower was the leafy part of the carrot while the demon fetus's true body was the root. No matter how deep it was buried, it would still be uncovered eventually. When Leong stood on the final stone slab as he bent over and looked down. To his surprise, beneath him was a large, bottomless void with a greenish tinge that looked like it could stretch all the way to the earth's core. When Leong was still astounded at the type of force which was capable of supporting this demon fetus's stone tower in the middle of a void when he felt someone grip his arms Chang Li and Zhui Zi each held on to one of his arms as they floated down from the last stone slab. They descended the void into that boundless ghastly green glow beneath the stone tower. Xiao Wu moved quickly as she jumped from Zhui Zi's embrace and grabbed onto Wen Liang's neck while her other unoccupied hand grabbed her morning staff out of thin air. Her little face was filled with vigilance but that vigilant expression was soon shaken into nothingness. Beneath the stone tower, the demon fetus's true form was revealed to the minutest detail it was a giant, dark green bird. The giant bird's wings were the length of over a dozen meters and covered most of its body. The feathers on its body were full and strong as it glowed magnificently. Its feathers would occasionally ripple in the air. The most hideous thing was that this giant bird has a human face. Its skull was smooth and stiff with powerful sword-like brows, its eyes were closed and its nose bridge was transparent while serene smile lines hung on its slightly puckered lips. It appeared as if it was having a sweet dream and its five facial features could be described as charming was surprisingly attached to a square-shaped face. When Leon could confirm that the four edges of its face were at right angles. The demon fetus was a human-faced bird-bodied monster which was roughly the size of a basketball court. Its back was tightly connected to the stone tower and it was almost impossible to distinguish whether the stone tower was suppressing the strange bird or the strange bird was heaving the stone tower up. When Leon could not help but raise his head and looked at the dog-headed eagle. He had no choice but to say that the demon fetus beneath the stone tower was extremely similar to the dog-headed eagle one was a dark red-colored dog-headed giant eagle while another was a dark green-colored human-faced phoenix. Whether it was the dog-headed eagle who was usually filled with ruthlessness and tyranny, or Chang Li and Zhui Zi who were charming and attractive, everyone at the scene had the same expression they were shocked and terrified. Only when Leong was behaving in a relatively normal manner. Though the human-faced and bird-bodied demon fetus appeared peculiar to him, he did not consider it as terrifying or hideous. During the past few years, when Leong had seen a wailing giant bronze Buddha, a giant pangolin that loves to curse, and there was also a cultivator who was contained in a monkey that was in a dog-headed eagle before his eyes. There was also the zombie toddler who had been struck by God's thunder and had turned into a cute baby back at the one family village therefore, such a peculiar-looking demon fetus was perfectly acceptable to Wen Leung. In the green-tinged void, the ambience was peculiar and hushed. No one spoke and Wen Leung dared not make a sound. It was only after a long while that Qian Ren spoke up dryly, I had been wrong, this is not the ending vine. Chang Li too, laughed grudgingly as she heaved a sigh, we had all been wrong, this is utterly not a demon fetus. A clicking sound echoed from the jade knife. Guo Huan has almost turned mad after witnessing the monster before his eyes, it was as if he wanted to speak but the sound that he finally made was this meaningless scraping noise. Wen Leong was so nervous that he used his armpit to clamp down onto Chang Li and Zhui Zi's hand strenuously, this is not the demon fetus that had turned into a vine on its own. What is this creature here then? Chang Li enunciated word by word to answer him, it's a divine fetus. Zhui Zi looked at the human-faced giant bird before her eyes. 
She had forgotten to oppose Chang Li since earlier as she continued Chang Li's topic of conversation, seventeen divine feathers, ten fingers on two wings, phoenix-bodied human-faced, East Heaven's wood officer. Under Wen Liang's close scrutiny, there were a dozen gigantic long feathers on the bird's body that were absolutely disproportioned to the rest of the feathers which covered its neck all the way to its long tail. The two wings that encircled its body were crossed together beneath its stomach like ten fingers. At last, Zhui Zi spoke in a voice which trembled slightly, Go Mang. It's the wood deity Go Mang. This is Go Mang's divine fetus, it is not the ending vine's demon fetus. Chang Li nodded as she added, It all makes sense now why it's demonic primordial energy. Divine primordial energy was already so vigorous even before it has opened up the path of its spiritual intelligence. Wen Leung exclaimed in wonder before he asked, Isn't Go Mang a tree? That's why we have the Go Mang seed, not Go Mang's egg. Chang Li rolled her eyes at him, before Go Mang received its magic, it had been a divine tree in the land of sunrise. After it had received its magic, it then transformed into the human faced immortal bird. When Leung nodded, he does not have much concept of the great deities from ancient times, so he was only astonished for a while upon seeing one in the wild. He soon recovered from his surprise, how about Qin Zhui? Qin Zhui is fine. He had been pulled down by the ending vine. As it was saying that, the dog-headed eagle used its chin which was a few hundred square meters to point in a certain direction. It was only then that when Leung noticed Qin Zhui who had been wrapped in a layer of vines until only his head had stuck out. Qin Zhui's eyes were tightly shut either from unconsciousness or meditation. The human-faced bird-bodied monster seems to possess a form of inherent magic power that was capable of drawing everyone's gaze to its body. Wen Leung had been very attentive when he had arrived down here but even he had missed seeing Qin Zhui who was just next to the strange bird. Apparently, Qian Ren's attention too had been focused on the Go Mang's divine fetus. He then explained to Wen Leung absent-mindedly, My ending vine is not a mortal item. It had gathered near the divine fetus to be in the wood spirit's divine glow so that's not a rare occurrence. The vine in Qin Zhui's primordial foundation had been originated from the same source. They were too intimately connected which was why the vine had pulled him down. Before Qian Ren arrived on Mount Hua, he had initially predicted that the ending vine would entangle Qin Zhui. Judging by the situation now, other than the addition of Go Mang's divine fetus, nothing else was out of the ordinary. Qian Ren's words interrupted Wen Liang's voice and he shifted his gaze back to the human-faced strange bird. When he spoke again, his tone of speaking sounded very peculiar, almost like someone who had bit into a vegan steamed bun joyously and realizing soon after that the steamed bun stuffing had been made out of date pits. His voice sounded a little bit puzzled, a little angry, and even more at a loss of whether to laugh or to cry as he said. The power of Go Mang Si back then has completely surged into my Dharma body and urged the growth of the entire ending cave that seed had shriveled and dried up so I had flicked it into the soil out of rage I did not expect that it has truly turned into a divine fetus. As he was saying that, the dog-headed eagle stretched out a wing and pointed to the strange bird's neck. A thread which was as fine as a spider's web extended from the base of its neck all the way towards the direction of the mountains in a zigzag manner. When Leung had just thought to inquire further when Zhui Zi laughed, I'll bring you along and chase after it for a while then you will understand. She then pulled him along and flew towards the fine thread in a flash. After flying along swiftly like the wind with Zhui Zi, when Leung detected at the end of his telegnosis ability that the spirit thread had abruptly split into millions of other threads which were finer than a spider's web. The threads were arranged messily yet there was absolutely no crossing between the threads which has spread out in all directions. Zhui Zi then brought him back to Chang Li and the dog-headed eagle side. She laughed as she asked him, did you see it clearly? When Leung nodded and his face was slightly shocked, there were truly too many and of those fine threads and it was so messy that it made one feel uneasy at one glance, so many threads where does it connect to? Zhui Zi's tone of speaking was normal and there was still a little fear in her voice, it's connected to Mount Hua and each and every single blade of grass and tree in the Qinling Mountains after Mount Hua. When Leung inhaled a cold breath ferociously, his mouth was agape yet he was so shocked he could not even utter a word. Qian Ren had expected when Leung to react this way since earlier as he sneered and spoke, it's mutually growing with the mountains and the trees. 
Every single blade of grass on these rolling hills and every single tree is connected to the root of this divine fetus. It has absorbed the spiritual vitality of the world and converted it into divine primordial energy, Ha! Yeah. This is an outstanding creature here. When Leung managed to close his mouth with effort. He then spoke again at long last, this divine immortal is just planted like this? Zhui Zi sniggered and she gave Wen Leung an evil stare but she seems to be too lazy to acknowledge him now. During this period of time, Chang Li's gaze has never left the Go Mang's divine fetus's face. A sense of doubt penetrated her face as she said, this face here the more I look the more familiar it becomes as if I've seen it somewhere before. Wen Leung hastily followed Chang Li's gaze as he sized the human face strange bird up and down. He then cautiously reminded her, is it Grand Master Tuas Ye? Chang Li put her arm around Wen Leung's shoulder intimately as she stretched out a hand and pointed at the strange bird's face, young lad, the pickle jar is round but that face is square. At this moment, Guo Huan, who had kept quiet all along suddenly spoke up. His voice was muffled and sounded completely unlike the others. He was filled with the joy of seeing the divine fetus in person but he was also trying to suppress his anger desperately, this spirit monster of mountain rocks and plants, after it has condensed the demon fetus for millennia. It would absorb the spiritual vitality of the world while it simultaneously pushed the inherent malevolent energy out of its body and formed it into all sorts of foreign matter. Before the demon fetus had taken form, these foreign matters, an example would be the stone tower which we have been excavating for a month, was also part of the demon fetus body he then paused for a moment. I am a spirit formed from a rock and when I was still a demon fetus, the malevolent energy which had formed outside my body turned into the yin's error and yang's mistake. When Leong could not help but to raise his head and peered at the soaring high tower before his eyes, so, after this strange bird is resurrected its treasured weapon is this stone mountain here. As he was pondering on that, he could not refrain himself from gulping nervously. He had thought in his heart that this divine fetus was indeed extraordinary but, soon after that, he changed his mindset. If the wood deity's treasured weapon could turn into a huge mountain, what would the Tutagong deity use as his war weapon then? Guo Huan huffed as he retorted, it can be as what you've just said, the foreign matter that had been formed by the malevolent energy in the body similarly received the creation of the world. The spirit monster would become their treasured weapon after it has taken form. However, this old father does not want to talk about the treasured weapon, I wanted to talk about how the divine fetus had got its malevolent energy. There was so much malevolent energy that it had formed into a mountain. The dog-headed eagle sniggered and it seems to think that Guo Huan's statement was boring, the refinement of the divine fetus is a stupendous heavenly mystery, it's not something that we can understand. Perhaps this stone tower is not condensing the malevolent energy but the divine immortal's merciful heart. Guo Huan inhaled a deep breath strenuously. He was attempting to suppress his temper yet, the moment he spoke, the first word unexpectedly turned into a long, anguished howl, Merciful Mother of King SS. The rest of them did not understand why Guo Huan was suddenly infuriated. The agitated Guo Huan gave another long howl before he roared aloud once again, Chang Li, didn't you find that face familiar? Ponder carefully once again, whose face is that? Chang Li squinted her eyes as she looked carefully at the Go Mang's divine fetus's human face. She frowned and Guo Huan waited several seconds before he grew impatient and yelled, That's my face. That bird's face is my face. Chang Li was startled but she giggled instead, Go away, your face is like a pumpkin's face and looks just like the moon on the sixth day of the lunar month. How could it be square like this? When Leong felt the jade knife at the base of his neck turn scorching hot. Guo Huan was truly infuriated this time, if he still had his body, he would definitely be spitting blood now. He scolded in rage ferociously, Go Mang has a human faces and bird's body and a square-shaped face. These are all correct but those five facial features are obviously from my face. How can I not recognize myself? Chang Li's laughter suddenly vanished as she asked Guo Huan softly, what are you trying to say actually? Zhue Zi, on the other hand, stretched out her hand and took the jade knife from Wen Liang's neck into her palm. A gush of blue-colored water radiance swept past the jade knife and the refreshing coldness helped Guo Huan to calm down. With Zhue Zi's help, Guo Huan's emotion was pacified but his voice still trembled slightly, 
the Go Mang seed had stolen my split body. The thing that is cultivating energy and refining spirit right now is not a demon fetus nor a divine fetus. It is I don't know what it is but if the Go Mang spiritual seed is truly capable of incubating the divine fetus, this thing here should then be the devil's fetus. There were four old demons at the scene and each of them was without a doubt experienced and knowledgeable. Nevertheless, Qian Ren's god-level body was actually human, Zhui Zi's body had been refined by someone through the use of magical arts. And Chang Li was a demon cat so there had been no need for her to condense from a demon fetus before she became a demon. Only Guo Huan, who had been a mountain ghost stone monster, had experienced almost the same refinement process as the wood spirit monster. Therefore, he has the best insight towards this strange fetus before his eyes. Perhaps he was trying to calm his emotions with great effort or perhaps he was rephrasing his words, Guo Huan stayed quiet for a while before he spoke up once again. However, he chose to divert the conversation's topic, when the earth was first separated from the heavens, there had initially been no separation of what was considered as a deity or a devil. Originally, a lot of rare spiritual creatures had been scattered between the heavens and earth. The majority of these creatures were finally reduced to mortal fetuses while there were only a limited amount of creatures who were capable of cultivating into an immortal and could finally ascend into the heavens as a deity after countless years of cultivation. When Leong did not understand what Guo Huan was saying and he turned to peer at Xiao Wu who had placed her chin on his shoulder in uncertainty. Xiao Wu pouted her lips and made an unhappy expression. She then reached out and fumbled through her pocket before passing a piece of Wrigley's double mint gum to him reluctantly. Back in those days, even Go Mang had to pass through millions of years of cultivation alone before he could become a deity, only then could he finally break the devil's spell. Guo Huan continued to speak dully, there was no emotional fluctuation in his tone at all, from the day the spirit creature was born, its immortal's root and devil's spell represents a positive and a negative or a yin and a yang. When these two parts entangle together as one, it will then become the embodiment of chaos. In order to ascend onto the pathway of an immortal, it will finally need to absorb the spiritual vitality of the world to strengthen the righteous energy and exorcise the evil energy such that its immortal's root will destroy the devil's spell. Guo Huan watched as the other old demons nodded before he continued to speak, when Qian Ren had received Go Mang's spiritual seed, it was still the embodiment of chaos so its immortal's root was not on par with the devil's spell. The immortal's root was then nourished by wood elemental spiritual vitality while the devil's spell was fostered by the plant's evil energy. Qian Ren was an experienced cultivator, he has cultivated for many years before those demon immortals like Chang Li and Guo Huan had come to be. Qian Ren and Guo Huan's immortal caves were both on Mount Hua but back when the ending cave had suddenly grown exponentially, it was unknown where Guo Huan was at that time. Upon listening to Guo Huan's words, the dog-headed eagle widened its eyes, so what you're saying is that when I had drawn out the spiritual vitality in Go Mang Si back then, it was also its immortal's root? Guo Huan laughed gloomily in the jade knife, the spiritual seed had been made in the heaven so its immortal's root possesses pure and vigorous spiritual primordial energy. It should have been alright when a small portion had been drawn out by you but this spiritual seed here has grown into the entire stretch of ending cave until the wood spirit's energy has covered the entire Mount Hua. The spiritual primordial energy which had been was stored in Go Mang seed's immortal root had been completely drained since back then. What remained was only the devil's spell and an endless evil energy. The dog-headed eagle's face was filled with the color of bitter remorse. It took a while before it reacted to the situation. However, it could only be considered as the criminal's tool in this situation and not the chief conspirator. Guo Huan completely disregarded the dog-headed eagle's expression as he exhaled a long breath. Though he was supposed to be just a demon's primordial soul and utterly did not need to breathe. He could not change his habits and felt that he could not express his emotions fully without sighing, the energy from the heavens and earth had strengthened the righteous and exorcised the evil. This Go Mang seed with only the devil's spell and evil energy was supposedly incapable of surviving on its own but it had somehow managed to survive due to a lucky coincidence. Upon saying that, Guo Huan paused for a moment before he added, it was the mountain zine, the malevolent energy, that rejected vitality. During the creation of the heavens and earth, vitality had been used to break malevolent energy. 
However, there were still countless corners in the world that were completely cut off from a source of vitality energy. For example, the act of burying a corpse in the soil would cause the deceased to turn into shriveled bones in ordinary burial grounds and the body would be converted into fertile soil that nourishes plants and moisten vitality. However, if a corpse was buried in the land of Eden malevolence, the corpse would never decompose and finally turn into a dangerous zombie. Even though there was a difference in scale, the theory behind it was exactly the same. That a standing soft-shell turtle had not been formed by a fallen meteor but was instead a turtle swallowing the heavens type of terrain which had been formed from the condensation of malevolent energy in the mountains eons ago. Underneath the giant rock, vitality energy had been isolated while in malevolence condensed. One would probably not find another land with such a revolting creation on the entire Mount Hua. If fifth brother Hanba were to visit this place, he would smile so joyously until his mouth became askew. The spiritual seed's immortal's root had been broken and all that remained was the devil's spell. For it to continue to grow bigger and stronger, it would need to absorb the spiritual vitality of the world in order to refine its body. Its immortal's root would have absorbed the spiritual vitality of the sun and the moon while the devil's spell gathered in energy and poisonous mist. Zhuye Zi finally understood the reason for Guo Huan's rage and her face filled with sorrow and bitterness. She gazed at Guo Huan with a gaze filled with the greatest pity as she said, the spiritual seed was supposed to have the immortal's root and devil spell. The mutual complement of the yin and yang energies would result in creating a vital spark. Only after that could it germinate and grow roots. The immortal's root would then slowly abolish the devil's spell. If it had been successful, it could have reached the heavens in a single bound. However, if it had failed to abolish the devil's spell, it would then be turned into dust. Guo Huan understood her explanation and answered dully, that's correct. A few streams of tears glided out from Zhui Zi's eyes, the spiritual seed had lost its immortal's root and retained the devil's spell, it lacked a portion of the yin and yang so it had survived under the protection of the mountain's yin energy. This was why it had experienced great difficulty in taking the form of a fetus but it had managed to find assistance which was in the form of that split body of yours that does not possess spiritual intelligence yet contained vital fire. Her eyes were filled with pity towards Guo Huan, Xiao Wu was shedding tears just by looking at her expression. However, the corners of Zhui Zi's mouth unexpectedly twitched as the smile lines that took pleasure in others' misfortune floated onto her face uncontrollably. The bitter and sorrowful expression dispersed into nothingness all at once and the feigned appearance that she had laboriously put up turned into an abomination which made one amused and angry. Zhuye Zi finally sniggered aloud, Ha ha ha, old demon, you are truly very unfortunate. The green-tinged void was abruptly brightened by Zhuye Zi's smile which revealed her true colors in a flash as Guo Huan howled in helpless rage within the jade knife. Chang Li convulsed with laughter as she explained to Wen Liang softly, the spiritual seed that lost its immortal's root had hidden beneath the standing soft-shell turtle. Without a vital fire, it could never germinate but over the course of eons of years, its spiritual root has spread far and wide. She pointed to the fine thread at the base of the bird's neck as she said that. Every single grass and tree that covers the mountains and the fields were its ears and eyes. It had then discovered Guo Huan's split body and even though the plants were weak then, Guo Huan's split body was only a living dead which was incapable of thinking or moving. That split body was finally brought in by the spiritual seed and it then borrowed his vital fire to germinate and transform into its devil's form. Remember that Guo Huan, Immortal's cave had been overgrown with wild vines and strange trees. When Liang nodded and Chang Li continued, the fusion of the spiritual seed and Guo Huan's split body as one had turned into the exact replica of Go Mang in the end. However, it would be an evil creature with sinful devil's root when it is fully grown. Guo Hua panted strenuously as he pretended not to hear Chang Li's laughter which sounded louder than her speech. Chang Li continued to pester him as she stretched out a hand and knocked onto the jade knife smilingly, Mountain Ghost, let me ask you this, if that demon fetus face was exactly the same as Zhui Zi's face, would you be laughing at her too? Guo Huan answered in an unpleasant voice and tone, this old father will laugh at her for the next three days. I will even laugh in my dreams hereafter. Zhui Zi was not bothered, she has since cast her piteous act to the winds, then so be it, since the split body will never return now, the angrier and dejected you are, the more losses you will suffer. 
Qian Ren sniggered as well but that immediately resulted in Zhui Zi and Chan Li's raging glare. Guo Huan cursed in an exceedingly spirited manner, this old father is not close to you, who are you to laugh at me? Qian Ren's laughter immediately turned into coughs. Chapter 245 The whereabouts of Guo Huan's split body has been found but it had been dissolved into the form of a vital fire which was then absorbed by Gou Meng's seed. The split body has turned into a part of the devil's fetus and it was no longer related to Guo Huan. The only trace left behind was his facial features which had remained on the human-faced bird monster. They had no choice but to admit that Guo Huan's facial features were still handsome though it was unknown how would he look when the features were matched to his moon-shaped face. Guo Huan was still upset and displeased right now but he had lost his previous rage. He pointed at the soaring stone tower above the devil's fetus and said, this fetus has refined a devil's appearance and the stone tower had been condensed from the vitality energy which was expelled from its body. It's the direct opposite of the process which had refined the demon fetus. The demon fetus was derived from the wood spirit's monster which had taken form, even though it was granted the title of a demon. The process of refinement had involved the expulsion of malevolent energy from its body, this was the law of nature. The dog-headed eagle nodded from the side and chimed in, Guo Huan's split body was the mountain ghost stone monster while the devil fetus was of wood element. The vitality energy which had been expelled from its body was of stone disposition which was why it had formed into this stone tower here. Xiaowu refused to listen to them as they continued to discuss ceaselessly, she then pointed at the devil's fetus and asked in a childish voice, how are we going to deal with this creature here now? She waved the morning staff in her hand as her little face filled with eagerness, it has seized Guo Huan's split body. Chang Li and Zhui Zi surprisingly gazed into one another's eyes in tacit agreement. They then started rubbing their fists and wiped their palms in preparation for a fight. The dog-headed eagle was stunned for a moment, surprised to see that the two beautiful demon immortals were about to attack the devil fetus. Guo Huan, on the other hand, shouted stiffly, wait. Zhui Zi laughed, you had saved my life anyhow in the snowy peaks or cave so I'm going to help to avenge you. Chang Li laughed, you're not a bad person but you are too unfortunate. It's a disgrace for you to become such an unfortunate demon. However, you've helped Tua Xie's disciples on multiple occasions so I will first repay the interest to your debt of gratitude. Even though Chang Li may be stubborn, unyielding, and reckless in temperament, she has gradually become closer to Guo Hua recently so she had felt rather ashamed of herself for entrapping Guo Huan so savagely. The two beautiful women tossed Wen Leong towards the stone tower. They then leaped up as their fragile-looking bodies abruptly erupted with burning demonic power, readying themselves before they pounced at the devil's fetus. Guo Huan shouted loudly with a sonorous voice once again, Wait, if all of you attack, I shall break my demon's body to stop you. When Leon was completely stunned, he did not understand the situation at all. Judging by Chang Li and Zhui Zi's statement, they had planned to help Guo Hua avenge the seizure of his split body but Guo Huan had then threatened them with his death. He was willing to sacrifice his soul in order to stop them from attacking. Xiao Wu, who had been lying on Wen Liang's back all along, blinked her eyes when she saw this. It was apparent that she had not expected this as well. It was unknown whether Qian Ren was trying to advise Chang Li and Zhui Zi or if he was explaining the situation to Wen Leong as he said. This creature is not an ordinary demon that has been transformed from a spiritual beast but is the development of Gou Mang's spiritual seed. A sense of dread floated upon the dog-headed eagle's face when he said that, whether it's a deity or a devil and whether it condenses vitality or malevolent energy, it has already completed the incubation process and has taken form. It is now a rare creature which has been created from the energies of the heavens and earth, you will draw the wrath of the gods if you were to harm it. When Leung exclaimed in understanding and he was at a loss whether to cry or to laugh, the act of killing the devil's fetus won't be considered as enforcing justice on behalf of the heavens but would incur the wrath of the gods instead. The gigantic dog's head swayed and bared its bright, terrifying fangs, you cannot consider it as such, this is still the same as my previous saying whether it is a deity or a devil, it is still the creation of the heavens. This is this is Qian Ren's tone of speaking sounded a little hesitant as if he was pondering on how to rephrase his words, this is a partition that is similar to grading, you and I can cultivate until the utmost level. 
As long as we don't possess the ability to ascend to the heavens as an immortal, we are just the same as plants and animals in the eyes of the heavens. However, this devil's fetus is different. It has the immortal's root and devil's spell inherently so once it has taken the form of a spirit fetus, it is already part of the heavens unless it is killed by a similar type of deity or devil. However, if we were to attack it, we would be struck by the wrath of the gods. This was the first time when Leong has ever heard of such a concept, causing him to become absent-minded all at once. He widened his eyes as he looked at demon immortals next to him before he turned to look at the devil's fetus that appeared to be smiling happily. Chang Li clapped her hands and made an I cannot be bothered gesture, even if we were to call down the wrath of the gods, it may not necessarily do any harm to me. Zhui Zi too nodded in agreement. Her expression has returned to her previously piteous look. Guo Huan's voice sounded stiff, the two beautiful grand aunts are willing to avenge me, this old father can only wish for that. However the demon cat will still need to meet the pickle jar first and the ice cone nail will still need to regain her memories and locate her enemy. Only when you've resolved those little matters of yours can you come and help to avenge me. Guo Huan then laughed loudly, in the future, all of you can come over here yourselves to avenge me, there's no need to inform me and I won't appreciate the kindness as well. Even if the heavens were to collapse now, all of you must first help me to find a replacement body before we discuss any further. Chang Li turned her head to the side and peered at Zhui Zi, Zhui Zi hesitated for a moment before she finally relaxed her attack stance. A moment later, she felt that her action was a little less worthwhile and she pouted her lips as she said, that was close. I had almost joined hands with the demon cat. Chang Li laughed as she tilted her head mischievously, her expression was peculiar as she looked at Zhui Zi. Guo Huan's split body has been fused into the devil's fetus, the situation could not be corrected even with the descent of the gold immortal of great overarching heavens to the mortal world. This so-called revenge was just to vent his anger, it was meaningless and would also draw in the wrath of the gods. Even though the devil's fetus has already taken form, it was still eons away from the day it would break out of its cocoon and soar into the sky. It was not incisively connected to the people who had come to the pit, they should just mind their own business so that no one would cause delays for anyone else. When Leon understood this principle, he would never allow Chang Li or Zhui Zi to flaunt this baseless morality of theirs. He was about to speak when he suddenly realized that Chang Li and Zhui Zi were gazing at one another more and more strenuously. One person's face was smiling spuriously and was filled with stern murderous intent while the other person's piteous gaze was as cold as ice. They look as if they would start fighting the very next second. When Leon was startled and he did not hesitate before he jumped desperately between two demons. The two demons were engrossed in their confrontation and all four of their large eyes watched as when Leon waved his limbs and glided past them. However, no one stretched out their hand to hold on to him. When Leon was almost startled to death, this had been a serious miscalculation on his part. Zhui Zi and Chang Li's persistence in fighting was stronger than their awareness to take care of Wen Leon. If it had not been for his quick reaction to grab Zhui Zi's calves in the midst of falling, he would have continued to plummet indefinitely into the depths of the earth. The dog-headed eagle was more conscientious in comparison as it had shut its eyes in time. Xiao Wu had not joined Wen Leon in his jump, she was lying on the last layer of the stone tower as she giggled in a childish and cute manner. Zhui Zi and Chang Li did not manage to fight this time and their gaze appeared a little disheartened. Zhui Zi bent over and pulled Wen Leong up by his waist. She then frowned as she complained softly, when are you going to learn how to fly? Wen Leong was in an awkward position and he was both amused and annoyed. He did not know what to say. Qian Ren laughed shyly as it attempted to mediate the situation, there is no advantage for us to stay here any longer. I'm going to help Qin Zhui to refine the ending vine now, will the two fairy maiden please help to protect the magic? Zhui Zi and Chang Li did not respond to the dog-headed eagle with a pleasant expression but they were both aware that Qin Zhui and Wen Leong were very intimate friends. Even if Wen Leong had not been present on the scene, they would never allow anything bad to happen to Qin Zhui. The both of them made a do-not-worry gesture at the dog-headed eagle as their bodies floated onto the final layer of the stone tower. Wen Leong, on the other hand, frowned as he stretched out his hand and pointed at the devil's fetus which was in a deep slumber. 
Zhui Zi understood his intention and she answered before he could speak, though the devil's fetus has already taken form, it has yet to open the pathway to its divine wisdom so it cannot think or move. As long as we don't provoke it, it won't retaliate so it's alright to refine the ending vine next to its body. Guo Huan continued Zhui Zi's topic of conversation, I've told you in the past, the wood elemental magic art pays particular attention to set down roots in the earth. The vine is not a mortal item and had accompanied the spiritual seed for an unknown amount of years. If Qian Ren were to bring it up to the surface and refine it, the power upon refinement will certainly be much weaker than refining it here. Wen Leong was nodding when he suddenly recalled something and he leaped up with a scraping sound and pointed at the human-faced phoenix with excitement in his face. This creature here has taken form but is without intelligence now, Guo Huan, can't you bore into? Before he could finish his sentence, he was interrupted by Chan Li's laughter from the side, the fetus of a deity or a devil is not something that Guo Huan's primordial spirit is capable of digesting. Let alone the fact that he had been a mountain ghost but he was only left with a remnant soul now. Even when his demonic primordial energy was at the height of its prime, he would be incapable of controlling this devil's fetus. If he was unfortunate then he would directly be refined by the bird's evil primordial energy, if he was fortunate then he could become like Qian Ren in the monkey. He could only watch helplessly as the devil's fetus broke out of the cocoon and ascended to the heavens after millennia of cultivation. He would be like a parasite in the host's body and can only watch helplessly as the host showed off. Chang Li had given a long-winded explanation but Guo Huan only said three words, stop messing around. The dog-headed eagle did not understand why it had been brought up in the topic of conversation once again and it pouted its lips helplessly as it flapped its wings at Chang Li and Zhui Zi, thank you for the two immortals' help. Following that, it opened its enormous mouth abruptly and gulped down Qin Zhui who had been wrapped in the ending vine like a mummy. In Qian Ren's perception, after the dung beetles had been removed from the dog-headed eagle, it was both a flesh armor and a body. It was also like a void which was similar to a sealed protective circle. The dog-headed eagle has the final say within the three-acre land inside its body. It was already troublesome enough that it was separated by the monkey layer and then the dog-headed eagle layer. There was utterly no way for Qian Ren to cast his wood elemental magic art. Moreover, the dog-headed eagle was too enormous and it does not have arms and legs. Therefore, for the delicate task of helping Qin Zhui to refine the treasured weapon, there was no way Qian Ren could do it through the dog-headed eagle's body. From the aspect of safety, magic casting, or agility, Qian Ren could only no more after the dog-headed eagle had swallowed Qin Zhui into its stomach. Even though he understood the principle, Wen Leong could not help but feel a chill all over his body when he witnessed the dog-headed eagle's fangs open and close around Qin Zhui's body. After the dog-headed eagle had swallowed Qin Zhui, it then floated next to Devil's fetus in the green-tinted void as it slowly closed its eyes. After only a few seconds, Qian Ren unexpectedly exclaimed in a hoarse and muffled voice and soon after that, the dog-headed eagle abruptly opened its gigantic eyes. Its initially light yellow pupils have turned redder and more tyrannical than the color of blood. Guo Huan exclaimed in dismay and shouted in surprise, something bad has happened. Chang Li spoke to Zhui Zi, you stay behind, I shall go and take a look. Her body then moved as fast as lightning as she pounced onto the dog-headed eagle's gigantic mouth. Her delicate hands exerted their strength abruptly and forcefully opened that gigantic mouth which was many times bigger than her. Soon after that, her body flashed past as she entered the dog-headed eagle's body. Before they excavated the devil's fetus, the stone tower had been spreading its demon seed all along. With Wen Leong and Xiao Wu's level of cultivation base, they would certainly be caught off guard. Even though the stone tower has already quieted down at this moment, either Chang Li or Zhui Zi would still need to stay behind and look after them. If the two demon witches were to dive into the dog-headed eagle together, by the time they finished rescuing Qin Zhui and Chang Li, perhaps Wen Leong and Xiao Wu would have turned into a big and a small Christmas tree. Wen Leong was shocked by the sudden turn of events and he pulled Zhui Zi as he pointed at the dog-headed eagle, let's go in together. Zhui Zi shook her head and her usually fearful tone of speaking has turned resolute and decisive, no, if there's something going on in there, all of you would become a burden. Just as Zhui Zi finished speaking, Chang Li had reappeared in a flash. 
She then shouted in a sharp and raging voice as layers upon layers of demon blades rose like a swarm of bees next to her. With the scraping sound of a sharp howl, the blades pinned the dog-headed eagle's mouth down and slashed down ferociously. While Wen Leong and the others were still confused, Chang Li grunted and the demon blades which had covered the sky in a shockingly massive wave suddenly scattered about messily. It was as if an invisible rope had suddenly wrapped itself around the blades and was about to crush them. Zhue Zi seems to understand the situation and though she still remained by Wen Liang's side, her hands were now pinched into the magic conjuration gesture. Streaks upon streaks of ice spikes then appeared out of thin air and converged with Chang Li's demon blades into one before blasting ferociously towards the void in front of the dog-headed eagle like a mighty storm. Guo Huan was much more experienced than Wen Leong who was still confused on the side. He pondered and understood the crucial part of the situation at this moment as he asked Zhui Zi in astonishment, the ending vine the devil's feet is too. A layer of sharpness has enshrouded Zhui Zi's face soundlessly. She was summoning the ice spikes in a swifter and more forceful manner as she nodded, the monkey has miscalculated this time. When Liang's face was filled with concern, what happened? The ending vine had been subdued by the devil's fetus since earlier. Guo Huan answered him rigidly. That strand of spirit thread which had extended from beneath the devil fetus's neck has erupted into thousands and millions of strands afar. Each spirit thread was connected to a flower, grass, and tree's root system so that it could absorb the spirit primordial energy of the world. However, no one realized that there was also a strand of fine thread on the devil fetus chest which was so fine that it could not be detected by telegnosis ability. This strand had been firmly connected to the ending vine. With the four old demon skills, they had only managed to guess that the devil's fetus had drawn support from the grass and trees to absorb and circulate the essence of the heavens and earth. It also absorbed the tyrannical malevolence in it to be transformed into the devil's disposition while it simultaneously expelled the vitality and stone disposition from Guo Huan's split body and condensed it into the stone tower. The Go Mang spiritual seed was a wood elemental spiritual creature. If it was to ascend into the heavens as an immortal in the future, it would become a tree deity. However, if it was to turn into a devil, it would become a vine monster. Regardless of whether it had grown into the immortal's root or the devil's spell in the end, it was still a wood elemental deity. The ending vine was a treasured weapon that Qian Ren has successfully refined more than halfway and was filled with wood elemental spirit primordial energy. With such a great source of nourishment nearby, how could the Go Mang seed let this opportunity slip so easily? This was not a difficult guess but because the strand of spirit thread which was being used by the devil's fetus to refine the ending vine had been utterly undetectable by their telegnosis ability and everybody else's focus had been attracted by that puff of spirit thread which connected every single blade of the grass and plant on Mount Hua. They had merely regarded the ending vine and Go Mang seed as the creatures of the same genus. Raging roars which were filled with heart-rending agony echoed louder and louder from the depths of the dog-headed eagle's body. Its enormous body then started to quiver vigorously as its steely feathers stiffened in layers. It no longer appeared awe-inspiring but now resembles a crow which had been drenched by the early winter's rain. The previously transparent strand of spirit thread connecting the ending vine to the devil's fetus gradually turned into a pale green color and slowly floated into Wen Liang's line of sight. The jade knife Guo Huan was anxious that he could not help and he continued to explain to Wen Liang. The wood elemental spiritual power in the ending vine had been refined by the devil's fetus and that vine is currently the devil fetus's feeler. Only Chang Li had witnessed the monkey's current tragic appearance. The ending vine had seized the opportunity as Qian Ren was preparing to cast his magic spell to help Qin Zhui refine his treasured weapon. It had suddenly attacked and its pointy tip was like a crazed blood-sucking leech that bored into the monkey's ear in an abrupt yet soundless manner. Qian Ren was the embodiment of exquisite wood elemental spiritual vitality. Even though he had not been able to completely utilize his power as he was trapped in the body of a monkey, for the devil's fetus, the monkey was like a coconut filled with sweet and sinful juice under its thick shell. Meanwhile, the ending vine was the devil fetus's drinking straw. The ending vine was still coiled around Qin Zhui as its tip bored into the monkey's ear. The monkey had been using his hands to claw and tear at the vine desperately yet his effort was futile against the vine which had already pierced into his body and begun to absorb his wood elemental life vitality. 
As the boundless wood elemental spiritual vitality coursed through that strand of indistinguishable spirit thread and flowed into the devil's fetus from the monkey's body like an endless stream. The spirit thread too started to bloom in a faint and ghastly green color. Even though Guo Huan could not see the situation which was happening in the dog-headed eagle's body, his prediction had been almost completely accurate. The only thing he had been unable to guess for certain was if the vine had bored in through the monkey's ear, nose, mouth, or navel. He finally spoke up dully, if he can't rip off that strand of spirit thread, the monkey would be in great trouble this time. Wen Leon could not stand if anything bad were to happen to the monkey but he was even more concerned about his ugly friend, what about Qin Zhui, Qin Zhui is. Guo Huan gave a forced laugh, that person is certainly still alive, though Qian Ren and Chang Li had lapsed in their judgment this time, they would never neglect Qin Zhui's life. Qin Zhui had been reforged with a wood elemental foundation so he was now a scrumptious meal for the devil's fetus from his primordial spirit to his body. His situation of being entangled in the ending vine was utterly unlike that which had been described by Qian Ren as being from the same source. Instead, it was more like the devil's fetus was trying to refine him. However, Qin Zhui was a cultivator as well and he was also fairly wise. It would not be a difficult task for the devil's fetus to kill him but in order to completely digest and absorb his entire person, it was a task that would take years and years of work. When Leong howled in rage and the Ning Jiao's bone snake appeared with a loud bang. It roared as it surged alongside Zhui Zi's summoned ice spikes towards that strand of spirit thread halfway through its path, the Ning Jiao was suddenly frozen into a giant lump of ice and fell downward stiffly. It was unknown why the dog-headed eagle's body has abruptly erupted with the dazzling color of fire like a divine bird which was cast out of molten metal. Its sharp brightness made it hard for one to look at it closely. Meanwhile, Qian Ren's agonized howl has become even louder. Each howl was like a pipa which had suddenly broken a string it sounded abrupt, savage, and sonorous. When Leong was both anxious and furious. He could not figure out how the devil fetus's power of spiritual vitality, which was slightly weaker than Zhui Zi, Chang Li, and the others, could still withstand the continuous blasts from the shocking supernatural powers summoned by the two demon immortals. Its fine thread still remained indomitable and there was no sign of it breaking at all. Whether it was Chang Li's demon blades or Zhui Zi's ice spikes, the moment their supernatural power came into contact with the green-colored spirit thread, it would disperse with a loud bang in a flash. Any other domineering forces would also disappear into nothingness. Guo Huan was still the experienced one after all and he was much calmer now. Of course, there was no other purpose for him other than to remain calm. Though he could sacrifice himself by casting the demon body-breaking spell for the sake of the dog-headed eagle. The treasured weapon of Yin's error and Yang's mistake would not necessarily succeed at crushing the spirit thread with one blast, both strands of spirit threads are the devil fetus's root systems. Though the devil fetus's evil primordial energy was not as remarkable as the two demon immortals on the scene, the body which had been incubated from the Go Mang seed still contained the essence of the heavens and earth. Its root system would be even more well seasoned. When Leong was jumping in rage on the stone tower while Chang Li was even more furious. She could only watch helplessly as her demon blades which could chop open a huge mountain were completely ineffective against the spirit thread. Not only was the spirit thread still safe and sound, it was growing greener as well. She shrieked in rage as her frail-looking body erupted with a gush of boiling and surging demon power all of sudden. She then pounced in rage towards the spirit thread. This was the first time that Wen Leong has ever seen Chang Li become so angry. The air in front of her body surged in turbulence like a wave before parting around her vigorously. Zhui Zi gasped softly and she was worried that she would accidentally injure her companion so she hastily retracted her ice spikes. A moment later, she reacted to the situation and realized that the person she was afraid of injuring was actually Chang Li and stomped her foot regretfully. Chang Li was supposed to be a demon cat but as she was pouncing towards the prey, she has lost her usual agility and grace. Accompanied by loud booming sounds, there were only two words left which could be used to describe her violently ferocious. Wen Leong has never seen her that way before yet Guo Huan had never seen any less of that in the past. He made clicking sounds yet he was unable to utter a word. 
when he had been pursuing Chang Li with the three sword immortals of the Black and White Island two thousand years ago, each time the demon cat had been cornered, she would turn around and pounce towards them like this. That action of hers stunned and forced the four top master cultivators to stop their approach. At that moment, Chang Li has already reached the spirit thread like a gust of strong wind. She then grabbed the spirit thread ferociously with her two hands before she opened her charming mouth and bit into it ferociously. Wen Leung, Xiaowu, Zhui Zi, and Guo Huan were all well experienced fighters. However, when they witnessed Chang Li's action, all of them yelled in surprise. Even Qian Ren, who was in deep distress, could not help but cry out with a monkey's howl. The yelling continued until Chang Li's raging curse put a stop to the matter. After Chang Li had bit the spirit thread, it was as if she had triggered a tremendous force. Her fragile looking body was lifted ferociously as bright red blood gushed from her initially charming and delicate lips. Her bloodied appearance made the demon cat look so enticing that she could take one's breath away with her ferocious demonic madness. This divine fetus was a devil's creature and its root system has been refined from the essence of the heavens and earth. When Chang Li had bit the spirit thread, not only was she unable to break it, she had injured her mouth instead. Zhui Zi, whose face was filled with pity but her eyes were filled with mirth, asked Chang Li, Are you in pain? Are you in pain? Chang Li spat out a mouthful of bloody saliva and answered uncourteously, It hurts more than being crushed. Though Chang Li had failed to break the spirit thread, she seems to have caused the devil fetus to feel some pain. The human-faced phoenix which had been sleeping soundly suddenly shuddered as the corners of its mouth twitched in agony. Chang Li laughed out loud and was about to grab the spirit thread to bite it again when a muffled sound erupted from the devil fetus's body. The thirteen long feathers which were covering the devil fetus's body swayed and rose as gently and softly as a willow towards Chang Li's figure. Zhui Zi's eyes widened suddenly and she leaped forward with a howl. She was accompanied by her ice spikes as she surged towards the long feathers which appeared deceptively harmless. The long feathers were silent as they moved slower than a dandelion seed which was floating down in a windless sky. However, it was this slow speed that managed to slash the green-tinged glow into pieces. In the midst of his absent-mindedness, Wen Leon could only feel as if the scene before his eyes had turned into a shattered mirror. His line of sight was being shattered and dispersed. A sense of astonishment flashed past Chang Li's face as well. She forgot about biting as she summoned her supernatural power once again and converged her powers with Zhui Zi. The ice spikes, demon blades, and graceful figures were bursting with a ruthlessness that pierced Wen Liang's eyes and rippled with boundless demon power. The thirteen long feathers which had floated slowly shuttled past the supernatural powers which were all over the sky in a relaxed manner. Suddenly, those feathers sped up like a poisonous snake which had been threatened and had bared its fatal fangs in the blink of an eye as it slashed towards Zhui Zi and Chang Li. Chang Li and Zhui Zi's face carried a bitter coldness as their bodies twisted and turned as they evaded and fought valiantly against the long feathers. Like the spirit thread, the long feathers were so firm and tenacious that there was almost no way they could be harmed by magic, supernatural powers or any other power. The two beautiful demon immortals have the upper hand but they were helpless in the face of the long feathers all at once. As they became entangled by the devil fetus's sudden attack, they were too preoccupied to deal with the spirit thread which was glowing greener and greener with time. Xiaowu was startled by the violent battle before her eyes and she was anxious as her hands gripped her morning staff tightly, Chang Li has awakened the demon monster with her bite. She was halfway through her speech when she was interrupted by Guo Huan, the devil fetus has yet to awaken. It will never awaken before it has taken form. The human-faced phoenix's expression has turned ghastly and furious but its eyes were still tightly shut. That strand of spirit thread is about to lose its efficacy soon, that was why the thirteen long feathers have started to move now. The devil fetus does not even possess spiritual intelligence so this is its inherent ability. Guo Huan then paused for a moment, sooner or later, even without Chang Li's bite and when they have blasted at it for a little while longer, the devil fetus would still use its feathers to retaliate against them. This was a battle that Wen Leong could not understand. The level of power involved was so immense while the attacks and defenses were equally horrifying. 
The two parties were fighting for only one reason to rip off the spirit thread before Qian Ren was drained or Qian Ren would be drained before his companions can manage to rip off the spirit thread author's note. <laughs> what a profound sentence this is. The dog-headed eagle was considered as a good comrade and Qin Zhui had made a solemn promise that Qian Ren was his intimate friend who was constantly prepared to help him to win 19 over. Zhui Zi has faced life and death situations with Wen Leong on the highland and their relationship has become closer recently, needless to say about Chang Li as well. Wen Leong calmed himself down. As his relatives and close friends were trapped in a devil fetus threat, he was willing to stop pondering calmly but he wished he could transform into a deity or devil just to attack wildly. Guo Huan understood Wen Leong too well, he could predict what Wen Leong was about to do just by looking at him as he ground his teeth and stiffened his body. He then hastily shouted, Quick, take the jade knife and pass it to Xiao Wu. Before his voice could die away, the dog headed eagle suddenly let out a heartrending and painful scream. It was not Qian Ren's voice but the dog headed eagle's agonized scream which pierced through the heavens and earth. There was a light thud as the jade knife was tossed onto the stone tower. Wen Leong was like an agile cheetah and his sleeves flapped loudly as his entire being pounced towards the fragile-looking and fine spirit thread which had remained tenacious all along. Chapter 246 It was the end of the first month of the lunar calendar. Signs of the cold winter slowly retreated from the mountains and the streams of the Sichuan region. Before anyone knew it, sprouts of fresh greens had already occupied the branches, albeit somewhat shyly. The greens greedily and curiously painted the earth with youthful liveliness. Nine Peaks Mountain was a scene of happiness as everybody was merrily minding their business. The womenfolk were in high spirits. Under the direction of a few old grannies, they sewed nuptial dresses, embroidered dragons and phoenixes, cut red paper, brewed chime wine. The abled craftsmen gathered in the village. They built a large house with three courtyards next to Grand Elder Wen's house. When Pe Tu started the construction work, the four elders personally placed a jade of conjugal bliss into the foundations. First uncle led a bunch of capable and experienced disciples and traveled between the village and Chongqing. They bought everything from large items such as furniture and electrical appliances and small items such as jewelry. Mount Pan's Gongya family left one of their elite refiners in the Wen family village. He operated the sword furnace, which refined Ning Jiao's armor and spike. He also carefully forged many heart-linking locks. The second mother led a few Qin Miao elites and secretly drew figurines as well as refined spells. Little Qi Maojiu accidentally spilled the beans to Wen Buzhua that they were refining eternity never spell, never leaving for eternity. After it was cast, the husband and wife will share the same fate, one cannot live while the other dies when Buzhua was startled. He hastily reported this to fourth elder one. This wedding gift was too evil, they would prefer not to accept it. During the tenth day of the fourth month last year, when Leong was trapped within the witch's territory left behind by Grand Master Toa Xia, which delayed his wedding day. The wedding was postponed for a year. It was finally the end of the first month, they were only slightly more than two months away from the big day. The three families of Wan, Miao and Luo were already staying on the Nine Peaks Mountain. The two families had decided not to return to their hometown. Xiaoyi no longer hid within Red Leaves Forest but moved back into the village. The two daughters-in-law-to-be stayed next to each other. Every time they met each other, they blushed and smiled at each other. Xiaoyi was bored. She sneaked some red satin from the house and started sewing mandarin duck pillowcases. As she sewed, she giggled to herself. When Mumu discovered that Xiaoyi was sewing, she immediately grew anxious. She forced Grand Elder Luo to get her the materials and she also started sewing. Xiaoyi sewed two mandarin ducks tumbling merrily in water while she sewed the dragon and the phoenix, which symbolizes prosperity. She started during the day, by lunchtime, six of her fingers were wrapped in band-aids. Ah Dan was heartbroken to the point where he bared his teeth, wanting to cry four days later, when Ah Dan saw the half a quail which Mumu sewed on the brocade, he cried. When Xiaoyi saw Mumu bandaging her ever-swelling thumb through gritted teeth, Xiaoyi started working on Mumu's portion with a giggle when she was done with her own. Grand Elder Wen counted the days to the marriage but he started to feel uneasy. 
he paced around the house with a frown. Fourth Elder One, who was silent, was annoyed. He asked coldly, what's making you fret? Grand Elder One grunted, the tenth day of the fourth month, that's about two months from now the gift bearer should have been here by now. As he said this, he took out a notebook from his pocket. He peeked at it furtively. Fourth Elder One barely glanced at it as he stretched his neck, it was filled with the names of the people who were supposed to send gifts. At this moment, Second Mother and Little Chi Maojio came over. Grand Elder hastily put away his treasured notebook and looked at them. The Second Mother had always been very direct. She was also very familiar with the Wens. She did not talk nonsense as she directly shoved the letter in her hands to Grand Elder when, just now, Old Monk Ji Fei shadily passed this to the big dragon root and went down the mountain. Fourth Elder Wen was slightly stunned, I thought that Ji Fei and Shui Jing had left the mountain some time ago. They came back just now. The second mother nodded, they left as soon as they came. Please don't wander about on the third day of the second month, come to the feet of Mount Hua, welcome the wandering rogue immortal Grand Elder Wen took out the gold stamped invitation card after he opened the envelope. He had only read two sentences and could go no further. He immediately saw the ending of the invitation card. The wrinkles on his old face jumped, on the third day of the second month, ten thousand immortals will gather on Goddess Peak. Ji Fei and Shui Jing humbly await the honorable arrival of Seven Maidens Mountain's big dragon's root, Qi Maojiu. Ji Fei and Shui Jing Fourth Elder Wen had been in charge of the death trademark for dozens of years. He had spent much of his time outside and knew all kinds of tricks within Jianghu. His icy cold face showed a rare sight of a strange smile, Ji Fei and Shui Jing want to gather the entire cultivation world. Grand Elder Wen's expression was one of anger and amusement. He looked at Second Mother, the two of them had only invited Qing Miao but not us or the Luo family this matter was not difficult to guess. Grand Elder Wen understood within a brief moment's pondering, Miao Bujiao was indebted to the two stupid fellows. They asked little Qi Maojiao to go over there and help them boost their morale. The second mother laughed, that's nothing serious. It's our fault for being indebted to Ji Fei and Shui Jing. Little Qi Maojiao and I are getting ready to leave, we've come here just to say our greetings. She was halfway through her speech when Lord Gongye of Mount Pan arrived. He was rude as he spoke to Grand Elder Wen, Gongye is here to say goodbye. There's this grand meeting in the cultivation world he had not finished when he saw the invitation card in Grand Elder Wen's hands. He was slightly stunned before he shut his mouth. Little Chi Maojiao pulled on Lord Gongye's sleeves and smiled, that invitation is for the Qing Miao, we'll be going in the same way. Fourth Elder Wen nodded, take Bu Shuo and Bu Zhua along, they'll take care of you on the road. At this moment, one word palaces 19 and heaven telling sex Wei Mo also came with smiles, each held their own invitation cards. Grand Elder Wen was all for the departure of 19. He laughed loudly and agreed. Fourth Elder Wen thought for a bit and said to Second Mother, I'll contact the Great Mercy Temple, the group of divine monks should have received their invitation cards also. You can look after each other during the meeting. As he said this, the old man glanced drilly at 19. In the depths of Mount Hua, the siblings Fei Fei and Xiao Sha were stiff with boredom. They made Wen Shu Lin do their telling for them. The three of them were mere mortals, they could not be of any help with the digging of the rock tower. After Chang Li set a protective prohibition spell around them, she had them to wait on the top. Just when Wen Shu Lin was engrossed in extravagant and baseless talk with the siblings, Fei Fei's cell phone suddenly rang. Shortly after, Fei Fei ended the call. She frowned slightly as she said to Xiao Sha, it's from the team leader. Recently, huge numbers of cultivators are traveling towards Mount Hua. It's said that there's some rally of 10,000 immortals on Goddess Peak on the third day of the second month. He wants us to go have a look. Xiao Sha nodded, it's best if. We can wait for them and go together. As he said this, he pointed at the large pit, which exposed the demon tower. At this moment, a furious howl like a dragon's moan suddenly erupted from within the depths of the pit. Whether it was Fei Fei, Xiao Sha or Wen Shu Lin, they were thrown off their feet by the pressure of the sound kicked up by this loud noise. Fei Fei crashed heavily onto the ground. 
The instant she lost her consciousness, she still had the mind to mutter, something happened down below. It was a hell of a mess at the bottom. The monkey had his ears drilled by the ending vine, Chan Li and Kone Nail were entangled by thirteen long plumes and were temporarily trapped. The dog-headed eagle was only a flesh armor but it let out a heaven-shaking wail. To save the others, Wen Leong pounced towards the greenish spirit thread, which connected the ending vine and the devil fetus. Ning Jiao's sting, snake knife was sharp. Hence, cutting through gold and jade was as easy as pie. However, the moment it touched the spirit thread, a wail that made everyone's hairs stood on their end erupted suddenly. A gush of cold and huge force vibrated and traveled up the blade. Even with Wen Liang's strength, he could not wield his knife anymore. His fingers went numb and the snake knife fell into the depths of eerie green. Wen Liang was hit by the recoil from the spirit thread. There was no foothold for him in midair. When he saw that he was about to be thrown far away, his shoulders shrunk in a peculiar manner. At the same time, his waist arched upwards with force. He flipped in a semicircle like a fried dough twist in midair and changed the direction of the huge force, which invaded his body. He pounced on the thin spirit thread with his body. When Leong did not even have time to think, his only thought was that if he did not wish to fall, he must grab onto the spirit thread. From the snake knife being repelled to Wen Leong's pounce on the spirit thread, everything happened in a flick of a finger. When he finally grabbed hold of the thin thread, only then did he have the time to experience the fright of a lifetime. With his abilities, Wen Leong could not withstand Cone Nail's all-out strike. However, the spirit thread could wipe out the haven-shocking magical powers of Cone Nail and Chang Li. The root of the devil fetus was but an extremely thin thread. However, the instant Wen Leong touched it, he only felt that all 36,000 pores on his body were pried open by an external force. It was a searing and impetuous pain as if countless thick steel needles stabbed into his body. It was also as if all his blood, bones and organs wanted to squeeze out of his skin. Ning Jiao's armor put up a short fight. Cracks accompanied the strange squeaks it made. When Kone Nail and Chang Li saw that Wen Leong was in danger, they immediately abandoned the long plumes in front of them and shot to his side like lightning. They flanked Wen Leong and grabbed hold of the spirit thread in unison with an arm. Amidst their furious yell, they wanted to break the spirit thread. The thirteen long plumes followed them like shadows. They intertwined and formed two thick boa whips and struck mercilessly at the backs of Chang Li and Kone Nail. At the same time, Guo Huan howled sonorously on the rock tower, demon body breaking spell. Yin's error and Yang's mistake rolled in an eerie demonic glow as they guarded behind Chang Li and Kone Nail. Chang Li and Kone Nail had slipped. They had both thought that the other would stay behind and temporarily keep the long plumes at bay. The one who saved their lives was the jade knife Guo Huan. Guo Huan. The one who schemed occasionally against them, the one who, at times, squalled and wanted to fight them, the one who was stubborn when he was bullied, the one who chuckled the moment he tasted something sweet. The intense sound rocked by the furious clash between the thirteen long plumes and Yin's error Yang's mistake sent a visible ripple through the eerie greenish air. Then, two urging water streaks appeared and spread in all directions. Xiao Wu, who hid on the rock tower and was scared out of her wits, only heard a stifling booming ring. She turned in half a circle, lost her footing and fell to the ground. When Leong squalled and scolded, you're crazy. Just when Xiaowu's beautiful forehead was about to hit the rock tower, a soft smack was heard. The jade knife had shattered completely. Guo Huan's voice was so unpleasant that it made the others wanted to bellow towards the sky in anger, if you're all dead, how long can I live the rock tower? If you kill the devil fetus, I might still have a chance. Yin's error Yang's mistake had blocked the fatal blow of the thirteen long plumes. Then, it buzzed in the air and vanished. The two demon immortals bulged their eyes. Rolling black demonic primordial energy rose on Chang Li's head Cone Nail's body was enshrouded in a dazzling color of water spirit energy. They tore the spirit thread with all their might. A sonorous loud howl rose at the same time from the mouths of Cone Nail, Chang Li, Wen Leong, the dog-headed eagle, Qian Ren and the devil fetus. Their voices shot up into the heavens and eventually condensed into substantial sparkling mighty virtues of heaven. 
It ran along from the deep huge pit and turned into the ninth heaven's thunder. It was this furious howl that sent Fei Fei and the others, who were thousands of meters above them, flying. The spirit thread was pulled thinner and thinner. With a final struggle, it snapped with a twang below when Leung. The devil fetus bellow turned into a wail. Its giant body shook violently. It swayed to the left and right as if it would fall down the deep pit at any moment. Its eyes were still shut tight, but two streaks of dark green tears, so dark that they appeared black rolled down painfully from its large square face. The spirit thread snapped in two. The ending vine withered into dust. The monkey, who hid within the dog-headed eagle, was in so much pain that it wished it was dead. However, the dog-headed eagle's body turned unexplainably into the color of blood. The air around it was ignited by the searing heat. Low crackles were heard when suddenly, a great, blinding, golden light, like a sharp knife, penetrated the back of the dog-headed eagle, which had iron feathers and steel muscles. The dog-headed eagle's giant body swayed to one side and fell stiffly into the dark green, hollow deep pit. Even if this great pit opened up into the other end of the world, it was not deep enough for the dog-headed eagle to fall to its death. The other two demon immortals ignored Qian Ren. Chang Li pounced, almost impatiently, onto the demon fetus. She did not care whether she could kill it or whether there would be God's punishment, she held on to Guo Huan's words, I might still have a chance if the demon fetus is killed. Hence, Chang Li gave it her all. When Chang Li pounced towards the thirteen long plumes, which were as wild and furious as she was, she suddenly laughed. She had never thought that the day would come when she risked her life for Guo Huan. Kone Nail was slightly calmer than Chang Li. She reached up and grabbed Wen Liang's back. She wanted to toss him upwards onto the rock tower before she dealt with the devil fetus. However, just when she was about to exert force, suddenly, a domineering power of poison that devoured the soul and possessed the bones emanated from Wen Liang's back onto her arm. Caught off her guard, the protective life vitality on her arm was scattered in the blink of an eye. Wen Liang had completely no notion of the happenings around him. The instant the spirit thread snapped, the poison of life and death within his body suddenly boiled. Unruly and merry, blazing and wild, a poison which he had never encountered before stabbed mercilessly into his body from the broken spirit thread under him. Wen Leong was too familiar with this situation. The poison of life and death condensed, howled and swirled wildly within his body until it turned into a whirlpool that devoured everything. It greedily absorbed the poison outside into his body. The poison of earth, which he absorbed inside the body of the earth-splitting toad, was heavy and majestic the poison of metal, which he absorbed from the bronze ants emoya within the gold-consuming lair. Was harsh and sharp the firecracker's poison of water, which he absorbed in the snow-covered peaks or cave, was cold and rolling. The poison, which came from the spirit thread, was agile and tough. This was the poison of wood. When Leong was ever prepared to absorb poison, but every absorbing session took him by surprise. Kone Nail had heard Wen Leong describe his method of practice before. Not long ago, she even saw the live performance of him and a huge number of firecrackers in the ore cave on the snow-covered peak. She understood what was happening after some brief pondering. She cried out in pain with surprise. She flung her hand and tossed Wen Leong away. Then, she turned around and joined Chang Li in her attack of the devil fetus. The life vitality within the devil fetus was the combination of the foulness of the heavens and earth and with spiritual energy. It had the utmost qualities of the five elements and the cruelty of the world. If the combination of these two powers was not the wood element poison, then what is? When Leung's poison of life and death was the element of chaos in the power of poison. To put it simply, it was the father of all poisons. Although the devil fetus poison of wood life vitality was fierce and colossal, it could not resist the absorption of the poison of life and death. Now, when Leong and the devil fetus were connected to each other via the spirit thread, they swayed in midair. Before he completely absorbed the poison of wood, as long as the human faced phoenix did not plummet, he would also not fall. To the devil fetus, Qian Ren was a coconut. Likewise, the demon fetus was also a coconut to Wen Leong. The devil fetus had a body made of poison of wood but its body and plumes were natural. 
Even if Wen Leong sprawled across that big square face, he could not hope to absorb any poison. Just now, under the joined forces of the two great demon immortals Chong Li and Kone Nail, they snapped a spiritual vein of the devil fetus. Coincidentally, when Leong executed the faulty punch. The poison of life and death within his body swirled wildly. It can be said that it was Kone Nail and Chong Li who worked together to chisel an opening in the devil fetus branded leaf translator's note. I think the author meant coconut and placed the straw into Wen Liang's mouth. Wen Liang's mind was a muddled mess. Absorbing the poison of wood was an extremely excellent matter but killing the devil fetus and invoking God's punishment was an extremely dreadful matter. If the extremely excellent matter and the extremely dreadful matter met, would they cancel each other out? Chong Li and Kone Nail were ghastly pale as they cast their magical powers ceaselessly and silently. They attacked the demon fetus in a frenzied rage. The demon fetus wailed and its plumes shuddered. The two of them were of the same mind, they wanted to kill the devil fetus for Guo Huan. They wanted to kill this monster before Wen Leong did. The person, who dealt the final blow, would invoke God's punishment. However, nobody knew when this strike will take place. If the two of them did not attack, God's punishment would definitely befall Wen Leong. Chong Li and Kone Nail would occasionally glance at each other. They were still of the same mind, it would be best to leave the final blow to her. The booming loud noise in the deep pit was ceaseless. In the dark, nobody knew how much time had passed. The little darling Xiaowu had woken up long ago. She sat at the edge of the final layer of the rock tower. A pair of soft little legs dangled with boredom. Her little plump hand supported her chin as she asked childishly, how much longer do we have to wait? Guo Huan's demonic primordial energy was already weak in the first place. After he broke his demon's body, he was now a puff of blurry mist as if he could be blown away at any time. However, he did not let go any opportunity to speak, I reckon they're almost done. Soft Shell Turtle Stand was a malevolent land of the mountain, that was why Guo Huan could linger on with his final breath. Although his soul was weak, he would not disperse for quite some time. If that were not the case, he would have hesitated when he cast the demon body-breaking spell. It was a lost game just now. Chong Li, Kone Nail and Wen Liang's lives were hanging on a bare thread. Only by summoning Yin's error Yang's mistake could Guo Huan save everyone's lives. If these three people died, even if the devil fetus did not find trouble with the jade knife, the already fragile jade knife could not have held on for much longer. Other than that, Guo Huan suddenly thought of another matter. He found himself a better resting place, the Devil Fetus Rock Tower. The Rock Tower was initially formed by the condensation of Guo Huan's split body's rocky nature and the vitality of the world. If Guo Huan could reside within it, he would not have to look for a Dharmakeya. If he cultivated properly, he could directly cultivate a demon's body from the Rock Tower. However, the Rock Tower was still a part of the Devil Fetus right now. Guo Huan could not enter the human-faced phoenix's body. Hence, he could not enter the rock tower. If the devil fetus dies, the rock tower would become a masterless object. It was a magic weapon formed after the devil fetus took shape. In essence, it was also a soul vessel that could accommodate primordial spirits. It also had the rocky nature of Guo Huan's own split body. To Guo Huan, this body was extremely perfect. Guo Huan was not afraid of trouble. Whether it was his former plan of looking for his split body or the newer plan of finding an unlucky substitute, he could not have recovered all his demonic energy. However, within this ready-made rock tower, if he spent some years cultivating within it, his demonic energy just might improve. Who could stop him from talking then? The shrill wail of the human-faced phoenix mixed with the savagery from the bottom of its soul. Its long eyelashes shuddered ceaselessly. Kone Nail and Chong Li remained silent. They devoted all their energy to hitting it. The two beautiful demons were at it again, this time they bet on their luck. Just when the devil fetus was about to give in, a strange squall rose from the hollow depths. A short golden figure shot up from below as quick as lightning. Although the speed was amazingly quick, its turns and leaps looked slightly awkward, strangely clumsy to be more precise. The other party's speed was so fast that Chong Li and Kone Nail could not get a clear look at the visitor's face. 
someone with such skills would not have a cultivation base that was inferior to theirs. The two of them temporarily stopped their attacks on the devil fetus as they turned around in unison and focused their minds on meeting this new enemy. However, the golden figure ignored them after it shot up. It landed a flying kick on the devil fetus face. At the same time, it shouted angrily, Trick me will you? Your death is not to be regretted. It was Qian Ren's voice. Chang Li and Kone Nail exclaimed in unison. They looked at each other with slight surprise. They only clearly saw that the thing that shot up like lightning from the depths was a charmingly naive monkey covered in pure golden fur. Its stature was shorter than the little darling but slightly taller than Ah Dan. He even wielded Wen Liang's snake knife, which fell into the abyss. Although the monkey Qian Ren broke free of the dog-headed eagle's flesh armor, his red fur which was under the interrestriction of the elements wood, metal and earth had turned into a beautiful and cute gold. Ever since they dug the devil fetus out, strange things happened one after another. When they saw that a dog-headed eagle falling down while a golden monkey leaped up, they were almost numb. The monkey saw that the two demon immortals were in a daze. He scratched his head with one Liang's snake knife. He was about to say something when Chang Li and Kone Nail cheered at the same time. The monkey's look was too cute. Xiao Wu gritted her teeth from the top of the rock tower. She would have loved to jump down and give this little monkey a hug. Guo Huan already understood the monkey's bitter experience. He seized every opportunity he got to speak, Qian Ren's original wood element life vitality was cleanly absorbed by the devil fetus. The monkey's metal element was too blazing without the restriction from the wood element. The dog-headed eagle's fire element could not restrict the monkey's metal element and could contain it no longer. Hence, the monkey broke free. The golden monkey was an alien species under the heavens. Even Kong Nuer and King Geezer, who had heaven-shocking cultivation bases, were unable to kill it. After it was sealed, in reality, it was the dog-headed eagle's fire element and Qian Ren's own wood element, which repressed the monkey's metal element. Now that the wood element was gone, the chain of inter-restriction of the three elements was broken. The monkey's metal element did short work of the dog-headed eagle's prohibition. The flesh armor could not contain it any longer. Xiao Wu pouted, Qian Ren's original wood element was already completely siphoned off, how is he still alive? The little darling's meaning was that an honest-to-god golden monkey was much better than a golden monkey possessed by an old demon. Guo Huan guffawed as he replied, his primordial spirit could travel back and forth between three bodies because, at that time, the three bodies were one entity. But now, the wood element human body had died after its spirit primordial energy was drained. The fire element bird's body was destroyed by the metal element. Now, only the monkey is left. Ha, huh, if I have not guessed wrongly, in the future, in this lifetime, for a thousand years or ten thousand years, Qian Ren will stay as a monkey. Ha, huh, the golden monkey Qian Ren. Qian Ren ignored Guo Huan. He pointed at the devil fetus that was barely breathing. He turned and stared at the other two demon immortals with his round eyes. He laughed heroically, how's this? We can bet amongst ourselves, who among us is the unlucky one to invoke God's punishment. As he said this, he flung the snake knife towards Wen Leong. Chapter, 247 The Ning Jiao sting was tossed towards Wen Leong by Qian Ren, who had turned into the golden monkey. It made a sharp curve as it arced through the sky. As soon as it touched Wen Leong, it buzzed softly and melted into his body. Almost at the same time, a dismal and suppressed howl erupted in the silence. When Leung bulged his eyes. His expression became contorted and hideous. Boni Ning Jiao had absorbed its own poison of yin and yang at the place of birth, life, sickness and death. It could be said that the entire Ning Jiao, including its skin, flesh, bones and blood, had turned into Wen Leung's treasured weapon. At this moment, Ning Jiao's sting and Ning Jiao's armor met in Wen Liang's body and immediately, the poison of yin and yang erupted. It intertwined with Wen Liang's poison of life and death. They flowed and swirled together as they joined into a raging whirlpool. The speed at which he absorbed the devil fetus poison of wood accelerated by a few times. Ning Jiao's sting and armor lived and grew with Wen Liang. 
When it absorbed the poison, they complimented Wen Liang's poison of life and death, which made things a lot easier. Boni Ning Jiao, which was frozen into a chunk of ice, had dropped into the abyss and was nowhere to be found. At this moment, it showed itself again. It wrapped itself around Wen Liang like a wild python wrapping around a column. It hissed and slithered in frenzy. A cold wind and dreary mist rose in a flowing rhythm, striking fear into other people's hearts. Chang Li and Kone Nail laughed at the same time. They leaped upwards, surrounded the devil fetus and the golden monkey and started their fierce attacks. The three peerless demon immortals and Wen Leong joined forces to annihilate the devil fetus. The only uncertainty was who would be the final killer. Guo Huan and Xiao Wu mumbled to each other, guessing the identity of the lottery winner. The two female demons summoned their magic powers endlessly. They did not hold back their demonic primordial energy as they rained blow after blow on the devil fetus. A golden light curled, the monkey Qian Ren's speed was too fast for the eye to catch. Countless punches and kicks crashed on the human-faced phoenix's head like a tempest. Qian Ren had lost his wood element primordial base, he had no magic art to cast. However, the golden monkey's body was the most powerful and sturdiest weapon under the heavens. Amidst a loud clangor, the devil fetus head was split open by him, it was a gruesome sight. Go Mang's seed had only recently formed a fetus. It was still far away from obtaining spiritual wisdom and turning into a devil god. It had no magic powers or magic arts at its disposal. It could only rely on its thirteen long plumes and fought the enemy out of instinct. Under the combined attacks of the three peerless great demons and Wen Liang's relentless absorption of its life vitality, it lost all powers of resistance. Of the four persons who pincer attacked the devil fetus, Wen Liang took drastic measures, Chan Li and Cone Nail's demon magic flew in a flurry. The golden monkey's punches hit their target and every hit shocked the heavens and shook the earth. Even though it had exceptional natural endowments, the devil fetus, which stole the good fortune of the world, could not hold its ground any longer. Amidst its wails and chirps, its long plumes broke one after another. Its head was so deformed that it hardly had any shape. The glow of its body quickly dimmed. Finally, amidst a howl so forceful it made everyone's feet shook, when Liang's body, which had been strung in midair by the spirit thread, coiled up. He flipped high into the air. Raising Ning Jiao's sting high, he stabbed strongly at the devil fetus chest. The other three demon immortals also struck with their most powerful strike at this moment. Demon blades and icicles struck from the sides as they stabbed into the ribs under the human-faced phoenix's wings. Eventually, they met within the strange bird's belly and wildly minced its insides. Qian Ren smashed through the top of the devil fetus skull. The monkey, which let off a golden glow, plunged into the head of the strange bird. Then, he came out from its chin. The strange bird's neck stiffened with a jerk. It suddenly opened its mouth the instant the four great damages entered its body, but it could not let out its dying wail. On its body, which had turned into the color of a cadaver, countless grueling wrinkles visibly grew. A few seconds later, the wrinkles turned into rotting black spots. Soft shuffling sounds were heard. The devil fetus, which was as sparkling and resplendent as blue jade, withered completely. It was like a withered leaf, which had all of its moisture extracted. It turned lifelessly and floated down the abyss. It had crumbled into fine powder before it even disappeared from everyone's sights. The devil fetus is dead. Chang Li's body floated as she grabbed Wen Leong, who was falling down into the abyss with flailing limbs. Wen Leong had some regret in his heart. His gaze flickered and he dared not meet Chang Li's eyes, this disciple has done wrong. He had rashly reached for the spirit thread and almost cost the lives of everyone there. If it were not for Guo Huan's decisive activation of the demon body-breaking spell, the only one who would still be living would be Xiao Wu. Chang Li only understood his meaning after being slightly stunned. She waved dismissively, it's nothing. You're not allowed to say that you have done wrong in the future. After she finished, she paused. She was worried that when Leon would disobey and she added, after this, if I ever find out that you apologize to someone, I'll kill that person. The golden monkey was like a puppy, which had just finished its swim. 
he shook himself from head to tail. He shook off the filth which dirted his body when he went through the devil fetus head. He asked hesitantly, who killed the demon fetus? Everyone looked at each other. Everyone almost struck at the same time. They were unsure which one of them should step up to claim God's punishment. Within the exchanged glances of the four persons, there were hints of smiles. Although they knew that they would invoke God's punishment if they killed the devil fetus, during the final strikes, not one of them intentionally slowed their attacks even for half a second. The golden monkey folded his arms behind him. He put on a cold indomitable air of a demon, will know when God's punishment comes. If the four of us kill the devil fetus together, then we'll take God's punishment together. Kone Nail and Chong Li pouted at him in unison, ignoring the monkey. Chong Li diverted the topic with a smile. She tapped Wen Leong who was held by her, young man, you must know how to fly by now, right? Wen Leong took a breath. He nodded eagerly towards Chong Li, try and let go, I'll see if I can. Chong Li let go. Wen Leong fell. He flailed his limbs, his body spiraled. Cone Nail broke into laughter with a start. She reminded loudly, Bony Snake. Bony Snake. It was alright if he did not know how to fly, Bony Ning Jiao knew how to fly. When Leong was hit with a sudden realization. He waved Ning Jiao's sting in his hand as he fell. As expected, with a haughty and furious howl, the Bony Ning Jiao appeared beside him with a loud noise. It flew here and there, shaking its head and tail as it chased Wen Leong and dropped downwards together when Leong fell, the bony Ning Jiao flew, their speeds were the same. Chong Li flew down and saved Wen Leong in midair. She was exasperated that her disciple did not live up to her expectations, why are you still so useless? As she said this, she sent the bony Ning Jiao flying with a wave, this beast is also useless, it just looked as you fell to your death. The devil fetus life vitality energy was only slightly inferior to Chong Li, Kone Nail and the others. It was now completely absorbed by Wen Leong. In addition to his former poison of life and death and Ning Jiao's poison of yin and yang within his body, if he used all of them at once, his powers could very well be even more terrifying than Chong Li's but he did not even know how to fly. Wen Leong was also puzzled. He guessed hesitantly, our Tuasye's method of practice does not know the art of flying. Cone Nail also descended. Sorrow filled her eyes before anyone could notice it, I don't think that's it. Try and hit me hit the monkey. Wen Leong asked Xian Ren to be cautious. Then, he utilized his chi, yelled, punched and let out a loud sound. He sent the monkey, who had no intentions of resisting, reeling in midair. The golden monkey smiled honestly, that's not bad already. However, when Leon was extremely dejected. This punch showed no improvements from before he absorbed the poison of wood. He was merely as powerful as before he went down the pit. Cone Nail lowered her head sadly, you still can't use it in the ore cave, even Tian Yin could not withstand the poison of water gathered by the firecrackers. Logically speaking, your powers should have been on par with us after you've exited the ore cave you can't use it if you only had the poison of the five elements and not the Yin corpse poison. On the snow-covered peak, Kone Nail had discussed Wen Liang's method of practice with Guo Huan. Simply absorbing the poison of the five elements would not have any substantial improvements for Wen Liang's powers. If they could not find the poison of Yin to balance it out, the chaos condensed by the poison of life and death would not truly be pure, when Leong would also be unable to achieve a breakthrough. When Leong did not have time to make fun of Cone Nail's act. He shook his head with dissatisfaction, at least even if I can't be on your level, I would still have improvements, no. But now, I'm no different than I was before. To put it bluntly, when Leong's method of practice was a method to achieve a saint's body. Although the poison of life and death within his body was majestic, if he utilized all the poison, his body would not have been able to withstand it. Even if the poison of life and death was the vast ocean, it could only flow out from the tap that was when Leon. The stream would only be as thick as the tap. He only utilized about 20% of the poison of water, which he absorbed the last time. This time, he had absorbed the poison of wood but he could not even wield it. The powers he could utilize was only as strong as his body. This was not something, 
which Wen Leung could control. Even if he wanted to trade the destruction of his body in exchange for an all-out strike, he could not do it. The poison of life and death merely adjusted the strength of the blow according to his body's strength. Qian Ren was an old cultivator, his experience was much greater than Chang Li and the others. He smiled and shook his head, harmonizing yin and yang and remolding your bones are methods for you to execute the power of the poison of life and death fully. Otherwise, it's useless no matter how much poison of the five elements you absorb. A pure poison of life and death could remold his body. The first time was his meridian vessels, the second time was his bones. After being remolded twice, his powers had increased tremendously. If there were no poison of yin to harmonize the five elements poison of yang and lift his body into another level, Wen Liang's powers would not be able to improve. Although he knew that the monkey spoke the truth, Wen Liang still did not like to hear it. He touched the head of the monkey as if he was cuddling a pet and diverted the topic, where's Qin Zhui? The monkey was immediately worried. This was too much. He responded with spite, that young lad is out cold down below. His foundation is still intact, he will get better after some rest. As he said this, he turned and leaped into the abyss, I'll go get him. Cone Nail immediately added, the small bowl. Return it to me if you no longer have any use for it. The monkey dropped down at a quick speed. He took out the small bowl, which was sealed by a magical talisman and still contained the heavenly water spirit, and tossed it towards Cone Nail. When Leong had heard that a monkey's puffed up cheek could store food. He had truly seen something new today. The small bowl covered in saliva grossed Cone Nail out. She tore a piece of fabric from Wen Liang's garments and wiped it. Chang Li chuckled and reached out a hand. She patted Wen Liang's shoulder, although your strength didn't increase, there must be some other perk, right? At the mention of this, Wen Liang smiled broadly again, poison of wood, takes roots as it falls, lives on continuously. The poison of water was piercingly cold. After it was absorbed, the poison of life and death had a newly added water quality, which allowed the poison to condense out of his body this time, the poison of wood was no less inferior. It could be said that the poison could be sent out of Wen Liang's body. If he willed it, anyone he touched would be poisoned. Wen Liang was honestly worried that the others did not understand. He continued explaining, the poison of life and death could flow between the things that I touch and myself. As he said this, he paused briefly as he thought about how to pick his words, for example, I have a stick in my hand. I'm poisonous, so is the stick. If I hit a table with the stick, the poison of life and death would flow between the stick, the table and I. Hence, the table will be poisonous. Anyone who touches the table will have the poison flowing into him. The point is, as long as my poison of life and death is sufficient, the cycle would be endless. Cone Nail and Chang Li nodded indifferently. The poison of wood's endless vitality was the dream skill of the Wen Butsao, who delved in the art of poison for generations, but it was not something special to demon immortals. Wen Leong did not explain too much to them but continued to smile, there's another perk. As he said this, he pointed at the giant rock tower above everyone's heads. Cone Nail exclaimed in surprise and reacted. She grabbed Wen Liang's hands, her eyes were filled with excitement, the demon tower is yours. If the devil fetus died, the rock tower would not be destroyed, but it would have at least fell into the abyss, it should not have stayed where it was like what it was doing now. Wen Liang nodded with immense pride. With a flow of his thoughts, the giant demon tower vibrated lightly. Obviously, it responded to him. Then, Guo Huan appeared rigidly from the tower, Wen Liang, don't you fight with me over this. When the human-faced phoenix died, Guo Huan plunged into the demon tower with a cheer. The matter was not much different from what he had thought. The demon tower accepted him almost without resistance. It became his new body. However, Guo Huan quickly discovered that although he had become the demonic soul of this body, this new body had another master. When Leong had absorbed all of the devil fetus life vitality, naturally, he also received the devil fetus treasured weapon, which was this demon tower as huge as a lofty mountain. The relationship between Guo Huan and Wen Leong was more intimate compared than before. 
Before this, the jade knife could only be considered as Wen Liang's private property. Now, the demon tower was a treasured weapon, which moved according to Wen Liang's wishes. As long as Wen Liang did not interfere, Guo Huan could cultivate within the demon tower. He would eventually be able to realize his expectations, to cultivate the demon tower into human form and turn into the peerless demon immortal that he was. Although his method of practice did not improve, his art of poison was raised to another level. At the same time, he had received a shocking treasured weapon. Wen Leung grinned from ear to ear. He looked around with delight. During this moment, Qian Ren had already returned with Qin Shui on his back. When he saw that Wen Leung had received the rock tower, he suddenly laughed. He said with a silly appearance, Wen Leung's luck is the best. When Wen Leung saw that Qin Shui was breathing steadily, he felt relieved. After he heard the monkey's words, he was slightly puzzled, he did not understand what he meant. Recently, the depths of Mount Hua had livened up. Cultivators came to the mountain in batches. A fair number of rogue cultivators had ridden on the favor of the rescue both of them did at the Great Mercy Temple, all those who had nothing crucial to take care of were rushing over to Mount Hua. The last time when they fought over treasures on Mount Ame, although quite a number of rogue cultivators went, there were many who were unwilling to cross the Great Mercy Temple or would not want any part of the commotion. They ignored the summons of the painting town and stayed within their own immortal's cave however, it was different this time. The battle between good and evil was heating up but the painting town made no move to rally the forces. Every rogue cultivators felt insecure, afraid to be involved in this great battle. The numbers of rogue cultivators that came to Mount Hua this time was much larger than the last time. When it seemed like someone wanted to help the rogue cultivators, the rumors spread by meddlesome people had it that there was a strong backer behind Ji Fei and Xue Jing. Whether it was Ji Fei, Xue Jing, Wen Leong, who was behind the brothers' backs, or even Cat Demon Changli, the two rabbit demons must give them face. They personally led the elites of the five supreme monasteries all the way to Mount Hua. The Buddhist sects under the heavens had always looked to Great Mercy Temple as their leader, all of them sent elites to join the rally. As for the other three sects of the Five Blessings, although a young sect Sanwei's split body had impressive magical powers. He had no care for the world and only concentrated on cultivation Jilong sect's powers were greatly diminished and they had retreated into their sealed mountain Kunlun sect was nowhere to be found. Other than Wen Leong and the others, nobody knew where they went. Within the span of a few short years, only two sects, Great Mercy Temple and One Word Palace were left in the Right Cultivation Path's Five Blessings. Compared to the Right Cultivation Paths, the world sect seemed to have grown stronger. On Mount Hua, there were a large number of unfamiliar cultivators. They either came in throngs or small groups to take part in the rally. Although it was not clearly mentioned, these people were not disciples of the Five Blessings, nor were they rogue cultivators. Their identities could be understood without being told. To those with sharp eyes, this rally of rogue cultivators could turn into a battlefield of good and evil at any moment. On the second day of the second month, it was the Long Tata Festival. It was only a day away from the rally. Most of the various cultivators, who were supposed to appear, had already arrived on Mount Hua's Goddess Peak. They were full of discontent. The brothers Ji Fei and Shui Jing did nothing. They did not prepare food nor did they show the way. They only placed obvious wooden signs at the feet of Goddess Peak. Every sign was painted with a big arrow, which pointed to the peak. At the peak, Ji Fei and Shui Jing beamed with joy as they chattered with the big and small rabbit demons, Second Mother, Qi Maojiu and the others. There was already a crowd on the peak. They scattered in self-formed groups to the east and west, the Rainbow Brothers had also arrived before anyone noticed and were making their way through the crowd. Bushuo and Buzwa had also followed Second Mother and the others to Mount Hua. They discussed softly at the side. The two of them chuckled and ran over to greet the Rainbow Brothers. The seven fat men retained their silly looks. They cheered and surrounded Bushuo and Buzwa. All of them talked at once. When Buzwa suddenly laughed. He lowered his voice and said, Stop acting, we know that you guys are the leaders of the world sect. That old man is your servant. Three-inch nail when Bushuo nodded forcefully with a snort. 
shock registered on the faces of the seven fat men who had partial memory loss. They were suddenly at a loss for words. When Buzwa's smile resembled a villain's more and more, Ji Fei and Shui Jing are men of Nine Peaks Mountain no matter how you see it. Also, the rogue cultivator's rally had nothing to do with the battle between good and evil. Don't go to extreme measures later. The rainbow leader looked to his left and right. When he was sure that nobody paid them any attention, he sighed softly, how did you guys find out? When Buzwa made a mysterious expression, I've investigated it. Then, he did not allow them to question and immediately diverted the topic, Grand Master Chongli is magnanimous, with a merciful heart. The seven brothers looked at each other. They wondered if he was talking about Chongli. She would not get involved in the battle between good and evil but she will definitely protect Great Mercy Temple. Also, the rogue cultivators had no troubles with the world, she would not bear to see so many unrelated peoples being dragged into the slaughter. That's why she tacitly agreed to Ji Fei and Shui Jing organizing this rally. When Buzwa's tone was relaxed. It was not an order nor was it a discussion, he only seemed to be talking nonsense. The rainbow leader nodded and chuckled, we're also here to see the show. As long as the rogue cultivators do not side with the right cultivation paths, we will be indifferent. May Grand Master Chongli be rest assured. When Buzwa laughed drilly. He did not put any effort into masking his insincerity, that's good, that's good. I didn't want to be so blunt initially but when I saw that a large number of world sect people, I thought I'd better come and offer my greetings first. The rainbow leader unexpectedly shook his head, it's true that quite a few disciples have come from our side, but those with uncertain identities, at least half of them aren't our men. Maybe quite a number of obscure cultivators have come to join in the fun as well. After he finished, he tried to get in good with them, us, the seven brothers, had penetrated Mount Amay's mountainside with one Leon. We have a friendship of life and death. Great Mercy Temple and Nine Peaks Mountain are friends, we're intimate friends with one Leon. When Buzwa's smile bloomed into a flower. He took out a bright red wedding invitation card and pushed it into the rainbow leader's hands, on the tenth day of the fourth month is one Leon's big day. Before we descended the mountain, Grand Elder had reminded us many times over that you guys had to attend. They had reserved 99 tables for you world sect is that enough? The rainbow leader was nodding but when he heard that there were 99 tables, his scalp tingled. 99 tables meant 999 persons, that made 999 gifts. Another rainbow brother was hit with a sudden realization. He drew cold breaths as he asked when Buzwa, after Ji Fei and Shui Jing becomes the leader of the rogue cultivators, they would also receive the wedding invitation, right? On the other side, when Nineteen saw the host of Great Mercy Temple, she immediately went to pay her due respects as a junior. After Little Rabbit Demon returned the gesture, he asked her with her a chuckle, aren't old man Xia and old man Ma coming? Nineteen replied respectfully, father and uncle had some errands to run. I don't know if they'll make it in time. Sean Duan continued wearing his fake smile, it's been such a long time since I've seen the two old immortals. I missed them so he was chattering when a gallant laugh rolled up the mountainside, I'm sorry to trouble the divine monk to think about me. It seems that I've made it after all. A serious matter such as this, how can one word palace not come? Old Xia brought old Ma along. At the same time, a slightly lazy and friendly voice came from the foot of Goddess Peak, the Kunlun sect would also like to join in the fun. First brother Xia, second brother Ma, please wait for me. I'll introduce some good friends from the highlands to you. Lu Zheng's voice barely faded when another stiff voice sounded loudly, the Lama Rangyong and his companions pay their respects to the fellow gods of the land of the East's cultivation world. With a buzz, the peak fell into a mess. The rogue cultivators whispered into each other's ears. It was nothing rare for one word palace to have come but Kunlun sect, which had initially disappeared had also appeared, bringing along with them a bunch of highland cultivators. That astonished everyone. The entire Kunlun sect had gone to the highlands. However, they had left some informers in the cultivation world. The modern means of communication was also very advanced. When Ji Fei and Shui Jing sent out the invitation card, Lu Zheng had immediately received word of it on the highlands. 
Naturally, Lu Zheng did not know that this rally was a row kicked up by Ji Fei and Shui Jing. Just recently, Kone Nail had fought with the dog-headed eagle on the highlands until the heavens were shocked and the ground shook. He thought that the Wen family had something special in mind by organizing this rally. He left the 72 esteemed sword seniors on the highlands and came alone to Mount Hua. In the process, he even met head Lama Rangyong who had settled his own affairs and was ready to embark to aid Wen Leong, with the highland cultivators who followed Rangyong. In no time, Lu Zheng held first brother Xia while head Lama Rangyong and the big group of cultivators followed behind them. They laughed as they went up the mountain. Naturally, a series of merrymaking and introductions followed. Lu Zheng could not find Wen Leong. After he entertained a few of his acquaintances, he found a vacant space and pulled Ji Fei and Shui Jing over. He asked them in a low voice, Why didn't Wen Leong come? Is he on Mount Hua? Fat monk Shui Jing was honest, he nodded after he heard those words, Wen Leong is on Mount Hua. If it were not for Ji Fei who gave him a smack in the head just in time, the fat monk would have spilled the beans. The two of them pretended to have amnesia and, coincidentally, came to Mount Hua for the meeting. Lu Zheng could tell that something was fishy with these two but he was not aware of the happenings in the place of birth, life, sickness and death. Even if his brain was ten thousand times smarter, he would not have been able to guess the sequence of the events. He furrowed his brows and asked, Is Wen Leong on Mount Hua? Is he here or not? Of course Wen Leong was on Mount Hua. His mouth was gaping right now as he made choking sounds. After a long while, he asked four words pitiably, I'm crossing God's punishment. Chang Li nodded and looked at the others. The golden monkey crossed his arms and laughed, this young lad had invoked God's punishment to save me. Now is an apt time to return the favor. Cone Nail sighed sorrowfully, I've even saved the dog-headed eagle, how can I not care for it? Let's go up, it's more spacious there and it'll be easier for our skills. Wen Leong only felt his body grow heavier. He was already tossed back onto the demon tower by Chang Li. The few of them did not stop their footsteps. They quickly climbed up onto the ground surface along the giant tower. Wen Leong leaped upwards, slightly dissatisfied. The four of them had killed the human-faced phoenix at the same time, why did the god's punishment fall on his head in the end? Kone Nail wore a sorrowful expression, as if the one who would suffer God's punishment was her, although the devil fetus wasn't fully formed, the reasoning is the same. The primordial spirit within the treasured weapon is closely related with its master's primordial base. If the primordial base is depleted, the master dies and the magic weapon will turn into a lonely soul or wild ghost. Primordial base in the foundation of a cultivator's life vitality. When you absorb the poison of wood from the devil fetus, you first absorbed its life vitality and finally absorbed the primordial base. Actually, the primordial base was no different from life vitality force, they were both used to form the foundation. In terms of volume, it was slightly denser. Just like a house's foundation, it was the same as the walls and beams, concrete and steel. However, Wen Leong did not quite understand. His hair stood up as he listened on. He somehow felt that he had snatched the placenta of the devil fetus and swallowed it whole. The monkey Qian Ren continued to explain to him, it's because you've absorbed the devil fetus primordial base that you're able to subdue the demon tower. When the primordial base is depleted, the demon fetus dies. It was only penetrated by our magic powers the instant it died. If it does not die, its body will not be so fragile. The golden monkey was completely engrossed in his speech. Xiao Wu leaped from Chang Li's back out of the blue. She hugged the monkey and rubbed her cheeks against its fur that looked like a golden satin. Chang Li was startled. She hastily cried out to the monkey, Don't you struggle, don't hurt the little darling. The monkey was angered to the point of gritting his teeth. He looked even more silly and cute. Chapter 248 The demon tower had a narrow top but a wide base. It was an arduous ordeal to dig it out carefully. However, climbing to the top of the tower felt like nothing for a bunch of demon immortals, who had exquisite skills. In no time, Wen Leong felt his eyes brightening. He had broken through the surface. What followed was a cheer. 
Fei Fei, Xiao Xia and Wen Shu Lin immediately came forward to greet them. They all talked at once as they asked him about the conditions underground. After all, they saw that a dog-headed eagle went down but a golden monkey appeared. Fei Fei's face blushed in a charming and tender bright red. When Leong was waiting to cross the god's punishment, he had no time to chat with them. He hastily ordered the three mortals to back away. Suddenly, he felt that the sky was gleaming with a glaring brightness. Stunned, he asked, where's the god's punishment? It was close to midday. The end of winter, beginning of spring sky was crystal clear blue. Not even a normal cloud could be seen, let alone black clouds that gave birth to the godly thunder. There was only a full golden sun, which was hanging in a slanted manner by the mountain. It giggled as it looked down on them. The other three demon immortals had confident expressions. They were chuckling as they followed beside Wen Leong. Wen Leong looked incredulously at the sky as he hesitated, could it be similar to Ah Dan? I might be crossing God's punishment any time within these three years. Qian Ren's monkey face twitched. He exclaimed in utter surprise, what kind of elite is Ah Dan? He has reached the cultivation base worthy of invoking God's punishment. Chang Li ignored the monkey. She shook her head at Wen Leong, Ah Dan's punishment depended on when he reincarnated into a human. The god's punishment appeared when his veins in the heart were connected. The god's punishment of an accomplished cultivator follows the same reasoning. They will only invoke god's punishment once they reach a certain level of power. This kind of punishment is called a divine immortal punishment. The punishment that you're about to face is nothing like that. Kohn Nail continued Chan Li's sentence and continued to explain to Wen Leong, you've killed a great demon and destroyed a great fortune, you've invoked the heaven-earth punishment, we also call it the disobedience punishment. This punishment will start brewing after six hours. It'll take form after twelve hours and strike after eighteen hours. If that wasn't the case, how could we be so calm and chatting away down there after we killed the devil fetus? After she finished, Kohn Nail wore a heartbroken expression. She pointed at Chang Li, her eyes were wet with tears, she hit me and broke the great formation on Black and White Island. If there comes a day where the nine-headed monster escapes, she would be facing this kind of heaven-earth punishment as well. Kohn Nail's eyes were full of sorrow. Only an unconcealable laugh line at the edge of her lips betrayed her. When Shu Lin took no notice of the atmosphere as he shook his head inside, three, six and nine are numbers of heaven path. Chan Li ignored Kohn Nail. She looked at Wen Shu Lin with half a smile. Wen Leong only felt his limbs growing cold, even the roots of his hairs exuded cold air towards his surroundings. Kohn Nail had mentioned in the gold-consuming lair, the punishment which Chang Li had to cross was an unpardonable god's punishment, it could never be crossed. It would not stop unless the target was blasted to smithereens. Kohn Nail quickly comforted from the side with a smile, divine immortal punishments could be divided into a few types, their powers are different as well. It is the same with the disobedience punishment. Killing a devil fetus and releasing a primordial monster are two different things, both invokes different gods' punishment. Don't worry, if we work together, we can face it. When Leong found a tree and sat down as he leaned on it. He looked up at the empty blue sky, we still have a couple of hours left. Why not we wait? The other demon immortals were amused. They nodded together, we wait. Fei Fei understood what happened under the demon tower. She was a mortal, there was not much difference between a demon fetus and a devil fetus to her. When she knew that the demon tower was divided between Wen Leong and Guo Huan, she was so shocked that her colors drained. Even if she did not understand magic arts or magic powers, she could still grasp the notion of a big mountain crashing down on someone. Xiao Sha looked at Wen Leong with a face full of empathy. This matter was mainly old Gu's fault. He had insisted that Wen Leong provide support after he was hospitalized with appendicitis. As a result, Wen Leong dug the rock tower and triggered the god's punishment. Fei Fei told the others about the cultivators gathering on Mount Hua's goddess peak. As Gu Xiaojun had transmitted some information over to them these few days, it was confirmed that the meeting was called by Ji Fei and Shui Jing. However, until now, 
both the sects that were attending or the scale of the meeting had long exceeded the bounds which the two brothers could control. When Leong requested for pen and paper from Xiao Sha, he wrote his will as he listened to Fei Fei. At first, he was indifferent to what Ji Fei and Shui Jing wanted to do but when he knew that second mother, Qi Maojiu, and the Bushuo Buzhuo brothers had all arrived at Mount Hua. He was slightly moved and said with a bitter smile, let's go to Goddess Peak together after we've crossed God's punishment. Fei Fei nodded with a smile. Xiao Sha's gaze was slightly suspicious. He hesitated, but in the end, he did not say the words, shall we go ahead first? They waited from noon to dusk, from evenings to when the skies were filled with stars. Especially after sunset, even a bird flying over their heads would startle when lay on. However, up until the morning of the second day, the sky did not make any moves. Calculating from when the human-faced phoenix was killed until now, at least twenty hours had passed. The god's punishment showed no signs of appearing. When Leong had experienced a lot of suspense. He completely understood that the pain of waiting for the god's punishment was no less inferior to suffering god's punishment itself. Finally, Chong Li squinted her eyes. After she carefully observed the position of the sun, she broke the worrisome silence, the hour has passed, God's punishment has not appeared. After she finished, she did not allow Wen Leong to say anything. Chang Li flashed beside him, her delicate and beautiful face was filled with delight, young lad, your luck is good beyond compare. The God's punishment did not appear, what are the odds? God's punishment was not an automated action, nor was it controlled by intelligence, it was only a way to balance out the energy. It was some sort of law or rule. By now, the devil fetus had died for more than eighteen hours, if the disobedience punishment had not happened, it would most likely not happen anymore. Wen Leong did not expect for there to be good fortune before he fell into the depths of despair. He asked with joy and worry, then the god's punishment won't happen. Chang Li and Kone Nail exchanged a glance. They nodded at the same time. However, the looks on their faces were not that confident. Everybody knew the principles but nobody could be sure. Only the golden monkey Qian Ren grunted drilly. It folded its arms and paced beside Wen Leong, it's not that it won't happen, it's that there's no God's punishment to begin with. Its tone left no room for doubt, its expression was stern and grim but the little darling was amused by its expression and she convulsed with laughter. The golden monkey had a natural silly look, there was a certain foolishness to its serious face. When it saw that it had amused the little girl, Qian Ren was immediately dispirited. It no longer put on airs, robbing a good fortune will invoke the disobedience punishment, that much is true. As it was a matter of life and death, when Liang's reactions were much faster. He immediately questioned, the human-faced phoenix is not the devil fetus. It's only an ordinary demon fetus. Chang Li shook her head and cut him short, what kind of demon under the heavens dare to appear in Gomang's form? Also, if it's not the devil fetus, how can it possibly refine Qian Ren's ending vine in Guohuan's rock element split body? Not to mention that it had survived for a few days under our relentless attacks before it died. Cone Nail squinted her eyes as if she was lost in thought. She hummed and said nothing. Qian Ren heaved a long sigh. Its voice had regained its usual sharpness without anyone noticing, the one that was killed by our joint forces was the devil fetus, that much is true. However, this devil fetus is not formed naturally by the heaven and earth, hence there is no God's punishment. Cone Nail suddenly lifted her head, her eyes were full of fright, you're saying that this devil fetus was not formed naturally but intentionally reared by someone else. Even a spiritual creature like Go Mang, if it wanted to become a god or turn into a devil, it would need some extremely great coincidence. However, if it was intentionally reared by someone, no matter how much spiritual primordial energy of the universe it absorbed, no matter how powerful it was after it took form, it could not be counted as created by the heaven and earth. Xiao Sha was not quite sure he understood the whole thing. He asked Fei Fei softly, if they kill the wild one, there's God's punishment but if they kill the farmed one, there's not. Fei Fei nodded hesitantly, maybe. Wen Leong was still puzzled. He furrowed his brows and looked at the golden monkey, Go Mang's seed was shot into the soil by you when you vented your anger the last time does this count as you who planted it? 
Ever since Qian Ren saw the human-faced phoenix, it confidently derived the devil fetus origins. This seed was shot into the soil by it out of anger the last time, there was no mistake in its location. It eventually utilized the foulness of the great mountain. With the casual flick of a finger, the devil fetus had turned from wild breed to farm species. Qian Ren understood Wen Liang's meaning. It shook its head with a stern expression, it's not what you think. Of course, it doesn't count as farming the devil fetus with me just flicking it into the ground. However, if someone laid a magic circle and intentionally condensed the mountain's in foulness to nourish the devil fetus, this artificial act could not be counted as created by the heaven and earth. The golden monkey Qian Ren suddenly moved. It skipped and hopped around the demon tower's great pit in a circle. Its voice projected calmly into everyone's ears, I was also puzzled at first. This is the center of ending cave even if the wood spiritual energy had completely dissipated, it was still a beautiful treasured land, there shouldn't be any mountain in cold foulness. However, thousands of years ago, I thought that there has been some change over the years and that the mountain setting had somehow changed. The land of wood spiritual energy had turned into a in source of the cold mountain. Although this matter was slightly strange, Qian Ren had not thought much about it. Only when it confirmed that the hour had passed and the god's punishment had not come, it finally joined the dots. The entire matter had become clear. The person who farmed the devil fetus, although unable to move the location of Gomang's seed, he changed the setting of this place and directed the mountain foulness to this place. The others were still contemplating but he Xiao Sha had already stood up, terrified, someone changed the setting of the mountain. Change the feng shui of this place. The arbiter of He family knew all sorts of art of Jianghu. They also knew a thing or two about feng shui. He roughly understood Qian Ren's meaning. Changing feng shui would require changing the mountain's shape and the water's force. It was not just arranging a few bricks, which could be altered at one's whim. Unless the person who did it knew the art of feng shui and had the abilities to move mountains and fill oceans. If one wanted to direct the mountain's foulness, it is not necessary to excavate the mountain and break the ground. As Qian Ren said this, it quickly stopped in its tracks. It sneered, it's here. Then, it joined its fingers and made a diving pose. Its joined palms swiftly pressed on the ground surface. After pressing it, the seemingly intact ground surface released a crisp bang as if some pottery had been shattered. Shortly after, on the ground before Qian Ren's feet, a fine crack grew rapidly. It emanated in all directions as if it were alive. It kept spreading until it formed a perfect circle with a diameter of a dozen meters. The monkey leaped out of the circle. It reminded the others in a low voice, look carefully. After the crack formed a perfect circle, it no longer spread outwards but it did not stop. Instead, amidst layers of soft crackling sounds, it continuously loosened and broke the mountain rocks and soil within the circle. The ridge was visibly thinned as if it was loosened up in layers. After a dozen minutes, the soil within the circle had turned into the finest powder, the grains were more evenly sized than the finest flour in the market. A gust of mountain wind blew softly. The fine powder dispersed in the air and left behind a round big pit. Qian Ren snorted, the person who farmed the devil fetus had planted a magic circle here. The magic circle runs unceasingly, the cold foulness of Mount Hua is continuously directed towards this point. Over time, it has condensed into the mountain's yin's black tortoise heaven-swallowing mannerism. The group of people crowded around the edge of the round pit. About a dozen meters down the pit, there was a giant piece of green jade. On its surface, a drawing of the sun, moon and stars was carved. There were also some strange-looking talisman scripts here and there. From its appearance, it did not seem very powerful, it also did not enshroud in the aura of a treasure. Compared to a normal stone tablet, it was at most smoother. Xiao Sha was still dissatisfied but this sort of thing had long exceeded the bounds of his knowledge. He opened his mouth to retort, but he did not know what to say. Qian Ren's patience was admirable. It explained calmly, the art of feng shui is in differentiating yin and yang, giving directions and tacit understandings. To put it bluntly, the art explores the relationships between the mountain's shape, water's route and the spiritual primordial energy of the world. 
However, when the spiritual primordial energy of the world moves, it does not rely solely on the shape of mountains and rivers. Qian Ren became more motivated as it explained. Its eyes had already turned clear and deep, but its face was still a silly look of a monkey's, the sun rises and the moon wanes, the stars move in the sky, all of them contain a great giant force. As small as the flourishing and withering of plants, as big as the changing of seasons, as light as the dripping of water drops, as heavy as the ocean's tides, everything is influenced by the forces of the sun, moon and the stars. The spiritual primordial energy in Mount Hua is also the same. The mannerisms of the mountain and the rivers did not change, but the cycle of the heavenly bodies have changed, naturally, the feng shui that you speak about has changed. He Xiao Sha had never heard of such a thing. He only managed a reaction after being stunned for a while, the rising of the sun and setting of the moon, the movement of stars in the sky, of course, these will affect the earth I mean the world. But these are eternally immutable, things that never changed. Feng Shui's calculations were also based on these unchangeable premises for it to be able to derive anything. As he said this, he snorted with a face full of sneer, according to your explanation, the person who farmed the devil fetus used this stone tablet to change the law of time in which the heavenly bodies moved and also the distances they moved. This this is too. When Xu Lin had been following the conversation closely, he could not help but finish Xiao Xia's sentence, preposterous. Wen Leong chuckled. Changing the mountain's shape and the river's route to alter Feng Shui was already preposterous. According to the words of the monkey Qian Ren, somebody had altered the movements of the heavenly bodies with a magic circle. Although Wen Leong was not a scholar, even he could have guessed. Setting the sun aside, even if the earth suddenly stopped spinning for a second, that giant inertia would have the entire ocean crash onto land. The little darling saw that the two young men and an old man had ganged up on the monkey. She took swift, little steps with a face full of contempt and shielded Qian Ren behind her. Qian Ren did not know whether to laugh or cry as it shook its head. Although everyone knew that it was an ancient cultivator with amazing experiences, anyone who saw a monkey shaking its head would find it funny, of course it's not changing, it's borrowing. This is a magic art that cultivated in the powers of sun, moon and stars. Let alone you guys, even I have only heard about some superficial information about this. This magic circle did not break the law of the cycle of sun and moon but it borrowed the powers of sun, moon and stars and changed the flow of spiritual primordial energy on Mount Hua. It had turned this land of wooden spiritual energy into the source of the yin force in this mountain. Let alone Wen Leong and the others, even Chang Li was dumbstruck, who is the person that laid this magic circle and farmed the devil fetus. Directing the powers of the sun and moon through a magic circle to change the flow of the world's spiritual primordial energy. She had never heard of such a magic before. Wen Leong's heart skipped a beat. He vaguely remembered when he first met the monkey Qian Ren under Tour Town, he had said that his archenemy Kong Nuer cultivated in the magic of heaven and earth, he understood the powers of the movements of the heavenly bodies. Kong Nuer. As expected, these three words which had been gnawed on and crunched on by the monkey was spat out from its mouth. Then, it panted heavily, if it's not him, who else can locate the position of this Gomang seed? Who else can secretly change the beauty of a great mountain with such a small magic circle? Ha, yeah, his appearance, the words he said, the method of practice he cultivated in, his handwriting, his everything, I would not forget, even for one second. Qian Ren's words were as obvious as it could be. The devil fetus under the rock tower was intentionally farmed by Kong Nuer. Wen Leong sighed. Now they had proof. The devil fetus was farmed by someone. Even if they killed it, it did not count as destroying the heaven and earth's creation. He could also be regarded as successfully crossing the god's punishment. He had felt worried for a whole day. He almost wrote half a book's worth of his will, he had even left messages for his parents, grandfathers, first uncle, his two fiancées, Bu Shuo Buzwa, Qi Maojiu, second mother, Lu Zheng, and the others. Suddenly, everything was fine. He felt surprised and comforted. Nevertheless, he also felt like he had launched a full-force punch towards the empty air. Chang Li muttered the name, Kong Nuer, a few times. Her bright eyes filled with an alertness of a demon immortal, 
this Kong Muir who is he? After when Leong pondered for a while, he thought of something, Kong Muir had harmed you. Could it be he intended to use Go Mang seed to nourish the devil fetus? If one wanted to farm Go Mang seed into a devil fetus, one had to think of some way to remove the immortal root spiritual primordial energy from the seed. It was understandable why Kong Muir picked Qian Ren as a suction pump. Qian Ren shook his head, that can't be. Rearing the devil fetus and the survival of Ending Cave had nothing in common. However, when he sealed me into the Golden Monkey, it was to sever all ties between me and Ending Cave to preserve this activated land of the wood element. Kong Nuer should still need Ending Cave to refine his magic weapon. As for why he wanted to rear this devil fetus, I still don't understand. The devil fetus was not a pet. If it became matured, it would be a devil. It would not listen to orders, it would also not acknowledge a master. After the death of the devil fetus, Guo Huan had kept himself busy with familiarizing with his new body. He finally could not hold it in and interrupted, it's true that Kong Muir had planted Go Mang seed but he didn't intend to farm Go Mang seed into a devil fetus. The demon spell within Go Mang seed had found my split body after some years, that's how it obtained the vital fire and grew into the shape of a fetus. With the forces and tricks at Kong Muir's disposal, getting a vital fire for Go Mang seed is as easy as pie. After he finished, Guo Huan added as if he had not expressed his thoughts fully, then, the demon spell within Go Mang seed turned into the devil fetus. I dare say even Kong Muir himself had never thought of this. The monkey Qian Ren was hit with a sudden realization. It nodded forcefully, what is that Kong Muir thinking? Planting Go Mang seed but not wanting it to take form. Only Kong Nuer himself could answer that question. Since there was no god's punishment and the skies had brightened up, Xiao Sha started packing up their luggage. He readied himself to ride when Leon and rushed towards Goddess Peak. At this moment, Chan Li suddenly looked at Kone Nail and asked a brainless question, you were once killed. Was your primordial spirit extracted and refined into heaven's Kone Nail? The fury within Kone Nail's eyes disappeared as quickly as it appeared. Her expression turned into self-pity which when Leon was very familiar with, aren't you worried that I might feel sad if you bring this up? When Leon smiled bitterly in his heart, he did not understand why had Grand Master Chong Li attacked Kone Nail this time. He quickly stood in between the two demon immortals. Kone Nail wore an extremely pitiful expression. This was her killing look. Unexpectedly, Chong Li did not continue to taunt as she normally would. Instead, she waved her hand, her gaze showed no signs of hostility, I have no time to fight with you. How much can you recall now? I only meant to ask you if you remember whether the one who extracted your primordial spirit was a human or an immortal devil. Cone Nail smiled sorrowfully, his looks are very unclear, but it should be a human. If it was a god who cast the spell, how could I have retained memories of my past life? Wiping a memory or sealing a memory relied on magic spells. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, it all came down to a contest of strength. Judging by Cone Nail's current abilities, since Cone Nail's memories were sealed and not completely wiped clean, that meant that although the other party was stronger than her, he was not at the level of the gods. Chong Li nodded and continued to smile, the nine heavens Cone Nails on the black and white island were all refined by someone. I reckon that the one who subdued the nine-headed monster was not a primordial god. Cone Nail's brows furrowed. In the end, she nodded, I think so too, but as for what exactly happened, we'll have to wait until my memory is restored. After going about it many times, the parents that I thought I had are my true enemies. Chong Li suddenly let out an extremely joyful laughter. Cone Nail could not hold it any longer, she bellowed and a wave of icicles crashed towards Chong Li. Chong Li exclaimed in mild surprise. She dodged Cone Nail's magical powers as she waved hastily, Stop fighting, stop fighting. I wasn't laughing at you. I'm laughing about the divine punishment that was in my mind all these while. After all, my actions are similar to killing the devil fetus. Shattering heaven's Cone Nail and releasing Xian Lu does not result in God's punishment after all. This surprise came out of the blue. It left when Leong dumbstruck, riveted to the ground. As someone intentionally farmed Go Mang seed, 
even if it turned into a devil fetus, there is no God's punishment even if when Leong killed it. Guo Huan mulled over the words from the rock tower with a low voice, the one who refined heaven's cone nails was a cultivator, the one who laid the demon subduing great formation was also a cultivator. The one who subdued the nine-headed monster was a human, not the heavens. Even if we shattered heaven's cone nails and broke the cultivator's magic, helping the nine-headed monster returning to the mortal realm is not something against the will of heaven. There is no bullshit God's punishment. The little darling Xiaowu chewed on her chewing gum. She looked on indifferently as she asked Guo Huan with a childish voice, there's no God's punishment. Then, is there still a monthly pass? Chapter 249 There was no God's punishment placed on top of Chang Li's head. Even though there was no way they could confirm this information, after the continuous in-death analysis of the few experienced and skilled demon immortals, the possibility seemed to grow bigger and bigger. In the beginning, Guo Huan, Kone Nail and even the demon cat Chang Li were prejudiced by the preconceived idea. Similar to the act of killing the devil fetus, they were under the assumption that the culprit who released Xiang Lu would certainly be struck by the wrath of the gods. In their perception, this concept was similar to salt was certainly salty and that fire was certainly hot, they had never questioned this information. It was only when Wen Liang's wrath of the gods did not arrive, Chang Li and the rest unintentionally understood the meaning behind all these. Their initial surprise and joy gradually grew colder, along with that came not elation and inspiration, but empty suffocation. There was no God's punishment, so why was there a necessity to spend laborious efforts to deal with the evil soul and why was there a necessity to scheme incessantly in order to resurrect the heaven's cone nail? From two thousand years ago, the Grand Master Tuasia had planned laboriously, where the two Grand Masters, Lu Luo and Tuasia, their descendants and disciples took up the positions of the fallen and continued to rise. Yet, they did not understand the truth. Everything was just a joke. When Leong dared not express the oppression he felt in his heart. He was still trying hard to retain the smile on the corners on his lips, the brightness in his gaze and his expression. Chang Li could see through him. She walked slowly and stood in front of him, and spoke in an exceedingly soft tone, I she had only spoken a word when her tears flowed out of the socket of her eyes without a sign. I managed to test his feelings to me but too lost him I do not know if I should regret. As she was saying that, Chang Li trembled gently and laid her charming head softly on Wen Liang's shoulder, she muttered softly as if she was sleep talking, after all, where is he? Wen Liang did not know what to say, he stretched out his hand rigidly and was about to pat on Chang Li's back. Unexpectedly, as he was raising his palm, at the sound of a wail, Chang Li broke out in bitter sobs, after everything, where is he now? Everyone kept silent. Chang Li's tears were initially burning hot, yet the moment the tears flowed out of her eyes, the temperature was cooled down by the cold wind at the end of the winter. Finally, the wetness that spread on Wen Liang's shoulder was only a stretch of icy coldness. I released Xiang Lu because of him. I was only considered creating a temporary disturbance. Yet, he dealt with Xiang Lu on behalf of me and made everybody else suffer for the rest of their lifetimes for me. Chang Li's cries gradually lowered. In the midst of her sobs, her voice sounded a little piteous. Wen Leung felt uneasy from the oppression in his heart. He chimed in with a dried voice, if there is no God's punishment, why is there a necessity to deal with Xiang Lu? Before his voice died away, Kone Nail suddenly sneered, what kind of monster is Xiang Lu? He is the utmost evil creature under the heaven. If he were to struggle free from his entrapment then the entire world would suffer. There is no kindness in his eyes at all, how will he care about who released him? Tuasye's disciples dealt with the evil soul in the past and attempted to suppress him. He will come to kill all of you one by one. If we were to choose not to deal with him, he will come and deal with us sooner or later. Chang Li raised her head, her eyes were red. There was only feebleness that was felt in the cold mountain wind. There was not a trace of an outstanding demon immortal in her. She shook her head gently to Cone Nail, I am totally not related to the torments of the world. I am dealing with it not because I am afraid that it will come looking for us but Chang Li spat out a mouthful of foul breath before continuing, he was trying to suppress Xiang Lu for me, how can I just stand aside and do nothing? As long as Chang Li is still alive, this matter will need to be continued. 
There was a knot in Wen Liang's heart that could not be loosened, but it did not hold up his thought process of figuring out the logical relationship of this chaos. Chang Li crushed the heaven's cone nail stubbornly and Grand Master Tuo Xie took on the responsibility for the disaster on behalf of her. Hence, she wanted to inherit Tuo Xie's unfulfilled wish. Cone nail squinted her eyes. After she muttered to herself for a long while, she spoke to Chang Li, You are truly mad. Following that, she suddenly laughed aloud, however this inspiration of yours to suffer is rather wonderful. Chang Li laughed, her eyes were still red and swollen. It was unknown if it was an intentional flattery or a sincere praise, Guo Huan also burst out laughing, that is correct, we spent millenniums to cultivate and transform into the human form, of course, we need to fucking suffer. The lifetime of a demon is only considered worthwhile with such suffering. Darling Xiaowu was confused by this group of people, who suddenly cried and suddenly laughed. She crawled into Wen Liang's cradle in a short while, pouted her little lips and muttered softly, evil demons. Chang Li stretched out her hand uncourteously and pinched the darling's cheek, then she shot her gaze towards Wen Shulin. Wen Shulin put on a long face as he shook his head. I did not manage to calculate any useful results this was the ending cave when Xu Lin did not stop occupying himself all these while but he could only move about within the self-defense prohibition spell set up by Chang Li. Chang Li did not trouble him, she pointed to the stone tower and said, the stone tower is already subdued, it will never release demon seeds to harm others, you can start calculating now. As she was saying that, she stretched out her hand and fanned herself strenuously, it is too suffocating in here. Is it true that the cultivation world is currently gathered on the goddess peak? Fei Fei and Wen Leong gazed into the eyes of one another out of concern. If Chang Li planned to visit the goddess peak for relaxation then someone in that group of cultivators would be in unfortunate trouble. Xiao Sha immediately nodded. Chang Li's face regained her prior peculiar and mischievous expression, then why are we not leaving yet? Upon saying that, she was about to leave when Kone Nail grabbed her and looked towards Xiao Sha smilingly, I heard that you know how to disguise people's appearance. Chang Li was immediately elated. The misery and sadness she was in were washed away into nothingness immediately, it is only exciting if the people cannot recognize us. When Xu Lin had already started making arrangements to start calculating in order to decipher the secret of the big flat cake, broken gong and dog so that they could possibly deal with Tian Yin. Only after they were confident in dealing with Tian Yin, they could find out the whereabouts of Tuo Xie. This was an urgent and important matter for the old man, so the golden monkey Qian Ren spoke to the rest, Qin Zhui has not woken up, I shall stay behind first, leave this old man to me. Upon saying that, the monkey's mouth widened into a laugh, if that a Tian Yin. If Tian Yin was to come then the old father will bring along the two persons and run so he can never catch up to us. Xiao Sha patted on each and every person's face including Chang Li, Kone Nail, Wen Leong and the Darling in fear. In a flash, everyone's appearance transformed. Chang Li and Kone Nail each flipped out a small mirror. After looking at their reflections, their faces filled with joy as they praised Xiao Sha continuously. As Xiao Sha realized that he was still alive, he heaved a sigh of relief. When he was patting on Fei Fei's face, he chuckled to himself secretively, I have managed to slap all the top demon immortals in the world. Fei Fei laughed. She was patted by Xiao Sha into a breathtaking beauty. When Leon carried Fei Fei on his back, Kone Nail carried Xiaowu, Chang Li was empty-handed, the five persons moved as swift as the winds and rushed in the direction of the goddess peak. Xiao Sha put on a long face as he hiked up the rough terrain of the huge mountain strenuously step by step. The five persons walked exceedingly fast, it did not take long before they arrived on the goddess peak. The moment when Leong arrived at the peak, he could only feel his brain humming. It was a chaotic mess. A large group of rogue cultivators spoke with their saliva spluttering everywhere, everything sounded like a mess. There was no way he could tell what they were debating about. There were a good amount of old acquaintances amongst them but there were even more of them that he did not know. When Liang's entourage was disguised by Xiao Sha. Even they could not recognize themselves, so no one paid too much attention to them either. There were a lot of cultivators that arrived late, they came and left in an endless stream towards the mountain. 
Some had just arrived on the mountain and were still unaware of the situation, yet they immediately joined into the quarrel. Some of them hastily looked for their acquaintances while some of them squinted their eyes to secretly stare at their own enemies. Ji Fei and Shui Jing stood on the largest and most striking piece of rock piteously. They continuously shouted loudly but no one that listened to their announcement. The Great Mercy Temple, One Word Palace, Lu Zheng and Rang Yong, who was leading the Highland Cultivators, were chatting and laughing softly in groups, completely disregarding the situation that was taking place before their eyes. Chang Li and Kone Nail were beaming with joy. They pulled along when Leong and urged continuously, Quick! Let us explore. What are they fighting about actually? Following that, she pointed to the direction where the disciples of the Great Mercy Temple were standing and reminded, Do not look for them, do not let them know that we are here. When Leung brought along the three young girls and a little darling as they went through the crowd of people. They continuously looked for others to inquire but the people on the mountain peak were either engrossed in the quarrel or sneering and did not speak. No one would acknowledge them. When Leung was initially afraid that Kone Nail or Chang Li would be infuriated and kill someone, yet unexpectedly the two demon immortals were still lit up with delight. They were still exceedingly happy despite being rejected over and over again by the others. The rogue cultivators that were quarreling were infuriated, their voices grew louder and braver but they were speaking in different dialects. Those dialects were all mountain and village slang, when Leong could not figure out what they were saying. Fei Fei could not help but laugh softly, this is so noisy, do they even know what are they quarreling about? When Leong did not know who should he talk to when the vision before his eyes suddenly brightened, he could not help but laugh. Perhaps the Red Grand Aunt was at Wen Buzwa, or the Jade Knife Guohuan Standard, but, amongst Wen Leong's acquaintances, she was considered the most talkative one. The first time when Leong left the mountain to Mountame and traveled together with the rogue cultivator companions, Red Grand Aunt almost did not stop talking during the entire journey. Red Grand Aunt still appeared the same as before. Her face was slathered with rouge and white powder. At first glance, she appeared as if she came out from the Zitza offerings shop. She was standing together with three old men, her arms were waving around and her expression aroused, first brother, second brother, fourth brother, the older the three of you get the more confused you have become. This disturbance arose in a violent and urgent manner Red Grand Aunt cultivated in the Hebei provinces, her accent deviated towards the local dialect of Beijing, yet when Leong could understand her clearly. He was surprised as he did not expect that Red Grand Aunt had brothers too. Fei Fei could see through Wen Leong's thoughts with one glance, she chuckled as she explained to him, Red Grand Aunt had four siblings, they each started their own faction. Their influence was never weak. Red Grand Aunt could achieve an esteemed position amongst the rogue cultivators not just because her personal cultivation base was remarkable, it was also related to her two elder brothers and a younger brother. When Leong pondered attentively, he had never seen the other three old men. They had not participated in the Battle of Mount Ame. Their appearances were actually rather similar to Red Grand Ant but their physiques were unusually large. The eldest old man was tall and fat, his face was filled with fatty flesh. His neck was thicker than an ordinary person's head. The old man standing in the middle was short and stout, his eyes were squinted. The one who appeared the youngest had a moderate physique, he was not considered too tall but he was unusually sturdy. There was a gush of hardcore disposition between every movement of his. Fei Fei was quick-witted, she intentionally spoke louder. As expected, the four old man turned around and looked towards Fei Fei in unison. Before Red Grand Aunt could speak, the fattest old man could not refrain himself but to ask, the few of you are common people. Fei Fei was a genuine common person. As the other four persons each possessed exceedingly high cultivation base, Red Grand Aunt could not tell with her eyes. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Red Grand Aunt pouted her dried lips, she stretched out her hand and pointed to Wen Leong as she spoke to the others, I know a young lad. He was also about the size of this boy, he appeared to be a mortal person but he was an equal match to the supreme leader ZK of Jilong sect. He even seized the supreme leader's treasured weapon. The big fat old man interrupted her impatiently, you have repeated this at least eighty times. Following that he widened his cow eyes as he looked at Fei Fei, so you know our origins. 
why don't you tell us more about that? Fei Fei smiled gracefully, her pronunciation was crisp and clear as she answered, Sir Pig from east of Shanhaiguan's Pig Killing Ridge. First Brother Cat from Hunan Sycophant Cat Valley, Red Grand Ant from Hebei's Little Red River, Sir Army from West Shangxi's Breach Army Mountain. No one has never heard about the pig, cat, red and army in the cultivation world, they are the true heroes and warriors, the renowned family in the cultivation world. The four persons of pig, cat, red and army were the stronghold amongst rogue cultivators. On usual days, wherever they go they were respected by rogue cultivators but when the same statement that came out from the mouth of a common person. Especially when it was a young maiden with bright eyes and white teeth, it felt completely different. They were each bursting with joy and nodded smilingly. Fei Fei immediately continued and asked, What are all these seniors quarreling about? We have just arrived here, we did not manage to inquire about the situation. Grandfather Pig was even more talkative than his sister Red Grand Aunt, he stretched out his hand and pointed towards Ji Fei and Shui Jing who were bawling aloud on top of the giant rock. Those two fellows are unaware of their own limitation, they wanted to become the leaders of the rogue cultivators. Before he could finish his sentence, Red Grand Aunt shook her head and interrupted, Ji Fei and Shui Jing are albeit rather strange in their conduct, their behaviors were exceedingly good. When I was trapped in the Great Mercy Temple, they rushed over to rescue me, ha, I did not see any of you came rushing over at the time. First Brother Cat gave an unpleasant humph, his voice was sharp and soft, before we rush over to your aid, you have already been rescued by them. I have never agreed for you to go back do you think that Mount Amei is a good place for you to provoke her? Sir Army frowned as he diverted the topic, they saved third sister's life, we will definitely bear this favor but this debt of gratitude we cannot repay here. Let alone us, pig, cat, red and army, this stunt is not something that Ji Fei and Shui Jing are capable of pulling through. Speaking of the painting town, whether it is their treatment to our family's first ancestors, or our siblings a few years ago, they were kind beyond words. However, if we were to declare Ji Fei and Shui Jing as our leaders, then it will make us seem a little undependable. Sir Pig's face was filled with rage, fourth brother, your statement made us brothers sound like the painting town slaves. The painting town did treat us kindly but we did not sell. Red Grand Aunt stomped her foot impatiently, both Ji Fei and Shui Jing are trying to become the great virtue, they are not related to the first well-known family of the rogue cultivators that is the painting town. Most importantly, right behind Ji Fei and Shui Jing's back, there is the one family of Nine Peaks Mountain. With such a banner as their defense, which sect from the right or evil path of cultivation dares to attack the rogue cultivators. The quarrel between these four siblings was just the epitome of the entire goddess peak. When Leong finally understood, people on the goddess peak, who quarreled into a chaotic mess, were just like these four siblings. Their topic was the same. It was a debate on the battle between the right and evil path of cultivation, the painting town's residual favors, Ji Fei and Shui Jing's feigned loyalty in the past and one family's background etc. Especially last night, the world sect suddenly spread out the information that they were only respectful to the one family of Nine Peaks Mountain. They carried absolutely no intention to become enemies with the one family the Rainbow Brothers albeit lost their memories, they still remembered Chongli. After Wen Buzwa's extortion, they immediately spread out this information, which lifted the Nine Peak Mountain status by a large portion invisibly. In the eyes of the ordinary cultivators, the Wen family they had already become the most mysterious family. They had the protection of the Great Mercy Temple in the right path, the four great sects in the evil path had clearly displayed their submission. When Ji Fei and Shui Jing organized a meeting, even the one word palace that was gradually living in seclusion and the Kunlun sect that moved its sect and disappeared rushed over obediently. The Jilong sect that had once created trouble in the Nine Peaks Mountain could only retreat into seclusion and seal their mountain. Fei Fei raised her gaze and looked in all direction. She spoke to Wen Leong softly. Those that are quarreling loudly should be the rogue cultivators but it is also possible that there are some people from the world sect that are chiming in when Leong nodded. The rogue cultivators called themselves free and unfettered that they had no concern over worldly affairs and dispute. However, as long as one was living in the world, as long one could not stand loneliness, one could never free oneself from the world. 
Even though there was no real dispute that had happened between the right and evil path, the dark tide, in the beginning, had already surged onto the surface of the sea. It was slowly and faintly brewing into a billow, the world's sex master cultivators were oppressed by the right path for millenniums, they had been waiting for this exact moment. When the Five Blessings was formed millenniums ago, the painting town led the rogue cultivators. In reality, they had already leaned towards the right path. When the fierce battle was already approaching at that moment, by the time the master cultivators of the right and evil path each displayed their actual powers that were hidden in the closet. The rogue cultivators were trapped between two parties with no way out, they would certainly need to choose a camp. Even though they wanted to retreat completely and keep out of the affair, they refused to disgrace their reputation, for this form of fortunate event was not served to everyone. Ji Fei and Shui Jing's reputation was quite bad primarily. If only they could mingle around until they were like the status of old man Gonya, giant bull or the pig, cat, red, army, they would only need to shake their arms once and the crowd would succumb. After all, the rogue cultivators still possessed some wild and intractable temperament. The moment they thought of how they would need to welcome Ji Fei and Shui Jing with smiling face hereafter and address them as the great virtue, they felt like their blood was flowing back into their hearts. Other than this, there was another issue. The Wen family appeared to be enshrouded in mystery. The right and evil path of cultivation kept clear from them. However, whether they were capable of protecting the crowd, no one felt that they were reliable. A thousand years ago, the right heaven path was the leader amongst the right path of cultivation and was all-powerful. Their master cultivators were as high as the clouds in the sky but in the end, they still ended up in a crumble and not even a crushed stone was left. Fei Fei continued, the people who were hiding aside, other than the right path of five blessings and the sex under their commands, there were others too I cannot tell their exact details. As she was saying that, she used her finger and pointed to the edge secretly, judging by their appearance, they are all waiting, they look rather excited. When Le Young's gaze followed Fei Fei's finger, he looked towards the people who were dressed as cultivators, some were grouped and partners. Some were solitary and lonesome, most of their expressions were rather dull, some even seemed disgusted and impatient. The two great virtue were covered with sweat. When they started the meeting this morning, it was still fine in the beginning. The crowd was listening to them patiently and occasionally someone laughed and jeered. But when they revealed the fox's tail as they mentioned faintly that they hoped that the crowd would grant the both of them a status, the nightmare-like noises started. They watched helplessly as the crowd quarreled louder and fiercer. As the crowd seemed like it was about to fight in a while or leave after the quarrel, Ji Fei was anxious and furious. He jumped down from the giant rock and gave a forced laugh to the big and small demon rabbits who were kindest to himself, the two divine monks please speak of a few words on behalf of us. The small demon rabbit Shan Duan could not reject Ji Fei, so he gave a forced laugh and shook his head. He took a few steps forward, raised his voice and spoke slowly, Fellow divine immortals please calm down and listen to my word Shan Duan's voice was serene yet loud, firmly echoing into everyone's ears on the scene. With only a word or two, he had already pinned down the noises of thousands of rogue cultivators firmly. Before he could finish his sentence, the uproar of messy noises was heard. The rogue cultivators continued to raise their voices and quarrel. That rapidly covered Shan Duan's voice, the entire goddess peak was akin to a boiling pot of water, when Leong even felt that there were countless headless large flies that opened up their wings and dogged everywhere next to his ears. He continuously stretched out his hand and flicked the medicinal powder that refreshed and nourished the heart into Fei Fei and Xiaowu's nostrils. The small demon rabbit Shan Duan was startled. He did not expect that the moment he spoke he became the oil that was poured onto the fire, he inhaled a deep breath as he spoke once again. His voice was already enshrouded with the supernatural power of Buddhism sex Sanskrit incantation but this portion of supernatural power that was enough to scatter the rogue cultivators on usual days. When it was delivered to the crowd, it was completely ineffective to his surprise. Not only that, some of the cultivators that were standing aside and watching the bustling scene, seemed to be infected by the ambience. They started walking in groups of twos and threes into the crowd and they started to join the quarrel. It did not take long before more and more people participated in the quarrel, there were even some small sects from the right path of cultivation that took part as well. 
The rogue cultivators' faces were flushed, green veins popped out of their foreheads, they had utterly entered the state and forget about themselves. Let alone the small demon rabbit Sanskrit incantation, it was afraid that even the god's punishment and divine thunder were to suddenly strike onto the goddess peak could not stop them from quarreling. Cone Nail and Chong Li frowned, they gazed into the eyes of one another. Fei Fei furrowed her brows as she spoke to Wen Leong softly, something is wrong. Wen Leong had yet to answer to her, little Chi Maojiao who had been standing in the Five Blessings leader troop all along suddenly leaped up. He squalled at his own people, someone is casting a witchcraft spell, it is the villain's blow. As he was speaking, he somersaulted to the front of the giant rock that Ji Fei was standing on earlier. Just as he was about to make a move, that little house-like giant rock underneath his feet turned into a pile of soft and mushy mud. At the sound of a th pop, an air bubble popped and swallowed little Chi Maojiao in a flash. Immediately, it returned to its prior state. The people standing behind little Chi Maojiao's back were all the famous master cultivators in the right path of five blessings, they were all shocked. One by one shouted as they were about to crush the rock to rescue Chi Maojiao when second mother stretched out her hand and stopped them. Her expression valiant and heroic bearing, this requires the skill of witchcraft, let the little boy handle this himself. The large group of cultivators did not react to the situation that had just taken place. They continued to quarrel noisily, they saw that there were already some people that had started waving their arms and legs about. The expressions on their faces became gradually ferocious, Fei Fei seemed to be a little restless, her breathing sounded more and more rapid, yet her face turned ghastly pale. Cone Nail raised her hand leisurely and dipped in between Fei Fei's brows gently, a drop of crystal clear water droplet melted into her skin visible to the naked eyes. Fei Fei's body shook once, there was confusion in her expression, she was awakened after a moment. Not long after the giant rock swallowed little Chi Maojiao, it startled trembling. After the crisp sound of cracking was heard, the rock's surface was covered with dense fissures, tufts upon tufts of grass grew out of the fissures strenuously. The grass grew sturdier, the roots also expanded the fissures on the rock. Finally, with a muffled bang, the giant rock was squeezed into pieces by the thousands of little grass that grew out from within forcefully. Little Chi Maojiao broke out of the rock, he stretched out his hand and summoned. His witch's fire appeared before himself. When Leon who had been focusing at little Chi Maojiao could not help but be astonished, this was the first time he had seen Chi Maojiao triggered the witch's fire ever since the one, Miao and Luo's three arts fused into one. Chi Maojiao's witch fire was flowing with hundreds of dark red-colored fiery butterflies that were fluttering and encircling his body. Chi Maojiao babbled and hummed a tune in his mouth, his arms and legs moved and danced. In the midst of the red fiery butterflies, he slowly displayed the Qin Miao witch's play. The little grass that grew out of the rock too followed along and swayed enchantingly, that appeared like the snake that was being charmed. The babbling sound of his singing gradually grew louder with the witch's play by Qi Maojiao and gradually grew sharper. However, little Qi Maojiao seemed to have suddenly recalled something, he suddenly waved his hand as he put away his vital fire. He heaved a sigh and said in a mischievous tone, I cannot fight you but I cannot watch them getting harmed by the villain's blow anyhow. Pop! Suddenly, an extremely sharp noise could be heard. The sound was akin to the magnified sound of two glass cups bumping into each other until shattered. It erupted ferociously in midair. The cultivators, who were quarreling noisily and had already lost their minds, were all stunned. They closed their mouths in unison and woke up, their gaze was filled with confusion and also fear. A sound of polite laughter could be heard as the short man Leon Wen walked out of the other mountain rock as if he was performing conjuring tricks. His gaze swept past the cultivators that had just been cast by his witchcraft spell, he laughed and spoke with a fluent Beijing accent. The painting town has been taking care of everyone, the sirs like to quarrel, so we ought to hastily arrange for that, ought we not? Chapter 250 The short man Leon Wen still looked the same as before. He was wearing a black-colored attire. A small pouch was tucked underneath his armpit. The familiar self-inviting smile still hung on his face. His gaze swept past the entire scene and finally fell onto little Chi Maojiao's body. The cultivators, who were quarreling in a noisy mess, were slightly dumbstruck. 
a sense of confusion arose on everybody's face. They seemed to fail to recall what had just happened amongst them. Fei Fei described her sensation to Wen Leong softly, first, the people around me that were quarreling continuously, they were noisy and messy. Following that, a series of tune that was akin to being played with swown a horn or hummed out of a nose started echoing in my mind. I felt angry and agitated, I wished that I could dash into the crowd and quarrel to make myself feel better. Chong Li raised her charming brows, this is the art of witchcraft. It is known as the villain's blow. Upon saying that she paused for a while, she nodded solemnly, the person with the surname Leong is capable of launching this as he is considered rather remarkable. Fei Fei studied Chang Li's expression closely and laughed. She did not act courteously to the Grand Master, you heard that from little Chi Maojo earlier, didn't you? Chang Li gave out an oh no as she sniggered. There was no way she could lie before Fei Fei. The few people laughed. Kone Nail laughed in an especially joyous manner. She pulled Fei Fei into her arms, her face was filled with affection, there were so many cultivators who were affected by the witchcraft earlier, you lasted longer than any of them. Fei Fei did not wait for Kone Nail to finish speaking before she understood Kone Nail's meaning, I specialize in psychoanalysis and mental control. Ordinary witchcraft spell is not too effective on me. The few people were whispering to one another in the corner when the short man had already walked towards little Chi Maojo. Chi Maojo walked over in quick strides and saluted him with a bow, pleasure to meet you Sir Leon. The three Tuasia's disciple lineages of Wan, Miao, Luo were already aware of the painting town's doings for the past two thousand years. When little Chi Maojo broke out of the rock, he had already realized who the culprit was through the culprit's method of launching the witchcraft spell. He tried to point it out but he refused to directly attack and break Leon Wen's art of witchcraft. Leon Wen sized the one-armed Miao youth before his eyes attentively. His gaze was glimmering. Chi Maojo laughed in an unusually calm manner. He stretched out his lone hand and pointed to the large group of cultivators before his eyes, supposedly, if you wish to kill all of them, I could only help you, however as he was saying that, Chi Maojo heaved a sigh. Ji Fei and Shui Jing once committed an exceedingly huge favor to me at the Seven Maidens Mountain, I dared not break the Sir's witchcraft spell but I could not just let these people continue to quarrel. Hence, I spoke up. If you were to take off and see go ahead. Leon Wen returned to his usual mannerism at this point. He stretched out his hand and patted on Chi Mao Jiu's shoulder, as he chuckled, I saw that they were quarreling so joyously, I became too excited that was why I launched an attack to join the crowd. I had never thought of killing anyone, let alone so many of them. The painting town's superb artistry supernatural power was known by the world. However, other than a limited amount of people, including Wen Leong, the people in the cultivation world did not know that the Leong disciples were experts in witchcraft spells. The moment the short man was done speaking, the rogue cultivators broke out in an uproar. It was only then they realized that Leong Wan cast witchcraft on them without their notice. People who were easily infuriated had broken out in curses at Leong Wan immediately. There were also some rogue cultivators who kept their silences due to the previous relationship with the Leong family. They felt very uneasy in their hearts. As quarreling would not necessarily happen between two enemies, especially when this group of rogue cultivators, who were considerably straightforward and cared about gratitude and enmity. If they were to dislike one another, they would never stand together. Most of the quarrels earlier were just quarrels amongst the siblings of Pig, Cat, Red and Army. They occurred among their own people but once they lost control of their emotions and launch an attack, then their closest people would be harmed. At this moment, the three-inch nail when Bushuo suddenly dashed rapidly into the crowd. He moved as swift as a ghost, soon after, the crisp sound of crackling was heard continuously. A dozen people, who were cursing at Leong Wan, were slapped by Wen Bushuo until they were knocked out directly. Simultaneously, when Buzwa took a step forward and blocked before Leong Wan, he roared loudly in a righteous manner, as long as the Wan family is here, no one is allowed to disrespect Sir Leong. Even when Wen Buzwa was having a stern expression, his eyes were still glimmering with a maniacal glow, anyone could not help but tighten his fist after glancing at him. The siblings Bushuo and Buzwa recently almost died from forcefully fusing three arts cultivation into one, 
yet, they received the blessing in disguise when Chongli forged their meridians. They had officially stepped into the cultivator's state. Moreover, under Chang Li's intentional assistance, the siblings' abilities were truly much stronger than the ordinary cultivators. As when Bu Shuo strolled amongst the rogue cultivators, those that were slapped by him would certainly respond with an agonizing scream. The second mother glared at little Chi Maojiu out of dissatisfaction, she reminded him gently, feel free to kill anyone who dares to scold the painting town, don't just stand there like a fool. Let alone Chang Li, even the rogue cultivators were clearly confused, the Wen family and the Miao clansmen were obviously invited by Ji Fei and Shui Jing for support and Leong Wen was obviously here to create trouble. Little Chi Maojiu was the one whom first broke Leong Wen's art of witchcraft, yet he was trying so hard to defend Leong Wen with the people from Wen family. On the other hand, the painting town's Leong Wen was stunned. His natural endowments were far less than Leong Tian, who died in the painting town. He did not cultivate in the art of witchcraft since young and lost a great deal of the witchcraft power he inherited. It was afraid that he could never return the painting town's glory and power in the raging cultivation world. After he sent fifth brother Hanba to the corpse forming land, he refused to go home but wandered leisurely everywhere. After he learned of the meeting on Mount Hua's goddess peak, he could not suppress his curiosity and came over to take a look. There was no mention of the painting town during the meeting but most people had already assumed in their hearts that the meeting was actually meant for re-electing the new leader of the rogue cultivators and the newly re-elected leader would be closely connected to the one family. Even though there was the element of exploitation, the painting town truly helped the rogue cultivators in many tasks for the past 2000 years. Leon Wen was driven to madness and held extreme views. In his point of view, it was only through those rogue cultivators' contemptuous attitude towards Ji Fei and Shui Jing, they were worthy of the painting town's care for them for generations. He watched as these rogue cultivators were quarreling louder and more indecisive than ever, Leon Wen became infuriated in his heart. Hence, he launched the witchcraft spell but he truly did not attempt to let these people kill each other. He only attempted to teach them a lesson, such then they would not despise the painting town anymore. However, ever since he revealed himself, the people who were defending him were all Tuasye's disciples. Chan Li could not help but snigger, she gave Wen Leong an evil stare, your Wen family's method of dealing with affairs is always to make a mess no matter where you go. Kone Nail frowned slightly, it was unknown since when her face had already turned a little pale, she spoke to Wen Leong softly, the short man's father is killed by me. When Leong heaved a sigh, he did not know what to say either. The three-inch nail when Bushuo was akin to being in a place where there was no one, he flashed past amongst the rogue cultivators as swift as electric. After a series of slaps was delivered, he had already returned to the front of the painting town's gentleman, he stood side by side with his elder brother. One of them was tall while the other was short. Akin to two door gods, they protected Leon Wen behind their backs. When Buzwa peered at his cool brother in appraisal, the evil smile returned to his face. He stretched his finger and pointed towards the people who had just fallen onto the ground from the slaps, he shouted towards the rogue cultivators who were still in shock, look closely. Disrespect the painting to no no. He was halfway through his speech when the rogue cultivators gave out a loud shout in unison. Their array of treasured weapons roared into the air in a mess, almost covered the entire sky and crashed towards the two siblings. With only three hundred rogue cultivators, they dared to ascend Mount Amei to create troubles. As there were thousands of rogue cultivators, each and everyone's face was burning fiercely. Especially when the people who attacked them were not some famous master cultivators, they were just two small dwarfs that no one had ever heard of. The siblings Bushuo and Buzwa were petrified. It was true that the two brothers remolded their foundation establishment and life vitality but they did not possess any supernatural powers. They were still adopting the one family's martial art when they struck and fought, how could they deal with so many treasured weapons that covered the sky? Let alone the both of them, even when Leon who did not practice magic art could not resist that. Leon Wen was just half a footstep away from Bushuo and Buzwa, he watched as soon as the countless treasured weapons were about to crash onto him he only managed to scream once under his perplexed mind. His hands turned over and he was about to conjure his supernatural power to resist. Unexpectedly, Bushuo and Buzwa were rather loyal, after they squalled, 
they abruptly turned over their bodies, one of them held Leong Wen. While the other grabbed little Chi Maojiu as they spread their legs and dove into the crowd of five blessings cultivators. The Buddha protective spell. The old demon Bulu took a step forward, he crossed his wrists and formed the Buddhism sex Dharma Chakra Madra that bloomed into a puff of dazzling light in the sky abruptly. Three golden dragons' godly appearances spun around triumphantly and shot towards the treasured weapons in the sky as fast as lightning. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng and the head Lama Rangyong stood side by side and firmly grabbed hold of four unfortunate lads that had escaped in fear. In the sky, countless rogue cultivators treasured weapons, the Buddhism sex protective golden dragon and the Kunlun sex sword shield glimmered in colors. They were about to crash into the treasured weapon in a loud bang when suddenly an owl-like howl echoed without a sign. An old woman with a bent back rushed all the way from the foothill and used her body to block against two gushes of mighty torrent converged from the treasured weapons and supernatural powers to everyone's surprise. The old woman's movements were swift beyond imagination. Her arms were spinning around in midair as if she was pumping air. Whether it was the treasured weapons, flying swords, the supernatural powers summoned from magic conjuration spell or the spiritual beasts released by the cultivators, she grabbed and placed everything onto the surface on the ground one by one. In a flash, the sky was akin to rain, all sorts of treasured weapons that lost its shine dropped onto the ground in a splutter. The three golden dragons that were summoned by the old demon rabbit were torn apart by her in the blink of an eye. The dragons dissolved into smoke and golden light with an unwilling and raging roar and were blown away by the wind soon. The situation took place in less than a moment. The supernatural powers that were overbearing and imposing earlier were surprisingly torn away by this old woman here. Other than Chong Li and Cone Nail who were sneering, almost everybody else widened their mouth in astonishment, they dared not believe everything that was taking place before their eyes. Chong Li observed the expressions of the people around her then she bumped Cone Nail secretively, the two top demon immortals too hastily followed and widened their mouth dully. Even though the rogue cultivator's cultivation base was unequal in level, every single treasured weapons were hard enough to pierce through metal and cracked stones. Moreover, there were also a few good hands like the pig, cat, red, army amongst them. Needless to say, the old woman managed to block the golden dragon's godly appearances that were summoned by the old monk even. Terrifyingly, she managed to block the thousands of treasured weapons and supernatural powers that arrived almost simultaneously. Some were large as giant dragons and some were fine as bovine hair that was difficult to distinguish with naked eyes. Every single weapon was grabbed by her and tossed down without exception. The old woman jumped to the ground. She coughed softly as her murky gaze finally landed on Ji Fei and Shui Jing's faces. At the sound of a thud, Ji Fei and Shui Jing fell and sat onto the ground, they sat on Wen Butsao's domineering influence. The old woman spoke with a voice that sounded even less pleasant than a crow that cried so hard its throat turned hoarse, all the immortal families, the old woman salutes you. She mentioned that she was saluting but her body did not even move once, it is only because an imminent disaster is upon us, the cultivators in the world are in a life and death situation. That is why the old woman took the liberty to display her skills, she hopes that everyone is magnanimous enough to forgive her. The mountain peak still remained silent, no one chimed in. The old woman seemed to have smiled for a while, she pointed to the treasured weapons on the ground, everyone please retrieve your immortal tools. It was until this point that the rogue cultivators reacted to the situation. They were uninjured despite their treasured weapons were struck, the primordial spirit in their treasured weapons was completely unscathed. The old woman had only depleted the power on the treasured weapons, her level of attainment was controlled into perfection. When Leon could not stand anymore, he used an inquiring gaze as he looked towards Kong Nail and Chang Li. The two demon immortals simultaneously made the same arrogant expression, they spoke to him using the secret voice transmission, she is only intentionally showing off, there is nothing remarkable about that. When Leon could pick up a tinge of jealousy in their voices, he felt even less sturdy in his heart. The old woman shocked everybody the moment she made an opening move, even a fool could tell that she was intentionally showing off. Such a top master cultivator that lived in seclusion like her came to Mount Hua. Of course, it was not because she was fighting for the great virtues position. Everyone shifted their gaze towards Ji Fei and Shui Jing. 
After all the meeting was hosted by the both of them, the task of interrogating the old woman, which had an exceedingly high danger index, could only be done by the both of them. Ji Fei took a step forward desperately. His expression was beyond devoted, one could only see this expression on his face when he was serving Chang Li in the past. He spoke in a respectful tone, the old immortal ant's cultivation base is exceedingly high, you are capable of averting a tragedy in the cultivation world in between your moves, and even harder to come by is your grand woman's merciful heart. For us these good-for-nothing junior generations, you are willing to travel a great distance and rush over to Mount Hua, Ji Fei's opportunity today to look up to your immortal appearance is worth my lifetime's cultivation base. Will the old immortal ant please receive my salutation? Shui Jing stood behind Ji Fei. Shui Jing chanted Amit Ba and followed along the old monk as they knelt down on the ground and bowed to her together. The old woman zoomed past, she was attempting to dodge these two monks' salutation. Ji Fei and Shui Jing immediately exerted strength on their heels, their heads spun around with the old woman's movement. They insisted to continue the salutation no matter what when Ji Fei raised his head once again, his face was filled with excitement and also admiration. There was also a sense of heartfelt joy on his face too. Whether it was the rogue cultivators, the right path or the world sect, the crowd was cursing in their hearts, for no one had expected that the old monk Ji Fei would avoid talking business but give a huge salute and a series of flattery. Judging by their expression, as soon as the old woman nodded, they would immediately follow her and leave. The old monk Ji Fei was rather involved himself, his voice was trembling as he asked the old woman, Will the old immortal ant please present your immortal sect? So that the junior generation can know which immortal's lineage and spiritual land is capable of cultivating such an immortal personage like you into mastery. Upon saying that, the old monk looked towards the old woman with his face filled with longing as he waited for her answer. A gush of hoarse and violent laughter echoed from the foothill suddenly, Little monk, let me guide you. The person before your eyes is Grandmother Shidu from Star Reef that is located 450 kilometers from the South China Sea. In the midst of his wild laughter, an old man glowing in red radiance had already jumped onto the mountain. The moment he arrived on the mountain peak, everybody felt as their entire body was burning as if the thing that had just jumped onto the mountain was not an old man, but a large furnace. The old monk was still considering if he should continue to flatter the old woman or turn to flatter the old man when a voice that sounded rusty and made the listener wanted to pull out his tongue and polished it on a pumice echoed. There was a metal clanking intent within the hoarse voice, which echoed in layers of the huge mountains, little monk. Let me guide you, the person before your eyes is the Taoist master Bao Ri from the sky-rubbing cliff of Mount Lao, East China Sea. The cultivators who were standing on the edge of the mountain peak were rather self-conscious. They immediately jumped aside with the sound of a rustle. As expected, when the voice stopped, a middle-aged man, who had his yellow exposed skin covered in black metal rust, entered the mountain. The third voice arrived in quick succession, it was a crisp and clear female voice that was panting a little, as if the act of hiking the mountain was too tiring. Yet, she was unwilling to keep her silence, little monk, let me guide you once again, the person before your eyes is Sir Rust from the Chilean mountains. Soon after a gush of scented wind floated on the mountain peak, everyone felt as the vision before his eyes darkened. A young woman had jumped up, she was wearing a large red-colored coat and when she walked the fat rolls on her body shook and rustled. The Rainbow Brothers were already the extraordinarily fat men in the mortal world but, as compared to this young woman before their eyes, they could only be described as slim. The four persons who ascended the mountain in succession laughed aloud upon meeting each other. They acted as if they were old friends that had not seen each other in years. The old monk Ji Fei was guided thrice by the other party. He did not know what to say, his mouth was agape in astonishment as he stood absent-mindedly there. On the contrary, it was when Buzwa, who had a maniacal smile on his face, as he casually asked the last fat woman who ascended the mountain, immortal aunt, why don't you guide me too? how may I address your grand old woman? The moment when Buzwa spoke, the fat woman immediately smiled at him, I am Ji Budo from the red base cave of Changbai Mountains. They call me the hot immortal aunt, you can address me as, sister. As she was saying that, her eyes were lustful as she winked at Wenbuzwa. Wenbuzwa could even feel that goosebumps erupting on his tongue, he forcefully swallowed back the questions that he was about to ask. 
The name of G. Budo formed a pleasing contrast with the siblings Bushuo and Buzwa's names. The four persons, who ascended the mountain completely, disregarded everybody else. They made small talks and laughed to their own pleasure. It was apparent that they were of the same status and position. It was estimated that their cultivation base and supernatural power was almost the same too. Not only when Leon but almost everybody else was feeling a little terrified, since when did these four monsters pop out under the heaven? If they were to participate in the battle of right and evil, then no family was capable of protecting the rogue cultivators who only wanted to keep out of the affair. The fat woman hot immortal aunt asked the other three people with her crisp and sharp voice, where is Xiao Sang, why is he not here? The rest of the three persons shook their heads, the red-faced Taoist master Bao Ri frowned, that young lad is always lingering here and there, who knows if he would appear right now. The fat woman shook her head, we have already agreed on this, he should be coming here, perhaps he is held up on the way. Before she could finish her sentence, she was interrupted by the old man Bao Ri, who is capable of holding him up. Heha, <laughs> or else, we will need to trouble the Ji family's sister, to visit the great drum pit and capture this young lad from his lair. His choice of words was enigmatic, while his tone of speaking was penetrating with a gush of an insensible smile. The fat woman's face turned into a red cloth, every single piece of her fat flesh on her entire body was shaking. She forcefully feigned the shy look on her face that was covered in oil as she spoke affectionately, Mount Hung is too far away, I cannot walk that far. Grandmother Shudu waved her hand and interrupted them. She diverted the topic and she looked towards Bao Ri as she spoke, you have invited us all the way from a great distance, yet you have never invited Wu Dudu on Mount Hua's territory, whose idea is this. Bao Ri acted much more sensibly towards the old woman. He shook his head sternly, old Wu is charged with an important task, even though he is within a stone's throw away, it is best that we do not startle him first. Kohn Nail's expression did not change but Chang Li's eyes brightened quietly, she gestured a nine at Wen Leong first, then she gestured a six. Wen Leong nodded gently, he was feeling beyond astonished in his heart. From the star reef that was located 450 kilometers from the South China Sea, the person with a bent body was Grandmother Shudu. From the sky-rubbing cliff of Mount Lao from the East China Sea, the red-faced old man Bao Ri. From the Chilean Mountain's gold-consuming lair. The middle-aged Sir Rust. From the red base cave of Changbai Mountains, the fat woman hot immortal ant. In addition to the people who they mentioned, there were Xiao Sang from the great drum pit of Mount Hung, Wu Dudu from Mount Hua. When Wen Shu Lin was under Tian Yin's detainment, he calculated nine locations, the six locations firmly matched those places at this moment. It was quite unlikely that everything was just a coincidence. If these people before his eyes were truly related to the nine locations where Wen Shu Lin calculated, then what was their relationship to Xiang Lu? What was their relationship to the monkey Qian Ren? Six of the nine locations were involved, how about the other three locations? When Liang's mind was a complete mess, he had only felt this when he was taking the mathematics examination for his middle school certificate. Fei Fei also quietly procured her cell phone and sent a text message to Xiao Sha. The monkey Qian Ren was supposed to look for someone in Mount Heng's great drum pit, yet unexpectedly before he went over, the people who came to this place had mentioned of this location. Xiao Sha held his breath and rushed all the way, he had already left the deep mountain and hiked the goddess peak when he received the text message. He squalled in rage and turned around as he returned to warn the monkey Qian Ren. The old monk Ji Fei was trying to suppress his throbbing heartbeat with great effort. He was about to speak when the old demon rabbit's voice echoed from the side, these four persons' cultivation base are all too deep to be fathomable, be careful when you are dealing with them. Ji Fei's newly mustered courage was immediately melted away by the old demon rabbit's words. The old demon rabbit had only launched the esoteric skill of Buddhist voice when the four persons simultaneously turned around and looked at him. Grandmother should have sneered, speak frankly if you have anything to speak, there is no need to hide and cover. Following that, the old woman raised her head strenuously, she asked in slight puzzlement, Who is your family's grand master? Is he as competent as us? The old demon rabbit had yet to speak when when Buzwa smiled and continued the topic, My family's grand master is a famous personage, if there is an opportunity, his grand old man will certainly become fast friends with you. 
grandmother should no longer acknowledge them, she lowered her head as she walked to the side quietly. Her body was bent in an unusually severe manner, other than when she raised her head to speak, her old face was constantly facing the ground. The four monsters discussed amongst each other softly and finally, the old man Bao Ri, who came from Mount Lao of East China Sea, took a step forward. Everyone was initially waiting for them to speak. When they saw that someone finally walked out in the end, they shut their mouths and stopped speaking. Bao Ri's eyes rolled around, his gaze swept past everyone on the scene first, only then he smiled as if he was rather satisfied. He had utterly disregarded the presence of five blessings master cultivators as he spoke. The four of us are here to disturb you because we truly have our inevitable difficulties, we wish that our fellow cultivator friends can be magnanimous enough to forgive us. As he was saying that, his hands were folded and raised in front of his face, he gave two symbolic salutations, Grandmother Shudu's words earlier were truly a fact, at this moment, in the cultivation world imminent. Disaster. Is. Here. As the old man spoke the final four words, he suddenly emphasized his tone. When Leon could only feel as if a train zoomed past his ears, his brain was humming continuously from the aftershock. He discovered in surprise that he almost failed to resist the loud roar. To his surprise, Fei Fei did not faint. Judging by her expression, it seemed that she had the similar sensation as him. It was only then when Leon suddenly understood that the four words that were shouted from old man's mouth, the power of his voice traveled into each person's ears differently. It was based on the people's cultivation base on the scene, such that everyone was feeling the similar level of uneasiness. Chong Li's expression cooled down and Kone Nail's face had also regained her prior piteous appearance. Chapter 251 Anger flashed through the eyes of the majority of the cultivators. The old woman had already made an opening move when she first ascended the mountain. The old man was about to display his supernatural powers to awe the crowd right now. Even if they were to set down their prowess, there was no need for each person to display his or her powers individually. However, the disgusting pride on the old man's face suddenly vanished unexpectedly. In exchange, he had a solemn and stern expression now. He then folded his hands and raised them in front of his face to earnestly give a great salute to the cultivators once again which confused everyone all at once. After the old man had straightened his back, he then stretched out his hand and pointed to the other three monsters as he spoke steadily. Amongst these people here, anyone could be a sword immortal who had lived in solitary whose cultivation base can only be higher than an old fellow like me. This old fellow had acted continuously earlier not because I had intentionally wanted to show off my abilities but because this is an important and urgent matter. I wish to let our fellow cultivators understand that we are about to enter the mortal world and that in the world, there is truly a great disaster which is upon us. To those we may have disrespected, I hope that everybody will be magnanimous enough to forgive us. When peace and calm have returned to the world once again and if this old fellow is still alive, then I shall humbly apologize to everyone once again. In the span of a short moment, the old man had turned from a troublemaker who had been intoxicated by his small success into an erudite person from another realm who was respectable and virtuous. Fei Fei pouted slightly with the corners of her mouth, Bao Ri's tactic of saluting first and then declaring his righteousness was exceedingly remarkable. Anyone else would have been frightened and under normal circumstances, one could not help but look for excuses on one's behalf so that they would not accidentally provoke a strongman. The excuse that was most commonly used was to justify the actions of the strongman and place the other party's doings into the position of everything had its cause. He had acted disdainfully at first then commanded a deep reverence from the people. He had acted arrogantly and self-possessed at first and turned everybody else's fear of oneself into approval while maintaining one's composure. Such a trick was not something any person could adopt. Of course, the process of mood-inducing was built upon the foundations of this old man's great abilities. If Ji Fei and Shui Jing were to adopt this trick, they would soon have been torn apart by the rogue cultivators. As expected, the majority of the rogue cultivators bowed and returned the salutation one after another. They then started speaking courteously in a noisy manner. The old man Bao Ri smiled earnestly as he said, the few of us old monsters had stayed behind closed doors on usual days, that is why our fellow cultivators don't know who we are. However, I'll only need to mention a location and everyone will then understand. 
Bao Ri then paused and said these words steadily, the black and white island. There was an immediate uproar as the cultivators all erupted into chaos at once. Even the master cultivators from the righteous path of the five blessings could not refrain themselves anymore and started whispering to each other. On the other hand, the little supreme leader Lu Zhang's expression was very confused. Even though he understood that these four strange persons would somehow be related to Xiang Lu, when he heard the old man speaking about the black and white island personally, when Leong was still astonished in his heart. The old man Bao Ri retained the expression of elderly affection and benevolent justice on his face all the while. He started speaking once again when the hubbub died down, the few of us are closely connected to the black and white island. When put into words, you can even say that we are the disciples of Black and White Island and that is not considered a bluff. The old man suddenly laughed, and even less considered as nonsense. The majority of the rogue cultivators, like Giant Bull, were typically rough and impolite. When they realized that the old man had suddenly spoken in an impolite manner, most of them followed along and laughed as well and their favorable impression towards the old man Bao Ri grew stronger. Zhui Zi, who was standing right next to Wen Leong, moved her body ever so slightly but Chang Li was agile and quick as she grabbed Zhui Zi's wrist and shook her head gently. The old man Bao Ri's smile did not recede as he continued, the few of us had joined hands to ascend the mountain, we are here because of the matter concerning the black and white island. Two thousand years ago, a demon suppressing heaven's cone nail had been destroyed on the black and white island. The culprit was the demon cat Chang Li who had then been pursued by the junior brother disciples who had been guarding the formation. They chased her for a great distance but she had received protection from someone else. After a violent battle, her whereabouts were unknown the island protecting junior brother disciples and the cultivators of the world could only say that the demon cat had used magic to commit suicide yet no one had expected this. At this point, the old man Bao Ri's tone of speaking abruptly changed. He sounded sterner and more furious now, a few years ago, the demon cat had returned to the mortal world and she's creating trouble once again. Before his voice died away, the old monk Ji Fei, who had been acting docile and obedient on the side, suddenly raised his head. It was as if he had turned into another person as he asked aloud bravely, May I ask the senior Bao Ri, ever since Chang Li had made her comeback, what sort of trouble has she created? His tone of speaking did not sound courteous at all but was filled with rebuke. Fei Fei giggled. She then pulled Wen Liang's sleeve gently and spoke softly, that old monk is not as foolish as we expected. Fei Fei then procured a binocular from her bag with agile movements. She raised the binoculars to her eyes to observe Ji Fei without raising the cultivator's attention at all. A moment later, Fei Fei spoke in slight astonishment, the old monk's expression is like he has a patron backing him. It's as if he knows that Chang Li is here. When Leong had been initially puzzled for the old monk did not need to jump out to express his determination right now. Moreover, who was he trying to show this act of jumping out? Upon listening to Fei Fei's speech, he was suddenly enlightened while also a little bit curious. Xiao Sha's art of disguise was miraculous, even they could not recognize themselves. If Ji Fei could tell that Chang Li was on the goddess peak as well, that would be an absurd situation. The old monk Ji Fei did not wait for old man Bao Ri to speak as he continued to bombard the old man with even more rebuke. Chang Li is already the top demon immortal since 2000 years ago, even the unity of the cultivation world had been futile against her. When Leong nodded to Fei Fei, the old monk Ji Fei has already started his flattery so he has certainly known that they had arrived. In a rogue cultivator's lifetime, we aim for free and unfettered cultivation. We would not be concerned whether it was the battle of the righteous and the evil path or the violent fights between demons and devils. Moreover, regardless of whether your statement was true or false, even if Chang Li were to re-enter the world, how is that related to us? Ji Fei's words were not aggressive at all but they sounded very pleasant to the ears of rogue cultivators. Following that, the old monk sneered, Perhaps the sword immortals who had possessed the superhuman skills of the heavens and earth want us, the rogue cultivators, to deal with the demon immortal Chang Li. Old man Bao Ri raised his brows and was about to speak but Ji Fei, who had shut his mouth, unexpectedly began to speak again, even though Ji Fei and Xue Jing are from the junior generation of cultivators. 
We dare to speak a boastful talk here if Chang Li were to stand in front of me right now and ask me to help her deal with all of you, I will refuse as well. It is as what I've just said, the rogue cultivators are unconcerned over worldly disputes, we only strive for free and unfettered cultivation. I do not care about the black and white island Xiang Lu top sword immortals or even outstanding great demons. The old monk Ji Fei exhaled a long breath after he had finished speaking. He stood opposite old man Bao Ri righteously. When the mountain wind blew on him, he truly had the mannerism of an erudite person. However, the evil glow at the corners of his eyes swept swiftly past the area where Wen Leong and the rest were standing. Old man Bao Ri had been repeatedly chided by Ji Fei and the anger on his face has grown thicker. Sir Rust stretched out his hand and grabbed Bao Ri's wrist. It was true that they were here at Goddess Peak to request for the cultivators of the world's help to manage some matters on their behalf. Even though Ji Fei was only a trivial person, he was still the organizer of this meeting after all. If he were to be slapped to death, the cultivators would not dare to risk their lives to fight him but they would not stay loyal to him either. The hot immortal ant took two steps forward. Her expression was kind and affectionate as she laughed at Ji Fei, I'm afraid that this head priest is still unaware that the demon cat and her comrades had tried to release Xiang Lu back then. After she has re-entered the mortal world this time, she had saved Xiang Lu's evil soul companion from the highland then killed our fellow disciples that we had left on the highland. Wen Leong and Chang Li gazed into the eyes of one another with a strange expression. According to the fat woman's statement, the evil soul's companion was supposed to be the dog-headed eagle. Had Qian Ren just taken his grandmaster Tuasie's place? He only needed to ponder attentively before he realized that since this gang of people was trying to deal with Grand Master Chang Li, they were no different to Wu Dudu. They were also attempting to kill the monkey Qian Ren. They could even straightforwardly compile everything and declare that for Chang Li's comrades, their deaths would not be the sufficient punishment for their crimes. However, what was the relationship between Qian Ren and these people or what was his relationship to the Black and White Island? When Leon was recalling Qian Ren's encounters and he could not help but peer at Zhui Zi as an idea which frightened him suddenly popped out in his mind. Moreover, three of our formation protecting junior brother disciples on the Black and White Island had recently died an untimely death too. Hot immortal Ant's voice sounded crisp and pleasant as she spoke. She was also a little breathless as if she had exerted too much strength. If one were to close their eyes and listen to her, she would sound enticing and attractive. However, when one was to open their eyes, they would feel like dying just from looking at her. The old monk Ji Fei remembered that he was an amnesiac so he made a terrified expression which had appeared feigned to the utmost extent in Fei Fei's eyes. The three solitary guardian sword immortals on the black and white island have passed away. The old monk then inhaled a deep breath as he bawled and cried out in a heart-wrenching voice three times. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng has a very intimate relationship with Wen Leong so he would need to honor that regardless. The hot immortal ant was startled by the old monk who could cry on demand. Her smile vanished and she spoke with a stern expression, the demon cat Chang Li perpetrates every conceivable crime and is unpardonably wicked. If we don't kill her, I'm afraid that it will not take long before she releases Xian Lu into the mortal world once again. The old monk Ji Fei wiped his tears away and he straightened his back once again. He frowned as he asked, how is this related to us, the rogue cultivators? The hot immortal ant understood very well that he was messing around but she held her patience and spoke with a lowered voice, the moment Xian Lu is released, he will plunge the people into misery and suffering. None of the cultivators in the world will be capable of keeping out of the affair. The relationship between the demon cat, Xian Lu, and the rogue cultivators is as such. The hot immortal ant's fat face has quietly condensed into streaks of murderous wrinkles. The old monk Ji Fei panicked and he did not know what to say anymore when a smiling voice suddenly echoed from behind him at that moment. Sister, had Xian Lu once told you that he would start a massacre after he has re-entered the mortal world? That he would kill the entire cultivation world? When Buzwa walked out smilingly as the old monk Ji Fei exhaled a long breath from the bottom of his heart. When it comes to endless pestering with unreasonable demands, when Buzwa was the real master. He was directly unreasonable the moment he started speaking. As expected, the hot immortal ant was stunned for a moment. 
Still, she could not help but to continue, Xian Lu is the utmost evilest creature under the heavens. He is the master of all sins. Ever since the primitive ages, he has been the monster which had created troubles for the entire world. If he were to truly struggle free from his trap. When Buzwa laughed strangely and he did not allow her to finish her sentence at all, these are all fool's folklores and the recordings of baseless history. Since I've never had which family's first ancestors have been harmed by Xiang Lu. The nine-headed monster can be sleeping on the black and white island out of fatigue or playing joyously and rolling around on the Changbai Mountains, he is still fking unrelated to the rogue cultivators. The few of all of you, on the other hand, whether you are doing this out of good or malicious intention, you are encouraging all of us to deal with Chongli. Ha, I'm afraid that it is not that different than when all of you directly attack and kill everyone on the goddess peak. The rogue cultivators have started to discuss amongst themselves animatedly. They do not wish for Xiang Lu to escape but they also did not want to deal with Chongli too. Everyone knows very well in their hearts the demon cat's existence and condition. The hot immortal ant chuckled crisply, all of you have misunderstood us, our siblings are here not because we want to force this group to capture the demon cat. When Buzwa still refused to allow her to finish her sentence before he started shaking his huge head. He then paced back and forth on the same spot as he said, we are people who are aware of our limitations. We cannot possibly form groups of tens or groups of a hundred to descend the mountain and capture Changli. However, when Buzwa abruptly stopped walking and his eyes glimmered as he stared at the hot immortal ant, even if you were to allow us to help, it would only be wishful thinking. The rogue cultivators have our own ideas and methods, all of you ought to manage the fight yourselves. We are not the judge nor the players in uniform and we are not even the mother of king cheerleaders. Ji Fei immediately chimed in loudly, that's correct. If you were to look for us today, she will be looking for us tomorrow so what should the rogue cultivators be cultivating about then? We might as well break up and become the disciples of the Orthodox Five Blessings sects. The people from the Orthodox Five Blessings behind him were startled. They had been scolding the old monk in their hearts for playing a dirty trick and sending these few old monsters on their way. Forget about the rogue cultivators, even the orthodox sects of the cultivation world, who would want and who would dare to truly get involved in the fight between Changli and the Black and White Island. The hot immortal ant stopped speaking as she turned around and gazed into the eyes of the other three monsters. Their faces then simultaneously flashed with an arrogant smile. The old monk Ji Fei felt his heart thud loudly as he dashed back to the Five Blessings formation with Wen Buzwa. At this moment, the little supreme leader Lu Zheng walked over and the expression on his face was entangled with deep puzzlement. He gave the four old monsters a kowtow as a salutation and spoke a neutral manner, I am a disciple of the Kunlun sect and my name is Lu Zheng. I would like to inquire from the fellow seniors, what sort of connection do you have with the Black and White Island? He had attended to the enlightened Tian Shu for many years yet he had never heard from Tian Shu that there were some unknown branches or other pupils from the same master of the Black and White Island on the land of the East. Moreover, these four persons' cultivation methods differed from one another there was not a single ounce of similarity to Tian Shu and Tian Hua's cultivation method. However, these four monsters possessed exceedingly high cultivation bases. Even if they were to need others' help to deal with Xiang Lu, there had been no need for them to flash the Black and White Island's banner. The hot immortal ant realized that the young lad who had walked over was weary looking but has handsome facial features. She swayed her body affectionately and smiled as she asked in reply, Based on my judgment, those two who had pestered us endlessly are the demon cat's comrades. However, you have bright eyes and graceful brows with righteous mannerisms yet you straightforwardly doubt our words. She then tooted and shook her head with a piteous expression. Ji Fei and Wen Buzwa gazed into each other's eyes in fear before retreating into the depth of the crowd. Lu Zheng's expression had remained unchanged. The usual carefree attitude between his brows was lost as he answered earnestly, the Kunlun sect and the Black and White Island are connected, the enlightened Tian Shu had granted me the grace of rebirth. There are over a thousand disciples in the Kunlun sect who have sworn that they would avenge this grand old man. The hot immortal ant's eyes brightened abruptly as she completely disregarded the bunch of rogue cultivators who were in a messy discussion at the moment. 
She walked in huge strides towards Lu Zheng, stretched out her hand and patted him on his shoulder, then you are considered the Black and White Island's peripheral disciple. We are all family. Unexpectedly, before she could finish her sentence, a voice that sounded so low that one wished that one could sit on the floor to listen to it suddenly hummed and echoed from the huge mountain. He is not even an official disciple, the old father does not have such a family. In the midst of his speech, a young lad with a strong and burly body but with a sallow complexion suddenly jumped out from the earth. Anger flashed through Lu Zhang's face. He clenched his teeth in rage but he did not speak. The hot immortal ant laughed so hard that her fat flesh shook. She then grabbed hold of the young lad with the waxy and yellow-colored face, Xiao Sang, what took you so long? Following that, she introduced him to Lu Zheng in a hospitable manner, do not mistrust his young appearance but he is your senior too. He is Earth Emperor Brother Sang from the great drum pit of Mount Hang. Brother Sang was still as arrogant as before. He seemed to be even too lazy to peer at Lu Zheng from the corners of his eyes as he said, Who is this? He is pretentious and fake. The black and white island had failed to protect the formation. Those three pus-filled cysts should have cut their own throats as an apology since earlier but they had managed to survive for another two thousand years. However, they had still died without a burial place died tragically in the end before he could finish his sentence, the first four monsters simultaneously opened their mouths and shouted in rage, Xiao Sang. When Buzwa was elated in his heart. No matter how hard he had pestered, there was no way he could stop Lu Zheng from mutually recognizing the black and white island. Just as he was anxious about what to do, a dabbler had jumped out from the ground and managed to scold Lu Zheng back to sanity with a single sentence. Lu Zheng's eyes were bloodshot as he spoke, our master had lived in solitude and guarded the heavens for several millennia. He had guarded the black and white island loyally and he had fought Chongli laboriously. He pursued the evil soul and died tragically before he could fulfill his ambition. How dare you defile him as such? When Buzwa sneered at the same time, the four five of you are the extraordinary sword immortals who will help the world but two thousand years ago. When the Black and White Islands' three sword immortals were fighting Changli, why had all of you not attacked her then? You've only jumped out right now and showed off your skills and prowess, what role models you are. Grandmother Shudu, whose hunched body was shaped like the number seven, suddenly raised her head. Her gloomy and icy cold gaze directly plucked out when Buzwa from the group of monks, the thief who likes to sow dissension. However, before she could finish her sentence, Xiao Sang sniggered coldly and interrupted her. Each time he laughed, the entire mountain beneath everyone's feet would shake in response. He could not even handle such a trivial matter properly, death was insufficient as the punishment for his crimes, how could he be bold enough to ask for help? The other four monsters stood and gazed at one another. They were stunned all at once and they could not understand Brother Sang's perception. They were here on Goddess Peak because they had a task that depended on these cultivators' efforts. Brother Sang always had a strange temper and narrow-minded views on usual days but they did not expect his thoughts to be muddled to this extent. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng had since crushed his teeth in rage. He howled furiously all of a sudden, bounced the sword, Taoism code, seal. There was a bang followed by cold lights which then spread out in all directions. The Kunlun sword formation which had merged with his heart and soul suddenly appeared out of thin air, shaking its head and wagging its tail like a raging dragon. It then surrounded the Earth Emperor Brother Sang, apologize. Otherwise, your life will not be spared. Lu Jing too could not figure out why this pstard had started to scold the moment he had jumped out. Even though he was enraged to the point of madness, he still left some space for him to change his mind in his attack as he had not directly guided his sword formation to blast and kill the other party. Unexpectedly, the Earth Emperor Brother Sang was even more hot-tempered than him as he roared in rage in return, it is in reverse, it is in reverse. This little star dares to attack me. Soon after, the sound of metal clanking was heard. He had launched his supernatural power and was about to dash forward. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng's expression stiffened, he was no longer merciful and clenched his teeth as his hand pinched into the sword-controlling gesture. Countless long swords reacted like sharks which had suddenly picked up the scent of blood as they spun around and flew towards Brother Sang mercilessly. 
When Wen Leong was still on the highland snowy peak, Lu Zheng and the 72 esteemed sword seniors had joined hands to launch the sword formation. Its power was difficult for even the resurrected enlightened Tian Shu to resist. During recent times, Lu Zheng had continuously merged his cultivation method on the highland and he no longer needed the 72 esteemed sword seniors effort. He was capable of expressing 80% of the sword formation's power by himself. Yet, in the midst of his vast and majestic divine power, not only did he fail to kill Brother Sang in one attempt, there was a faint sensation of his sword formation's mannerism being broken. Brother Sang repeatedly roared in rage within the sword formation, all the disciples under my sect, execute this demon. Where his voice was heard, fifty to sixty cultivators who had mingled amongst the rogue cultivators or the world sect immediately answered in response. Their bodies tossed and turned as they pounced towards the little supreme leader Lu Zheng in lightning speed. Even though the seventy-two esteemed sword seniors had stayed behind on the highland, there was still the head Lama Rangyong, the old demon rabbit Bu Lu and a few others by Lu Zheng's side. Even the siblings Bu Shuo and Bu Zhua had shouted in unison as well. All of them dashed towards the other party together with the supernatural powers and treasured weapons summoned by the monks from the Tibetan Buddhist sect and the Great Mercy Temple. As soon as the two parties were engaged in a dogfight, whether it was the world sect or the rogue cultivators, everybody else could not help but gasp softly. With the exception of Bulu, Shan Duan, Rang Yong, and a few other master cultivators, the treasured weapons which belonged to the Great Mercy Temple and the Highlands cultivators crashed into Brother Sang's disciples. Those treasured weapons were then like snow which had landed on burning charcoal as they retreated in defeat with a hiss. While master cultivators like the old demon rabbit and Rang Yong managed to engage four or five persons from the other party each. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng clenched his teeth as he separated a sword dragon from the sword formation in order to resist the enemy. As the sword formation lost its density, Lu Zheng could only watch helplessly as he could no longer trap the Earth Emperor anymore. First Brother Xia who had prioritized the code of brotherhood all along suddenly roared. His long spear was aimed as he shouted towards his disciples, Formation. The one-word palace's disciples gathered into a formation in a flash. They were going to launch an attack to help Lu Zheng and were just about to join the messy fight when the other four monsters finally shouted in unison, Stop it! Grandmother Shudu then launched her previous trick once again. Her body swayed as she dashed into the Kunlun sword formation. She plucked off a corner of the sword formation swiftly and released Brother Sang. At the same time, the hot immortal ant grabbed hold of Brother Sang in a fully satisfied manner as she refused to let go of him to let him go kill Lu Zheng. The old man Bao Ri, on the other hand, took a step forward as he shouted aloud, Borrow the sun. Soon after, a magic conjuration was formed which suddenly slammed towards the middle of the sky. A ball of golden light that was unimaginably dazzling erupted with a loud bang. Every cultivator which had been entangled in the fight felt a gush of tremendous force cutting into their limbs and bones ferociously. Their rapidly flowing blood turned as heavy as mercury and they could not even move their little finger. It was only until the golden light had fully dispersed that they felt their bodies lighten once again and return to their previous state. Sir Rust had not moved at all. His gaze was as rusty as the color of his skin as he firmly stared at everybody to prevent anyone else from seizing the opportunity for an ambush. A messy fight had been dispersed in such a short time. Anyone could understand that if these five monsters were to join hands, there was not an ounce of victory for the people in the five blessings. In everybody's heart, one side was filled with fear and astonishment while the other side was secretly relieved. It was at this moment that a squall suddenly echoed. A young lad, who was like a koala bear that was learning how to fly, swung his arms and legs as he somersaulted all the way and flew from the rogue cultivator's group towards the righteous path of the five blessings. The young lad's flying posture was extremely peculiar but the majestic sonic boom rippled into a windstorm and thunderstorm between the mountains. Those cultivators with slightly weaker cultivation bases could not even stand steadily as they staggered and fell backward when the young lad flew past the top of their heads. The location that he landed in the end coincidentally formed into a corner with the four monsters that firmly faced the little supreme leader Lu Zheng. Wen Leong was furious in his heart. He had been frightened and anxious earlier as he clenched his teeth in preparation to launch an attack at any time to help. However, 
He was caught off guard by Chang Li and Zhui Zi who had simultaneously exerted their strengths on his left and right. They then said this softly, ask him about what happened, before they tossed him from the crowd. The five monsters' faces were shocked as they used their gloomy gazes to sighs when Leong up and down. The old monk Ji Fei had expected this and knew that the person who had flown over was Wen Leong. His face was filled with astonishment yet his gaze was filled with a smile. He secretly tugged Shui Jing as they took two steps forward. The Earth Emperor Brother Sang realized that someone else has jumped forward again and he asked ferociously, Who are you? When Leon glared back at him uncourteously, this old father had jumped out to inquire about the purpose of your presence here on the mountain. This was the first time he had addressed himself as the old father to others so when Leon was feeling rather pleased. It was true that the rogue cultivators have strange and different expressions. They had started to fight yet they still do not know the purpose of these people's presence on the mountain. The Earth Emperor Brother Sang was stunned as well as he looked at the suddenly shy hot immortal ant who was still hugging him, all of you have yet to inform them of their task. The other four monsters blushed in unison, we had not managed to inform them in time. Chapter, 252 The Earth Emperor Brother Sang struggled strenuously out of hot immortal ant's warm hug. He no longer acknowledged the little supreme leader Lu Zheng as he waved his hand impatiently at the four monsters, why aren't you telling them now? The cultivators who had dashed out to fight the five blessings earlier were now gathered beside him. They glared at the other party in a threatening manner with an arrogance in their gaze which was exactly the same as their masters. The hot immortal ant's face has regained her previously smiling expression as she spoke to every cultivator on Goddess Peak. Our trip to the mountain this time was for no other purpose other than to hope that the cultivators of the world can unite and work together as a team. We are bound by a common hatred for an enemy so help us to deal with the demon cat and her comrades. Following that, old man Bao Ri too took a step forward as he continued the hot immortal ant's words. His tone of speaking sounded rather euphemistic as he said, Everybody here possesses profound cultivation bases but compared to the demon cat, I'm afraid that all of you are still at the disadvantage of your age. After all, that evildoer has already cultivated for thousands of years. We dare not impose on our fellow cultivators to encircle or slaughter Chongli. On the contrary, if you were to truly bump into this evil beast, this old fellow will still insist for everyone to retain the cultivation world's lineage of righteousness and evade her temporarily. When Buzwa laughed in a strange and peculiar tone as he interrupted Bao Ri's intention to draw others to his side, you have already beaten around the bush for a long time. Old Divine Immortal, please state your instructions now. Bao Ri's expression had remained the same and his bright red colored old face was filled with awe-inspiring righteousness, the five of us had stayed in the wilderness as our humble abode. We have been out of touch for thousands of years but we are aware that it is not a difficult task to vanquish the demon cat if we were to combine our powers. However, when it comes to the issue of how to locate her, that is enough to trouble us for a long while. Therefore, we have no choice but to intrude on this visit and use this grand meeting as a pretext for us to ask our fellow cultivators to help us. The rogue cultivators were suddenly enlightened and they started discussing amongst each other softly. Each one of those five monsters possess an extraordinary cultivation base yet their names were not well known. They should be the marvels who had lived in seclusion. Even though they had their own sects and disciples, they had no contact with the outside world and they had no source of information from the outside. Even if they have the intention to encircle and suppress the demon Cat Changli, they would still need to find out her whereabouts first before they could plan the next move. This trip of theirs to the mountain was for the purpose of borrowing the eyes of cultivators of the world to look for her. Old man Bao Ri paused for a moment before he continued once again, everybody's guess is correct. Our first task is to request for everybody's help in searching for the demon cat's whereabouts. There's no need to fight her after discovering her demonic traces but you will only need to inform us about her whereabouts. Before we leave the mountain, we will leave everybody our sex communication power tool. The demon cat also has an incisive comrade right now. It is a dog-headed giant eagle with a body the size of a small hill. It had recently left the western region of the highlands so it should have entered the central plains by now. As for the second task old man Bao Ri laughed and shook his head, 
it is not considered as an important matter so we will discuss further after we have seized the demon cat's comrades who had snuck into the cultivation world first. His glimmering gaze swept past Wen Buzwa's face as he said that. Wen Buzwa was not bothered by the old man's obviously threatening mannerism and he chuckled as he shook his head, so the second task is not considered as an important matter. I'm afraid that is not true, correct? The old monk Ji Fei sneered as he chimed in with an irrelevant word, in my perspective, not only are the five old divine immortals' cultivation bases profound, even your sex disciples stand out like dragons and phoenixes amongst humans. Their abilities are impressive beyond our imagination. A few rogue cultivators with witty minds and a little more experience frowned ever so slightly when they understood the meaning behind the old monk Ji Fei's words. When Buzwa felt elated in his heart. This was the first time that he realized it was really fun to quarrel with the old monk Ji Fei complimenting him. When Buzwa then said, if it had been a trivial matter, there was no need for you to send so many of your skilled disciples to mingle into the rogue cultivator's troop. This time, the majority of the cultivators understood Ji Fei and Wen Buzwa's implications. There were a number of unidentified people who had come to the mountain. The five monsters had agreed to meet on Mount Hua while the Earth Emperor brother had made his disciples mingle in the crowd. The other four persons' disciples were certainly here as well. When Buzwa crossed his arms, I would like to request for all the young and old divine immortals to reveal yourselves, hee hee. An earth emperor and his disciples are already as such, with the five of you and your combined disciples, how could it still be a difficult task to annihilate the entire goddess peak? The earth emperor brother Sang suddenly glared as he cursed in a completely uncourteous manner, you little bugger, you truly think too highly of yourself. Is there a necessity for all five of us to combine our powers to kill everyone on Goddess Peak? Following that he peered at the four monsters by his side, if I were to realize that the current cultivation world has already turned into such an embarrassment earlier, this old father need not even bring along one person for help. When Buzwa was now even more convinced that this Earth Emperor could be his friend. He pointed at the Earth Emperor as he burst out laughing, you truly are a scoundrel. The other four monsters wished that they could nod in agreement to Wen Buzwa's words as well. They were also scolding Brother Sang for being a scoundrel in their hearts. Old man Bao Ri's gaze was almost spitting fire as he looked at the Earth Emperor in a ghastly manner, the act of executing the evil beast Changli can only be achieved through the unity and teamwork of the cultivators in the entire world. It's best that you do not speak rudely anymore, you have hurt too many of our fellow cultivators' hearts. Brother Sang realized that Bao Ri was infuriated and he seemed a little scared. He then shrugged and made an impatient expression as he stopped speaking. Old man Bao Ri inhaled a deep breath and desperately suppressed the rage in his heart. He then turned towards the crowd of cultivators on the goddess peak, our fellow cultivators, please be at ease. The five of us had sent our disciples to the mountain first to prevent the demon cat's comrades from causing trouble. We don't have any ill intentions apart from that. Upon saying that, he exchanged glances with the other monsters. They nodded to each other and shouted in unison, Our sex disciples, please return to the side of your supreme leader. When their voices sounded, over a hundred human figures started to move in succession. Even though their movements were different, they were quick and agile just the same as they went beside the five old monsters soundlessly. The rogue cultivators could not help but break out into a chaotic clamor. This time, before they could exchange whispers, the old man Bao Ri's expression unexpectedly changed slightly as he shouted aloud once again, Our sex disciples, please return to the side of your supreme leader. Moments later, the old man's expression has turned dreadful and ruthless. His voice trembled with vigorous divine power as he shouted, Every disciple from my sky-rubbing cliff sect, return to my side. Over a hundred cultivators had returned to the five monsters' side. They were divided into three troops made up of forty to fifty people each, gathered separately behind Grandmother Shudu, Sir Rust, and Hot Immortal Ant. In addition to the Earth Emperor's disciples who had revealed themselves earlier, there was a total of four troops there. Only the area behind the old man's back was completely empty and devoid of a single person. When Bao Ri's final shout rang out, a series of chaotic movements suddenly broke out amongst the rogue cultivators. There were continuous thumping sounds as dozens of cultivators who had mingled with the rogue cultivators fell onto the ground stiffly. Bao Ri howled in rage. 
His body was then wrapped in a ball of golden light as he glided swiftly in front of one of the persons who had fallen to the ground. He watched helplessly as that person's face became so pale that he almost appeared transparent. That person did not breath at all but had turned into a rigid corpse. The other four monsters reacted savagely at the same time for Bao Ri's disciples had caught them by surprise as they died without making a sound. They shouted and their disciples, who had just gathered around them, suddenly spread out. They were akin to nails as they wedged themselves into the rogue cultivator's formation. Anyone with even the slightest skills in cultivation could tell that the positions they were standing now were the only ways the rogue cultivators would have to pass if they wanted to run away. Every single person who was lying on the ground was the old man Bao Ri's disciples without exception. None of them had been the disciple of the other four monsters and none of them was a rogue cultivator or from the world sect. These monsters' cultivation method was unsurpassed and their backgrounds were unidentifiable. They had explained the purpose of their trip to the mountain vaguely and even though they had fought on a small scale earlier, the sequence of events was still confusing. The monsters had been on the stronger side all along yet dozens of their disciples had suddenly been killed by somebody. The initially ambiguous situation has become even more dangerous and complicated now. Everyone could feel their heart beating loudly. The rogue cultivators activated their life vitality to guard against the unknown killer and also to guard against the disciples of those old monsters. All at once, the flying swords hummed on Goddess Peak as wind and thunder appeared faintly in the sky and the air trembled with mist. When Leon was filled with astonishment, he could not help but raise his head to look at Chang Li and Zhui Zi. Chang Li was holding Xiao Wu while Zhui Zi was pulling Fei Fei along. The three ladies and one child were all accounted for. Other than the expression of surprise on their faces, there was also more vigilance. The group of cultivators who had been killed on the highland, Wu Duda's inferior, and Brother Sang's disciples, made Wen Leong feel a sense of familiarity about the actual power of these monster's disciples. In an uncourteous way, the cultivation of the old demon rabbit, in the eyes of these disciples, could be considered as not bad but absolutely could not be considered as the top. This group of people had been killed soundlessly. If Chang Li or Zhui Zi was not the ones who had taken action when Leong inhaled a deep breath as he took several steps forward towards the Five Blessings troop and protected his own people behind his back. At the same time, he made a communication hand gesture that was used amongst the disciples of Wen Butsao at Wen Buzwa. Wen Buzwa's expression remained the same but a sense of joy rapidly flashed past his gaze. It was unknown how the old monk Ji Fei had noticed Chang Li and the other's presence but the old monk had not told anybody else about that. Brother Sang's chest heaved up and down vigorously as he suddenly laughed strangely, the disciples of the huge drum pit. Follow my order before his voice could die away, Grandmother Shudu suddenly scolded in rage, the boy who knows nothing, shut your mouth. Following that, Grandmother Shudu too inhaled a deep breath. She managed to calm her shock with difficulty before she spoke to the large group of cultivators in a low voice, Our fellow cultivators need not worry, we will apprehend the killer and we will never involve the innocent. As long as everyone does not act recklessly, this old woman can use her life as a guarantee that everybody will be absolutely fine. Bao Reed did not utter a word as he wandered everywhere like a ball of hot sun. He examined his disciples who were lying on the ground one by one. Every single one of his disciples did not have even a scratch on their bodies, they had all been murdered by someone's exuberant power of life vitality which had shattered their internal organs without making a sound. The five old monsters had been showing off earlier yet, in the blink of an eye, they had suffered such a huge loss. The entire scene was dead silent as everyone stood in the same spot. Only the old man Bao Ri moved as he picked up every single one of the corpses and placed them in an open space in the middle of the mountain peak. Sir Rust walked out in great strides, he was about to help Bao Ri when Bao Ri suddenly cried out loudly, Stop! Bao Ri's eyes were bloodshot as he glared at Sir Rust. He hissed and roared every word which sounded like it was weeping blood, every single one of them had refused to practice martial art when they were children. They had cried and screamed unreasonably to me. Every single one of them had admired and thirsted for the bustling scene of the mortal world when they were adolescents. They had brought along some spare coins and secretly snuck out of the mountain to play outside. Every single one of them had shown tender affection for beautiful girls when they were teenagers. 
They bit on their brush pens as they wrote love letters. Every single one of them had been beaten by me before. Every single one of them had smiled at me in flattery before. These are all my children. At this point, Bao Ri was holding the last body and broke out in bitter sobs. The mortal people are unsophisticated but they have liquor and meat the righteous path of cultivation is unsophisticated but it has a respected title which has passed through ages the rogue cultivators are unsophisticated but they are free and unfettered in their lifetimes the evil path of cultivation is unsophisticated but it has a debt of gratitude and of revenge. These children are sophisticated but what have they owned before? During the coldest times of winter, after centuries of bitter cultivation, they are only hoping that one day they can cultivate into righteousness and they can help to put the heavens and the earth into the correct path with their swords. They never expected that they would all be killed here. They did not even manage to shed one drop of blood, they did not even manage to laugh once. Every word that came out of the old man's mouth was like a shocking thunder between the heavens and the earth. His voice erupted loudly between the rolling mountains. The winter trees were shaking and rustling while the winter crows were startled. Bao Ri cried until the end when he suddenly squalled in grievance as his eyes rolled upwards and he fainted. Grandmother Shudu wiped away the murky tears on her face and her gaze swept past everyone in a ghastly manner. Soon after, a continuous scraping sound which made the listeners uneasy could be heard as she slowly straightened her back. It only took a moment for the old woman with a bent back to abruptly bloom with boundless majesty, Demon Cat Chongli, you have created trouble in the mortal world two thousand years ago. You had been bold enough to act and bold enough to bear the responsibility then, why are you such a coward now? At this moment, Wen Liang's cell phone suddenly vibrated. He hastily fished out his cell phone to take a look. Following that, he looked at Fei Fei who nodded to him gently. Sir Rust's voice was even hoarser than before. Each word he spoke was dragged with a long last note by his voice, so you think you can conceal yourself and we will not be able to see you anymore. A few of the monster's disciples turned their hands over and brandished their treasured weapons of all sorts of shapes when his voice sounded. At this moment, Chang Li's face suddenly revealed an expression which was at a loss of whether to cry or to laugh. Zhuye Zi stretched out her hand swiftly and pressed onto the area between Chang Li's brows. Wen Leong was still puzzled when Sir Rust gave his command. A series of wild beasts' roars sounded abruptly as the treasured weapons surged from the hands of the monster's disciples into the sky and converged with a loud noise that blotted out the sky and covered the earth. This was accompanied by a foul, fishy-smelling wind as the treasured weapons rolled out in all directions. The majority of the rogue cultivators were confused. Even though these peculiar treasured weapons were giving out the wild beasts' roars that terrified everyone, they could not sense any power from them at all. The big and small demon rabbits' expressions, however, both changed at the same time. They turned and were about to escape but it was too late. When the foul-smelling wind swept past, the two demon monks' bodies simultaneously bloomed with exuberant demon power. There were muffled thuds as Buddhist prayer beads, cell phones, and treasured weapons dropped from their bodies. Following that, their monks' robes fell emptily to the ground. Two plump and white rabbits then bored out of the monks' robes in a fearful manner. Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzwa both turned pale from fear as they immediately used the monks' robes and wrapped the rabbits in it, holding them in their arms swiftly. Still, no matter how swiftly they had moved, they were not as swift as the large group of cultivators' eyes from around them. Everything turned into a chaotic uproar immediately. The old monk Ji Fei hid behind the little supreme leader Lu Zheng's back as he shouted, These old monsters have turned the two divine monks into rabbits. Other than the big and small demon monks, a dozen others amongst the rogue cultivators and the world sect were turned into animals as well under the surprised gaze of their companions when they came into contact with the foul-smelling wind. The little stutterer Hope Voice who had followed the big and small demon rabbit side turned pale from shock. He stuttered in astonishment, noble spirit T.T. treasured compared to when Wen Leong had first met him on Zhanyan Peak, the little stutterer had grown taller. His face was now round and his eyes were pitch black but his tongue still remained the same as before. It was only until when Buzwa had stomped his foot ferociously beside him did the little stutterer finally shouted as if he was risking his life, weapon. The noble spirit treasured weapon was the precious ability used to restrain the demon sect in the cultivation world. 
These old monsters' disciples were not holding common weapons in their hands but once the weapons were launched, ordinary demons had utterly no way to even resist before their demonic bodies were revealed. Under the combined power of those countless noble spirit treasured weapons, even someone like Chong Li would not be able to retain her human form though she would not have lost her powers like those two demon rabbits. Fortunately, Chue Zi who was by her side had placed a dash of spirit calming cold dew on Chang Li's forehead and protected her demon body from being ambushed by the noble spirit treasured weapons. The noble spirit was sparkling and a dozen little demons were revealed. The most surprising result was the two plump and white red-eyed rabbits. When Leong finally understood why his grand master was laughing maniacally when she saw those noble spirit treasured weapons. To those cultivators with exceedingly high cultivation bases. They did not even need to examine the demons one by one and could tell just by the demonic energy which had been released when the little demons had revealed their true bodies that other than the two demon rabbits, there was nothing else worth their attention here. Sir Rust's expression turned even more solemn as he turned around and walked towards the Great Mercy Temple, their demon bodies have been revealed so they must be the demon cat's comrades. The little stutterer was shocked. His expression was fearful but he jumped out with a determined gait and blocked Sir Rust like a tiny hen, WW what do you want? The rest of the Great Mercy Temple's monks were discussing amongst one another. Their expressions were a little hesitant and they were the disciples of an orthodox sect with profound knowledge. Most of them recognized the noble spirit treasured weapons and their own supreme leader had revealed his demon body under the influence of those noble spirit treasured weapons. They had no choice but to believe that and they finally understood in their hearts why their supreme leader had constantly taught them not to despise demons and monsters. The corners of Sir Rust's mouth twitched and he roared in a low voice, Scram! If Hope Voice who was standing before him was not a child, he would have punched Hope Voice and sent him flying away since earlier. When Leon could not bear to see the little stutterer use himself as a human shield so he moved in a flash to stand between these two. The little stutterer and Sir Rust had been initially less than two feet away from each other. Once when Leong had squeezed himself between them, he was almost touching noses with Sir Rust. Sir Rust's gaze was mottled yet gloomy as he repeated with an icy cold tone, Scram! When Leong felt as if the other party's gaze was like two nails which stabbed into his eyes. However, he only shook his head and said, How could you extort the two divine monks? Moreover, the demon cat is not here. Brother Sang laughed strangely as he strode and arrived before Wen Leong from dozens of meters away, divine monks. More like demons. This is the most orthodox and famous sect in the world yet they had utterly no idea that their supreme leader was an evildoer. What a group of fools, ha 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 his laughter could be heard continuously as if he was witnessing the most amusing event in the world. Comparatively, the Great Mercy Temple's monks were perplexed as they stood on the same spot but did not know what to do. Sir Rust controlled himself. He refused to join hands with the Earth Emperor Brother Sang so he made a muffled hump before he fell back two steps with his gaze firmly on the siblings Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzwa. Wen Leong was about to speak when a voice which sounded both anxious and angry echoed from his back, S shut you up. The little stutterer still retained his original habit. Even after he had finished uttering the last word, he still insisted on stuttering the punctuation mark. Brother Sang's gaze was filled with mockery. He did not attack impatiently but he gave the little stutterer an evil stare. The little stutterer was trying to speak with great effort but his little face was red from pent-up anger. He hummed and hawed for a long while until he panted anxiously. Finally, he clenched his teeth abruptly as his ten fingers crossed and coiled repeatedly and finally pinched into a very complicated hand seal. His hands had been apparently empty but this hand seal seemed to weigh a hundred tons as he raised his hands inch by inch strenuously before finally pressing them onto his forehead. Everyone who had cultivated in Buddhist way from the righteous path was greatly startled and they witnessed the little stutterer's movement. The fat monk Shui Jing who had been startled and hid at the side quietly all along suddenly gasped softly in fear, of all kinds of godly appearances, the greatest extent is the mercy godly appearance. This young lad has already cultivated into the mercy godly appearance. As expected, when the little monk pressed himself with the hand seal, not an ounce of transformation could be seen on his facial features but he has completely turned into a new outlook. His face and eyes were filled with a saintly appearance which made one wish to worship him. 
golden light flowed slowly and enshrouded his tiny body before gradually condensing into a solid form beneath the sunlight. A moment later, it was formed into the Buddha's solemn appearance that was as vast as the heavens and earth. This was different from the hot sun-like sparkle on Bao Ri's body. The golden light which enshrouded the little stutterer's body was soft yet warm. It was so warm that it made one felt completely relaxed without any burdens. When seen from afar, one could not tell if there was a large Buddha which had projected behind the little monk or if the large Buddha was condensed into a merciful body before him. As the little monk transformed into the mercy godly appearance, Brother Sang's eyes were akin to a wolf that was facing danger. His pupils suddenly constricted into a thin and long line as his initially vagabond-like appearance too turned into the expression of vigilance. The little stutterer completely disregarded Brother Sang's hostility as he spoke with a smile that made one feel as if one was like basking in the spring wind, T.T. the Buddha is mercy, merciful everyone felt disheartened. If he was still stuttering, why was there a necessity for him to conjure a large Buddha? Chang Li and Zhui Zi also sniggered from afar at the same time. The awkwardness that was revealed in the midst of the Buddha's solemn appearance made those who were witnessing the event feel chills down their backs. The little stutterer startled himself as well and he hastily inhaled a deep breath. This deep breath took him one minute to inhale. He then spoke up once again suddenly. A thunderous sound which covered the heavens and earth echoed along with the roars of golden dragons and dapping birds. There was also the soft and beautiful sound of Zen chants and the tinkling of bells and beats from drums the malevolent energy and demonic power on the goddess peak were dispersed by the auspicious light in the blink of an eye. The little stutterer's mouth moved continuously but the voice had come out from the giant Buddha's mouth behind his back. The six great divisions in the wheel of karma all living creatures perform kind deeds anyone who is destined can cultivate to the great path of the western paradise. Mahavara, 18 arhats, 20 celestials, 500 Buddhist monks will one day be gifted with the insight then cross through the golden light. The heavens dragons will bask in the Buddha's light, the Dupeng birds will listen and chant the Sanskrit scriptures, the Asuras will be blessed with regards so why can't the demon body cultivate in Buddhism? The little stutterer was blooming with the mercy godly appearance. He spoke his words fluently and his voice was steady yet distant. That voice traveled all the way until the edge of the sky. Following that, he inhaled one more deep breath and suddenly changed into a furious expression as he emphasized his words, release all living creatures from the sea of misery. Release. All. Living. Creatures. Following that, the little monk raised his head and exhaled a long breath. He regained his consciousness from the meditation and he suddenly recalled the threat and danger before his eyes. He opened his hands up once again and puffed up his tiny chest as he shielded the two demon rabbits. The giant Buddha behind him too followed his action as the Buddha puffed up his chest and opened his arms. The two rabbit had shut their eyes at the same time. This was the mercy godly appearance that was yearned by those who had cultivated in Buddhism yet it was being used by the little stutterer into a state which was almost too horrible to look at. The head Lama Ranyong walked in front of the little stutterer in great strides. He then stood next to the little stutterer and raised his head as he repeated the little stutter's words dully, release all living creatures from the sea of misery. Release. All. Living. Creatures. Following that, the five seats of honors from the Great Mercy Temple, the Highland Cultivators, the Great Mercy Temple's Buddhist followers from each monastery all walked to front one by one and stood in front of the little stutterer. The One Word Palace's first brother Xia burst out laughing as he raised his spear and ground it twice upon the earth. Even though his legs did not move, he narrowed his eyes as he looked at brother Xia with clear hostility. When Leong was feeling a little strange in his heart. The One Word Palace seems to express their loyalty a little too much. Brother Sang watched as the righteous path of cultivation gathered together and he laughed in extreme rage. Grandmother Shudu shouted at him, seize the two demon rabbits but don't claim any human lives. Everyone scram. Just as Brother Sang was about to pounce forward, the same shout simultaneously came out of Wen Leong, Lu Zheng, and the little monk Hope Voice's mouths. Soon after, the giant Buddha put his palms together and the sound of a loud incantation could be heard. The divine swords in Madeira rippled with dazzling cold light as Wen Leong stood unmoving on the same spot. Chapter 
253. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng hates Brother Sang because he had rudely insulted the spirits of the Black and White Islands' three sword immortals earlier. When Lu Zheng realized that Brother Sang was about to attack again, he did not hesitate as he directly summoned Kunlun Sect's supernatural power of a thousand swords greeting. Thousands of divine sword immediately converged into nine sword dragons. Some dashed about while others roared. Some spun wildly while others flew swiftly in all directions as they slashed towards Brother Sang mercilessly. Brother Sang was on his guard this time. He had a contemptuous look on his face as he turned his hand over and made a Dharmamudra seal. He then smashed it towards the ground ferociously as he shouted out, draw a circle on the ground to serve as a prison, pin down the enemy on behalf of this old father. Lu Jing suddenly felt a great weight on his body as if there was a formless huge mountain which had suddenly pinned him down. All the bones in his entire body made a muffled popping sound as if they would break at any time under the tremendous force. He could no longer think about guiding the sword dragons as he hastily focused his state of mind and exerted all his strength to urge his life vitality so he could resist this formless yet solid tremendously crushing force. The nine sword dragons have lost their master's guidance. Even though the sword dragons continued to roar in a ruthless and tyrannical manner, their formation was immediately dispersed. The sword dragons then turned into the rain of swords which covered the heavens and earth once again and slashed towards the enemy in a disarray. Brother Sang burst out laughing strangely as he scolded, The little bugger who dares to offend the senior generation as a junior, I am sending you to meet your pus filled cyst like masters. Following that, his body moved rapidly as he suddenly conjured a dense sandstorm. He completely disregarded Grandmother Shudu's instruction of, do not claim human lives earlier as he attacked the little supreme leader who had been immobilized. The Kunlun sect's A Thousand Swords greeting has lost its formation. It could not resist Brother Sang's pounces nor was it capable of breaking the sandstorm that surrounded him. There was a vast and boundless sorrowful hum as the sword formation was crushed by Brother Sang all the way. This was the difference between the power of treasured weapons and the cultivator's own valiant life vitality. Lu Zheng's sword formation and Brother Sang's thick earth divine power were not very different but when they attacked each other at the same time. Brother Sang was capable of resisting the thousands of swords for a while but Lu Zheng could not even resist the power of thick earth for even a moment. Lu Zheng was the one who had suffered huge losses the moment they started fighting officially. Now, Lu Zheng's sword formation has been scattered and he was heavily pinned down. He did not even have the strength to save the desperate situation anymore. The little stutterer had placed his palms together and began his salutation. Before he could utter the word, Amitba, Lu Zheng was already in grave danger. The little stutterer immediately turned pale from fear. There was no time for him to conjure his supernatural power and his palms were still together when he somersaulted into the sandstorm which was still spinning wildly in midair. The giant Buddha behind his back made the exact same movements as him as he placed his palms together and flew swiftly before crashing towards Brother Sang on a grand scale. The little monk had reacted quickly to the situation this time. He did not depend on his treasured weapon of the Buddha's seal in the midst of his panic but he had conjured the giant Buddha and launched his body to attack the enemy. He managed to deal with Brother Sang's quick attacks brilliantly yet every single one of the Buddhist good hands on Goddess Peak had strange expressions on their faces they watched as a sparkling golden Buddha surprisingly adopted the technique of a boy worshipping Guanin. They did not know if they should cry or laugh at the scene. Chang Li, who was watching the battle afar, exclaimed as she gazed into Zhui Zi's eyes. Both of them were a little surprised as the mercy godly appearance which had been summoned by the little monk was exceedingly powerful. In fact, it was even stronger than the old demon rabbit Bu Li's full force conjuration by several times. It has only been a few short years but the little monk hope voice has achieved so many improvements. Other than a limited amount of cultivators like the old demons and Wen Leong, it was probable that there was no one else worthy enough to be his opponent in the entire world. Brother Sang had been paying attention to the little monk all along. As soon as the little monk and the giant Buddha were about to pounce over, the sandstorm which had surrounded his body rolled and surrounded the sparkling giant Buddha all of a sudden. He then became like a golden cicada which had just broken out of its shell, giggling strangely as his body spun and turned in midair. He then pounced towards the five blessings cultivators who were guarding around the big and small demon rabbits. 
Brother Sang was intentionally showing off. Accompanied by his proud and wild laughter, he was like a huge mountain which slammed into the cultivators from the Great Mercy Temple and the Highlands Formation. A loud thundering noise rolled continuously just as each and every one of the Buddhist master cultivators was gathering their entire lifetime's worth of cultivation base in their arms to stop Brother Sang for even just a moment. It only then did they realize that the other party's body possessed almost no force at all the real tremendous force was coming from the huge mountain beneath their feet. Other than the head Lama Ranyong who still managed to remain standing with great effort. The hundreds of monks and Tibetan Buddhism sects master cultivators were screaming in fear as they were broken up by Brother Sang's earth elemental supernatural power. The cultivators on Goddess Peak could only stand and watch as their eyes were bedazzled. The continuous battles were happening as quickly as when a falcon swoops towards a hare. Everything took place in the blink of an eye. The divine swords hummed and flew in a mess in the sky while the chanting of Sanskrit scriptures was still echoing continuously as Brother Sang passed through three levels of barricades. He then jumped in front of the siblings Bushuo and Buzwa with a wildly greedy look on his face. It was apparent that he could already reach out and grab the rabbits yet he stood there for a moment before bursting into laughter as he scolded. All you have is just this tiny bit of ability yet you think that you are worthy to be called a cultivator. Even the mud underneath this old father's shoes is stronger than all of you. Zhui Zi was at a loss whether to cry or to laugh as she asked Changli, is this man really a fool? Changli pouted her little lips and smiled but before she could speak, Fei Fei shook her head as her charming brows knitted tightly into a knot, Hei's being sincere. Xiaowu was sitting in Chan Li's arms and she balled her palms into fists as she clenched her teeth anxiously. She was afraid that the two beautiful rabbits would be captured by Brother Sang just like that and she could not understand in her little mind how the two demon immortals, Chang Li and Zhui Zi, could be so calm. They did not even have the intention to join the fight. As the siblings Bushuo and Buzwa held on to the demon rabbits, they could only see the vision before their eyes blurred three times before the Earth Emperor Brother Sang appeared in front of their eyes. He had feigned a contemptuous attitude after he had mocked them but he refused to stretch out his hands and seize the rabbits himself. Instead, he was waiting for the brothers as he spoke smilingly, hand me the rabbits. Before he could finish his sentence, Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzwa suddenly squalled. They then flung their arms upwards at the same time, tossing the rabbits into mid-air as the siblings turned around and ran away. At the same time, a streak of dangerous white light abruptly blasted in front of Brother Sang's eyes. When Leong was holding the snake knife in his hand as he appeared behind Bushuo and Buzwa without making a sound. He raised the knife and stabbed towards Brother Sang's chest at lightning speed. Brother Sang's telegnosis ability had not detected any enemies around him who was capable of threatening him yet he utterly did not expect the knife to come stabbing so quickly and savagely. When Leung's skill has been controlled to perfection. If Brother Sang were to chase after the rabbits, his body might be cut open from chest to the stomach by this crooked-looking and ghastly pale strange knife. He hurriedly exerted force with his legs and threw his body back as swiftly as the wind. He fell back by half a step before he dashed forward once again he will guarantee that every single one of the enemies before his eyes would die tragically. When Leong too did not think that he would be unable to stab his enemy. He clenched and ground his teeth as he rose vigorously and chased after Brother Sang like a shadow. Brother Sang watched as Wen Leong's face was filled with urgency and he suddenly felt that if he did not allow Wen Leong to struggle for a while, he would be treating Wen Leong unfairly. Brother Sang's ability was almost on par with Wu Dudu who had died at the standing softshell turtle earlier and was far ahead of Wen Leong. However, when one of them retreated, the other would advance when one of them acted in haste, the other would accumulate strength for a takeoff. They chased each other as the gloomy and ghastly pale snake knife's distance from Brother Sang's chest was only less than half a foot away. Brother Sang had not experienced the sensation of retreating for many years. He was so exasperated that he raised the Dharma Mudra seal once again and smashed it onto the ground, draw a circle on the ground to serve as a prison. When Leong encountered the same thing as Lu Zheng. He immediately felt a great weight pinning him down and he could no longer retain his current posture as he almost somersaulted and fell onto the ground. In the midst of pressing affairs, he had managed to shake his wrists and sent the Ning Jiao's snake knife towards the enemy. 
Brother Sang's eyes were filled with savageness as he raised his hand and knocked Wen Liang's flying knife to the side. He stopped his body from falling back and just as he was about to dash forward and give Wen Liang's head a ferocious stomp. The air in front of his body unexpectedly trembled as a giant white python skeleton suddenly appeared out of thin air and bit onto his shoulder with one bite. At the same time, the Ning Jiao's skeletal tail was wagging vigorously and it made a loud noise as it slapped Brother Sang's face. At this moment, two simultaneous thuds sounded as both rabbits tumbled onto the ground with their legs in the air. Everyone had been paying so much attention to Wen Liang's fight that they had forgotten about the two rabbits. Chang Li stomped her foot in rage as she turned over her delicate wrist and retracted the magic spell that she had been accumulating for long. She had been waiting for Grandmother Shudu and the others to leap up and capture the demon rabbits earlier before plunging herself into the state of eternal damnation. The entire scene was dead silent. Other than Chang Li and a few others, no one dared to believe the situation which was taking place before their eyes. The Earth Emperor, who has a cultivation base and supernatural powers which were unsurpassed in this world, had been showing off when he was suddenly forced into retreatment by someone. It was already incredulous enough that he was bitten by the strange snake yet the snake had also suddenly slapped him. The corners of hot immortal aunt, grandmother Shudu, and Sir Rust's lips almost twitched at the same time as if they could feel the Ning Jiao's tail slapping their own face as well. When Leon, who was being pinned down by a great weight, launched the faulty punch continuously. It only took him a moment before he broke the earth elemental magic art. His body floated and he leaped up while the expression on his face was at a loss of whether to cry or to laugh the Ning Jiao bony snake's sharp fangs had not managed to pierce through Brother Sang's skin. Its body alternated between going stiff and straight at this moment while it shook its head and wagged its tail as it attempted to bite desperately. Brother Sang has turned green from rage. He then grabbed the Ning Jiao which was still fighting with his shoulder with one move and swung it onto the ground ferociously. The bony Ning Jiao cried out in agony and disappeared into thin air. At the same time, the Earth Emperor suddenly howled in rage as a spray of golden red colored blood suddenly spurted out from his mouth. His body then swayed and he fell down with his face up. A cheer broke out from the righteous path of the five blessings all of a sudden. Wen Leong, however, was still standing on the same spot as he was feeling slightly puzzled. He could not figure out why Brother Sang had laid down by himself. Though the bony Ning Jiao was sinister and domineering, it was beyond its power to truly injure Brother Sang who was already in the position of a top sword immortal. Grandmother Shudu's body swayed once and she caught Brother Sang before his body could touch the ground. Hot immortal ant's expression was fearful as she asked in astonishment, you were you injured before you came here? Brother Sang completely disregarded hot immortal ant as he stretched out his hand and pointed at Wen Leong. He hissed and roared in rage, kill him on behalf of this old father. Chop him into eight pieces, strip his skin, and pull out his muscles. Upon saying that, his eyes rolled back as he fainted. Once Brother Sang had fainted, the supernatural power which had been launched by him earlier immediately dispersed. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng and the little stutterer both broke free at the same time. They almost fell and sat onto the ground together while the sword formation and the Sanskrit incantation vanished in succession. Both of them were panting heavily blood was seeping out of the seven orifices of the older one's body while the younger one's monk robe was torn. The golden giant Buddha had also been shattered by the sandstorm since earlier. On Sir Rust's face, an almost unnoticeable sense of anxiety flashed past suddenly. It had not been caused by Wen Leong or Lu Zheng's actual powers though these youth's abilities had truly managed to surprise him a little, their abilities were still limited. Any of the remaining three monsters could attack and it would be as easy as breathing to kill all of them. What had truly concerned him was that the mysterious master cultivator who had been opposing his people in secret has yet to reveal himself while only three out of five master cultivators on his side were left. Grandmother Shudu exhaled a long breath as her old face changed into four or five colors continuously like a trotting horse lamp. She then took two steps forward and smiled coldly at Wen Leon as if she wanted to say something. However, the moment she opened her mouth, her legs suddenly shook once as her entire person flew forward like a vengeful arrow. Her two ghastly-looking ghost claws slashed towards Wen Liang's face. If that strange snake-like treasured weapon were to reappear once again, 
Grandmother Shudu was certain that she could rip it into bone shards in a flash. If she does not tear Wen Leong into pieces today, it would not be enough for her to show off. A cold smile hung on the corners of Sir Rust's lips. Ever since his group of people had ascended the mountain, they had been acting too virtuous and sincere all along. The cultivators they had faced today were not chivalrous at all, their feigned hypocrisy had truly been acted in vain. Almost everyone shouted in rage. No one had expected Grandmother Shudu, who had been posing as a person of high morals, could suddenly act ruthlessly against a junior. She has no scruples over her identity at all. Wen Leon was startled too as he hastily fell back. The wrinkles on Grandmother Shudu's face were now pulled into sinister-looking and murderous lines. Her ghost claws were aimed at his anxious and fearful face and she was extremely certain in her heart that she could tear Wen Leong into a pile of rotten meat and crushed bones in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, the sky above her head unexpectedly darkened and her telegnosis ability which had been spread far and wide, as well as her life vitality which was protecting her body, were shattered almost simultaneously. A massive mountain thousands of kilometers tall and exuding a vigorous majesty had suddenly appeared and crashed down onto her on a grand scale. The old woman spat out a mouthful of blood. Even if the ambush had come from the Kunlun Sex sword formation, the sword formation would have been turned into scrap metal before her star plucking hands ability. However, the attack which had flown over was an entire mountain. How could she even tear it apart? It was not only the old woman who was terrified, Almost all the other cultivators were shocked as well. The huge mountain looked to be no smaller than the goddess peak beneath their feet. This time, they were really in deep trouble as even the goddess peak would be crushed. The fear on Wen Liang's face has turned into a maniacal smile which was extremely like Wen Buzwa's as he burst out laughing and yelled, Crush! Grandmother Shudu was almost startled into madness. Her mind was completely empty and she could not even think properly. Suddenly, her entire body's life vitality circulated and shot out seven mud balls which bloomed with silver radiance and formed into the shape of the Big Dipper star constellation. The mud balls surrounded the old woman and when seen from the sky, they had formed the Big Dipper constellation from the Arctic star chart. Sir Rust and Hot Immortal Ant both howled in rage at the same time and reacted vigorously as they urged their supernatural powers in preparation to welcome this blast that was enough to annihilate the world. However, just as the howl had left their mouths, they realized that they were actually screaming in agony while the pain was even more agonizing than their screams. What was even more shocking was the old man Bao Ri, who had earlier fainted from experiencing the extreme emotion of his loss, also jumped up as he squalled. A moment ago, when Shu Lin, who had been busy calculating in the ending cave, suddenly saw a blur in front of his eyes causing him to trip and fall onto the ground. Soon after that, he discovered in astonishment that the devil fetus stone tower in the huge cave had disappeared it took him a moment to react to the situation before he jumped up and pointed to the emptiness in the huge cavern as he stuttered and shouted. Tower, 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 FCK. On the other hand, the monkey Qian Ren who was restoring Qin Zhui's primordial foundation not far away from him sniggered, that is correct, FCK. There was the sound of footsteps as Xiao Sha, who was gasping for breath, ran over. He could not care about resting for a while but instead, selected a text message on his cell phone and showed it to the monkey, take a look, quick. The monkey Qian Ren took the cell phone and glanced at it before his expression changed abruptly. His gaze was sharp as it looked at Xiao Sha, what is written in there. When Qian Ren had ruled over the entire world, they had used the tadpole-shaped oracle bone inscriptions Xiao Sha panted as he read the text message out loud. Qian Ren then suppressed his rage as he howled. He grabbed Wen Shu Lin with one hand while he held the ugly youth Qin Zhui in the other as he dashed towards the goddess peak as fast as lightning. Xiao Sha's mouth was agape. He then pulled a long face and was stunned for a long while before he cursed, you could have at least carried me along right FCK. He then stood up and ran towards goddess peak as well. The sonic boom which accompanied the appearance of the demon tower was like the sound of thunder. Just when it was about to crash onto the goddess peak, it suddenly stopped its falling motion. The air which had been compressed made a loud banging sound as dust, dirt, and fallen leaves were blown about all the way between the two huge mountains as a roaring muffled noise echoed continuously. 
The distance between the demon tower and the top of everybody's head was less than three to five meters. The thousands of cultivators on Goddess Peak were rendered completely silent for a moment before they all suddenly yelled noisily. Everyone then fell and sat on the ground in unison. Some were laughing from extreme rage while some were crying from extreme joy. Three of them were even scolding in rage meaninglessly with all sorts of accents. Chang Li hastily pulled Joy Z as they jokingly exclaimed in dismay and followed the crowd as they fell and sat while Xiao Wu giggled, amused by the scene before her eyes. The stone tower has turned into Wen Liang's treasured weapon so he could release or retract it at will. When Wen Liang had been attacked earlier, it had already breached the void. It then reappeared on the goddess peak and came crashing down with a loud bang. Wen Liang looked at the old man Bao Ri smilingly, why did you stop feigning your death? Why are you not trying to draw people to your side anymore? After Bao Ri had fainted earlier, Fei Fei had texted Wen Liang that Bao Ri was feigning his unconsciousness. He had not managed to hide this from Fei Fei. Grandmother Shudu had discovered, to her surprise, that there were tears pooling in her eyes. She clenched her teeth as she scolded, Little Pstard, why don't you let it drop then? There are thousands of people on this mountain, I would like to see if you are daring enough to crush it. As she was saying that, her body had leaped up once again and pounced towards Wen Leung. The demon tower was suspended in mid-air accompanied by a compression force. However, with the help of hot immortal ant, the old man Bao Ri, and Sir Rust, even if it did come crashing down, they could still withstand it for a moment. The old woman hated Wen Leung so much that she could never vent her anger if she does not kill Wen Leung today. In reality, Wen Leong had no intention of crashing the demon tower into the mountain. He watched as the old woman was about to pounce once again. He could not manage to fall back in time but a rigid voice suddenly burst out into laughter which echoed from within the stone tower, break. The. Demon. Body. The stone tower was enormous. For Guo Huan to cast the, break the demon body, magic spell right now, it was an act which was easier than eating candied peanuts. After Guo Huan's voice had sounded, the pitch black yet matte looking Yang's mistake suddenly appeared in front of Grandmother Shudu's body. The seven mud balls which had been spinning around the old woman's entire body all shook at the same time as they howled and bumped against the Yang's knife the size of a fist. A loud booming noise erupted continuously like meteors crashing against the sun. A force which could shatter everyone's internal organs surged out as eight pieces of treasured weapons that were from the same star genus tangled together in combat. Grandmother Shudu was startled once again. She never expected Wen Liang's treasured weapon to come with its own treasured weapon as well. She cursed in exasperation, you are a little ghost that is despicable and shameless. Wen Liang felt rather outraged by her comment the person who was despicable was not him but Guo Huan. The ghastly pale Yin's error did not carry an ounce of liveliness while at the same time, Yang's mistake was fighting with the seven stars divine mud when it suddenly appeared in a sinister manner and slashed towards the old woman. It was only when the Yin's error was aiming at her neck that grandmother should have discovered the enemy's ambush. The tears in the old woman's eyes finally flowed out as she was completely infuriated by Wen Leong. Her hands coiled up with starlight as she attempted to dissolve the cold murderous power in the yin's error with great effort. When the yin's error and yang's mistake had disappeared together in the end, she immediately spat out a mouthful of fresh blood. She had been severely injured and fell onto the ground completely exhausted. Guo Huan was still marveling at the situation by himself, what an incisive old woman. I'm afraid that her cultivation base is almost at the same level as mine back in those days. Upon saying that, he paused for a moment before he complimented, if I had not ambushed her then, it would not have been so easy for me to defeat her. Whether it was because of the demon tower or Guo Huan, when Leong had surprisingly defeated a top master cultivator. A look of excitement floated on his face involuntarily and just as he was about to speak, the sound of chuckling laughter suddenly echoed from beside him. Hot immortal ant had seized the opportunity when grandmother Shudu was fighting ferociously with Guo Huan to quietly glide next to Wen Liang's side. She turned her plump hands over and Wen Liang was ignited into flames all at once with the sound of a bang. She chuckled charmingly as she spoke, this fire will burn you for a full seven days. It will never be extinguished before you die. 
The Ning Jiao's armor on Wen Liang's body did not need to be summoned as it quietly took form and immediately wrapped around his body. From afar, he looked a little bit like Spider-Man. Soon after that, a burnt odor floated through the air as the Ning Jiao's armor shrieked in agony. It was being burned away by the flames and even though Wen Liang was not in pain yet, his blood was already boiling under the high temperature. Hot immortal ant exclaimed in surprise. She never expected this young lad's messy tricks and treasured weapons to keep emerging continuously without end, he was even covered in a body full of protective armor that was rather remarkable. She then spoke smilingly, I shall see how long you can withstand this. If you can't withstand it anymore, you can try to summon that huge mountain to crash onto the fire. Let us see if that is effective. The cultivators had been shielded by the huge mountain on top of their heads so they could not see that the sun in the sky has grown much bigger than before. It was now blooming with a murderous glow and has assumed a battle-ready attitude together with the devil feed a stone tower from afar. The old man Bao Ri was forming a seal with his hands and he closed his eyes to concentrate. Sir Rust, on the other hand, crossed his arms as his entire attention was devoted to the cultivators on the goddess peak to guard against that mysterious master cultivator's ambush. Grandmother Shudu's chest was covered in fresh blood. She was breathing heavily as she recuperated under the protection of her disciples. Hot immortal ants' eyes have grown brighter and brighter, the Ning Jiao's armor could never withstand the true flames of Red Base Cave for long. These five cultivators were attempting to deal with the demon cat so they could be considered as enemies. However, they were also attempting to deal with Xiang Lu so they could be considered as comrades in RMS but then. They were also attempting to deal with Qian Ren so they could be considered as enemies once again when Liang's thoughts were churned into a complete mess by this disordered relationship. Even though he hated them, he had never thought of killing them when he was fighting. It was only when the enemy had started to ambush him continuously that when Liang truly turned hostile. He patted the flames on his face futilely as he spoke ferociously to hot immortal ant, you've got me. The caterpillar which was fiery red all over shook its head and wagged its tail as it jumped out from Wen Liang's chest. Its body stiffened and it ululated as it shot forward unexpectedly. Hot immortal ant laughed soundlessly, this is a good fire elemental worm. Her hands then moved as fast as electricity and just as she was about to pinch you've got me, her expression changed abruptly. Her body swayed once but before she could fall back, a giant sword which was rippling with flames accompanied by the mannerism of a thousand tons slashed past from beside Wen Leong towards hot immortal ant. The fat woman could not react in time. Her hands suddenly turned into red flares as she pressed onto the giant sword's blade while she screamed. She managed to resist the sword for a moment before she finally made a muffled roar and her plump body somersaulted and fell back. The molten metal fire bell too did not pursue her anymore as it shook and hummed for a moment before slowly disappearing from midair. Everyone else was also becoming infuriated when Leong has turned into four words in their hearts emerge continuously without end. At this moment, when Leong felt a familiar scent floating next to him. It was Zhu Zi who was holding Xiaowu while pulling Fei Fei along. She did not acknowledge the other's astonished gazes as she walked to Wen Liang's side with light footsteps. Following that, she stretched out her hand and waved it. Wen Liang immediately felt a cooling sensation that refreshes the heart and mind spread across his body while the flames on his body were also immediately extinguished. Wen Liang exhaled a long breath as he waved his hand to return the demon tower back to the huge cave the glance that he sent towards Zhu Zi conveyed only one message why did you come now after all this while? Zhu Zi's face was filled with outrage, I would not have come over if I had not seen you catch fire. Chapter, 254 Both Ji Fei and Xu Jing's faces were filled with excitement as they bustled over to the snake knife, which had been tossed by Wen Leong, before retrieving it. Zhu Zi, on the other hand, was smiling as she stretched out her hand and dripped a drop of soul-condensing cold dew on the rabbit's heads. The big and small demon rabbits immediately turned back into their human form and hastily began to put on their clothes. Thousands of cultivators on Goddess Peak stared in bewilderment at the scene. After a long while, Grandfather Pig from the Pig Cat Red Army spat out a mouthful of foul breath as he muttered to himself, This young lad here is too too motherfucking bad. Those around Grandfather Pig nodded strenuously almost at the same time. 
Wen Liang's treasured weapons were no doubt powerful and shocking but the most ironic part which made others wish that they could walk over and slap him was that his treasured weapons were all chained to one another. The snake knife could be summoned by the bony Ning Jiao the demon tower also concealed Guo Huan the bug was the giant sword's guide when Liang had now become exceptionally deadly. Brother Sang, Grandmother Shudu, and hot immortal ant were top sword immortals with exceedingly high cultivation bases. However, they were all injured by Wen Liang's trick of having his treasured weapon chained to another treasured weapon. Hot immortal ant, who was the last to attack, wished that she could have reminded herself of that fact then. When hot immortal ant was being defeated by the molten metal fire bell, Sir Rust's palms were crossed and he was about to attack. However, he had changed his attack pose when he witnessed Zhui Zi's appearance. Ever since they had ascended the mountain, they had not paid much attention to Zhui Zi. It was only until she had revealed herself by first wiping away the red base true fire on Wen Liang's body before helping the big and small demon rabbits to break free from the noble spirit treasured weapon suppression that Sir Rust had a realization. He finally understood that this woman, who had appeared fearful and would blush when she stared straight at someone, has a cultivation base which could only be described as too deep to be fathomable. When the little supreme leader Lu Zheng saw that Zhui Zi has arrived, he immediately ignored the injuries on his body as he leaped up strenuously and ran over to her. He wanted to say something yet his lips could only quiver for a long while without making a sound. The pity on Zhui Zi's face suddenly vanished as she nodded at Lu Jing earnestly, please don't worry, I will never allow others to insult those three who were closest to Tian Shu wantonly. Zhui Zi then asked Wen Liang once again, how had the bug managed to summon the giant sword this time? Ever since You've Got Me had swallowed the sword's resolve, it would jump out every two days and roar as it attempted to summon the molten metal fire bell. However, it had not been successful even once. They would watch You've Got Me exhaust itself and its voice in calling out and feel anxious on its behalf without exception. Zhui Zi had inquired about this proud moment and when Leong pulled the little supreme leader Lu Zheng to his side as he said with a smile, I'm afraid that the giant sword molten metal fire bell is somehow related to the Kunlun sect. Earlier, when the little supreme leader had twice summoned the Kunlun sect sword formation to resist the enemy, when Leong could feel, you've got me, suddenly turned scorching hot on his chest. The fire elemental sword's intent from the molten metal fire bell had rippled from the bug's body. When Leung realized then that You've Got Me was preparing to summon the giant sword once again. Following that, he recalled the sequence of events attentively once again. You've Got Me had successfully summoned the giant sword twice. The first time was when they were in the witch's territory in Shanghai's painting town and the second time was when they were on the Jeladaindong snowy peak. It was the little supreme leader Lu Zheng who had launched the Kunlun sect sword formation first before, you've got me, could summon the molten metal fire bell. As expected, this time was no exception. When Leon was in a splendid mood after he had figured out how the giant sword responded to being summoned. However, as for the relationship between the molten metal fire bell or the sword's resolve and the Kunlun sect sword formation, not one of them could understand that as of now. After when Leong had retracted the devil fetus stone tower earlier, the old man Bao Ri had been too embarrassed to urge his supernatural power to condense in his hand seal. He huffed coldly as he ignored Wen Leong's mockery. However, he then looked straight into Zhui Zi's eyes as he asked softly, So, are you the demon cat Chong Li? Before his voice could face away, Zhui Zi's eyes turned bloodshot and her face flushed red as she complained in rage, You you are a venomous slanderer. At the same time, she held Xiao Wu tightly in her arms as if Xiao Wu was the only person in the world capable of helping her to shoulder this injustice. Whatever the old man Bao Ri was planning to say was stuffed back into his mouth by Zhui Zi's feigned misfortune. He stood on the same spot dumbstruck with his mouth agape, not knowing what to say anymore. At this point, Grandma Shudu and Hot Immortal Ant have already regained their life vitality and temporarily suppressed their injuries. They staggered upright together and Grandmother Shudu's gaze was burning with the heat of a scorching rage. She stretched out her hand and pointed at Wen Leong as she scolded in rage, You little swine who would stab someone in the back, what kind of a person are you actually? Before she could finish her sentence, You've Got Me suddenly jumped onto Wen Leong's shoulder and ululated as the hard spines on its entire body stiffened. 
It was in extreme anger and was about to release its treasured weapon after hearing someone insulting its master. Grandmother Shudder's old face turned ashen and she took a step backward involuntarily. Soon after that, a white jade-like finger suddenly appeared before her eyes. You've Got Me had not unleashed the giant sword but it was Joy Z who had unleashed herself the old woman turned pale from fear and her hands crossed in front of her as she attacked that finger. Soon after that, a muffled popping sound could be heard continuously. Sir Rust and the others shouted in rage simultaneously as they each brandished their treasured weapons or condensed their supernatural powers as they prepared to attack. However, their bodies suddenly felt chilled as gigantic ice spikes appeared out of thin air and froze them all within it in the blink of an eye. Everything had happened in a flash. Just as Sir Rust, Bowery, and Hot Immortal Ant were breaking free from the ice, a crisp popping sound was heard as Joy Z tripped Grandmother Shudu. The old woman staggered and fell back several few steps before she managed to regain her balance with great effort. A layer of thick glacial ice had appeared on her shriveled, ghostly and claw-like hands all of a sudden. In the meantime, Choi Z has already returned to Wen Liang's side. She was holding Xiao Wu in her arms once again and there was a sense of deep sorrow between her brows. Since I have revealed myself, I won't allow any of you to insult him anymore. She then peered at Wen Liang in a slightly fearful manner as if she was afraid that Wen Liang would be upset. The old woman shook her hands repeatedly and she finally struggled free from the ice on her hands with an unpleasant scraping noise. Her gaze was filled with more astonishment than fear as she glared at Joy Z for a long while. Suddenly, she laughed in a strange manner which sounded more like cooing before saying, You're not the demon cat. It looks like you're the surviving evildoer of that family on Jeladangdong Peak. Zhuye Zi's expression suddenly changed and within the piteously few memories that she had managed to regain, her memories were truly related to Jeladangdong Peak. As for that so-called family, it should not be the Hua family which had just recently moved to the snowy peak in just over a thousand years. Each time she discovers a clue which was related to her past, Zhuye Zi's body would tremble gently involuntarily, making her appear weak and fragile until one pitted her. Grandmother should have glared at Wen Leong once again and said, Young lad, how about you? Who are you? Wen Leong had stuffed, you've got me, back into his chest pocket and his gaze showed no signs of yielding as he glared back at Grandmother Shudu. He then replied dully, it was you who had thrown words such as, wicked witch, and evil swine, here and there earlier so you deserve the punishment which was served to you. The expression on his face was cold yet he was blooming with joy in his heart. He felt satisfied with his statement and the depth of his statement's meaning, as well as its enunciation, had been controlled to perfection. It sounded just like in the movies but the thousands of cultivators before his eyes were unimpressed. Whether these cultivators were acquainted with him or not, from the moment he had launched his attack earlier, they had understood that he was related to the demon cat somehow. Sir Rust suddenly took two steps forward and sneered gloomily as he said, So you really are the demon cat's companion. Wen Leong did not wait for Sir Rust to finish his sentence before he sneered back at Sir Rust, so what if I am? At least we are not forcing the cultivators of the world to deal with all of you or to deal with Xiang Lu. Sir Rust was bad at articulating his thoughts and he had not planned to debate with Wen Leong. He struck his hands together and exploded a metallic clanking noise as he laughed hoarsely, since when has the demon cat associated herself with the surviving evildoer from Jeladangdong Peak? Following that, he then raised his legs and took a stride forward towards Zhuye Z. It seems that Sir Rust has determined that the truth has been revealed, that it was doubtlessly Zhuye Z who had murdered Bao Ri's disciples in secret. Bao Ri appeared even more savage as his hands coiled up into the Dharma Mudra seal once again. He was 120% confident that he could kill Wen Leong in one strike. Though Wen Leong was someone holding incisive and peculiar treasured weapons while his cultivation base was also rather shocking, he was still far weaker than any of them. A ace long as Bao Ri devoted all his attention to being vigilant, Wen Leong would be the same as Lu Zheng, he was not a real threat to them. After Sir Rust walked past Grandmother Shudu, she also took quick strides and followed behind him. Though the old woman was severely injured, she was absolutely capable of fighting once again. Hot Immortal Ant, on the other hand, ignited herself in layers of true fire with a booming sound. 
She then returned to Bao Ri's side as she stared at Wen Liang, Lu Zheng, Hope Voice, and those of her junior generation with hostility. The old monster's disciples too started to move with them. They completely disregarded the rogue cultivators as each of them leaped out of the rogue cultivators' crowd. They walked in groups here and there messily as they gathered into a formation. Sir Rust's footsteps moved continuously and his walking posture was very similar to the three-inch nail when Bushuel. Each step that he took was akin to a nail as he nailed himself into the earth and then pulled out his legs and took the next step firmly. He walked as if there was nothing between the heavens and the earth which could stop him from advancing. The sound of footsteps was sonorous and forceful, every step was accompanied by a metallic hum. As Sir Rust walked, the landscape that he walked past suddenly turned into a dull bronze color. Grandmother Shudu followed closely behind Sir Rust. Her seven silver-colored mud balls spun and shot out once again. At the same time, a sonic boom could be heard as the Devil Fetus Stone Tower appeared once again. It was suspended at the edge of the sky and resumed the mannerism of Mount Tai's compression. The rogue cultivators pulled long faces as they gazed into each other's eyes, this mountain was like an enormous psychological shadow for all of them. The snake knife and bony Ning Jiao were not powerful enough while You've Got Me was only occasionally effective. The main purpose for Wen Leong to summon the huge mountain was because Guo Huan was still the most efficient one. Even though the huge mountain was rather impressive, it was a little less assured if he were to crash it. Before the end stage of perishing together with the enemy, this gigantic fatal weapon may not be necessarily useful. Zhui Zi appeared relaxed and she seems to be too lazy to even take one glance at Sir Rust who was getting closer. She even stretched out her hand and patted Wen Liang's shoulder, signaling him to stay calm and be at ease. Wen Liang was slightly puzzled by this. Just when he thought that Grand Master Chong Li would sneakily attack, the sound of footsteps more ear-piercingly loud than Sir Rust's echoed from behind the Five Blessings group. The people of the Five Blessings hastily gave way. After they had taken a closer look at the person approaching them, they all widened their eyes in surprise. A little gold-colored monkey, who was less than two feet tall, had a gloomy and cold gaze on its face while its expression remained innocent and foolish. It stomped its way forward step by step until the huge mountain shook ferociously as it walked towards Sir Rust without pause. Wen Leong was overjoyed. Actually, the monkey Qian Ren had arrived not long ago. The head Lama Rangyong, who was on friendly terms with the monkey, was helping him to protect Qin Zhui and Wen Shu Lin. Both of them were walking at a speed that appeared slow but in reality, they were quite fast. In less than a moment, the taller person met the shorter, one was a human while the other was a monkey. They walked forward together and a loud clanking sound soon broke out on Goddess Peak. It was as if both of them had been bathed in steel and forged in iron. Neither of them had used their supernatural power or treasured weapon. They only stretched out their fists and walked in strides as they started fighting on a grand scale. To everyone else, it was as if their ears were filled with seven or eight blacksmiths hammering way. It was not long before they were dizzy from being shaken by the violent battle between Sir Rust and the Golden Monkey. Some of the rogue cultivators with weaker cultivation bases even fainted while the lonely Chongli was still standing on the same spot. Her huge eyes rolled upwards again and again as if she was pondering whether she should faint as well. Zhui Zi's gaze was still innocently moving as she stared fearfully at Grandmother Shudu who had opened her mouth and was at a loss. She then asked, Why aren't you fighting? The old woman had figured out during her battle with Zhui Zi earlier that if she was not blindsided by Wen Leong, perhaps she could still have a fair chance of winning the fight against Zhui Zi. Now that she has been severely injured, she was absolutely no match for Zhui Zi in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The violent and thunderous sounds echoed for a short while before it suddenly stopped accompanied by the golden monkey's shout. Sir Rust staggered back several paces as the color of rust on his face became even more mottled. It was apparent that he was on the losing end. Even the godlike King Geezer had not been able to kill the golden monkey. Sir Rust and Qian Ren's fight of confronting toughness with toughness was, of course, a losing fight for him. A humming sound rose from the rogue cultivators as they whispered amongst themselves, converging into an unpleasant noise which made one feel agitated. The rogue cultivators felt that their trip to Mount Hua this time has been a bargain for them. 
The righteous path of the five blessings deserved the reputation of its name with the little supreme leader Lu Zhang's A Thousand Swords greeting as well as the little monk Hope Voice's great mercy godly appearance they had managed to witness all these supernatural powers which were practically unseen during the past few centuries. What was even more surprising to the rogue cultivators was that the most orthodox of all Buddhist sects in the world, the Great Mercy Temple, was being led by a demon rabbit. The five monsters have exceedingly high cultivation bases. How many other forces in the world would be capable of stopping them if they were to join hands? Each of their disciples could be plucked out and tossed into the cultivation world and they would still be able to open up a mountain and set up an influential sect. Finally, that when family young lads treasured weapons which had emerged continuously without stop had managed to wound three persons in the blink of an eye. Though there were more than treasured weapons which had emerged continuously, there were also master cultivators. Master cultivators as powerful as divine immortals, the young maiden who always appeared fearful and piteous, followed by the innocent and foolish-looking monkey. Everyone was gasping with fear in their hearts. What kind of sect was the one family and how could they be supported by such vast influences behind their backs? Grandfather Pig from the Pig Cat Red Army looked at his three other siblings. He could no longer suppress the excitement in his heart as his voice trembled slightly with the suspicion of tears, today has been too decadent. Sir Rust was a person of tough temperament and had crossed his arms as he fell back. Soon after that, he snapped his finger ferociously in his blood, which also appeared rusty, splattered everywhere. To everyone's surprise, he had snapped his right hand's index finger. The broken finger clanked as it hit the ground as if it was made from a heavy metal. Following that, Sir Rust shouted, Broken finger golden dagger. His entire person jumped high into the air as he pounced towards the golden monkey. With a loud bang, that broken finger turned into an awe-inspiring golden armored warrior. The warrior pulled out a long sword from his waist with a scraping sound before pouncing towards the golden monkey in a flash. Almost simultaneously, hot immortal ant condensed her heaven-burning raging flames and a thousand streaks of fiery snakes coiled and surged before converging into a mighty fiery current which then swept towards the five blessings. Grandmother Shudu summoned her seven stars revolve and combined her effort with Sir Rust as they pursued the golden monkey. The Dharmamudra seal which had been frozen in old man Bao Ri's hand was suddenly released and erupted with golden light between the sky and the land before it absorbed all the sounds and colors in the world. It was as if the sun had dropped into the mortal world and crashed ferociously onto the goddess peak. The golden monkey had immediately defeated Sir Rust the moment he had appeared. The other four old monsters were afraid that they would lose their chance at triumph this time which was why they made a tacit agreement to simultaneously launch a thunderous attack. There was a clicking sound as, You've got me, who was as undependable as ever, stiffened its body from being startled as it watched the enemy approach them. Its two little black bean-like eyes widened before its body dropped stiffly from one Liang's chest. The giant sword seemed to feel that it was an embarrassment and had not jumped out to help it. The golden monkey howled in rage repeatedly before its tiny body suddenly turned into a streak of golden light that curled upwards. It dragged along layers upon layers of remnant shadows as it fought into a messy clump with the golden armored warrior, Sir Rust with his broken finger, and Grandmother Shudu with her seven stars. Break the demon body. Guo Huan's voice rang out rigidly as Yin's error and Yang's mistake were revealed once again. The sun knife was like the thick and never dissolving night as it immediately swallowed the boundless sea of fire which had been close to engulfing Wen Leong. The moon knife was no longer as soundless as it was previously and it howled sharply from afar. It was rippling with a resolution which was undefeated by the heavens and earth as it slashed ferociously towards Bao Ri. Just as Yin's error and Yang's mistake appeared, Guo Huan suddenly laughed shockingly before saying, This is decadent. Zhue Zi's eyes had brightened up as well as her excitement and joy wiped the sorrow between her brows away. She laughed along as her hand waved continuously, conjuring layers upon layers of sharp ice spikes with a loud bang. Just like the knives which were wild with joy, the ice spikes mercilessly shredded the golden light which was covering the sky. Her delicate and fragile body then swayed once suddenly as an inch of pure white-colored flame ignited from the end of her spring onion-like finger. She used that to attack the hot immortal ant who had been conjuring a fiery waterfall. 
The rogue cultivators who had anticipated the bustling scene to grow bigger and more exciting earlier had all screamed out in agony together. Those with better cultivation bases scattered and ran away in all directions while those with poorer cultivation bases fell onto the ground. Even though none of the supernatural powers being released had been aimed at them, the forces released when these top master cultivators had conjured their supernatural powers was not something which they could withstand at all. When Leung's heart was beating wildly in his chest as all sorts of supernatural powers erupted between the heavens and earth like a puff of scorching flames which caused his blood to boil immediately. Though when Butsao's disciples could be sinister, remorseless, and sometimes a little bit ruthless but they had no lack of inherent heroic bearing when they were faced with violent battles. As when Leung looked upon this bustling scene, he would not stand aside and do nothing. A hissing and howling sound echoed from his side as the bony Ning Jiao, which was akin to a divine dragon, appeared next to him. The poison of life and death in his body was circulating and flowing rapidly. The poisonous power then spurted out of his 36,000 pores and converged into a force which could collapse a huge mountain as he pounced towards Grandmother Shudu who had been standing closest to him. Xiao Wu somersaulted in midair and landed onto the ground. She straightened her back and took one step forward before she stood in front of Fei Fei, shielding her. Xiao Wu then raised the morning staff and assumed the posture of looking for trouble. She appeared righteous and awe-inspiring. Fei Fei's expression was normal, the true water-cold dew which had been planted by Zhui Zi in her was strong enough to withstand the demon powers and divine rage that was wreaking havoc through the sky now. She chuckled as she wrapped her arms around Xiao Wu and held her from behind. Xiao Wu felt angry, she had been created with a body full of good skills but no matter where she went, someone was always holding her back. The golden monkey peered at Xiao Wu in the midst of the pressing affair and his gaze was filled with sympathy for they share the same misfortune. Wen Liang's expression was ferocious with fire spitting out from his eyes. He dashed towards grandmother Shudu savagely but just as he was about to dash into the battle, he suddenly felt a grip around his ankle. A hand had stretched out from the earth without warning and grabbed onto his leg. Wen Liang's posture of dashing forward was extremely strong and vigorous but this hand caused him to trip forcefully and all to the ground, surprised. Wen Liang turned pale from shock. His immediately thought that the giant pangolin Patu was here but he soon sobered up as he realized that aside from Patu who would never create trouble for him. The earth elemental power which had been released from that hand was as hard as a rock and much stronger many times compared to the giant pangolin. The hand that was holding on to him at this moment was like a huge mountain, like the entire goddess peak. Grandmother Shudu seems to be completely engrossed in her battle with the golden monkey but just as when Leong tripped and fell, the old woman suddenly laughed maniacally. She then turned around and raised her hand to shoot a golden-colored mud ball towards the top of Wen Leong's head like a meteor. Brother Sang, who had been lying unconscious next to Bao Ri earlier, had quietly disappeared unnoticed from the old man's side some time ago. When Leong felt exasperated for this group of monsters were all taught by the same master, they were all skilled in the act of feigning death. Some of the quick-witted cultivators were finally enlightened to the fact that these four old monsters had joined hands to deal with the golden monkey, Choi Zi, and Wen Leong. Though they may not necessarily succeed even with incisive treasured weapons, with the addition of Brother Sang who was formless, skilled in earth escape, and capable of ambushing in secret, their chances of success were now at 80%. The bony Ning Jiao howled and hissed as it was about to scurry out and block the mud ball but unexpectedly, another hand had stretched out from the earth and held onto its tail with an accurate yet powerful grip. The bony Ning Jiao then slammed heavily onto the ground with a booming sound. When Liang's mind was completely blank. There was only one voice in his heart the person who was ambushing them was too shameless when Liang had completely forgotten about his pride when he had used his chain of treasured weapons to entrap the other party earlier. Everything had happened in a flash. The big and small demon rabbits the head lama Rangyong the little supreme leader Lu Zheng the little stutterer Xiaowu Wen Bushuo and Wen Buzhuo little Qi Maojiao one word palace's first brother Xia and the other's eyes were cracking with rage simultaneously. It was already too late for them to pounce over and rescue their companions. Even if they were able to do it in time, judging by that pair of hands which was capable of bearing the power of a giant river, they could not handle that as well. It was at this moment that when Leong heard a pleasant laughter from beside him. 
That laughter sounds just like the pleasant rattling of ice cubes in a sour plum soup against a blue glazed porcelain bowl on a hot summer's day. Suddenly, three streaks of pitch black demon blades simultaneously appeared in the air. The first demon blade stabbed diagonally and firmly blocked Grandmother Shudu's golden star mud ball on behalf of Wen Leon. The mud ball and the demon blade then shattered in unison with a sharp clink. The second demon blade chased and pierced as it pursued Grandmother Shudu with lightning speed. The old woman did not even have time to dodge as she clenched her teeth and launched her star plucking hand once again, attempting to rip the sharp blade into pieces. As a result, she fell heavily onto the ground with an agonized scream. Even though she had managed to snap the demon blade in the end, three fingers from her left hand were broken while one finger from her right hand had been chopped off. This was Grandmother Shudu's proudest skill yet in the end, under the influence of her severe injuries and being caught off guard, her skill had been broken by the sharp blades which were charged with demon power. The third demon blade slashed horizontally and there was a popping sound before the reflection of blood could be seen. The blade had sliced cleanly through the hand which was holding on to Wen Liang's ankle. Chang Li looked just like a beautiful girl from next door as she took a step and walked out of the void. She then patted Wen Liang's head in a piteous manner. You had wanted to show off your ability so you deserve to be tripped. As she was saying that, she turned her hands over and dozens of demon blades appeared out of thin air before stabbing deeply into the ground. An inch of icy flame had condensed on the tip of Zhui Zi's finger. This was her most incisive trick ever water in its liquid state could pierce through rock and even steel. Ice at its coldest state could become a scorching flame which could burn the heavens. Hot immortal ant was no match as Zhui Zi's opponent as she has also been severely injured by the molten metal fire bell. The fiery waterfall which she had conjured was unable to resist Zhui Zi's ice flame. It was then extinguished with a puff of black smoke while making a strange squeaking noise. Hot immortal ant has no other way to evade the attack anymore. Just as the ice flame was about to pierce through her forehead, Zhui Zi suddenly disappeared without a trace. The fat woman, who had managed to escape from death, finally discovered the reason why she was alive after a long while. Zhui Zi had somersaulted her way back to Wen Liang's side. She then helped Wen Liang to stand up in a great bustle. Her little, icy cold hand caressed his chest repeatedly while her other hand swept away the sand and soil from Wen Liang's face continuously. She pouted her little mouth and looked like she was about to cry. Are you in pain? Are you in pain? Hot immortal ant understood just then that as a top master cultivator, her life was worth even less than the soil on Wen Liang's face in Zhui Zi's eyes. Chapter 255 Grandmother Shudu's hands had been severely injured and her life vitality was now scattered. She could only tremble as she lay on the ground. Hot immortal ant had managed to escape from death and her supernatural power was still intact but she was so petrified that her mental state had been ruined. She was scared out of her wits as she stood aside rigidly. The golden monkey had torn the golden armored warrior into pieces. Its fists and kicks were like a violent storm as it attacked Sir Rust who was as exhausted as an arrow at the end of its flight. The double doom from Yin's error and Yang's mistake had combined as one. The weapons had circled Bao Ri and spun around him wildly. The golden light which had covered the sky had dispersed earlier, it was unknown when the old man's golden will had been broken. Zhui Zi's face was filled with pity, she looked like she wanted to scoop Wen Leong up in her palms and blow air onto him. Chang Li stabbed her demon blades in and out of the earth. After a moment, an agonized scream accompanied by raging shout could be heard as Brother Sang, who had lost a hand, leaped out of the earth in a confounded state. The moment he revealed himself, Chang Li ambushed him and swiftly sliced his other arm off with the demon blade. Fei Fei was smiling until her eyes were almost squinted shut, she looked unspeakably adorable. Before Bao Ri had feigned his unconsciousness, she had seen through his act at one glance despite him putting a lot of effort to make it convincing. Naturally, Brother Sang's feigned unconsciousness had not escaped her notice either. Sooner or later, he would have to move. Waiting for him to move was like the act of watching a stump in order to catch a hare and Chang Li enjoyed doing it. Fei Fei had not informed Wen Leong about Brother Sang's feigned situation because she was afraid that Wen Leong could not act well in accordance. Chang Li was beaming with joy. 
she was so charming that one dared not stare straight into her eyes. She then wrapped her hands around Fei Fei's shoulder joyously while her other hand pulled Wen Leong to her side as she said, Marry her. Fei Fei was startled and she chuckled as she shook her head strenuously. He already has a wife. It's against the law to marry him. Chang Li was still reluctant to give up and she looked at Zhui Zi, what do you think? Zhui Zi rubbed the area between her brows and looked like she was in a difficult position. She then asked Chang Li in reply, if the pickle jar had taken another woman as his wife. Before her voice could die away, Chang Li had knitted her charming brows and turned green with jealousy as if Tua Xia has already married somebody else. If he marries one, I shall kill double. Upon saying that, she paused for a moment before she added, I shall kill him as well. Zhui Zi laughed soundlessly. The problem is this, you are angry if the pickle jar gets married but I'm actually rather happy if he gets married she then sighed as if she was feeling rather troubled herself. Chang Li blinked and she suddenly had the clarity of an experienced person. That won't do, you still don't think of him as a man. Zhui Zi nodded with a distressed expression, that's true. The five blessings master cultivators who were gathered behind them both had weird expressions on their faces. The battle has yet to be settled but these two female demons were already discussing something else in all seriousness when Leon was even blushing all over as he ran over to the side and greeted the big and small demon rabbits who were standing in their untidy attire. There was a muffled banging sound as Sir Rust was kicked into the air by the golden monkey once again. There was an enormous dent on his chest as he collapsed onto the ground and panted from exhaustion. He has lost all his strength to fight. The old man Bao Ri too suddenly stopped fighting as the healthy reddish glow on his elderly face turned ashen. Even when Shu Lin who had been hiding all along could tell that out of the five monsters, three had been severely injured while one had been scared out of her wits. Zhui Zi, Chang Li, the golden monkey, and Wen Leang, however, were still all in good condition. Therefore, the victor and losers have been determined. This had not gone as the rogue cultivators had imagined. A violent battle between top demon immortals and sword immortals should have taken months or years worth of time but in fact, the entire battle was even faster than a street vagabond's fight. It had only just begun for a short while and the victorious side has already emerged. The dazzling radiance which had rippled out from their conjured supernatural powers and had covered the entire mountain has yet to completely disperse yet four out of five of the top sword immortals have been severely injured. They had suffered an overwhelming defeat. The old man Bao Ri's gaze swept past the smiling Chang Li, the piteous Zhui Zi, and the innocent and foolish golden monkey before finally stopping on the blushing Wen Liang's. He suddenly felt a gush of raging blood surging in his chest and the old man hated Wen Leong so much that he gritted his teeth loudly. Under the joined efforts of these three top demon immortals before his eyes, it was difficult for the five on his side to succeed. Yet, here was this Wen Leong who had messed up the situation for a long while since the beginning. The rogue cultivators who had been yelling and running everywhere earlier also stopped moving as they calmed down and turned their ears. Waiting patiently to eavesdrop on the biggest mystery in the cultivation world to occur during the past few millenniums however, Zhui Zi and the others soon disappointed all of them. Chang Li waved her hand at Ji Fei and Shui Jing as she instructed, Both of you, please continue the meeting. Soon after that, Wen Liang's group then carried the five monsters to a giant rock on the mountain's peak and blocked themselves from the rogue cultivator's line of sight. As for Sir Rust, Grandmother Shudu, and Brother Sang who had been so severely injured that they could not move anymore. They were then pulled along and guided by Zhui Zi in the air before being tossed onto the back of the giant rock. The monster's disciples did not portray that they were infuriated or unyielding because of their leader's injuries. Instead, they stood together noisily as if they did not possess their own awareness at all. It was almost as if they would only respond to their sect master's command before they made a move. Other than that, they continued to stand rigidly on the spot. Even after their sect masters had been captured, their disciples had remained completely unmoved. Of course, the people from the Wan and Miao family, the big and small demon rabbits, Lu Zheng, and the others had followed behind Chang Li immediately. After they had arrived at the giant rock, the golden monkey clasped his hands behind his back as he spoke to Wen Leong and the others, I know all about these people's cultivation methods. 
Their first ancestors were all the Kong Nuer subordinates. Following that, it looked at Changli once again as it asked, So, you have an enmity with Kong Nuer as well? Changli pouted her lips but before she could answer, the golden monkey's gaze suddenly turned sharp and strong as he turned and looked at the monsters who were in surrender. His voice was sinister yet hateful as he said, Where the hell is Kong Nuer? For heaven's sake, it's best that he is still alive. The monsters' faces were perplexed, it was apparent that they had never heard Kong Nuer's name before. Zhui Zi patted the monkey's shoulder gently as she said, Please stay calm, this matter I don't think it's considered all that complicated. The monkey rolled his round eyes as he sniggered and sneered but did not say anything else. Chang Li asked Fei Fei secretly, Which one do you think is the easiest to be interrogated? Fei Fei laughed and was full of confidence as she replied, That would be Bao Ri. This old man is outwardly tough but inwardly weak so he would be the best to be interrogated. Chang Li was elated by her reply. Soon after that, she glanced at Wen Leong and her face was filled with regret as she shook her head. Her gaze conveyed one message what a waste that you can't marry this girl who is going to make a good wife for you. Wen Leong was at a loss whether to cry or laugh. He then sent a look at Grand Master Chang Li which was filled with the intention of stop messing with me, I'm not worthy to marry this type of woman. Bao Ri's chest was heaving up and down vigorously. He had to inhale a few deep breaths before he could suppress the unwillingness in his heart desperately. He then looked at Chang Li, so, are you the demon cat, Chang Li? Chang Li nodded unhappily as if her reputation was so famous yet the old man had not recognized her. The muscles on Bao Ri's face twitched. All of you who was the one out of you all who had killed my disciples. There was a sense of uncertainty between Chang Li's brows but before she could speak, an agonized scream suddenly broke out from the side. It was ghastly to the utmost extent. The Earth Emperor brother Sang who had lost one arm to Chang Li was like a catfish with its tail pulled off as he curled up desperately on the ground and rolled about. The blood which had seeped out from his wound covered his entire body and his face was so convoluted that one could not tell which was his nose or mouth. The rogue cultivators who had been quietly waiting for a long time could not see the situation which was taking place behind the giant rock. They also dared not probe the area with their telegnosis ability. However, when they heard Brother Sang's howling, they could no longer refrain themselves and burst into an uproar as they started discussing fervently amongst themselves. There was the look of excitement which could not be concealed on their faces as they thought that Chang Li was torturing her prisoner. Ji Fei and Shui Jing had not followed them to the giant rock but had remained standing before the rogue cultivators. Their expression was not arrogant or agitated. Instead, there was a sense of pride on their faces. It seems like they were already too lazy to speak to the rogue cultivators. Behind the giant rock, Bao Ri's old face dimmed and there was unconcealed fear in his eyes. He looked at Chang Li and the others in terror while hot immortal ant roared sternly as she moved her body and pounced towards the Earth Emperor. Chang Li shouted in rage, Are you looking for your own doom? She immediately swayed her body and blocked hot immortal ant in midair. At the same time, Choi Zi's eyes were filled with astonishment as she looked at Wen Leong and asked softly, Did you use poison earlier? A layer of black and white color was entangled on Brother Sang's broken wrist. The grayish color which made one feel suffocated and nauseated was crawling downwards inch by inch to his arm. Wherever the gray color touched whether it was his skin, flesh, or bone, it caused his arm to peel off in layers like a freshly blooming flower. It then turned into a puddle of pus which would not reflect a single point of light despite basking under sunlight. When Leong was stunned before he was suddenly enlightened and nodded. When Brother Sang had held on to his ankle earlier, it was a life and death situation which had made Wen Leong instinctively expel the poison of life and death, causing Brother Sang to become poisoned. The poison of life and death which had absorbed the water elemental poison could be expelled from his body while the poison of life and death which had absorbed the earth elemental poison had set down roots in the earth to ensure continuous liveliness. The moment Chang Li's demon blade had sliced through the earth emperor's wrist, the strong poison on Brother Sang's palm had passed through the wound caused by the demon blade and spread completely into his broken wrist. Everything had happened in a flash and the act of expelling the poison had not even passed through Wen Liang's mind. He had reacted instinctively after being ambushed. 
even when Leong has just figured out the situation now after he realized how Brother Sang had been poisoned. Based on the Earth Emperor's cultivation base, even if he was accidentally tainted by rare poison, he could still dissolve the poison by cultivating his pure and strong life vitality. However, his other arm had been completely amputated, causing severe injuries in his life vitality to become scattered. Therefore, he could no longer resist the poison of life and death which has taken effect at this moment. Brother Sang could not withstand the strong poison's invasion and he screamed heart-wrenchingly over and over again. When Leon could only shake his head for his poison of life and death could be considered as the top rare poison in the world and there was utterly no way he could nullify it. Zhui Zi has an indifferent expression on her face. The Earth Emperor had insulted Tian Shu and others so Zhui Zi was not going to let him live since the beginning. After a moment, a shocked and uncertain expression suddenly appeared on her face. She then looked as if she was deep in thought before her expression changed to a look of realization. When Leon observed Zhui Zi's rather unusual expression and he thought that she had been injured during the violent battle. He then asked softly, what happened? Zhui Zi realized that when Leon was showing concern for her and her expression turned into the appearance of a little girl who was surprised and joyous all at once. She immediately shook her head strenuously and turned towards the Earth Emperor brother Tsang who was still struggling and screaming on his own. She then said irrelevantly, this strong poison has no antidote, it's best for you to reveal yourself now. Before her voice could die away, Brother Sang's agonized scream suddenly turned into a strange giggle. Soon after that, his body straightened as a puff of faint green-colored smoke slowly coiled out of his ear. It then gradually condensed into a dark green-colored shadow beneath the sunlight. Brother Sang's body had stopped moving. His corpse was subsequently corroded by the poison of life and death and turned into a puddle of thick and murky purging fluid in the blink of an eye. Hot immortal ant who had been trying to charge at Changli with great effort in order to save the Earth Emperor cried out in alarm. She staggered back and fell onto the ground as she pointed at the green-colored shadow, what what are you? The green-colored primordial soul was surprisingly in the shape of a strange nine-headed snake. However, all the nine heads on Xiang Lu's true body was of the same size while this primordial soul has one particularly large head. The other eight heads were the size of grapes and were hanging limply from the neck in an askew manner. This made the snake appear ghastly and hideous. No one had expected the Earth Emperor Brother Sang's primordial spirit to be a demon snake and they were all greatly startled. They hastily spread out in all directions but when Leong could not help but tug Zhui Zi's arm. What is this? Zhui Zi's face did not show her usual sorrowful expression nor was she showing her cold and infuriated expression. She only replied dully, this is one of Xian Lu's nine-headed evil soul. When Le Yang's heart thudded loudly and there was only one thing on his mind has another evil soul escaped. This signifies that another of the heaven's cone nail on black and white island has been broken. Xian Lu has nine heads but ten souls. There was one evil soul in each of the nine heads and at the same time, there was an additional true soul in his body who controls the overall situation. The eight evil souls' life vitality force was far weaker than the true soul. The true soul was capable of possessing the Dharma body of the enlightened Tian Yin while the evil souls were far inferior to it. The water elemental evil soul which had been imprisoned in Guohuan's body had only managed to possess the Taoist priest San Wei who was not well known and had a poor cultivation base back then. Under Changli, Zhui Zi, and the others' vigilance, it was naturally not an easy task for this evil soul to try and possess anyone else. Since this evil soul was incapable of possessing a body, it would not be able to harm the other cultivators. However, the same applies to them as well and whether it was Changli, Zhui Zi, Bao Ri, or the hot immortal ant, they were all helpless when it comes to dealing with the evil soul. Other than Black and White Island's orthodox cultivation method, there was only one other method which had been proposed by Misu back then which was effective when it comes to dealing with the evil soul. Nevertheless, even if Misu could be resurrected, they would not be able to find another person like Fifth Brother Hanba. The green-colored evil soul was aware that not one person in the crowd was able to deal with it so it was not in a hurry to escape. It looked at Zhui Zi with interest, I had brought along the treasured weapon which could isolate my soul power with me and yet you were still able to recognize me? 
There was a very human expression on the snake's face and that made Wen Leung feel tight and uneasy in his chest. Zhue Zi laughed joyously, I had not recognized you initially but the moment you had become tainted by the strong poison and started struggling, that treasured weapon could no longer conceal your stench anymore. Zhue Zi had suppressed Xiang Lu on the black and white island for countless years so she was extremely familiar when it comes to Xiang Lu's smell. She then paused for a moment before continuing, which element of the snake's soul do you belong to? How did you even possibly come to possess Brother Sang's body? The Earth Emperor's cultivation base was profound while his primordial spirit was full and plump. Even if the true soul were to exercise control over him, it would take the true soul another century or millennium before the true soul could completely succeed. It would have been quite an impossible task for this evil soul here. This evil soul's voice was rough and heroic. That voice sounded like it would belong to a burly fellow with a mustache. The wood element. It then laughed out loud. That wood element heaven's cone nail had suddenly withered by itself. I had been a little puzzled in the beginning but I finally understood after then that this old father's luck was still on his side. The wood elemental evil soul did not even look at the rest of the cultivators as it continued to speak on its own accord. The wood element heaven's cone nail had been condensed from the utmost wood essence of the Go Mang's spiritual seed's immortal root. The wood element dominates growth and the spiritual seed's immortal's root would constantly absorb the spiritual primordial energy of the world at all times. Therefore, it should continue to grow stronger and bigger and was supposed to be the hardest to destroy amongst the nine heavens cone nail. However it had a fatal flaw. The immortal's root and the devil's spell in the spiritual seed were from the same root and would grow together. The golden monkey Qian Ren suddenly erupted into a series of desolated yet aggrieved laughter, Kong Nuer had harmed me so that he could condense this nonsense with element heaven's cone nail. It's all good, very good. Even though the evil soul had not told them about the entire sequence of event, Qian Ren had understood how it all played out at this moment. Out of the nine demons suppressing heaven's cone nail on the black and white island, the wood element heaven's cone nail had been refined from the immortal's root within Go Meng's spiritual seed. Qian Ren had been betrayed by Kong Nuer back then because his good friend had wanted to use Qian Ren's body as the catalyst so that the Go Meng's immortal's root could be fused with the ending cave's wood spirit and condensed into the wood element cone nail. The immortal's root and devil's spell within the Go Meng seed were entangled with one another. They share the same root and would grow together so when one died, the other would soon follow. If Kong Nuer was attempting to use the wood element heaven's cone nail to suppress Xiang Lu eternally, he could not allow the devil's spell to die. This was why he had used the star chart protective circle to change ending cave circulation of spirit primordial energy, turning the land of wood spirit into an area of yin energy on the huge mountain and had used it to grow the devil spell. Kong Nuer had been growing the devil spell but not the devil fetus. He had been growing the spiritual seed with only the devil spell in it to ensure the survival of the immortal's root. Without the mutual complementation of vital fire, the Go Mang seed with only the devil's spell could never transform into the devil fetus despite being buried for another million years. However, one man's scheme was inferior to those made by heaven, all sorts of causes and effects had been predetermined in the unseen world since earlier. The Go Mang seed had stolen Guo Huan's split body and taken his vital fire. It was then incubated into the devil fetus which then grew into the stone tower before it had been finally killed by Wen Leong and his group. The moment the devil fetus died, the wood element cone nail had withered as well. Following the escape of the water element evil soul and Xiang Lu's evil soul, the wood element evil soul too managed to struggle free from its shackles and could see the light of the day once again. The water element evil soul had been trapped by Hanba earlier so the nine-headed evil souls had lost one of their comrades and could not unite their efforts to break the formation. They could only free themselves one by one and the wood element evil soul was of no help even if it were to remain in the snake's head. Hot immortal ant's voice sounded hoarse and contained a heartfelt rage. There seems to be almost no friendly relationship between the old monsters but the earth emperor and hot immortal ant appear to have an intimate friendship. How how had you killed Brother Sang? The event had taken place only one to two days ago. As the wood element evil soul was making its escape, the true soul Tian Yin was recuperating from his injuries on the black and white island. T 
Tian Yin had been recently injured by the firecracker's water elemental poison on the snowy peak. He had then fought ferociously against the cultivators who had been rushing over to suppress the dog-headed eagle on the highland. At that point, he has yet to regain his full health. The old man Bao Ri exclaimed in surprise as he gazed into the eyes of the other. The nine-headed Xiang Lu still has another true soul. His tone of speaking then turned incredulous, other than the evil souls in the nine heads, there's one more true soul still. Chang Li huffed in reply to his question. Following that, she looked at the wood element evil soul and said, keep talking. The true soul and the evil soul were like blood brothers, they were naturally overjoyed when they met again. The wood element evil soul received its big brother's care who had already refined his dharma bodies the moment the evil soul had entered the mortal world. The wood element evil soul's luck was better than the water element evil soul back then by many folds. In the evil soul's perception, the most urgent matter on hand was naturally for it to look for a suitable dharma body so Tian Yin had immediately brought it back to the land of the east. Tian Yin then only needed to probe around before he learned that all the sex cultivators were rushing towards Mount Hua's goddess peak in preparation to attend the meeting so he too had rushed over. At this point, Wen Liang's expression changed drastically as he examined his surroundings vigilantly. The wood element evil soul burst out into laughter, saying, the first brother isn't here. Otherwise, how would he have allowed all of you to act rashly like this? When Tian Yin and the wood element evil soul had arrived on Mount Hua, when Leong was still anxiously waiting for the divine punishment. Tian Yin had felt even more overjoyed when he discovered a body that was exceptionally fine which belonged to the earth emperor brother Sang. Even though he has already dissolved into pus, when Leong, Chang Li, and the others could not help but peek at the real brother Sang in a pitying manner. The real brother Sang had been targeted by Tian Yin so his only ending was death. Tian Yin's personal cultivation base was stronger than the Earth Emperor's. Whether it had been intentional or not, Brother Sang had almost no chance to even resist before he was captured. Prior to that violent battle, Hot Immortal Ant had cried out in alarm that Brother Sang had been injured beforehand. Those injuries had been sustained when Tian Yin had ambushed him. Soon after that, Tian Yin brought Brother Sang and the wood element evil soul as they traveled for over a thousand kilometers. They then returned to the highland snow peak and entered the ore cave above the Jiangandiru glacier. Even though Wen Leong could already make a rough guess on the course of events in this matter, he still could not help but sigh. The crystal ore cave was protected by the 13 shall not pass prohibition spell which had been created specially to target one's primordial spirit. The real earth emperor's primordial spirit and soul were then erased by domineering prohibition spell until the wood element evil soul only needed to exert a little bit of power before it occupied this dharma body with profound earth elemental cultivation method. The golden monkey Qian Ren was slightly puzzled as it asked, the ore cave. Thirteen shall not pass. It has yet to be informed about that prohibition spell. Wen Leong then explained the situation to it simply. Only then did Qian Ren exhale a long breath and laughed bitterly, these prohibition spells had been virtually made for the evil soul to seize new abodes. It then frowned once again. How had Tian Yin brought the human into the prohibition spell? Was he not afraid that he could be injured too? When Leong burst out laughing as he had once asked a question which was similar to Qian Ren's. This time, when Leong did not wait for Zhui Zi and Guo Huan to speak before he answered, you tie a rope around the person's waist, toss them into the cave and then pull them out. Xian Ren was suddenly enlightened, that's a good idea. After the wood element evil soul had occupied Brother Sang's body, Xiang Lu had then sent it back to Mount Hua again. He was exhausted by all the work so he returned to the black and white island alone to recuperate. At this point, Chang Li shook her head gently. Wait, the timing is incorrect, the Gomang's devil fetus had died only one or two days ago. After when Leong and the others had killed the devil fetus and returned to the ground level, they had waited for the god's punishment for one day before they rushed over to Goddess Peak. Everything else had happened in one short day yet Tian Yin had managed to bring the evil soul to Mount Hua from the Black and White Island. He had then traveled from Mount Hua to the Snow Peak before finally rushing back from the Snowy Peak to Mount Hua when Buzwa stuck his tongue out from the side and started talking garrulously. How many kilometers had Tian Yin been driving in an hour? 
no one acknowledged him as everyone's eyes remained rooted on the evil soul. The evil soul's laughter was prideful as it said, Black and White Island's three eminent persons Tian Yin, Tian Shu, and Tian Hua's powers have been accumulated in First Brother's body. Even though he had been slightly injured recently, he has made a new level of advancement in the comprehension of his orthodox cultivation method and refined the distance talisman. Those who were less competent such as Wen Leong, Little Chi Maojiu, Wen Bushuo, and Wen Buzhua felt that the name sounded slightly peculiar. However, the knowledgeable cultivators' faces were all shocked without exception the distance talisman allows one to travel a great distance instantly when the talisman was broken. If one were to refine such a talisman, from then on one could travel a thousand kilometers in a flash. One could even breach the void and travel through the void. There would be no place in the world that one would be incapable of going anymore. However, such a talisman would exhaust a good amount of spirit primordial energy from a person. The act of capturing the Earth Emperor alive was naturally not an easy task. No wonder Tian Yin had been too weak to participate in Mount Hua's meeting. He had left the wood element evil soul behind before he desperately returned to the Black and White Island to recuperate. The old rabbit Bulu managed to suppress the fear in his heart with great effort as he spoke in a trembling voice, no wonder Tian Yin could travel over such a great distance in one day. Unexpectedly, the wood element evil soul suddenly shook its head with a maniacal smile as it corrected, half a day. It had only taken the first brother half a day's time to complete all these tasks. I've been here since earlier, that old dog Bao Ri's disciples had been killed by this old father. Ha! The evil soul had first ascended the mountain to slaughter Bao Ri's disciples. It had then left and rushed back again to create the impression that he had been late to the meeting. Chang Li then exhaled a long breath. She smiled as she looked at the evil soul and said, Looks like you've really messed up the situation. Wen Leong too laughed bitterly as he shook his head. To his surprise, the Earth Emperor Brother Sang had been possessed by the evil soul all along. Everything has become clearer now, no wonder it had acted like a starred the moment it had ascended the mountain. It mocked the cultivation world before insulting the Black and White Island. In addition, aside from its plot against Bao Ri's disciples, as long as it was there, sooner or later everyone would have been incited to fight. The evil soul widened its sharp and pointy mouth as it laughed as well. Still, I never expected all of you to be on Goddess Peak too. Huh, this bustling scene is truly too decadent. What a waste that first brother can't witness this. Upon saying that, it looked left and right as if it was trying to confirm if there was anything else it needed to do. It then burst out into laughter again. I'll be returning to the Black and White Island now. Take care, perhaps one of you will be captured by first brother and dragged into the ore cave by then, everything will become very interesting. The wood element evil soul was helpless against the crowd but they were equally helpless against it. In comparison, the person with the least burden and worry on the goddess peak right now was this evil soul. Its laughter echoed through the mountain as its translucent green-colored body shook once in preparation to leave whether it was Xuezi. Chang Li, Qian Ren, or even Bao Ri and the hot immortal ant, a sense of unwillingness and helplessness floated onto their faces. None of them expected at this moment for a series of ululations to burst out from Wen Liang's chest. Chapter 256 No one had expected that, the moment the evil soul was about to leave, the most agitated one was surprisingly you've got me. The bug stiffened the stings on its body, it squalled as it pounced forward, and shot right into the evil soul without hesitation. The evil soul had a form but no substance, it was completely force-free, you've got me flew through the evil soul directly, and landed on the ground. The moment the bug landed on the ground it immediately slammed its body and leaped up once again, akin to an acrobat that was practicing to jump through hoops. It shot through the evil soul with a graceful posture once again, not only were the others puzzled, the evil soul itself was feeling rather strange, it sniggered, this bug has turned into a fool. Before it could finish its sentence, a puff of scorching heat that could even char spirits and souls rippled in midair all of a sudden, molten metal fire bell abruptly appeared. The giant sword shook rapidly in accordance to You've Got Me's ululation, and formed into gushes of shocking hum. This was different from the usual sword's hum in the past, this time, 
molten metal fire bell was rippling with the pleasing yet soul-rinsing sound of bell. It was until this moment, the giant sword's hum, had finally adopted to the word bell, in its name. After the giant sword revealed itself, the evil soul that had been calm and fearless all along firstly displayed the indifferent expression of mockery, until when it heard the sound of bell. Its expression suddenly turned frightened, it gave out a hiss from the depth of its throat, it shook its head and wagged its tail as it turned around and ran. You've got me would never allow it to run away, it immediately jumped up and continued to jump through hoops, within the terrifying sound of bell, molten metal fire bell suddenly surged skywards, soon after its gigantic sword's blade spun around. The tip of the sword was facing downwards, it was accompanied by the force of a thousand tons as it roared all the way from the top of the heaven, and pinned down onto the evil soul ferociously. The thrust of a tremendous force was not as imagined by the people, that stabbed the giant sword deep into the mountain rock. On the contrary, it precisely used the tip of the sword to pierce into the evil soul's neck, the evil soul that had a form but no substance. Was surprisingly and truly nailed down by the giant sword, it was shaking its head and wagging its tail with a petrified expression, yet it did not manage to break free all along. On the sword's blade of the molten metal fire bell, layer upon layer of flames rippled and rolled continuously, while the flame's color, from the color of deep red, within its tossing and turning it gradually turned into brass. Followed by bright yellow, shimmering golden, and finally into the dazzling and enchanting color of silver that was so bright it made one could not look straight into it at all. Zhuizi's ice fire, was spotlessly white and flawless, as if it was condensed from the holiest and purest snow on the snow peak. While the giant sword silver fire, was piercing yet vigorous, akin to the combustion of the shocking lightning and surging thunder up in the ninth heaven. The giant sword pinned down the evil soul, the silver fire was akin to a raging poisonous snake, that coiled down continuously from the giant sword. And licked at the evil soul's body without substance again and again, every time it licked, the evil soul would certainly erupt in a loud and bitter cry. The silver fire grew more and more, stronger and stronger, until finally the entire molten metal fire bell seems to turn into a silver-colored waterfall. Its ferocious flames flowed like a swarm of bees, and rolled towards the evil soul in a domineering manner. You've got me ululated and jumped next to the giant sword, it turned from an acrobat into a cheerleader. It was unknown how long had passed, the evil soul's bitter cries turned into sorrowful screams, and finally condensed into an unwilling sigh. The silver-colored scorching flames on the giant sword too extinguished along that, the molten metal fire bell turned back into its previous reddish magnificence. After the flames disappeared, the evil soul too disappeared accordingly, leaving behind a twisted snake-shaped depression mark on the ground. One of the ten souls of the invincible and immortal nine-headed Xiang Lu that inspired fear through the entire world, vanished just like that. You've got me was done performing, it raised its body that was getting fatter with each passing day proudly, soon after it widened its little black eyes. The people whom were watching were all widening their mouths, they stood transfixed to the ground in dumbstruck. It was until after a long while, the golden monkey Qian Ren recovered from its surprise, it glared at Wan Leong in astonishment, this sword here what is its origins actually? Fei Fei sniggered and laughed loudly from the side, you said it before yourself, the fire master. The monkey's old face blushed scarlet, it was only then it suddenly remembered that it once made up a lie about the fire master in the past. It was purely lying back then in order to find itself some leverage, the fire master was literally created from scratch. When Leong spat out a mouthful of foul breath heavily, he dug out you've got me that had just jumped into his mouth, that was still cheering joyously. And placed it cautiously onto his palm, he looked towards the few top demon immortals beside himself, what what is going on here? The molten metal fire bell is capable of killing the evil soul. Chang Li's expression was also very peculiar, she gave a rigid smile with great effort, what a waste that the evil soul has been dissolved, judging by its final terrified appearance, it should have recognized the giant sword. This molten metal fire bell is not related to the Kunlun sect, but it is closely connected to the Black and White Island. While Zhuye Zi was saying that, she stretched out her hand and rubbed on her cheek, the muscles on her face were moving again, she regained her previous piteous appearance. The true fire that was used by the giant sword to dissolve the evil soul, was a profound magic art of the orthodox black and white island. 
Xiang Lu was a giant monster from the primitive ages, it seized the creation of the heaven and earth and was invincible, the evil souls in its head. Were also the utmost abominable and utmost evilest filth, without a profound skill that was exceedingly profound, there was no way it could be dissolved. When Leung nodded, ever since the battle of the city god temple, the enlightened person Tian Shu once met him, and Tian Shu once mentioned that the effort of dissolving the evil soul required the three sword immortals of the black and white island to make the move, it would only be effective only by using the profound orthodox magic art. Zhui Zi observed his appearance, she had a rough idea on what was O.M. his mind, she laughed as she nodded, that silver flame that was condensed by the giant sword earlier, it is the utmost purest in the Taoist school. When Leong did not wait for her to finish her sentence, he acted presumptuous and continued, the true fire of Samadhi. Zhui Zi burst out laughing as she shook her head, stop pretending to understand when you do not. The true fire of Samadhi is not the only true fire that exists. The flame that is contained in the giant sword, is the true fire of heavenly plow that is inherited by the black and white island's disciples. It is the true fire of heavenly plow that is refined from the ninth heaven's divine thunder. In the Taoist school magic art, the thunder conjuration and thunder magic art held extremely important positions, during the ancient times, master cultivators emerged in an endless stream in the cultivation world. Generally the orthodox disciples were skilled in the thunder magic art, their supernatural powers were so powerful they frightened the heaven and moved the earth. The black and white island cultivated in the true fire, which was gathering the true fire of heavenly plow that was refined by the divine thunder. Even though it was not as famous as the true fire of Samadhi, but its power was no less inferior, on the issue of refining soul, the heavenly plow was even more powerful and domineering than Samadhi. It was the black and white island secret that was never passed down, titular disciples like the little supreme leader Lu Zheng, was not even qualified enough to learn about it right now, he had never even heard of the enlightened person Tian Shu's mentioned before. At this point, Zhui Zi heaved a sigh in a dejected manner, Tian Shu and Tian Hua were looking for the evil soul for the past two thousand years, they were planning to use the true fire of heavenly plow to refine it. The wood element evil soul was showing off, yet it had absolutely never expected that you've got me was its jinx. It used the Taoist school's true fire of heavenly plow that was hidden in the molten metal fire bell to burn it into a scattered and dispersed soul. If the evil soul were to continue hiding in the true body of Xiang Lu, then the molten metal fire bell would be helpless even if the sword was three times bigger, yet the evil soul escaped out of its body. Without the protection of its flesh body, moreover it bumped into its old opponent that inherently inter-restricted it, it was a wonder if it could survive that. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng could only feel as if the power on his body was drenched all at once at this moment, he slowly sat onto the ground. And cried bitterly and loudly all of a sudden, the master teacher's valiant souls are already deceased, yet the true fire of heavenly plow reappeared in the mortal world. The true fire genuinely dissolved the evil soul that was still insulting them earlier. The law of heaven punishes the guilty and rewards the kind, what goes around comes around. The three esteemed master teachers will know about this in the nether world, they will even raise their heads to the sky and laugh aloud for three times. Everyone on the scene felt grieved upon hearing that without exception, the old man Bao Ri was pursing his lips intentionally in the beginning. When he suddenly realized that Chang Li was staring at him with glimmering eyes, he hastily raised his sleeve and wiped his tears pretentiously. Just like how Fei Fei had mentioned, the old man albeit possessed profound cultivation base and was full of cunning tricks, but in the final analysis he was still a person with cowardly temperament that bullied the weak and feared the strong. When he was defeated, he did not even have the courage to mobilize the few of his monster sect disciples to risk their lives and fought. At first there was the three persons Changli, Zhui Zi and Golden Monkey with the utmost cultivation base, followed by the strong poison that caused so much pain to the earth emperor he wished he could die. And finally there was the true fire of heavenly plow that was contained in the molten metal fire bell, every single one of those events made Bao Ri terrified, the old man was afraid of these monsters of every description from the bottom of his heart. Lu Jing cried loudly for a while, only then he dried his tears and stood up, his gaze that was still rippling with tears appeared crystal clear yet bright. He spoke to Wen Leong solemnly, I still have one more question, I would like to ask you. Wen Leong nodded earnestly. 
Can you please give me the bug? Wen Leong did not expect that Lu Zheng would play the same old trick again now, he was at a loss of whether to laugh or cry. One was a descendant of an old friend, while the other was a friend in adversity, Zhui Zi stood in between the both of them and did not help either, she chuckled as she continued. The giant sword is closely connected to the black and white island, no wonder the bug can only summon the molten metal fire bell, every time after the Kunlun sword formation was launched. The true fire of heavenly plow that was hidden in the giant sword was the secret that was never passed down of the black and white island. Even though the Kunlun magic art only taught of the superficial skill of the black and white island, but it was still considered of the same root and same lineage. Even though you've got me swallowed the sword's resolve, but it was still a bug anyhow, it could not summon the giant sword just by depending on itself, but once the Kunlun sword formation was revealed. No matter how far the two sides were separated the sword formation would still awaken the sword's intent of the molten metal fire bell, in addition to you've got me summon, the giant sword would immediately appear with a loud bang. When Leung's thoughts were still on the molten metal fire bell, he muttered to himself for a while before he asked Shui Zi, so this sword here raise not a fire element. Everyone grew impatient, even darling little five two gave him an evil stare, there was only Zhui Zi whom was joyous and excited, as if the most splendid thing in the world was to talk to Wen Leong, the giant sword contains the divine thunder's heavenly fire. It does not belong to the five elements of the mortal world, even though it may appear fiery and powerful on usual days, but it is not a precious of the fire element in the five elements, but it is the Taoist school's heavenly fire power tool. When Leon was clearly confused, he continued to inquire closely with unyielding courage, but you've got me as the king of bugs in the fire element of the five elements that larva, it swallowed the sword's resolve. Zhui Zi finally understood his question, she laughed aloud as she answered, the people whom divided all the matters in the world into yin and yang and five elements, are all of you, but not you've got me. The Buddha's light bug is a bug of fire element, when it realizes that it is capable of eating and swallowing the power of vigorous fire. Of course it will pounce over and feast, it does not care about any of those heavenly fire or five elements fire, as long as it is edible then all is well. Sub act of killing brother Sang's evil soul, was it done by you've got me that commanded the giant sword, or the giant sword that took the initiative by itself? Zhui Zi shrugged, you can only ask the bug about this then. When Leon looked at you've got me, you've got me too looked at Wen Leon. Lu Zheng's expression was gloomy and awkward, the thousand swords greeting that was regarded by the Kunlun sect as a magic protective circle, had surprisingly turned into the firecracker's detonator, while he was pondering about that. The gaze that Lu Zheng used to look at You've Got Me grew even more determined, when Leong hastily stuffed the bug into his chest pocket, his eyes were burning with excitement, so can the true fire of heavenly plow dissolve Xiang Lu's true soul. Chang Li and Zhui Zi gazed into the eyes of one another, they squinted their eyes simultaneously, after they pondered for a while, the both of them simultaneously shook their heads. The true soul is way stronger than the evil soul, just by depending on the molten metal fire bell's true fire of heavenly plow, I am afraid that it is no enough still. If it were the true soul earlier, I am afraid that even the giant sword is incapable of pinning it down, let alone dissolving it with the true fire. When Leon heaved a sigh, he did not speak anymore, the two evil souls of Xiang Lu, one was killed by himself, while the other was imprisoned by his grand master of the corpse sect, in addition to being suppressed by Zhui Zi's on the black and white island for millenniums. Being killed by the firecracker's poison in the snow peaks or cave, Xiang Lu's enmity towards them the disciples of Tuo Xie was knotted tighter and deeper, but no matter how strong they grew, the most troublesome was still the true soul, it could not be settled with their actual power at all. When Xu Lin was befell by a series of great difficulties during this period of time, he had already become smarter and wittier, the moment he looked at Wen Liang's expression he hastily declared. I will put in more effort to calculate, I will put in more effort to calculate, I will find the three precious inkling anyhow. Chang Li had been trying to be patient all along, she had a hard time waiting for Wen Liang to finish discussing, she exchanged a gaze in between Zhui Zi and Qian Ren, the three top demon immortals suddenly floated. They cruised in between the four old monsters in lightning speed, the few old monsters were howling furiously or gasping alarmingly, they were already casted with prohibition spell by Chang Li and the rest in the blink of an eye, their life vitality was sealed. Shudu and Sir Rust were severely injured so they were too weak to resist, 
hot immortal ant was injured rather severely too, her entire person became dull upon witnessing the tragic death of Brother Sang. While the old man Bao Ri whom was completely unscathed did not dare to resist at all, he was gifted with a body full of supernatural power yet he could not even come up with the idea to resist. Chang Li bustled about, giggled and clapped her hands upon completing her task, her eyes were glimmering as she glared at Bao Ri, speak. What is the relationship between the black and white island and the molten metal fire bell? Bao Ri was startled, he hastily waved his hand, we are all rogue cultivators, even though we are aware that we are somehow connected to the black and white island. But we do not even know where is the black and white island, how will we know of the relationship between this divine sword and the three sword immortals of the black and white island? As he was saying that, he hastily started professing, he cursed the evil soul for being treacherous, that they were only respectful to the black and white island etc. When Leong truly did not expect that, Bao Ri's bones were truly this soft. Chang Li's gaze was half doubting, you really do not know. As she was saying that she looked towards Fei Fei. Bao Ri hastily nodded, I really do not know. Fei Fei too frowned and nodded, he does not seem to feign this, he should be telling the truth. Chang Li pouted her lips, her expression was a little uncertain, I asked the wrong question earlier, I was planning to ask about their relationship to the Black and White Island. As a result all of you were talking about the giant sword, all of you were talking about the molten metal fire bell. The old man Bao Ri's cold sweat was flowing into his eyes, he did not wait for Chang Li to speak before he hastily answered, my family's first ancestor once followed the immortal master teacher to execute demons and evildoers, they passed through the world to slaughter those evil devils and unorthodox doctrines. Afterwards the first ancestor helped his immortal master teacher to condense and refine the demon suppressing heaven's cone nail and suppressed the utmost evilest nine-headed monster Xiang Lu on the black and white island eternally. Upon saying that, Bao Ri was still afraid that Chang Li refused to believe him, so he complimented, my family's cultivation method, is adopting the power of primordial son of the great sun, we are unyielding and unparalleled. Out of the nine demon suppressing heaven's cone nail on the black and white island, one of it echoes to the power of the heavenly sun, and that is refined from the primordial soul of my family's first ancestor along with his treasured weapon. When Leong could not refrain himself from asking, immortal master teacher. The golden monkey Qian Ren gave a humph, that is Kong Nuer. As it was saying that, it peered at Wen Leong in exasperation, the wood element heaven's cone nail was produced by Kong Nuer. These people's cultivation method was inherited from the same lineage of Kong Nuer's inferior back then, needless to say, the nine heavens cone nail on the black and white island, were all refined by him one by one. When Leung inhaled a long and chilly breath, in his mind, Kong Nuer had always been a person whom committed the most heinous crimes. He did not expect that he was the founder of the demon-suppressing great formation of the black and white island, if he were to consider this, then Kong Nuer had just become a good man as big as he heaven. Chang Li did not acknowledge Wen Liang's thinking, but she looked towards Bao Ri in slight astonishment. The heaven's cone nails are refined by the primordial soul of your family's first ancestor condensed with his treasured weapon with the power of the sun genus? So this signifies that you are the descendant of the demon suppressing heaven's cone nails? Bao Ri nodded, the first ancestor was willing to sacrifice his body and abandoned his soul for the righteous cause of the mortal world. After he was done refining the heaven's cone nails, us the descendants then returned to our immortal's cave to live in solitary and cultivated, then we were untroubled and contented. Chang Li nodded as if she was deep in thoughts, she then stretched out her hand and pointed to the rest of the few monsters, they. Without awaiting Chang Li to finish asking, Bao Ri continued to nod, are the same as me, Grandmother Shudu's first ancestor is the Star Cone Nail. Hot Immortal Ant's first ancestor is the Fire Element Cone Nail, Sir Rust and Brother Sang's first ancestors are separately forged into the Metal Element and Earth Element Heaven's Cone Nail. Hot Immortal Ant complimented coldly from the side, everyone's first ancestors, volunteered to sacrifice themselves. We are the descendants of the Heaven's Cone Nail, and this is our connection to the Black and White Island. The three sword immortals of the Black and White Island lived in solitary and guarded the heaven, they spent millenniums adhering to the ascetic practices, while our few families' first ancestors, had even more ascetic lives than them even. Chang Li stretched out her sharp finger, 
and rubbed the area between her brows that had knotted into a lump, you are all the descendants of those loyal and righteous people, I am sorry I did not recognize all of you. As she was saying that, she gave a forced laugh and shook her head, the demon cat had never possessed any concept of right or wrong from the day she was born, but in her perception. It did not matter whether the black and white island was suppressing righteous vanguard, or evil creature from the primitive ages, her admiration was for the matter that they were willing to sacrifice themselves to refine the heaven's cone nails. Zhui Zi took a step forward, she asked the old man Bao Ri, then how about my family than you have mentioned in the past? What is going on with that, the surviving evildoer of that family on Jeladaindong Peak, then? Bao Ri was about to speak but the hesitated, he stuttered for a long while but he refused to speak, Zhui Zi raised her brows so high her brows were almost standing, she shouted with a stern voice, speak. When Leong had never seen Zhui Zi like this before, he stretched out his hand and patted on her shoulder, it was only then he realized that even her body was shivering a little. The severely injured Shudu managed to sit up with great effort, she peered at Bao Ri arrogantly, her voice gloomy and cold as she spoke. You have inherited the water element cultivation method of your family's first ancestor, and yet you still do not know about your family's origins? Zhui Zi shook her head but she did not explain, she repeated once again, speak. Shudu's expression was unyielding, she glared back at Zhui Zi stubbornly, your family's first ancestor is the cultivator that cultivated in the power of soft water on Jeladaindong Peak. Together with our ancestors they are the comrades in arms that live and die together. Zhui Zi's voice sounded a little hoarse, comrades. What do you mean? Shudu burst out laughing, since you have already known then why is there a necessity to deliberately ask anymore? You and I are two families first ancestors are the same, they once followed the immortal master teacher. But it was during the time when she was condensing and forging the heaven's cone nail to suppress Xiang Lu. Your family's first ancestor cowardly clung to life and feared death, not only did she refuse to hand out the heavenly water spirit in her primordial soul. She failed to escape and wanted to revolt, but she was finally subdued by the immortal master teacher, the immortal master teacher stripped away the primordial soul of your family's first ancestor and found a heavenly water spirit. Ha ha ha, you do not know, that the first out of the nine heavens cone nail that was refined, was from your family's first ancestor, the water element heavens cone nail. When Leon could understand no matter how innocent his thinking was, that grandmother Shudu was unaware that Zhui Zi was the demon suppressing heaven's cone nail. Shudu thought that she was Zhui Zi's descendant, that was why Shudu addressed her as the surviving evildoer recently. Zhui Zi suddenly inhaled a long breath, the entire goddess peak's mountain peak suddenly turned cold. A layer of frost crawled down from her legs and spread in all directions visibly, and spread out in the blink of an eye, then how about my family members? What is the surname of my family's first ancestor, and what is her name? It was as if Grandmother Shudu had just heard of the most amusing joke ever, she suddenly gave out an extremely joyous laughter, your family members in the past. Of course, because they were protecting your family's first ancestor, when even your family's first ancestor was executed in the end, those little demons and little evildoers of your family, of course they were gotten rid of and cleansed. But I do not know how did he leave behind your little evildoer seed here, whom ruined our important matter up to this day again. A drop of tear, quietly glided out of Zhui Zi's eye, it wriggled and rolled down all the way. And turned into a drop of quintessential ice bead before it dropped onto the ground, it finally fell onto the ground, and splashed up a few pieces of floating dust and soil. When Leon stretched out his hand, he held Zhui Zi's icy cold delicate hand. Grandmother Shudu continued to burst out laughing, as for what is the surname your family's first ancestor, who has the patience to remember that. The fellow whom cowardly clung to life and feared death, what is the purpose of having a name anyway, what difference does it make if she was called a swine, a dog, a tortoise? Before the old woman's voice died away, a series of shouting was heard abruptly, the people next to Zhui Zi could not bear to listen anymore, the crisp sound of clacking connected into a stretch all of a sudden. The three persons Chang Li, Qian Ren and the little supreme leader Lu Zheng arrived in succession, every one of them gave Shudu a ferocious slap each, and pulverized her laughter all at once. When Liang's body had only moved, when the icy cold little hand in his palm gently pulled at him strenuously, Zhui Zi's face was ghastly pale to the greatest extent. 
She looked towards Shuddha Doli, killed my disciples, seized my primordial spirit, so all of you did that so deservedly. As she was saying that, she turned around and looked towards Changli, she is pleading for death, but do not kill her. Shuddha frowned, your disciples. Soon after her old face was filled with fear, she was suddenly enlightened, you are not the surviving evildoer, you are you are the heaven's cone nail. Other than Zhui Zi herself, who else had such precise and soft power of soft water? Zhui Zi shook her head, she seemed to be too lazy to acknowledge her, her ghastly pale face was penetrating with a sense of faint golden. Her expression was exceedingly dull, her fragile and feeble body leaned into Wen Liang's cradle, she gradually fell limp and sat onto the ground. Chang Li was so furious her entire body was shaking, she clenched her teeth as she enunciated and glared at the few descendants of the heaven's cone nails, the two words of, meeting death, are not easy to write. The act of sacrificing one's life for justice, Chang Li has always admired that, but sacrificing the life of others, in order to fulfill one's justice, moreover killing the entire sect, then this is worse than swine and dogs. Hot immortal ant and Sir Rust shut their eyes and did not speak, Bao Ri was scared out of his wits since earlier, he muttered to himself, this this is not handled appropriately in the beginning. But all these matters are unrelated to us. Grandmother Shudu had since gave up on her life, her face revealed in another maniacal smile once again, she completely disregarded Changli, her gaze stared straight into Zhui Zi. If it was you then this is even better, Shudu cannot believe how fortunate she is, to be given the pleasure to scold this scum whom cowardly clings to life and fear death of you. Before she could finish her sentence, Qian Ren suddenly shouted in rage, Shut up! You are such an ignorant woman. You have only lived for a few years, what do you know about life? Do you think that your family's first ancestor truly sacrificed his life for justice then? Haha, <laughs> all of you have been dreaming for thousands of years, there will come a day when you are awakened from the dream. I am only afraid that by then, all of you have only realized that your own ancestors, made such a big fool of themselves. Chapter, 257 Grandmother Shudda's temperament was beyond bold, she did not even hesitate before she cursed, you are bullshitting, what kind of creature are you again? Qian Ren used his supernatural power in secret, its voice did not sound any unusually loud for Wen Leong and the rest, but in the ears of Shudu it was akin to the echoes of shocking thunders. When I was cultivating for the heaven, there was no demon suppressing great formation on the black and white island yet, naturally Xiang Lu too was not suppressed then. When Leong had only remembered then, before Qian Ren was framed by Kong Nuer back then. There was no such thing as the demon suppressing formation on the black and white island, Xiang Lu was still wandering leisurely in between the heaven and the earth. So in today's world, the monkey was the only one whom lived with the nine headed Xiang Lu in the same era. He was mocking himself for spending so much time with the monkey, yet he had never thought of asking the monkey, what kind of monster was Xiang Lu actually? The moment Grandmother Shudu heard of Qian Ren's words, she stopped laughing out of surprise, while Hot Immortal Ant and Sir Rust too opened their eyes in unison, they looked towards the monkey, what do you mean? Qian Ren laughed coldly, it is true that Xiang Lu is an evil creature from the primitive ages, but no matter how enormous is the world. How can it completely destroy the world, no matter how many people are there in the world, how can it completely kill everyone? Even so in my perception back then, Xiang Lu was just a saying of the ancient times, even though he was in the world, but he had already ceased all activities since earlier. In the ancient times, it was true that the nine-headed Xiang Lu created troubles everywhere under the heaven, but along with the creation of the heaven and earth and the reproduction of humans, this form of evil creature of utmost disposition in telepathy was beyond intelligent, he was aware that no matter how much trouble he created, the world would never return to the chaotic state in prehistoric times, he had already ceased creating troubles, by the time Qian Ren was engaging in cultivation, there was only the reputation of Xiang Lu in the world, but no one had ever seen Xiang Lu in person since long ago. Wen Leong was clearly confused at all those explanations, but after he pondered on it closely he could understand the principle behind all these, for Xiang Lu was opposing the heaven, his act of killing people was just out of convenience. When he realized that the heaven's path was already formed, he seemed to resign himself to destiny, as long as no one was disturbing him, he was also too lazy to go outside, so he lived free and unfettered in his mountain by himself. 
When Qian Ren was engaging in cultivation, it was unknown where was Xiang Lu dozing off at. Shudu sniggered and sneered, even it was as you said so, who is capable of confirming. Qian Ren laughed aloud and interrupted Shudu, Kong Nuer simply told one or two lies, and he managed to appease your family's first ancestor into turning into a fool. Whom willingly turned himself into a wooden stake, haha, <laughs> ignorant person, serves you right to die. Upon saying that, it could not refrain itself from behaving like a monkey, it jumped in front of Shudu and repeated again, serves you right. Grandmother Shudu listened to the monkey insulting her first ancestor, of course she was unwilling to submit, she opened her mouth and was about to curse back at the monkey, yet unexpectedly the monkey stretched out its hand in lightning speed, and grabbed onto her tongue in one handful. And pulled outward swiftly a cultivator's body in comparison to an ordinary person, she was much stronger in the sense of her tenacity or endurance, moreover grandmother Shudu was also a top sword immortal, her tongue was tightly pinched and pulled out from her mouth by the monkey for the length of three inch, yet her tongue did not burst. When Leon witnessed the anomaly before his eyes, his entire body erupted in goosebumps, it was only then he realized that when Qian Ren's monkey temperament was provoked, it would become a terrible situation. The old woman could not even utter one word, she could only whine and squall softly, her eyes were almost cracking in rage, she had the intention to commit suicide by biting off her tongue. But the strength of her entire body was completely sealed, she exerted all the strength of her upper jaw, yet she did not even manage to leave behind a bite mark on her tongue. Chang Li stood by when Le Yang sighed and laughed merrily, she squeezed out a cheer from the depth of her throat, what a good trick, so decadent. Grandmother Shudu had only scolded Zhui Zi violently earlier, in a manner that was beyond sinister, that made everyone widen their eyes in rage. Now that they witnessed the evil culprit being tormented by her own evil, the group were feeling beyond joyous in their hearts. The gold monkey's expression was solemn, he grabbed onto the old woman's tongue in a manner that was beyond earnest, as if it was committing a holy deed, so you were saying, that Xiang Lu was albeit lying in dormant back then. Yet there was no way one could tell when was he going to wreak havoc once again, so the doing of your family's immortal master teacher, was for the benefit of the future generation. As it was saying that, the monkey pulled at the tongue and moved the tongue up and down, such that it pulled until the old woman was nodding, only then it put on a straight face, when I was 397 years old, 700 dark bees were struck by the spiritual thunder in the West Man Swamp region, the bees were granted with spiritual intelligence, the bees committed evil everywhere and found pleasure in killing, they slaughtered thousands of people in a day when I was 403 years old, 9,000 dogs exited the mountains on the evil ridge of the North Sea, the dogs ate any human they saw, they ate three little countries alive when I was 410 years old. The nether cloud shielded the moon, everyone whom died on the first day of the lunar month within a hundred years were completely turned into ferocious ghosts that fed on people when I was 419 years old, there was a huge earthquake on the central plains, three bottomless cave appeared at the Huku waterfall of the Yellow River. A troop of soldiers from the netherland appeared like a swarm of bees, a troop of ghosts surged out, a troop of poisonous creatures flew into the sky and shielded the sun until another ten years later, when I was framed by Kong Nuer, these monsters were still wreaking havoc in the mortal world. At this point, the monkey loosened its grip, at the muffled sound of a pop, the tongue snapped back into grandmother Shudu's mouth. It was unknown if she was afraid of getting her tongue pulled again, or because she was aware that there was no way she could refute Qian Ren's statement, the old woman shut her mouth and did not utter a sound this time to everyone's surprise. Qian Ren did not care if she had yielded or not, it continued to speak, back then the heaven's path was already formed, while the human's path was still unstable, disasters befell continuously. Whichever matter that was not handled appropriately, would result in the annihilation of humans, yet your family's immortal master teacher did not bother to take notice. The monkey suddenly lowered its voice, while its tone of speaking became even more solemn, it almost stood eye to eye with grandmother Shudu, which reason in the world. Allowed one to completely disregard the source of disaster that could turn into the apocalypse before one's eyes, but only cared about the hidden danger that was unsubstantial. Grandmother Shudu turned green with rage, do I care about your reason, Xiang Lu was the evil spawn, the immortal master teacher and the first ancestor suppressed the evil spawn, then that was as important as the heaven. The moment the old woman spoke, she did not expect that the monkey would suddenly cheer, 
then it stretched out its hand and grabbed her tongue again, I knew you would open your mouth and speak sooner or later. Qian Ren completely ignored Shuda's expression of almost turning mad and crazy, it laughed out aloud, its voice sounded beyond joyous. Yet its gaze was cold and gloomy enough to freeze and shatter the heaven, so do you think that your family's first ancestor is a hero? So do you think that the nine heavens cone nails on the black and white island are standing proudly in between the heaven and earth? You must be dreaming. Because of Kong Nuer's own selfishness, he tricked the few of your family's foolish ancestors into suicide by hanging, or self-immolation, and yet the few of you still have the honor to make fun of others now. All of you are the joke yourselves, your family's ancestors are the fucking jokes. The old father is telling all of you clearly now, that everything is Kong Nuer's scheme. Everything is Kong Nuer's selfish motives. As it was saying that, Qian Ren released the tongue once again, it waited for Shudu to speak once again in anticipation. Grandmother Shudu's body was shaking, her old face was squeezed together strenuously, she was almost exerting all her strength, as she increased her talking speak desperately. If everything that you have spoken is real, what kind of selfish motives did Kongamortal has, in order to suppress Xiang Lu? Before the old woman's voice died away, no one could have expected that the monkey Qian Ren did not grab her tongue anymore, but it waved its palm. And slapped onto her face extremely loudly, following that it continued to laugh aloud, the old father will never tell you deliberately. The old father wants all of you from the Star Reef's lineage to stay foolish for the next millenniums deliberately. Shudu could no longer suppress the extravasated blood that was flowing back into her chest anymore, at the sound of a shout, she raised her head and spat out a puff of blood mist. And finally her gaze turned savage, she peered at the monkey as if she wished that she could pull its muscles and strip its skin, soon after her eyes rolled upwards, she fainted. The monkey witnessed the blood spitting and fainting, it sneered and turned around as it walked back to the middle of its own crowd, Zhui Zi was still sitting limply in Wen Liang's cradle. Her face was more ghastly pale than a paper, she nodded towards Qian Ren with great effort, and spoke in a baffling manner, thank you. Perhaps it was because of misery loved company, when Qian Ren was in the company of Zhui Zi, it completely lost its ruthlessness and tyranny of when it was dealing the enemy, it scratched its head as it smiled shyly. Qian Ren's words earlier, made Wen Leong all terrified upon hearing that, his one hand was holding Zhui Zi, while his other hand was holding the monkey's arm, so Kong Nuer's act of suppressing Xiang Lu, was for himself. The monkey Qian Ren nodded, Kong Nuer is not some cultivator of the right path, I had never heard of him trying to enforce justice on behalf of the heaven. The world was as chaotic as I had described earlier, do you think that a person that was so adept at scheming, with means of tricks, with great abilities and influential as him, would take the initiative to provoke the nine-headed monster Xiang Lu out of nothing? At this time Chang Li casted a soundproofing prohibition spell around them to prevent Bao Ri and the rest from eavesdropping, she gathered forward and nodded, even so in the ancient times, those people whom used their primordial soul to condense and refine the heaven's cone nails. They were also top master cultivators, for Xiang Lu whom was just a vague and insubstantial person, yet Kong Nuer was willing to sacrifice such great forces over him, this matter itself was penetrating with peculiarity. If there really were no other schemes, then Kong Nuer would be a person of great virtue and holy, on the contrary, he was the evilest person of utmost sinister and utmost notorious. The more Wen Leong pondered on this the more terrified he was, he hastily inquired closely from the monkey, so what was Kong Nuer's scheme actually? The monkey rolled its eyes towards him gloomily, if I were to know that, then how would I still be framed by him? As it was saying that, its two claws opened up, it resumed a logical mannerism, the old father saw that the old woman was behaving too arrogantly and too obnoxiously, that was why I jumped out to provoke her. But the things that I mentioned later on, I felt that I made more sense the more I spoke about it. When Leon gave out a hey, in a dejected manner, after a moment he suddenly recalled something else, the wood element evil soul that occupied Brother Sang's body. If it were to return to the black and white island, would it be able to crush the rest of the heaven's cone nails? Zhui Zi was beyond weak as of now, yet she could still smile at Wen Leong, she explained strenuously, whatever you can think of, naturally Xiang Lu can think of too. If Brother Sang's body was truly capable of crushing the heaven's cone nails, then why did he not bring Brother Sang back in a haste? 
When Leon was astonished, he was still pondering about the reasoning behind this, he spoke slowly, that is to say that these descendants of the heaven's cone nails are just the same as the sword immortals on the black and white island. They are restricted by the prohibition spell, such that they cannot cause harm to the heaven's cone nails. Zhui Zi nodded weakly, Chang Li was about to explain on behalf of her, when Zhui Zi shook her head unexpectedly, I like talking to him soon after she rested for a moment, then she looked towards Wen Leong once again, Xian Lu killed the real earth emperor. Naturally he could recognize that brother Sang was the descendant of the heaven's cone nail, he was afraid that these descendants were figuring out a way to deal with him, while the earth emperor was futile in managing the rest of the seven remaining heaven's cone nails on the black and white island so he left behind the evil soul. When Leong nodded strenuously, he did not allow her to speak anymore, Zhui Zi's speculation was almost completely accurate, only that the true soul Tian Yin did not expect that. The wood element evil soul would be discovered soon, and he did not expect even more that the evil soul would be dissolved into nothingness. Chang Li stroked the long hairs that were scattered in front of Zhui Zi's forehead in a slightly piteous manner, she consoled softly, you ought to relax and concentrate your state of mind. Recuperate your life vitality, be sure not to be angered by those few bastards, perhaps there is still an opportunity for you avenge your people. If that were to happen then I will help you. The monkey and Wen Leong gave out a wow, at the same time, Chang Li mentioned that there was still an opportunity for revenge, that meant that Kong Nuer was possibly still alive in this world. From the time Qian Ren was framed until now, the time could only be counted in millenniums and megananims, was it possible that Kong Nuer could stay alive for this long? Chang Li raised the corners of her eyes slightly, her elegance was accompanied by radiance and enchantment in unusual days, while after she squinted her eyes slightly, she immediately revealed her reckless and unscrupulous cat temperament that was extremely conceited. This few sects here, they have never walked amongst the mortal world for how many years, yet they suddenly leaped out now, ha, hey, do not forget that, their first ancestors were supposed to be Kong Nuer slaves. Everything will be fine as long as he is still alive, we will kill him when we can kill, but if we were to be defeated by him, then we will go to the Black and White Island straightforwardly. And crush the rest of the heaven's cone nails, then the nine-headed Xiang Lu will be the first one whom will never let him off. When Leong and Fei Fei gazed into the eyes of one another in fear, if this idea were to come out of another person. Wen Leong would mostly laughed and humored the person, but this grand master demon cat of them would certainly carry out the act as she had described. Zhui Zi found out about the encounter of her past life, her state of mind was distracted, her mind was humming continuously, the power of heavenly water spirit seemed to show the sign of breaking through the primordial spirit seal indistinctively, her body was limp and she could not exert an ounce of strength. She wanted to sit up, but in the end her effort turned into a gentle struggle, she inhaled a long breath, and diverted Chang Li's topic of conversation strenuously, moreover these few monsters are not trying to suppress Xiang Lu, but they were yipping about capturing Chang Li, don't all of you find that peculiar huh? Chang Li smiled gently, she stretched out her hand and patted on Zhui Zi's forehead affectionately, do not be in hurry, we shall find out once we are done interrogating these monsters. As she was saying that, she waved her hand and removed the soundproofing protective circle, she held Fei Fei as they took a few steps forward, you be the one who interrogates, do not be in a hurry, just ask them one by one clearly. Fei Fei smiled shyly to Chang Li, this is really not something that we can hurry on, there are some matters, that we will need to clarify first regardless. As she was saying that she turned around and looked towards Bao Ri whom was deadly pale, the nine heavens cone nails were forged from the hands of your family's immortal master teacher. The old man Bao Ri hastily nodded, that is correct, every one of the heavens cone nails, was refined by the immortal master teacher personally. Fei Fei did not wait for him to finish speaking before she continued to inquire closely, the chief conspirator whom slaughtered Zhui Zi's entire family on the Jeladendong peak, and the person whom framed Qian Ren, were all him? Bao Ri still nodded strenuously, according to my knowledge, it was all the immortal was all him. Fei Fei was very patient, she continued to interrogate painstakingly like reeling silk from cocoons, even if the words were to sound unpleasant, you must still speak honestly and truthfully, no one will blame you. In these descendant families of the heavens cone nails, in their legend that was passed down for generations, the immortal master teacher and the first ancestor were of course the heroes of indomitable spirit, their existences were akin to divine immortals. 
Whether it was Zhui Zi or Qian Ren, they were described as the evil demons whom were preceded only by Xiang Lu in the legend, their killing and framing were nobody's fault but theirs, to help the people to get rid of the evil. At the muffled sound of a pop, the monkey squeezed a piece of rock into pieces, its furious yet sharp expression and the foolish-looking facial features on its face were melted into one. That made it appear unusually ghastly, it turned around and nodded towards Shui Zi, it could finally confirm now, that the both of their life and death enmity were caused by the same person, it was Kong Nuer. The old man Bao Ri was rather intelligent, he did not wait for Fei Fei to continue inquiring closely, he told about everything that he knew in one go, amongst the nine heavens cone nails on the black and white island. They each had one portion of soul, there were souls in the heavens cone nails, so that they could absorb the spirit primordial energy in the world more effectively. Other than the wood element cone nails soul was derived from the immortal's root of the Gomang seed. The rest of the heavens cone nails had its own primordial spirit, they were all the master cultivators serving under the immortal master teacher. Fei Fei inhaled a deep breath, every single one of those heavens cone nails had its own descendants. Out of the nine heavens cone nails, even with the exception of Zhui Zi and Qian Ren, there was still another seven more top master cultivators that were required. There was a total of five on the goddess peak now including the living ones and the dead, while there was still the moon cone nail and the chaos cone nail's descendants that had yet to reveal themselves. The old man Bao Ri answered frankly, according to my understanding, the moon cone nail and the chaos cone nail too had their own descendants, after the nine heavens cone nails were formed in the beginning, the immortal master teacher once casted a magic spell. Such that the descendants of our seven families would be able to communicate via our telegnosis ability, we could look after one another in the first place, we could also be prepared to listen to the immortal master teacher's command at any time in the second place, then entered the mortal world. But according to the first ancestor, a few thousand years ago, the moon cone nail had lost contact with the rest of the few families, possibly due to the moon cone nail's lineage had already ended. How about chaos then? Fei Fei's expression seemed a little bored, Bao Ri was too conforming, her presence was not useful, even if she were to allow Darling to interrogate now, she speculated the result would still be the same. At the mention of chaos, a sense of peculiarity arose on the old man Bao Ri's face, his tone of speaking was filled with arrogance, that family and their cultivation method were just the same. They were all extremely chaotic, there was no orderly ways for them to manage an affair, they did whatever they had thought of, we were always trying to hide from their lair of chaotic people on usual days. Amongst the seven descendant families of the heavens cone nails, the moon cone nails disappeared, the chaos cone nails went their own way, the remaining five families had been intimately associated with one another all along. But after the heavens cone nails were refined, these few families went into living stealthily in seclusion, they became obscure cultivators, and stopped mingling in worldly affairs ever since. At this point Chang Li suddenly interrupted from the side, how about Wu Dudu? He was cultivating in the fire element cultivation method, yet the fire element cone nail's descendant was that fat woman. The old man Bao Ri's face twitched quietly in a manner that was extremely difficult to be noticed, but just with that little movement, the old man's entire thoughts were all placed before Fei Fei's eyes. Fei Fei finally gained some result after all, she shook her head and laughed, do not count on Wu Duda to come and rescue all of you, he even entrusted me to greet the earth emperor before he died. As she was saying that, she stretched out her hand and pointed to that puddle of pus that was condensed on the ground, Wu Duda's seal, is in my brother's hand. The final strand of hope on Bao Ri's face was extinguished, his mannerism had already turned disheartened and dejected without him realizing, Wu Dudu's first ancestor also followed the immortal master teacher. But his family's fire element cultivation method was albeit domineering, but it was never as pure and vigorous as the red base cave of Changbai Mountains, that was why his family's first ancestor did not manage to become the heaven's cone nail. Qian Ren was categorized as the greatest disaster in Kong Nuer's heart all along, even when the monkey was finally sealed in the dog-headed eagle, Kong Nuer still refused to let down his guard. Wu Duda's lineage was ordered to guard the ending cave of Mount Hua, similarly there was also another family of cultivators of the same identity as the Wu family, that stayed and guarded the highland, to prevent Qian Ren from breaking free. Fei Fei inhaled a deep breath, what kind of person was the man with the surname Kong actually? How many people were working under him, how big was his forces? 
Whether it was Wu Dudu or the first ancestor of the mysterious highland cultivators, or the master cultivators of the heaven's cone nails. Any one of them could be a king of great talent and bold vision, yet he was still completely willing to sacrifice himself for Kong Nuer. Bao Ri laughed to everyone's surprise, in the eyes of us from the junior generation, the immortal master teacher is just the shadow of an imaginary divine immortal. What kind of person was he specifically, how powerful was his supernatural power and forces, we do not know very well too, we only know that back then, he raised the banner of the manifestation of God's will, that there were truly some top sword immortals whom had never entered the mortal world before that were following him, they handled matters in the shadow, they had never show off not long after the nine heavens cone nails were forged. Xiang Lu was being suppressed on the black and white island, each of the sects went and lived in seclusion from then on, and never mingled in the worldly affairs anymore, the immortal master teacher too disappeared without a trace, there was only once afterwards, the immortal master teacher once issued a decree, and sent some people to the highland to monitor the dog-headed eagle. When Liang's mouth moved as he was about to inquire closely, yet Fei Fei shook her head at him and laughed, do not be in hurry. Please allow me to ask slowly, otherwise if we were to ask a question here and there out of nowhere, we will easily leave out something. Following that she continued to inquire closely at Bao Ri once again, how about the Black and White Island? The sword immortals that guarded the Black and White Island, were they the master cultivators that worked under that immortal master teacher's seat back then? Bao Ri's expression was a little hesitant, they should be I guess, but the origins of the people whom guarded the Black and White Island. We truly did not know, moreover we are the descendants of those heaven's cone nails, we have never established contact with the Black and White Island. After Fei Fei was done interrogating, she recollected attentively for a while, only then she stretched her body, I am almost done interrogating about Kong Nuer's past, is there anything else all of you wish to ask? When Liang's head was already messed up into a ball of glue, he peered piteously at Chongli, Chongli laughed as she shook her head, I cannot even think of as many questions as you do. Fei Fei nodded and did not speak nonsense anymore, she turned around and looked towards Bao Ri once again. 2000 years ago, Chang Li and Guo Huan crushed the water element heaven's cone nail on the black and white island. They fought side by side with the Grand Master Tua Xia on the central plains in the end, they fought in a ferocious battle with the island guarding sword immortals of the black and white island and the master cultivators of the world, yet all of you did not even bother to take notice at all. Bao Ri gave a forced laugh as he shook his head, the immortal master teacher once told us before he dismissed us, that the mortal people were foolish and the worldly affairs were filthy, he wanted us to avoid making contact with the outsiders. To retain our pure and innocent heart sit was the immortal master teacher's order of course we dared not disobey, whatever happened on the outside, we were completely unaware, about the incident where the heaven's cone nail was crushed on the black and white island, we did not have the slightest idea even more. Otherwise. Chang Li stuck out her tongue, she laughed as if she had escaped by good fortune. The battle back then, there was only the total of Chang Li and Tuo Xia two persons, while the opposing party was made up of almost the entire cultivation world, the two parties fought in an even match. If these five descendant families of Heaven's Cone Nails were to participate, then it was uncertain if the two Grand Master could manage to retreat in their full bodies. In simpler words, these descendants of the Heaven's Cone Nails were brainwashed by their senior generations for generations, they had since considered themselves the immortal master teacher's loyal servants. Other than necessary contacts, they almost never keep in touch with the outsiders, and they even associated less with the cultivators, so they were completely unaware of how abominable Chang Li was 2000 years ago. Bao Reed spoke so much he was parched, he swallowed a gulp of saliva, there was no day and night in the mountain, we did not know how many years had passed. We had never received any words from the immortal master teacher all along, until about fifty days ago, we suddenly received the immortal master teacher's oracle delivering spiritual crane. Zhue Zi was leaning in when Liang's cradle, she raised her head and saw his chin that was plastered with puzzlement, she smiled as she explained to him, the oracle delivering spiritual crane is not some homing pigeon. But it is a profound and orthodox magic art, that uses one's power of primordial soul to condense the spirit primordial energy of the world into a crane, and use the crane to deliver the oracle. When Liang's heart turned a somersault, even his breathing was a little shaky, he lowered his head and looked at Zhui Zi, Kong Nuer is really still alive. 
Zhui Zi nodded, her gaze was filled with incisive joy. Chang Li on the other hand urged Bao Ri impatiently, what did Kong Nuer instructed all of you to do? Bao Ri laughed in a rather shy manner, precisely to capture you to bring to justice. As far as two thousand years ago when Chang Li crushed the ice cone nail on the black and white island. As near as recently when the three sword immortals of the black and white island were killed, Bao Ri found out from the oracle delivering spiritual crane. While the immortal master teacher seemed to know that Chang Li was not easy to deal with, at the same time he delivered the oracle. He delivered another formation conjuration spell, if they were to come into any danger, they could use the magic formation to suppress Chang Li. Fei Fei frowned, suppress. Bao Ri hastily nodded, yes. The immortal master teacher wants us to capture her alive. Chang Li laughed and asked with interest, then why did all of you not launch this magic formation then? A sense of embarrassment appeared on Bao Ri's face, uh, the mortal master teacher was possibly under the impression that we were living in flourishment, this magic formation would require 999 cultivators to operate. But our few families were drilling for elite troops in these recent years, those disciples with bad foundation establishment were sent away the moment they were born, in total, we only have over 200 people. Chang Li clapped her hands and laughed aloud, I knew it. All of you swarmed out of your lairs, in order to rush over to the Goddess Peaks meeting, firstly you wanted to request for the help to search for my whereabouts from the cultivators of the world. Secondly you wanted to pick another batch of master cultivators, to join all of you to practice the formation together. Bao Ri gave a forced laugh as he answered, not really. But as a result who would have thought that, we would bump into all of you over here and all of you were even gathered together. The descendants of Heaven's Cone Nails waited for an unknown amount of generations, and they finally received the immortal master teacher's oracle, the old man Bao Ri was entranced with joy, soon after he contacted the rest of the four descendant families of the Heaven's Cone Nails, they were investigating Chang Li's whereabouts, while they were studying about the magic formation. They were even more overjoyed upon receiving the news about the Goddess Peaks meeting, they joined hands and left their mountains, they were supposedly under the impression that their cultivation base was enough to extrude the entire scene, they were also displaying their intention of protecting the heaven, they were attempting to draw the people to their side, so it was as easy as breathing for them to pick a few hundred people to leave with them. That was why after Bao Ri and the rest ascended the mountain, they were showing off, and they were also drawing people to their side, as a result they did not expect that the earth emperor would create trouble first. Then when Leong played his dirty trick, and finally it was the three demon immortals whom displayed their powers, their final ending was so tragic. The descendants of the Chaos Cone Nail on the other hand, because they could not see eye to eye with them, they did not join the rest to handle the affair here, their misfortune came as blessing in disguise on the contrary. When Leung's brain was almost twisted together with his hair, he finally heaved a sigh, he knew that Bao Ri was telling the truth, but the situation just became even more complicated. Chapter, 258 He Xiao Sha was climbing a mountain. The scumbag he family did not pride themselves in martial skills, but since it was a Jianghu family which had been around for a thousand years, its disciples had some good basics. He Xiao Sha's pace was much faster than the ordinary person. Goddess Peak was, once again, far away. At this moment, a wave of surprised and furious shouts of monkeys rose around him all of a sudden. Beast taming was one of the nine great arts of Jianghu which the He family was famous for. When traveling in a forest, summoning a few monkeys to stand sentry was the basic alerting method of the men of the He family. Xiao Sha's expression changed slightly. He swiftly spread some medicinal powder over his body. At the same time, he leaned on a big tree. In the blink of an eye, his clothes, skin and even the colors of his shoes blended into one with the dark brown tree. He even grew some crooked branches. After a brief moment, a fat man and a skinny man appeared silently not far from where he stood. The fat man had his arms on his waist. His legs were pressed together. It was as if he awkwardly tried to impersonate a woman, there was an unspeakable awkwardness at the sight. The fat man frowned and surveyed his surroundings. His gaze had glanced across Xiao Sha's body a few times. He was just in front of him but he could not see him. After a brief moment, he spoke with puzzlement, there was clearly someone here just now he had a sturdy build and was almost two meters tall. 
He weighed above 150 kilograms, but his voice was as airy as gossamer, as if he would stop breathing at any time. The skinny man was impatient, let's go, quickly. We shouldn't miss the great fun. I'm tired of games like catching a person. The skinny man's pose was stern and imposing, but he looked hungry. The not-so-huge sweater on him caught the wind, but his voice was exceptionally loud. With just two sentences, the nearby forest was shaken by his voice. Countless dried branches fell down like rain. The fat man laughed softly. He gave his surroundings a final glance. After a final confirmation that there was no one here, he continued to run ahead with resentment. However, he returned to his initial spot in the blink of an eye. He cupped his fists, today, us brothers have met an elite but missed him at arm's length and we are greatly troubled. We dare not bother you, this is farewell. At the same time, the skinny man's face tightened. He cupped his fists with the fat man as he said sternly, please pardon our intrusion, we'll take our leave. Then, the bodies of the duo swayed and glided towards the direction of Goddess Peak. Xiao Sha held his breath and focused his mind. He dared not move a muscle. After a brief moment, six shadows shot swiftly past him like excited arrows. They followed the duo who had appeared earlier and sped on their way. They flashed past, but after a dozen seconds, Xiao Sha only saw a blur in front of his eyes. A huge group of densely packed, strange-looking monsters rushed past him with loud footsteps. Some had green faces, fangs, and had four hooves, some had one horn, long tails, and flew low with their wings, some were a dozen meters tall with muscles that looked like rocks. Some were no longer than a foot but had nimble feet in Xiao Sha's eyes, the most normal-looking being among these monsters were people who had a pair of hands, feet, and chattered as they went. However, these people only talked to themselves. Each of their heads had three faces. The expression of Wen Leong on Goddess Peak was not much different from Xiao Sha's who had been scared out of his wits by the monsters. His lips curved downwards. His brows almost fused together. For the greater good, he would bless the world by resubduing Xiang Lu. Selfishly speaking, if Xiang Lu broke free, it would seek revenge from Kong Muir even if it had to ascend into the heavens or descend into the ground. Immortal Master Kong Muir knew that the water element heaven's cone nail on Black and White Island had been shattered but he was in no hurry to restore the Great Formation. Instead, he gathered his elite forces which had laid in wait in the world for a million years to capture the cat demon Changli. Changli was also puzzled herself. She scratched behind her head. She smiled with some satisfaction, could it be that the demon subduing great formation could be restored by capturing me? After she finished, she herself thought that it was not the case, whether it's the attribute of the heaven's cone nail or the magic powers of the great formation, it has nothing to do with my demonic energy. Don't tell me that this is all for revenge. Cone nail's thinking face broke everyone's hearts, also why didn't Kong Muir come himself? Sir Rust who had kept quiet all this while suddenly sneered softly, how can the immortal master teacher be bothered just to capture a cat demon? Chang Li waved her hand impatiently. She made it clear that you do not understand, do not create trouble. Fei Fei nodded, Kong Muir had passed down the magic circle because he was worried that they could not defeat Grand Master Chang Li. Instead of going through all this trouble, he could have just made a move himself. The golden monkey Qian Ren hugged his shoulders. He analyzed with a silly face, even if it was a capture mission, it shouldn't be about capturing Chang Li only. He had not finished when a rigid voice projected from the rock tower which hung high above Goddess Peak, that's right. I was also involved in shattering the ice cone nail. They should take me as well. Second mother laughed softly at one Buzwa beside her, this mountain ghost is even more heartless than you. Wen Buzwa was astonished. He did not know what to say. He smiled embarrassedly, well, you know. Now, Wen Leong was completely confounded by the consecutive mysteries. Putting the other matters aside, even Chang Li's shattering of the heaven's cone nail happened two thousand years ago. What was Kong Muir doing then? If he could drill a little hole on the top of his skull, he bet that there would be some confused brain cells that would come out for some fresh air. Also, something's not right. Kone Nail leaned on Wen Liang's chest, her eyes were full of exhaustion, I have been reborn, 
Mr. Qian Ren has been freed from his predicament, Xian Lu's true soul had even possessed Tian Yin. We are all his archenemies, but Kong Nuer only wanted his subordinates to capture Chang Li. Speaking of Qian Ren alone, Kong Nuer had left two troops behind, one on the highlands and another on Mount Hua's ending cave from this, it was evident how much he thought about Qian Ren, but now he did not even bat an eyelid about him. Although Fei Fei was also confused, but her thoughts were not unordered. She continued to ponder along the lines of Kong Nail's words, unless, Mr. Kong himself had no knowledge of these things. Kong Nuer had only known that I was shattered two thousand years ago, but he did not know that the ice cone nail had been reincarnated into a person he knew that black and white islands Tian Shu and the others have died. But he did not know that the true soul had possessed Tian Yin Qian Ren had already broke free and controlled the golden monkey, but he did not seem to know. Chang Li giggled as she said, looks like that immortal master teacher isn't a know-it-all. It's useless to think about it now. All I know is once we kill all the little monsters, the old monster will appear. She had vast knowledge, her thoughts were comparable to cone nails, but she was too lazy to think about too much. Fei Fei nodded. She looked at old man Bao Ri and changed another question, after you've captured Chang Li, what then? Where are you going to take her? Or will Kong Nuer come and fetch her himself? Bao Ri made a strange expression, the immortal master teacher also left us a magic circle, he wanted us to transport the person through it. Chang Li's brows lifted, happiness showed on her face. She was happy that they finally had a way of finding Kong Nuer when Bao Ri quickly continued his explanation, this magic circle can only transport souls, not people. Chang Li was stunned in surprise, what do you mean? Speak more clearly. This magic circle can extract a cultivator's primordial spirit from a person's body, then, it'll be transported to the immortal master teacher through the void. When Leon could not help but grit his teeth, if we did that, the person would die. The golden monkey shook his head, a normal person won't survive, but with Chang Li's cultivation base, she should be able to hold on for some time. All we have to do is send her demonic soul back into her body in time. Qian Ren was still explaining when Fei Fei's cell phone vibrated. She took it out. When she read the screen, Fei Fei frowned with a strange expression, Xiao Sha said there's a huge group of monsters coming towards Goddess Peak. Guo Huan, who had hung in midair as he kept an eye on the surroundings suddenly exclaimed in surprise. He laughed hysterically, now this is something. How many years has it been since I saw ghost-headed toad-faced monsters? There are about a thousand of them and they're flocking towards this spot. After he finished, he paused briefly. Then, he chuckled, first, here comes two brothers. Judging by their movements, they shouldn't be any inferior than Earth Emperor and the others. Guo Huan's voice barely faded when a booming sound louder than running thunder resounded on the pinnacle of Goddess Peak, huh, to be able to see so many immortals, us brothers are simply overjoyed. The other thin voice also chimed in with laughter, that's right. This is our luck for three incarnations, this joy in our hearts is simply unexplainable. Chang Li's eyes were bright. She brought the others with interest and went out from behind the giant rock. Head Lama Ranyong voluntarily led the highland cultivators to guard the four sealed monsters. Xiao Sha had just met the two strange persons under the mountain, one fat and one skinny man. They had already reached Goddess Peak. They were all smiles. They greeted every cultivator they met along the way. They chattered away with much friendliness. The other rogue cultivators entertained them with bitter smiles. Nobody recognized these two brothers, but they acted as if they were old friends of a hundred years. Their earnest friendliness which rose from the depths of their hearts made the others too embarrassed to push them away. The skinny man was pulling on a man's arm as they talked, suddenly, he exclaimed in surprise. His feet went limp as he took a few steps backwards. His tone was surprised and excited. He pointed at the midair and yelled wildly like thunder, look, quick. There's a mountain in the sky. This is a magic weapon. The thin-voiced fat man also beamed. He quickly walked beside his brother, his eyes were filled with an honest respect, it's the ability of a living god. This magic weapon is truly unequaled under the heavens. The two men were alarmed at every ordinary thing. 
the six cultivators who followed close behind them also arrived and were reunited with them. Like the two brothers, when these six people appeared, they greeted everyone as if they were long-lost friends. As if they were worried that they were not respectful enough, whether man or woman, old or young, they saluted them as if they were their seniors. When Buzwa's eyeballs rolled, he returned to the giant rock and pulled old man Bao Ri out. He asked him with a low voice, Do you know them? Bao Ri's old face twitched but did not say anything. The fat and skinny brothers squalled at the same time. Their eyes beamed as they ran towards Bao Ri. They laughed as they ran, Bao Ri, long time no see. Have you been captured? Every wrinkle on old man Bao Ri's face was mixed with genuine terror. He struggled desperately under Wen Buzwa's hands. He growled hoarsely, Stop stop them stop them. At this moment, a muffled boom came suddenly from the mountain's peak. A huge group of monsters leapt into the air, they landed orderly on a patch of empty ground in the middle of Goddess Peak. The unprepared rogue cultivators exclaimed in surprise almost at the same time. They hastily retreated in every direction. Dozens of species, thousands of monsters. Each one of them bared their fangs and claws at the surrounding cultivators. Wen Liang's heart also skipped a beat. If they kept a random monster from this group in a cage and sold tickets for people to see it, they could have outsold a zoo, let alone a thousand of them showing up at the same time. Ji Fei was so terrified that his colors drained, but he had Chang Li as a backer after all. His guts were strengthened greatly. He bulged his eyes and was about to scold angrily, but the fat and skinny brothers had turned around and yelled at the group of monsters before he could say anything. The other sick cultivators who brought the monsters along must have been the subordinates of the fat and skinny brothers. They immediately followed suit and yelled at the monsters. After a brief moment, every unnamed evil beast retracted their claws and fangs under their master's scolding. Then, they flashed bone-chilling smiles on their ugly faces. They started to nod and bow to the cultivators on Goddess Peak the expressions of the rogue cultivators turned even sour. When Leong drew cold breaths from between his teeth, he could not help but asked, What are these? Monsters. All of them are monsters. Old rabbit demon Bu Li's face twitched, like us masters, disciples and Guo Huan started absorbing the essence of sun and moon from birds, beasts, plants and rocks. Cultivating life vitality and obtain spiritual wisdom, were called demons whereas these which had spiritual wisdom since birth but had no place in the realms of men, are called monsters. After he finished, he paused. He seemed worried that when Leong still did not understand, a demon's spiritual wisdom is cultivated by itself. These monsters' spiritual wisdom is the same as that of man, they had them since birth. The golden monkey was not like the old rabbit demon who looked like he was facing a great enemy. There was even scorn on his face, they're all uncivilized savage things. Although they have spiritual wisdom, but the lives they lead are almost the same as beasts. When the weak-voiced fat man who even sounded like a woman heard the monkey's words, he frowned helplessly and said politely, these little monsters are beings born with a difficult fate. When humanity flourished, they could only hide in the depths of mountains and in foul lands with their sufferings. If things were reversed and the world was theirs now, I think that the humans that hid in the mountains would be more savage and uglier than them. This monkey, I mean, great immortal, your words were somewhat unfair. The skinny man paid no attention to the monkey. He scrutinized the disciples brought along by the descendants of the heaven's cone nail. After a brief moment, he asked them probingly, your sect leader has been captured, why are you guys not fighting back? A disciple of Sir Rust had a respectful mannerism. He obviously knew the identities of the fat and skinny brothers, I have not received an order from the sect leader, I dare not act rashly. The skinny man broke into laughter. He shook his head forcefully, your sect leader loves all of you, he's worried that you'll all be going to your deaths. He was halfway through his speech when Sir Rust's frantic voice sounded from behind the giant rock, what do you want the skinny man did not stop laughing. He uttered three loud and clear words, kill about half. The six men behind the fat and skinny brothers grunted in reply at the same time. Their figures leapt like lightning as they rushed headlong into the ranks of the few heavens cone nails sect members without hesitation. 
Rust and hot immortal ant who had not fainted yet gave a furious howl in unison behind the giant rock. They did not let their disciples fight back but desperately pleaded them to run for their lives. With Wen Liang's eyesight, he could not see what kinds of magical powers the six of them casted. He could only see that the six men had divided themselves into three groups. They went in pairs as they charged the enemy's ranks. Immediately, threads of black and white rolling mists rose from their bodies. Where the mist touched, there was a bloody mess of minced meat. The ones who were killed were all the disciples of Shudu, Rust, and the others. In terms of magic powers and arts, the least of them was at least several times more powerful than the first seats of the Great Mercy Temple's five supreme monasteries. The many skilled cultivators were powerless against the strange magical powers of the three pairs of cultivators. Any magic weapon that made contact with the rolling mist would wail and fall on the ground. In the blink of an eye, a few dozen heaven's cone-nailed descendant disciples were slaughtered. When the fat man saw that the skinny man had suddenly ordered his six subordinates to start killing people, he skipped over with anxiousness and anger as he asked with a sharp voice, Why did you kill them? The skinny man ended his thunderous laughter as he tried hard to lower his voice, but it still reached the ears of every cultivator on Goddess Peak, I like to listen to Rust's shouts. Fury filled the fat man's face. He waved a giant fist at the skinny man, then you better be quick about it. I don't like to listen to that piece of metal shouts. The skinny man grunted in reply. He loudly urged his six subordinates to kill off the men as soon as possible. Wen Leung burned with rage. He had no good impressions about the people of the Heaven Cone Nail sect. What truly made him angry was the reason that these two men committed their killings. He grinded his teeth and bellowed, Stop it. Then, his body swayed as he prepared to pounce. The fat and skinny brothers suddenly wore terrified expressions. After Wen Liang's bellow, they immediately called back their six subordinates who were killing the cultivators. They looked at Wen Liang with stunned expressions. Chang Li also reached out an arm and pressed down on Wen Liang. The shock between her brows was not concealed. Only now did old man Bao Ri said in a low, shaky voice, they are all the descendants of the Chaos Cone Nail. In no time, about half of the Heaven's Cone Nail descendant disciples had died tragically. The skinny man's expression was slightly depressed. He retorted out of spite as if pleading for his own innocence, I'm counted as the same sect as them. Their disciples are my disciples. I'm just killing my own disciples, what are you so mad please don't be mad. The fat man, however, was all smiles. He spoke on a completely different topic from the skinny man. He patted his own chest, we're disciples from Shirwan Mountain. He's M.O. Bai, I'm M.O. Bai. The golden monkey took a step forward. He absent-mindedly blocked Wen Leong with off of his body. He sneered coldly, at least there are some powerful personas among Kong Nuer subordinates. Very good, very good. Qian Ren had seen most of Kong Nuer subordinates, but he was a complete stranger to the method of practices of this Chaos Brothers. When Mount Hua's ending caves Feng Zhang and Shi Yu captured the golden monkey, the elite whom condensed the Chaos Cone Nail did not show up. Chang Li also displayed a curious smile, you're also here to capture the cat demon. The skinny man M.O. Bai wore an awkward expression. He asked Chang Li probingly, Er can't we not capture her? The fat man M.O. Bai immediately made a silencing gesture at the skinny man. He pointed at the sky with a terrified expression, as if signaling the skinny man that his words could be heard above the heavens. However, the skinny man was impatient. Instead, he loudened his voice, What are you afraid about? The old thing had only told us to capture, but he didn't say when we should capture. The original intent wasn't to capture the cat demon, after all. The fat man pondered for a while then smiled with relief, the old thing also didn't ask us to save those people. This is turning out just fine. After he finished, he hastily nodded and smiled embarrassedly at Wen Leong. Bao Ri's expression was extremely sour. They were clearly descendants of Heaven's Cone Nails, but whether it was his bearings or his tone, he seemed to harbor a deep grudge against the fat and skinny brothers in front of him. He did not even look at the other party. Instead, he changed sides and defected as he said to Wen Leong and the others, 
the line of chaos was very much loved by the immortal master teacher. The immortal master teacher never minded their insolent speeches, not even once. The ancestors of our families gathered around the immortal master teacher for the greater good, but the chaos ancestor did it for fun. Their line cannot be regarded as one of our own. Chang Li gave an air. She laughed with shock and surprise. She thought that she had found people who thought like her. She asked the fat and skinny brothers, then what about extracting primordial spirits to make the demon subduing heaven's cone nails was that for fun as well? The skinny man was all smiles, naturally. But not everyone can become a demon subduing heaven's cone nail. However, the fat man looked dejected, I reckon that our foolish ancestor must have been filled with regret right now. No matter how wonderful a thing is, if you can't talk OT move, it won't be any interesting. When Le Yang's head started to hurt again. He turned towards Fei Fei. Fei Fei understood his meaning. The edge of his lips twitched slightly as she responded seriously, he's not really foolish, nor was he acting foolish. Every word of his was from the heart. I think that is chaos. Old man Bao Ri continued, that's right, they're chaos, but their nature is savage. Although they're human by nature, but they joined ranks with the evil monsters. Their ancestors had once slaughtered every village in a 35-kilometer radius just to compare whether a man's blood or a girl's blood is redder. Once, to make a person grow a tail, they sent a female doll into pig's pens and dog's lair, then they used magic arts to give birth to a freak. Once, to find a baby which cannot swim, they threw 300 newly born babies into the ocean. Wen Liang's hairs stood on end when he heard this. The Wen Butsao, since ancient times, had only helped their friends regardless of the truth. They had no notion of right and wrong, but when he heard about the doings of the Chaos Cone Nail, an insuppressible hatred rose from the bottom of his heart. Even the golden monkey Qian Ren gritted his teeth. He chewed on every word, Kong Nuer, these kings of subordinates are your beloved generals. It's a shame that I have not heard of this beast before this, or else, even if I did not bother myself about the world, I could not let this kind of beast live. Bao Ri took a deep breath. He said to one Buzwa beside him, if you guys can't defeat him, I'd rather you kill me than to fall into his hands. The fat man Moe Bai seemed to have been greatly wronged. He made a sad face and shook his head forcefully, my ancestor has also done nice things. He had killed 800 savages that attacked the village just so that the children of the village would stop crying. Bao Ri chuckled after he reminisced for a while, that's true, something like that did happen. But from what I know, after he killed off the savages, the terrified children didn't stop crying. The skinny man Mo Bai blinked. He frowned as if he was there when it happened, why is this child still crying? This is truly a waste of my ancestors' goodwill. Chang Li's gaze had long lost their playful gleam. She asked Drilly, then what about your brother, what interesting things has he done all these years? The fat man smiled, air uncountable. Why did a calf gurgle when you pull out its teeth how to skin a tortoise without killing it a newborn baby looks just like an old person why did the old man die faster than a young lad? The fat man seemed to be enumerating his family's fortune, but the skinny man looked in all directions. His gaze swept continuously across the rogue cultivators that were present. There was an unconcealable excitement and joy in his eyes. Chapter, 259 In the eyes of the line of Chaos Cone Nail, the entire world was a giant playground. The fierce wolf, the green grass, the young girl's red lips, the poop of wild boar, they were no different from every other thing, they were all their playthings. If an ordinary person were to act this way, the world would only scoff at them, fools. However, the line of Chaos Cone Nail had outstanding abilities and a savage nature. When Leon even suspected that the politeness and friendliness showed by this fat and skinny M.O. brothers were completely out of their love for their toys. The fat man M.O. Bai excitedly recounted to Chang Li the interesting things which he had done all these years. An impatient look clearly showed on the golden monkey's face. He asked him coldly, how many men have you brothers killed all these years? The fat man blinked in astonishment, I haven't counted that before. He was halfway through his speech when he lifted his head suddenly. His gaze looked straight at one word's palace first brother Xia among the crowd, what are you looking at? 
Fei Fei followed the fat man's gaze. Her brows knitted together ever so slightly. She said to Wen Leong in a low voice, First Brother Xia's expression he knows the fat man. The skinny man Mo Bai was slightly puzzled. He asked his brother, Everyone here is looking at us. The fat man shook his head, This man's eyes are the brightest, he's different from the others. The fat man had not finished when the skinny man suddenly erupted in a crisp cheer. He did not seem to have exerted much force, but his person already appeared before First Brother Xia like a phantom. Two of his fingers were like hooks as they gouged first brother Xia's eyes out. The skinny man's expression was neither savage nor fierce, there was only a dense curiosity. In Fei Fei's eyes, the skinny man who was gouging the man's eyes out truly did not have an ounce of evil intent. He only wanted to understand why first brother Xia's eyes were brighter than the others. As the leader of one of the five blessings, first brother Xia's cultivation base was naturally not weak. However, when the skinny man M.O. Bai's fingers pressed onto his eyeballs, he did not even have the time to blink. Just when first brother Xia's heart gone cold as he was sure he would die this time, a series of shouts sounded consecutively. The golden monkey Qian Ren was as quick as lightning. Although his stature was small, but he was like a great mountain as he firmly shielded first brother Xiao. The skinny man had only thought of gouging the man's eyes out, he did not guard himself against the golden monkey. Caught off his guard, he was hit by the torrent that was Qian Ren's punches and kicks. He wailed and crashed heavily back beside his brother. The elites on Wen Liang's side were already prepared for action. When they saw that the other party had attacked, they made their moves almost at once. They readied themselves for a thunderous attack, but nobody had expected that the Chaos Arbiter whose cultivation base was not inferior than Rust, Shudu and the others would be greatly injured just like that as he fell back. The people of the line of chaos, from the fat man to the thousand monsters were fixed to the ground. They had no intention of making any moves. The skinny man spat out big mouthfuls of blood, but his gaze was extremely joyous. He pulled strongly on the fat man's pants, this is truly a great monkey immortal, his abilities are amazing. As he said this, he burst into laughter. He only laughed twice when his chest let out muffled crackles. He spat out a mouthful of fresh blood mixed with some flesh and died just like that. The golden monkey's punches were extremely powerful. It was nothing strange for him to kill a peerless cultivator after a round of heavy attacks. Speaking of the toughness of their bodies alone, the skinny man was much weaker than the metal element rust. But what truly left the others dumbstruck was, when the skinny man was attacked by the golden monkey, he truly did not guard it against it. The multitudes of cultivators on Goddess Peak had shock written all over their faces. Chang Li's demon blades, little supreme leader Lu Zheng's sword formation, little stutter hope voices merciful Buddha. Various kinds of powerful magical powers and magic weapons froze in midair. They aimed steadily at the descendants of the line of heaven's cone nail and the monsters from Shirwan Mountain. The fat man Mo Bai seemed to not have noticed the death of his own brother. His gaze was filled with extreme excitement. He lifted his head and looked like a kid watching festive lanterns. He looked with shock and joy at the various magical powers and magic weapons which bore down on him. He guffawed and nodded forcefully, nice, nice. Looks like this trip to Mount Hua isn't in vain. The golden monkey turned and glanced at Chang Li with puzzlement. Chang Li's expression was no different from his. She shouted at the fat man who was counting the magic weapons, Hey, your skinny brother is dead. After she finished, she paused. Then, she pointed at Qian Ren, he was beaten to death by the monkey. The fat man was stunned. He lowered his head and kicked the skinny man in the head. He muttered with some surprise, he's dead, just like that. Then, he seemed to have thought of something important as he suddenly stared at the golden monkey, You're really this powerful. The golden monkey thought that the fat man wanted to risk his life. He lowered his stance slightly in preparation to pounce. However, when the other party uttered such a brainless speech, he was momentarily stunned. At this moment, Fei Fei suddenly opened her mouth from Wen Liang's side, Moe Bai, why did you come to Mount Hua? Moe Bai squatted down. 
He was trying hard to pry his brother's eyelids open, as I.G. he was worried that the skinny man could rest easy. He answered casually, to play. Fei Fei continued to question closely, what are you going to play? Tell me, I'll see if it's fun to play with. The fat man did not even life his head, his expression was focused. In his eyes, the sharp blade which hung above his head was far less important than his brother not being able to rest in peace. When he heard Fei Fei's words, he answered simply, I want to see who's stronger. After he finished, he added, after a brief moment's pause, the cultivators under the heavens are all here. Sherwan Mountain was filled with poor swamps and barren grasslands, it was the last place to have broken free of chaos. Ever since primordial times, violent savages and countless monsters have gathered there. There were even rumors that the sum of the monsters were not inferior to Xiang Lu. However, that was primordial times. Even if such legendary monsters still existed, they could not possibly be controlled by the Chaos Brothers anymore. Fei Fei gave an bow. She pointed at the large group of monsters in front of her, these things are all powerful. You look like you're afraid that we'll fight. The fat man still lowered his head, he grunted absent-mindedly. The skinny man with profound cultivation base was killed by the monkey just like that, the fat man was fixed on making the dead man open his eyes the six men of the chaos sect stood in pairs. None of them seemed moved by the death of one of their masters the thousand monsters maintained their flattery smiles. Everything was so unbelievable. Fei Fei suddenly felt a chill that traveled up from the base of her spine up to her skull. Chong Li was also at a loss as to what the fat man wanted to play with. These monsters looked savage, but in her eyes, their powers were not much different from a squirrel. The golden monkey Qian Ren spat and scolded angrily, you gaslighting thing. His voice barely faded when his body swayed. He was already in front of the fat man. He raised a fist and punched him fiercely. This time, the people of the chaos sect who had been as still as a tree finally moved. The fat man squalled. He stooped down to carry the body of the skinny man as he turned and ran. At the same time, his six subordinates released their rolling mist of intertwining black and white. They attacked the monkey at once. The thousand monsters also howled together. With a buzz, they pounced towards Qian Ren. Maybe it was because the skinny man's death was too unbelievable, when both parties struck, almost everyone sighed with relief from the bottom of their hearts. Trickeries are meaningless in the face of absolute power. No matter what kinds of tricks the descendants of Chaos Cone Nail had up their sleeves, they could do no harm as long as they're dead. Chong Li laughed sharply. She flipped her wrist and a black demon blade materialized from thin air. One turned into three, three turned into nine. In the blink of an eye, the howl of the demon blades filled the mountaintop. They blocked the sky as they flew towards the monsters in a frenzied slaughter. When Chang Li made her move, the old and little rabbit demon immediately activated their magical powers. The group of Great Mercy Temple elites behind them also threw out their magic weapons. After a slight hesitation, Lu Zheng made the sword controlling gesture with his hand. Ten thousand Kunlun long swords condensed in midair. They looked intently upon the battle on the mountaintop. They would rain down at the first sign of trouble. The six men of Chaos Sect could not hold the monkey up. The moment they went heads to heads, two of them were crushed by the monkey. The monsters too could not withstand the magic weapons of Chang Li and Great Mercy Temple. The stench of blood sprayed everywhere. The initially silent and peculiar mountaintop was suddenly turned into a battlefield where blood and flesh flew. Chang Li's demon blades broke the skies, they went after the fat man Moe Bai at full strength. The fat man's body was also enshrouded in dense rolling mist, but he was in no hurry to fight with his life. He only managed to protect himself under Chang Li's hunt. When he saw that carrying a person hindered him, he exerted force with his hands and twisted the head of the skinny man's corpse from its body with a loud crack. Then, the fat man discarded the body, he only kept the head of the skinny man. His face still wore a focused expression. He tried hard to pry open the eyelids of the skinny man. When Leong did not make his move. Cone Nail and the Golden Monkey steadily had the upper hand. These descendants of Chaos Cone Nail had not chance to flip the tables. Cone Nail leaned on his chest. 
Ever since she knew the experience of her past life, her spirits were greatly shaken. The heavenly water spirit had seized this opportunity to activate itself. She also activated her entire life vitality force in her body to aid the heavenly water spirit attack the seal deep within her primordial spirit. Now, Cone Nail did not have an ounce of energy left, she was even weaker than Fei Fei. The rogue cultivators had backed away. They did not retreat, nor did they make a move. They looked at the battle which still befuddled them. Everyone had the same feelings, the Chaos Disciples had not ascended the mountain to play, they were here to give away their lives. Fei Fei turned and looked at Bao Ri who was still in Wen Buzwa's hands, these descendants of Chaos Cone Nail, what are they playing at? Bao Ri's expression was even more puzzled than Fei Fei's. He first smiled bitterly and shook his head, then he said with contempt, who cares what they're playing at? If we killed every single one of them, we can rest assured that there'll be no more tricks. Chang Li was of the same thought. Ever since she knew that the line of Chaos Cone Nail had undertaken unforgivable evil deeds, she had the intention to kill them. Now, she was playing the heroine with all her heart. She completely forgotten about the bad thing of breaking the ice cone nail which she had done. It was also worse than the evil deeds which the generations of Chaos Cone Nail ancestors and descendants have ever done. This battle was completely one-sided, it could not even be called a battle, it was a massacre. If the skinny man had not died, the Shirwan Mountain disciples might still be able to put up a final fling, but now the skinny man had died. The fat man had only been on the run since just now. The golden monkey was extremely hateful of the cruelty of the men of the Chaos sect, he hated Kong Nuer subordinates even more. He held nothing back with his attacks. His figure which flitted here and there like the wind was akin to a golden butcher's knife. At every spot which it went, there was only a swamp of broken limbs, minced flesh and fresh blood. Finally, at dusk, the golden monkey Qian Ren let out a shrill laugh. He broke the neck of the last monster behind him. With a whistle, he tossed it at the teetering fat man. The fat man had used all his strength, but he was not Chong Li's opponent. Also, he was on the receiving side of the punches and he was now like an arrow at the end of its flight. He could no longer dodge the monster's skull tossed over by the golden monkey. With a muffled bang, the monster's skull collided fiercely with the skinny man's head within his embrace. Then, blood sprayed everywhere as the two heads crushed each other. The fat man's body also swayed. He crashed onto the ground and panted heavily. There was no much pain on his expression, just a bit of helplessness. The line of Chaos Cone Nail did not regard other people as human beings. At the same time, they did not regard themselves as humans either. They were singularities of the world, they should not have been born. At the moment the fat man sat on the ground, for demon blades appeared like phantoms and aimed precisely at his limbs. The Golden Monkey and Chang Li exchanged glances. Up until now, no accident has occurred. The Golden Monkey's footsteps were loud. He walked up to the fat man as he stooped to look at the fat man's face. He asked with a low voice, what are you guys up to coming up the mountain? Also why were you trying to pry open his eyes? Qian Ren spoke while his head was lowered. A trace of sparkling saliva flowed out from his mouth. It tore, extended and finally with a plop, it fell onto the fat man's face. This grossed the hell out of Chang Li who just came over. Qian Ren blushed. He hastily wiped his mouth and smiled embarrassedly at Chang Li, monkey face it does that whenever I lower my head. The fat man opened his mouth. It was indistinguishable whether he was crying or smiling, but his eyes were like Qian Ren's saliva, they sparkled, a monkey salivates when it lowers its head. Qian Ren lifted his head to scold him, stop talking nonsense, answer me. Anyone could see that the fat man was not afraid of death. Even under the demon blade's attacks just now, he did not escape down the mountain, he only went in circles on the mountain, as if he must pry open the eyes of the skinny man before his death. Nobody said a word. Everyone waited silently for his reply. At this moment, a series of mumbling curses and heavy footsteps sounded. Xiao Sha's face was covered in dirt, he was so tired that his eyes were lifeless. He finally reached Goddess Peak. The fat man Moe Bai laid on the ground. He lifted his head strenuously to look behind him. 
At the same time, he cheered and shouted at Xiao Sha, it's you, the one under the mountain. How did you hide yourself? As he said this, his fat body wriggled slightly. The demon blades that watched him suddenly released glaring flowing lights as they firmly subdued his mannerism. The fat man could not break free. He mumbled and sighed, we'll know after we tear it apart. Xiao Sha had no idea what was happening in front of him, however, he had a sharp intuition. He took great strides up to the fat man and smiled, if you answer all their questions honestly, I'll teach you, be a good boy. Eh, there's spit on your face. The fat man laughed as he turned to look at the monkey, I have a deal with Moe Bai. Whoever dies first, the other would pry open his eyes and let him see. See what? You guys knew that you're going to die. Qian Ren and Chang Li asked almost at the same time. The fat man nodded and answered matter-of-factly, of course we'll die. As he said this, the fat man took an interrupted breath, our ancestor had nailed himself on the island. Ever since then, each generation of ours had a slight frown. Although there are plenty of fun things to do under the heavens, but we can't do anything big. Among our ancestors, there were those who broke Yellow River's Great Dam, some burned Qinling Mountain's Dragon Vein, the point is they were all boring. When it came to us brothers, we truly had no better ideas. Fei Fei scrutinized the fat man's face. The gradually thickening excitement seemed like an expectation of the opening of a great play. Her professional eyesight was not even needed for this judgment, even Xiaowu could tell. When Moe Bai mentioned his true objective for his venture onto Mount Hua. He had forgotten to ask how did Xiao Sha hide from his telegnosis ability, fifty days ago, we received an oracle from the old man's spiritual crane, ha. Uh. Bao Ri, you guys had also come to Mount Hua because of the spiritual crane oracle, right? Bao Ri grunted but said nothing. Moe Bai continued to laugh in a sharp voice, I didn't think that Chang Li would be this powerful. Even the five of you together won't be a match for her. Then, he nodded towards Chang Li, you're truly powerful, but just the two of you can't surely win against the five of them, right? Bao Ri's old face flushed red. He could not help but lifted his head. He looked at the great mountain which floated at one corner of the sky. The Devil Fetus Rock Tower was beside the setting sun. It looked savage and strange, its bearing was cold. Xiao Sha chuckled and gave the fat man a kick, you've gone way off topic, no. The fat man was indifferent, he even used Xiao Sha's foot to scratch his head before he continued, the old man delivered a oracle via a spiritual crane and wanted us to catch the cat demon. What good is the cat demon? We had so many ancestors, they had even captured fox demons, tree demons, pig demons, dog demons, and bastard demons, let alone a cat demon. But, the old man's magic circle which came with the spiritual crane oracle gave us an interesting idea, the greatest idea under the heavens. His voice barely faded when old man Bao Ri's face was full of shock. He asked in a hoarse, sharp voice, you can see through the immortal master teacher's magic circle. The magic circle to subdue the cat. The fat man was startled. Then, his face filled with satisfaction. It was not the kind of a scoundrel achieving his ambitions or a determined effort at his deathbed, but it was a genuine one which was wrapped in endless happiness. It was a satisfaction of a child who had done a good deed and was showing off to the adults, you are all within the world's five elements. That won't do. You can't see through the old man's magic circle like that. You also don't have that many subordinates to use it on, of course you can't guess what's so fun here. As he said this, he made strange laughing sounds from the depths of his throat, the magic circle which he passed to us is the great guiding formation. Little Supreme Leader Lu Zheng's brows leapt as he asked when Leong in a low voice, do you still remember in Shanghai painting town? Taoist priest San Wei's split body, the nine corpse nails, guiding the Yin army. When Leong's brain buzzed. Even if he forgotten his own name, he could never forget the Yin army whose fluttering banners blocked the sun with their lame horses and ragged swords. The fat man could not even pant consecutively, but his ears were as sharp as ever. He curved his neck strenuously as he nodded towards Lu Zheng, that sounds right. It's something like that. 
The nine heavens cone nails on black and white island guided the world's spiritual primordial energy and the energy of the universe to subdue Xiang Lu. Lu Zheng's brows furrowed as he continued with a low voice, Taoist priest San Wei had reversed the demon subduing great formation and used nine corpse nails to guide the Yin army from the Netherlands. The fat man panted as he smiled, this magic circle is similar to that. It uses 999 cultivators to guide the energy from outside the domain. However, we ourselves have not understood this either, from where did the energy which this formation guided comes from? We don't know, after it takes shape, whether it would be Heaven's army, Ghost Generals, the 800 Arhats of the Western Paradise of Sukhavati's Buddha, or the Dragon King's Shrimp Army in Crab Generals, ahaha. Chang Li pouted. Even if the formation guided an ET here, she could not have cared less. Her face regained her usual delicate and bright smile, you've activated this formation. The fat man nodded jubilantly, after M.O. Bai died, I have severed my own heart veins. I'm relying on my last breath of life vitality. When I die, the great formation will activate. Rest easy everyone. He had severed his own heart meridians and destroyed his own primordial spirit. Even if Dao Tianzun himself came down to earth, he could not be saved. If the fat man wanted a quick death, he had only need to spit out his final breath. However, Cone Nail put on a bitter smile. She shut her eyes and focused her mind for a brief moment. She slowly gathered her life vitality which attacked the primordial spirit seal with the heavenly water spirit. Then, she stood up straight and stood shoulder to shoulder with Changli, I'll help you fight this battle. Guo Huan also laughed rigidly from Midair, who cares what he's conjuring up. When Leong need only throw this big mountain at him. The golden monkey also smiled coldly. He subconsciously flexed his wrists, fat man, hurry up and die. I only hope that Kong Nuer will come himself. I'm not afraid of some magic circle he left behind. When Leong's heart was much more at ease. Kong Nuer had no idea that Changli, Kon Nail, Qian Ren and Guo Huan had already gathered together. He himself even had even the great mountain and giant sword, these two treasures. With a powerful lineup like this, they had nothing to fear. The fat man held on to his final breath. He babbled to finish explaining about the thing that he was so satisfied about, our M.O. family is the master of Shirwan Mountain. We don't have any cultivators under us, but we have a thousand monsters gifted with natural endowments. He had not finished when Bao Ri shook his head with a strange expression. It was uncertain if he was disappointed or comforted, nonsense. How can a cultivator's life vitality be compared to a monster's endowments? If you used monsters, you can't possibly activate the immortal master teacher's formation spell. The fat man nodded in all apparent seriousness, of course we can't activate it directly. Why do you think that we were almost late? Bao Ri swallowed. His eyes could not help but bulge. Then, he shook his head with a smile, impossible impossible. With you guys, how could you alter the immortal master teacher's formation spell? The fat man broke into laughter. Suddenly, a never-before-seen heroism shone between his eyes, why is it impossible? Our Shirwan Mountain Chaos MO sect is already greater than the likes of you who are in the world's five elements. The heaven which you guys think so highly about is not even a fart in my eyes. You guys cultivate in heaven's path to turn yourselves into heaven, while we cultivate in breaking. If chaos is not broken, how would the world come to be? We gave away our lives, all to break the buckles which locked heaven's will within the formation spell. The magic circle which must be activated using 999 cultivators, I can do the same by using a thousand and one chaos disciples' lives. Not only that, chaos is the ancestor of all force, from our calculations, if the magic circle is activated now, its powers must at least be twice as strong. That's why the stronger you guys are, the happier I am. I could not even bring myself to kill a single one of you. The fat man drew half a breath. He desperately squeezed out a final laugh from his throat, this is the fun part that we thought about. We want to see if the gathered cultivators under the heavens are stronger or if the divine soldiers and ghost generals summoned by the old man's altered formation magic is stronger. With the fat man's final breath dispersing lifelessly, 
sharp rays of light suddenly rose from the mangled remains of the monsters which covered Goddess Peak. The light shot up towards the sky like fireworks. Eventually they dispersed in the distance. Then, the darkening sky at the end of dusk suddenly rolled into layers of clouds which looked like fish scales. Little Chi Maojio looked up at the strange phenomenon in the sky. Layers of flowing lights rolled continuously in his eyes. He smiled bitterly and cursed, the line of chaos is evil. He could not comprehend the reason for which the fat and skinny brothers threw away their lives no matter what. Cone Nail unexpectedly smiled at Chong Li. She hugged her arm, this pair of foolish brothers are like the pickle jar. Tuo Xie had threw caution to the wind for Chong Li, the M.O. brothers had threw away their lives for fun in Tuo Xie's eyes. The line of chaos fun was absurd, but in the hearts of M.O. Bai and M.O. Bai, the cat demon Chong Li was no more valuable than a dog's fart. Chong Li pouted her small mouth. She huffed softly, the cultivators want to blend into heaven's path, the monks want to see Buddha, the mortals want riches and fame. Cone Nail want to experience what it is to be a human, the monkey wants to get his revenge, so the chaos bastards want to have the time of their lives. Cone Nail broke into laughter, then Chong Li wants to trouble Pickle Jar, the Pickle Jar wants even more to be enemies with the whole world for the cat demon's sake. And the old and little fools of the one family would only help their friends and not reason. After she finished, she threw a soft glance at Wen Leong, to no care about death or the world for a thing, that is utmost. What about you, what is your utmost? Wen Leong chuckled, peace and happiness, that's the best. After he finished, he paused before he added, the peace and happiness of you guys. Cone Nail pouted and made a cute disdainful face, you're still siding with your acquaintances rather than reason. At this moment, on the north, south, east and west, the four corners of the skies gave off blazing lights. The formation spell has been completed, but it was uncertain what had appeared in the sky. Old priest Ji Fei leapt suddenly and floated up to the giant rock. He yelled in a low voice at the ten thousand cultivators on Goddess Peak who were looking up at the sky with Mao Sagape, the vile thief had reversed the elements and casted the spell to guide the great demons into the realms of man. All you cultivators, prove your worth today. The old priest's voice was like rolling thunder. It shocked the stunned rogue cultivators back to their senses. Then, with a roar, the various immortals showed their prowess. They were like frenzied ducks as they ran down the mountain in all directions. Lord Gongye who had some relations with the one family had wanted to say something to ease the situation, us rogue cultivators are only fixated on cultivating, we have never bothered with anything else. Halfway through his speech, he was pulled away by the great army which shot past him. Chapter, 260 the Chaos Cone Nail descendants, the M.O. brothers wanted divine soldiers and ghost generals to fight with the cultivators under the heavens. The two of them did not rest in peace. The rogue cultivators that had filled the mountains and plains all ran away. Old Man Bao Ri was terrified to death as he looked at the changes in the skies. He opened his mouth wide and made gagging sounds. After a while, he stammered, I think, maybe, even the immortal master teacher could have foreseen that the bastards of the Chaos Cone Nail had changed his own magic circle. When Buzwa squinted his eyes as he looked at the sky. When he heard Bao Ri's words, he did not forget to chime in, not maybe, he couldn't have thought of that. The air in the sky vibrated violently. Nothing out of the ordinary could be seen yet. Chang Li seemed to be bored of waiting. She turned and walked up to Bao Ri, that immortal teacher of yours, does he have any other outstanding elites or monsters under his command or not? Bao Ri dared not slack off, he immediately replied with respect, there are many elites under the immortal teacher, but the most outstanding ones are us, descendants of the heaven's cone nails. Also, Wu Dudu's sect which is stationed at the highlands is also quite skilled. As for the others. As he said this, Bao Ri shook his head, their cultivation bases are a level or two lower. Cone Nail frowned, you guys are the most powerful. This can't be. As she said this, she exchanged a puzzled glance with Cone Nail Changli, maybe? Wen Leong did not understand. He looked at the two of them with a stunned expression. Cone Nail immediately ignored Changli. She turned and explained to Wen Leong, 
Kong Nuer wanted them to capture the cat demon, alive. When she saw that when Leong nodded, she continued, the magic circle which Kong Nuer passed on to these heaven's cone nail descendants if the great guiding formation. If the only things that it guided were endless monsters or corpse soldiers and divine generals that know nothing but slaughtering, how could they have captured the cat demon alive? And they might not even be able to capture the cat demon. Chang Li skipped over. She asked Wen Leong with a smile, I've never heard that Yin soldiers and ghost generals could take hostages. But he did pass on a guiding formation, what is it supposed to guide? Wen Leong finally grasped the situation as he answered with all apparent naivety, peerless elites loyal to Kong Nuer. Chang Li nodded, that's right. The people guided by the magic circle must at least be more powerful than these fools and obedient to Kong Nuer. Halfway through her speech, the cat demon pouted and made an impatient face, but Bao Ri said that Kong Nuer does not have any more powerful subordinates. Kong Nail was too lazy to think about it. They had been racking their brains all this while, these peerless demon immortals annoyed beyond endurance, well, we'll know all about this later. But Kong Nuer's formation spell had been altered by the two bastards, the things that will be guided out might also have changed. Chang Li made an indifferent expression. She turned and looked at the group of Great Mercy Temple monks behind her. She asked old demon rabbit Bulu with slight puzzlement, why aren't you guys leaving? The old demon rabbit had no expressions as he answered drilly, if Grand Master is here, Bulu and Shan Duan shall never leave. After he finished, he paused for a while. Finally, under the slowly squinting eyes of Chang Li, he shook his hands and smiled embarrassedly, if you didn't say so, we dare not leave. Within the span of their conversation, almost all the cultivators on the mountaintop have already left. Only little supreme leader Lu Zheng, Great Mercy Temple, One Word Palace and the Highland cultivators brought by Rang Yong and the line of Tuasye's disciples stayed back on the mountain. Ever since Kone Nail appeared, painting town's Leongwen had already disappeared. Chang Li laughed loudly and waved her hands, you can just leave if you want to, you don't have to be so polite with me. The old demon rabbit agreed almost instantly, but he did not budge. After all, if Grand Master Chang Li did not leave, they would also not leave no matter what. The others did not say anything. They each looked up at the strange phenomenon in the sky. Not long after, the layers of scaly clouds which rolled in the sky finally jumped slightly and vanished into nothingness. The blazing show of lights and boundless clouds which covered the skies just now had disappeared in the blink of an eye. When Leon, however, suddenly bulged his eyes. A giant floating island was like a giant yacht that just docked in the harbor as it firmly leaned on Goddess Peak from the east. When Leon never thought that the formation magic would guide an island as large as a city here. Compared to the giant island, the Devil Fetus Rock Tower that floated at the edge of the sky seemed insignificant. A magic weapon made from a giant island? When Buzwa's eyes almost fell out of its sockets. He mumbled, there is no limit to the universe. Not only when Leon, even Kone Nail and Chang Li raised their beautiful brows after a moment's loss. The two peerless demon immortals had deep shock written all over their faces. The golden monkey Qian Ren's expression was normal. When he saw Wen Leong's expression who was terrified to death, he laughed hysterically. It's not a magic weapon, don't scare yourself. The formation magic did not guide an island, but it used the energy of the formation to shatter the void and connected the island with Goddess Peak. Currently, the island and Mount Hua were in their original spots and did not move, but the void changed, and they were connected. After the formation spell recedes, everything will return to normal. When Leon could roughly understand Qian Ren's meaning. The formation spell had changed the space and connected two places that were nowhere near each other. He gulped anxiously, so the person who's Kong Nuer searching for is hiding on the island? The monkey hugged himself and nodded his head in all apparent seriousness. He pointed at the unbroken giant island with his chin and said with a stern expression, this place is not what it seems. The personage who's coming out of it must be someone. But how come I've never heard of such a strange place before? On the island, mountain ridges filled the terrain. Due to the close distance, they could not make out the mountain range's form or shape. However, on the entire island, there were no signs of green. It was so gloomy that it would erupt at any moment. 
Qian Ren was still worried that Wen Leong still did not understand as he continued to explain, amidst this spiritual realm, there are some dark life vitality foulness running amok. And the evil foul air among it is even more shocking. He had not finished when Cone Nail suddenly cut him short. She said with a dry voice, on this island, the true evil foul air was still being subdued. If all of it's released at the same time, then then. Chang Li's expression was also extremely strange, it was indistinguishable whether she wanted to cry or laugh, this is no strange land, this. She was halfway through her sentence when a long howl suddenly came from that giant island, who's responsible for this, guiding my land of cultivation. The giant mountains that span across everyone's eyes vibrated fiercely. A human figure leapt from the depths of the giant island like a meteor. He leapt over the dozens of miles of mountains. The air hissed. Even with Wen Liang's eyesight, he could not catch up with the person's figure. In no time, he reached the edge of the giant island. Wen Liang suddenly squalled. If it were not for Cone Nail who supported him, he would have crashed onto the ground already. A man in his thirties, with the air of an erudite learned person, a long sword slung over his back. Righteousness filled his eyes, a grace filled his every movement. Wen Leong could never forget that look, the true soul Tian Yin. Up until now, Chang Li only finished her sentence in a seeming sigh, this is Black and White Island. Wen Leong's brain was in a mess. The formation spell had guided Black and White Island here. Was this Kong Nuer's original intention? Or was it the Chaos Cone Nail Brothers' absurd acts that caused it? Tian Yin's gaze was initially filled with an inward anger, but when he saw the crowd, he was slightly stunned. Then, he took a stride and reached Goddess Peak from Black and White Island. His face was still slightly pale and dreary due to his unrecovered strength, but his expression was wild and collected. He had the art of soul escape and possession, he was not afraid of this group of peerless demon immortals in front of him. Tian Yin's gaze swept across everyone's face. Eventually, it stopped on Cone Nail's face, if you wanted to look for me, you could have just come to Black and White Island yourself, it's not like you don't know the way. Why did you use such a messy pretense of guiding energy? After he finished, he paused and sneered, what, you found a way to kill me? When Leung exchanged a glance with Cone Nail beside him. When the guiding formation was activated and connected Goddess Peak with Black and White Island, it seemed that Tian Yin was more shocked than they were. Little Supreme Leader Lu Zheng chattered his teeth. He stared at Tian Yin as he bared his teeth, vile beast return my master uncle's body. Lu Zheng was usually dexterous and resourceful, but when he suddenly met his great enemy, he lost his cool. He clenched his hands and made to cast the Kunlun sword formation. Cone Nail immediately reached out a hand and stopped little supreme leader Lu Zheng. Tian Yin did not even look at Lu Zheng. He only snorted softly, shall I use your body after I return your master uncle's body then? Young one, you think a little too highly of yourself. He had not finished when Chang Li quickly snorted, let's fight. Then, her body swayed as she rocked the demon blades which covered the sky and attacked Tian Yin. The golden monkey also laughed strangely. His body formed a golden arc once again. He turned wildly in circles around Tian Yin. Bangs of clashes and the sound of demon blades breaking the air suddenly filled the air. After a moment's hesitation, Cone Nail also urged the icicles and attacked Tian Yin with a boom. Tian Yin's cultivation base was on par with Chang Li, Cone Nail and the others. He had tossed about under the heavens more than a day ago and was almost exhausted. He quickly lost under the joint attacks of the three demon immortals. Amidst loud bangs, he was struck back onto Black and White Island. Wen Leong was truly dumbstruck. When the three demon immortals attacked at the same time, were they not afraid that Tian Yin would self-destruct and let his soul escape? As expected, after Tian Yin leapt, he pounced over with a savage look and a sharp howl. He would rather discard his schemes for thousands of years to make Chang Li and the others understood the pain of seeing their bodies being helplessly controlled by the true soul. However, Chang Li raised her arms she blew her little fists with a happy face, I've been wanting to hit him all along. Then, her face tightened as she stared at Tian Yin unwaveringly, if you possess my body, 
I must have a moment's window where I can break free of my shackles. Even this brief moment is enough for me to plunge headlong into the thirteen shall not pass in the crystal or cave. After she finished, a sneer appeared on her lips. Then, she lifted her chin and did not look at Tian Yin. Tian Yin's fierce pounce froze in midair. He landed softly on the ground. The expression on his face had returned to normal, but his gaze was filled with anger and hate. The true soul naturally had no restrictions within its own body, or a body which had completely turned into its own. However, if it truly went into the bodies of demon immortals like Chong Li or Kone Nail who were much stronger than Tian Yin was, it was difficult to predict if the other party could wrestle their bodies back for even a moment. Besides, in the process of the true soul's possession, there would be a stage where the primordial spirits of the two parties would superimpose. To put it bluntly, they would share the same Buddhist magic art. Even if the other person's primordial spirit could wrestle her own body even for a brief moment, it was enough to activate the distant talisman and plunge into thirteen shall not pass. Tian Yin replied coldly, I can always activate my life vitality to blast your body before you reach thirteen shall not pass. Chang Li pouted and smiled. It was breathtakingly beautiful. Tian Yin took a deep breath. He looked at Chang Li with bright eyes and smiled. He looked every bit like a god, cat demon, why don't you ask me where did Pickle Jar go after he left Black and White Island 2000 years ago? The fierce wrinkles between Chang Li's eyes disappeared as quickly as they appeared. She shook her head slowly, if I had asked that, I would either be ridiculed or teased by you. I won't do such a foolish thing as that. A hint of satisfaction showed on Tian Yin's face. However, Chang Li mimicked his tone and asked in return, Xian Lu, why don't you ask me why your foolish little brother is no longer on Goddess Peak, the wood element wicked soul? A laugh escaped from Wen Liang's lips. Chang Li had said to him before that nobody under the heavens could ever win against her. A savage expression suddenly appeared on Tian Yin's face, here. This is Goddess Peak. Before this, Tian Yin captured Earth Emperor and sent the wood element wicked soul back. He had walked about under the mountains and did not go up Goddess Peak. Then, he flipped his arms and a suppressed squall that flustered everyone came from his mouth. When Buzwa's voice sounded lazy, stop screaming, we'll just return it to you then. As he said this, he took out a mountain rock imprinted with the shape of a snake. He grunted, I had wanted to keep this as a souvenir. After the giant sword refined the wicked soul, when Buzwa had taken down the stone plate imprinted with the wicked soul's shape. Tian Yin caught the stone piece. He had only glanced at it when he gave a heaven-shaking wail. With a clap, the slate in his hands was reduced into fine powder and erupted into a puff of dust. Tian Yin's eyes almost fell out of their sockets. He spat out every word with hate, who killed seventh brother. As he said this, his slender and slightly skinny body started to expand and contract. For the casual observer he looked just like a huge toad's belly. Everyone could see that Tian Yin had already made up his mind. Even if he had to forfeit his own body, he must avenge the wood element wicked soul. Chang Li snorted, you've got me. A strange cry suddenly sounded from Wen Liang's chest. You've got me heard that someone had called it out. It flaunted its prowess and at the same time the giant sword molten metal fire bell appeared suddenly amidst heaven-shaking bell tolls. The blade was covered in layers of fiery snakes, as if it was the natural nemesis of Tian Yin. Even the bell tolls had some wall-breaking ferocity. Tian Yin did not even look at the worm, but after seeing molten metal fire bell, the expression on his face changed quickly. It changed from an exasperated anger to an extremely sinister forbearing and alertness in an instant. He collected his stance and flailed his arms as quick as lightning. The air hissed as he wrote something in it. Then, he yelled, distant, break. The air in front of Tian Yin shriveled visibly, then, it protruded suddenly. It swallowed up Tian Yin's figure in the blink of an eye. Only a few moments later, Tian Yin's low growl before he broke the air to escape projected through the air, you and I will not rest until we die. It gradually faded into unintelligible chirps. A long while later, when Wen Leong had confirmed that Tian Yin had already activated the talisman and escape, 
he finally realized that his clothes were drenched in cold sweat. He looked at black and white island which only had mountains and no greenery with a blank expression as he asked the others, who's he talking to? You've got me was in high fighting spirits. It stayed on Wen Liang's shoulder and shrieked. Chang Li also sighed softly. She looked at Wen Liang with a slightly helpless expression, Tian Yin was talking to the giant sword's master. You've got me abruptly shut its mouth. Its black eyes stared at Chang Li. This time, little Chi Maojo did not wait for Wen Liang to ask before he could not restrain himself from asking, Tian Yin ran away because he was afraid of you've got me? I thought molten metal fire bell's true fire of heavenly plow could not harm Xiang Lu's true soul. Kon Nail shook her head, Tian Yin did not know that the master of the giant sword had changed to you've got me. He was afraid of the former master of the giant sword. Of course Tian Yin was not afraid that molten metal fire bell was in you've got me's hands, but if the original master triggered the giant sword, he might have been able to kill the true soul. As she said this, Kon Nail turned towards Chang Li and said with a smile, clever. The guiding formation had connected Mount Hua Goddess Peak and Black and White Island. When Leong and the others were startled, Tian Yin even more so. From Tian Yin's first sentence when he appeared, Chang Li knew that Tian Yin himself did not know what was happening. In Tian Yin's eyes, he saw that a group of enemies had activated some silly formation spell and came looking for him with burning spirits. No matter how calm he appeared, he was still secretly uneasy. He was worried that they had found a way to defeat him. Wen Leong only understood now that Chang Li had this all planned from the very beginning. The giant sword and black and white island were connected to each other. They could restrict the wicked soul and at least would have some terrifying effect towards Tian Yin. As expected, Tian Yin recognized Molten Metal Fire Bell. When he saw that the giant sword had appeared and confirmed that it was the real thing, he thought that the giant sword's master wanted to ambush him. He immediately casted the distant talisman and escaped far away. When Leong knew, when it came to scheming, he had no hopes of outsmarting these group of old demons. Chang Li squinted her eyes and made a fierce expression. She stared at a flustered Wen Buzwa, it's you who foiled my plans. I had originally wanted to stall Xiang Lu before summoning the giant sword to flaunt itself to see if we can know his whereabouts. Now, thanks to you, you've directly given the wicked soul its its proof of death. Aren't you making it risk its life? Wen Buzwa's jaw dropped. He replied with a frown, it's because I didn't know I had only intended to back you up. Wen Leung suddenly felt a chill travel up from the base of his spine. If Xiang Lu was determined in fighting all out, or if it did not recognize Molten Metal Fire Bell, everyone present here might not be able to survive. He could not help but mumbled, that was close. However, Chang Li turned and looked at Wen Leong with a pent-up anger, what's close? If Xiang Lu fought all out, worst case scenario is that we'll escape. Chang Li bullied everyone she could get her hands on. The group of demon sect disciples and people of Tuasya sect dared not make a sound. Kone Nail shook her head and smiled bitterly as she diverted the topic, the true soul did not understand the matter of the guiding formation. It's even less likely that it'll listen to Kong Nuer's orders. When Buzwa quickly nodded forcefully, this matter can only be an accident after the guiding formation was altered by the chaos sect people. When Leong nodded even harder than when Buzwa. He pointed at the nearby island, this is the black and white island which subdues Xiang Lu. Xiang Lu is being subdued in the heart of the island. However, Kone Nail shook her head. She pointed at the bald the giant bald mountains, one mountain is one snake's neck of Xiang Lu. This time, Wen Leong was not alarmed about this. An utmost evil monster that overran the whole world, it was understandable that its true body was as large as mountains. He asked with a smile, Xiang Lu's so large. Where's the demon subduing heaven's cone nails? The heaven's cone nail's shape is no larger than a person. If Xiang Lu's snake neck is a great python, the heaven's cone nail could only be a needle. As she said this, cone nail's expression was slightly dispirited, the thing that subdued Xiang Lu was not the cone nail but the formation. It had nothing much to do with the cone nails. After she finished, Kone Nail looked at Chang Li with a smile, we'll go up the island to sightsee after we dismiss the next one. 
Wen Liang's heart skipped a beat when he heard that, what next one? There's another one. The golden monkey nodded his head in a matter-of-fact manner, the surrounding life vitality is still vibrating, the formation spell is not yet complete. After Black and White Island, there must be another place which will be guided here. Chang Li, however, waved her arm with annoyance, we're not waiting anymore. We're leaving. Who cared what it's guiding here, if it's that powerful, then just let it chase after me all over the world. Kong Nuer's formation spell had not yet been fully activated. The fact that another place or elite will be guided here had already boggled Wen Liang's mind. After hearing Chang Li's words, Wen Liang felt that his every nerve in his brain was twisting fire dough twist, you can still run. He had always thought that when the formation spell came, they would be possessed and their bones would be corrupted, that the formation would follow wherever they went. He had never thought about running away. Chang Li replied without lifting her head, of course we can run. We could have run before Tian Yin arrived, why can't we do it now? Kone Nail hugged Chang Li's arms with a smile, don't go now. Who cares what's going to be guided here? Since everyone's here, we can just work together and beat it. Once we're finished with the lackeys, Kong Nuer will show himself. After she finished, she paused and continued to smile, if we really want to run, let's wait until we're sure that we cannot fight it. Her voice barely faded when Guo Huan who floated high up in the sky suddenly snorted, it's coming, it's coming. The Big Mountain After the appearance of Black and White Island, a flowing mountain range that extended to the edges of the skies appeared silently from the north. It did not let out any sound as it firmly leaned on Goddess Peak. Guo Huan's position was the highest. When the strange place appeared, he could have a complete view of the surroundings. His rigid voice was filled with shock. He rambled, deep golden scales, covered the southern side of the mountain. Covered in red, a thousand hills slanted towards the east. Never coming back after one leaves. After he finished, he paused briefly. When he opened his mouth again with his awkward voice, almost every cultivator responded to his voice. They exclaimed, either with shock or with fear, Desert Rebel Mountain. Only the group of Tuasia sect people looked at each other. When Buzwa looked at Wen Leong, Wen Leong looked at Chi Maojiu, Chi Maojiu looked at Second Mother. At the northern side of the mountains, a bronze yellowish peak loomed over the other mountains. The angle at which it slanted to the south was extremely big, as if it would tumble at any time. The other mountains formed an unbroken chain, they were all dark red in color. They slanted towards the east in unison. The mountains slanted in two different directions with their different heights, the strong contrast strained the eyes of the onlookers, there was an unexplainable ill feeling about it. Old demon rabbit Bulu explained to the people of Tuasia sect in a low voice, in ancient times, there were a lot of tragedies. During that time, there were many evil beasts under the heavens. Xiang Lu was the most evil of all, but there were also a few which were more powerful. One of them is Red Pot. The power of its water and fire were strong beyond compare, but it was still subdued in the end. It had been forever sealed within this golden fanged red garbed strange mountain. Legend has it, that after the strange mountain sealed red pot, it uprooted and disappeared. People have called it Desert Rebel Mountain ever since. Little Chi Maojo listened with interest. He could not help but question the old demon rabbit closely, then which one is more powerful, Xiang Lu or Red Pot? The old demon rabbit answered without hesitation, Xiang Lu was the most evil of all. Although Red Pot was also a great evil, but compared to the nine-headed monster, it was still leagues below it. These are all words of legends, I don't know if it's accurate. The golden monkey Qian Ren diverted old demon rabbit's sentence, Desert Rebel Mountain sealed and subdued Red Pot was a thing of ancient time. When I cultivated an ending cave, Desert Rebel Mountain was already a thing of legend. Cone Nail frowned as she looked at the big mountain before her, all that came today are evil lands which sealed great wickedness. However, after Desert Rebel Mountain appeared, it did not make any sound. It only floated there quietly. Chapter, 261 Following the black and white island, the guiding magic formation guided in another pristine evil suppressing land the Desert Rebel Mountain. The boldness that was connected for a thousand miles, the enchantment of the golden horn with red lining, 
the ghastliness of rickety hills, the desert rebel mountain was akin to a deceased giant alligator that was floating quietly in the air. There was not an ounce of liveliness. After a long while, there was still not a sound that echoed from within. When the golden monkey was frowning, it appeared unusually innocently foolish, on the desert rebel mountain there is no malevolent energy or righteous energy there is also no circulation of spirit primordial energy. This is just a stretch of dead land. Qian Ren inherited the monkey's body, it also inherited this rare beast's ability to sense the world. It was unusually sensitive to all sorts of smells in nature. Chang Li was too lazy to wait anymore. She coiled her hands and scattered demonic primordial energy that was accompanied by arrogance and evil intent. She shouted in an awe-inspiring manner, Search! A stretch of demonic primordial energy scattered in all directions in the blink of an eye, and swept towards the entire desert rebel mountain like the wind. Cone Nail also guided her life vitality at the same time to join Changli in searching the huge mountain together. In carrying out the act of mobilizing one's primordial spirit to search the mountain, the higher the cultivation the larger the area of search was covered. Similarly, it would startle the master cultivators that were meditating and recuperating in the mountain. In cultivators' perception, the act of using spiritual vitality to search the mountain was already recognized as a challenge since earlier. The demonic primordial energy spread a thousand miles in a flash. The scene in the desert rebel mountain flashed across the two top demon immortals' minds, Chang Li's brows furrowed tighter and tighter. Kone Nail's expression appeared unusually suspicious, she explained to Wen Leung softly, the magic protective circle of the mountain is damaged since earlier, many shattered treasured weapons are scattered about. There are also some traces of the mountain being blasted with supernatural power in the desert rebel mountain, a violent battle broke out apparently huh, I have found some corpses, that have already turned into white bones. Kone Nail was halfway through her speech when Chang Li who was searching the mountain together with her suddenly gave out an alarming cry. Chang Li suddenly leaped up and completely disregarded the rest of the people, her movements were so swift she was beyond comparison. She entered the desert rebel mountain. Kone Nail was shocked, she did not know what the important matter that Chang Li discovered was, she was also afraid that Chang Li would be harmed in the evil land. Hence, she grabbed Wen Leong and followed closely behind Chang Li's back. The golden monkey roared to the rest, stay on the same spot and do not act rashly. Soon after, its body turned into a streak of a golden arc as it pursued together with Cone Nail. The three top demon immortals spared no effort in urging their life vitality. They moved hurriedly through the air. When they took their first step they were still before the crowd's eyes. With their second step, they had already disappeared on the edge on everyone's sight. As when Leon could only run but not fly, he could only be lifted in Cone Nail's hands. The strong wind from speed blew his face askew, he appeared to be giving a maniacal smile there. The moment they entered the desert rebel mountain, when Leon could only feel that the pores on his entire body opened up simultaneously. Within the extreme silence and stuffiness, a layer of faintly discernible gloominess surrounded himself as if a dead man's hairs were gently sweeping past his body. Cone Nail's face was filled with unhappiness. She frowned as she complained to Wen Leon softly, what is going on with Chang Li actually? Wen Leong shook his head strenuously. Hill upon hill that was grown full of red fungus was enshrouded with heavy deathliness flashed across swiftly from underneath his body. Occasionally, a streak of ferocious looking scar lashed past in between the mountain ridge diagonally. The further they ventured into the depth, the more scars that pierced through or slashed the mountain ridge diagonally. There were also some treasured weapons that were broken or shattered tragically that remained. The golden monkey followed next to Cone Nail's side sturdily, it gasped in slight astonishment, these scars are caused by supernatural power do you think someone fought his way into the desert rebel mountain? Cone Nail's expression had already turned from dissatisfaction to solemnness at this moment. Similar to the golden monkey, her gaze contained a sense of astonishment, she was speculating about the course of event that took place here, someone entered the boundary of desert rebel mountain. Following that, he was discovered by the formation guarding cultivators, the trespasser dodged and hid from the pursuit, while he dashed towards the Golden Horn Peak. No matter how spiritual was a huge mountain, it would never pin down a monster by itself, it was certainly done by the profound cultivators who depended on the magic formation to guide the mountain mannerism. 
Only then they managed to suppress the evildoer. The Desert Rebel Mountain was the same as the Black and White Island. Apart from the magic formation, there would also be the disciples who guarded the formation. The enormous scars grew in numbers. After a while, the stacked chain of mountain ridges before Wen Liang's eyes seemed to turn into a twisted chessboard. It was unknown how many gigantic cracks were wedged into the little hill's peaks, while the mountain valley was covered with what appeared to be gigantic craters left behind from meteorite impact. Cone Nail stretched out her hand and pointed to the few most frightening cracks on the mountain peak, she asked the golden monkey softly, if it were you, do you think you can fight your way in? The golden monkey pondered for a while, then it spoke slowly, I can still fight my way up to here however, if I were to act accordingly, I will absolutely never dash my way into the golden horn peak. But the corpses are still in the depth there are no corpses here. As it was saying that, the golden monkey suddenly widened its eyes, the trespasser had yet to kill anyone up to this point, he was only dashing urgently towards the golden horn. These supernatural power scars were left behind by the formation guarding cultivators. When Leon visualized the situation that had happened for a while. The desert rebel mountain that had been quiet for many years, a peerlessly brave trespasser suddenly appeared. The formation guarding disciples counterattacked and launched their treasured weapons and supernatural powers that were exceedingly powerful. Yet, they did not manage to stop the enemy, the trespasser completely refused to wage war with them. Under the blasting of treasured weapons that covered the entire sky, he dashed all the way towards the golden horn. At least until where they had passed through, whether it was the trespasser or the warriors, no one was injured or killed yet. Cone Nail, the golden monkey in Wen Liang's telegnosis ability were spread far and wide, there were no corpses in the nearby areas. The golden monkey's voice carried some slight unwillingness, if I was the trespasser, and similarly I dodged all the way like this and never counterattack, I would have stopped over here. Cone Nail gave a forced smile, it is already remarkable to dash all the way to here under the blasting of such vast supernatural powers. However have you ever think of this, if people like you and I were to travel through the air and intrude into the desert rebel mountain, why were there so many scars on the ground? The golden monkey squalled. The corners of its mouth twitched, could it bet had the trespasser did not fly in but he leaped and ran and jumped? The desert rebel mountain's golden horn was still soaring afar at the edge of sight as if one would never reach it. Chong Li was traveling in the air in front, Cone Nail lifted Wen Leung. She was discussing with the golden monkey softly, while they followed closely behind Chong Li. With their speed, they swept past quickly for another ten more minutes. Chong Li suddenly stopped moving, she turned around and revealed in a strange smile towards Wen Leung, from this point onwards, there are dead people. Underneath Chong Li's feet, there was a ghastly pale skeleton that was lying down, its white finger bones were still coiled together and pinched into a simple and unsophisticated Taoist magic conjuration gesture. The trespasser dashed his way until this spot, he finally could no longer disregard the attacks in his surrounding, so he could only launch his counterattack. There were no specific wounds on the entire remnant skeleton, only in between its eye sockets, there was a round and small hole. When Leung felt that there was nothing unusual about the skeleton, he was only visualizing that back then. This cultivator was pinching the magic conjuration gesture and was guiding his treasured weapon to pursue the enemy, yet unexpectedly the other party struck his head. He could not even cry out in agony in time before he fell to the ground and died. At this moment Chong Li suddenly stretched out her hand. At the muffled sound of a crack, she pulled down the remnant skeleton's skull, when Leong was startled. Just as he was wondering what Chong Li was about to do, Chong Li turned over her hand, from the skeleton's skull, she poured out a piece of small stone. A piece of stone, that was completely unappealing lied comfortably on Chang Li's warm jade-like palm. Cone Nail and the Golden Monkey gasped in surprise softly almost at the same time. The two top demon immortals' faces were plastered with shock and disbelief. Chang Li smiled slightly, yet her voice was trembling, this cultivator, was not killed by supernatural power, the thing that killed him was. This little piece of stone here moreover, the strength was exerted in perfection, it did not crush his skull, nor shot out from the back of his head. It only pierced through the area between the brows and took his life. The thing that killed this cultivator was not supernatural power or magic art but it was a piece of tiny stone that was filled with brute force. 
He looked at the mottled scars that covered the mountain, he could tell about the warrior's actual power. These years, when Leon gained a lot of insight about cultivators. He understood better than anyone else that the possibility of a profound cultivator dying of concealed weapon was lower than a rhinoceros to be killed by a mischievous child slingshot. The golden monkey's gaze was slack. It was almost clenching its teeth in rage as it spoke softly, that is impossible. Chang Li suddenly widened her eyes, how is it impossible? He can do it. Upon saying that, the demon cat once again started moving and swept towards the golden horn but this time she was not traveling through the air. She ran and leaped step by step. When Le Yang's brain hummed, his gaze turned bright in the blink of an eye. The corpse skeletons on the ground gradually grew. In the beginning, the skeletons were mostly killed by a stone that pierced through their skulls. Gradually, the skeletons were damaged in more and more terrifying ways. Some of the skulls were completed shattered, while some of the chest bones or ribs were pulverized, some were only left with half a side of a body. Each of these skeletons died savagely, their fatal wounds were similarly gruesome yet terrifying. The wounds were absolutely not caused by supernatural power or sharp weapons. If one were to look closely, one could even find traces of soil in between the bones. The golden monkey was almost in tears without its notice, they were all killed by stones. In its eyes, a group of profound cultivators' bodies was shattered by stones, it was as amusing as warriors were crushed to death by the fruit pits that were tossed by a monkey or terrifying. Cone Nail seemed to have already known who the trespasser was, she followed the footsteps to speculate the situation back then. More and more formation guarding cultivators came, the trespasser also started counterattacking violently, he was too busy so he could only aim for the skulls. A handful of broken stones were scattered, whoever was struck was killed, hehe, <laughs> so impressive. In between Chan Li's brows, a sense of pride accompanied by boundless heartache was revealed unknowingly. They were already not far away from the golden horn. When Le Yang's heart was beating loudly. Suddenly, Chan Li stopped walking once again, she pointed to a skeleton, when Le Yang, come and take a closer look. There was no need for a closer look, when Leong had only taken a glance and he gave out a voice that was unknown if it was a surprised cry or a cheer. There was the excitement of his entire lifetime contained in his voice. It surged from the bottom of his heart to the edge of the sky. From the top of the skull to the little toes, every inch of that skeleton was covered with fine fissures. The arms were tightly stuck to the ribs, the two legs were twisted in an unnatural position. Anyone would not doubt that this skeleton would immediately turn into fine dust the moment it was slightly touched, any inner disciple of the one family could tell by one glance. That before this person died, he was hugged by another person and struck repeatedly with the faulty punch to death. In the entire world, over the time of ten thousand years, there could only be one person other than Wen Leong who was capable of using the faulty punch to kill profound cultivators. When Leong almost spoke out the four words as if he was sleep talking, Grand Master Tuasye. While after Chang Li heard of these four words, she suddenly bawled and cried aloud, it was him. The golden monkey inhaled a long breath ferociously, its gaze suddenly turned sharp, this dead man he raised Tuasye. Qian Ren had been spending time with Wen Leong and the rest all the time recently, it had heard so much about Tuasye's person, it was also very familiar about the course of events that took place since the beginning to the end. Chang Li's ball turned into a cough all at once. She raised her hand and tossed a demon blade at the golden monkey, bullshed. Cone Nail burst out laughing, she blocked the demon blade on behalf of the monkey, the killer was Tuas Ye. The golden monkey's expression turned oppressed, it spoke shyly, I was still wondering, this skeleton would have been a skinny and tall person in life. The nearer they approached the golden horn, the more cultivator skeletons they discovered. In the beginning, the cultivators were killed by stone and struck with the faulty punch. Then, the skeletons were mottled with the ghastly colors of red, green, black, yellow and etc. Grand Master Tuasye had started using poison at this point. From when they first entered the Desert Rebel Mountain, they discovered more than a few hundreds of skeletons that died tragically. The skeletons were scattered everywhere in a mess while the shattered treasured weapons were half buried in the soil, the weapons appeared unwilling yet helpless. 
The golden monkey's voice sounded more unpleasant than the welding sound of iron, it muttered softly, if brute force and strong poison were effective. Then what was the point of cultivation when Liang's expression was filled with deep concern, he was afraid that he would discover a short and small remnant skeleton that looked like a pickle jar. Kone Nail understood when Liang's concern, she pulled his hand and laughed, your concern is useless, your family's grand master won this battle. Otherwise, how would the remaining formation guarding cultivators allow the corpses of their companions to be scattered everywhere? As she was saying that, Kone Nail spat out a mouthful of sulky air gently, it was only that why did Tuasia try to fight his way into the desert rebel mountain? Was he trying to rescue the red pot? As she was saying that, when Leon could only feel as the vision before his eyes brightened, they had already walked out of the red fungus hills, the golden peak stood alone impressively, stabbing diagonally towards the heaven. In between the red hill and the golden horn, there was a stretch of open space that was not considered too big. Dozens of gigantic rocks the size of houses scattered in a mess, it appeared disordered and messy at first glance, on top of every gigantic rock, a ghastly skeleton was sitting up straight and steadily. The golden monkey shielded itself against the rest of the people, its body swayed as it shuttled back and forth swiftly in between the gigantic rocks. When it returned, its face was excited and agitated, its voice carried a sense of hoarseness, Liang Li Immortal Formation. This is this is the Mother King Liang Li Immortal Formation. Even for Chang Li who was experienced and knowledgeable, her gaze was misted with a layer of uncertainty, what is that? The monkey wanted to explain more but it did not know how to explain, it stuttered for a long while before it finally waved its hand, anyhow, it is the profound sex immortal formation that was already lost to the world long ago. I have only ever heard of it but I have never seen a real one before. This is the entire desert rebel mountain's eye of formation, it guided the power of the huge mountain to seal down the red pot and that was done by this magic formation here. Chang Li was of a demon body. She did not have a deep understanding of profound sex magic formation and she was even less interested. She shook her head and walked towards the middle of the formation, when Leon was still afraid that the place could be dangerous. He was about to speak when Cone Nail laughed from the side, the people who cast the formation were turned into bones, the magic formation was destroyed long ago. She grabbed hold of Wen Leon and they walked into the gigantic rocks that were scattered around. The cultivator's skeletons on the gigantic rocks were glowing with faint red-colored radiance from inside out. This was different from the unusual ghastly magnificence under the influence of strong poison, the red glow within the skeletons was enshrouded by awe-inspiring righteous energy and heaven's power. As compared to the skeletons that were scattered in between the red hills, each of the skeletons on the magic formation gigantic rocks were sitting upright. Their expression solemn, there was not a scar on their bodies, as if they passed away naturally while sitting cross-legged. Cone Nail pointed towards those skeletons that were sitting upright, during these cultivators' lifetime, they have already cultivated into the red refined spirit, that is why their skeletons are penetrating with a faint red glow. When Le Young's gaze was filled with anticipation, he inquired closely, how incisive were they? As compared to me? Cone Nail laughed as she shook her head, the cultivation of red refined spirit pays particular attention to the faith and determination. The people who engaged in this cultivation may not necessarily be the most incisive but their hearts were as firm as the rock. They could never be wavered by outside forces. These cultivators were capable of giving free rein to the biggest power in the profound sex magic formation. The golden monkey nodded, this magic formation is not chaotic at all. Not even Tua Xie was capable of breaking the formation back in those years. Chang Li's eyes were beyond bright and shiny. She turned around and laughed, how did he pass through if he did not break the formation? In the end, it was still Tua Xie who triumphed. When Leong was clearly confused, he looked at the golden monkey then he looked at Chang Li, his brows furrowed, did not break the formation but triumphed. As he was saying that swung his arm strenuously, can we please stop speaking only half a sentence all the time? Cone Nail was very patient, she continued to point at those skeletons. She explained to Wen Leong smilingly, they still retained their magic casting postures before they died and there was not a scar on them, these cultivators died of exhaustion. Grandmaster Tuas Ye dashed into the desert rebel mountain and fought violently along the way. 
He attacked and killed hundreds of cultivators and arrived here, the ancient immortal formation's power was unsurpassed. The vast and mighty divine power circulated in layers and endless cycles, even Tuasya could not dash into it. In the end, he pounced onto the great formation headfirst and used the faulty punch to break the magic. Continuously exhausting the mighty power of spirit primordial energy that was used by the immortal formation forcefully exhausted a group of cultivators' powers into nothingness. This group of formation cultivators lost their reinforcements, naturally, there was no one else who could come and take turns with them. Finally, they were exhausted to death by Tuasya. When Le Young's was so astonished that he never shut his mouth during the entire story. At this point, the story was no longer as exciting as before, he looked towards those skeletons in slight puzzlement, are you certain that these people were killed by the Grand Master? Cone Nail understood his question, she did not wait for him to finish asking before she answered, if it was not for the spurting pressure that required all the cultivators to risk their lives and replenish their life vitality into the magic formation. They would never die in such a tidy manner, the people who died first would be compressed into flesh mud and bone shavings by the power of the magic formation. At the final moment, the power of the magic formation was drenched by the faulty punch all at once. During the time they spent discussing, the group of people had already walked past the open space where the magic formation was cast. Underneath the tilted mountain of the Golden Horn, a cave that was not considered too high but was spacious enough was revealed suddenly. When Leong walked forward in quick strides, he studied the soil around the cave's walls, his voice was trembling as if someone was thumping his chest rapidly, this is the cave that was dug out with the faulty punch. In the discussion of magic formation and supernatural power, when Leong was unskilled but in the discussion of using the faulty punch to dig a hole, when Leong was absolutely the expert. The stone walls around the cave was loose on the outside and compact on the inside, there were threads and vines of strong poison passages that ran through the walls. The magic formation was halted, the golden horn was turned into an ordinary mountain peak. Tuasya then used the faulty punch to dig a cave and punched his way into the mountain. Chongli did not waste time talking nonsense. She lowered her head and bored into the cave, the rest of the people followed behind her. Kone Nail lowered her head and walked as she laughed to Wen Leong softly, Grand Master Tuasya is truly not that tall. But he is truly not considered skinny as well. If the cave was only meant for the person who launched the faulty punch to enter and exit, then the cave's shape was generally almost the size of the person who dug out the cave when Wen Leong was digging through Mount Amei back then. In order to take care of the rainbow fat man, he had to punch a hole that was twice the size of him. The cave's height was roughly over 1.6 meters, the width was also over a meter. For people with Chongli and Cone Nail's figure, they could walk side by side but they would need to lower their heads. Chongli heard Cone Nail's words, she was not furious but on the contrary, she was joyous, she turned around and laughed, that is correct, he has such a sturdy and burly figure. It makes him so awe-inspiring. The cave was long and narrow with twists and turns, yet they still did not manage to raise their heads all along. The huge mountain was used to seal the giant monster red pot, there should be one more huge path that was suppressed by a talisman seal that would only allow the person who cast the formation to pass through. However, Tuas Ye seemed to be too lazy to even look for that, he straightforwardly used the faulty punch to dig through the mountain and punched his way into the depth of the huge mountain. Cone Nail and the Golden Monkey became more curious the further they walked, while Chan Li and Wen Leong were growing more and more anxious. The group of people could not figure out the purpose of Tuasyeh's for visiting this place. Due to the demon cat, Tuasyeh made the cultivation world his enemy. He then entrusted his two senior brother disciples to kill all the great demons in the world for the past 2000 years and even completely entrap the Chilean immortal sect. He was absolutely not considered a person of righteousness but he was also not that senseless such that he would come here to break into the jail and release the giant monster red pot for no reason. Chongli walked faster and faster, she was too impatient to walk slowly in small strides, she finally unfolded her movements. Lowering her body, she flew forward rapidly, while the rest of the people followed closely behind her. They walked all the way for an unknown amount of time. When Le Young's body suddenly felt lighter, an empty mountainside that was not considered too big appeared before their eyes silently. 
When Wen Leong first bumped into Wei Mo on Mount Amei's mountainside, the place was so enormous such that he could not see the edge. In comparison, the Golden Horn's mountainside before his eyes was much inferior, at best, it was only the size of half a football field, it could be clearly seen with a glance. The moment Chang Li walked into the mountainside, she gave a, ha, huh, in surprise. In the middle of the mountainside, similar to before, there was a skeleton that was lying horizontally. When Leon was nervous for a while, he then felt relieved, this skeleton was skinny and tiny. At most, it was about 1.4 or 5 meters when it was alive. Judging by its skinny leg bones, when this person was still alive, he could only be about 35 to 40 kilograms. In the hand of the short and skinny skeleton, there was a sword, the sword's radiance was gloomy and desolated, its coldness and sharpness were completely not worn away with time. What was truly surprising to Changli was, the mountainside was not pitch black. There was a trace of indistinctive light that was slowly enshrouding out of the oblique direction. Even though it appeared weak and soft, it was beyond appealing within the surrounding pitch blackness. The golden monkey could not care about examining the skeleton. It observed closely at the fissure that allowed light from the outside to penetrate into the depth of the mountainside. The fissure was long and narrow, it was less than one and half inch wide, about the thickness of a nail but its opening was smooth and even. After a moment, at the sound of a th thud, the golden monkey sat onto the ground, this is a sword's mark. The expression on the monkey's face was indescribable with words. If Fei Fei was at the scene, she would certainly take a photo of it and brought it back to use as a subject to study. The power of a sword that pierced through the golden horn heaven's peak in a diagonal manner. Even when Leong was any more ignorant, he could understand this sword easily and the power it possessed. Tuasya did not use a sword, the red pot was a monster so who was this short and small skeleton actually, who was capable of such supernatural power? Tuasya killed all the way into the desert rebel mountain. The enemy in his final battle was surprisingly as bold and fierce as a lion. The few people gathered around the short and small skeleton. Chang Li had only stretched out her hand and touched the long sword in its hand when she suddenly gasped softly, her body swayed as she retreated for a few steps. A stretch of water spread from the tip of her finger rapidly, it rippled and crawled upwards. Chang Li was poisoned. Based on Chang Li's demonic primordial energy's cultivation base, even after she exerted all her strength to force and urge, to her surprise, she could not dissolve the poison. The layer of pale blue-colored water slowly spread from in between her fingers onto her wrist. Wen Leong did not know about this strong poison and there was no way he could dissolve it, but speaking of water element poison. He was afraid that there was no other poison in the world that was stronger and thicker than the firecracker's poison. However, the poison that was inflicted on Chang Lim was apparently bonded with other forms of toxicity. Under the combination, it was even much more incisive than Wen Leong's poison of life and death. Chang Li's expression was very peculiar, she revealed a smile at Wen Leong surprisingly, I did not expect that I will be poisoned to death by him. Wen Leong could not care about expressing his emotions with Chang Li. After he tried seven to eight types of art of expelling poison, his efforts still remained futile. He suddenly clenched his teeth and grabbed onto Chang Li's delicate hand that had already completely turned into the color of aqua blue. Chapter 262 the moment when Leong held Chang Li's little hand, the poison of life and death that was huddled up in his body parts was akin to a strange python that was suddenly startled. Accompanied by a sense of fear and raging hysteria, it sprung out of his body and circled around wildly. The water-colored strong poison seemed to have discovered an even more scrumptious delicacy. It suddenly contracted vigorously from Chang Li's hand and dove head first into Wen Leong's body. Unlike the past where the poison of life and death absorbed other forms of toxicity into his body, it was the water-colored strong poison that surged into his body domineeringly. Soon, two balls of sharp, incisive and domineering strong poisons bumped together in a loud bang. The two strong poisons tore at one another and circulated in his body ferociously. Unlike the poison of life and death's normal behavior, where it would attempt to assimilate the strong poison into its chaotic appearance. It was gushing and hurtling around desperately, in an attempt to chase the water-colored strong poison out of its territory. When Leung felt as if countless iron files had flowed into his body in one go, 
from his hair to his skin to his flesh to his muscles to his bones and then to his meridians. Everything felt as if it was blown apart in a flash. He gave an agonizing roar that could startle the heaven and earth. The erupting volcano that was converging from all directions of his body crashed into his brain. Screaming out in agony, his body convulsed as he slammed into the thick and heavy mountain wall ferociously. The poison of life and death that was usually a master of its own and undefeated in any battles finally met its opponent. Within the violent battle where both poisons snarled at each other, the poisons in his entire body were repeatedly attacked and shattered by the aqua blue strong poison. The poisons were disintegrated into the poison of corpse that he had absorbed, a hundred poisons and the all-colored poisons of five elements when Leong was startled and terrified. If this were to continue, not only his poison power would be depleted, it was afraid that even his life would be at risk. The only thing he could do now was to risk his life and urge his poison of life and death, which was akin to raging waves, to continuously charge at the aqua blue poison that was attacking his body. Fortunately, the poison of life and death in Wen Liang's body was terrifyingly bold and forceful. The aqua blue strong poison was albeit sharp, it was still thin and little. Amidst the endless gush of the poison of life and death, which seemed to be unhindered, the aqua blue strong poison finally lost its incisive mannerism. Under Wen Liang's forceful urge, the strong poison gradually retreated to the edge of his left hand's little finger and refused to budge or yield any further. Wen Liang was covered in sweat from the pain. His poison power was as vast as the sea, while the poison of aqua blue was as hard as a rock. Even after he exerted all the strength in his body, there was no way he could completely remove it. The two poisons were locked in a stalemate for a while. When Leon watched helplessly at the aqua blue strong poison that had already converged into a ball. It revealed an indistinct intention to counterattack. When Leon dared not hesitate any more. Raising his hand, he waved Ning Jiao's sting strenuously. Within Cone Nail's soundless gasp of surprise, he chopped off his left hand's little finger. He could only feel his entire body relaxed. As compared to the agony of the battle between the two strong poisons, the agony of losing a finger was almost negligible. Under the urge of the poison of life and death, the aqua blue strong poison was completely curled in the little finger. The strong poison below the broken finger was already dissolved. Cone Nail's tears dropped and splattered, she dressed his wound in a great hurry. On the other hand, when Leong felt indifferent. It was not considered a severe injury to lose a little finger. Besides, it was worth it since it was in exchange for Chan Li's life. Chan Li looked at Wen Liang's broken finger that was already heavily dressed with three outer layers and three inner layers in a slightly piteous manner. There was a sense of embarrassment that was rarely seen in her gaze. Wen Liang was not bothered at all, he stuck out his tongue and laughed, this is Grand Master Tuasye's Ben Ming strong poison. A drop of poison of aqua blue almost killed Chang Li and also almost wasted Wen Liang's art of poison cultivation, leaving him no choice but to break his own finger to expel the poison. He wondered how good Tuo Xie's cultivation base was in the past. Wen Liang's poison of life and death was condensed into yin and yang, amassed into five elements, that was enough to dissolve all the strange poisons in the world. Yet, Tuo Xie's Ben Ming poison was the ancestor of a hundred poisons that had been refined into all sorts of strong poisons in the world at that time. As compared to the poison of life and death, perhaps the poison of aqua blue was not as pure and thick as the prior, it was absolutely much more incisive and domineering. Chang Li nodded, otherwise, how could he bring me and kill our way out of a tight encirclement? If he were to put up a desperate fight, no one dared to stop him and could not even stop him. As she was saying that, she pointed to the skeleton of that sword immortal on the ground, he died under Tuo Xie's Ben Ming poison. This sword immortal was apparently the final defense in suppressing the red pot. No one knew his origins but judging just by this sword's vast supernatural power that was capable of piercing through the huge mountain, his cultivation was much higher than Chang Li and the rest. It was likely that he was a divine immortal. Nevertheless, he died tragically in this place. Even after an unknown amount of years, the strong poison on its skeleton was still condensed and did not disperse off. Any slightest touch would kill another person. When Leon was afraid that there were other prohibition spells that were poisoned with the Grand Master's Ben Ming spell in other locations, 
he called out to everyone to retreat to the cave's entrance. Urging the poison of life and death, he probed around the surroundings cautiously. After a long while, he nodded, everywhere else is unimpeded, we will only need to be careful not to touch the corpse then everything will be fine. The golden monkey Qian Ren was at ease, he observed the mountainside attentively. Everywhere was smooth and even. Except for that streak of sword's mark, there was no other fissure or depression. The ground underneath the skeleton was revealing a few simple and unsophisticated scriptures faintly. That should be the immortal magic prohibition spell in charge of opening the mountain path. After the golden monkey explored the surroundings, it shook its head in slight puzzlement, where is the red pot? Tua Xie killed his way in, could it be that he really released the red pot? As it was saying that, the monkey shook its head again, there is no imprisonment magic protective circle in the mountainside. Where is the red pot imprisoned? On the outside of the golden horn, there was a Liangli immortal formation that gathered the heaven's power and guided the force of Desert Rebel Mountain to seal the monster. Theoretically speaking, at the final location where the demon was suppressed. There should be another small formation that would correspond to the great formation on the outside and the small formation would be the location that finally suppressed Red Pot. Cone Nail frowned, unless this is not the real location where the demon was suppressed. At this moment, the short and small skeleton suddenly gave out two muffled cracks and started moving in an extremely arduous manner. When Leon felt his goosebumps erupting, he was not afraid of zombies but these corpses contained strong poison that even he could not dissolve. If it were to start moving, no one was capable of subduing it. Fortunately, the skeleton only struggled once and stopped moving. A voice that sounded strong and confident echoed loud and clear from the gap of the bones, when this bastard was still alive. His body was tattooed with seven heaven and earth inscriptions that corresponded to the Liangli formation on the outside. This human was the core of the formation. Since he had decomposed into a skeleton, it was no wonder that all of you could not tell. After hearing the loud and clear voice that echoed from the skeleton's chest cavity, the soil rustled and loosened. A red-colored toad the size of a teacup crawled out. Its tummy was expanding and contracting as it glared at them. The skeleton was filled with the Grand Master Tuasye's Ben Ming poison. Hence, a cultivator's telegnosis ability had no way to penetrate it. When Leong and the rest did not pay attention to the soil in the beginning, they had utterly did not expect that there would a red toad hidden in the soil. The toad was not considered fat but it was shriveled and wide as if someone had stepped onto it before. Qian Ren was first startled. Then, he widened his eyes, you are the red pot. All the frogs and toads in the world had big bellies, protruding eyes and a puffed up look. The red toad was of no exception. It glared at Qian Ren as it answered, the monkey is slightly knowledgeable. It can surprisingly recognize my dharma body. Qian Ren was refraining from laughing, mainly because you have a well-addressed name. Red pot, just like a red-colored little wine pot. When Leung also laughed, he could not help but to ask curiously, so small. In his imagination, if the red pot was capable of wreaking havoc in the heaven and earth, it should be at least as large as a dragon or elephant, strong, fierce and domineering. He did not expect that it was just a strange frog the size of a child's fist. Red Pot's eyes widened and it was about to speak when Chang Li immediately spoke uncourteously, Stop showing off your fierce demon's disgusting nature. If you were still capable of acting violently then you would have escaped and ascended into the heaven. As she was saying that, she took a step forward, If you are capable of jumping out of this skeleton then I will worship you as a god. Kone Nail was holding Wen Liang's injured hand in her arms she spoke to him smilingly. The Liang Li formation drove the mighty power of the heaven and earth and the huge mountain, and finally fell onto this cultivator's body, that sealed the red pot. Your family's grand master fought and killed his way here, he first killed the formation guarding disciples on the peripheral. Then he destroyed the Liang Li immortal formation, and finally punched through the mountainside to kill the formation core's sword immortal. The magic formation that was born by the sword immortal was albeit gone, he was also tainted with strong poison all over his body. Hence, the red pot still did not manage to escape. Under close inspection, when Leon realized that the red pot was floating in the chest cavity, it did not touch any part of the bones. Cone Nail laughed and laughed. 
Then, she frowned again, Tuas Ye fought and killed all the way but if he did not rescue the red pot, what was he trying to do? Chang Li sat onto the ground, her face was propped up on her hand, she looked towards the strange toad red pot in a skeleton, when did he come over? What happened actually? The red pot disregarded Chang Li but turned around and looked towards Wen Leong, the demon cat girl was poisoned first earlier, how did you draw the strong poison onto your body? Wen Leong hesitated for a moment, uh, it is considered a secret art of poison that was passed down in my family. Red Pot's tone of speaking sounded slightly hesitant, judging by your accent, you are his descendant. Do you think that you can draw the strong poison on the skeleton to somewhere else? Upon saying that, Red Pot shook its head by itself, there was no expression on its face but its tone of speaking was exactly the same as an ordinary person. It widened its big mouth and heaved a sigh, I am just asking. If you were to have another method, then there was no need for you to bring trouble to yourself earlier and there would be no need for you to break a finger. Red Pot's appearance was albeit amusing, its spiritual intelligence was unsealed earlier. It could understand in its heart that it was a complete stranger to this group of people before its eyes, it was no different than dreaming if it were to ask for Wen Leong to sacrifice himself to expel the poison. Moreover, a drop of poison of aqua blue had forced Wen Leong to have no choice but to break his finger. If he were to draw away the layers of heavy poison on the skeleton, Wen Leong could have the desire but lacked in strength. Even if he had ten lives, it was not enough to put up for the act. Unless that short plump man was still alive, he is capable of helping me to expel the poison. On the contrary Red Pot was muttering to itself, it finally lowered its head weakly, if he was willing to release me, he would have released me back then, he he. Cone Nail shook her head sternly, let alone that we do not have a way, even if we do, we will never release you, we can only hope that you can describe to us about the situation in the beginning. In the future, if we have time, perhaps we will remember that you once speak to us sincerely and frankly and come over here frequently to accompany you to chit-chat. Other than when Leon, everybody here was an old demon of thousands and millions of years old, no one had the need to tease anyone, the situation right now was clear at a glance. The skeleton with strong poison separated the two parties no one was helpful to anyone. Red Pot appeared a little dejected but still, it could not refrain itself from asking, why even when there is a way, you still refuse to save me? The golden monkey burst out laughing, why? You are the primitive evildoer, you killed countless people back then. You created troubles all over the world, of course, we will never release you. Red Pot's tone of speaking was filled with puzzlement. Have I ever killed your family's ancestor? Was I the one who trapped you in the golden monkey? I wreaked havoc in the world and killed countless people back then, I am bold enough to do it and accept its consequences. But even until now, I am still not tied to any enmity of yours, if you and I were to exchange places, if I were to come up with a safe and reliable way, I will save you too. Red Pot did not appear to be incisive but its judgment was extremely accurate. Qian Ren's human soul in the monkey's body could not even escape its eyes. Qian Ren was stunned for a moment before it frowned and spoke, if you were to see the light of the day once again, the world would be scourged by you again. You have never saved me before, how will you know that once I am set free, will I be helping the people with heaven's way or wreak havoc in the world again? As it was saying that, Red Pot suddenly widened its mouth, it seemed to be giving a forced laugh, forget it, you cannot save me anyhow, discussing any more of this will only cause anger. Following that it raised its head, its gaze appeared dim as it looked towards Cone Nail, it is fine for me to tell you about what happened in the past, only that if all of you were free in the future, do come and accompany me for a while. Cone Nail had yet to speak when Chang Li spoke in joy, if you were to speak truthfully, not only will we come and accompany you when we are free, we will even send some disciples and disciples disciples to entertain you all right. Chang Li was beaming with joy, on my family's mountain, there is an earth-splitting toad there, it is even more majestic than you, if you like it, I will send it here to accompany you. Red Pot was startled, it swayed its huge mouth, no. That creature is incapable of speaking, it will only croak and bother the old father to death. When Leon could not help but reveal in a smile, this Red Pot was albeit a primitive evildoer, it was different from the monkey that was constantly furious and irritated, or Xiang Lu that was drenched in ruthlessness and tyranny. It left a rather good impression on Wen Liang's mind. 
Without further ado, Red Pot started describing the incident from the beginning. It left a rather remarkable impression for everyone. As it was telling about the course of events that led to it being trapped in the beginning, even though it was not that related to Tuasia's trespassing of the Desert Rebel Mountain, when Leon and the rest still listened patiently. Even Chong Li did not urge it to skip the part. In the ancient times, the world was a stretch of desolated land, the mortals were in misery, there were a lot of demons and evil creatures lurking and wreaking havoc in the mortal world. Red Pot was one of them. Even though Red Pot's evil reputation was known in the entire world, it was different from the nine-headed Xiang Lu. Xiang Lu was famous because it wreaked havoc for its hatred of the heaven. Its wild wish was that one day it would destroy the heaven's path, such that the mortal world would return to its chaotic state. While Red Pot was not motivated by any aims or reasons, it was doing for its own pleasure. When it passed by a place during the spring and saw a fertile land with lush green grass that stretched for a thousand miles, it was filled with joy and would divert rivers to irrigate the land even more. However, when it passed by the place again in autumn, it saw that the place was turned into a stretch of rustling and yellowing land. It would find that the place appeared hideous and bothersome, so it guided the fire and straightforwardly burned the place down into charred soil. In the ancient times, there were a good number of monsters that were acting in its own pleasure and anger like Red Pot. Human lives were less important than a wild foxtail millet in their eyes. Whether it was a good or bad deed, it was not doing it because of some important reason. It was no different than a mischievous child, who would pluck out bird's nest, burn spiders, and use water to irrigate an anthill. Chong Li was joyous at listening to that, she felt that she was considered rather similar to Red Pot. She laughed as she asked, did you have any relationship with Xiang Lu at the time? Red Pot shook its head, I only saw him once or twice in the past, the both of us minded our own business, we were even too lazy to greet each other. Red Pot spent its entire lifetime carefree and leisurely but generally these monsters that were born from the heaven, they had some secret weaknesses. Red Pot was no exception. Every time during the solar and lunar total eclipse, it would be completely exhausted. Once the solar eclipse was completed, it would return to its usual state but Red Pot completely disregarded the solar and lunar total eclipse as an important matter. For its body and skin were all gifted by the heaven, even though it was too weak to kill during the solar eclipse, no one could try to kill it as well. Qian Ren frowned a little in slight puzzlement, so you are saying that you are the monster that inherited the power of the sun and moon? You are the power of water and fire Red Pot pouted its huge lips, the sun in the sky is the raging fire of the Nine Yang. While the dark moon is the soft water of the Nine Yin, the power of sun and moon transforms into the shape of water and fire. It is not a strange matter. There were a lot of cultivators who were planning to kill Red Pot but the majority of them could not even withstand its loud roar. In addition, this monster did not even have an immortal's cave, it was constantly moving and not staying fixed, it was an extremely difficult task to kill it. However, on a solar eclipse, a group of sword immortals with profound cultivation base suddenly appeared. The two parties did not say anything before they started fighting violently. Not long after that, the solar eclipse appeared, Red Pot was exhausted. It was lying dormant while waiting for the end of the solar eclipse. Red Pot did not even expect in his dream, that once it became exhausted, a small and skinny person would scurry out. Opened his mouth and swallowed Red Pot into his stomach Red Pot did not even know any of these cultivators, of course, it did not have the slightest idea about the other party's origins. Wen Leong did not need to listen to Red Pot about what happened later on. He could tell that, after the cultivator swallowed the toad, he triggered the guiding magic art and traveled to Desert Rebel Mountain in a flash. The person who swallowed it entered the Golden Horns mountainside, while at the same time Liang Li immortal formation that was operating on the outside guided the mighty power of the huge mountain onto the skinny cultivator's body. The skinny cultivator used his body to seal Red Pot. Red Pot struggled continuously yet it never surged past the shackles that were binding it all along. Cone Nail gave a forced laugh and shook her head towards Red Pot, you had been framed by someone. This magic formation was straightforwardly designed for Red Pot, they were only waiting for Red Pot to be exhausted under the influence of the solar eclipse and they started operating. Red Pot nodded and gave a forced laugh, the other party started their preparation earlier. 
Not only was my capture not considered injustice, I still could not understand their intentions. There were more evil monsters back then, why was I captured then? When Leon laughed as he shook his head, Red Pot's lament was like a thief scolding the police, why was the police not capturing robbers but capturing the thieves? The situation that resulted in Red Pot's suppression was rather similar to Qian Ren's situation, but the golden monkey was still a little curious, in order to launch the magic formation. They would only need to use some spiritually sharp treasured weapons to successfully suppress Red Pot, why did they use a human body as the prison? This way even though they managed to imprison Red Pot, the person's freedom was also similarly locked by Red Pot, what a waste for that the short and small cultivator's heaven shocking sword. Red Pot also did not understand the reason. It was heavily sealed and trapped within the body that was dark and had no sunlight for an unknown amount of time. It was constantly struggling, it was also constantly disappointed. When it was bored, it once opened its mouth in an attempt to chat with the cultivator that was suppressing it. However, the cultivator did not make any sound. One day, the core cultivator of the formation suddenly gave out a muffled humph and suddenly stood up. At the same time, Red Pot also felt that the force that was shackling itself. After a few charges, even though the short and small cultivator's body was still difficult to be moved, the sensation was already different. In the past, when Red Pot was struggling, it felt like a person was smashing himself against a huge mountain. While the heavy and thick sensation was already lost now, it was still within a bronze wall and iron barrier. However, behind the firm prison, the shackles of the lofty mountain's boulder had disappeared. Kone Nail explained to Wen Leong softly, Tua Xie should have destroyed the magic formation on the outside at that point but the short and small cultivator was the core of the formation. His body was still filled with the power of immortal formation, Red Pot still could not manage to struggle free temporarily. Moreover, Red Pot was suppressed by the immortal formation for thousands or even million years, its actual power had deteriorated, it was no longer the same as before. As expected, Red Pot nodded. Its voice carried a slight sense of helplessness, I have been contending with this magic formation for millions of years, there was only one or two out of ten of my life vitality force left. Otherwise, I would immediate broke out of the cocoon at that time. At the height of my power, all the poison was still incapable of trapping me. Red Pot was a primitive evil deity. Its evil reputation was more than just much obliged. It was only because it was already like an arrow at the end of its flight and was only lingering with its last breath. Even until now, it was only holding on and survived with great effort. Red Pot was struggling desperately in the short and small cultivator's body. Not long after, a series of muffled explosion sounds suddenly echoed from the mountainside, a person punched his way through the thick golden horn huge mountain and dashed into the mountainside. The incomer was albeit short, as compared to the skinny little cultivator in the mountainside, the incomer was no different than a big burly man. At this point, Red Pot suddenly paused for a while, I guess this person should be the Tuasya that all of you were mentioning. When Wen Liang's group finally heard the most crucial part, they were holding their breath with fixed concentration. They were afraid that they would miss even one word, no one was nodding towards the toad. Tuasya killed and assassinated all the way. He dashed from the desert rebel mountain all the way to the mountainside. The cultivator in the mountainside was holding the long sword in his hand, he spoke with an awkward voice, this formation is used to suppress a primitive evildoer. Once he is allowed to return to the mortal world, then there will be endless troubles and disasters. The short and small cultivator was being trapped on the inside and outside at the time. The strength in his body was mostly used to suppress Red Pot. That was why he spoke for a long while, otherwise, he would have pierced with his sword since earlier. At that moment, solar eclipse appeared on the sky, Red Pot heaved a sigh in secret, soon a great opportunity was about to appear before its eyes, yet it could only lie down weakly. Grand Master Toa was also shabbily dressed, his expression was dull, there were a few spots on his body that was wounded. He shook his head towards the skinny little cultivator, do not worry, Red Pot will not be able to escape. Before the Grand Master could finish his sentence, the short and small cultivator with his internal trouble completely removed suddenly gave out a soft roar, he lifted the sword and stabbed diagonally. Tuas Ye seemed to be completely unprepared, 
he managed to dodge his vital parts with great effort but his thick and steady shoulder was pierced by the other party. The short and small cultivator beamed with joy, his wrist turned as he was about to urge his life vitality to pass through the long sword to kill the enemy. Unexpectedly, Tuasia suddenly laughed savagely, at the same time, his other hand's fingers oscillated like wheels, he knocked the divine sword wildly. The mighty power of life vitality that was about to explode in all directions surprisingly could not attack into Tuasya with the obstruction of Tuasya's five fingers. Within a sharp and gloomy hiss and hum, the sword power that finally condensed passed through the tip of the sword into Tuasya's body and suddenly shot into the thick stone wall in the mountainside. The short and small cultivator's body fell back in haste. He pulled out the long sword as Tuasya let out an agonizing howl. Just as he was about to launch the magic conjuration spell again, he suddenly squalled, his entire body started rustling and trembling. In the end, he suddenly gave out a sinister and sharp howl, his body fell diagonally onto the ground, a dash of dark red-colored golden light penetrated from the top of his head and escaped to the outside in lightning speed. On the other hand, Tuasya was launching the faulty punch continuously. He used his Ben Ming strong poison to seal the corpse, he did not dress his wounds. His body swayed as he flashed out of the mountainside. Red Pot was exhausted back then but its spiritual intelligence was still present. In the beginning, it though that Tuasya was there to seek for revenge but after close consideration, he thought otherwise. Tuasya and the short cultivator were utterly unacquainted but Red Pot was too lazy to ponder too much. He was brimming with joy as it waited for the solar eclipse to end a few minutes later, Red Pot discovered in fear, that the short and small cultivator was albeit dead. The firm prison was still there, it had only turned from the immortal formation into the strong poison that could never be dissolved. When Leon was having a headache again. Grand Master Tuasya risked his life all the way, in the end, he was only there to kill a group of cultivators that had been guarding the desert rebel mountain since long ago. Chang Li's gaze was filled with pride, she was just as clueless as everybody else at Tuasye's purpose but she knew that the pickle jar won the war. Chapter, 263 The Desert Rebel Mountain was very similar to the Black and White Island. The reason for the existence of these two locations was completely the same, the prison that suppressed ancient evil devils. Red Pot only knew so much. No one could understand completely the reason behind Grand Master Tuasye's trip to the Desert Rebel Mountain. The only thing they were certain was before Tuasye started killing a lot of people, he once premeditated everything in detail. He intentionally dashed into the cave just in time for the solar eclipse to take place. He almost controlled the timing to perfection. The golden monkey Qian Ren was pondering while it spoke, Tuasye calculated the time for the solar eclipse, in order to kill the formation core cultivator but did not allow Red Pot to escape. Red Pot glared at the golden monkey uncourteously, is there a need for you to speak of this nonsense? Cone Nail massaged the area between her brows and asked Red Pot, when did Tuasye come here? Red Pot suddenly gave out a loud and clear laughter that startled everyone, you are asking me this question. Even if you were to ask this to someone else, no one would know the answer. Cone Nail was both angry and amused, of course I am asking you. Other than you, are there any other people here? Red Pot's mood seemed to be much joyous now. It continued to laugh aloud and shook its head, what I meant is that, if it was someone else that was oppressed in this place, he would certainly fail to answer that but the result is different if you were to ask me. From the time your family's Grand Master Tuasya left until today, it has been 758,332 days. Cone Nail widened her mouth in astonishment, she was stunned as she looked at Red Pot, after a long while, she asked with hesitation, how did you calculate that? Within Red Pot's laughter, other than pride, there was also a gush of unknown emotion that no one could decipher. That streak of swords mark cut through the huge mountain, from then on I can see the sunrise and moon fall, I count for a while every day, hee hee, count for a while. When Leong heaved a sigh to himself, he followed and made a rough calculation, from the time Grand Master Tuasya came to the Desert Rebel Mountain until now, it was just about 2000 years. Cone Nail diverted the topic, Tuasya is a man who is in harmony with the rest of the world, he came to the Desert Rebel Mountain after he left the Black and White Island. If it was such. 
Red Pot had been cut off from the information about the outside world a long time ago, it asked curiously, what kind of place is the Black and White Island? Cone Nail was not in haste, she smiled as she gave a simple explanation of the matters related to the Black and White Island, the Heavens Cone Nails, Chongli, and Tuasia. Red Pot was beaming with joy and burst out laughing upon listening to her story, it seemed to feel that Xiang Lu was a person who was loyal to the code of brotherhood, its laugh was filled with consolation. It laughed continuously for a long while before it spoke, so in this case, Tuo Xie was under the direction of Xiang Lu's true soul, only then he found his way to the desert rebel mountain. Tuo Xie once traveled a great distance to the Black and White Island and explained to the three sword immortals about resurrecting the heaven's cone nail. Afterwards, when Leong found out that the person who was met by the Grand Master on the island back then was not the real person Tian Yin but it was Xiang Lu's true soul. Following that, the Grand Master's whereabouts became unknown. Anyone could understand that Tuo Xie was tricked by Xiang Lu but what was the extent of the trick, it was afraid that only Xiang Lu would know that. However, what was the real reason for Tian Yin to trick Tuo Xie into coming here? Was that short and small cultivator a foe that had irreconcilable hatred for Xiang Lu? Was that the reason why Xiang Lu tricked Tuo Xie into coming here to kill him as a revenge? The questions kept popping up in Wen Liang's mind one after another. Kon Nail spoke again in speculation, could it be that Tuo Xie killed the short and small cultivator in order to perform some kind of deal? For example, he helped Tian Yin or someone else to kill this cultivator, in exchange for something else then? The golden monkey gave out a, heh, you think this is a movie? He was even capable of breaking the Liang Li immortal formation, what else in the world could stop him? Whatever he wished to have, who was capable of keeping it? As it was saying that, it pointed to that poisonous skeleton on the ground, that young lad's sword power was heaven shocking, it was still fine if he did not wound Tuo Xie, his act of wounding Tuo Xie had caused him to be poisoned to death. When Leung suddenly recalled something at this time. He frowned as he shook his head, after Grand Master Tuo Xie was wounded, he used the faulty punch to break the sword's vitality before he launched his Ben Ming poison as a counterattack and accomplished the task at one go. It was apparent that he came fully prepared, then why was a necessity for him to be stabbed? The golden monkey answered, there was strong poison in Tuo Xie's body, he endured the stab in order to cast the poison. In the discussion of using poison, when Leon was the real expert, he did not wait for the monkey to finish speaking before he shook his head, not really, based on my cultivation base right now. I can already circulate the poison of life and death out of my body, the Grand Master also did not necessarily need to be stabbed in order to cast the poison. The golden monkey frowned, so you are saying that Tuo Xie was stabbed by the young lad's sword on purpose? Following that it stomped its feet in exasperation, that just made the situation more confusing. Chang Li's gaze gradually dimmed, she shook her head to the rest of the people, we know too little about the matter, we do not have enough to make an inkling of the situation yet. As she was saying that, she stood up and made a desperate smile towards Red Pot, we still have some matters to attend to, we are leaving now. In the future we will come here frequently, even though we cannot break his strong poison, we can still accompany you to chit chat anyhow. Soon after, Chang Li planted a dash of demonic primordial energy on the stone wall of the mountainside, it will be easy for me to look for this place hereafter. Red Pot seemed to be stunned for a moment only then it spoke dully, you are leaving? So soon. Haha. <laughs> Leave then, if you are free in the future, it will be the best if you can come upon saying that, it turned around and bore into the pile of decayed soil in the skeleton's chest cavity. The group of people left the golden horn. As they traveled hurriedly by air once again and rushed their way to the goddess peak, they did not speak a word to each other. As compared to the anxiousness and anticipation they had when they first embarked on this trip, their return trip's gloominess tainted the red hill and golden horn into desolation. Even so, with the movements and speed of the top demon immortals, they spent more than ten hours from the trip back and forth between the goddess peak to the golden horn. When they returned to the goddess peak, the big and small demon rabbits, Tuo Xie's disciples and the rest were still waiting on the same spot. The moment they realized that they were back, their faces were joyous as they gathered around them. The siblings Bushuo and Buzwa saw Wen Leon. They gasped in surprise in unison, 
they flashed across side by side each other and received him from Cone Nail's hand. When Boozwa's usual maniacal smile on his face had completely disappeared, in place was Solemnness and Gloominess, who was the opponent, who wounded you. When Leon was stunned for a moment only then he realized that when Boozwa was referring to his hand, he laughed as he shook his head, I am fine, this is just a small injury. Before he could finish his sentence, the three-inch nail when Bushuo who was quiet and unexpressive all along suddenly shouted in rage, What do you mean by a small injury, your left hand is broken. When Leong hastily raised his left arm, the hand is still here it is only the dressing that is too dramatic when Leong lost his left hand's little finger. Cone nail wrapped around the arm continuously on the inside and outside, all the way until she almost wrapped his forearm. If it was not for when Leong's refusal, Cone Nail wished that she could even dress his shoulder. At this moment Chang Li suddenly gave out a, huh, in surprise, she pointed to the west of Goddess Peak, another one came. When Leong had only discovered at this moment that there was another stretch of an unusual region, that had already approached the peak of Goddess Peak from the due west direction. When Leong was at a loss of whether to cry or laugh, he wished that he could awaken Emoe Bai who was completely dead since earlier so that he could ask Emoe Bai when would this magic formation stop. How many more locations would it be drawing in? Due south was the Black and White Island due north was the Desert Rebel Mountain. Approaching from the due west was a stretch of luxuriant wasteland, it appeared to be made of only chocolate-colored soil at one glance. It connected all the way to the edge of the sky, there was no flower grass or plants on the wasteland. Similar to the Black and White Island and Desert Rebel Mountain, it contained not a whiff of liveliness. The old demon rabbit Bula gathered next to Changli, he explained softly, not long after all of you left. This stretch of wasteland was guided into here by the magic formation but it had been quiet all along, we dared not go up to investigate recklessly. We were waiting for the grand old woman to come back before we make any further plans. Changli nodded gently, she stared into the wasteland. There was a little impatience in her gaze and there was also the anticipation that could not be suppressed. When Leon raised his head and looked at the demon tower that was suspending at the edge of the sky, Guo Huan who was in charge of the bird's eye view towards the entire scene did not utter a word until now. When the old demon rabbit was done speaking, he swallowed a gulp of saliva and asked Chang Li cautiously, so what kind of place is this again? Chang Li had yet to speak when a big mustached man about the age of over forty years old appeared on the intersecting land between the wasteland and Goddess Peak without a sign. His face was filled with steel needle like thick mustache. His messy brows and hair were almost connecting into one, there was a strange and peculiar script that was engraved onto the area between his brows. His body was skinny and feeble and short and small. He was carrying a long sword in an askew manner on his back. He appeared out of place, there was not an ounce of cultivator's demeanor in him. Cone Nail and Chang Li's expression almost changed at the same time. Even though the other party's appearance was a little comical, his appearance was too sudden. Moreover, these two top demon immortals were beyond steadfast. This skinny little middle-aged man was not hiding in the nearby area under the concealment of his treasured weapon or magic art but he waited until Chang Li and the rest to return before he breached the void and appeared from the depth of the wasteland. Such powers. Even the arrogant and proud Chang Li conceded that she was inferior to that person. The big mustached man that suddenly appeared did not reveal any expression on his face but his voice seemed to carry a smile. There was also the complaint about his long wait. He stretched out his hand and pointed to Chang Li, Demon Cat, I have waited for you for a good half day. Cone Nail and Wen Leong gazed into one another, they had a thought in their minds, this time the correct key person had finally arrived. Kong Nuer delivered the guiding magic formation to the descendants of Heaven's Cone Nails. The main purpose was to invite the Sword Immortals with even more profound cultivation base to capture Chang Li. As a result, even Kong Nuer did not expect that due to the Chaos Brothers' disturbance, they guided in the Black and White Island and Desert Rebel Mountain one after another. Chang Li looked at the big mustached man and she was about to speak when a surprise cheer was heard from her back all of a sudden. The descendant of Mount Lu's son Kong Nail who was being detained by the Great Mercy Temple's monks, the old man Bao Ri roared towards him, Immortal Master Teacher, please save your disciple quickly. Almost at the same time, the golden monkey Qian Ren's eyes were almost cracking in rage, Kong Nuer, 
do you still remember me? When it was speaking, the golden monkey had already slashed across a streak of golden light in the air. With its fist that was strong enough to punch through metal and rock, he blasted onto the other party's head in lightning speed. Everyone could feel as a muffled thunder exploded in their heads, this messy and sloppy little skinny man was Kong Newer. The big mustached man's face did not change at all. Just as the golden monkey was about to dash in front of him, he suddenly raised his leg. At the sound of a muffled bang, the monkey Qian Ren's power, that was no less inferior than Chong Li and whose punch power was on par with Cone Nail's supernatural power, was surprisingly kicked over by his leg. The monkey tumbled and fell back heavily. When Leon glared so hard his eyes almost exploded. Based on physique, the big mustached man was not much bigger than Qian Ren but that kick was as heavy as thunder, it was as easy as a grown-up burly man kicking a child away. The big mustached man stood on the same spot without budging. His tone carried a sense of puzzlement, what immortal master teacher? Who is Kong Newer? Soon after, he looked towards Qian Ren that was rolling on the ground with interest, you have an enemy named Kong Newer? I think you have mistaken me for someone else right? As he was saying that, he pushed away the mustache on his face in all apparent seriousness, as if he wanted Qian Ren to see him clearly. Fei Fei walked in quick strides and stood behind Wen Liang's back, she spoke to him softly, the skinny man is not lying. Qian Ren somersaulted and stood up. The expression on his face was ferocious to the greatest extent and turned into the tragic and ghastly laugh, even if you were to tear away the skin on your face, I will never mistake you for someone else. As it was speaking, it dashed forward once again. Chong Li and Kone Nail shouted in rage in unison, the ice spikes and demon blades appeared out of thin air and flew as it attacked towards the enemy along with the golden monkey. It was until the three top demon immortals joined hands, a sense of solemnness flashed past the big mustached man's eyes. He turned his hand and removed the long sword on his back. He raised the sword diagonally before his body, while his other hand pinched into the sword control gesture and guided ever so slightly. A terrifying roar exploded from the unseen world abruptly, a metallic grey-coloured giant dragon appeared out of thin air, its body coiled into the shape of a giant shield, firmly blocking before its master's body. Soon, a loud bang echoed through the entire sky. The old demon rabbit Bulu had also once summoned the Buddha's protective golden dragon of the Buddhism sects. However, as compared to this realistic dragon before their eyes, Buli's supernatural power just became a leather silhouette show. The ice spikes and demon blades sank into the vortex that was formed from the giant dragon's coiling. The weapons immediately hissed and were torn into pieces. The golden monkey leaped and jumped, divine radiance coiled up into the sky and into the ground. It was unknown how many ferocious attacks were launched, yet it still did not manage to break the other party's dragon-shaped guard and finally, at the sound of a raging howl, it retreated unwillingly. Even though Chong Li and Kone Nail were just probing. There was only Qian Ren that attacked ferociously but that actual power that was blooming from that dragon in the sky still made everyone drew in a cold breath of fear into their lungs ferociously. The metallic grey giant dragon's body trembled vigorously. It was hissing and roaring in pain from being struck by the three demon immortals' supernatural power. The long sword in the big mustached man's hand swayed gently. He retracted his supernatural power, shook his head and laughed towards the crowd, you have mistaken me for someone else, you must have mistaken me for someone else. It was only then, when Leong managed to see clearly with great effort, on his long sword, it was densely engraved with layers of dragon patterns. The colors were all different with almost lifelike appearance, one of the dragon patterns was exactly the same as the metallic grey divine dragon that appeared earlier. Upon saying that, the big mustached man took a step forward as fast as lightning. He retreated and looked towards the old man Bao Ri, who is your family's immortal master teacher. Bao Ri whose life vitality was sealed by Chang Li which resulted in his inability to move suddenly turned his body and stood up. His arms opened slightly, the few great mercy temples master cultivators that were detaining him simultaneously screamed out in agony, every one of their bones was crushed and their muscles were torn. They were shaken to death by the old man Bao Ri. While the big mustached man was advancing and retreating suddenly, he had already removed the life vitality seal on Bao Ri's body. The great mercy temple's monks were burning with rage, 
They were about to encircle Bao Ri when the old demon rabbit suddenly waved his hand, he shouted with a stern voice, fall back. Bao Ri's expression was wildly arrogant. He completely disregarded the large group of enemies, he gave the middle-aged man a junior generation salute with great respect. The disciple of Sun Kon Nail is indebted to the immortal master teacher for saving his life, how fortunate is the disciple. Chang Li suddenly chuckled gently, the debt of saving your life. You are framed by him. Bao Ri could not recognize the immortal master teacher but the few families first ancestors handed down from ancient times, that there was a heaven and earth script in between the immortal master teacher's brows. The mighty magic power that enshrouded him could never be feigned regardless. Of course, Bao Ri was a man who knew his goods. Now that the immortal master teacher had arrived personally, Bao Ri was akin to turning into another person, he lost his prior cowardly and submission appearance. He suddenly glared back at Chang Li, evildoer's spell, shut your mouth. Following that a raging roar that sounded strong and vigorous was heard, Bao Ri suddenly felt as something flew out of his mouth, he lowered his head and took a glance. Nearby the area in front of his body, a fresh and red-colored tongue was jumping unwillingly. Chang Li crossed her arms, the corners of her eyes and her charming brows were filled with a little girl's joy from playing a prank. Yet her voice was so cold it made one scalp felt numb, demon, devil, ghost, monster, the demon sect comes in the first place, it is not something that is simply uttered. The old demon rabbit's voice sounded shaky as if he would die at any moment, at the same time my family's grand master sealed your life vitality. She planted the three demon sect's prohibition spells of pulling out the tongue, loosening the teeth, and separating the heart. Unless her grand old woman were to personally remove the life vitality seal on you. The small demon rabbit's intonation was dragged longer in layers, he continued Bu Li's words, if it was removed by somebody else, it is fine if your life vitality remains unmoved, otherwise the three prohibition spells will be launched. Even if you were the Arhat or the Buddha, you will never live past this short period of time. The three demons, including Chang Li, from the demon sect, chatted one after another. In less than the time it took them to speak dozens of words, the old man Bao Ri's teeth, were twisting and loosening in an unnatural manner and finally dropped off with its bloody roots weakly. At that moment, Kon Nail pressed her hand on the golden monkey's shoulder. She spoke softly, stay calm and be at ease he can never run away, we ought to first understand clearly of the situation, better than fighting chaotically without any understanding. The old man Bao Ri's face was in extreme fear. His eyes were teary as he looked to his family's immortal master teacher, his mouth was making the sound of sobbing but without his tongue and teeth, no one could understand what was he talking about. The big mustached man laughed as he shook his head, I was only hoping that you could stand up and speak properly, I did not allow you to use your life vitality recklessly. The old man Bao Ri was squalling and sobbing, he turned around and looked towards Chang Li again, Chang Li was still laughing pleasantly. I am only regretting now that I never killed you since earlier, you have wasted a few of my children's lives, my children who chose to stay behind on the goddess peak on behalf of me. Upon saying that she frowned, she spoke with slight impatience, why are you not coughing yet? The old demon rabbit and the small demon rabbit each laughed dully, they complimented Chang Li softly, he ought to cough soon, he ought to cough soon as expected, Bao Ri started coughing, he coughed from the depth of his throat in a forceful and sonorous manner. Every cough sounded like there was something squeezing out of his chest forcefully it was until seven or eight coughs later, at the sound of a soft pop, a heart that was already squeezed into a rotten peach-like form, wrapped in a puff of fresh blood, akin to a new sun that had just arisen to the sky, jumped out of Bao Ri's mouth. While the life vitality of the other three descendants of heaven's cone nail was sealed, their physique was no different from an ordinary person. They were all severely injured as well, they had since fallen into a deep sleep from exhaustion, they were completely unaware of the event that had just taken place now. The big mustached man witnessed Bao Ri's tragic death, he made a strange expression then he looked toward Chang Li smilingly. The demon witch's trick is as incisive as expected, no wonder I have to come here personally and bring you to justice. Chang Li raised her brows, you speak too much. The big mustached man burst out laughing. He seemed to shake his head out of slight helplessness, I did not want to speak much initially but after I appeared here, I was addressed as the enemy or immortal master teacher. 
I could not refrain myself from asking another few questions. He switched his gaze towards the golden monkey once again, that enemy of yours, does he really look exactly the same as I do? As he was saying that, he turned his sword handle the other way round and scratched his head, he seemed to be confused by the situation as well. You have mistaken me for someone else, I am going to have a fight with you in a while, what is the purpose for me to lie to you? Qian Ren had yet to speak when Kon Nail suddenly interrupted from the side, then why are you here to capture Chang Li? The big mustached man answered calmly, the master teacher sent an oracle delivering spiritual crane that if there was the guiding of a magic formation, then I would be summoned to apprehend the evil beast demon cat. When Leong finally exhaled a long breath. Finally, there was a matter that was on point, this mustache little skinny man was the top sword immortal that Kong Nuer had no choice but to deploy. He was actually the same as the descendants of heaven's cone nails, the only difference was that the level of their cultivation base. This disciple of Kong Nuer possibly had lived in seclusion on the wasteland and cultivated in silence earlier, he had utterly no idea about what Kong Nuer did afterwards. Naturally, he was not acquainted with the descendants of Heaven's Cone Nails but it was rather peculiar that he had the exact same outlook as Kong Nuer. Could it be that they were father and son? While Wen Leong was still puzzled, the three top demon immortals on his side simultaneously gave out a shout. Some were launching their supernatural powers, some were turning into a golden glow. They launched their demonic primordial energy in full power as they attacked towards the middle-aged man. Without a sign, fight as one pleased. Not only the big mustached man was not infuriated, he was beaming with joy as if he had been oppressed for too long and could finally move his muscles and bones for a while. His long sword was vibrating. Under the guidance of the magic conjuration spell, the dragon's groan surged skywards in a flash. Every time the magic conjuration spell was guided, a giant dragon would appear. At the same time, the dragon patterned long sword sharpness dimmed by a large portion. When Leon could only feel as the vision before his eyes were dazzled. Under the other party's continuous casting of magic spells, five heavens dragons appeared in succession in the sky to everyone's surprise, while that long sword disappeared after the appearance of the final dragon at the sound of a gentle hum. Five heavens dragons were roaring in rage, the gigantic bodies shattered the ice spikes and demon blades that scattered the entire sky. The force of attack and defense took a turn in the blink of an eye, Chong Li, Kone Nail and Qian Ren were shouting on their own. Their movements were as swift as electric as they tossed and turned and jumped, they defended themselves desperately under the power of the heaven's dragons. Even though he did not expect that there would be three top demon immortals to join hands and appear, the big mustached man's heart was still steadfast as ever. He transformed his sword into dragons. Even though those were not real dragons, each dragon's actual power was no less inferior than a top demon immortal. Not long ago, he had just broken the form of five dragons gate earlier, it was five against three enemies now, he was on the upper hand firmly. Moreover, right now, the three demon immortals were already fighting with full power, while the middle-aged man had only launched his treasured weapon. He had not launched an attack on his own yet. When Leon played the same old trick. He turned his hand and brandished Ning Jiao's sting, his cultivation method did not possess any power of primordial spirit, he was completely unaffected by the divine power that covered the sky. The bony Ning Jiao appeared with a loud bang, it opened its huge mouth and had only cried out halfway when it suddenly stopped, tumbled onto the ground with a thud and stopped moving anymore regardless. Following that, when Leong stopped moving in astonishment, the Ning Jiao's sting on his hand also disappeared no matter how hard he tried to urge it, it refused to come out anymore. The heaven's dragons were soaring in the sky, let alone Ning Jiao's sting and Ning Jiao's bones, even if the Ning Jiao was still alive, it would not dare to come out right now. The big mustached man realized that when Leong was pouncing over madly, he was first a little surprised. As it witnessed the appearance of Ning Jiao's sting and bony Ning Jiao, his eyes brightened, then he saw that when Leong was staring in bewilderment with his two bare hands, he could not help but burst out laughing. As the big tatched man was laughing, a cold radiance flowed out from the top of his head suddenly. Thousands of long swords converged into a fatal waterfall and poured down onto the top of his head madly. Amongst the large group of cultivators on the goddess peak, 
the little supreme leader Lu Zheng was the only person that was still capable of fighting. Under the influence of the divine dragon's heaven power, the rest of profound master cultivators like the old demon rabbit and Rangyong could not condense their state of mind at all. It was rather remarkable that they could still stand upright with great effort. The Kunlun sword formation with unparalleled power appeared once again. That made the mustache skinny man startled, he looked at Lu Zheng as he laughed, you are not bad too. Following that, a giant dragon pulled away from the battle troop, it caused wind and thunder within its raging roar, which surged at Kunlun sword formation until the formation was wavering unsteadily. The long swords that were overflowing with cold radiance were shattered in the blink of an eye. It scattered without a form the big mustached man peered at the Kunlun sword formation on the sky twice, he complimented the little supreme leader Lu Zheng from afar, the sword formation is not bad. But you are still far too weak before his voice died away, the entire stretch of the sky suddenly dimmed, when Leong finally guided the stone tower and crashed down towards him mercilessly from beyond the nine heavens. When the big mustached man first appeared, he was almost startled by this devil fetus stone tower that was suspending in the sky until his eyeballs were popped. His cultivation base was exceedingly high, of course, he could tell that this item here was an incisive treasured weapon. He did not rush to dash into the battle troop all along, because he was waiting for this large item to be launched before he could be at ease. As expected the other party could no longer control himself, he launched the great mountain-like giant tower. The big mustached man's body was relaxed as he remained unmoved, he stood on the same spot as he burst out laughing, why? Cannot refrain yourself anymore in the end huh? Just as the stone tower that was heavier than a thousand tons appeared with a wild bang, he was left speechless. He raised his leg, accompanied by mighty power and tremendous force that no one could imagine, he kicked onto the stone tower with a loud bang. The enormous giant tower suddenly shook once to everyone's surprise, it was wavering unsteadily from his kick. During this moment that lasted shorter than a spark, four words accompanied by a maniacal laugh echoed out from the stone tower, break. The. Demon. Body. Yin's error and Yang's mistake appeared out of thin air. The moment treasured weapons were released from the treasured weapon, even the big mustached man who had been calm and relaxed all along could not help but curse in rage, FCK. Chapter, 264. Even Chang Li and Kone Nail who were awfully busy in dealing with the violent dragon's wild attacks could not refrain themselves from gazing into the eyes of one another. They had the same thoughts in their gaze, the boy Wen Leong had gone astray. It was normal for a portion of cultivator's primordial spirit to be hidden in a treasured weapon, that was why whether it was the descendant of heaven's cone nail or the big mustached man with exceedingly high capabilities. When they discovered with their cultivation base that there was Guohuan's primordial spirit in the stone tower earlier, no one paid attention to it. However, if the primordial spirit that was hidden in the treasured weapon was still capable of releasing its treasured weapon, this was a very shameless concept. Guo Huan did not even have a body right now, what was the purpose of having a sense of shame? Under the break the demon body spell, Yin's error and Yang's mistake suddenly appeared. The big mustached man, who had just kicked the devil fetus stone tower earlier and was still filled with high spirits, felt as if he was suddenly splashed with a bucket of cold water with floating ice cubes when he was still feeling very excited. He broke out in curses in exasperation. At the same time, he crossed his hands, akin to a giant door, he sealed Yin's error and Yang's mistake abruptly. Guo Huan cursed. Chang Li broke his treasured weapons in the past before she dared to look for trouble with him. This big mustached man, who had less than five kilograms of flesh in total on his entire body now, could surprisingly depend on his bare hands to resist the obscure yet rapid attack from Yin's error and Yang's mistake. They had never bumped into an enemy that was so valiant. Wen Leong understood that if he could not resist the big mustached man, the man would only need to dash into the battle troop of the three demon immortals and the heaven's dragons and his people would be suffering from overwhelming defeat immediately. There was utterly no time for him to hesitate, he launched his pose and leaped towards the big mustached man as swift as a mist of vapor as he shouted aloud, Mountain. The devil fetus stone tower, which had just been thrown to the side earlier, moved with his summon. The stone tower howled and rose up again. The big mustached man had already calmed down, 
he used his hands to firmly pin down Yin's error and Yang's mistake. However, in the blink of an eye, the force of attack and defense between himself and Yin's error Yang's mistake had already taken a turn. From the secret ambush in the beginning, to locked in a stalemate to the double blades resisting laboriously. The treasured weapons were trying to escape from his hands. It would only take a little longer for the big mustached man to completely destroy this pair of treasured weapons. The big mustached man glared at Wen Leung ferociously. He laughed aloud, good young lad, I truly have looked down upon you before he could finish his sentence, his telegnosis ability that was spread in all directions was shattered with a loud bang. A stretch of enormous shadow once again enshrouded him. It was unknown if it was a strange laugh or strange cry, the big mustached man gave out a muffled coo from his throat. His hands remained unmoved as he resisted Yin's error and Yang's mistake, yet his entire person turned in a ghastly manner as if his joints were backwards. He did not even take a look as he kicked towards the sky. One breath that melted into three pureness. The fight of Sandy Body's reverse kick. This was not a body movement or strength but it was the genuine top cultivation method that would split one's primordial spirit into three. Both hands and a leg each contained a portion of the heaven's primordial spirit, the body flowed according to one's intention akin to sand. The big mustached man's eyes were akin to torches. His gaze was bright yet wild, this supernatural power appeared dull and ordinary at one glance but it contained the utmost principle of the heaven's path. The cultivation base of a person, who was capable of cultivating into the sandy body, had already returned to the state of simplicity and innocence. Even he himself could not help but admire himself from the bottom of his heart. However, the temperature was suddenly raised, his mustache rolled up the big mustached man did not ever expect this even in his dreams. That the enormous stretch that was crashing down from the sky was not the devil fetus stone tower, but a red-colored giant sword that was burning with flames on its entire sword's body. It was sharp and capable of breaching the void, with a naturally formed divine shape. It was unknown if this was the intentional doing of, you've got me or the molten metal fire bell that was capable of adjusting itself when it was resisting the enemy. The true fire of heavenly plow that was contained in the entire body of the giant sword at this moment was completely condensed in that one spot of the sword's edge, which turned into ghastly pale flames. Where the fire passed by, the air was rolling and churning with fear in all directions akin to surging waves. Even a fool could understand that if this kick was properly delivered, what kind of ending would that be? The big mustached man was not surprised or infuriated this time but he was scared out of his wits. He could no longer care about destroying Yin's error and Yang's mistake. His hands waved about as he released the treasured weapons. He patted on the ground strenuously and managed to push his body and fell back three meters in great urgency, in order to dodge the apocalypse-like sword. The big mustached man felt that it turned dark, then bright, then dark again as the vision before his eyes darkened when the giant sword descended from the sky. He retreated wildly in lightning speed and dashed past the area that the molten metal fire bell enshrouded. Suddenly, the vision before his eyes brightened, before he could stabilize his posture of falling back, the sky turned dark again. It was the devil fetus stone tower that was crashing down this time. The giant sword, stone tower, Yin's error and Yang's mistake were top treasured weapons in the world. Moreover, the weapons came ambushing in secret continuously, even if Grandmaster Tuasya was fighting in place of the big mustached man, he would still be thrown into confusion. The big mustached skinny man had yet to completely retract his leg that he had just kicked out and he was at the state where his old strength was exhausted and his new strength had yet to grow. There was no other way, he had to urge the magic order in a haste with his mouth. A flying dragon that was entangling itself with Chang Li and the rest in mid-air suddenly shook its body and came back to reinforce the master in lightning speed. With a loud bang, something exploded. A flying dragon that was accompanied by the power of a thousand tons slammed into the devil fetus stone tower ferociously from sideways. Within Guo Huan's series of curses, a corner of the stone tower was forcefully slammed and shattered. The stone tower tossed and turned to afar within the sound of thuds, while the heaven's dragon suffered from broken bones and torn muscles. Its gigantic body struggled weakly for a few times then it disappeared while convulsing. The demon, devil, Ghost and monster each had their own method. They each had their own way. 
Based on combat power, the stone tower depended on brute force to collide in every direction, while the heaven's dragon depended on its sharp fangs and pointy claws and gathering its primordial energy as a blade. If this was a battle of close proximity, then the two parties would be almost on par with each other, whether it was the stone tower that struck against the heaven's dragon or the heaven's dragon that would slowly shatter the stone tower. However, this was the collision of brute force, the heaven's dragon risked its life for greater good. Victory and defeat were immediately decided. A corner of the stone tower was destroyed by the power that could split the heaven and earth, while the heaven's dragon was straightforwardly annihilated. Everything happened in such a short moment that it was beyond imagination. Just as the stone tower and the giant dragon collided, the big mustached man's state of mind was distracted. The molten metal fire bell suddenly shook once and appeared in mid-air all of sudden. It chopped the head of that heaven's dragon that was tearing the Kunlun sword formation into pieces, which could possibly destroy the sword formation at any time. The heaven's dragon hissed and roared in pain. Its body that was bigger and sturdier than a train's engine shook with agility and entrapped the giant sword ferociously. The connecting scales on its entire body started to contract vigorously the sharp noise that was enough to pierce through eardrums was heard. It was attempting to churn the giant sword into pieces, while at the same time the giant sword also bloomed with a shimmery true fire of heavenly plow. The fire snakes rolled and swallowed and licked against the dragon scales greedily, in an attempt to burn the heaven's dragon into charred meat. There were too much for the eyes of the rogue cultivators that were watching the battle to take in. Their minds turned into a stretch of blankness. When Leon was the first to display continuous dirty tricks, making the spectators feel neglected, hatred and joy, the giant dragon and the stone tower then collided in rage and the divine sword entrapped the heaven's dragon. As the Kunlun Sex Thousand Swords received the molten metal fire bell's reinforcement, they gave out a series of cheers that echoed through the heaven and earth. The swords arrived like a swarm of bees from all directions, just like a school of piranhas that surrounded the evil shark, the swords pursued and chopped and poked at the heaven's dragon madly. You've got me, jumped onto Wen Liang's shoulder and ululated loudly. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng was pinching the magic conjuration gesture in exasperation, both the giant sword and Kunlun sword formation were not following his guidance. The weapons were engaging in a fierce battle with the heaven's dragon by themselves completely. Molten metal fire bell was a divine blade of the heaven's army but once it was in, you've got me's grasp, it was only yielding 20 to 30 percent of its power from those years, otherwise it would have chopped that dragon into two. The pressure on the three demon immortals was greatly reduced. They each gave out a long howl with stern voices as they exerted their demon power to pounce towards the three heaven's dragons in front of their bodies again. They regained the upper hand rapidly again. The big mustached man sacrificed one of dragon shaped sword transformation in order to escape from the unfortunate destiny of being pounded into flesh mud. His brows were throbbing in heartache. Pointing towards Wen Leong, he grinded his teeth so hard it was making the sound of cracking continuously. After a long while, he squeezed out five words from his throat Who is your master teacher? Judging by his gaze, Wen Leong would only need to simply point out anyone from the crowd behind him the big mustached man would certainly jump over and tear that person apart before discussing any further. Wen Leung also stopped moving. Without the giant sword's reinforcement and just depending on the demon tower that was ferociously collided earlier in Yin's error Yang's mistake, he was afraid he could not deal with the enemy. He was pondering in his heart if he should just humor the enemy, such that he could buy himself some time, when Guo Huan suddenly shouted in rage from afar, be careful. Yin's error and Yang's mistake suddenly retreated to Wen Liang's side. The big mustached man had only taken a step forward, he had already appeared before Wen Liang from the distance of meters away. His hands were formed into a seal that ferociously crashed onto Yin's error and Yang's mistake that was blooming with ghastly pale and black radiance. The double blades of Yin and Yang were shaking violently. The weapons were blasted away by the mighty supernatural power that was condensed by the big mustached man. At the same time the big mustached man also spat out a mouthful of fresh blood, he was shaken and injured by the double blade's countercharge, his coiled hand seal was also shaken and dispersed. The big mustached man was infuriated by Wen Leong until he felt like his heart and lungs were about to explode. 
He had lived for thousands of years but this was the first time he was bullied like this. He rather he was injured than to be killed by this dumb boy before his eyes, just so he could vent his hatred. When Leon could not even retreat in time and his chest was already pinned down by the big mustached man's palm. At the muffled sound of a pop, Ning Jiao's armor flashed and disappeared. It did not even withstand for even a moment before it was savagely shattered by the other party's forceful and sonorous power of life vitality. The armor hid back into the master's body in a disordered manner. When Leon could only feel that his chest was akin to being stuffed with an entire great seed by someone. The tremendous force surged and raged unimaginably. Countless blood vessels as fine as hair protruded, erupted and cut through his skin. In a flash, fresh blood was spurting out. His skin was torn, his sturdy muscles were churned into pieces. He turned into a pile of soft and mush in the blink of an eye. The tremendous force traveled from the hand that was uglier than a chicken's claw to his chest and continued without stopping for a moment as it surged into his body. It was as if it would never stop until it invaded Wen Liang's bones. It had finally met with the most unyielding resistance. The poisonous bones had its own strong poison's arrogance and pride. The big mustached man spat out a chin full of fresh blood in exchange for a fatal blow. His eyes were shimmering with wild joy, he suddenly felt as his hand was shaking vigorously. After he struck Wen Liang's skin and flesh and was about to break Wen Liang's bones and muscles and tear through his meridian, a gush of tremendous force, akin to a huge mountain, struck at him like raging bellows, causing him to disperse. Wen Liang's bones surprisingly resisted the man's power of life vitality that was utmost pure, mighty and vigorous and the power that he spent millenniums and megaanim to accumulate. It was also because of this layer of bones that was unimaginably tough, when Liang's body was not destroyed by the enemy's fist. Nevertheless, he was akin to a piece of paper that hovered and retreated following the pace of the enemy's powerful punches. The big mustached man's footsteps were akin to thunder while his movements were as swift as the wind. His right hand pressed onto Wen Liang's chest ferociously as he tried to push Wen Liang's body. At the same time, the strong poison that filled Wen Liang's body carried the intention of perishing together, akin to poisonous snakes that were completely infuriated. The strong poison surged out from Wen Liang's limbs and bones in a threatening manner and converged into a filthy stream that was colder and harder than a dead man's teeth and invaded into the man's body. Flowing against the cultivator's life vitality. The poison roared as it attacked all the way into the man's body. Guo Huan was hissing and roaring in rage, the huge mountain was collapsing and rolling as it arrived in lightning speed. It rubbed against the air so hard a puff of scorching fire was ignited as it crashed towards the big mustached man akin to a meteor. Yin's error and Yang's mistake were trembling weakly under the master's guidance, the weapons once again slashed into the air with a sharp noise. Kon Nail and Chong Li simultaneously gave out a long howl that was only made by evil demons when they were causing bloodshed, they completely disregarded the evil dragons that were making threatening gestures before their eyes. Their bodies pulled along a streak of remnant shadow, their ten fingers were akin to hooks as they pounced towards the big mustached man like a bunch of wild devils. Bushuo, Buzwa, Little Chi Maojio, the big and small demon rabbits and the rest of the cultivators howled sternly. Their supernatural power was suppressed by the divine dragon's demonic power in between the heaven and the earth but their bodies still belonged to themselves. They risked their lives and moved their legs. They were glaring so hard fresh blood was almost pouring out of their eyes. They staggered yet they were determined as they dashed forward. Even though they could not release their treasured weapons or waver their life vitality, they would still bite if they had to in order to tear away the big mustached man's flesh. A giant tower, a pair of strange blades, two demon immortals, hundreds of cultivators pounced over in all direction. The corners of the big mustached man's mouth were sneering. When Liang's skin was torn, his muscles and flesh were crushed, he had already turned into a complete wreck. It was afraid that he felt more unpleasant than dying. The big mustached man was about to retract his palm and hide away in a distant place before the other party came blasting at him with attacks when Wen Liang's body underneath his hand struggled gently. Wen Liang's hands suddenly closed as he firmly pressed the big mustached man's palm onto his chest. The big mustached man could even feel that Wen Liang's hand, skin and flesh were so soft he was akin to mud, 
but the thing that was truly pinning the big mustached man down were his finger bones that protruded out of his flesh. The big mustached man squalled, you are seeking doom. His state of mind once again melted into three pureness. The strength of the right hand that was killing Wen Liang was reduced slightly but his left hand fisted into the shape of a chisel as he punched onto Wen Liang's temple as he lifted his leg diagonally and kicked at Wen Liang's stomach ferociously. It was at that moment, a gush of agonizing pain that he could never imagine, and could never understand radiated from his palm abruptly. The poison of life and death finally penetrated out of Wen Liang's chest and bore ferociously into the big mustached man's palm. The big mustached man could not understand why. The moment his body protecting life vitality that was spread all over his body at all times came into contact with the poison of life and death's power that was not considered too strong, his life vitality would immediately disappear. The poison power that invaded into his palm was not charging furiously and domineeringly but the poison power seemed to be alive and intelligent. It could always locate his life vitality's linking point and carry out a ferocious strike, then the poison power entered his body directly without resistance. The stone tower, Yin's error and Yang's mistake, Chan Li and Cone Nail arrived. Behind Chan Li and Cone Nail's back, two heaven's dragons were chasing right behind their backs with one's head following the other one's tail. A streak of sharp golden-colored tiny shadow flashed past and suddenly appeared in between the two demon immortals and the two heaven's dragons, while the third evil dragon was akin to the shadow that followed the form. The large group of cultivators was hissing and roaring, they were still dozens of meters away from the big mustached man and when Leon when a streak of dazzling brightness capable of splitting the heaven and earth appeared abruptly. A loud sound that was capable of splitting the heaven and earth roared. A puff of tremendous force capable of splitting the heaven and earth arose in a free and unrestrained manner. The cultivators that were rushing over to reinforce Wen Leong desperately could feel as if their chests were struck by the giant mace that was waved by the golden armored warrior. The sky and the land in their eyes turned into a boundless color of blood, they did not even manage to scream out in agony and they were already struck by the tremendous force and flew into the sky. Before the people landed on the ground, they were already spitting fresh blood wildly from their mouths. The life vitality of some orthodox disciples with poor cultivation base was already shattered and they died tragically when they were still in the air. Even the demon immortals and sword immortals that were in the middle of the battle troop could be completely sure of what happened at the same time the tremendous force appeared. The devil fetus stone tower together with the yin's error and yang's mistake pounded ferociously onto the big mustached man's back. At the muffled sound of a pop, the big mustached man's right eye was forcefully popped out of his eye socket by the tremendous force coming from his back. The big mustached man's sandy body turned, the fist and the leg that was attacking Wen Leong suddenly parted into two sides. His fist chisel struck onto Chang Li's shoulder and Chang Li's left shoulder scapula was broken with echoing sounds. As his leg kicked onto Cone Nail's calf, Cone Nail's right leg was pulverized by the blow. Chang Li and Cone Nail separately attacked from left and right. A streak of demon blade stabbed in from the big mustached man's right armpit and penetrated out of his chest while the pure white colored ice flames burned into the big mustached man's left rib. At the sound of a bang, the flames burned through one side of his ribcage and revealed his chest cavity full of internal organs. The golden monkey blocked the three heavens dragons that were pursuing and attacking with its body. Its body was made of the utmost strongest metal. Three heavens dragons could not destroy it but the tremendous force was akin to a knife that cut and wounded Qian Ren's primordial spirit ferociously. Just as its body was twisted and it was falling towards the ground, the monkey's final movement was using its claw. It stabbed ferociously into the eye of the heavens dragon that was dizzy and confused from colliding into itself. It gouged and twisted, and pulled out a ball of tendons and blood and filthy mess of all sorts of colors. The molten metal fire bell and the sword formation hummed together. They were attempting to pull away from the entanglement with the heaven's dragon in an attempt to rescue their master but they were chopped into a puff of sword rain when they were distracted. There was also, you've got me, it stiffened the hard stings on its entire body and had just sprung up when it was struck by the big mustached man's eyeball that came flying out. The bug held on to the eyeball and flew out in a disordered manner. Amidst the demonic wind, rain of blood, Heaven's power and dragon's moan, the heaven and earth changed color in the blink of an eye. The four heaven's dragons, a stone tower, 
the yin's error and yang's mistake, the molten metal fire bell, the three top demon immortals. A tiny poisonous creature and a cultivator with exceedingly high capabilities used all their power possible at the same moment, the cultivators that stayed behind to guard the goddess peak did not have the opportunity to even resist. Those with profound cultivation base were severely injured as they lied on the ground and those with weak cultivation base died without complete corpses. However, within the group of cultivators, the five with the weakest abilities, including Ji Fei and Shui Jing, siblings of Fei Fei and the second mother, were all alive. Even they did not understand what had just happened. When the tremendous force was about to swept across them and was about to tear them into pieces, suddenly a gush of cold and soft sensation wrapped around them firmly, shielding the disaster on behalf of them. Other than them, Xiao Wu was unscathed too. Even though she was dashing rapidly, she was also protected by the same agile and soft power, it seemed that the master cultivator who saved her life in secret had taken fancy in her. You've got me, held the eyeball as it fainted on the spot. The molten metal fire bell shook once slowly after it slaughtered the heaven's dragon and was hidden in the air. After the dust had settled down on the goddess peak, Kone Nail and Chong Li lied on the ground from severe injuries. Their faces were similarly ghastly pale, blood was seeping out from the corners of their mouths. That brought out a sense of shocking demonic charm from their delicate and pretty faces. The golden monkey's body was mangled together unnaturally, its eyes were still blinking. While what made everyone glared so hard their eyes were bloodshot once again was that when Leong was still connected to the big mustached man. Not that the big mustached man refused to let go of Wen Leong but it was Wen Leong who was firmly holding on to the big mustached man's right hand. The big mustached man had already turned into a blood man, he lost an eye and a rack of ribs. A demon blade was stabbed diagonally into him. His throat was making the sound of cracking. He seemed to be attempting to say something but the moment he opened his mouth, black-colored blood came pouring out of his mouth. His body swayed for a few times before he finally fell over weakly at the gentle sound of a crack, his right hand fell down from his wrist suddenly. His muscles and bones that had since been corroded by the poison of life and death could no longer sustain his effort of attacking Wen Leong anymore. It was until this moment, when Leong was separated from the big mustached man, his body could not budge at all. His skin was crawled with savage-looking fissures, his muscles turned into a ball of mush. After resisting the explosion of tremendous force earlier, his entire body's poisonous bones were almost shattered. He could not make any expression, speak or even move once. Wen Leong felt relaxed and immediately fainted. The devil fetus stone tower trembled for a moment before disappearing after losing its master's guidance and returned to the huge pit in the depth of Mount Hua. Guo Huan could not control its body and broke out in curses in the huge pit. It cursed for a long while before it suddenly gave out a series of terrifying laughter, the opportunity to fight this battle here is worth dying for. The rigid laughter echoed and hummed in the mountain valley and did not disperse after a long time. Similar to the giant sword and stone tower, after losing their master's guidance, the remaining two heavens dragons struggled unwillingly before disappearing into thin air. At the crisp sound of a clank, the dragon-patterned long sword leaped out of thin air and tumbled onto the ground next to the big mustached man. As three out of five dragons were destroyed, the dragon pattern on the sword's body dimmed and lost its shine. Other than Xiao Wu and the rest of the few people with the worst cultivation base were fine, the rest of the people were not only severely injured but they were scared out of their wits by the explosion that happened in a flash earlier. This was a scene that would never appear even in one's nightmare. Dead silence befell the mountain peak, there was only a series of muffled popping sound, where the poison of life and death that tainted the big mustached man's right arm, was slowly munching on his blood and flesh. It was visible to the naked eyes, his right arm was slowly turning shriveled in deadly gray part by part. Cone Nail broke her leg while Chong Li broke an arm. Even though these external injuries were severe, this was not a serious matter to them. However, as their primordial spirit was affected earlier, it was difficult for them to launch any supernatural power all at once. They were holding and supporting each other as they struggled themselves to one Leyang's side. It was only then they exhaled a long breath. Even though Wen Leyang was severely injured, his internal organs were protected by his remolded poisonous bones. Hence, even though he could not move, 
he would still survive. Xiaowu and the rest of the few people with the worst abilities were uninjured and had calmed down. They helped the few top demon immortals in a great bustle as they carried the demon immortals one by one back to their side. The old monk Ji Fei found a wooden stick and lifted, you've got me, and placed it back on Wen Liang's soft and mushy chest. Xiao Wu placed the golden monkey next to Wen Liang's side piteously. The old demon rabbit, Rang Yong, little supreme leader Lu Zheng and a few cultivators with profound cultivation base could still walk with great effort. After all, they were counteracting with each other when the tremendous force exploded earlier, there were only a few persons in the center of the battle troop that was truly assaulted by the explosion. By the time the tremendous force radiated to the peripheral areas, it was already reduced exponentially. The fat monk Shui Jing was bustling about to save the wounded people who were still alive. He was almost in tears as he muttered to himself softly, Who is this big mustached man? He is not a human, he is not a human. The big mustached man depended on his power alone and fought against three top demon immortals and one Leong who possessed rare treasured weapons with unparalleled poison power. Even though he was finally defeated, he still managed to severely injure everyone. If it was not his eagerness to kill Wen Leong, resulting in him being dragged into Wen Leong's counterattack of the poison of life and death, the victory and defeat of this violent battle would certainly take a turn. The big mustached man was only Kong Nuer's disciple. In the heart of the group of cultivators, the few demon immortals and Wen Leong who had fainted, Kong Nuer was already turned from an imaginary name into a real yet terrifying existence. As Xiao Wu realized that the most important people were alive, she exhaled a long oppressed breath. She moved in quick pace as she picked up the dragon pattern sword from the big mustached man's side and returned. She did not care if this treasure that was capable of resisting two top demon immortals was still usable, she turned the treasure around and waved her pole and crashed onto the treasure. Cone Nail held little darling into her arms with difficulties. She smiled and was about to say something when her expression suddenly changed. At the same time, Chan Li also suddenly recalled something, she shouted to the rest of the cultivators that could still move, go and crush the big mustached man's head, quick quick quick. Chapter, 265 When Xiao Wu heard Kone Nail's words, she did not question Kone Nail but highly raised and waved her weeping staff around before slamming the staff ferociously at the big mustached man. Considering that Xiao Wu's staff could strike hard enough to crack metal and rocks, what happened next was not within expectations. Brains did not splatter everywhere and there was no loud explosive noise. Instead, with a low muffled sound, she caused an indentation, the size of an egg, on the big mustached man's head. It was as if the big mustached man's head was made of clay. His head depressed but did not shatter. Every surviving rogue cultivator was dumbstruck. A moment later, the old demon rabbit, Rang Yong and a few other experienced good hands gasped soundlessly, it is the sandy body. His supernatural power still exists, he is not dead yet. With the form of the sandy body, one's entire body moved like sand in unhindered movements. That allowed one to be unhindered by external forces. It was the utmost highest level of Taoist supernatural power of form. The big mustached man's back and heart was severely injured, the demon blade stabbed through his heart, one side of his ribs was burned off by the ice flame, yet his supernatural power surprisingly did not disperse. His life vitality was still circulating. Xiao Wu's strike was futile, her little face was filled with astonishment. She did not waste time talking nonsense as she waved her staff into a streak of a ghastly pale vortex that slammed towards the big mustached man's head akin to a raging storm. Cone Nail and Chang Li's expressions were solemn. They gazed into one another. No one spoke as they each sat cross-legged on the ground and focused their attention on cultivating their energy and restoring their vitality. They gathered the life vitality that was scattered in their bodies in an attempt to regain some strength with great effort. Even though when Buzwa escaped death caused by the calamity, he could not care to find out who actually saved him. He pointed towards the big mustached man as he asked Ji Fei, who was by his side in astonishment, this personis still alive. The old monk Ji Fei's expression could not be described as astonished or fearful anymore. His initial face that was considered handsome was convulsing in a ghastly manner. He clenched his teeth as he answered, He is not dead yet now but he is unsalvageable too. 
he can still live. As he was saying that, he pointed to the dragon pattern sword that was picked up by Xiao Wu moments ago which she was about to break into two. The dragon pattern sword shine, as compared to when it was first picked up, was much dimmer than before. The dragon patterns on the sword were akin to the Chinese ink wash paintings that were drenched in the rain, they turned into a ball of blurry mess and were fading slowly. When Buzwa clenched his teeth anxiously, what do you mean by dead but can still live? Is he a zombie? Explain clearly. The old monk Ji Fei's cultivation base was weak but he had a good understanding of the profound art of split body. Amongst the survivors on the goddess peak, only him, Chan Li and Kone Nail understood the situation that was taking place before their eyes. The art of split body that was cultivated by profound master cultivators could be the same as the art where a young Sek San Wei converted his split body into the human form or could be like the previous master of the giant sword molten metal fire bell converting his split body into the sword's resolve. The two types of split body methods each had its advantages and disadvantages. A cultivator could choose based on his own abilities, his temperament and cultivation needs. The big mustached man's cultivation base was so profound to the state that Ji Fei could not understand it all. It was nothing extraordinary that he was capable of cultivating into a split body, similar to the molten metal fire bell's master. However, the split body that was cultivated by the big mustached man was also the sword's resolve. Whether it was in the human form or sword's resolve, the split body could still continue to cultivate on its own. If the human form split body's cultivation base could achieve the utmost strongest level, then it could cultivate into another split body itself. On the other hand, if the sword's resolve could cultivate its cultivation base to the highest extent then it would fuse into a treasured weapon. At this point, the old monk Ji Fei trembled as he inhaled a deep breath, the act of fusing into the treasured weapon means that the sword's resolve and the treasured weapon are completely fused into one. The dragon pattern sword is the sword resolve split body of the big mustached man so it is his treasured weapon as well. When Buzwa spoke presumptuously, that sword's resolve then converted into five evil dragons. Those five evil dragons are the split bodies of the sword's resolve. Ji Fei shook his head, the five dragons are the magic spell of the sword's resolve, it is of the same principle as casting beans on the ground and transform the beans by magic into soldiers translator's note. This is based on a legend. The sword's resolve of the big mustached man has already cultivated into perfection, it is not considered too bizarre if it was to transform into the five heavens dragons. However, after sword's resolve and the treasured weapon fuses into one, legend says that there is still one more remarkable advantage, it is capable of refining spirit to reanimate the body. The sword's resolve of the big mustached man refined his spirit to reanimate the body, such that he could convert between the dragon pattern sword and primordial spirit freely. When he was resisting the enemy, it became the most incisive treasured weapon in the world. While on usual days it hit its sword form and converted into the state of primordial spirit and grew in the master's body to help its master's cultivation. When Buzwa gaped in bewilderment as he listened, he muttered to himself, this sword's resolve has turned into a spirit. Following that, he pointed towards the dragon pattern sword that had already turned extremely blurry and could possibly disappear at any moment, so what is going on with the sword? The big mustached man is fading and dying away, the sword's resolve is converting back into the primordial spirit to return to his body. When Buzwa was suddenly enlightened, he jumped up as he shouted, Oh no, the sword's resolve is also capable of controlling the big mustached man's body such that he can live again. The old monk Ji Fei's face was filled with concern, it appears so. However, when he is resurrected again, he will not be the big mustached man anymore, he will be his sword resolve split body. No matter how incisive or remarkable was the sword's resolve, it could not be considered a living creature anyhow. Moreover, once the master was dead, it would still be sealed like the fire tail in the past. Nonetheless, the sword's resolve had cultivated into the state of reanimating the body, if it was converted into the primordial spirit and entered the master's body while the master was dying, then it would receive the master's dharma body. For the sword's resolve, this was no different than reincarnating into a human. The big mustached man's dragon pattern sword's resolve was turning opaque. It was slowly converting into the primordial spirit to take over the master's body. When Buzwa howled in rage. Together with his three-inch nail brother, 
they dashed side by side towards the dragon pattern sword. When Kone Nail and Chong Li discovered that the dragon pattern sword refined spirit to reanimate the body, they were suddenly enlightened and hastily instructed the rest of the people to kill the big mustached man. There was still the power of double dragons remained in the dragon pattern sword, even if Chong Li was still in perfect condition. She may not necessarily be able to harm the sword, so the only way to stop it was to kill the big mustached man. Yet, the big mustached man's cultivation base was impressive. Before he stopped breathing, no matter how much Xiao Wu howled in rage and exerted her strength, there was no way she could destroy his body. The shadow of the staff befell heavily while the sinister wind blew recklessly, under Xiao Wu's desperate and wild attacks, the big mustached man was akin to a ball of mud that was filled with holes and pits. Yet, the bloody corners of his mouth were still smiling manically all along. Upon hearing Ji Fei's words, the rest of the cultivators, who were not severely injured, sweated anxiously but they could not come up with an idea. At this moment, a raging howl suddenly echoed from the back of the group of cultivators. The ugly youth Qin Zhui widened his eyes in rage, dashed past the crowd in lightning speed and punched heavily towards the big mustached man that was lying horizontally on the ground. Qin Zhui had woken up earlier. He was completely aware of the violent battle between the few demon immortals and the big mustached man but the circulation of life vitality inside his body still could not manage to break through his last joint. He could not budge at all. Finally, as his cultivation power was completely restored, he did not even hesitate and immediately jumped up to strike the big mustached man. Xiao Wu's staff gave out the muffled sound of sharp blades piercing through dull leather, making one feel suffocated upon hearing the sound. Finally, at the sound of a loud explosion, every cultivator exhaled a breath of relief together with the sound. Qin Zhui's punch caused mountain rocks to be shattered and dust was flying everywhere. Just as the corners of the crowd's mouths were curving up and the old monk was about to reveal a smile, he suddenly gave a forced laugh. He put on a long face as he spoke, oh no. He was not looking at the big mustached man his gaze was staring straight onto the dragon pattern sword all along. At that moment, the dragon pattern sword had completely disappeared. Kone Nail and Chong Li were still sitting up straight with their eyes closed, it seemed that they had utterly no idea about the situation that had just taken place before their eyes. The mountain wind swept past, the dust finally settled down. Qin Zhui's punch blasted a large pit on the ground, leaving behind an empty large pit. The big mustached man was almost pounded to a mash. It was unknown when he had already stood up. He stood afar, moving his body parts in an extremely uncoordinated manner. After a while, his mouth suddenly gave out a series of terrifying chuckles. Qin Zhui and Xiao Wu simultaneously shouted in rage. They dashed towards the enemy side by side. The staff's shadow was akin to a mountain, the punches and kicks that were delivered blasted loudly. Xiao Wu was a soul formed from a corpse figurine with a primordial young body, while Qin Zhui had the foundation establishment of the utmost wood element. Even though his severe injuries had yet to fully healed, under the golden monkey Qian Ren's recuperation, his power of life vitality was stronger than before. With the combined attacks of the two persons, even the giant pangolin Pe Tu could be killed. Yet, the big mustached man that was possessed by the sword's resolve refused to even raise his head to take a look at their supernatural power. He allowed them to strike his body, which let out loud knocking sounds. He was engrossed in the act of stretching out his left hand and grabbed onto the demon blade that was stabbed through his chest. Within the squeaky sound of friction, he pulled out the blade inch by inch. The big mustached man's face was covered in blood, the mustache on his face was convulsing in agony, yet his gaze was beyond excited and rabid as if he was enjoying the strong pain of pulling out the demon blade. When Buzwa's gaze was terrified, he asked Ji Fei softly, how incisive is he now? Ji Fei knew what was when Buzwa about to ask, he answered incoherently, the sword's resolve still possesses the power of the double dragons but the big mustached man's body is too severely injured. Nevertheless, his supernatural power of the sandy body that has yet to be dispersed. When Buzwa suddenly shouted in rage, stop over elaborating, get straight to the point. The old monk Ji Fei just became the second person in the world after little Chi Maojiu who was scolded by Wen Buzwa for over-elaborating, he put on a long face as he spoke softly, it is a sure win for him. 
The sword's resolve pulled out the demon blade then he let out a series of chuckles. Following that, he frowned as if he was finally growing impatient with Xiaowu and Qian Zhui's violent attacks. He raised his arms and waved in a strenuous yet clumsy manner. Xiaowu and Qin Zhui simultaneously gave out half a muffled humph as they tried to block him. They staggered and fell back in haste. They only managed to stand up with great effort when they reached Changli and the rest. They stared at each other in fear. The big mustached man did not pursue an attack. A sense of puzzlement appeared on his face as if he was very dissatisfied at the attack of his earlier, yet he could not figure out the source of the problem. He looked to the left then looked to the right, he first noticed the missing half a rack of ribs on his left side. He even stretched out his fingers and poked at his internal organs. He then frowned and shook his head as if he was telling the others and himself that this was not the source of the problem. Following that, he continued examining his body. It was apparent that he had already lost his right hand. The right arm was still breaking apart under the corrosion of poison of life and death yet the big mustached man was ignorant and dull. He examined his body in puzzlement, occasionally, he would tear off a piece of skin and flesh out of curiosity and place it under his nose to take a whiff. Everyone on the scene felt a gush of chill rising in his or her hearts. Finally, the big mustached man noticed his right arm. He first waved about the arm on a few attempts. He then exerted more and more strength. The expression on his face gradually grew desperate yet agitated. Finally, at a ferocious jump, his mouth suddenly gave out a series of infant cry-like shrieks. He realized what was wrong with his right arm. He bawled and cried as he blinked strenuously. He was trying to recall the situation earlier with great effort. A moment later, a sense of savageness that could only be described as disgust suddenly appeared in the big mustached man's eyes. He glared ferociously towards Wen Leong who was still lying limply on the ground. Almost at the same time, Kone Nail and Chang Li opened their eyes in unison. They each gave out a hump. Chang Li's gaze was bright and clear, while Cone Nail's gaze was piteous. The group of cultivators was overjoyed. They supported each other and were about to gather forward. Unexpectedly, Chang Li waved her hand. She glared at them as she scolded uncourteously, Run for your lives for me. While Cone Nail grabbed Wen Leong, her one leg exerted strength and jumped onto Chang Li's back uncourteously, she urged continuously, He is only going to kill Wen Leong, you will be fine if you run quick. Chang Li did not waste time talking nonsense. Her body swayed as she carried both Kone Nail and Wen Leong on her back as she spread her legs and ran. Xiao Wu pulled along Qin Zhui, protect them. She then leaped up and followed closely behind Chang Li's back. In the midst of the pressing affairs, Qin Zhui grabbed the golden monkey and held it in his arms. The moment the old demon rabbit took one glance at Chang Li's movement, his heart sank. The demon cat's body was albeit as agile and swift but Xiaowu and Qin Zhui could catch up to her speed without exerting any effort. The time was too short, two top demon immortals did not even have enough time to recover their supernatural powers. Soon, the sword's resolve was about to launch an attack once again. They had no choice but to exert the remaining strength in their bodies to escape with one Leon. The big mustached man's cries and screams grew louder suddenly. His body was reeling askew, he too suddenly took a huge stride forward, and chased after Chang Li. His cries sounded like an infant, but his gaze that was looking towards Wen Leong was like a violent wolf. When Buzwa raised his arms and shouted, stop the one-eyed bastard he was halfway through his speech when the group of old and weak surviving soldiers did not even manage to gather in time. A gush of tremendous force surged abruptly, the group of people squalled and bawled as they fell down everywhere, the big mustached man had already dashed past the crowd and chased towards Chang Li and the rest. Xiao Wu distinguished the direction while she ran, she frowned and spoke, It is wrong for us to run this way. Follow me, to look for the father. Chang Li shook her head, Hanba is still recuperating from his injuries, he cannot deal with this monster. Not only the father, there is also before Xiao Wu could finish her sentence, she was interrupted by Chang Li once again, these are all risky moves, the opportunity of success is almost the same, why is there a necessity to burden Hanba? The big mustached man's speed was on par with Chang Li. 
His running posture was extremely alike the marionette puppet in the hands of one Liang's two silly uncles. Sometimes his left leg was limp like soft noodles, while sometimes his right leg was stiff like crab's leg. Every step he took he seemed to almost fall but he could still manage to adjust his gait right before the moment he lost his balance. He cried and screamed and hissed and roared all the way as he pursued closely behind Chang Li and the rest's back. Chang Li's heart was not distracted. She carried Cone Nail and Wen Leong as she dived head first into the desert rebel mountain that they had just left recently. Qin Zhui was starting to be a little confused. Why was he following and entering with them? He was about to turn around and pounce towards the big mustached man when he was dragged by Xiaowu, in the past when people were riding on horses in a rush, they would bring along two horses in exchange. Qin Zhui was suddenly enlightened. He looked towards Kone Nail, then, what is the purpose of you following here? Kone Nail stretched out her hand and guided. A cold radiance appeared suddenly in the air. The big mustached man that was crying and pursuing from afar was suddenly frozen in an ice spike that suddenly appeared. A moment later, the big mustached man struggled strenuously, he broke free from the disturbance and continued to pursue in a hurry. Even though the ice spike only managed to stop him for a short period of time, the two parties managed to distance themselves away for a little distance anyhow. It was only then Cone Nail laughed, my weight is still lighter as compared to the little bit of supernatural power that I can still manage to launch with effort. Upon saying that, she changed into that sorrowful expression once again, she exhaled a breath softly, that sword's resolve has yet to familiarize with the body, that is why he is chasing slowly. However, after continuous running, he will chase faster and faster, while we will only run slower and slower. Chang Li gave a humph, not necessarily. His arm is poisoned with the poison of life and death. The sword's resolve has only taken control of the body. He has yet to familiarize himself in urging life vitality. He will never be able to expel strong poison. When Liang's poison of life and death was violent and domineering but the big mustached man's body was truly too strong. The poison power corroded in a speed that was unusually slow. Until this point, there was still a large half chunk of his forearm left. Before their eyes, two parties were fighting for time. Whether it was the poison of life and death that invaded the big mustached man's heart and lungs first or whether the big mustached man would catch up to them first. Cone Nail would occasionally summon and condense ice spikes to freeze the big mustached man for a moment. Xiaowu would use the weeping staff to knock on the ground continuously and summon some evil corpses that were decayed to block the enemy. Only Qin Zhui, who had just forged his foundation establishment and had yet to learn magic art, could not turn around to stop the big mustached man and fight desperately. Hence, he could not do anything else other than running. Even though the great disaster was just right behind, Qin Zhui became bored the longer he ran. He suddenly recalled something, why does the big mustached man not break his arm to expel the poison? Chang Li peered at Qin Zhui impatiently, the sword's resolve has been waiting for how many years? When he finally gained the body, do you think he is willing to break away an arm immediately? Before Chang Li's voice died away, the big mustached man suddenly gave out a shocking scream in agony. He used his left hand to forcefully break his right arm. He did not even take a look before he tossed the right arm on the ground. He did not care about the fresh blood that was spurting out of his broken stump but clenched his teeth as he continued to chase after them. Chang Li was suddenly deranged, she glared at Qin Zhui ferociously, it is all your fault. Qin Zhui widened his mouth in astonishment, he did not know what to say. In the desert rebel mountain, thousands of red hills could be seen. Even though Chang Li was creating troubles everywhere back then and provoked all the cultivators in the world into pursuing and killing her, the demon cat had never been as shabby as she was today. Her charming face was akin to being covered with frost, her expression grew more and more determined. She did not utter a word but urged her life vitality with all her might so she could shuttle through the hills and mountain ridges rapidly. As mentioned by Cone Nail earlier, with only one eye, a broken arm, his back badly mutilated with his flesh torn to shreds, and even with a half rack of ribs missing, the big mustached man grew more and more familiar to his body. Hence, he chased faster and faster too. Even they themselves could not tell how long had they been running for. At this moment, 
Cone Nail was already holding the golden monkey as she lied on Qin Zhui's back. With the strongest actual power amongst the group of people, Xiaowu was lifting Wen Leon. The big mustached man followed closely behind them there were a few occasions he almost caught up, but in the end, he was forced to back down by the supernatural powers launched by Chang Li and Kohn Nail jointly. Dashing at the most front, Xiaowu's eyes suddenly brightened, she had already dashed out of the Red Hills. Chang Li's face was overjoyed, she urged repeatedly, do not stop. Behind the giant rock formation, there is a cave that leads us straight to the mountainside, let us run all the way there. A sense of suspicion appeared on Cone Nail's face. She turned her head to the side and looked at Chang Li, it is a dead end in the mountainside, what are you planning in your heart? Chang Li gave out a crisp laugh, let us just walk there, do you think that I am still capable of harming you? Cone Nail almost cried from injustice, have you not harmed me in the past? Her mouth was saying that but her body followed the rest of the people. Soon after the little darling gave out a cheer. She dived head first into the cave that was left behind by Tuasia underneath the golden horn. Qin Zhui, Kon Nail and Chang Li followed and entered the cave as well. The big mustached man howled dryly, he managed to rush over. The moment he entered the cave, a few ice spikes and demon blades came crashing down onto his head and face, the big mustached man did not manage to dodge in time. He used his one arm to protect his head as he howled and cried loudly. He forced his way in with brute force. Even though the cave was full of turns and rough, there was utterly no forks in the path. Xiaowu did not have to ask for the direction, she focused all her attention running towards the inside until the vision before her eyes turned slightly empty. She had bored into the mountainside at last. Following that, she was stunned, there was utterly no other route in there. The rest of the people also entered mountainside in succession, Cone Nail immediately reminded loudly, never ever touched the skeleton and long sword on the ground. At the same time, the sound of a coup echoed from within the skeleton's chest cavity. Red Pot's eyes were filled with joy as it bored out of the earth, you have returned to visit me so soon. Cone Nail did not know what to say, she gave a forced smile as she pointed to Chang Li, it is her idea to come, you ought to ask her. The moment Chang Li entered the mountainside, she immediately retreated for a few steps and blocked everybody else behind her back. She squinted her eyes gently as her gaze rippled with the eccentricity and arrogance of a cat's temperament. She stared at the cave attentively. Due to the seal formed from the strong poison in the skeleton, Red Pot had utterly no idea about the situation outside of the mountainside. It was still laughing aloud, at least the cat has a sense of conscience. Xiaowu did not understand the situation, she thought that Red Pot was their salvation. She did not wait for it to finish speaking as she placed Wen Leong next to his side. She bent over and knelt with agility as she gave the skeleton a loud kowtow then spoke with a childish voice, We are pursued by an evil creature, will the senior please save us? Red Pot widened its mouth in astonishment, it wished that it could cry. The sound of footsteps in the cave was loud as a bronze drum. The big mustached man's telegnosis ability had spread over the surrounding areas, he watched as the enemy was finally trapped in the mountainside with nowhere else to run away. Its dry and agonizing howl turned into a sharp and hoarse cheer, occasionally accompanied one or two strange voices that were uncertain whether it was a cry or laugh. Xiaowu and Qin Zhui were anxious and fearful. However, after they gazed into the eyes of one another, they each puffed up their chests. They were about to walk forward and block the entrance of the cave unexpectedly, Chang Li waved her hand in a manner that refused any query, scrammed to the back. Kone Nail also did not understand the situation, she was hopping with one leg as she stood side by side with Chang Li. She did not expect it when Chang Li, who had been solemn and stern as she stared at the cave entrance, suddenly revealed a maniacal smile as she pushed Kone Nail's shoulder. At the same time, she stretched out a leg and hooked onto Kone Nail's lone leg soundlessly. Of course, Cone Nail would not be using her supernatural power and life vitality against Chang Li, she swayed and hopped for a few steps before she managed to gain her balance. She was at a loss of whether to cry or laugh when she scolded, is this fun to you? Chang Li had only cracked into a smile when she suddenly turned around and glared at the cave entrance. Just as the big mustached man was about to appear from the depth of the cave, she suddenly opened her mouth and shouted loudly, break the demon body. 
A few muffled claps of thunder exploded with loud bangs in the suffocating mountainside. Boundless demonic primordial energy surged, roared and circulated in layers. A thick and huge demon blade breached the void with a sharp noise, following that one transformed into three, three threes transformed into nine, nine nines transformed into eighty-one. Following that, Chang Li waved her delicate hand once. She conducted the fluent rhythm accompanied by the intent of evilness of all ages, converged that into a streak of a mighty current that bored into the cave. The demon body breaking spell was an ultimate skill in the demon sect. Guo Huan could cast the spell, but Chang Li could cast the spell even better. At the same time, the demon blade appeared. A puff of demonic charming red also simultaneously gushed out from Chan Li's body into a boundless blood mist. A streak of wound about two fingers width appeared mottled and ferocious looking from the demon cat's right shoulder all the way to her left waist. It was akin to a raging heaven's divine warrior raised his whip and lashed onto Chan Li's back ferociously. While Chan Li's movement did not halt, she was akin to a raging leopardess. She leaped up as fast as lightning. Cone Nail finally understood Chan Li's intention, she cried out soundlessly, Stop. Chan Li cracked into a smile towards her in midair. That smile was like a flower. The big mustached man was still in the cave when the vision before his eyes were shielded by a boundless demon blade suddenly. There was no room for him to dodge, he waved his lone arm back and forth in a rage. He waved and danced into a spectacular ball of shadow. The entire cave was filled with roaring thunders and bright lightning all at once. The demonic energy coiled into the violent intent as it surged into the sky. Uncountable demon blades surged and stabbed vigorously in the cave, in a manner that was reckless yet wild. Some churned the big mustached man's lone arm into pieces, some reeled towards the mountain wall and crashed into countless stone fragments and soil dust. Some dived into the enemy's body within the sound of squeaky shrieks and drew in a few poisonous snake-like fresh blood that came pouring out. The sword's resolve was agitated to the greatest extent. Even though he possessed spiritual intelligence, he rarely pondered and never speak. That was why he could only cry and squalled along the way. However, he cherished the new body very much, he watched helplessly as gushes upon gush of fresh blood poured out. He suddenly broke into loud sobs. He waved about his arm and dashed towards the inside of the mountainside desperately. Let alone the item that was blocking before himself was a demon blade, even if it was the molten lava that ran for a thousand miles. He would still dash over so that he could completely tear, chew and swallow the people who had hurt, harmed and killed him. The sword's resolve was still not too familiar with his new body but he inherited the master's sandy body and the power of two heaven's dragons. Even though the demon body breaking spell that Chang Li launched resolutely was ruthless and tyrannical and vigorous, at best, it was only the blow she delivered at full power when she was at her prime. It was adequate to injure the enemy but it was wishful thinking to use it to kill the enemy. A raging howl was heard. The raging fire of the sword's resolve ignited all the power of life vitality. The raging sound of dragon's roar was heard indistinctively. He was trying his best to dash through the mighty torrent of demon blades that seemed to be never-ending. The mighty torrent's resistance grew stronger and stronger as it surged past the barrier. Just when the sword's resolve felt that his entire body lightened, carrying along countless of bitter wounds, his layers of skin and flesh flipped over weakly akin to a dead man's lip. When he was half a step away from dashing into the mountainside, a mottled white-colored skeleton suddenly flew before his eyes. After Chang Li launched the demon body-breaking spell, her body never stopped moving, she floated up akin to a fairy maiden in a graceful yet agile manner. Her lone hand pulled up as she stretched out her hand and pulled out the long sword in the skeleton's hand that once stabbed through the mountain wall and was similarly tainted full of Tuasye's Ben Ming poison. Chang Li pulled out the long sword, she flicked the skeleton towards the enemy while her body did not stop moving at the same time. She stabbed the enemy with the sword. The piercing pain that was radiating from her hand was an indescribable pain. It was his aqua blue, his strong poison, the only trace of him that existed in this world, his wild ambition when he once slaughtered countless master cultivators for her. The big mustached man was still in the cave there was nowhere he could dodge, he did not wish to dodge either. 
he fisted his hand and did not even take a glance before he pounded towards the skeleton that seemed to be laughing at him. At this moment, a raging roar that shocked the heaven was abruptly heard, Red Pot that was still staring in bewilderment a moment ago appeared while roaring, it was you. The big mustached man's body suddenly halted, of course, it was not because of Red Pot's raging roar but it was due to the skeleton. The moment it came into contact with his body, a dash of piercing cold that was enough to freeze the soul stabbed into his left hand. It was a dash of sensation that was slightly similar to his right arm earlier but it was even more incisive and even more domineering and even more disgusting. It suddenly spread out. The fear that he must sacrifice a part of himself in order to survive made the sword's resolve so fearful he was crying continuously. The battle between life and death had never ended. A puddle of aqua blue rippled, the long sword stabbed horizontally and diagonally. The demon which held the sword. She was so beautiful that one did not want to struggle for her. She was apparently so weak there was not an ounce of strength on her. Yet, she managed to effortlessly stab through him. This was the final thought of the sword's resolve. The sword that was powerless yet accurate. It pinned into his heart that was once pumping lively and overjoyed. After the crystal clear tears flowed out from the lone eye of the sword's resolve, it mixed with the dirt and blood on his face and turned murky. Chong Li exhaled a breath gently, the poison of aqua blue had already completely annihilated her arm and was surging and rushing towards her heart now. She could not tell if this was cruel or gentle. Chong Li was laughing. She was not sure if it was because she managed to kill the formidable enemy or it was because she was dying under the poison of aqua blue at this point, a babbling squall that sounded blurry echoed from her back. A person collided over limply, flung away the long sword that she was about to hold tightly to her death. Then, the person grabbed her wrist in a strenuous manner. The hand felt so soft yet her finger bone pierced through her flesh. When Leon was awake, he dashed forward. The strong poison of aqua blue suddenly turned around and vanished from Chang Li's body for the second time and surged into Wen Liang's body. The two persons gazed into one another with a faint smile on their faces then the both of them fell over and fainted. Kon Nail, Xiaowu, Qin Zhui and even Red Pot seemed to lose their abilities to think as they were stunned by the rapid changes before their eyes. No one that deserved to die in this battle. That was why in the discussion of life and death, there was neither victory nor defeat. Chapter, 266 The demon cat was proud and arrogant, her cultivation base was extraordinarily high. She spent a few thousand years creating troubles all over the world as she pleased, yet she had never been as shabby as she was now. She was pursued all the way by the sword's resolve that was no stronger than a fool. From the moment she entered the desert rebel mountain, she had already made up her mind to use Tuasia's long sword that was contaminated by filthy poison and perished together with the sword's resolve. She forcefully launched the demon body-breaking spell, despite being severely injured. She took the risk of being tainted with the rare poison such that she launched the fatal attack and finally the poison of aqua blue that was about to invade into her meridians was drawn away by Wen Leong. Chang Li was also almost on the verge of dying when she fell into a deep sleep. Xiaowu was truly petrified. Her little face was so ghastly pale it made one pitied her. She looked at Wen Leong and Chang Li, are the both of them dying soon? The demon cat is only severely injured, she will need to recuperate for a period of time then she will recover the corners of Cone Nail's eyes were filled with deep sorrow. She looked towards Wen Leong, as for him we will need to see if the poison of life and death is capable of resisting Tuasia's strong poison. Upon saying that, she remained silent for a moment before finally spitting out four words, we will see his creation. Chang Li's fatal blow earlier was imposing and threatening. However, from the moment Chang Li launched the demon body breaking spell until when the dust settled, everything happened in less than the time it took to blink one's eyes. During that period, Chang Li raised the poisonous skeleton and waved the sword to stab the big mustached man. Consequently, the strong poison of aqua blue that was placed by Tua Xie 2000 years ago, which Chang Li was only tainted with 10 or 20 percent of it, was all absorbed by Wen Liang's body. The poison of life and death in Wen Liang's entire body condensed and trembled strongly along with Wen Liang's weak heartbeat. The poison was resisting the strong poison of aqua blue desperately. 
The poison of life and death was akin to a flock of sheep that was united yet fearful, the poison curled into layers and circulated around Wen Liang's vital parts of heart and chest. While the poison of aqua blue was akin to a fierce and strange python, wriggling around the sheep flock as fast as lightning. Occasionally, it would probe its head and strike once. Even though the strong poison of aqua blue did not manage to completely disperse the poison of life and death all at once, the large flock of sheep could only wish to kill the strange python. Wen Leong understood before he fainted for the second time. As compared to his previous experience of losing a finger, this time the strong poison that invaded his body was more than just a few thousand times stronger. There was no way he could completely expel and disperse them. It was only a matter of time before the poison of aqua blue dispersed the poison of life and death. Before he fainted, Wen Leung's final thought was, before I die, will I still have the opportunity to wake up again? Xiao Wu's eyes welled up with tears, she was about to say something when Kone Nail shook her head resolutely, send Wen Leung back to his home. The people on the scene albeit possessed remarkable cultivation base with extensive knowledge, not even one person was skilled in the art of poison. From Kone Nail's point of view, if the few of Wen Liang's family elders were on the scene, Wen Liang's chance of survival would increase exponentially. Qin Zhui answered in response. He bent over and carried Wen Liang on his back, while his arms held the golden monkey that could not move at all. On the other hand, Xiao Wu lifted Chan Li while supporting Kone Nail simultaneously. The group of people was about to reel away and left the mountainside and a voice echoed from their backs, slow down. Wait for me. Cone Nail was stunned for a moment before she understood who was speaking, she turned around and looked at Red Pot curiously. Red Pot inhaled a long breath, exhaled a long breath. OTS flat body followed its breathing as it continuously expanded, contracted, then expanded again. Cone Nail was smart and witty, she could tell Red Pot's intention just by judging by its gaze. She asked in astonishment, there is still more than half of the poison power left on the skeleton if you were to break forcefully be careful you might risk your life. Chang Li and the sword's resolve had removed a great portion of the strong poison on the skeleton. In the end, the skeleton was slammed onto the ground by the fist of the sword's resolve and the strong poison prohibition spell had weakened. Red Pot's gaze was beyond determined yet its voice was trembling in a manner that could not be suppressed, the remaining poison power will not disperse by itself while I am growing weaker and weaker. If I do not seize this opportunity, I will never have this opportunity in the future. Cone Nail smiled gently, if you were to wish to break through the poisonous bones, I cannot help and will never help. Feel free to break through yourself, why is there a necessity to call out for me? Red Pot's tone of speaking was solemn, you and I are bound by the common hatred of an enemy, it has been many years since I have not seen the light of the day. The world has changed since earlier, it is only a dream if I were to depend on my own to locate the enemy. Once I struggle free from this trap, I will still be leaving with all of you. That is why all of you ought to wait for me for a moment. The moment Cone Nail heard of the words bound by the common hatred of an enemy, she frowned as if she was deep in thoughts. She was about to say something else when Red Pot suddenly shouted loudly, its flat body was akin to a balloon that was connected to an air pump. Its body expanded wildly as it started breaking free from its shackles. A moment later, the toad expanded its body rapidly. It squeezed into the skeleton's chest cavity, the tyrannical color of aqua blue circulated all of a sudden. The muffled cracking sound that made one's gum sore echoed continuously from the skeleton. Red Pot's gaze was filled with agony, it gave out a painful croak from the depth of its throat. Finally, the toad and the skeleton were locked in a stalemate for a moment. At the crisp sound of a pop, the poisonous bones were burst apart by the giant frog. The moment Red Pot struggled free, it suddenly widened its mouth and gave out a raging roar loud enough to shake the heavens. Soon after, it was akin to deflated balloon as it rapidly returned to its normal form, the skeleton shackles were already shattered by it but Red Pot itself was also exhausted by the poison power. It lay on the ground and could not budge anymore. It could only pant heavily as it spoke to Cone Nail with great effort, bring me together with you. The strong poison and my power of origin are neutralized. I do not have poison on my body. Cone Nail did not waste time talking nonsense, she stretched out her hand and held Red Pot in her palm. 
the group of people helped and supported each other as they rushed back to the Battle of Mount Hua. The Black and White Island, the Desert Rebel Mountain and also the vast wasteland where the Big Mustached Man was from were guided in by the Magic Formation. In simpler words, the Magic Formation on Mount Hua's Goddess Peak shattered the void and opened three pathways. When the power of the Magic Formation had depleted, the three strange regions would each return to its usual spot. It was still easier to maneuver the Black and White Island, at least Cone Nail knew her directions but no one knew where was the Desert Rebel Mountain hidden. By then, it was afraid that she could not even find her way back to the shoe state. A group of weak and vulnerable surviving cultivators each urged their own life vitality led by Cone Nail, rushed towards the Goddess Peak before the Great Guiding Formation disappeared. After a long while, Red Pot regained some of its spirits. Occasionally, it burst out laughing, occasionally, it looked up to the sky and heaved a sigh, Cone Nail was very bothered. She pushed on with the journey while she asked, what do you mean by we are bound by the common hatred for an enemy? Red Pot was not in a rush to answer Cone Nail but it allowed her to talk about the events that had taken place beforehand. After Cone Nail was done talking, Red Pot first pondered for a moment then it spoke slowly, the great guiding formation is altered by the Chaos Brothers. That is why its power increases exponentially. Cone Nail nodded and spoke, the real magic formation is supposed to only guide that stretch of wasteland. As the big mustached man received his immortal master teacher's oracle, he had fully prepared himself to capture Chongli. However, after the magic formation was tempered by the Chaos Brothers, the Black and White Island and Desert Rebel Island were guided in as well. As she was saying that, Cone Nail frowned, there is one more matter that is very peculiar. I have never figured it out all along. When we were still in the Desert Rebel Mountain, the wasteland had been guided in by the magic formation but the big mustached man had never entered the Desert Rebel Mountain to pursue and attack us. He waited for our return before he revealed himself. Red Pot did not have a neck. When it shook its head even its buttocks were shaking as well, let us talk about the magic formation first. Have you ever realized that the thing that was tempered by the descendants of Chaos Cone Nail was only the spirit primordial energy foundation that launched the Great Formation? It was not the Formation's intent, otherwise, the big mustached man could never possibly come out. The cultivator's spirit primordial energy was initially used to launch the magic formation but afterwards, it was changed into the primordial energy of Chaos by them. The monsters from Sherwan Mountain each possessed the power of chaos while cultivators cultivated in the life vitality force of the heaven and earth. These two types of power were not the same. Ordinary cultivators were akin to coal balls while the descendants of the chaos cone nail and their workers were akin to batteries. Even though their mode of operation and presentation were different, their basic quality was still energy. The great guiding formation that was delivered by the immortal master teacher was akin to the act of boiling water with the coal ball. If they wished to boil a pot of water, they would need 999 coal balls. That was why Shudu, Bauri, Sir Rust and the rest visited Mount Hua to look for help. The descendants of Chaos also wished to boil the water but they did not have the coal balls but only batteries. That was why the Chaos Brothers changed the magic formation. They changed from the initial method of using coal balls to boil water, to using batteries to produce heat so they could boil water. Authors note, in Cataclysmic Bean's college entrance examination back then, I scored very poorly in physics, I simplified this in order to write the novel. Yet, the act of boiling water was still the act of boiling water. It did not turn into the act of cooking dishes. The Chaos Brothers attempted to temper with the Immortal Master Teacher's magic formation but they only changed the mode of energy necessary to operate the magic formation and not the magic formation itself. Just depending on the Chaos Brothers' cultivation base and their attainment in the magic formation, they did not have the capability to change the core of the magic formation. The energy that erupted from the batteries were stronger than coal balls. That was why the descendants of Chaos not only boiled the pot of water as instructed by the immortal master teacher, they boiled another two extra pots. That pot of water as instructed by the immortal master teacher was the big mustached man that was hiding in the wasteland. While the two extra pots of water that were boiled by the Chaos Brothers were the Black and White Mountain and the Desert Rebel Mountain. Cone Nail only needed to ponder for a moment before she understood Red Pot's explanation. Red Pot nodded, it was still shaking its entire body up and down. 
It appeared like a seesaw, since the formation's intention remained unchanged, then when the three locations that were guided in, it should all be the same. Perhaps we could say that in between each of the locations, there was a deep connection. Cone Nail did not stop her footsteps. She frowned but did not utter a word. She could not fully understand Red Pot's explanation. Red Pot pondered on its own for a little while before it spoke once again, you once said that in order for the cultivator. Named Kong Nuer, to condense the demon-suppressing wood element Cone Nail on the black and white island, he framed the golden monkey. The heavens Cone Nails were also following by Kong Nuer's side back then. Cone Nail inhaled a deep breath, I was once refined into the heavens Cone Nail by Kong Nuer as well. Red Pot gave out a he, the big mustached man that came from the wasteland to capture Changli, did he have the exact appearance of Kong Nuer? The moment Qian Ren saw the big mustached man, he was steadfast in recognizing him as Kong Nuer. It immediately advanced forward and fought desperately but the big mustached man himself was completely ignorant, he denied stoutly. Seeing that Kong Nail nodded, a sense of murderous glow suddenly revealed in Red Pot's eyes, when I saw that sword's resolve that was pursuing and killing all of you earlier, I thought that he was that bastard who swallowed me. Kong Nail's state of mind was absolutely alert and resourceful, but firstly because she was involved in the situation, secondly because recently the heaven water spirit failed to break the primordial spirit seal. Thirdly because she had recently experienced a series of violent battles and her state of mind was unguarded on a few occasions, and fourthly she was concerned of Wen Liang's life, she could only feel as her mind turned into a ball of mess right now. Hence, upon hearing Red Pot's words, she could not help but to inquire closely, the person who swallowed you was the skeleton that trapped you? I thought he was killed by Tuasia. Cone Nail was halfway through her speech when she suddenly closed her mouth. A layer of fear shimmered from her gaze. Kong Nuer, who designed the great formation to suppress a demon on the black and white island, the big mustached man, who lived alone in the vast wasteland. And the skinny and small cultivator, who lived in seclusion in the desert rebel mountain to seal off Red Pot, had the exact same appearances. The three strange regions out of the world of Black and White Island, the Wasteland, the Desert Rebel Mountain were all guided in by the Immortal Master Teacher's magic formation. The three locations were supposed to coincide with each other. Even the people who were on guard had the same appearance. After the Chaos Brothers increased the horsepower of the Great Guiding Formation, all the locations were guided in together. Cone Nail's mind broke into an uproar. The heavenly water spirit was showing faint signs of launching again. However, as they were exerting all their efforts to return to the goddess peak right now, they could not afford even a moment's delay. Cone Nail concentrated, and slowly pulled back her life vitality, she clenched her teeth and abandoned the perfect opportunity to break through the primordial spirit seal. Three top sword immortals that looked exactly the same each guarded a corner, the black and white island and the desert rebel mountain were both the land of evil suppression. The big mustached man in the wasteland, whatever he was doing there would not be too different from the others. That was why he could not travel too far. If the immortal master teacher wanted him to capture the demon cat, then he would need to use the magic formation to guide the wasteland near to the demon cat's location. Red Pot spoke louder and clearer, otherwise, what was the necessity for that bullshit immortal teacher to plan for some magic formation? He could just directly deliver an oracle to instruct the big mustached man to leave the mountain to capture Changli. The big mustached man's cultivation base and supernatural power were unparalleled in Cone Nail's entire lifetime. It was not considered overrated if one were to describe him as the superhuman, who knew everything about the heaven and earth. Based on his abilities, even though the world was vast, it would not be considered a difficult task for him to apprehend Changli. Yet, the immortal master teacher had to first send out the descendants of heaven's cone nails to make a move. When they failed, only he allowed the big mustached man to go forward. His move was unnecessary and meaningless unless the big mustached man still had other important matters to attend to. Unless it was the last resort, the immortal master teacher refused to allow him to make a move. Since the Black and White Island and the Desert Rebel Mountain were both evil lands of demon suppression, even when Nine could not be bothered to make a guess why the big mustached man was hiding in the wasteland. Qin Zhui had been listening to the human and frog's conversation, he finally understood. 
He was so astonished he widened his small eyes strenuously by a little, what is the creature that is suppressed on the wasteland? Now that the big-mustached man is dead, should there be a monster running out of that place? Cone Nail glared at him, do not mind which type of monster it is. If it has escaped then so be it, it is unrelated to us. Upon saying that, she paused for a moment before she laughed, your master teacher is a monster too. Yet, he still managed to escape right? Qin Zhui laughed dryly, that is correct. The golden monkey blinked its eyes, there was no way to tell if it was angry or injustice. Cone Nail laughed for a while. She was trying to make herself think clearly, she gradually frowned again, these three persons here are split bodies. Red Pot peered at Cone Nail in slight surprise. He seemed to think that this was a very silly question that surprisingly came out of her mouth, of course. Even if they are the brothers of identical twins, they will never have such similar appearances. Cone Nail brooded in silence. She was still feeling that something was wrong anyhow as if there was still some important clue that was floating away right before her eyes. Yet, she could never catch it regardless. Red Pot continued to speak, the big mustached men were humans. Based on their cultivation base, they had already turned from the one breath that melted into three pureness earlier. However, there was only one split body from the sword's resolve. The big mustached man who swallowed me in the beginning, he had only one split body as well. It was also a sword's resolve. However, Tuasye's poison power was too astonishing, he directly killed the sword's resolve in the long sword with poison. Using the human body to cultivate for the heaven, one was capable of refining into three split bodies. The split body that cultivated to its greatest extent was capable of refining into another split body. Based on the big mustached man's cultivation base, he should have cultivated into three split bodies earlier. Yet whether it was the big mustached man from the wasteland or the desert rebel mountain, each of them only had one split body in the sword's resolve. The only plausible explanation was the big mustached man himself was another person's split body. Cone Nail shook her head, there is one big mustached man that guarded the wasteland and desert rebel mountain, but where did the Kong Nuer from the black and white island go? Cone Nail recalled when she was acting as the heaven's Cone Nail, the black and white island's master cultivators passed down from generation to generation. The final few thousand years the island was protected by the three enlightened persons of Tian Shu. However, there was never the appearance of a top master cultivator like the big mustached man there. The toad gave a humph, perhaps he had already died when the great formation was first accomplished yet there was no way one could tell. This time even Xiaowu could not refrain herself from speaking, the descendants of heaven's cone nails received the immortal master teacher's oracle, Kong Nuer was their immortal master teacher. If he was dead, then who was capable of delivering the oracle? Upon saying that, she shook her head herself, that is wrong as well. Judging by the molten metal fire bell's power, it could only be used by a master cultivator like the big mustached man. The giant sword and the black and white island were closely connected, so it should be Kong Nuer's weapon, but the sword's resolve on the giant sword was sealed since earlier. So, Kong Nuer was already dead. Red Pot's gaze was beyond steadfast, that is right. That Kong Nuer on the black and white island was certainly dead. However, since there were the split bodies, then there would naturally be a god-level body, the god-level body used the split body's supernatural power to deliver an oracle to the inferior of his supposed split bodies. It was not a difficult task. The immortal master teacher that was mentioned by Shudu and Bao Ri was a split body while the person who delivered the oracle to them was the god-level body. As it was saying that, Red Pot's tone of speaking gradually grew more solemn, the split body who framed me was albeit dead, the god-level body is still alive. He is the great enemy for you and me. Whatever the split body was doing, he is also doing it based on the god-level body's instructions. He is not suppressing me with the reason of enforcing justice on behalf of the heaven. In the final analysis, the person who framed you and I was the big-mustached man's god-level body. Xiao Wu also widened her eyes in surprise. As compared to the ugly youth Qin Zhui who was similarly widening his eyes by her side, she was so beautiful like a little fairy maiden. She shook her head, wait wait, the big mustached man said the person who passed down the oracle to him was his master teacher. 
how was he unable to tell his master teacher and his master teacher's god-level body apart? At this point, Cone Nail's mind suddenly froze. She was abruptly enlightened, she realized what was the clue that she did not manage to catch all along. The big, mustache man was completely unaware that he was a split body. When they first met the big mustached man in the Battle of Mount Hua, in the face of the indications from Qian Ren and the descendants of Heaven's Cone Nails, the big mustached man's face was filled with puzzlement all along. If he were to know that he was the split body, naturally, he would realize that these people were his other two split body brothers' enemies or workers. In the situation at that time, the big mustached man had the upper hand, naturally, there was no need for him to play the fool with them. The ugly youth Qin Zhui laughed and stuttered, there are still other matters that I cannot quite understand yet as he was saying that. He inhaled a deep breath and was not bothered if others did not allow him to continue asking his question, what is the purpose of the immortal master teacher to capture the demon cat? What is Tuasya doing now? The big mustached man from the wasteland still had some other important matters on hand, then why did the god-level body not come here and capture Changli by himself? Why did Tua Xie kill the big mustached man from the desert rebel mountain? He killed the big mustached man on the desert rebel mountain, why did he not kill the big mustached man from the wasteland? As Qin Zhui was joyously asking, the rest of the people shouted in unison, shut up. The situation was chaotic to the greatest extent. Kone Nail, Red Pot and Xiaowu were confused since the beginning when they heard of Qin Zhui's machine gun-like questions, they immediately felt a little crazy. Cone Nail gave a forced laugh as she shook her head, we shall discuss further after we have sent Wen Liang back to the Nine Peaks Mountain. We shall wait until Chang Li and Qian Ren can speak then we shall corroborate and discuss with one another. We may be able to think deeper tune the other hand, if I were to regain the memories from my past life, perhaps I will be able to find some new clues. While Red Pot was struggling itself free from the strong poison skeleton, it almost exhausted all its strength. It almost died out of exhaustion. Even though it managed to recuperate itself slightly now, its limbs were still limp. It could only depend on Cone Nail who was holding it while they pushed on with their journey. Yet the toad was in an extremely good mood after it struggled free from the trap, it was tossing and turning without in Cone Nail's palm happily. Even though the few people were unbearably shabby, their footsteps were swifter than the ordinary people. Cone Nail stopped thinking about Kong Nuer, the big mustached man, but she focused all her attention on pushing on with their journey. After she had calmed herself, she suddenly recalled something else. Her expression changed abruptly. On the goddess peak, other than the cultivators from the five blessings, almost half of them were made up of the descendants of the heaven's cone nails. During the violent battle of the goddess peak, a group of demon immortals, heaven's dragons, treasured weapons, and the big mustached man's power of joint attack erupted suddenly. Everyone was affected. Yet, the difference was that their own people were dashing forward, while the disciples under the heaven's cone nails sex were falling back together in between the advancement and retreatment. Naturally, there was a difference between their state of injuries. Moreover, the disciples of heaven's cone nails initially possessed profound cultivation base. Cone nail looked toward Xiaowu. The pursuit that came along with the violent battle on the mountain peak and also the uncertainties earlier made Cone Nail, who was quick-witted and well-composed on usual days, became confused. It was until this moment that she suddenly thought of, how was Xiaowu uninjured at the time? Xiaowu hastily described the situation that involved her being rescued at that time, Cone Nail felt slightly calmer in her heart. For this person was capable of rescuing Little Five and the rest in the midst of the tremendous force's relentless attacks, the person's cultivation base was at least of the same level as Shudu and Bauri. He was willing to save the people, at least he was not an enemy. However, who was this person Kone Nail was starting to have another headache, she gave a forced laugh as she asked Xiaowu, who else was rescued by that person? Little Five counted one by one, Ji Fei and Shui Jing, myself, the siblings Fei Fei, second mother from the Miao clan as she was speaking, her huge eyes rolled up as she recalled with great effort. She finally shook her head and answered joyously, that is all. Kone Nail's charming brow throbbed, Wen Shulin. Wen Shulin's cultivation base was even worse than Ji Fei and Shui Jing. A sense of puzzlement appeared on Xiaowu's face, she was suddenly reminded that there was still the old man Wen Shulin now, 
it seems that I have not seen him for a very long time. The few people were walking as they pushed on with their journey through the crossed layers of red hills rapidly. At this moment, a series of long howls suddenly echoed from afar, it was unknown which method did the surviving five blessings cultivators on the goddess peak used, they managed to temporarily suppress their injuries. They were calling out to each other as they entered the mountain to receive cone nail and the rest. Even though they were still lethargic, their cultivation base was less than 20 to 30 percent of their usual days, as compared to when Chongli and the rest left, the cultivators were stronger and more high-spirited now. Judging by their state of injuries at the time, this was utterly impossible, Cone Nail was thinking beforehand that by the time she returned to the goddess peak. It was considered rather remarkable if these junior generation's state of injuries did not continue to deteriorate any more. To her surprise, she did not expect that they even managed to regain a portion of theirs. The old demon rabbit, the little supreme leader Lu Zheng and the great master Rang Yong were united as they walked at the most front. When they realized that the person who was approaching them was Cone Nail and the rest but not the big mustached man, they cheered out in unison. They gathered over in an effort to help, while at the same time they raised their voices and howled aloud. They informed others to gather over as well. While Lu Zheng was escorting them, he explained the events that took place in the Goddess Peak in a simplified manner. After Chang Li and the rest brought along Wen Leong and escaped into the Desert Rebel Mountain, the surviving descendants of the Heaven's Cone Nails rose in revolt as expected. While the people on their own side almost did not even have the power to face a battle and they were about to be at the losing side, a person leaped onto the mountain from the foothill. He was enshrouded entirely in a white robe with only a pair of eyes revealed. The moment he made a move, he shocked the enemies. The white-robed man did not bother the descendants of the Heaven's Cone Nails but allowed them to bring their sect master and left Mount Hua immediately. After the descendants of the Heaven's Cone Nails left, the white-robed man then left behind some injury-healing wonder potion for the Five Blessings cultivators. He then turned around and descended the mountain. The moment the little supreme leader Lu Zheng was done speaking, his people had already gathered over in succession. They escorted Cone Nail in groups and rushed towards the Goddess Peak. When Buzwa also gathered forward, he spoke to Cone Nail softly, on the other hand, there is one more thing that is very queer, we have examined the corpses, we have verified the head count, everybody else does not matter. However when Shulin is gone. If he is alive, his person is not seen, if he is dead, his corpse is not found. The three-inch nail when Bushuo gave a forced laugh as he shook his head, it was only after we have noticed his disappearance that we have realized, we have not seen him for a long time. Qin Zhui asked Kone Nail cautiously, that white-robed man who rescued the others could he be when Shu Lin? Kone Nail clenched her teeth, she enunciated her words with pauses, I. Do. Not. No. Kone Nail felt like crying right now, it was difficult to predict Wen Liang's life. The group of people was all suffering from severe injuries, yet problems arose one after another. Not only was there no clarification, the situation became even more complicated. At this moment, the ground suddenly shook gently, Cone Nail did not even need to think, she immediately called out to everybody else to run with all their might and rushed back to the Goddess Peak. They were very close to Mount Hua right now, if the magic formation were to lose its effect at this time, Cone Nail would really cry and curse the heaven. The large group of cultivators exerted all their strengths to urge their life vitality. They were akin to a flock of ducks that fled its coop as they dashed in a disordered manner. It did not take long before they rushed back to Mount Hua from the Desert Rebel Mountain. When they arrived on the Goddess Peak, they discovered in astonishment that the huge mountain was trembling not because the magic formation was about to lose its effect. Even the old demon rabbit, who spent his entire lifetime worshipping the Buddha and cultivated his energy, could not help but stomp his foot ferociously at this moment. He pointed to the wasteland that was exploding with dust as he scolded in rage, it keeps coming and will never stop. Red Pot also squalled out with a coup, I made a wrong guess earlier. Run. Quick quick. Chapter, 267. The dust and soil were rolling and hovering on the wasteland as if there were thousands of horses and soldiers that were rushing over sonorously. The few strange regions on the surroundings and Goddess Peak were shaking and rustling from the thundering footsteps. Cone Nail heard Red Pot's urgings. 
she did not even hesitate. Under Little Five's support, she summoned Qin Zhui and spread her legs to run. They had already realized on their way that the big-mustached man's wasteland was just the same as Desert Rebel Mountain and the Black and White Island. These were all the lands of evil suppression. Now that the big-mustached man was dead, the creatures that were dashing over were either his disciples or the evil creature that he was suppressing. There was no way they could deal with either of them. The surviving cultivators were albeit puzzled, they were not foolish. At the sound of an uproar, they escorted the few of the top demon immortals that were severely injured as they descended the mountain rapidly. A moment later, another group of people dashed out of the dust and soil. They stepped onto the goddess peak from the wasteland. The old demon rabbit turned around and looked afar as he was running. His gaze swept past the enemies that were chasing from the wasteland. The old demon rabbit was feeling slightly astonished in his heart, there was nothing peculiar about the enemies' appearances but their number of people was truly not lacking there was a total of three to four thousand people. No one had expected that there were so many people hidden in the wasteland. Cone Nail was also startled by a large number of pursuers, she gave a forced laugh as she asked Red Pot, who are all these people? Red Pot gave a, he, they are the barbarians, the landhoppers. Cone Nail's face appeared a little puzzled, she felt like she had heard of the name landhopper before. Yet, she could not recall what that was. She squinted her eyes as she turned around and looked towards a large number of pursuers. Every person that was chasing from the wasteland appeared no different from any ordinary people at first glance. However, there was always something not right about them. One would be suddenly enlightened upon close examination, that these people's eyes, all had multiple pupils. Those with fewer pupils had two to three pupils, while those with more pupils had seven or eight pupils. Nevertheless, there was not even an ounce of sinister or tyranny in these eyes. Their eyes were completely dull. A ghastly and unusual dullness. Red Pot was gifted with strange endowments. Its eyesight was stronger than anybody else. The moment it arrived on the goddess peak it could identify the people who came running over, which was why it urged the crowd to run for their lives loudly. The large troop of barbarians dashed out of the wasteland. They chased after the cultivators without any hesitation, their gazes were dull while their faces were expressionless. They did not cry or make any noise but their footsteps were beyond heavy. Every step they took would certainly result in the shattering of mountain rocks and blasting of the soil fragments. These barbarians that were known as the landhoppers. Any one of them could run and hurled out a streak of soil dragon behind his back. Moreover, there were thousands of them that were running together. The old demon rabbit did not doubt that if they were to run continuously on the goddess peak for a few days, the huge mountain would be forcefully stepped until it had collapsed. Qin Zhui also saw the barbarian's real appearances, his expression was revealing in slight defiance, what is there to fear from a bunch of barbarians? Only their footsteps sound slightly heavier than usual. Red Pot shook its head in all apparent seriousness, according to the legend of the ancient times, the bodies of the barbaric landhoppers were tough and sturdy. They feared neither water nor fire. They possessed the power that was capable of collapsing hills and pushing mountains. They were inherently cunning and ruthless, they also helped the wicked to perpetuate wicked deeds. They worshipped the evil god and made trouble in the heaven and earth and finally, they evoked the wrath of the god that resulted in the divine punishment to befall on them. The landhopper's intelligence was seized, turning all of them into walking corpses and zombies, they did not even know how to struggle or resist even if they were tossed into a furnace. In the midst of pressing's affairs Xiaowu managed to continue, so the big-mustached man was trying to suppress this troop of barbaric landhoppers in the wasteland? Before her voice died away, the little supreme leader Lu Zheng, who had been in charge of covering the rear, suddenly shouted loudly, Taoism Code, bounce the sword, execute the demon. Immediately, the sword's hum was heard loudly. The Kunlun sword formation appeared within the surging of cold radiance. Almost everyone was injured now, the little supreme leader Lu Zheng's state of injuries was no less than the old demon rabbit and Rangyong, but his combat power was still the strongest amongst them. The two enlightened persons, Tian Shu and Tian Hua, sacrificed their life vitality, such that Lu Zheng and the sword formation could be interlinked. As long as there was still a portion of life vitality, 
he was still capable of summoning the sword formation with vast power. Soon the barbaric landhoppers were approaching closer and closer. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng suddenly turned around. He dispersed the Kunlun thousands of swords as he sacrificed himself to brace the enemies. Chang Li gave a humph. Her footsteps were slowing down. Lu Zheng was one of her closest friends that she had left in this world. Red Pot hastily shouted loudly, We cannot stop for even a moment. Everybody else can stop, except for the few of you. These landhopper ran out in order to kill Chang Li and Kon Nail and also Wen Leong. Everybody else will be fine. The thousands of divine swords were blotting out the sky and covering the sun. The swords then separated into three streaks of vast sword dragons, each of the dragons roared in response and surged towards the ground with a loud bang. Just as the sword formation was about to surge into the enemy's formation, a few thousands of the barbaric landhoppers that seemed to only know how to run suddenly dispersed off in an uproar. Just like a large army of startled frogs, some were waving their arms and legs, while some were leaping high into the air, some were crawling and creeping in a haste, while some were somersaulting. The barbarians appeared beyond messy without any sense of planning, yet no matter which posture they were displaying. Every barbarian was using his hand, his leg, his shoulder his back and even his buttocks and his mouth to pull at the sword dragons mercilessly. They were locked in a stalemate for a moment. Then, the sorrowful sword's hum echoed through the edge of the sky, the three sword dragons were almost simultaneously torn apart and exploded into countless sharp blades. The formation was albeit lost, the long swords were still there. The swords were still turning and flying as they attacked towards the barbaric landhoppers. The battle formation was a splendid sight when seen from afar. With thousands of long swords as graceful as dragons that coiled, curled, and entangled thousands of silent landhoppers. Yet, in the blink of an eye, the vast and mighty battleground suddenly changed. The barbarians' fighting method had utterly no rhythm. It was hideous and shabby. Some were using their legs to stomp, some were using their bodies to roll, some were using their buttocks to sit but every cultivator that was watching this fierce battle could not help but to squeeze out a cheer from the depth of their lungs. No matter how hideous and ugly were the barbarians' postures, they were almost swifter than the flying sword. No matter how twisted and curved were the barbarians' bodies, they would never break. No matter how clumsy and silly were the barbarians' movements, they would never let themselves be harmed even by a little. At that moment, thousands of landhoppers' gaze still remained as dimmed as ever, they were still lifeless and dull. It seemed that they were only battling with their instincts. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng did not even manage to pinch into the sword control gesture to reform his sword formation before almost half of the Kunlun divine swords were captured and snapped within the sorrowful sound of breaking. In a moment, the Kunlun sword formation was destroyed by half. It could no longer trap the enemies, as thousands of landhopper began to converge again and continued to chase after Cone Nail and the rest. The dust and soil were rolling again. More than 40% of the Kunlun thousands of swords were destroyed in a flash, yet none of the landhopper was injured. They dashed past Lu Zheng's side with a loud bang. Lu Zheng closed his eyes. Even his sword formation was torn apart by the other party in a flash, then there was no need for him to resist any more yet a moment later, his footsteps felt lighter. By the time he opened his eyes, the landhopper had dashed over accompanied by boundless dust and soil. Not even one barbarian that took one glance at him. Within the layered pupils of these barbarians, there were only the three figures, Kone Nail, Chang Li and Wen Liang's. Lu Zheng was stunned for a long while then he suddenly squalled. He followed the dust storm afar and pursued. He appeared awe-inspiring and magnificent when seen from afar. It was as if he was chasing after three to four thousand barbaric landhoppers that were running away in fear. The little supreme leader Lu Zheng could not continue his life vitality. He watched helplessly as he was about to lose the landhopper. He suddenly stopped moving, soon after he frowned, he hesitated for a moment before he turned around abruptly. He spread his legs and ran towards the wasteland that was guided in by the magic formation, which was already empty without a single person right now. Even though Kon Nail, Qin Zhui and Xiao Wu did not turn around, the battle between the Kunlun thousands of swords and thousands of barbarians were presented within their telegnosis ability. 
the few of them understood the other party's actual power. They exchanged glances in unison. Qin Zhui glared at Red Pot and asked, these barbarians were suppressed by the big-mustached man in the wasteland, they have struggled free from the trap now. Why are they still attempting to kill Kone Nail, Chong Li and Wen Leong? Red Pot's tone of speaking sounded slightly contemptuous. It answered in a speed that was not fast nor slow, the barbaric landhoppers that I have mentioned earlier were only walking corpses and zombies. There was no need to suppress them. As it was saying that, the toad spoke faster, even though the landhopper are not gifted with intelligence, their bodies are tough and full of power. Their lifespan is extremely long, they wander everywhere in the mortal world dully. Whether it is a cultivator or a demon devil ghost or a monster, everyone has taken fancy in the landhopper's strength. They want to dominate the barbarians for their own benefit. Hence, there was a specific magic spell that was created afterwards. It was known as hopper growing. The art of hopper growing was ghastly yet very complicated. Not only did it require training, it was also fused with Taoism magic, the condensation of primordial spirit, the refinement of recipe and forging of soul and all sorts of magic spells. In the cultivation world today, this magic art had since become a lost art but it had once prevailed in the ancient times. Whether it was a cultivator or a demon devil ghost or a monster, he would take pride in growing a few landhoppers as his loyal servants. The ordinary art of hopper growing, at most, would refine the landhoppers into slaves and servants. They could be instructed to carry out some simple heavy labor work, while the person with profound cultivation would be capable of refining the landhopper into protective beasts that could battle with the enemy on behalf of the master. However, the art of hopper growing was already at its perfection if one could refine a hundred of them. As it was saying that, Red Pot's voice suddenly grew sterner, I have never heard before that someone is capable of refining thousands of landhopper into a troop of great soldiers. Qin Zhui's eyes were widened to its limit, yet he could only reveal half of his black eyeballs desperately, so those landhopper are all grown by the big-mustached man, so they are here to seek revenge on behalf of their master. Red Pot nodded, the landhoppers that are successfully refined will become beyond loyal, they also possess an ounce of primordial spirit that is interlinked to the master. There is the saying of landhopper's revenge ever since the beginning of time. The landhopper will never let go of the enemy, who killed the master, regardless. We will never die or rest this time unless we can kill every single landhopper, otherwise, they will still be chasing after you in the remotest corners of the world. The landhopper's master was the big mustached man. The split body of the sword's resolve was only using the man's corpse to resurrect his dead soul afterwards, so he was not considered the person who grew the hoppers. On top of the goddess peak, when Leon, Chang Li and Kone Nail joined hand and killed the big mustached man, provoking thousands of landhoppers in pursuing them madly. Qin Zhui pouted his lips and gave a forced laugh, then why are we still running, we ought to turn around and fight. Kone Nail's eyes appeared slightly hesitated as well. Her own people were all severely injured, the few top demon immortals almost lost all of their combat power. She could not think of a force in the world that was capable of resisting these thousands of barbaric landhoppers. These landhoppers were at their heels and there was no way to lose them, while there was nowhere else for them to go. Rather than running until they were exhausted then caught up by the barbarians, why not risk their lives for a battle right now? Xiaowu shook her head strenuously, the father is on the south mountain of the Qinling Mountains. He is not too far away from here, as long as we can run there then perhaps there is still a chance for us to survive this. Upon saying that, she did not waste time talking nonsense. She concentrated and only cared about running quickly. Mount Hua was supposed to be in the highest point of the Qinling Mountains. Its distance was truly not that far away but the mountain path was very treacherous and rough. Even for a profound cultivator, who was running from Mount Hua to the depth of Qinling Manains, he would need to trudge through a series of the laborious path. At this time, they had already escaped the goddess peak. Someone was always falling behind during that period. It was just as mentioned by Red Pot, the landhopper completely disregarded the rest of the people, they were only engrossed in pursuing and killing Cone Nail and a few other people. When they arrived at the foothill of the goddess peak, the landhopper that were held up by Kunlun sword formation for a moment but they managed to catch up quickly. 
They were expressionless and shook the ground like thunder as before. The old demon rabbit walked in quick strides to Cone Nail's side. He bided softly, my family's grand master is entrusted to everyone here. Upon saying that, he did not wait for their answer. He laughed aloud as he suddenly stopped walking, his speech sounded like the spring thunder, break the demon body. Fresh blood was spurting out of the old demon rabbit's body. That was mixed with the sound of incantation chanting and the demonic wind that came sweeping all of a sudden. A thousand streaks of Buddha's light appeared, for Buddha's godly appearances condensed and enshrouded in the sky. The small demon rabbit Shan Duan shook his huge sleeves vigorously. He turned around and walked to his master teacher's side, his voice sounded clear and loud yet intense, Buddha's followers, guard the path. The little stutterer hope voice, the seats of honor from the five supreme monasteries, dozens of surviving Temple of Great Mercy's divine monks chanted the Buddhaghosa together that spread out from a steep spot at the foothill suddenly. Some were lying or sitting, some were standing upright or diagonally. They were either smiling silently or widened their eyes in rage. The form of Arhats gradually grew clearer while the vast and mighty Buddhist hymn surged skywards too. Soon after, there was another muffled shout of, Break the demon body. The small demon rabbit bawled and spat out a puff of raging blood, the nine arhats behind his body appeared ferociously. They bared their long teeth and sharp claws, as they hissed and roared at the landhoppers that were approaching closer and closer. The Lama Rangyong squinted his bronze bell-like huge eyes. He stretched out his hand and patted on his head with the sound of a pop. He laughed aloud, the monks have risked their lives. It is not appropriate for the Lama to stand by and watch. His fat and huge body swayed once before he scurried next to the old demon rabbit's side like a puff of red cloud. While he was laughing, he stretched out his right hand and gently pinched in between the area between his brows as if he was picking a flower. At the gentle sound of a crack, Rang Yong plucked off the lotus center pearl bone that he spent his entire life to cultivate in mindful training and refined. Rang Yong laughed in a wilder and wilder manner, his laughter was echoing sonorously and gradually enshrouded with boundless rage. After the appearance of Buddha's protective Urchan, Arhat and Rakshasa, the wrathful deities of the Tibetan Buddhism sex mindful training appeared while laughing wildly. All sorts of Buddhism supernatural powers gathered with a loud bang and finally greeted the ancient barbarians, the landhoppers. Layers upon layers of demon-slaying Buddhaghosa echoed behind their bodies. The Buddhism followers from the land of the East and Highland risked their entire lifetime's cultivation base, yet they were annihilated by the thick soil dragon, which was rolled up by the barbarians, in a flash. A layer of ghastly red glow appeared on Cone Nail's face. She inhaled a long breath, clenched her teeth and refused to turn around to take a look as she brought along the people around her to dash wildly towards the depth of Qinling Mountains. The Buddhism sect's disciples that were led by the big and small demon rabbits and Rangyong failed to withstand longer than the little supreme leader Lu Zhang. The two parties were only entangled for a short while before the shocking Buddhism sect's supernatural powers were torn into pieces by the landhopper. The Buddhism followers that were already lingering with their last breaths finally tumbled over out of their futile effort. The old demon rabbit fell limply and weakly onto the ground as he watched helplessly as bare feet with heavy footsteps stepped past the side of his body. He exerted all his strength to stretch out a hand and grabbed. He did not care if he could only manage to grab one leg. Yet, he could only catch a handful of soil. Fortunately, the landhoppers were only pursuing the three enemies, who killed the big-mustached man. They only smashed their way through the cultivators that were blocking their paths but they did not kill the people. The monks and lamas were lying on the ground in a disordered manner, yet the barbarians did not even bother to take one glance. The sound of footsteps shook vigorously again. The barbarians arrived. It was as if there was no other force in the world that was capable of stopping them from running wildly. Even if there was a boundless sea of fire, a flame waterfall of a thousand miles that separated them from the enemies, they would still dash over without any hesitation. There were not many disciples from the One Word Palace. Nineteen panted loudly as she supported First Brother Xia to follow behind Cone Nail and the rest. When the great guiding formation had taken form, as they were afraid of offending Chongli. 
The seven Rainbow Brothers from the World Sect had only dismissed their inferior while they stayed behind on the Goddess Peak and did not leave they were also following behind Cone Nail's back shabbily right now. One of the Rainbow Fat Men suddenly laughed strangely, surprisingly, one word Palace's people did not run away. They had all heard of Red Pot's words, they understood that the Landhopper were only pursuing the few demon immortals and one Leon. All these pursuit and escape were utterly unrelated to the others, but they still followed and ran. Even though he was rather severely injured, First Brother Xia still laughed in a heroic manner, one word Palace is on good terms with the one family. At the same time 19, who was supporting First Brother Xia, procured an iron whistle. A loud and sharp sound of whistle slashed through the mountain forest. After a moment, the shadows of human figures were flickering. A large troop of forces flashed past and leaped out from the mountain forest ahead. The Rainbow Brothers appeared scornful, they touched their cell phones in their pockets. The approaching people were the disciples of One Word Palace, each of them had a strong and courageous expression. Their movements were swift and agile. Even though they came in great numbers, the way they converged themselves was indescribable. They gathered from three directions and firmly protected Cone Nail and the rest. Nineteen and the sibling Bushuo and Buzwa were on very friendly terms she laughed as she stuck out her tongue. Father was feeling rather baffled when he received the invitation card, he felt that this meeting was organized rather strangely, so he brought along some people. When he arrived on Mount Hua he realized that it was organized by the two brilliant disciples of Wen Leong, he hid the disciples at the foothill for them to wait. First Brother Xia continued to speak, the Kunlun sect and the Great Mercy Temple stayed behind, how could the One Word Palace not follow suit? We would like to see if we are capable of blocking this group of barbarians for a little while longer. Following that, he looked towards Bushuo and Buzwa, all of you leave first, One Word Palace's 800 disciples are here. We must try out the tricks of the ancient barbarians no matter what. Bushuo and Buzwa would absolutely never leave when Leon even for half a footstep, they each saluted first brother Xia with their hands folded, the disciples of Wen Butsao remember one word palace's kindness forever in our hearts. First brother Xia burst out laughing, too long-winded. There is no need to sacrifice our lives when we fight the barbarians. This kindness must certainly be gifted. Following that he suddenly raised his voice and shouted, My sons, form the one word great formation. One Word Palace's disciples responded with a loud, yes. Troops upon troops of their people cruised. They completely occupied the mountain forest within layers of circulation. Countless treasured weapons danced in the air, following the masters as they laid down a great formation. They were akin to a gigantic strange python that suddenly appeared amongst and between the landhopper and the fugitives. Nineteen did not stay behind and joined First Brother Xia in resisting the enemies but followed next to Wen Leong and the rest as they continued to run away into the depth of the Qinling Mountains. The barbarians still remained the same. They still did not utter a word. The moment they met with the blockage, they suddenly spread out their troop and turned into a huge stretch of pitch-black crowd. They were in a hideous mess like grasshoppers as they blotted out the sky and covered up the earth and dashed forward. Not long after that, the Rainbow Brothers also started gathering their inferior. They were placed down the final barrier on behalf of Cone Nail, Chong Li and the rest. Second Mother and Little Chi Maojiao failed to catch up. Ji Fei and Shui Jing were left behind. In the end, even the siblings Bu Shuo and Buzwa fell head first onto the ground, they could not muster the strength to run anymore. Almost everyone dropped out but almost everyone was urging Xiaowu and Qin Zhui to run quickly with a hoarse voice before that person was exhausted. The people who continued to escape from doom were only a few people that escaped after slaughtering the big mustached man in the Golden Horns mountainside and 19. Lu Zheng, the Buddhism followers, One Word Palace, World Sect, the sharpest four gushes of forces in the cultivation world were blocking desperately. They managed to strive for some time for Cone Nail and the rest, such that they managed to run into the depth of the Qinling Mountains. The unusual red glow on Cone Nail's face was growing thicker and thicker. She turned from breathing naturally to panting loudly. The heavenly water spirit in her body could no longer be gathered together. 
It wrapped her messy life vitality as it continuously surged against her primordial spirit's seal the dead branches and winter trees that were just before her eyes were floating away in a ghastly manner. While the heavy floating clouds on the edge of the sky were surrounding by her side. Cone Nail's life vitality was dispersing gradually, she could no longer withstand any more in the end. She bawled and spat out a mouthful of blood as she spoke to her companion softly, all of you go first before her voice died away, her body suddenly felt lighter, Nineteen was already holding her gently. Her footsteps were light and swift as she followed behind Xiao Wu firmly. Red Pot croaked in a slight surprise manner, this little girl's cultivation base is quite remarkable. Nineteen laughed gracefully, the senior has overpraised. At this moment, Chang Li suddenly opened her eyes, the color of her face was so feeble it made one sad in his heart. Her eyes were dimmed but that dash of charming in the depth of her gaze could never be wiped away regardless. She looked to the left and right in a slightly peculiar manner, the big mustached man is dead. So where are we running towards now? Upon saying that, she inhaled a few breaths strenuously, she was trying to smoothen her breathing pattern with great effort. Her delicate and beautiful face was still bothered by agonizing pain. The corners of her mouth had already pouted impatiently, this keeps coming and will never stop, we are running for nothing. Everyone cheered out in unison, Red Pot gave her a summary of the events that took place after she fainted joyously. Chong Li's expression did not show that she was surprised. She nodded and started sizing 19 up and down. Cone Nail was attempting to gather her life vitality with great effort. Her gaze was exactly the same as Chong Li, she was looking at 19 too. Chong Li's gaze gradually turned from curious to astonished. Her expression turned into regret, she shook her head weakly and commented, You should have accepted one word Palace's marriage proposal in the beginning. What a fine girl we have here. Qin Zhui staggered, almost tossing Wen Leong away. Kone Nail nodded in a beyond determined manner. She seemed to understand this baffling comment of Chong Li. On the other hand, Chong Li diverted the topic. If we still fail to escape in the end, then you shall bring along Wen Leong and run away by yourselves. Nineteen's expression remained the same, she chuckled, amongst our group, the person with the deepest cultivation base is Xiao Wu. If there is an end, then it will be her who brings along Wen Leong as they escape. As she was saying that, she peered at Qin Zhui with a faint smile, I shall stay behind with Qin Zhui at that time and cover the rear. The heaven and earth shattering like sound of footsteps behind them started humming loudly once again. The landhopper had already dashed past the final line of defense and gradually caught up to them. Xiao Wu bit her lips, she utterly refused to turn around and take a glance. She brought along everyone as they shuttled back and forth in the depth of Qinling Mountains. Cone Nail seemed to have suddenly recalled something. She stretched out her hand strenuously and pointed to Chang Li and spoke to Nineteen, I have a favor to request from you. If we truly fail to run away when we run to the end, if I were to be left behind, then you must leave behind the demon cat as well. Chang Li burst out laughing, you are too narrow-minded. As she was speaking, under the leadership of Xiao Wu, the crowd circled past a mountain ridge followed by emptiness before their eyes. A stretch of enormous yet empty and spacious valley that seemed to have descended from the heaven appeared before the crowd's eyes without a sign. Huge mountains surrounded the valley. The mountain valley was unusually flat, one after another gigantic black-colored scripts were written from the area underneath their feet all the way into the depth of the huge mountain. One after another bronze cauldrons that were about the size of houses were placed randomly mixed up in the area surrounding the scripts and shrouded with cold and ghastly gloominess. Xiao Wu finally cheered, we have arrived. Soon after, she placed the demon that she had been lifting onto Nineteen's back while her body swayed. The weeping staff in her hand continuously knocked onto the ground. The muffled knocking sounds were heard, gradually from soft to loud and finally seemed to turn into the thundering enormous shaking that echoed in layers within the boundless and empty mountain valley. The landhopper's footsteps approached closer and closer. The dust and soil that were raised from their footsteps had already floated with the cold wind and pinned onto the top of the crowd's heads heavily. Chapter, 268 Xiao Wu exerted her full force in urging her life vitality. She cruised around in the spacious and enormous mountain valley. 
the weeping staff in her hand knocked onto the ground without a moment's pause. The open space in the mountain did not react like how when she usually cast her magic, where some corpses or ghosts would scurry out of the ground. Other than the empty echoes that were produced from the repeated knocking, there was no other movement on the ground. Qin Zhui listened to the thundering footsteps that were approaching closer and closer. The expression on his face grew more and more anxious. Before his eyes, Xiao Wu was already so swift he could not see her shadow, yet there was still not an unusual sign that was seen on Hanba's mountain valley. Fifth brother Hanba seemed to have no intention of appearing at all. The expression of uncertainty also slowly arose in Nineteen's eyes. She stretched out her delicate hand quietly and held Qin Zhui's hand. Qin Zhui could only feel as a stretch of warm gentleness touched on his hand. His ugly face was beaming with joy, he was about to puff up his chest and speak a few heroic words when the surroundings turned quiet all of a sudden. The sound of Landhopper's footsteps was still roaring and thundering as before. The sudden silence did not mean that there was no sound but there was a gush of gloominess that suddenly befell without a sign. That turned every other sensation into gloomy numbness all at once. At that moment, Nineteen and Qin Zhui shivered in unison. It was baffling cold. Based on their cultivation base, they would not feel any difference even if they were to suddenly fall from the equator onto the Jiangandiru glacier, yet the cold that they felt was unrelated to temperature. Which one would be colder? A dead man's finger or a thousand-year-old glacier? The entire mountain valley was suddenly spreading with the gloomy cold that was unseen and untouchable, yet it made one's heart and soul felt like dying. Xiao Wu had since stopped jumping about. Her lethargic gaze was shimmering with the excitement and eagerness to try. There was also the fear of causing a big trouble in her eyes. She leaped back to the crowd as she pulled them along and ran quickly into the depth of the mountain valley. Then, they stopped moving. Her two hands were fiddling through her backpack, looking for something. In addition to her exerting her full force to urge life vitality into launching some peculiar magic spell earlier and the continuous running, Xiao Wu had almost exhausted all her strength. Her little face was a stretch of ghastly pale, her breathing sounded apparently heavier. She stood for a moment before she forthrightly sat onto the ground. Nineteen gathered her life vitality in order to protect her own primordial spirit from the yin energy. She inhaled a deep breath then asked Xiao Wu, are you going to summon the zombies to deal with the barbaric landhoppers? It was only then Qin Zhui was suddenly enlightened. He scolded himself in his heart for being confused. In the corpse-forming land, of course, the reinforcements Xiao Wu found were the zombies. Qinling Mountain was also known as the South Mountain. It had been recognized as the hometown of the heaven's deity and land's deity since the ancient times. It was also where the dragon vein of the world was at. It was where the so-called dragon veins of Junshan Island were formed. Generally, in most spiritual mountains and rolling hills, there would always be a spot that was known as the Yin's Mountain Eye, while the other spot was known as the Yang's Mountain Eye. The prior one would condense the malevolent energy in the Yin part of the mountain, while the latter would gather the gale fire of the mountain rock. This stretch of mountain valley was situated right on Yin's mountain eye of the Qinling Mountain's dragon vein. The dragon vein separated the Yin and Yang's mountain eyes. Amongst them, the Yin's eye was situated below while the Yang's eye was above. There was only one such arrangement where the tail of the heaven's dragon was suppressing the Yin energy, while the horn of the heaven's dragon was lifting Yang energy here in the entire world. The Grand Master Mi Su personally picked this mountain that gathered the utmost yin energy in the world and used it as the land to refine corpse figurines. After fifth brother Hanba was severely injured, he also came to this spot to recuperate. This was also the birthplace of darling Xiaowu. Nineteen and Qin Zhui did not understand this art of geomancy feng shui but the telegnosis ability in their bodies was very sensitive in detecting the changes in yin and yang energy. Especially after Xiao Wu used the weeping staff to wave about for a long while, the gloomy and deathly energy started enshrouding rhythmically from the mountain's yin eye. It was apparent that something incisive was about to bore out of there. Xiao Wu was engrossed in looking for something. She did not even raise her head as she answered, It is not the zombies but the corpse figurines, the thirty thousand heaven-killing corpse figurines that were formed under the yin's eye of the dragon vein in two thousand years. 
Grandmaster Misu was helping the Han Dynasty's noblemen to run some errands back then. He was tasked to forge figurines that would help to guard the noblemen's tombs. This place was the biggest achievement in his entire lifetime. He spent 40 years and finally planted 30,000 corpse figurines in this yin's eye of the dragon vein. The corpse figurines were forged from living humans. They were mostly warriors and brave soldiers in life. They were people who were courageous and ruthless. When they died, they suffered from all sorts of agony that prevented their malevolent energy from spreading away. In the end, they were nourished by the yin's coldness of the heaven and earth for two thousand years. Other than fifth brother Hanba and Xiaowu, there was no one else in the world that knew how terrifying these corpse figurines were. Qin Zhui sniggered softly, I did not expect that fifth brother Hanba possessed such a great force. Before he could finish his sentence, Chang Li laughed and interrupted him, all of your skulls are made of wood. These corpse figurine spiritual intelligence is not activated yet. They only know how to kill. Let alone Hanba, even the Yamaraja is incapable of controlling them. Kone Nail laughed and continued, based on my judgment, Hanba was only borrowing the figurine's corpse energy to cultivate and recuperate. The corpse figurines absorbed the malevolent energy, yet they were sealed and would not budge at all, while Misu and Hanba could extract their yin's primordial energy to cultivate the art of corpse at any time. Orange, candies, jewelry, digital watch Xiaowu fiddled in the backpack that she carried along with her for a long while. She finally procured black-colored scale-like items from the base of the bag. It was only then she exhaled a long breath. She looked towards the others, her little face was in all seriousness, the two sisters are right. Kone Nail and Chan Li were at a loss of whether to cry or laugh as they gazed into one another. They did not know since when did they just become Xiaowu's sisters. At this rate, the next time they met fifth brother Hanba, should they be calling him the great uncle? Xiaowu continued, as compared to ordinary zombies, the power of the corpse figurines exceeded by a thousand times. However, ultimately, they are still deadly creatures with no intelligence and are bloodthirsty. They will kill the moment they see a living human, there is no one that is capable of controlling them at all. Qin Zhui could not help but mutter to himself softly, then, what is the point of growing them? Nineteen gave a forced laugh as she emphasized to him once again, for cultivation. Fifth brother Hanba depended on these corpse figurines to cultivate. Darling Xiaowu straightforwardly ignored Qin Zhui, she spoke faster now, Grand Master Mi Su was afraid that they would escape and cause harm in the mortal world back then. So, he applied a seal and also invited Grand Master Lu Luo to help him to use the art of witchcraft to wipe away the corpse's muscles. No one other than Xiao Wu understood what the corpse's muscles were. Xiao Wu also did not bother to explain but continued on her own accord, without the corpse's muscles, even if these corpse figurines were to be awakened, they would never wander everywhere, they would remain on the same spot unmoved. Only if the living humans were to enter, then they will kill the living humans. Everyone's eyes brightened. They had already understood Xiao Wu's intention. The corpse figurines would never leave this place but any trespassers in the Yin's mountain eye of the Qinling mountains would be torn apart by the corpses. The landhoppers advanced forward with an indomitable will. As long as the three enemies who killed the big-mustached man were still hiding in the mountain valley, they would still dash towards them continuously. This was a pair of innate opposing sides. They could only judge if the landhoppers were more savage or the corpse figurines were crueler. As darling Xiaowu noticed that the crowd had understood her intention, she nodded and laughed, after the corpse figurines are done cleaning up the landhoppers, they will stop moving. As for how can they be placed back into their original spot, the father will think of a way hereafter. Ever since fifth brother Hanba broke an arm and was severely injured in the Miao Stockade village, he returned to this place and recuperated. However, when he was cultivating his power to heal his injuries, he would need to meditate in his corpse form, he was utterly unaware of the situation that took place on the outside. Qin Zhui was joyous initially, yet when he suddenly remembered that he was a living human as well and that the corpse figurines were about to be awakened soon. He was afraid that the corpse figurines would kill them first before they dealt with the landhoppers. His mouth was agape as he was about to say something. Nineteen shook her head and gave a forced laugh helplessly, 
of course Darling has a way to stop the corpse figurines from bothering us. Xiao Wu opened up her palm. She revealed the black-colored scales that she procured from her backpack earlier, all of you shall use this to cover up the soles of your feet, the pulse points on your wrists and your belly buttons. The corpse figurines will not identify all of you as living humans then. Red Pot croaked. It started pondering on the locations of the pulse points on its wrists and its belly button. Xiao Wu also did not waste time talking nonsense anymore. Within Cone Nail and Chang Li's heartless chuckle, she used the peculiar scales to help everyone including the golden monkey to seal the soles of their feet, the pulse points on their wrists and their belly buttons. When she was done bustling about, she held red pot and the fainted, you've got me, in her arms. The striations on the black-colored scales appeared ordinary. There were no ancient scripts on it and it appeared unappealing. Other than feeling slightly cold for a moment after it was pasted onto the body, there was no other special sensation. Qin Zhui had a kind heart, he watched as darling Xiao Wu was bustling about helping the crowd to stick the scales, he asked affectionately, how about you then? Xiao Wu exhaled a long breath. She peeled an orange strenuously, I am the embodiment of primordial yang but I was born out of the figurine pit. The corpse figurines will never hurt me, red pot and you've got me, are very safe in my arms as she was saying that, darling frowned a little. Then, she cracked into a smile and spoke, the corpse figurines are already awake. We will only have to wait until the landhoppers arrive, they will immediately surge forward to kill the moment they pick up the scent of yang energy. As she was saying that, Xiao Wu remembered something else, when the corpse figurines are killing, the black scale skin will be aroused by the corpse energy and seal all of your yang's living meridians. By then, all of you will not be able to move. However, after the fierce battle, the effect will be diminished, there is nothing to be worried of. Nineteen frowned a little in a manner that was difficult to be detected. What is this scale? How is it capable of possessing such great magic power? Qin Zhui did not pay attention to Nineteen but his face was filled with defiance. He possessed the ultimate wood element foundation establishment, he was considered unbelievably strong and powerful. He truly could not believe that he could just depend on these few pieces of black scales without any magic power to seal himself. It is not the magic power but it is the power of Yin's corpse. We call it the morning power. Xiao Wu stuffed a piece of orange into her mouth. She chewed the orange and savored the taste. There was a delight in the misfortunes of others revealed on the corners of her eyes and charming brows that could not be concealed, this is not a scale as well but it is a piece of skin in the form of a scale. It is the demonic primordial energy that was grown in the father's cradle over a thousand years ago when it turned from a witless zombie into fifth brother Hanba. This was the scaled skin that fell off from his body. A chain of goosebumps erupted on the foreheads of both Chongli and Kone Nail in an apparent manner. Xiao Wu complimented as if she had not given full expression to her views, the father turned from a corpse king into the fifth brother Hanba. Even though his spiritual intelligence was awakened, his actual power deteriorated by a little. In order to struggle free from these few pieces of black scale skin, your strength must be stronger than the corpse king back then. Qin Zhui gave out a, he, he seized the opportunity when he could still move to hastily inch his body closer to nineteen. Kone Nail and Chang Li leaned side by side on a giant cauldron side. They laughed as they asked Xiao Wu, there are a total of 30,000 corpse figurines here. How many corpse figurines did you summon? Xiao Wu calculated, about 5,000. They should be slightly more than the landhoppers but the amount is not too far apart from one another. Qin Zhui widened his eyes suddenly upon hearing that, how can you ensure our safety in case the corpse figurines are no match for the landhoppers? Xiao Wu sneered, if our number exceeds the other party too much then how can we reveal the corpse figurines trick? The corpse figurines are nourished and grown for two thousand years. Facing the enemies on the yin's eye of the dragon vein, if they still fail to triumph over the other party when they are fighting one on one, then our Morn family's disciples ought to straightforwardly cut our throats and kill ourselves. Qin Zhui was stunned for a moment. He felt that her explanation was unreliable but he was too shy to speak anymore. He only inhaled a cold breath as he shook his head, this is not right, this is not right. If the corpse figurines were to fail to stop the landhoppers and all of us cannot budge at all, then it will be very troublesome. 
There was no other expression on Nineteen's face. She closed her mouth and did not speak. On the other hand, Kon Nail and Chang Li burst out laughing. Their charming eyes were peering at Xiao Wu strenuously, Darling was feeling confused from the two persons' laughter. Her little face blushed in the end. She laughed shyly, I am out of strength, I can only awaken five thousand corpse figurines at most. Red Pot was a little reluctant to feel lonely. It struggled for a few attempts in Xiao Wu's chest pocket and revealed its toad head out of Xiao Wu's collar. It looked far to the outside of the mountain valley. A moment later, it burst out laughing suddenly, here they are. That gang of barbarians is here. The sound of footsteps startled the heaven and moved the earth, the gigantic trees in the depth of Qinling Mountains were trembling while the hills were shaking. There was only a stretch of a mountain valley that seemed to be completely unaffected by the outside force. It did not tremble for even just a little. Thousands of landhoppers finally arrived at the place where Changli and the rest were hiding. Even when faced with the Kunlun sword formation with forceful power, the monks put as a magic art with majestic mannerism. One word palaces great formation with murderous intent and the world's sex slaughter that was ghastly and sinister, the landhoppers had never once stopped their footsteps. Yet, when they dashed to the edge of the mountain valley, they suddenly stopped moving. Under every gaze that appeared dull and slow, a sense of seemingly instinctive vigilance was shimmering in their eyes. This mountain valley was not the dragon's pool or the tiger's den but it was the dead land that was tainted and drenched in Ian malevolence since the ancient times. The landhoppers stood on the edge of the mountain valley in a disordered manner. The muscles on their faces twitched occasionally. They turned their heads slowly in an attempt to look around the surroundings in the Yin's mountain eye of the Qinling Mountains, the scene remained deadly still as before. There was not a sound that could be heard. There was only the ghastly cold that enshrouded the air that had already turned heavy since some time ago. Qin Zhui and the rest were at the depth of the mountain valley. They could only see with great effort with their eyesight that a large batch of human figures appeared on the edge of their line of sight. The thundering sound of footsteps that had already become a habit suddenly stopped. Qin Zhui could only feel as his chest suddenly felt suffocated. He could not help but hold his breath. It only took a few seconds and the sound of footsteps echoed aloud again. The enemy's temptation finally suppressed their instinct to avoid danger. Thousands of landhoppers did not even shout once. They heavily rammed their entire strong and vigorous mannerism into the depth of the ground. Just as the landhoppers dashed in, countless gigantic bronze cauldrons suddenly shook in the mountain valley. A streak of pale blue-colored raging flame shot out of every cauldron without a sign, akin to countless greedy snakes that were stretching their necks with great effort as if they were all trying to get a taste of that blue sky. The uncountable flames did not burn with the sound of muffled bangs. The flames did not burn with the explosive sound of crackling but it was the sound of evil laugh that made one wish to cover his ears, cover his throat and cover his chest. When the sound of laughter echoed, the ground in the mountain valley suddenly cracked open. A stretch of pitch black corpse figurines, which were dressed in heavy armors and possessed the same dull gaze as the landhoppers, suddenly appeared with a loud bang. Even though they were mentally prepared, when thousands of corpse figurines suddenly squeezed into the vision before his eyes, Qin Zhui still felt pain in his eyes. In comparison to the layered pupils in the landhoppers' eyes, there was utterly no pupil in the corpse figurines' eyes at all. There were only pitch black eye sockets. They did not have eyes, yet they had a gaze. The yin's flames were burning ferociously in the giant cauldrons. Every laughter that came from the flames appeared beyond abrupt. The first laughter sounded sharp and loud, the second laughter sounded low and hoarse, the third laughter turned pleasant and crisp, the fourth laughter turned into unpleasant and terrifying again. The moment they witnessed the appearance of the corpse figurines, the landhopper's footsteps grew even more courageous and heavier. The murderous intent that arose with rhythm annihilated Qin Zhui's heroic bearing that was recently ignited into nothingness. Perhaps the enemies were unexpectedly strong, the corpse figurines did not react the way as mentioned by Xiao Wu. They did not dash forward to kill the moment they saw the living humans but they waited until the landhoppers scattered and gradually dashed forward. The corpse figurines that were standing at the front line, whose bodies were apparently stronger and taller and sturdier than the other companions. 
stretched out their hands slowly and reached towards their waists and made the gesture of pulling out a knife yet the corpse figurines were only dressed in heavy armors, there was utterly nothing on their waists. The leader corpse figurine's movements were strong and focused as if it was truly pulling out its favorite treasured knife that had won hundreds of battles. Following its movement, a gush of crunching and hissing sound that made one wish that he could grind his teeth flat echoed in the air surprisingly. It was until the leader raised that invisible battle knife, the thousands of corpse figurines finally moved. The landhopper's formation was akin to a stretch of scattered sand, while the corpse figurine's formation was straight and tidy. The landhoppers displayed different movements. Some were dashing while some were jumping. On the other hand, the corpse figurines' movements were unified. They bent over their bodies, their right hands were fisted and blocked before their foreheads, while their left hands were crossed behind their backs and pressed tightly to the back of their waists. The sound of footsteps that shook the heaven and moved the earth was the landhopper's yell, the sound of footsteps were the landhopper's war cry. While the corpse figurine's evil laughter that was capable of tearing the Yamaraja's palace into pieces and burn the netherworld was the corpse figurine's battle drum. These two troops would never belong to the human path. Finally, in the mountain valley that was located deep in the Qinling Mountains, the army troops that were absolutely not allowed to appear in the world collided together with a loud bang. The moment the power of savageness that originated from the ancient times and the mourning power that was drenched and tainted by the Yin's corpses for two thousand years collided into one another. The thundering laughter suddenly turned into violent lamentations. The laughter earlier was completely voided of joy, while the violent lamentation was filled with ghostly surprise. The loud bang only gave Qin Zhui a sensation. Shattered. The shattered bones, blood and flesh turned into an exploding hot spring in a flash. The cold mountain peak was still rippling with a slight sense of warmth that washed over the sky into the color of blood red all at once. What was even more startling to Qin Zhui was the blood of the barbarians and the corpse figurines were surprisingly all red, reddest to the greatest extent. It became very pure, without flaws. The corpse figurines' charging postures appeared peculiar and amusing. Yet, only the barbarians who were colliding with them would know that underneath the movement, a terrifying force was rippling, akin to broken speak and ruined sword. Even though they were damaged, they still remained sharp as ever. There was even the addition of savage laceration. In the final collision, the corpse figurines charged through the barbarians that were taller or stronger. The barbarians raised their heads and spat out mouthfuls of thick blood mist. They could only manage to look far towards the enemies that were watching the battle with their dull and layered pupils before crashing onto the ground with a loud bang the corpses rolled down and broke into pieces. The corpse figurines on the front line were akin to sharp scythes that cut through rows upon rows of barbaric landhoppers in the blink of an eye. Almost every barbarian that collided face first into the corpse figurines were crushed into the mud. While the landhoppers, who leaped, crawled or rolled as they dashed into the corpse figurines' battle, revealed their battle instinct that originated from the ancient times generously. Every corpse figurine that was entangled by the landhopper from his side was akin to a prey that was wrapped by the spider web. In the midst of a desperate struggle, the corpse figurine's fingers were snapped off one by one, followed by its arms, its hips, its spine until its neck. They did not understand pain, they were cold-blooded and merciless, they were all witless yet persistent. The corpse figurines were as sharp as fire and knife, while the landhoppers were as agile as ape and vine. There was not a complete corpse. In only a few short minutes, fresh blood had already turned the ground into a hideous mess of mud. The dark red-colored mud somersaulted in an ugly manner and splattered everywhere in the midst of wild running and jumping footsteps. There was no cross-strike of the soldiers' weapons, there was no yelling to boost the battle morale, there was no sound of heavy panting. Every slaughter was penetrating with primitive violence and ruthlessness. It was so quiet there was not a sense of lively sound was heard, other than the joyous lamentations. Changli had thousand years worth of cultivation base. She had witnessed countless tragedies in the mortal world, the fierce battle that involved thousands of people. The deluge and fire that massacred the inhabitants and burned the city her demon's heart had since become unaffected by the life and death in the mortal world but the tragic battle before her eyes still managed to cause her to raise her brows in hatred. 
these two wild soldiers that should not belong in the mortal world were feeling joyous from killing the enemies or be killed by the enemies. Within their dull gaze, the joy that could not be suppressed had already rippled. Not only the corpse figurines felt excited about the slaughter, the barbaric landhopper's fierce temperament was also triggered by the fresh blood and death. They were no longer attempting to dash past the corpse figurines' blockage to kill the enemies but they were entangled and battling the corpse figurines ferociously. They utterly did not even take a glance towards Chang Li and the rest. Qin Zhui was feeling excited as he waited for the violent battle between the two armies but he could not watch any more right now. Ever since the corpse figurines started fighting together with the landhoppers, as mentioned by Fifth Brother Hanba translator's note, should be Xiaowu. A gloomy and cold tremendous force was suddenly released from the five pieces of black scale skin, making him unable to move even for a little. The fierce battle continued. The tangled warfare that involved almost a hundred thousand people made everyone's breath trembled. Everyone including the darling refused to watch the battle anymore. Only Red Pot that was enjoying the scene. Occasionally, it would comment, the ability to grow the corpse figurines to this extent, hee hee, I would really like to meet the imitator of all evil from the beginning. However the landhoppers were still the most incisive barbarians since the ancient times. After a long battle, I am afraid that the corpse figurine's chance of success is not too high. The fierce battle had already continued for a while. The two parties had already lost almost half of their manpower but the barbarians seemed to have already gradually gained the upper hand. The strength of the entire body of Changli and the rest were sealed by the black scales. Other than Darling and Red Pot, no one could open his mouth and speak. Darling shook her head, that is not true, this is the Yin's mountain eye. Even though the barbarians are slightly more incisive than the corpse figurines, they will still lose in the end. As Darling was speaking, the situation in the battlefield suddenly changed. The corpse figurines that were already at a disadvantage and had already shrunk its formation into defensive could no longer withstand the barbarian storm-like surging. Under the repeated urgings, they finally scattered about with a loud bang. The corpse figurines were not fighting the enemies separately but they were running everywhere in a disorderly manner. The landhopper's initially dull and layered pupils had since been aroused by the demonic red and were heightened by the stench of blood. They immediately started killing the enemies madly. The corpse figurines' faces were always expressionless. After their formation was scattered, they were running everywhere in the open space, their postures were rigid yet mechanical. The corpse figurines formed into groups of threes and fours, they were no longer behaving as before, they were no longer using their own corpse power to crash and cut the enemies into pieces. But they were swinging their arms and legs as they grabbed onto the landhoppers that were left behind and raised them up. It was true that the corpse figurines managed to capture some barbaric landhoppers, but even more corpse figurines that were torn into pieces by the large troop of enemies. Qin Zhui widened his eyes in bewilderment. He did not understand why were the corpse figurines not behaving themselves and fight but they played the trick that only a young child would play when the child was making a joke. Xiaowu's slightly anxious expression finally relaxed at this moment every single landhopper that was captured by the corpse figurines was tossed into the burning giant cauldron by the corpse figurines. Following that one after another living body of flesh and blood was tossed into the giant cauldron. The yin's fire that was burning with loud lamentations suddenly gave out a joyous, comfortable moan and whisper. Chapter, 269 the barbaric landhoppers only cared about pursuing and killing Chang Li and the others. Even in the face of a blockade, they only struck and destroyed the other party to clear their pathway. That was why Lu Zheng, the demon rabbits, the Lama, First Brother Xia, the Rainbow Brothers and the rest were not severely injured. However, after meeting the 5,000 corpse figurines, their bloodthirsty and combative natural instinct were finally triggered. They seemed to have forgotten about their initial purpose. They fought the corpse figurines wildly. After a bloody and aggressive fierce battle, their ancient savage lineage was displayed very vividly. The landhoppers finally obtained the upper hand. At this moment, Qin Zhui was suddenly enlightened. In the face of the old demon rabbit and the rest, it was not that the landhopper refused to kill. It was their arrogance, dull arrogance. The corpse figurines were scattered and defeated. Qin Zhui's gaze was filled with anxiety and curiosity. 
He did not understand why did the corpse figurines suddenly stopped fighting and changed their profession to become undertakers. After the corpse figurines formation was scattered, it only took less than a few minutes before hundreds of them were killed by the other party. Yet, they only managed to toss about over 30 landhoppers into the fire cauldrons. No matter how one calculated, they were at the lower hand. Nineteen was quick-witted, the ugly youth Qin Zhui was completely incomparable to her. Yet, her heart was still suspended high. She started shifting her life vitality, in an attempt to loosen the black scale skin seal. The situation on the battlefield now was already clear. The corpse figurines had no desire to continue fighting, one after another, they were defeated by the landhoppers. Their bodies convulsed for a few times then they could no longer stand up anymore. Even so, Nineteen was obviously aware that the corpse figurine's peculiar behavior certainly contained a deep meaning. However, the enemies before their eyes were not some elite troop or strong contingent, they were the barbaric landhoppers that should have never existed in the mortal world, the barbarians who once provoked the divine punishment. Before the face of the landhoppers, who had the upper hand, how could the corpse figurines possibly depend on one or two magic spells to turn around the inferiority? If it were truly such a simple matter, the barbarians would never have made their way into the depths of the Qinling Mountains. More and more corpse figurines were killed by the landhoppers, it was afraid that it would not take long before the corpse figurines would be annihilated. The landhoppers' gaze had already turned from the bloody joy to their usual dull and insipid. The speed of the corpse figurines being killed was growing faster and faster. Even the red pot could not sit still by now, it raised its head and looked toward Xiao's lower jaw that still retained a little baby fat, what are the corpse figurines trying to do actually? This is not going well if this continues. Xiaowu's expression was unpleasant, her voice sounded a little weak as if she was telling about a sad event, there is a total of 777 mourning cauldrons here. That echoed to the 777 miseries that made people suffer more than death in the mortal world. That is why the amount of corpse figurines that I have summoned is in the multiple numbers of three sevens. Grinding its lips anxiously, Red Pot watched helplessly as the number of corpse figurines grew lesser and lesser. It did not have the heart to listen to Xiaowu's calculation of the many terrifying miseries in the mortal world, Little Grand Aunt, will you please stop quoting the ancient works? Please directly tell me what is going on. If the corpse figurines are not dependable, your grand old woman please remove their scales, then we shall continue running for our lives. From the crowd of almost 5,000, in the beginning, there were only slightly more than 1,000 corpse figurines that were left now. There were more than 2,000 people on the landhopper's side. The combat power that was only a little different initially became twice the amount of their number. In addition, the corpse figurines were still bustling about in groups to capture the barbarians. They had no desire to continue fighting. Xiaowu's gaze turned dimmer and dimmer, she did not acknowledge Red Pot's pestering. The real combat power of the corpse figurines will only be revealed in the end when it echoes to the number of seven, seven, seven of these morning cauldrons. However, the cauldrons must be worshipped with living humans. So, the corpse figurines are capturing living humans to worship the cauldrons now. By the time there are only seven, seven, seven corpse figurines that are left, the as she was saying that, darling's expression suddenly turned cold. She enunciated her words one by one as she squeezed out four words from in between her fine teeth gaps, heaven. Cries. Birth. Wails. Red Pot widened its mouth in slight bewilderment. A moment later, it asked in probing, is that true? It did not wait for Darling to answer but shook its huge head first, the young child is talking nonsense. If it is true as you said, then why is there a necessity for you to summon 5,000 corpse figurines? You will only need 2,000 at most, 777 shall await the fight, while the rest capture the living humans. Xiaowu's eyes suddenly reddened, you do not understand the Morning family's magic method. The Morning cauldrons actually occupy 777 evil caves in the yin's eyes of the dragon vein. The evil spirit energy in the evil caves cannot be revealed to the heaven, otherwise, it will draw in a great disaster in an unknown area in the mortal world. Every time after the worshipping of cauldrons with living humans, there will be a moment ere the evil spirit energy from the evil caves will enter the morning cauldrons and see the light of the day once again. 
Red Pot was completely confused, it asked in astonishment, what do you mean? Basically, these 777 corpse figurines tremendous boost in morning power was exchanged with the misery and suffering of the people and a great massacre somewhere in the mortal world. I have awakened 5000 corpse figurines first because I am trying to avoid the necessity to use the step of worshipping the cauldrons with living humans. As she was saying that, Xiao Wu stretched out her hand and rubbed her eyes. Red Pot had finally understood entirely. Not only did it not sigh in frustration like the darling, it laughed, little girl is too soft-hearted, for the benefit of your living close relatives, a great catastrophe is not much. Xiao Wu finally shed her tears. She shook her head and sobbed, you still do not understand. In order to make sure that Chongli, Kone Nail and Wen Leon live, I will still do it even if I have to worship the morning cauldrons for a thousand times. But once it is done, my ability to not to cry or feel sad, it is completely two different matters as she was saying that, darling procured red pot out of her chest pocket. She shook it strenuously and finally bawled out aloud, it is all your fault, Toad. Even though Xiaowu was very young, she had picked up Chang Li's habit of being unreasonable. Red Pot was swaying in Xiaowu's hand as it peered towards the morning cauldrons nearby that appeared nearer to it for a moment and appeared further away from it for a moment. It widened its mouth in fear and strained its full power to struggle, you 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 be careful. The act of worshipping the cauldrons with living humans is capable of drawing in great disasters in the mortal world. If you were to accidentally worship me, the great evil from the primitive ages to the cauldron, the heaven will be collapsing. Darling had a child's heart after all. Upon hearing Red Pot's terrified squall, she was stunned for a moment but she could not refrain herself from sniggering. While it was at that moment, the violent lamentations that were burning out of the yin's cauldrons suddenly halted. Qin Zhui, 19 and the rest felt as their bodies sank, the gloomy corpse energy that had been wrapped around them all along suddenly turned heavy. The sensation felt as if they were swimming peacefully in the clear water of the autumn lake and the lake water suddenly froze into rigid ice all at once. Under the sudden pressure, the landhoppers that were attempting to kill the corpse figurines turned to stagnate with all their might in a flash in unison. There were a total of 777 corpse figurines that were still, alive, now. The sound of lamentations was heard again. Yet, the bitter wails this time was no longer the unusual sound that was burning out from the yin's flames, it was genuinely radiated from the landhopper's mouths that had never made a sound all along since they emerged from the wasteland. Red Pot was suddenly shocked, it could no longer care about struggling anymore, it held on tightly to the darling's fingers as it stared in bewilderment. The barbaric landhoppers that were about to gain a complete victory suddenly cried bitterly and soundlessly, it muttered to itself, why are they crying? Even though Xiaowu was still young, she was still a woman. She had since ferociously directed the blame of all her faults in provoking the corpse figurines and the worshipping of Yin's cauldrons onto the barbaric landhoppers. She sneered savagely, the number of seven miseries has been completed, the netherworld is revealed in their hearts. Of course, they are the ones that are crying. Not only was Red Pot puzzled, even the landhoppers did not understand. Why were they suddenly wailing bitterly until they had a runny nose out of nowhere? Yet, whether it was their own bitter wails or the yin's energy that suddenly turned heavy, it could not wipe away their instinct to kill the formidable enemies. It was only after that moment of confusion, they could not care about the bitter wails that surged out of their throats or the tears that came spurting out of their eyes. They concentrated their entire effort on the corpse figurines. There were only a few hundred of those mourning creatures, yet there were still over two thousand barbarians. In the battlefield, there were two barbarians that firmly pinned down a corpse figurine, before they broke into bitter sobs, they had already snapped the other party's legs. After they were distracted for a moment, they started exerting their strength and entangled the crippled corpse figurine's body on the left and right. They could almost already hear the moan-like loud noise that came from the corpse figurine's spine, they seemed to enjoy the wonderful feeling that came from snapping the cold and rigid corpse figurine. The loud explosive sound of a pop arrived in accordance. The two landhoppers simultaneously felt as the weight of their arms was lightened, yet what made them frown in puzzlement was that the body that was snapped within this loud explosive sound, were their own arms. It was obvious that the corpse figurine's legs were already broken, yet it suddenly leaped up in a manner that did not make sense. 
Its hand was rippling with irresistible mighty and tremendous force, the force of it being slaughtered earlier was suddenly reversed. In less than a moment, the two landhopper turned from fierce jackals and wolves into the quails with its wings snapped off. When the corpse figurine leaped up, its hand each grabbed onto the two enemies' shoulders. With a shake, the two landhoppers were akin to two blood-filled gourds, they were tossed towards a yin's cauldron nearby the landhoppers did not possess spiritual intelligence. Even when the scorching yin's flames were coiling around them, they still did not understand what was happening. Every corpse figurine that was still alive started moving about. Following the echo of the three sevens numbers, they fused into one in this stretch of yin's eye on the dragon vein, the evil cave and the morning cauldrons. Their movements were swift as lightning, they shuttled through the large group of barbarians as they pleased. One after another landhopper's arms and legs were broken by them cruelly as they tossed the barbarians into the yin's cauldrons mercilessly. Darling's voice was dry and hoarse, it was difficult to tell if she was muttering to herself or explaining to the others. Perhaps she was only talking at her convenience, in order to suit the stress in her heart, the corpse figurines in the number of three sevens. The moment they launch an attack, they will certainly toss the living human into the morning cauldron. Even the Grand Master Misu was confused as to whether they were doing this in order to protect the Yin's mountain eye or because they were worshipping in an attempt to cause disaster to the mortal world. The fresh blood still remained bright red and was dripping in a manner akin to splashing out of the heaven. Yet, within the bitter wail, the battle did not continue anymore. It was the slaughter that was completely unequal. It took less than the time to burn a joss stick from beginning to the end. The remaining 2,000 landhoppers were tossed by the corpse figurines into the morning cauldrons. 4,000 barbarians versus 5,000 corpse figurines. From the beginning of the war, the corpse figurines were defeated and dispersed until they started using living humans to worship the morning cauldrons. Everything only took half a day's time, yet after the number of three sevens was gathered, less than 800 corpse figurines slaughtered 2,000 barbarians. It only took slightly more than 10 minutes. The sound of wailing from the yin's flames did not stop for a long while. After the last landhopper was tossed into the morning cauldrons, they were as described by Darling earlier. Every one of the corpse figurines was akin to being cast by the art of body immobilization by someone. Their bodies trembled for a few times then they stood rigidly on the ground ever since and never moved. Red Pot spat out a mouthful of oppressed breath as it sniggered, the words it spoke sounded a little baffling, this is really rather interesting. Following that, it looked towards Chang Li and the rest who still could not move at all, it asked Xiao Wu in puzzlement, why are they still unable to move? The darling laughed in desperation, it is not done yet. When the wailing sound stops then they are able to move then, it is also during that time some unknown location will be struck by a catastrophe. Upon saying that, she inhaled a long breath and calmed her heart and spirit with great effort, she reminded Qin Zhui and the rest who could only listen but not speak in all seriousness. After you have regained your strength later, we shall walk out of the mountain together, only then we will remove the father's black scale skin. Otherwise the corpse figurines. Before Xiao Wu finished her sentence, the hundreds of corpse figurines that were already standing rigidly earlier suddenly moved about again. They turned around and walked in huge strides towards the place where Chang Li and the rest were. There was not an ounce of expression on their faces. Within their pitch-black eye sockets, gloominess and coldness shimmered. Darling was startled, her mouth was shouting a tune that no one could understand she was about to stand up when the corpse figurines suddenly increased their speed. They swept past her akin to a gale and stretched out their hands as they clutched at Wen Liang's neck. No one understood what was going on. The life meridians of the severely injured and dying Wen Leong were obviously already sealed by the five scale skin. However, the corpse figurines that were surging out continuously in large amounts earlier, who did not even take a glance at him, captured him away right now. Wen Leong absorbed the rare poisons in the world. He had since turned into a genuine poisonous creature but the poison of life and death occupied in his body on usual days. Unless he was doing it on purpose, the strong poison would never leak outwards, under normal circumstances. Even if one were to stick out one's tongue and licked, he would only taste a little salty at most. Yet, ever since he returned from the desert rebel mountain for the second time, there was more than just the poison of life and death in Wen Liang's body. 
There was also the poison of aqua blue that was left behind by the Grand Master Tuasia back then, in the entire world, one could say uncourteously that this was the two types of strong poisons that ranked number one and number two in the world. Two types of strong poison were tearing and swallowing at one another, the poison of aqua blue was attempting to disperse off the poison of life and death. Such that it could poison when lay on to death while the poison of life and death was protecting its master wholeheartedly. On their escape to the corpse-forming land, the battle of strong poisons was only limited to the inside of his body. However, as the two gushes of poison power battled more and more fiercely, there was a strong collision that erupted with a loud bang not too long ago. Crashing into countless filthy streams of utmost poisons that were cruising everywhere in Wen Liang's body and flowed on his skin. Whether it was the poison of life and death or the poison of aqua blue, these poisonous streams were albeit fine and small and also perhaps unable to injure fifth brother Hanba. However, melting away those fine scale skins was nothing much to it. Wen Liang was still alive right now. On the other hand, the poison of life and death was still exercising control over his upper body with great effort at this moment. Yet, after the scale skin on the soles of his feet were corroded by the poison power, the scaled skin could no longer seal his life meridians. The corpse figurines suddenly realized that there was still one more living person behind their backs, of course, they would not act mercifully. When Xiaowu was waking the 5,000 corpse figurines not long ago, she was already exhausted. She watched helplessly as the corpse figurines were about to seize Wen Leong and clenched her teeth anxiously. She exerted the last ounce of strength in her body, raised the weeping staff as she pounded onto the corpse figurines ferociously. Almost at the same time, a soft growl echoed below the crowd's feet all of a sudden. A tall and big one-armed man appeared next to the darling stiffly. His one arm waved and tossed Xiaowu to one side, fifth brother Hanba had arrived. Hanba's broken arm had yet to fully grow back. Even his movement was a little awkward. After he waved Xiaowu away, he was green with rage as he shouted, Are you seeking for your doom? The corpse figurines had only committed a massacre, the tyrannical energy was strong and heavy at this moment. Even for Xiaowu who was born here, if she were to suddenly attack them, she would draw in their countercharge as well. Over 700 corpse figurines were guided in by the morning cauldrons and the yin's mountain eye, they had already fused into one. Once they trumped up a countercharge, they would be doing it all together. The corpse figurines grabbed onto Wen Liang's neck and tossed him towards a morning cauldron nearby. Wen Liang's upper body was still under the control of the poison of life and death, there was no strong poison that was leaking out. Hence, the corpse figurine who was holding him was not poisoned. The rest of the corpse figurines seemed to take notice of Xiaowu's hostility. They turned around and used their gloomy gaze to stare at the darling and Hanba fifth brother. Even Qin Zhui, with the least experience, could tell that, if anyone were to attempt to rescue Wen Liang, that person would be immediately slaughtered by the corpse figurines mercilessly. In the eyes of the corpse figurines, Xiaowu and Hanba were not living humans, so the corpse figurines would not toss them into the morning cauldrons. Xiaowu bawled and cried aloud. She pointed to Wen Liang, who was about to be broken apart soon, as she cried out to Hanba, Father save. Hanba did not even wait for Xiaowu to finish speaking before he shook his head, he is unsalvageable. Let alone now, even when I was in my prime, I did not have the ability to stop them. Our effort to save him will only result in the loss of our lives. Hanba did not have a close relationship to these two Asiye's disciples since the beginning. If they were to deal with a formidable enemy together, of course, they would be fighting side by side with each other. Yet, if he were to save the person under the circumstances, it was utterly meaningless suicide. Of course, Hanba was unwilling to sacrifice his life and he would never sacrifice the darling that he loved more than his life. Changli, Cone Nail and the rest's gaze were tainted with blood but there was no way they could move even slightly. Hanba heaved a sigh, he walked to the darling's side, he used his one arm to pick her up. Darling was born here, how could she not understand the corpse figurine's temperament? If it was not for Hanba who managed to stop her in time, if the weeping staff were to strike onto the corpse figurine's head, she would be sacrificing her little life for nothing. The corpse figurine that captured Wen Leong arrived in front of the morning cauldron in the blink of an eye. 
Its arms shook once and tossed when Leong into the yin's flames that were echoing with continuous wails and were burning vigorously to the heaven. The faint blue-colored yin's flames burned bright and scorching hot, the corpse figurine's faces were reflected by the swaying fiery glow as if a sense of smile arose from the fire. Hundreds of corpse figurines stood on the same spot once again and stopped moving ever since. Hanba meditated in the form of a corpse, it was not supposed to wake up. Yet, after the corpse figurine's number of three sevens was completed, when more than two thousand landhopper were tossed into the yin's fire to worship the cauldrons, the malevolent energy in the evil cave gushed out. The mausoleums and corpse pits underneath the entire yin's mountain eye were aroused the corpse figurines that were not awakened by Xiao Wu also became agitated. Even the few corpse figurines that were used by Hanba to absorb corpse primordial energy to heal his injuries too started struggling and separating. In an attempt to break through the seal that was left behind by the Grand Master Mi Su back then and surged onto the ground surface to join their companions to commit the massacre together. As the power source was unstable, Fifth Brother Hanba who was charging his battery also followed and awakened. Everything happened on the surface of the ground. He could see it in his eyes, yet he had never revealed himself. Even if it was to save the people, Darling Xiao's act of summoning the corpse figurines broke the great abstinence of the morning sect. Of course, Hanba would not be willing to punish her but a stern lecture was inevitable anyhow. Yet, Darling was unusually sad at the time, how could Hanba make up his mind to reprimand her? So, he straightforwardly hit underground and feigned his sleep, it was until Xiaowu was about to fight desperately with the corpse figurines, only then he revealed himself and save his precious daughter. They watched helplessly as when Leong was tossed into the yin's cauldron. Whether it was a great evil creature from the primitive ages, the few top demon immortals or corpse immortal, the feebleness and helplessness that felt the emptiest ever since they cultivated into spirits arose in their hearts. This emptiness that felt as if the heaven and earth were stagnant, that disregarded life and death, that even made them regret that they had lived to this day. In order to not witness when Leon died before their eyes yet they were helpless, amongst them, some rather stayed in that silent ancient cave, while some rather be trapped in the gloomy and cold stone forest in the gold-consuming lair. At the sound of a thud, the ugly youth fell head first onto the ground. He fainted. The wailing sound of the landhoppers that were still struggling in the bronze cauldrons gradually grew softer, Hanba held Xiaowu. He turned around and looked towards Changli, Cone Nail and the rest, his voice sounded peculiar as if there was something he was trying to suppress, when the wailing sound has ended, I will be escorting all of you out of here. If you were to attempt to seek revenge on behalf of Wen Leong hereafter, please come and look for me any time. No one knew how long had passed. The wailing sound was finally akin to that whiff of smoke that rose weakly after the candle was extinguished and vanished into nothingness in the wind. Chang Li's body shivered, her tears finally found its release. Tears flowed down from her eyes, Chang Li raised her head and looked at Hanba, seeking for revenge from you. Might as well seek revenge from Kong Nuer but if I were to seek revenge from Kong Nuer, I might as well seek revenge from myself as she was saying that. She reeled and stood up under Kong Nail's support, a sense of forlorn covered the corners of her lips, when Le Yang's life shall be repaid by me. Following that, she let go of Kong Nail, she did not look at anybody else anymore, she used her final ounce of life vitality to condense into half a demon blade. She staggered and walked out of the yin's mountain eye, after she had walked until the edge of the mountain valley, she turned around slowly, there is no need for all of you to blame yourselves. Everything that happened caused by, three years, three years, regardless of whether I have the opportunity to meet him or not, I will then return when Leong A. Before Chang Li could finish her sentence, a hysterical shriek suddenly interrupted her, you shall repay. What are you going to use to repay? How are you going to repay? Your life, the life of every disciple in your demon cat sect, you and Tuasye's lives, everything adds up together, can it be used to exchange for Wen Liang's one cry? Or one laugh? Or one earnest and sincere foolish phrase from him? Cone Nail's face was covered in tears, she was halfway through her speech when she suddenly started coughing violently. Her feeble body was shivering, suppressing, and finally, she could no longer suppress the agony in her chest that was capable of churning the sun and moon into pieces and annihilate the heaven and earth. She fell onto the ground once again and broke into bitter sobs, her sorrowful voice was heard intermittently, 
who is Wen Leong in your heart, Chang Li. He is no one but a disciple who is slightly interesting, he is no one but a junior that is favored by you. It is right. If you were to sacrifice your life in an attempt to save him, then you will always be high above all else in eternity. Anything that you do on behalf of him is only based on what you think and what you wish, you are not giving but you are rewarding. He is already dead without a corpse or bones right now, yet you still dare to talk wildly about repaying him with a life. Cone Nail pounded her fist onto the ground suddenly, these are all bullshit. As she was saying that, Cone Nail suddenly raised her head, there was no sense in her eyes, she looked towards Chang Li with an empty gaze, do you know who is he in my heart? He is the only person that I trust on this world, I may not necessarily be joyous when I am with him but I will feel sad for him even if he were to lose even a hair. I may not necessarily miss him when I part with him but I cannot help but to smile when I think of him occasionally, I will remember that he is always so honest and sincere. If he is going to be bullied by the others Cone Nail could not continue to speak anymore, other than bawling loudly, there was nothing else under the heaven that can help to lessen her heartache. Chang Li had since fallen onto the ground. Tears were streaming down her face. Xiao Wu who was hiding in fifth brother Hanba's arms was crying like it was the apocalypse when a series of strange ululation echoed from her chest pocket, You've Got Me was finally awake. It cautiously revealed its round head from the darling's chest pocket. Soon after, it realized that the two most terrifying monsters in its little heart, Chang Li and Kone Nail, were overwhelmed with sorrow. The bug was immediately startled, its pitch black eyes were almost widened to the point of exploding. Nineteen gasped out softly in surprise. She looked at, you've got me, Doli, you've got me, recognized when Leong as its master this species of spiritual bug and its master's intention is interlinked, if when Leong is dead, it should not be alive right? It was unknown whether it was too startled or because it understood nineteen's words, you've got me, nodded absent-mindedly. It was at this moment, the morning cauldron that had just recently swallowed when Leong was akin to a giant frog with food poisoning, it suddenly leaped once. Chapter, 270 When the morning cauldron leaped, the yin flames that burned enchantingly within it froze suddenly as if time had stopped without a warning. Both Kone Nail and Chang Li forgot about crying. They almost screamed at the same time. With some unknown strength, they leaped like two furious mother cats and pounced towards that morning cauldron. When Le Young's death was originally all but certain when he was thrown into the morning cauldron but the perceptive, master acknowledging you've got me, was still very much alive. That, and the morning cauldron had shown some strange changes, they saw a ray of hope. The two female demons had just made their moves when the corpse figurines also moved suddenly. They quickly parted and shielded the morning cauldron from the front. Their hollow eyes looked fiercely at Chang Li and Kone Nail. Fifth brother Hanba burned with rage. His body moved like lightning. He kicked Chang Li and Kone Nail who wanted to rescue Wen Leong until they flipped over, it's in the nature of the corpse figurines to guard the cauldron, do you guys have a death wish? If you want to die, do it outside the call, don't do it in my home. The morning cauldron vibrated, the demon flames froze. These were premonitions of the advent of a terrifying tragedy. It was not as Chang Li and the others had thought, that when Leong was struggling. Chang Li crashed heavily onto the ground. This time, she could not get back onto her feet anymore. She screamed hoarsely towards Hanba, when Leong isn't dead yet. Kone Nail's wounds were slightly lesser than Chang Li. She bounced right back up the minute her shoulder touched the ground. She did not even have time to talk nonsense as she howled and wanted to urge her life vitality. She was about to pounce towards the morning cauldron when she suddenly gave a heart-wrenching wail. She clasped her head with her hands and fell on the ground in excruciating pain. Her life vitality was already gradually scattering, her spirit took blow after blow. She flitted between life and death, sorrow and happiness. Her primordial spirit was extremely shaken. The heavenly water spirit suddenly attacked. It enveloped the life vitality, which was in a mess, and started to attack the seal within her primordial spirit like a tempest. Cone Nail felt like her entire strength was sapped from her body. Her head was in so much pain that it felt like it was erupting. Her scattered memories were like snow in the gale as they swirled and flew past her eyes. Nineteen was greatly shocked. 
she quickly stepped forward to prop Cone Nail up. Cone Nail's lips were already bleeding because she bit on them. She tried with all her might to open a slit in her eyelids. She used her final strand of spirit she preserved and said to Nineteen, Break the cauldron. I beg she collapsed and fainted. A tinge of hesitation flashed across Nineteen's eyes. She lifted her head and looked at the thousand corpse figurines, which were capable to tear them all to shreds. In the end, she carried Cone Nail and retreated. Chang Li's eyes blew fire with hate. She did not even look at Nineteen and Cone Nail. Her pristine hands, which had been untainted for thousands of years, had scratched at the hardeen eyes ground until her blood flowed out. She glared at fifth brother Hanba and screamed almost hysterically, You're making me do this. After she finished, she quickly drew a deep breath and howled every word, Demon. Body. Xiao Wu cried loudly. She jumped down from Hanba's embrace onto the ground. She extended her arms and shielded her father. She cried at Changli, It's not that daddy doesn't want to save him. Nobody can save Wen Leong, they'll only throw away their lives in vain. Chang Li could not shout the final words breaking spell. The one who stopped them from breaking the cauldron was not Hanba, but the corpse figurines. Fifth brother Hanba only did not want them to die in vain. Even if she killed Hanba, she still could not save Wen Leung. Even if the four peerless demon immortals, the cat demon, cone nail, golden monkey and Hanba were at their prime. It was still impossible for them to break through the 777 corpse figurines that had fused together with the dragon's vein and Yin's eye. She had spent 2000 years and was parted with Tua Xia in life she had used one minute and was separated by death with Wen Leung. Chang Li raised her pointed chin and spewed out a mist of blood packed with the agony of the partings in life and death. Her sharp howl turned into a hoarse wail, what's the use of cultivating heaven? She was not even as happy as the cat inside the creeping mountain forest, which was unsure if it was hiding or ambushing a wild rat. The frozen flames on the morning cauldron suddenly moved. The Yin flames that were a few meters high were like a pained snake. It writhed and wriggled in agony before entangling in circles, the light of the flames flickered and flashed across everyone's eyes suddenly. A sad and shrill wail that made everyone's blood curdle shot towards the sky from the evil hole of the morning cauldron. That strip of Yin flame gave a muffled bang. Like a flower which had been suppressed for thousands of years and finally got the chance to bloom, its thick flames quickly broke into countless fiery snakes and blasted in every direction. The other Yin flames that burned on the morning cauldron seemed alive. They struggled desperately and hastily leaned their own bodies towards their wounded companion but they could not reach it. From a bird's eye view, every Yin cauldron in the call had long fiery snakes reaching out from them, they shook their tails at the Yin cauldron which swallowed Wen Leong and formed a giant and enchanting red spider lily. Fifth brother Han beside. He waved his hand with some exhaustion. He wiped out the spark of hope which had just risen in Nineteenth's eyes, the final morning cauldron which is tainted with a living person's fresh blood will trigger the evil point spirit gas. The calamity is certain, what's left is its location. After he finished, he stooped down and carried Xiaowu into his arms again and stepped aside. The corpse figurines caught a living person to sacrifice it on the cauldron, then, their powers increased. The final cauldron that was tainted with a living person's fresh blood would trigger the evil point spirit gas under it to shoot towards the sky and bring forth a great calamity in the realm of men what was left now was to wait for that dark and gloomy. Stifling grayish green in air to spray forth from the final morning cauldron which swallowed Wen Leung. When everything was over, Hanba would cast his spell again to guide the corpse figurines which had regained their corpse appearance back into the crypt. Soon, the bloody soil on the ground would dry up, the call would resume its thousand year barrenness as if nothing had ever taken place. At this moment, Hanba suddenly felt a blazing heat, which dropped down from the sky. When he looked up, he saw a humongous red giant sword plunging straight down towards himself. Hanba was scared out of his wits. He immediately ran as he howled furiously, Who is this elite who has come to the Yin's eye? Please show yourself. The half-solidified corpse blood in Hanba's body all rushed towards his brain. It was needless to say that he was infuriated, but he was even more terrified. Someone had sneaked an attack on him, why were the corpse figurines unmoved? 
you've got me hid within Xiaowu's chest, only a tiny head showed. It saw, with its own eyes, that the two great demon immortals beside its master had been bullied by Hanba and secretly summoned the great sword. Xiaowu was also startled. She reached out and grabbed You've Got Me. You've Got Me flailed and ran. It ran along the little darling's arm and neck. It would let out a wail every so often. It complained that the little darling could not read the atmosphere and was only interested in having fun even now. At the same time, the sad and forlorn wail that erupted from the Ean cauldron stopped abruptly. A series of explosions like muffled thunder rumbled in the ground beneath the Ean cauldron. A layer of stifling grayish-green smoke slowly filled the giant cauldron, but it did not spew forth like a volcano. It was like a strange god's lake. These beautiful evil spot spirit gas flowed into the cauldron ceaselessly from the evil spot. Then, it flowed and rolled but not even a single drop of it spilled. Hanba had no time to wonder about the morning cauldron's strange phenomenon. He was carrying Xiaowu and dodged molten metal fire bells attacks like lightning. His cold gaze quickly turned towards Nineteen, which shocked Nineteen into hastily shaking her head, it wasn't me. Xiaowu was completely worn out after she was heavily wounded. She could not catch You've Got Me, who was running all over her but was reluctant to leave her. The 777 corpse figurines had mechanical expressions. They stood upright on their original spots. However, inside their dark eye holes, it was as if a tinge of confusion and disappointment flowed out of them. They did not understand why the foul air only rolled into the cauldron but did not shoot up to the sky. Why did they need to fight so hard since they could not do anything about the calamity? Just like Hanba did not know that there was a worm under the heavens that knew how to control a profound orthodox ultimate giant sword and recently learned how to sneak an attack. Nineteen herself did not know about the morning cauldron's heaven-killing magic. She had no idea that the morning cauldron was behaving abnormally right now. She frowned slightly and looked at molten metal fire bell that was chasing Hanba around and mumbled, why didn't you've got me break the cauldron? You've got me was only angry at fifth brother Hanba. It did not even feel that when Leong was in any danger. Suddenly, a series of muffled howls rolled within the morning cauldron. The muffled howl was like a deadly shout but it was not clear, but it was so hoarse that it made everyone uncomfortable. You've got me's body went stiff. It no longer cared about chasing Hanba down. It hastily turned around. Its dark black eyes bulged as it looked at the morning cauldron. Molten metal fire bell lost its orders and plunged into the ground at an angle. Red pot was much more well behaved than you've got me. Dot. Ever since Xiaowu shook it, it crawled back into Xiaowu's chest and did not move about. When it heard the muffled howl, it could not restrain its curiosity and peeked its head out. Hanba was still flustered, but he was still concerned about the strangeness of the morning cauldron. After he walked away from the giant sword, his life vitality flowed and he slowly floated up into the sky. Then, his always rigid face twitched fiercely. On the other hand, Xiaowu cheered suddenly, it's Ning Jiao's bone. Inside the giant cauldron, a giant bony snake wrapped in grey mist coiled and stretched its body. Its dark giant head surfaced and sank. It swam happily within the cauldron full of evil spot spirit gas. Beside it, there was a curved snake knife, which also swam as it wagged its tail. It made a hoarse hiss occasionally. Chang Li stopped crying again. She stared blankly at the morning cauldron. After a brief moment, she regained her senses. She yelled anxiously at Nineteen, Bring me up. Bring me up, quick. Nineteen smiled faintly. She went over and helped Chang Li up. She leaped onto the red giant sword that was stuck in the ground. Hanba was startled. He reminded Chang Li with good intentions, be careful of that sword. Chang Li ignored him. She looked absent-mindedly at Ning Jiao, which was happily cruising in the morning cauldron. Her already dark eyes gradually lit up. Her delicate chest regained some spirit but she seemed to have lost it. She opened her mouth and chuckled. Hanba was anxious out of his wits. He would have given anything just to jump into the cauldron to see what was happening. However, no matter how he called out to Changli, the cat demon only smiled foolishly. At this moment, there was a sound of two cold metal rubbing against each other which came from the ground, bring me up there to see, 
then I'll tell you what's happening. Hanba turned around with great joy but he could not find the person who spoke. Only when the golden monkey waved his tail forcefully did fifth brother know that it was him. He placed the little darling onto his back and stretched out an arm. He drew the monkey to himself. When Qian Ren dug the devil fetus on Mount Hua's ending cave, he had already gone through Wen Liang's method of practice with Chong Li and Kone Nail. When he saw the phenomenon in the morning cauldron, the monkey's face was also filled with happiness. He roughly explained the Nine Jiao magic weapon and Wen Liang's art of poison to Hanba. Even though Hanba was a peerless corpse immortal, he had never heard of such an art of poison, which led to the attainment of a saint's body. The five elements transformed Yang, the corpse poison is Yin. When Yin and Yang combined, the poison will turn into chaos. First, the meridians were remolded, then, the bones were remolded, then the blood, flesh and skin. When the monkey finished his explanation, Chang Li had already regained her senses. She looked as fresh as a daisy. She stood on top of the giant sword, laughed loudly and shouted at Hanba, now you understand. Hanba did not reply, but he looked at the giant sword under Chang Li's and Nineteen's feet with eyes full of alarm. Chang Li was all smiles, it's all right. We'll talk about the giant sword later. Hanba brought the golden monkey and floated onto the giant sword, this set of magic weapon refined using Ning Jiao, they've assimilated with Wen Leong and improved alongside his art of poison. If Ning Jiao's sting and the bony snake is still here, Wen Leong is sure to be alive. Chang Li nodded without saying anything. The little darling Xiao Wu hastily asked, What about Ning Jiao's armor? Xiao Wu could not rest easy as long as the snake skin did not float up. Chang Li was in an amazingly good mood. She strenuously reached out her hand to pinch Xiao Wu's chubby cheeks, Ning Jiao's armor is already refined into the armor of his blood and bones. It cannot leave his body as she was saying this, the bony snake and Ning Jiao's sting inside the morning cauldron suddenly rustled and shook. The evil spirit gas inside the morning cauldron also became murky and rapid. The bony snake kept hissing in a muffled tone. Its body stiffened as if it was under immense pain. The little darling could not help but bulge her eyes. Two bags of bones the size of fists were protruding out of the bony snake's skull. At the same time, on the bony snake's body, another four giant bags of bones rose on the bony snake's body. The snake knife which cruised beside the bony snake stopped its humming. It floated silently on top of the morning cauldron's evil spirit gas as if it were dead. Hanba's voice sounded like he just swallowed a bowl of glass shards, this is. If it were not for 19 support, Chan Li would have been so excited that she fell off from the giant sword. She pointed at the morning cauldron and said, Bony snake turned turned. Hanba stomped his foot fiercely, the two of them finished the sentence together, into a dragon. Bony snake turned into a dragon. Ning Jiao cultivated with the hopes that it might one day turn into a heavenly dragon and rise directly to a high position. The current bony snake is dead, it could not have improved itself. Chang Li herself was unsure if she was crying or laughing. Her sparkling tears only had one single thought, God was not blind. The golden monkey's excitement was partly due to Wen Liang's not being dead, partly because he had witnessed a never-before-seen strange phenomenon, the dead monster Ning Jiao had taken the form of a dragon. After a long while, he regained his senses, as I expected the evil spot spirit gas was also absorbed by this young lad. As he said this, he looked up at Hanba, the evil spirit gas inside the evil spot is the poison of Yin. No wonder the evil spirit gas did not spray forth Hanba noted. Nobody under the heavens understood this place more than he did. The evil spirit gas within the evil spot was the purest and strongest poison of Yin. It could never be released into the realms of men, that was why it was subdued by the morning cauldron. If it was about quality, the poison of life and death inside Wen Liang's body was not as pure and strong as Grand Master Tuasie's aqua blue strong poison but in terms of quantity, the toxins accumulated within Wen Liang's body was unrivaled. The poison of life and death was like a gluttonous evil beast whose hunger was never satisfied. As long as it found some pure poison, it would absorb it and assimilate it. After the remolding of bones last time, it had swallowed the big group of firecrackers poison of water and the devil fetus poison of wood. 
That poison of water almost destroyed Tian Yin's Dharmakeya which gathered the life vitality energy of Black and White Island's three sword immortals that poison of wood was formed by the spiritual seed demon spell after it absorbed the vitality of the plants. However, after these two poisons were absorbed by Wen Leong, because they could not find any poison of Yin to assimilate them, they could only mix with his poison of life and death. The quantity was enough but the quality was never satisfactory. Wen Leong only felt that he attained the art of casting poison of the water elements flow and wood elements root taking. His body could not be improved, his method of practice also did not move forward. Although the Yin flame within the morning cauldron was enchanting and blazing, it had no heat, it could never burn someone to death. What truly killed the sacrifice, was the corpse-guiding morning gas that condensed inside the morning cauldron for a few thousand years. After the sacrifice was offered, the purest poison of Yin would surge out from the evil spot under the morning cauldron. It was supposed to shoot up into the sky, mix with the vitality of heaven and earth and form a boundless foul air, eventually leading into a great disaster. Ever since when Leong was thrown into the morning cauldron, he first completely absorbed the morning energy within the cauldron, but he was already covered in blood. He still triggered the yin's eye magic circle and guided the evil spirit gas from within the evil spot into the morning cauldron. A crisp cracking sound interrupted the deductions of the few demon immortals. Inside the morning cauldron, a pair of pale bone horns protruded ferociously from that big skull and pointed at the firmament. Suddenly, seven auspiciously colored rays of light shot forth from the melancholic sky. Thousands of clouds rolled forth and formed countless godly appearances of Golden Winged Dapeng and Ninth Heaven Divine Dragon with the wind. In the blink of an eye, clear vehement long howls and dragons roar intertwined with each other, they penetrated the heavens and earth. Since the beginning of the world, the dragon's vain yin's eye had been void of life, but now it was enveloped in a layer of soft beauty by the auspicious light that covered the skies. It was like the sweetest dream, so silently, so unexpectedly, so unbelievably dropping down from the sky. The bony snake's body did not increase in size, but amidst the waving of its two horns and four limbs, it burned with an imposing dragon's aura, which spews forth from within the morning cauldron. Like a groundbreaking eruption, it quickly covered every corner of the Yin Mountain's eye. Xiao Wu cried. Her two chubby hands grabbed her father's neck. It was different from her former wails. This time, the little darling sobbed, which left her unable to say another word. After countless sobs, she finally coughed out the stifling air within her chest. However, she was at a loss for words. She was stunned momentarily with a silly look before she said with a stutter, This dragon is ugly. The bony snake had grown dragon horns and got four sharp claws but its body was still a chain of cold white bones. The faint grayish mist, which enveloped its body before this, was nowhere to be seen, while Ning Jiao's sting turned into a dull black. Without anyone noticing, layers of dragon lines covered the blade. As long as Wen Leong was still alive, Chang Li could care less about the appearance of the monster within the morning cauldron. She replied with a smile, Ning Jiao is dead. Its bones turning into a dragon is all thanks to Wen Leong. No matter how it changed it would never regrow its skin and flesh. This bone form will never change. As if it heard Chang Li's words, the bony snake which had turned into the shape of a dragon's bone raised its head and roared loudly. Hanba heaved a long sigh, as long as Wen Leong is alive. Of course, Wen Leong was not dead. Ever since the beginning, Wen Leong had been unconscious. The poison of aqua blue fought fiercely with the poison of life and death. The series of pain it rocked formed a nightmare. Like countless rusty saws, it sawed on his nerves ceaselessly. Only when he was brought out of the Yin cauldron by the corpse figurines, that innards chilling Yin cold that followed chased away this unending nightmare. At that moment, the scar on Wen Liang's face twitched slightly. He was unconscious but he truly thought that he was dead. Everything in his surroundings expanded unreasonably. His limp body could not feel an ounce of livelihood. He only continued to sink deeper and deeper. The poison of Yin entered the cauldron. The poison of life and death, which was like a caged beast that was still fighting though it was already at the edge of breaking down, suddenly obtained another lease of life. It desperately absorbed the poison of Yin that was scattered around it. 
the poison stream eventually formed a wild spinning whirlpool. The poison of life and death did not increase in size but it became purer and stronger with a blast. Maybe it was still slightly inferior to the poison of aqua blue, its already great volume of poison was enough to make up for its lack of quality. Just like the series of battles at Mount Hua, Strange Lands, and the Qin Mountains, the outcome of the battle between the poisons within Wen Liang's body was quickly reversed. The poison of life and death finally preserved its master's body and won this fierce battle, which no one else could see. The poison of aqua blue was Grand Master Tuasie's signature poison. It would not be refined by the poison of life and death. Eventually, it was only sealed within Wen Liang's body by the poison of life and death. The evil spirit gas within the evil spot was endless. The poison of life and death was ceaselessly being purified and cruised around within Wen Liang's body. Although Wen Liang was not like Chang Li, Kone Nail and the others, he was also a top elite under the heavens. Faulty Punch had already turned into his instincts. When the poison stream grew stronger and his body could almost take it no more, even in his unconscious state of mind, when Liang's body silently shook. Although the scale of his movements was not big, it was clearly the ultimate skill passed down by Grand Master Tuasia, the faulty punch. His limbs and bones catered to the flow of the poison of life and death. They twitched, shook and directed the flow of the poison current's flow with the energy from the faulty punch. For a person to attain a saint's body, it was not a matter of the firmness of heart or stability of life vitality, but it was to separate oneself from the world. Since one was not given birth or brought up by the heavens, why go over so much trouble to assimilate oneself with the world? Now, the morning cauldron in which Wen Liang settled in was his own little world. Under the guidance of the faulty punch, Wen Liang's skin fell off piece by piece. Under his skin, his tendons and flesh had already been crushed by the big mustached man's life vitality energy and they withered slowly. After God knows how long, the crumbling skin was restored once again. Water element under the heavens nourishes everything. The poison of life and death, which had completely assimilated with the water element, was slowly remolding Wen Liang's blood vessels. The wood element was full of vitality, tough and unrelenting. The poison of life and death which had assimilated with the wood element was slowly remolding Wen Liang's tendons and flesh which had been crushed by the big mustached man's life vitality. It was at this moment that Ning Jiao's sting silently appeared from within his body. Then, it summoned the bony snake and started to swim within the morning cauldron. From the moment the poison of life and death started to remold Wen Liang's blood and flesh, the bony snake had taken the form of a dragon. Now, it slowly sunk to the bottom of the morning cauldron and started to improve with Wen Liang's method of practice. Chang Li spat out a stifled breath. Then, she thought of another matter as she shook her head with a bitter smile, how long is this going to take now? After she finished, she returned to the surface of the ground with 19 support and went to take care of Cone Nail.